Web novel fanfiction TG the good. The latest of the latest. Chapter 190 TKBM's wealth and shares sold off. Will TKBM be able to get back their controlling rights? TKBM's excavation team's artifacts have disappeared in an instant. Administrator, there were no issues with security. Was TKBM really responsible for the plane incident? Boycotts and protests have started. Large number of their tomb excavation rights have been sold off. Will there? We will not leave him alone. The fact that such things were being posted must mean that they were alive. That motherfucking monarch of plunder. However, the important thing right now was not the indignity of the official experts. It was TKBM. The youngest sister, who had quietly been sitting in the office, couldn't hold back any longer and started to shout. Ah, uh, whatever. Appa. What are you going to do about this? Who bought father's shares? How can they buy it when we didn't sell it? Who else? The eldest son started to grind his teeth. The Holtons. What? The youngest child foamed at the mouth. They were the foreigners people were talking about. But that wasn't the end to the scary things. Worst case scenario, they might sell all of their TKBM shares to CEO Juhian. That would mean that Juhian would end up as the major shareholder of TKBM. The youngest almost fainted after hearing that. Ah, my future wealth, my money. Her father's shares that she believed would become hers in the future now belonged to someone else. That's why I said that that contract looked dangerous. I said we shouldn't burn it. The expression on dad's face is obvious if he comes back alive, it's obvious. Hey, Quan Ju He, shut the hell up. The eldest son started to shout, making the youngest swear as she cowered. The eldest son, who had burned up Ju Hian's contract, was boiling in anger. I can't face my father like this. It was really dangerous. His father's wealth, TKBM's image, and even the artifacts safely secured in the excavation team's safe were all gone. My father worked so hard to build this company and the excavation team up. Maybe that was the reason. CEO Ju Hian, you'll pay for this. The eldest son took out his phone and started to make a call. Ha. Huh. Where are you calling? Hello. Ah, uh, it's me. I need you to do something for me right away. You know the company that CEO Ju Hian is the major shareholder? I think it was called Grave Company. Make sure that company fails. I don't care what methods you have to use. Take everything away from them and make the same thing happen to them. Excuse me. But this is our chance since CEO Ju Hian is not here right now. Shut up and do it. The eldest son hung up the phone and glared at the youngest daughter. Quan Ju He. Yeah, what is it? Make sure to clear that great tomb in Europe. We need to make up for our mistakes. Oh oh. Okay. She was planning on doing that anyway to take control of her father's excavation team. And Yang Chen. Yes sir. Contact father's friends and ask for their help. Ask them to take down CEO Ju Hian's company too. I understand. He had become angry for a moment but it was okay. TKBM would not stumble with just this. They were a strong global corporation. Unfortunately, none of that mattered. What? All of them said no. They said they won't help TKBM. Director Quan Sung Wu started to swear. The eldest son had given all sorts of orders to company affiliates and partner companies to attack CEO Ju Hian's company. He had tried to attack Ju Hian in numerous ways, including using the media, taking away money for investments, hindering delivery and distribution but what? You're saying that our company was the one that ended up with less capital? They stopped investing in us? Yes, yes sir. That wasn't all. The companies that had targeted Ju Hian to assist TKBM were all struggling as well. These were some of the ways. What did you say? The suppliers suddenly stopped sending the goods. What the hell are you talking about? We'll be in the red if we can't get those goods. What did you say? Our trade partners have said they will cancel all trades in the first half of the year. What do you mean they want to pull their ads? 
their investors stopped funding them. Their business partners canceled their deals. Advertisers pulled their ads. All companies and media that had tried to help TKBM almost fainted at these sudden shocking information. They went to look for their investors and partners because they thought something was fishy unfortunately, we are being pressured as well. We were told that any company that helps TKBM will lose all deals and suppliers. Anyway, please just quietly go home. Pressure. From who? How can you do all of this and think? All of those people had scoffed before showing them the same piece of paper. Feel free to take a look then. W, what is this? Ho ho, who knows? Anyway, we are just doing as we were ordered to do. We were told to show you this if you guys didn't back down. TKBM and their partners scoffed and asked them to hand the paper over. The people who were trying to help TKBM were all major corporations. They were not the type to be damaged by such things. However, they all turned pale after looking at the piece of paper. It couldn't be helped as the kiss of the devil was on the paper. You haven't forgotten what my ability is, right? By Irene Holton. That was the situation. This was the reason all of these companies had slowly stopped supporting TKBM. TKBM had lost all of their networks. Of course, Director Kwan, who had been dealing with them, was extremely angry, but everybody said the same thing. Ha, ha. Now that I think about it, we have some urgent business at our company as well. I'm sorry for TKBM, B, but my child is sick and in the emergency room right now. I'm busy so I have to hang up. We're celebrating my wife's birthday right now. I'll call you later. These bastards. At the same time young miss, I took care of things as you said. Irene's eyes were on fire as she sat inside Juhian's hotel. Irene had seen the articles about Juhian's death already. Her power of destitution had almost exploded when she read it, but she had calmly looked at Juhian's herb of eternal youth that he had asked her to look after while he was gone. Juhian's name should have disappeared from the herb of eternal youth if he really was dead. Possession type artifacts would lose their mark if they lost their master. But Juhian's name was fine on the herb of eternal youth. I'm relieved. Mr. Juhian is alive. Irene had sat back down before sighing in relief with her face in Juhian's clothes. The problem were the malicious rumors about Juhian that came after that. There were also the malicious companies trying to attack Juhian's company. There was no way Irene would not be angry. She had not gotten a call yet, but Irene was not just spraying the mosquitoes that could threaten Juhian, she was killing all the larvas as well. It happened at that moment. Young Miss, it's the Kosne Corporation this time that is coming after Mr. Seo Juhian's company. Irene's eyes flashed as if it would start to shoot laser beams maybe that was the reason. There was a story going around in the world right now. Do you know about this? The editors-in-chief for the newspaper agencies that told people to target CEO Juhian's companies all of their stocks are suddenly falling. The companies that tried to help TKBM and attacked CEO Juhian are all in danger of being bankrupt as well the employees apparently lost their personal wealth as well ha 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 did the monarch of destitution play a part. I'm certain she did. Pwa ha 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 ha. Anybody connected to TKBM will probably be ruined ha 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 TKBM's personnel department was about to die because of these rumors no, the things that were really happening. Why? Letter of Resignation Reason, I don't want to die. Reason, I don't want to end up homeless. Reason, my child is only three years old. Please let me live. One third of TKBM's employees at the headquarter resigned while two thirds of the excavation team members resigned. There was a mass exodus of TKBM's personnel. TKBM had to quickly start recruiting people but faced indignity at the low caliber applicants they received. Chairman Kwan would lament if he managed to get out of the tomb. And at that same time somewhere in the northern part of Canada ahahaha, jackpot. Chairman Kwan's artifacts are now with us, right? Yu Jeha was snickering with joy. That wasn't all. Captain Nim, I checked and Chairman Kwan's buildings and shares have safely become ours as well. Good. It looks like TKBM's partner companies are keeping their distances thanks to Irene as well. Juhian started to smile. 
Yu Jiha and Seo Lei felt good as well. Kaya, now that Chairman's fortune is in our hands the captain name and Irene's combination is always disaster grade. The curse from the contract as well as Irene's curse did not seem to end. Director Kwan threw the monitor after seeing the result of the two devil's curses. Why? Why can't you even take care of something like this, why? The second son and youngest daughter on the other end of the call were laughing. Sigh, bro. Why are you so serious? It's painful but it's all of father's wealth anyway. Sigh, he's right. We just have to think that our inheritance took a bit of a hit Quan Sung Jae. Quan Ju He. Do you guys not understand the current situation? The two siblings who were elsewhere both flinched and responded. Ah, it definitely is very dangerous. Actually, this is probably the worst situation in the history of TKBM. People are leaving, the company's image is in the gutters, sales are falling, the chairman position is about to change hands, and the passengers are suing us for damages. Ah, uh, bro, you have to go to court soon too, don't you? You. Wow, you caused quite a major incident. Father will probably faint if he gets back. Shut up. Kwan Sung Jae, if you didn't get on that plane with CEO Ju Hian. I wouldn't have had to sign such a contract if you didn't get caught. We wouldn't have ended up like this. That's why I'm asking if CEO Ju Hian is still alive. WTF bro, you're the one who signed that contract and burned it up. I don't know about CEO Ju Hian. I woke up to see that dad's warehouse was looted and that I was cast aside on a snowy field. I can call you now because I was finally rescued. The eldest son grabbed the back of his neck. Quan Ju He. You were responsible for guarding that warehouse. How could you let this happen? What can I do when it was already empty when I got there? Shut the hell up. I know you went to a concert instead of guarding the safe. I, I was only gone for two hours. I don't deserve all the blame. Appa, you were the one who got rid of the zombie brigade guarding it. The eldest son flipped a table over. In the end, the younger siblings, who had been shaking in fear at the eldest son's angry explosion, started to speak. S, should we take the money and run? Why, yeah. Now that things are like this, why don't we just give up on finding dad? We're done for even if we manage to find him. Director Kwan started to grind his teeth. They had a point. If their father appeared in this current situation the eldest son didn't even want to think about it. They would be lucky if their father didn't faint from shock after hearing that Seo Juhian might be the majority shareholder for TKBM. As for them the eyes of the eldest son, who had quietly been weighing his father's life against their future, started to flash. Now that things are like this, father, let Yang Chen know. We will resume looking for my father once we take care of this. It was at that moment. Director Nim. It's a miracle. We finally found him. We finally managed to find the chairman Nim. He's still alive. W, what did he say? All three siblings instantly turned pale. Chapter, 191. Clunk clunk. The train Juhian was on was cutting through the snowy field. It moved very gently, as if it was singing a lullaby. Of course, the engine room was turning into a battlefield. Hey! Go even faster! Step on it! No! No! You petty idiot! Step on it! Step on it so that we can flip it over! That's right! Let's kill all the humans! Let's send them all to hell. I told you no. I told you. There were many artifacts, including the gold axe silver axe, that were causing a ruckus. The rope was the only one that seemed to care about the safety of the passengers. However, at that moment. Damn it, hand it over. The gold axe silver axe managed to attack the rope. Then they grabbed onto the steering wheel with excitement. Kaya. Kaya. We took it away. We took it away. Okay little brother, push it. Go wild. Maybe it didn't know how to drive as the train wildly shook. The passengers started to scream, while Ju Hian, who was leisurely drinking whiskey and reading a newspaper, felt his body shake. 
Yu Jeha, who had even sold his soul for his pay raise, started to get angry. What the hell is that rope doing? How dare it drive like this when the Captain Nim is here? The Captain Nim is getting upset. Actually, I'm not. Ju Hien, who had only spilled a little bit of whiskey, was looking toward the engine room in confusion. The artifacts in the engine room that had caused the incident were shaking in fear. Wah, it shook so wildly. Mommy, I'm scared. I'm scared. The angry rope started to chastise them. Slap, 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 slap. That's why I told you not to do it. I told you not to. Ah. The rope slammed on the ground with its tail in anger. The rope's aura that was usually suppressed was oddly chaotic. It probably got angry thinking that they had harmed Juhian. Tang Tang. The artifact started to cry once more. It's getting angry at us, angry. Mommy, you're reminding me of that crow, don't do it. Don't do it. Wah, wah. And after a while the rope has learned a new type of knot. Its battle ability is rising viciously. The artifacts are in pain. The artifacts have learned how to grovel. Ju Hien tilted his head in confusion after seeing the messages popping up in front of him. What the hell are those fools doing? But Ju Hien just looked back at the tablet. There was an article that was more important than the artifacts. Chairman Quan is still alive. Chairman Quan is finally found in the Valley of the Kings. He was found by a private university's research team and not TKBM. TKBM is perplexed. Yu Jeha looked extremely nervous after reading that. Captain Nim, is this okay? They're saying that the old bastard showed up. Ju Hien started to laugh. It's about time he was found. Actually, it is normal that he was found. He wanted to keep that bastard locked up underground for about 100 years, but there was a limit to an artifact. In that case, it was better to make Chairman Quan appear at the right time. This was that moment. Ju Hien was the one who had originally hidden Chairman Quan, but also the one who had removed the thing hiding him now. Basically, he had used a camouflage artifact. World War II soldiers camouflage cream A grade, treasure grade, consumable artifact remaining uses 5499 Ju Hien had thoroughly rubbed that artifact around the coffin. That made the coffin naturally blend in with the surroundings, making it impossible to find with the naked eye. It was originally a C-grade artifact. But what had happened? Something odd had happened because the exit for the tomb happened to be through a women's changing room. The artifact has achieved its mission. The artifact has received the title of Fallen after encountering a new world. Its grade has risen to B-grade rare. It was the upgrade that the rope had experienced. The soldier artifact seemed to have been quite stimulated by being in a women's changing room. Anyway, adding the authority of the artifact of wrath on top of it it became quite useful. The artifact's abilities have temporarily risen. It is able to temporarily rank up one grade. It was able to add silencing to its basic stealth ability. There was still a time restriction. Anyway, that was why he had used this timing to release the artifact. Chairman Quan, I'm sure you feel like hell. But Yu Jeha still seemed to be worried as he was stomping his foot. Won't Chairman Quan get retribution soon enough now that he is out? Retribution? He can't come out that easily. Ju Hien then started to make a call. M, my goodness, how did the chairman name end up like this? In the research lab of a university chairman Quan's family and Yang Chen were looking at the coffin in front of them with disbelief. They then asked the university excavation team that had brought the coffin out. Is the chairman Nim really inside there? Yes sir, we used an x-ray that confirmed that there is a person around the chairman Nim's age inside the coffin. We also heard him banging on the coffin and asking us to save him when we were inside the tomb. Other than chairman Quan who has disappeared. Then why is it quiet right now? I'm not sure. We heard him until just a moment ago did he maybe pass away in that short. The eldest son quickly gave the order to rip the lid off the coffin. TKBM's remaining excavation team members all gathered around the coffin, but it won't open. Damn it! The golden coffin's lid did not even budge when they used artifacts or slammed into it. Fuck, what do we do? 
But at that moment uh, uh huh. Hyung. You got a call. It's from Seo Juhian. What did you say? The eldest son quickly took the phone away after hearing the second son's comment. Hello. The coffin isn't opening. It was an extremely annoying voice. The eldest son almost threw the phone in anger. But he didn't think Ju Hian had just called to make fun of him. What do you want? Do you want me to tell you how to open the coffin lid? The eldest son was shaken up, but he was cautious as the person he was talking to was Seo Ju Hian. He knew that Ju Hian must be scheming something as he would not do something like this out of the goodness of his heart. Just as he had expected I'll teach you how to open it so tell Chairman Quan the following. Tell him to give up the ownership rights to his possession type artifacts. What? I'm sure he's not dead yet but he probably doesn't even have the strength to shout anymore. So tell him to do it quickly. Then I'll open it for you. This bastard. Even though Ju Hian managed to steal the possession type artifacts from the safe, it was a headache because the ownership rights belonged to Chairman Quan. He could use strong dominance to force the artifacts to become his, but there was a limit and it was annoying. It's also annoying to match the needs of the artifact as I did with the worm. That's why just tell him to give up the ownership rights while I'm being nice. Chairman Kwan's family couldn't help but be full of disbelief. Stop with the bullshit. Why would we rely on you of all people? Then just leave him be. At least you saved some money on a coffin. By then. Hold on. Fine, we'll do it. They cautiously approached the coffin and started to speak. Um, Chairman Nim. Father, I don't know if you can hear this or not but Seo Juhian said he would open the coffin if you gave up the ownership rights to your possession type artifacts at the same time boom. The coffin shook vigorously. Bang. Baba -ba bang. They could feel Chairman Kwan's anger as he kicked the coffin. He seemed to be able to still get angry even in his condition as long as Seo Juhian was mentioned. It was at that moment. Fine. They're all in my safe anyway. They heard a voice that was so angry that he might throw up. He must have thought that it would be okay to give up the ownership rights since they should all be inside his safe. He was thinking that Seo Juhian wouldn't have been able to take them away. Maybe that was the reason. Okay. I just confirmed that he gave up the ownership rights to the artifacts. I'll open it now. The firmly stuck coffin lid slowly started to open. The people there screamed after seeing the person imprisoned inside the coffin. C. Chairman Nim. F. Father. It really was Chairman Kwan. The person inside the coffin definitely was Chairman Kwan. However Seo Juhian, that son of a bitch. There were some mysterious smells coming out of the coffin, but Chairman Kwan looked. M, my goodness. The Chairman Nim. They saw a mummy. The completely skinny mummy had a glare on its face while releasing a venomous aura. Go and capture capture Seo Juhian right away. The extremely skinny mummy gave orders to its subordinates. Go capture him immediately. I'm going to kill him. The mummy stood up in anger. Kaya. See, Chairman Nim. The secretaries became anxious and called the doctors they brought with them over. However, Chairman Kwan pushed the doctors aside and continued to shout in an angry voice. My artifacts. My excavation team. My networks. All of those along with my capital makes it easy to take care of a bastard like him. Now. The three siblings all started to frown after hearing that. However, Chairman Kwan didn't seem to notice as he looked toward his children and continued to speak. Okay, hurry up and go bring my artifacts. And send the people out. My excavation teams I've been saving them until today but I will send all of them out to fuck Seo Juhian over. However, nobody seemed to want to move to bring the artifacts and excavation teams to Chairman Kwan. What the hell? What is going on? I told you go get them right now. The secretary had an awkward expression while his children slowly prepared to run. Um, Chairman Nim, T, that it's nothing. You should first get some treatment at the hospital. But Chairman Kwan seemed to have realized something after seeing his children looking to run and started to frown. 
I'm guessing that my second son and youngest daughter did something stupid while I was gone. You two are worse than dogs. He wondered why his eldest son had an odd expression on his face as well, but he just brushed it aside. It's fine so tell me what happened. The secretary and his children were anxious. I, it's nothing. Chairman Nim. It's probably best that you go to the hospital. Tell me. The secretary debated for a bit before handing him a tablet. Who, there's even an article. Let's see what stupid shit you did this time. Chairman Kwan's eyes opened wide after seeing the articles popping up. All of Chairman Kwan's shares have been sold. All of Chairman Kwan's artifacts have disappeared from his safe. A multitude of letters of resignation from TKBM's excavation teams there are less than 10 people left I don't want to die from destitution. Numerous companies are cutting ties with TKBM. There are no more investors. They are facing numerous lawsuits in the hundreds of billions. Murderer Corporation. People are boycotting TKBM. Different countries have stopped importing TKBM products. Will CEO Ju Hien become the major shareholder for TKBM? It was normal for Chairman Kwan to faint. That old bastard probably fainted by now, right? Only faint. He probably can't wake up because of the shock for a while. They chuckled and got off the train. The train had finally arrived at a village. As people were getting off the train thanking Ju Hien and saying that they won't forget about what he had done for them but was there a need to open that coffin lid for that bastard? Captain Nim, you said the incantation to let him out, right? Yu Jeha was asking why Ju Hien didn't let him rot forever in that coffin. However, Ju Hien sneered at him as he responded. I didn't open it for him. Why would I open that? Ha! Huh. The coffin that the bastard was in is a trap inside the tomb. It slowly loses power once it is out of the tomb. T, that means. It was about time for the trap to lose its strength. They were probably able to open it when I called. Basically, I didn't open it for them they just opened it while causing a ruckus. Wow. He shamelessly acted as if he had opened it for them. Ju Hien called Seo Lei over while Jae Ha stood there in disbelief. Hey Seo Lei. Seo Lei seemed to be looking for something through the crowd of people getting off. Hey Seo Lei. Who are you looking for? Ah. She looked around before quickly running over to Ju Hien and starting to speak. Captain Nim, to be honest with you, I think I saw Chloe on the P. Kaya. The rope attacked Seo Lei as soon as it got off the train. Kaya, W, what are you doing? The rope went inside Seo Lei's clothes before searching between her legs her breasts, and all over her body. It then dragged something out from her chest area. It was none other than Su Fu's artifact, the worm. The North Pole must have been too cold for the worm that it was relaxing with Seolay's body heat. Of course, this was shocking information for Seolay. M, my goodness, why was that worm by my boobs? I didn't even feel anything. Yu Jeha's jaws dropped with envy while Ju Hien's eyes became as sharp as those of a wild beast. The worm that had instantly been abducted by the rope felt as if it was going to die. Let go of me, you scoundrel. Let go. I was using a stealth artifact to enjoy paradise. It was extremely soft. I even thought about going farther down. But the rope that had rescued. Siole was extremely excited. I gave you the full one hundred million dollars. I gave it to you. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give me the thing that will turn me human. Okay, okay. The worm that was in pain after being shaken by the rope took something out. Chapter, 192. It was a piece of paper. The rope's eyes were sparkling while looking at it as it asked. Is this it, is this it? Was this the item that could turn it into a human? The rope opened the paper with a look full of expectations. But the rope soon stiffened up. It made sense since artifacts are banned from using human transformation artifacts. Those who go against this restriction will be punished. Both the seller and the buyer will be punished. It was not the artifact to turn it into a human but an announcement. The worm mischievously smiled at the frozen rope. What can I do? 
I saw that there was such an announcement. You know how busy I am. I didn't know we received such notice and agreed to sell you the artifact. Ah, I can't give the one hundred million dollars back to you. You already paid it. Sorry. I really wanted to get the item for you, but what can I do? Orders are orders. I need to survive as well. Ah, should I give you a chocolate bar instead? It's Delhi the rope's anger burst out. Shut up and hand it over. Hand it over. The now violent rope was choking the worm and shaking it around. Even the innocent rope knew that this bastard worm was trying to scam it. Hand it over. Hand it over. The worm that was about to be choked to death started to shout. That, what do you expect me to do? Both you and I are done for if I sell that artifact to you. The rope flinched after hearing that. It didn't care whether it died but it didn't want the worm to end up in trouble because of its actions. Then I guess I have no choice. The rope became upset. The worm wickedly smiled thinking that the rope was too innocent. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Ah, since things ended up like this, I'll give you something else. How about alcohol? I don't need alcohol, give it to Seo Juhian. He likes liquor. The rope's eyes flashed after hearing that. The rope's expression had brightened after hearing that Juhian likes it. The worm was laughing while looking at the happy rope. I sold a 100,001 whiskey for 100 billion one. This was a totally profitable sale. However, at that moment there should be a limit to your scam. Set had appeared. The worm foamed from the mouth at Set's appearance. See, commander of the Kornayim. Furthermore, there has never been such an announcement. The worm started to cry after seeing Set rip the announcement up. See, Commander Nim. This is an obstruction of business. As a result the rope was extremely angry. The fact that it was holding a rock with its tail made it obvious it would not just let this go. And, no that's not the case. The worm gave up after seeing the angry rope starting to charge toward it. Okay, here. This is it. Take you. You punk. The worm threw an item to the rope. The Korean wormwood and garlic given by Wanwung SS grade, divine grade, consumable artifact, immediate effect it was none other than Korean wormwood and garlic. The rope had seen Irene using it to cook for Juhian. The worm started to explain. You'll turn into a human if you eat it. The rope's eyes started to sparkle. It recalled hearing something like this in the past. It heard a story about a bear that ate these things for 100 days and turned into a human. Then I just need to eat this for 100 days. No. This might not look like much, but it is a divine grade artifact. You just need to eat it once. It will have an immediate effect. The rope's face lit up after hearing that. It just needed to eat it once to turn into a human. The rope that was full of expectations was jumping up and down in joy while holding the box. It was extremely happy. Although these things didn't look tasty, it just needed to suck it up and eat it once. Finally, I. It could turn into a human like the others that Juhian likes. It could confidently stand next to Juhian. Daji wouldn't be able to ignore it anymore. It might even be able to stop being envious of Siole and Irene. The rope's eyes were sparkling as it tried to eat the Korean wormwood and garlic. It was at that moment. The rope dropped the item after realizing a shocking fact. Set tilted its head and observed the rope. What is it? The rope just plopped down on the ground without caring for Set. It realized that it didn't have it. It didn't have a mouth. It didn't have a mouth to eat the Korean wormwood and garlic. What's wrong with the rope? Ju Hian was looking at the rope as if something was off as he headed into a nearby hotel. The rope had been doing weird part-time jobs to gather money for a while. It should normally be looking around to see if there were any jobs to do. I don't know, but it looks very sad. The rope that was following behind Juhian would start moving, stop, move, stop, move, stop, until it stopped at a transparent wall to look at its reflection. The rope then started to sniffle. Why don't I have a mouth? Why not? It would actually be weirder if it had a mouth, but anyway, 
the important thing right now I can't be with master like this. Ju Hian called the rope that looked depressed. The rope slowly crawled over like a dog and rubbed its face on Ju Hian's leg. It really seems depressed. It liked being caressed by Ju Hian, but it looked sad while looking at him. But at that moment poke poke. Someone poked the rope. Hey. You can have this. Set was the one who was poking the rope. Set, who was poking the rope with his nose, had something in his mouth. It looked like a rock at first glance. You can turn into a human if you use this. Set coolly dropped something on the ground and walked away. It was obvious it ripped the worm to shreds and got this item. Of course, the worm that had instantly been robbed. By Set was probably crying right now saying this item was expensive. Anyway, it was a different artifact than the Korean wormwood and garlic. It was a different artifact to turn it into a human. That was why the rope was extremely happy. Thank you. Thank you. Was it thinking the rope was a cute little sibling for helping him get the best chicken menus? The rope that had realized that set was a nice artifact. Started to move up and down with joy in front of Juhian. I'm heading out for a bit. I'm heading out for a bit. It then quickly ran off. Ju Hien was relieved to see that it was energetic again, but what's up with the rope? Who knows? As they opened the door to their hotel room and walked in apparently Chairman Quan fainted. Yu Jeha, who was searching something on his phone, urgently ran over. It was breaking news that Chairman Quan fainted after realizing the state of things in the world. There are a lot of doctors around him, but the sequelae from being stuck in the coffin is no joke and his artifact's risk is quite severe as well. Oh ho! Ju Hien and Seo Lei looked through the article as well. Chairman Quan Tae Jun, who survived for approximately three weeks without any food or water I survived thanks to my undershirt of immortality. Extreme hunger. Looked like a mummy. He was recovering in the hospital until his artifact's risk struck, making it impossible to heal him. In serious condition. Suffering from bulimia as a result of the shock from being unable to eat. The artifact's risk is making it impossible to inject nutrients and liquids into his body as they are all being expelled. Difficult to heal him with current medical knowledge. TKBM he needs to be healed with an artifact. TKBM we need to find an artifact user with at least an S-grade healing artifact. Chairman Kwan's people are planning on meeting with a mysterious doctor who is offering to give them a healing artifact. It is believed to be a woman. Chairman Kwan seemed to be in quite the pickle right now. Yu Jeha started to wickedly smile while looking at the article. Can't you fix this with the herb of eternal youth? He was thinking this was a chance to make a deal with the fruits from the herb of eternal youth. The domain is different. What he needs is surgery and not medicine. Aha! Hua Toa, Hippocrates, Asclepius, Heo Jun, Nightingale. Only people using those kinds of healing artifacts will be able to heal him. Ju Hian then started to laugh. But it'll be difficult to heal this old bastard. Excuse me? Why? Healing artifacts are rare. Since artifacts' true natures are for killing humans, it would be annoying if there were many artifacts to save humans. There are also only a few healing artifacts that humans can handle. Then. I'll say this. In 15 years there will still be less than 10 artifact users who can use S-grade or higher healing artifacts. What the that's even rarer than restorers. That was the truth. And most importantly, there should be nobody right now who can use S-grade or higher healing artifacts. Those bastards won't appear until a few years later. Most of the healing artifacts aside from the herb of eternal youth didn't come out until the mid to late years of the era of artifacts. Most of the healing artifacts available at this time were for simple injuries. There were only a few of them as well. Anyway, we shouldn't need to worry. No, something annoying might actually happen. Hmm. You see I think I saw Chloe. What? Are you sure it was Chloe? I think, no I'm certain. Yu Jeha sounded excited after hearing a woman's name. Chloe. Who is Chloe? Is she pretty? The same Chloe Loran that I know of? Yes sir. Damn it, who is she? 
Is she pretty? I was wondering who you were looking for, I guess it was her. I'm sorry I thought I saw her wrong because she was wearing a terrorist outfit. Terrorist? Did the future change? Anyway, did she have Nightingale's artifact? I don't know but she did know how to use healing artifacts. Juhian patted the gloomy Colas head. He then finally called Julian, from whom he had 459 missed calls. Reing Julian started to scream as soon as he picked up unlike his usual calm self. Hey! Co Juhian. You should have called me to tell me you were alive. I saw in the newspaper that you died from a plane accident and I couldn't contact you. You made me worry. Ah, uh, get lost, I don't need you to worry about me. I need you to find someone. You should listen when people are talk huh? You finally call me and what? Chloe. Find her. Hey. Chloe or Flo what? Chloe. You saw the news about Chairman Kwan, right? Ah, uh, I did see it. But Chloe doesn't awaken as a healing artifact user until much later in the future Juhian started to frown. No. It is just my hypothesis, but the female doctor making healing artifacts for the monopolizers might be Chloe. What? It could be the monarch of healing at this time. It's fine if it is the monarch of healing as well. I need to meet with that person too anyway. Either way, that chairman would not leave such talent alone. He would use his artifact to keep them as his slave if he had to do so. Just like he did in the past. That's why you need to quickly find Chloe. It'll be annoying if Chairman Kwan notices her and she lands in that bastard's hand first. Julian agreed with Ju Hian. At the same time Chloe. That's the name of the doctor who is giving healing artifacts to monarchs. Yang Chen's eyes opened wide after hearing his subordinate's report. Either way, you're sure that she uses an S-grade healing artifact? Yes sir, I believe she was on the plane with us as well. Fuck. Ah, but there is a problem. A problem? There is a rumor that she is in that NGO. There were a lot of rumors about a mysterious NGO right now. They looked like an organization that did research and healed civilians who had ended up being injured by tombs, but the truth was they are people who oppose artifacts. Anti-terrorists had started to appear as the number of artifact users using artifact for evil had increased. Basically, they were people who believed that all artifacts and artifact users had to disappear. In fact, TKBM's excavation team had been attacked by them as well. But this wasn't the time to discuss that right now. We need to heal the chairman Nim. Go find that Chloe woman. Do it now. They were TKBM's excavation team after all. It wouldn't be hard to find a person. If that woman was in the plane, she should be in northern Canada right now. He quickly called the TKBM employee who was with the passengers. Around that same time the rope that had left with the artifact it had received from Set was looking around with an excited expression. It seemed to be planning on using the artifact somewhere without Juhian as it didn't know how things would go. But as it was about to try the artifact. No. No. The artifact Set gave it had slipped out of its grasp. Wow. It's the outside. It's the outside. The stone artifact said that as it jumped and ran away. The stone then crossed the street. As the rope was whining and chasing after it is this yours. There was a beautiful woman smiling and gently handing the artifact to the sniffling rope. It was Chloe. Chapter, 193. Is this yours? Chloe was currently in the northernmost tip of Canada. It was where the train that Ujeha had created had stopped. She had escaped while avoiding Juhian and Colas gazes and was trying to grab a cab to go to the airport. But at that moment hmm. She was blankly staring at the rope she had met around the station. She probably found it interesting that a rope was carrying a rock and waiting for the light to turn green to cross at the crosswalk. Of course, the rope was also tilting its head in confusion as it observed Chloe. Why? It was because she smelled a nice familiar scent on Chloe. It was oddly the same as Juhian's scent. In addition, her long wavy black hair, white skin, sharp nose, beautiful lips and her light blue eyes that sparkled like jewels were extremely beautiful. Other people might think that her gaze was a bit cold, 
but it didn't seem that way to the rope. Maybe that was the reason. This is yours, right? The rope happily accepted the stone Chloe handed it. This was the artifact to turn it into a human. Thank you, thank you. Tap. All right, we got a big one. Someone suddenly grabbed onto the rope. The rope started to squirm in shock like a snake, but the man was laughing. It looks like a trashy artifact but it is a big fish indeed. Chloe, you did good. The rope started to huff and choke the man. I'm not a trashy artifact. No. The rope was an S-grade artifact after all. The rope's eyes soon flashed and it tried to activate its BDSM rope harness knot. However the rope suddenly lost all strength as the man squeezed its body. My goodness, this thing is quite energetic. What's going on? What's going on? The rope was quickly able to figure out what had happened. The gloves. It was certain that the divine grade artifact gloves that the man was wearing had caused this. The man grabbed the rope as if it was a snake and spun it around as he snickered. Anyway, Chloe. Let's use this one to capture the monarchs as well. They then called a cab and as the man was about to force the rope into the cab flash. Ha. Huh. W, what the? There was a flash and something shocking had happened. W, what the hell all of a sudden ah? The man suddenly screamed. It couldn't be helped as a kid bit the man's forearm and ran away. Hold on. The kid's hair that was long enough to drag on the ground was the color of white snow and although it was covered by the kid's hair, this kid seemed to be naked. The man who was shocked at this tried to grab the child out of reflex. Hey. Stop right there. If it can change into a human, that's definitely at least an S-grade. The man quickly started to move. Ugh. The man fell down. It was because someone had tripped him. Shit, what the hell are you doing Chloe? Chloe, who was sitting on a chair, nonchalantly responded. Sorry. My legs are a bit long. Forgive me. The man glared at Chloe in disbelief. You let that kid go on purpose, didn't you? No. No my ass. Why would you let an artifact that walked in on its own plop? The man's face slammed into the snow once again. Chloe had tripped him once more. Hey. Chloe. Chloe just clicked her tongue as she got into the cab. You should really look where you're going. Ho. That bitch. The angry man got into the cab as well and started to speak. Ah, uh, whatever. Did you hear about it? TKBM is looking for you. What do they want? Chairman Kwan. Remember how he was stuck in a tomb because of Seo Juhian? They need someone to heal him. Really? That's an interesting job offer. The man was shocked at her unexpected response. Huh? Are you interested in Chairman Kwan? Weren't you interested in Seo Juhian? Chloe slightly sneered at him. She was definitely interested. Was it because he was the most famous artifact user right now? No, that wasn't it. Dej Vu. Chloe had recently met a woman who uses a spider artifact. She had been having nightmares since that day. They were so bad that she would vomit. What the hell is that dream? She was inside a terrible tomb she had never seen before and looking at some people dying in there. Seo Juhian had appeared in that dream. His age was different but that was definitely Seo Juhian. Of course, there was no way that she would know that that was the crow's tomb, the tomb where she, and the rest of the tomb raiding team, had met their demise. But the pain had felt real. She was angrily shouting something at Seo Juhian in that dream. I'm going to kill you I'm going to kill you. She was saying that as if she was going to throw up blood in anger. Chloe didn't know the full contents of that dream. That was why she had just come up with a hypothesis based on what she had seen. Seo Juhian might be an enemy. She was already someone who had a grudge against artifact users. Although she didn't know who was responsible for it, someone had taken the children she was taking care of at a pediatric clinic and turned them into mediums for experiments. Their excuse was that they were creating healing artifacts. But all it did was create zombies. 
I'm certain one of the current monarchs was responsible for it. She went to look for an artifact user who could decipher dreams and Seo Juhian had surprisingly been the name that came up during the fortune telling. The fortune telling was one thing, but there was also her dream. That was why Chloe had decided to meet with Juhian. She wanted to meet with this man who might be a bitter enemy. I'll have to get rid of him if he really is the enemy, but I'll head to Chairman Quan for now. He should know a lot about Seo Juhian since they have a terrible relationship with each other. The cab started to move faster through the snowy road. At the same time there was a child who was hiding while wearing a tarp from a construction zone. This wasn't an extremely young child in kindergarten or elementary school. The child's hair was long enough to cover the child's whole body. The child had hair that resembled the sparkling snow and clear eyes that resembled the sunset. The child, no, the rope, looked around nervously. It had ended up activating the artifact to turn it into a human, but the witch's mermaid to human potion from the little mermaid A-grade, treasure-grade, consumable artifact remaining uses, immediate effect that was right. The rope had turned into a human. It turned into a human using the same potion the mermaid princess used. Set had recognized it and stolen it from the worm's bag. Of course, the clam-shaped potion artifact was protesting to the rope. Why did you use me without permission? Why did you use me? The clam was angry that the pearl inside had disappeared. Do you want to get in trouble? Do you want to get in trouble? The rope was whining and extremely apologetic as the little mermaid artifact bit the rope's head and body in multiple places. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Of course, it could not speak. This was the Little Mermaid artifact after all. But the Little Mermaid artifact screeched and continued to shout. Whatever, but do you know what the hell you just did? It did know. It also knew why the Little Mermaid artifact was being this angry. For days, just four days. You're done for if the humans don't recognize you in that time. You'll turn into bubbles, bubbles. The clam was so angry that it looked as if it would cough up blood. It was understandable as an artifact could use it to turn into a human, but that artifact would lose its abilities. Its artifact aura would also disappear, making it impossible for anybody to think it was an artifact. Do you know that? You're in a serious situation right now. Do you really think those bastards would recognize you? You're really going to turn into bubbles. Do you want to die? But the rope didn't care about the risk. All it wanted to do was to meet with Juhian in its human appearance. It was at that moment. The child smiled brightly after seeing a familiar face. It was because it saw Juhian, Yu Jeha, and Seo Lei coming out of the hotel. Master. Chloe is in an NGO. She's part of an anti terrorists group. Yes, that was what my brother told me. Ju Hien was on his way to meet Irene who called to tell him that she had arrived in Canada. It was because she came bearing good news. But why anti-terrorists that at least made it understandable why she suddenly slipped away like that? They preferred not to be seen. It is about time they appeared I guess. The creation of an artifact-centric society where artifacts were considered the norm the monarchs and monopolizers were a sort of rulers in this era. Everybody tried not to mess with the hegemony of the era, but there were bound to be factions of people resisting it. There were people trying to return the world to how it used to be before the artifacts had appeared. They were the anti-terrorists. These groups were groups that even the monarchs hated to their guts. They are people who are trying to destroy all artifact users and tombs. They were hunters who either hated artifacts or used artifacts to destroy other artifacts to achieve their goal. I guess that was what she was doing during this time. He had no idea how an artifact user murderer ended up being lured in by Chairman Quan and entered a den full of artifact users in TKBM. No wonder I couldn't find any traces of her. Yu Jeha said something at that moment. I don't know who that Chloe girl is, but isn't she part of a dangerous organization? She would probably be aiming for you as well because you are a monarch, Captain Nim. Why do you want to meet with such a person anyway? is she pretty? She's pretty. Then of course you should meet her. You must absolutely meet her. C.O.A. sighed. Chloe had been one of their team members in the past, Julian had said the following. The captain probably can't sleep well, can he? 
Ah, probably. He doesn't seem to have tomb syndrome as he did in the past, but that bastard is someone who uses multiple divine grade artifacts when other people struggle to use even one. There's no way his body is okay because of the risks. It's probably best to take him to a doctor for an exam. She would bring Chloe in front of Juhian even if she needed to beat her up to bring her here. As Colas eyes viciously flashed something round suddenly ran over and jumped into Juhian's arms Juhian groaned and fell down in the snow after suddenly feeling something big fall into his chest. See, Captain Nim. Are you okay? W, what the hell? They anxiously tried to pick up the thing that had attacked Juhian. The rope was just smiling brightly in joy after meeting with Juhian. I found him, I found him. The rope tightly clenched Juhian's head. It was hugging his face so tightly, as if it was trying to suffocate him to death. Juhian was about to suffocate but Yu Jeha, who couldn't watch this any longer, stepped in. Hey 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 hey, you dirty girl, who the hell are you? Where did you come from? Huh? Are you trying to kill our Captain Nim? Yu Jeha tried to pull off the rope that was covered in rags. Captain Nim, are you okay? Hey hey, C.O.L.A., call the police. I think this beggar girl was trying to steal Captain Nim's money. Yu Jeha tried to forcibly pull away the girl who was stuck to his Captain Nim as if she was a piece of gum. Who is this girl? She looks so pretty. Is she from around here? None of them even considered that this girl was an artifact. The rope had no choice but to be forced away from Juhian. The rope struggled and tried to get to Juhian again. I'm going to be hugged, I'm going to be hugged. It's fine to hug him since I'm human now. It's fine. The rope sniffled as she was dragged away to the police station. It didn't matter that she couldn't talk or that the humans didn't recognize her. It didn't matter if that would make her disappear in four days because of the artifact's risk. Even if Ju Hian didn't know it was her, as long as she could be by his side all right, I said follow me. Ju Hian got up at that moment. Hey hey, Jeha. Let her down for a bit. Excuse me. Ju Hian was looking at the rope's face. Chapter, 194. Ju Hian was looking at the rope's face. He was taking a very good look at the girl's face for some reason. What the hell, is she his type or something? Yu Jeha was wondering why his captain was acting like this now, but he just nodded his head. It's not like this guy will have bad thoughts about humans anyway. Irene and Ciole wouldn't sit back and just watch either. The rope continued to whimper for Jeha to let her go. Let go of me. Let go of me. She had not noticed when she was a rope, but the human body she got by using an A-grade artifact was too weak. She couldn't move when it was Yu Jeha of all people holding her down. The rope had fallen into a state of shock but it didn't matter. Ha! Huh. Hey, hey! Sit still! As she continued to flail around ah! The construction tarp that the girl was wearing had fallen off. Her white naked body was revealed. Both Yu Jeha and Ju Hian's eyes opened in shock at this sudden event. Hold! Seo Lei, who was the most shocked, was the first to scream. Kaya. She's not wearing anything underneath. She quickly took off her jumper and chased after the rope. The girl's long hair covered her body a bit but Siolei couldn't help it because this was a little girl. Hey little girl. Come over here. You can't run around like that. But the rope didn't find that important as she started to run in a straight line to be hugged by Juhian. See, Captain Nim. Watch out. Unfortunately, none of that mattered. Whoa, whoa, stop, stop. She was stopped by Ju Hian this time. Ju Hian grabbed the rope's small head with one hand. Hey hey, I told you to stop. The rope who had been marching straight toward Ju Hian was moving her legs but not actually going anywhere. The short rope couldn't help but be caught by Ju Hian who was quite tall. But the rope did not give up. I'm going to get a hug. Her eyes seemed as if they were on fire. Of course, she was in a human body right now. There was no way Juhian would be pushed back when she was not in her extremely strong rope form. Hey hey. I told you to stop. I don't like being hugged by some random person. 
The rope realized her mistake and quickly looked for something to write with. It would be easy to tell Juhi and her identity if she wrote it. However my goodness, even a worm would write better than this. What the hell did she write? The rope was shocked. Her handwriting must have been extremely terrible when writing with human hands. W, what do I do? An anxious rope started to look around. She then came up with an idea and suddenly attacked you Jeha. Hey! What the hell are you doing? Hey! She had borrowed you Jeha's phone. The rope's eyes flashed as she typed out a message. Does this work? Does it? It's me, it's me. She thought that you Jeha or Juhian would recognize her now. She had written that she was the rope. That was why she was charging toward Juhian with a happy expression. Oh ho! Would you look at this? She heard you Jeha's vicious voice behind her. He then started to drag her away. Captain Nim, let's take this girl to the police station. Why? The rope gasped after seeing the message she had written on the phone. Hand over your artifacts. What showed up was completely different than what she had written. Yu Jeha started to scoff. This little punk was a thieving little cat. No, no. The rope was flustered. How had things ended up like this? But she soon felt as if she knew the reason. That was right. The risk. The rope realized her mistake after thinking about what the little mermaid artifact had told her. Remember this. You can't communicate with humans while you are in human form. No matter what you want to say, things won't come out as you like. Was that responsible for this? Yu Jeha scoffed and started to speak to Juhian. I'll come back after taking her down to the station. Captain Nim, you just quickly go meet with Ciole or Irene. Ah, uh, wait, Jeha. At least put some clothes on her. Ha, there's no need to be so nice to a thief. The rope, who currently did not have any special powers, sniffled as she was dragged away by you Jeha. Master. Master. She looked like a sad baby animal looking for her parents, but who cared? Ciole, who had no way of knowing the true identity of this girl, looked toward Juhian in disbelief. Captain Nim, what do you think is up with that girl? Who knows? Juhian just smiled and quickly started to move. Excuse me? What did you say? Yu Jeha, who really did take the rope down to the police station, heard an unexpected story. Please be careful. Artifact users are being abducted lately. Yu Jeha, who got scared after hearing that, looked around him. The officer looked at the rope and continued to speak. It's not children like with the Pied Piper, it is adults disappearing. This kid might be bait from that criminal organization. Anyway, please don't worry about it and thank you for your cooperation. Yes sir. Yu Jeha left and the officer was about to get started with the investigation. Anyway, we need to properly figure out this child's identity. She should first send her to Pandora and get a psych evaluation huh? The officer freaked out after turning his head. Bang! Hey! W, where did the kid go? The rope had escaped during that time. At the same time. Hey, hey, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? The sun had gone down and it was the dark night now. The rope was walking through the streets to get back to Juhian. It was dark and cold and nobody was out. The little mermaid artifact appeared out of nowhere and rolled over to the rope. Wow, it's so cold. Hey, you're going to freeze to death. It seemed to have come looking for the rope as it was worried. Aren't you cold? She was cold. But she had no choice but to walk the dark streets barefoot. The little mermaid artifact got angry. What the hell are you doing here? I told you that the human needs to figure out your identity within four days. Otherwise, it'll really be dangerous. She knew. She knew that very well, but I don't know where this is it was fine that she had courageously ran out of the police station, but the now lost rope started to sniffle. She could return by Juhian summoning her if she was still the rope, but it was different now. Even the Little Mermaid artifact seemed to be having difficulties finding the way back as it was dark. But at that moment she saw someone on the empty road. Actually, about five men were putting something onto a truck. 
The rope's face lit up as if she was a person in the desert who had found an oasis. Let's ask them for a ride. Let's ask them for a ride. She knew the name of the hotel Juhian was staying at. She would be able to go there as long as she told them the name. The rope smiled brightly and approached the busy-looking men. But the men looked serious. There's nobody nearby, right? Hey, make sure there's no hand sticking out. That leg over there too. Why did the rope have to run into murderers of all people? They were urgently loading the truck with corpses and artifacts. Anyway, these motherfucking artifact user bastards. Why do they only care about themselves? Who does the captain want us to take care of next? There are a lot of people but Seo Juhian made it on the list as well. What? How the hell are we going to kill that lunatic? There's a rumor that he's actually not that strong. Shut up and just figure out where we are going to dump the bodies first. Don't w ah. They freaked out and stopped talking. They freaked out because there was a child with sparkling eyes tapping them. W, who the hell is this girl? Well give me a ride. Give me a ride. The rope was brightly asking these murderers for a ride. The men freaked out and looked toward the artifacts and corpses loaded onto the truck. Hey. Do you think this little bitch saw these? I, I think she did. Hey. Who the hell are you? But the rope didn't care whether they were shocked or not and took a piece of paper out of her parka pocket. She had swiped some paper and a pen while running out of the police station. Her handwriting had been terrible earlier because she was not used to it, but she should be able to get the message across properly this time. Let's ask them to take me to the hotel. The rope handed the paper asking them to help her find Juhian to the men with a bright expression on her face. Hand over all of your artifacts while I'm asking nicely. You damn bastards. The risk from becoming human was quite overbearing. The men started to frown after looking at the note. Is this kid crazy? Hey, just put her on the truck for now. We'll figure out how to get rid of her later. And just like that, the rope ended up on the truck. Of course, the rope was not scared at all. What kind of artifact would be scared of human weapons and being threatened? In fact, the rope was happy once the truck started to move. Over here. Over here. To the right. The rope excitedly started to point after seeing some familiar streets. The rope became angry once the truck drove deep into the mountains. Not over there. Not over there. She then crawled into the driver's seat and tilted the steering wheel. That made the truck shake vigorously and change it into pandemonium. Ah! Why is this girl so crazy? Shut this bitch up for now. The men stabbed the rope's stomach with a knife. The men started to sneer once the child fainted. This little punk is so annoying. However, it was at that moment. W, what the? That hurt. That hurt. There was a bright light and the rope reappeared in its rope form instead of the girl. The rope choked the man in anger. The other men couldn't help but scream as well. You, ugh. What the hell? When? It was at that moment. Hey, hey. Look forward. Forward. The people foamed at the mouth after seeing something pop up in front of them. There was a tall young man standing in the middle of the road. He was wearing a black sheepskin jacket and had a smile on his face. It was none other than Juhian. It's a person, it's a person. No, just run him over. Ah. The men were the ones who started to scream. Bang. Baba -ba bang. The car was destroyed into pieces. Not long after that the rope felt its body starting to become faint while it was quietly inside the truck. Maybe it had been stabbed in the core when it was stabbed earlier. Was that why it had returned to its original form? It was probably because she had transformed into a human by just using an A-grade artifact. I don't care if I disappear, but she still wanted to see Juhian's face one more time. As the rope, whose durability was destroyed, was whimpering inside the truck, a sword stabbed in from the roof and split the truck in half. She saw some familiar faces through the opening. Hey, are you okay? Are you okay? Sigh, those guys were alive. 
But are you sure that we can find that Chloe or whatever girl if we beat these guys up? Cole, Irene, you Jeha. And. I found him. I found him. The rope was extremely happy while looking at the young man sitting on the ceiling of the truck. He clicked his tongue and started to speak to the rope. You little punk. You should come back home when the sun goes down. It was Ju Hian. Chapter, 195. The rope jumped up and down while looking at Ju Hian. It then jumped up and wrapped around Ju Hian. I found him, I found him. The rope was rubbing its face in joy after seeing Ju Hian again. It had been stabbed by a human knife, but something like that was like being bitten by a mosquito for the rope. In fact, the stabbing made it return to its artifact form. Yu Jeha, who was looking inside the car at that time, tilted his head in confusion. Ha! Huh. What the hell? Captain Nim. Only the bad guys are inside. That kid, the thief isn't here. What? Really? Ha! Huh. But Mr. Ju Hian said that we needed to find a little girl. Siole and Irene anxiously looked inside the car after hearing Yu Jeha shout. As Yu Jeha mentioned, there were only unconscious men in the nine-person vehicle. That little girl isn't in the trunk either. Did she go somewhere else? Siole started to grumble. Why the heck did you take her to the police station? I hope she's okay in this cold weather. She had given the girl her parka, but Siole was grumbling because the girl was probably cold since she wasn't wearing anything underneath. She threatened us to hand over our artifacts. She was a thief. I did it for the Captain Nim. Captain Nim, should we look elsewhere? Hey! Don't ignore me. I can call our helicopter and guards to search. Juhian shook his head after Irene asked as well. It's fine, we don't need to find that little girl anymore. Ha! Huh. Really? Isn't she an important person? You went all the way to the police station to find her. Mm, -hmm, she's not that important. Juhian peeked at the rope that was rubbing its face on him so much that it might wear out. Anyway, we don't need to find her any longer. Yu Jeha sounded disappointed after hearing that. Ah, I thought the Captain Nim found his ideal type. Ideal type? Irene and Cole seemed interested. What are you talking about? Ah, the Captain Nim stared at that little girl's face for a long time. I thought he wanted to raise her up to eat Ugg. Yu Jeha was punched by Ju Hian again. Stop with the nonsense. Damn it. She was pretty. She had the type of face that makes you wonder how she will look when she grows older. Of course she was pretty. The rope put so much of the fever artifact and the charm reagent artifact on its body. Ju Hian peeked toward the rope again and started to scoff. When was it? It was definitely when he had been in the open air bath. The rope had wanted his attention and stole Irene and Cole's reagent artifacts and rubbed them all over its body as if it was putting sauce on noodles. The message that popped up at that time was the rope's charm is exponentially rising. It looks as if an S line is appearing on the rope. The rope's skin seems to be getting smoother. The rope's skin seems to be shining. He had thought that it was useless for it to put those artifacts all over its body since it was an artifact. I guess they were all effective. Ju Hian just scoffed in disbelief. Well, I guess it is meaningless because it didn't take the form of an adult. Ju Hian started to swing the rope that had run away from home. As if he was scolding it. As for the rope, it was still just bobbing up and down in joy. It's fine. I already found that little girl. Ha! Huh. You found her. Yes, this thing. Ju Hian nonchalantly shook the rope around. He looked like a hunter who had caught a snake. But the three other people gasped at what they heard. Hold on. That little girl is this rope. Unbelievable. It's true. The clothes C.O.A. gave her is right over there. This made everybody else become shocked. This was unbelievable. I thought the rope couldn't transform into a human. What happened? But they all finally understood something. That's why the Captain Nim went to the police station. He went to find the rope. 
Well, Ju Hian had done it also to search for Chloe but the rest of his team was in states of shock. The rope taking a human form they had never even imagined it. While Irene and Cole weren't too happy about it Yu Jaeha said something while starting to laugh. Jackpot. It was to the point that the Captain Nim personally got involved. He truly is an artifact file. Yu Jaeha was joking but Irene and Cole screamed at that moment. Wait, hold on. They weren't too worried about it, but it was rare for Juhian to personally go looking for an artifact. Furthermore, the rope was the artifact that had been by Juhian's side the longest. He had even said it was pretty. They were relieved that it was not an adult woman, but it's an artifact. It might be able to turn into an adult as well. W, won't it grow up at some point? Ciole and Irene both turned pale after having some thoughts. Both of them could only slam on the ground without being able to say anything to Juhian. Captain Naim. Why did it have to be a tool and not a person? Mr. Juhian. Please. No matter how much they thought about it, their greatest enemy seemed to be artifacts and not the other women in the world. But they were in these states of despair only for a moment as their eyes lit up and they shook each other's hand. We can't lose. At least not to an artifact. Ju Hian, who didn't care about what they were doing, was chuckling. I was wondering why it was doing all those part-time jobs lately. It was obvious. Actually, Ju Hian had not realized the girl was the rope right away. The worm that could have told him about it was beaten to a pulp for the sin of using Cola's chest as paradise. Ju Hian just had a strong intuition and used the evidence he gathered from many different situations to make a hypothesis. Well, the Little Mermaid artifact seemed to have had a lot of side effects, but the results would have been a bit different if it could have used the Korean Wormwood and Garlic artifact. That was an SS-grade divine-grade artifact after all. But what could it do? It's just a rope that doesn't have a mouth. Would it be able to use that? Ju Hian, who was laughing without any malice, then kicked the car. Anyways, time for all of you to wake up. You, Ugh. You guys know about Chloe, right? The men's expressions changed after hearing a familiar name. But they just feigned ignorance. Huh, we don't know Ugh. The man clenched his stomach and started to cough up blood. I'll let you know that I'm in a very bad mood since you guys dared to try to abduct my artifact, which gave me serious emotional damages. In addition, I think something is wrong with my neck after you guys tried to crash into me. Ow 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 my neck hurts. What am I going to do, I might have herniated a disc. Maybe that was the reason. That's why you guys are going to have to hand over the 31 artifacts in the trunk as compensation. They couldn't believe Ju Hian's shameless exaggeration. What the fuck is this bastard say? What's wrong? Isn't it cheap when this is all I want as compensation for the abduction, hit and run, and attempted murder combined? Hey! Anyway, I'll let you off with this for the emotional distress caused by you guys stealing 31 of my artifacts if you tell me about Chloe. T, this bastard. Ju Hian started to smile. What's wrong? I said I'll let you go with just getting my 31 artifacts back. Hurry up and tell me. Where is Chloe? Fuck. And at that moment why are you looking for me? Ju Hian smiled after hearing a familiar voice. Bingo. There were three women standing there once Ju Hian turned his head. She was definitely there. A beautiful woman that is Chloe. Ciole was happy to see a former team member. But Chloe just frowned and started to speak to Ju Hian. Let my team members go. I asked you why you were looking for me. Ju Hian sighed and walked toward Chloe. Chloe sneered while looking at Ju Hian. I don't know why you're here, but ugh. Ju Hian ruthlessly swung a sword at Chloe. This made the rest of the team members gasp in shock. Ciole especially seemed anxious. See, Captain Nim. Why are you, all of a sudden? Why? Ju Hian pointed the sword at Chloe as if to kill her. Captain Nim. Ciole was extremely anxious. But she suddenly recalled a memory from the past. In that final tomb Chloe and Ju Hian had major arguments before entering the tomb and even inside the tomb. She didn't know the reason behind it.
but the Captain Nim and Chloe had always had a bad relationship. And maybe Chloe's future had changed as she was a part of the anti-terrorists who were the enemies of all artifact users. Then, is the Captain Nim trying to get rid of Chloe, she didn't know what had happened between them, but really? Ciole turned pale. Captain Nim. Hold on. However, at that moment at least it is someone who can dodge my attacks this time. Ju Hian threw a Xiangqi Pu piece into the air. Spring and Autumn Warring States period The Art of War 36 pieces, A grade, treasure grade This was the artifact he had gained in the last tomb. The Xiangqi piece he took out was the 13th of the 36 pieces. The coin that was thrown into the air turned into its original Xiangqi piece. Strategy 13, Startle the Snake by Hitting the Grass Around It What does Startle the Snake by Hitting the Grass Around It mean? It makes the enemy show their true intentions. The shocked enemy screamed once that Xiangqi piece flashed. The face, clothes, and body shape of the woman who looked like Chloe changed. D, damn it. The person who appeared was an unfamiliar woman and not Chloe. Is that the doppelganger artifact? The art of war was not an omnipotent artifact, there were 36 different buff type artifacts to use depending on the situation, whether it was for business, battle, or any type of battlefield. Who do you think you are trying to fool? Ju Hian disappeared as soon as he said that. Ju Hian's eyes lashed and set roared as a sandstorm started to sweep down. Bo 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 boom. The strong sandstorm swept the enemies all away and scorched the area. The woman kneeled in front of Ju Hian. Ugh, how did you realize ah? Uh? Ju Hian stomped on the woman as he laughed. I'll let you know that the only one who can trick my eyes is the original monarch of fraud, our restorer bastard. Yu Jaiha almost fell to the ground as if he had a heart attack. He had tears of joy in his face because it was rare for Ju Hian to praise him. I'm really going to even work on the weekends. Sob sob. I'll really work hard, sob sob. But Ju Hian didn't care and had a twisted smile on his face as he took a notebook out of the woman's pocket and read through it. Amoxicillin, methylephedrine hydrochloride The notebook had some drug-related information. It looks like you guys have been abducting artifact users around this area. Who the hell are you guys? Ugh. Do you guys know Chloe? T, there's nothing we have to say to you, monarch of plunder ah. Uh. I don't know about other bastards, but I have no magnanimity or consideration for you guys. Yu Jaiha started to snicker in response. You've never had that for anybody ugh. Ju Hian threw the notebook at Yu Jaiha's head before grabbing the woman's face. All right, tell me while I'm asking nicely. I'm Lung Ph. Ju Hian really looked ready to kill the woman. Ju Hian was ruthless all the time, but these people were professional hunters targeting artifact users. I have no reason to keep bastards who casually put my name on a hit list alive. The woman, who either realized that fact or felt the overwhelming difference in their abilities, started to shout. We were just hired by a woman named Benjani. Chloe is that woman's comrade. Ju Hian's eyes opened wide after hearing a familiar name. It was the same for Siole. Benjani is the monarch of healing. That woman told us to steal Chloe's ability. Ju Hian finally seemed to understand. Chloe and the monarch of healing knew each other. This was quite entertaining. The monarch of healing who ended up becoming the symbol of monopolizers was originally an anti-terrorist who loathed artifact users. Something must have happened for the monarch of healing to become one of Pandora's monopolizers while Chloe got sold off to TKBM. They soon continued to speak. I don't know why you are looking for Chloe, but it's too late. Chloe already left with a TKBM employee to meet with Chairman Kwan. She'll heal Chairman Kwan and make a deal with him. It's just business. Ju Hian chuckled. Oh ho. She went to Chairman Kwan, eh? At the same time Chloe really was waiting for a plane with a TKBM employee. Inside this Canadian airport's restroom I'll heal Chairman Kwan and make a deal with him. Chloe, who was stealthily inspecting her artifact inside the restroom stall, started to frown. Yes, I just need to heal him. That is more beneficial. She soon received a text message. I thought you were going to ask Chairman Kwan about Seo Juhian. Benjani Chloe nodded her head and responded. 
Probably, there's something I need to find out it was at that moment. The flight scheduled for 1010 is about to take off, all passengers are asked to. Ah. Chloe realized that she needed to get on the plane and came out of the stall. M. 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 P. H. Chloe was abducted by someone. M. 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 P. H. C. O. L. A. was the one who had abducted her. Then two people confidently appeared in front of her. Long time no see, my subordinate. T. The monarch of plunder. That was right. Ju Hien and Yu Jeha were shamelessly in the women's restroom. They then heard an urgent voice shout from outside the restroom. Hey, CO Ju Hien. Take care of it quickly. People will come soon. Julian was being the lookout outside this women's restroom. He probably chose to be the lookout because he refused to enter the women's restroom. Chloe anxiously looked toward Ju Hien. Her mouth was firmly covered by Seo Lei who was behind her. Yu Jeha had a wicked expression on his face as he held the doppelganger artifact in his hand. Chloe's eyes opened wide, wondering what he was planning on doing. M. 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 P. H. Well, it's no big deal. Ju Hien smiled as he took something out. Chapter 196 Ju Hien had taken out the raven's tears that was familiar to his team members. Yu Jeha, Seo Lei, and Julian's expressions all changed after looking at it. He's using that artifact. Yu Jeha looked as if he was looking at a game that only he had not played while Seo Lei and Julian who both experienced it once already had different expressions. Seo Lei had been happy to remember memories of Ju Hien, but it was the complete opposite for Julian. Damn it, it might have been better to not remember this bastard. Then he might not be stuck in this position. He looked as if he had stepped on some shit. No, that's fine, but Julian looked around and started to frown. Why the hell did he have to do it inside the women's restroom? It's so embarrassing. Even if they didn't have time it was at that moment. M and PH. Chloe started her counterattack. Maybe she was planning on getting away from them using her artifacts. However MMPH. Ju Hien quickly used a different artifact. Perfume of pleasure B grade, rare grade, consumable artifact it looked like an air freshener. However, Chloe lost strength in her body after taking a whiff of it. The target is experiencing pleasure that is making it impossible to maintain rationality. An unbearably pleasurable sensation that is making it impossible for the target to maintain rationality is being felt. The target is temporarily giving in to the pleasure. The target is temporarily finding it annoying to think. The target's dominance is temporarily weakening. The target's focus is temporarily falling. The target's possession type artifacts are also losing their rationalities from experiencing the same pleasure. The artifacts connected to their master are losing their rationalities. The effects were amazing. Even her artifacts were impacted by Ju Hien and unable to focus. As a result, Chloe and her artifacts all fell to the ground. Ugh. Of course, Julian gasped after seeing what was going on. What is that bastard using right now? He always knew what Ju Hien was using because he had Juga Kongming's artifact. Hey, why are you using that vulgar artifact that could cause human rights issues? What's wrong? I can use it on you too if you're jealous. This is for both men and women. Damn it, that's not the problem. My goodness, my vice captain is such a loud bastard. Shut up and focus on your job. Ju Hien looked annoyed as he walked toward Chloe. Chloe, who was drunk with pleasure, tried to run away with an anxious expression on her face. She didn't know what he was planning on doing, but there was no way that a bastard who would do such a thing inside a restroom would do something normal. M.M.P.H. C.O.L.A. was holding onto her from behind like a koala and covering her mouth, so she could not do anything. Chloe tried to get C.O.L.A. off of her, but C.O.L.A. did not let go. I'm going to report these bastards. However, Ju Hien didn't care and activated an artifact. Flash. The raven's tears has activated. A bright light flashed through the restroom. Chloe saw it at that moment. People and memories she had not known until now as well as the weird memories she had recently seen as nightmares. Say hello. She's a new team member. Hello, my name is Chloe. Wow, 
she's a beauty. That's too bad. She's also a member of TKBM's trash team like us. Jeha watch your mouth. Why? What? Did I say something wrong? Fuck, we're the poor department that can't see the light no matter how well we do. All of our accomplishments are stolen as well. Isn't that right, Dan? Who cares if our captain bastard is talented, everything good gets taken away from him. Faces she had never seen before other memories that showed up one after another. Wow, shit, I heard Seo Juhian's team did something big again. Those bastards really are the thorns in our eyes. Why are those undisciplined idiots so strong? They have the chairman Nim's favor. Those bastards make us look bad. We're the elite team. Hey hey, who cares if they are strong and have the best accomplishments? They'll never make it to any official positions in the company. Should we quietly get rid of them? The entire team. The faces of the people plotting against them in the final tomb they went into she remembered how the TKBM teams that were supposed to come reinforce them never showed up. Chloe's eyes opened wide as those memories and sensations became engraved into her brain. And the moment the Juhian in his late thirties of her memories overlapped with his current appearance captain. Juhian started to smile. But something unexpected happened at that moment. The target has been affected by the Supreme Leader Artifact's powers. The target has been affected by a memory modification artifact. Chloe seemed to be in pain as she looked toward Juhian. The powers of the Spider and Raven, two strong artifacts, are clashing. Chloe, who seemed to be in a lot of pain, screamed and tried to choke Juhian. Get your revenge. Juhian started to frown as he quickly started to act. Pow! He immediately hit Chloe in the back of her neck and made her faint. He had moved at lightning speed. She probably didn't even feel any pain. However, the rest of the team members seemed shocked at his actions. See, Captain Nim. Something happened, didn't it? Julian and Ciole looked quite anxious. It was because the reaction was different than what had happened with them. But Ju Hien who realized something grabbed Chloe and took out an escape-type artifact. Change of plans. Excuse me. They soon appeared in the airport's lounge. Thankfully, there were no people around. The team members urgently started to shout at that moment. Weren't you going to have Chloe get her memories back before sending her to Chairman Quan? That's right. Chloe would be able to make Chairman Quan's illness even worse. That was right. Ju Hien was planning on snatching Chloe in the middle and starting his next plan. This was Operation Make Chairman Quan Eat Shit. Basically, he would make Chloe remember the past before sending her to Chairman Quan. She would pretend to heal him while actually using a curse-type artifact to make his illness even worse. But now that he had made her faint it looks like there was some kind of accident. Ju Hien looked toward the unconscious Chloe. That was what the message had said. It looks like she met with Jin Kai Yuan. He would ask Chloe about the details once she woke up. But before that Ju Hien quickly looked at his watch. Chloe's plane is set to leave at 10.10. There was approximately 10 minutes before boarding closed. Ju Hien urgently looked toward Julian. Look for the TKBM employee who was supposed to get on the plane with Chloe. He should be around here somewhere. Julian quickly looked toward the people boarding. There were a lot of people. But the people looked different once he activated Juga Kongming's artifact. There were different colored auras coming up from people's bodies or no reactions at all. Julian was able to almost immediately locate TKBM's employee. It was because there was an artifact that all TKBM employees would have on them. I found him. He seems to be looking for Chloe. I'm sure he'll get suspicious if Chloe goes missing like this. Then shall we take Chloe and run for now? Julian shook his head at Yujeha's question. No, we won't get a good opportunity like this again. I don't want to make them wary of us for no reason. Then how? Julian quickly looked toward Yujeha. Yujeha, make a copy of Chloe. H, huh? But she's unconscious. There are portrait rights and such, you want me to do it without permission? Just do it quickly. H, hey. 
why is he becoming more like the captain when he claims they're not alike at all? Anyway, this is a rare opportunity for us. We will make a copy and send that to Chairman Quan instead. Damn it, is that okay? I'll need more than ten minutes unless I'm creating corpses. Julian put his hand on his forehead while Ju Hian started to laugh. It's fine, you don't need to make a human copy. Ju Hian pointed to the doppelganger artifact in Yu Jeha's hand. Instead of making a copy, use that to transform into Chloe and go meet Chairman Quan. Aha! Yu Jeha immediately looked towards Seo Lei. Then Seo Lei can do it. Ju Hian clicked his tongue as Yu Jeha tried to hand the doppelganger artifact to Seo Lei. Why would Seo Lei do that? E excuse me. Seo Lei can't turn into a perfect Chloe even if she uses the doppelganger artifact since she's lacking fit. Chairman Quan will find out. The muscles in Yu Jeha's face started to twitch as he had an ominous feeling. T, then C, Captain Nim or Julian. Ju Hian smiled brightly at that moment. What bullshit are you talking about? It's obvious that you, the copy genius, need to do it. Isn't your fit with the doppelganger artifact at max because of your sharp eyes? E, excuse me. That's not the only thing. Jeha, I've never seen a more talented scammer than you in my whole life. I'm sure that you'll be able to trick Chairman Quan. Yu Jeha plopped down on the ground once even Seo Lei put her hand on his shoulder. Fuck, no wonder things have been going so well since this morning. No wonder he was praising me so much lately. Fuck, I knew it would be like this. Ju Hian didn't care about Jeha's feelings as he continued to speak. There's no time. I'll give you one minute. Wah. Wow. You're telling me to act as a woman. It's obvious that C.O.A. would be more natural at it. Why me? Get lost. Why would I put C.O.A. in danger and send her off to the center of the enemy base? Hey. Then what about me? I'm in the most danger if you consider our fighting capabilities. Who cares, I don't care what happens to you. Speak human words, human words. Yu Jeha continued to argue that he could not pretend to be a woman. No, why don't we just miss the plane? We can send Chloe once she wakes up. Hey hey, Julian, you agree with me, don't you? Huh? Anyway, I won't know, I can't do it. At that moment, set of the sand and Indra of the thunder Juhian and Julian's eyes flashed as they activated two vicious divine grade artifacts. Shut up and do it. Good luck. Yu Jeha held back his tears after seeing these chaotic auras that looked ready to eat him up. Egu, I'm really going to go crazy. At that moment ha this is crazy. Will I really be able to use this artifact on that Chairman Quan bastard? Inside the plane. Yu Jeha, who truly deserved the title of being the monarch of fraud in the past, had used the doppelganger artifact to turn into a perfect copy of Chloe as he was deep in thought. I just need to not make any mistakes as the Captain Nim mentioned. Chairman Quan will totally find out if I just use the curse type artifact. That's why I need to use my abilities to camouflage the curse type artifact. Ah, uh, whatever. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yu Jeha had those thoughts on his mind as he looked around. There was someone or something that Ju Hian had sent with him as his bodyguard. Where the hell did the rope go? It was fine that they were going through with the plan, but the bastard who was to be his bodyguard had disappeared. That was why he was chasing after the auras of artifacts to find it. Yu Jeha was shocked. Hey, hey you bastard. The rope was located in the area where they made the in-flight food. Thankfully, the flight attendants weren't there, but hey. What are you doing? What is all this? The rope's eyes were sparkling after hearing Yu Jeha's shout. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use it. The rope was grinding something on a steel sheet. It was also putting something in a mortar and grinding it. They were the garlic and Korean wormwood artifacts. The rope that had been searching to see if there were any dangerous items aboard the plane when it found something good. Let's grind it. Grind it. The rope must have seen something on the plane's TVs as it was extremely excited. The garlic and Korean wormwood artifact that had its body being ground up was crying. Egu, you bastard, my head, my head. 
Here comes hair loss. Stop, stoop. My booty. The rope continued to grind and touch the Korean wormwood and garlic artifact. The rope's eyes then flashed before it started to rub the ground up artifact on its body. Yujeha was shocked as he watched. T, this bastard. Was it planning on rubbing it on its body since it didn't have a mouth? Yujeha grabbed the back of his neck in shock. Egu, will it be able to successfully complete its mission? Mr. Juhian. Will it really be okay? Is it okay to send Mr. Jeha on his own? Juhian calmly took a sip of coffee as he smiled to answer Irene's question. That's just his luck if he dies. He then waved toward the plane that was flying up into the sky. Yu Jeha the fake Chloe should be on that plane, but who cared? I just need him to pretend he's healing Chairman Quan before using a curse type artifact. It might sound stupid, but Jeha was the most talented when it comes to backup. He should be fine since I even sent the rope with him. They were planning on chasing after you Jeha and heading to TKBM as well. Why? TKBM will go to clear the Tomb of Pride. But that tomb was currently being thoroughly guarded by the UN, EU, and Pandora. They would not let him, who had a reputation as the monarch of plunder and a tomb raider, go into the tomb. Of course, there was still a way. TKBM Excavation Team Recruitment Announcement TKBM's excavation team had urgently put out a recruitment announcement after they lost so many people because of this past situation. Irene asked with concern at that moment. Are you really planning on responding to that recruitment? Only if Jeha does his job properly. Ugh. Chloe opened her eyes. Chapter, 197 The first thing she saw was a pair of beautiful blue eyes. Chloe. Siole grabbed Chloe's hands as soon as she opened her eyes. There were many memories of bickering with each other, but they were still teammates. There was no way she wouldn't be happy to see her. This was especially the case while thinking about what had happened in that final tomb. Are you okay now? Chloe didn't know what to do and just hugged Siole back. But there was someone who caught her attention as she did that. It was Ju Hian. You're awake. Chloe's expression changed as soon as she saw Ju Hian. Why? Co Ju Hian is the enemy. Co Ju Hian is the enemy. I'm going to kill you I'm going to kill you. The hypnosis placed by the woman who used the spider artifact was etched deep in her mind. It had happened while she was drinking beer in northern Canada. You know Co Ju Hian, right? Chloe put a hand on her forehead as she thought about that woman. The power of the supreme leader artifact that remains in her brain is flailing around. Chloe's eyes flashed and she tried to attack Juhian. She was extremely quick. Captain Nim. As Julian and Siole tried to suppress Chloe Juhian quickly put his hand on her forehead and used his skill. Artifact Destruction. Flash. Kaya. There was a bright flash in front of Chloe's eyes and something surprising happened. Artifact destruction destroyed the brainwashing artifact etched in her brain. The supreme leader artifact's power is starting to disappear. It is disappearing. A bug popped out of Chloe's neck and Juhian destroyed a pair of sunglasses after seeing Chloe in pain. The sunglasses started to scream. Ah! I'm going to get you arrested for animal abuse. I'll do it. It was Thoth, the crested ibis. Thoth, the god of wisdom, was being choked by Ju Hian. Let go of me. Shut up. This properly got rid of the supreme leader bastard's aura, right? Yes. I used a purification artifact to get rid of the supreme leader's aura from that woman's body. I did it so let go of me, chirp. Thoth fluttered its wings as if it was dying. Fuck, they'll execute me if anybody from the supreme leader's faction finds out about this. But Ju Hian just threw the crested ibis aside as if he was done with it. He seemed extremely cruel. Of course, this was because Ju Hian was only focused on Chloe right now. Jin Kai Yuan's thoughts should have disappeared now. It was obvious that Jin Kai Yuan, that psycho woman, had done something weird. But it should be okay now. Thankfully, that was the case. See, Captain Nim. Chloe looked shocked while looking at Ju Hian. 
It was because she figured out who this person in front of her actually was. The monarch of plunder who was causing quite the stir in the world right now, the enemy of all monopolizers, all those memories didn't matter now that she saw Ju Hian with her own eyes. This person was not that infamous Seo Ju Hian, but their one and only captain. And at that moment, grab. Chloe grabbed Ju Hian's collar. See, Chloe. Seo Lei and Julian became anxious. But they didn't have the time to stop Chloe from taking Ju Hian down. Clang. Kaya. Captain Nim. Chloe got on top of Ju Hian and took Ju Hian's top off as if it was urgent. She then caressed Ju Hian's body with shaking hands. The condition of his heart, his pulse Chloe seemed to be checking the condition of Ju Hian's body. Chloe's hands were moving like the hands of a nurse who needed to take care of an emergency situation. Hold on, Chloe. Siole approached her after figuring that out, but Chloe's hands did not stop moving. In fact, her eyes were seeing something else. In that final tomb she recalled seeing this person die. Blood was dripping out, all of his bones were broken, and he was on the verge of death. As the memory of Ju Hian, who was about to die, overlapped with this current Ju Hian Chloe opened Ju Hian's eyes and inspected his pupils. Hold on Chloe. Seo Lei became anxious. Ju Hian must have thought that she would end up pulling his eye out as he tightly grabbed Chloe's soft hands. He then said the following. It's okay. I'm fine right now. Chloe started to grind her teeth. There's no way you're fine. With those injuries. She was viciously glaring at Ju Hian. The gaze was so vicious that people might think that she was looking at Ju Hian as if he was the enemy. But Ju Hian didn't seem to care much about it. It was because he knew that Chloe would not betray him. However yes yes. I know I did something that would make you hold a grudge. A grudge? Seo Lei and Julian's eyes opened wide as they tilted their heads in confusion. Ju Hian didn't care and just continued to speak. That's why you can hate me all you want. But you need to sign Ugg. Chloe didn't seem to be listening as she continued to rip Ju Hian's clothes off. Ju Hian was a bloodied patient in Chloe's eyes right now. His organs are being destroyed by the artifact's auras. Chloe immediately tried to activate her artifact. Well, the surroundings started to get rowdy because there was a woman straddling a man and ripping his clothes off. Even Julian was blushing while Seo Lei was starting to shake. Ju Hian's comment landed the final blow. Hey, I know you're happy to see me, but you can't do this in a public place. Hold. Chloe. S, stop it. Chloe pushed Seo Lei away when Seo Lei tried to grab her. What are you telling me to stop? Why are you acting like this? This is not the time to be fussy that you don't like this because he is your captain Nim. No, Chloe. Take a closer look. The angry Chloe started to freak out. Ju Hian slowly started to look different to Chloe's eyes. The bloodied face of a man in his late thirties slowly started to look younger. There was color to the face that was as pale as a vampire's face, the wrinkles started to disappear, and even the dark circles that made it seem as if he had makeup on were gone as well. Furthermore, he was actually quite cute. Chloe plopped down in shock after seeing an unfamiliar Ju Hian. Well, her plopping down just landed her on top of Ju Hian's stomach, but well a shocked Chloe started to shout. W, who are you? Who else would I be? Are your eyes just for show? It's me, Co Ju Hian. Chloe looked as if she had just heard that a friend she had been close to for ten years was actually part of the royal family of some country. Are you crazy? The Co Ju Hian I know doesn't look like this. He's older, looks like a zombie corpse has no manners. What the hell did she just say? Chloe looked Ju Hian up and down from head to toe before asking a question. See, Captain. You've become young again. Ho, oh, I guess you can finally see properly. Chloe seemed to not believe what she was seeing as she grabbed Ju Hian's cheeks and seemed to be inspecting his face. Why does he look like this? What did he eat? What the hell did I miss? That was what the gaze seemed to be saying. Chloe seriously looked at Ju Hian. You used another weird artifact again, didn't you? No. Did you eat something weird without my knowledge? 
then you screwed someone over again. I always do that. Well, that is true, but... Juhian started to speak to the chaotic Chloe. It's fine, you don't need to worry about it. It is a return to youth without any side effects. You're lying. It's obvious you messed with another weird artifact without caring about your body. It was at that moment. Chloe, I know what you are feeling since I've experienced it as well, but calm down. It was Julian's voice. A shocked Chloe started to look around. She realized that this was not that final tomb and that both Julian and Ciole were fine as well. All of them looked oddly younger. Julian was young, and Ciole looked extremely beautiful as she was in her prime. Furthermore the monarch of destitution. Chloe started to shake in reflex, as if she had seen the Grim Reaper. She then protected her wallet out of reflex as well. W, what is going on? It happened at that moment. Buzz. Chloe received some text messages. Chloe, is the deal with Chairman Kwan going well? The executives have high expectations for you. They were messages from Benjani, the future monarch of healing, and her teammates in the anti-artifact faction. As Chloe was about to respond something happened. Her phone had disappeared from her hand. And get lost. I'm not going to play with you guys anymore. Ju Hien had instantly sent a message. Chloe started to scream. Captain. W, what the hell? Chloe quickly tried to send a different message but Ju Hien ruthlessly destroyed her phone and started to smile. His smile looked quite wicked. He quickly started to speak. How dare you hang out with not just anti-terrorists but also the monarch of healing. Ju Hien started to sneer. Ju Hien became angry just thinking about how he had almost been killed by those hunters aiming for artifact users. Furthermore, the future monarch of healing who went around spreading viruses left and right? Well, that's your situation so whatever, but you even thought about working with Chairman Quan. Chloe turned pale. She was still not used to the memories and sensations that returned to her, but I'm getting tired. I'm certain. She was instinctively feeling fear. Maybe that was the reason. Chloe calmly looked away. Sorry, I have something I need to do. I think I need some time to think things OV. Where do you think you're going? Ju Hien soon started to shake the item that he would call a contract but should really be called a slave contract. Shut up and sign this first. I will not forgive you if you run away. Ju Hien's eyes flashed. This was the time he got an additional slave hub. The artifact's power disappeared. Location, Hong Kong. Zhen Kai Yuan's eyes opened wide after feeling her power disappear. She was currently in an open-air hot spring. Her body was covered by the water vapor, but she had a slim waist and a voluptuous chest. Even her peach-like butt was not completely covered. The only thing that stood out was the scar on her smooth back. This was the symbol of the curse she had received from Juhian last time. She started to smile with curiosity while bathing in a special hot tub to get rid of that curse. Well, part of the reason she chose this place was because she had heard that Juhian enjoyed spending time in hot tubs, but Seo Juhian is the only one who can destroy my power. That man was the only person who could take her on. That was why she was smiling in joy. Chloe Loran I messed with her brain a bit because it seemed pretty obvious that Seo Juhian would look for her. That was right. She had read Ju Hien's actions from the moment she heard that Chairman Quan was looking for Chloe. Of course, she didn't know that Chloe was a former teammate of Ju Hien's. But the important thing was that CEO Ju Hien would not sit back and let the woman who could help Chairman Quan heal him. That was why she had met Chloe in Canada and pulled a small prank. She had done so after eating a brainwashing type artifact user who would be called the disposal unit in the future to get his powers. That was how she had been able to brainwash her to have malice toward Seo Juhian. But he took care of my prank so easily. Seo Juhian. At first, she had thought he was a stupid kid who didn't think things through. He's actually a wild beast. His obsession with artifacts, his greed, his need to always win his passion was hotter than anybody else but he was also extremely rational and cold. He was like a wild beast that did not show its fangs unless it needed to do so. 
The way he had looked at her as if he loathed her how he had completely ignored her things would be really bad if that bastard really got the monarch's heirloom. Although she knew she shouldn't do it, Shen Kai Yuan had sent a lot of useless emails and text messages to Zhu Hian. Business, curses, threats, they were all different. Even the email address and numbers she used were all different. But he just ignored them all. This lady, who had been completely ignored, was shivering in excitement just thinking about Zhu Hian. Irene and Ciole might have glared at her with murderous intent and anger if they saw this, but it didn't matter. What do I need to do to gain Cio Juhian's interest? Zhen Kai Yuan was smiling as if she had gotten a dangerous toy. And at that same time hey, you punk. You stink. Go away. Yu Jeha, who had been heading to Chairman Quan, tried to shoo the rope that was following him away. But the rope just happily jumped onto Yu Jeha's shoulder. Master told me not to leave you alone. Master told me. Yu Jeha was placed in an awkward situation while looking at the rope bobbing up and down. He couldn't understand it, but he could at least tell that it was trying to do something praiseworthy but not like this. Yu Jeha felt as if he would die because of the smell of garlic and Korean wormwood. He wanted to ask why it was using those things as if they were body lotion, but Yu Jeha was getting a headache as he had an idea as to why it was doing it. Egu. I'm the sinner, I'm the sinner. He was certain that he told the rope at some point that there were artifacts that could turn it into a human, but but still, not garlic and Korean wormwood. The sharp Yu Jeha who knew about the Dan Gun myths would definitely know about the abilities of this garlic and Korean wormwood artifact. This smell could really kill someone. Miss Chloe. Where are you? Yu Jeha looked toward the rope after hearing the employee calling for him. Ah it's fine, you stay here. Come when I tell you to come. Huh, why? Why? Yu Jeha grumbled before walking into Chairman Quan's room to proceed with the plan. Yu Jeha carefully touched the artifact inside his pocket that Zhu Hian gave him. I will use this curse artifact on that old bastard. Chairman Quan was an old bastard they could not kill until now because of his Achilles armor. But this was the artifact that could send Chairman Quan off forever. And finally father, I think the healer is finally here. The Quan siblings and Yang Chen were inside. And oh, you're here. Please come and try to heal me. The mummy Chairman Quan was here as well. I'm fucked if they find out, totally fucked. Yu Jeha gulped and approached Chairman Quan. Chapter, 198 the Quan siblings and TKBM's vice captain Yang Chen were inside as he had expected. Jeha, who was disguised as Chloe, peeked toward Yang Chen. Yu Jeha wouldn't know that Yang Chen was the one who had betrayed them as he didn't have his old memories, but I don't like this guy for some reason. Maybe it was because they met as enemies, but he didn't know why he didn't like this guy who looked sharp and talented. In fact, he should really hate people like Zhu Hian who had it all. Maybe his body was reacting subconsciously. Well, it doesn't matter. The important one was Chairman Quan. I will touch that old bastard as I please know, I will send him to his end. Chairman Quan was staring at Jeha as he smiled wickedly. You. Why, yes. Yu Jeha's heart sank as his gaze seemed serious. Was I already found out? Chairman Quan was a starving mummy right now, but he still was a monarch. This man was the one even Zhu Hian was wary of because he had a sudden increase in his dominance. Chairman Quan squinted for a moment before lying down. Never mind. Go ahead. Yu Jeha, no, Chloe, sighed in relief before shamelessly asking. H, how is the patient's condition? It is serious. We cannot heal him without an S grade or higher healing artifact. Well, I'm sure. Chairman Quan truly seemed terrible. His cheeks were sunk in and he was completely shriveled up as if he only weighed about 30 kilograms. I'm surprised that this crazy bastard is still alive. It was most certainly because of the Achilles armor that this mummy had around him. This was as Zhu Hian has mentioned. Chairman Quan's illness is from a typical artifact side effect. He didn't know much about it, but artifact side effect this was what happened when someone used an artifact improperly. If they overused an artifact, used too many artifacts at once, used it for too long, 
or used an artifact that is not suited for that person, etc. Basically, they would get sick for not knowing their limits. Chairman Quan used his immortality artifact for close to three weeks. He went overboard. Furthermore, Achilles' armor might be an immortal armor, but that immortality was focused on injuries. It probably went berserk because he was trying to use that armor to prevent dying from starvation. He seems to have used numerous artifacts for survival in addition to the immortality artifact. Things might normally be different, but his stamina had fallen significantly because he had been stuck in the coffin. Getting sick was an obvious result of trying to use too many artifacts in that condition. He said that something like cancer cells would grow in a person's body in that situation. Chairman Quan apparently had a lump in his body created by artifacts. That lump would push out all food and drinks Chairman Quan consumed. Basically, Chairman Quan would continue to remain as a mummy unless that cancerous lump was removed with an artifact. The TKBM employee asked Yu Jeha a question at that moment. Um, will he be okay? Yu Jeha smiled brightly. Please don't worry. I only need three minutes. I'll send you to hell in three minutes. Yu Jeha smiled in secret before untying a scarf on his bag. It was a scarf that could be worn around the head, neck, or waist, but flash. The scarf turned into a scalpel once he channeled his dominance. This was Nightingale's artifact well, the curse artifact disguised as Nightingale's artifact. As Yu Jeha was about to activate the artifact. Yu Jeha almost fainted while looking out the window. T, that punk. Is it going well? Is it? He saw the rope jumping up and down by the window. It was that punk that was covered in Korean wormwood and garlic. Yu Jeha turned pale. T, that punk is getting in my way. Well, it wasn't actually getting in his way. The rope seemed as if it had something to say. Something is suspicious here. Suspicious. The rope desperately tried to call out to Yu Jeha. But there was no way Yu Jeha would be able to hear the rope's voice. And at that moment, is there something outside? Yu Jeha quickly shook his head after hearing Chairman Quan's voice. He'll become suspicious if he sees the rope. It was camouflaged as metal right now, but the rope was still a rope. There was no way Chairman Quan would not know about the rope that was always by Ju Hian's side. Yu Jeha quickly walked over to the window. T, the sun is getting in my way. Please let me close the curtains. The rope stuck to the window and continued to call out to Yu Jeha. Something is weird. Weird. You should hurry. Yu Jeha peeked to make sure nobody was looking. Don't bother me, you idiot. Yu Jeha sighed and closed the curtains. Okay, let's get started. Yu Jeha immediately activated the artifact. But at that moment, huh? Yu Jeha's expression changed once he touched Chairman Quan's body. Bong! Chairman Quan's body flashed and the treatment room burst away. Yu Jeha realized it at that moment. These bastards set a trap. His sight soon became blurry. Li Siole. Let me just say that I'm sorry for you. What? Colas eyes opened wide while looking at Chloe who was setting up her new phone. What are you talking about? Chloe calmly said something while turning on her phone. The monarch of destitution is stuck to the captain Nim. You have no chance of success. What? Chloe started to sneer after seeing Cola become angry. Cola started to shake while looking at that annoying sneer. She had forgotten about it because of the incident in the final tomb, but she was now certain. She really isn't on my side. Chloe and Ciole had hated each other since long ago. That was the same right now. I'll do everything I can to support the monarch of destitution, so good luck on your own. Hey! Chloe just started to pout while looking at her cell phone number. This is a mess now. It truly was, since she was part of the anti-artifacts faction that didn't like artifact users. However I didn't know things would be like this. Although her memories had returned, she still had to consider her current situation. It was similar to how Ciole had been working for China. And how Julian was the captain of the Miller excavation team. But there was a reason her situation was different than theirs. 
Ciole and Julian were still part of excavation teams, even if they were affiliated with different ones. It's complicated for me to be with artifact users. Ciole looked at Chloe at that moment. You're not going to betray the Captain M because you are part of the anti-artifacts faction, are you? Depends on how the Captain does. Ciole immediately started to growl but Chloe just sighed while looking at Ju Hian who was on the phone. She could clearly see Ju Hian's condition because her artifact allowed her eyes to see people as patients. Headache, insomnia, chronic fatigue, stress, etc. Artifact side effect would happen more frequently the more a person used high-grade artifacts, but how stupidly had he been using divine-grade artifacts? I don't think he has any right to sneer at Chairman Quan for struggling with artifact side effect. He didn't seem to have tomb syndrome as he did in the past, but Ju Hian needed to stop using artifacts as he pleased and get thorough treatment and maintenance. It would turn into a serious illness if he left it alone. I have no choice. This person was someone who never showed his pain to others in the past as well. It might be best described as the pain of a patient with terminal cancer. Even though he should have been in so much pain that just standing up should have been seen as a miracle, this captain of theirs never showed it if he thought his subordinates would become worried. I'm sure it's the same this time as well. Chloe could not forget how Ju Hian had coughed up blood in pain in her treatment center. Maybe that was the reason, but now that she had gained back her memories Chloe started to record Ju Hian's condition. She could hear Ju Hian sneer without any malice next to her. What, you're going to be my personal doctor this time too? Chloe glared at Ju Hian before sighing. Don't get the wrong idea. You won't be able to get any doctor because of your terrible personality, so I'm just going to look after you a few times for our past relationship. Well, fine. What about the monarch of healing? Benjani was my friend, but she'll probably sell me to TKBM in a few years. She'll do it so that she could become a monarch. Chloe sighed. She wondered why she lived like that in the past, but it was old no, it was a future that had not happened yet. More importantly I'm amazed that our monarch of fraud went to Chairman Quan. He might have been the monarch of fraud in the past, but he was now the monarch of pushoverness. Are you sure he's okay? Don't you need to go help him? His GPS location disappeared as well. Mm. Ju Hian seemed a bit serious as he scratched his cheek while thinking about how Yu Jeha's location had disappeared. I guess it really might be dangerous with that old bastard. At the same time did you take care of Chloe? In a treatment room a bit away from the room Yu Jeha had been in the real Chairman Quan and his family were in there. The employees gave their report. Reporting in. We succeeded in using the trap to capture Chloe as planned. Ha ha ha, good job. Chairman Quan started to laugh. We can't let a precious artifact user who walked in on her own accord just leave like that. Chairman Quan had no plans on making a deal with Chloe in the first place. Why? I don't need her when I was able to contact the woman who would become the Monarch of Healing. The Monarch of Healing had connected him to a woman named Benjani. Chairman Quan was slowly gathering people around him. They would become his strength to become the Monarch among Monarchs. And that woman, Chloe. I heard she was the one responsible for taking out some of our TKBM members. I'm sure she came here with some kind of evil plot. He found her despicable. But it was also true that Chloe was a very rare artifact user. In that case I just need to forcibly dominate her with my artifact. He would be able to dominate her with his artifact of conquest. Bring that woman here. I'll use my artifact of conquest to turn her into my slave having more healing types is always better. We brought her, sir. A TKBM employee brought a slumped over woman. This was Yu Jeha, no, Chloe, whose clothes were ripped in multiple places and whose body was a bloody mess because of the explosion. Chairman Quan was quite satisfied. The way she was barely breathing was nice to look out. All right, bring her here. The subordinate who had brought Chloe over grabbed Chairman Quan's arm. Yang Chen and the siblings' eyes opened wide. Hey, what are you? Yang Chen realized that something was wrong. That bastard, is he? Yang Chen quickly grabbed the man who was holding on to Chairman Quan by the hair and pulled. Ugh. 
The man was in pain but Yang Chen immediately used an artifact. It was the truth artifact. The man's skin started to boil and the face that appeared was none other than you scammer bastard. It was Yu Jeha. Had he transformed into that employee? And the fact that this bastard was here must mean that maybe. He looked toward Chloe with a shocked expression. He then started to grind his teeth as he ran toward Yu Jeha. That woman is a trap. She's a fake created by Da Vinci's artifact. Get rid of her. This bastard is the real one. Excuse me. The subordinates and the three siblings grabbed Yu Jeha, who was in front of Chairman Quan, after hearing Yang Chen shout. Yu Jeha was immediately pressed down and captured by the subordinates. Damn it! The subordinates sneered at him. You stupid idiot! Where do you think you're at? Hurry up and drag this bastard away. Hand him over to Pandora. Tell them to arrest him for coming after the Chairman Nim's artifacts. Something happened at that moment. Retards. The voice they heard came from the slumped over Chloe. Yang Chen and his subordinates freaked out while looking at the Yu Jeha they had captured. Was this the fake? The person who looked like Chloe quickly used an artifact. The curse artifact was activated and Chairman Quan screamed before he fainted. See, Chairman Nim. That bastard. They grinded their teeth and captured Chloe. V, Vice Captain Nim. This. Chloe wasn't the real one either. The proof of that was the fact that Chloe's face was starting to fall apart. Yang Chen started to grind his teeth after seeing this happen. Both of them were fakes. They had been had. Yang Chen became desperate. Fuck. Ring the alarm. The pushover bastard is hiding somewhere in here. Let Pandora know about this. The hospital turned into a mess. Unfortunately, none of that mattered. Ha. Huh. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Oh, over there, a helicopter. The monarch of fraud had fled on Chairman Quan's helicopter that had been on the hospital roof a long time ago. Oh, is that so? You succeeded. Yes 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 yes, I did a great job, right? You should really give me a bonus. You should also set me up on a blind date. Ha 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 ho okay, Yu Jeha, who had received a reply from Ju Hian, was jumping up and down in joy. Kaya, it's a good thing I've been abused by the Captain Nim so much. Being abused by Ju Hian must have been effective as he successfully completed this mission. Yu Jeha had used a defense type artifact as soon as he realized Chairman Quan was a fake before completing this mission. The important thing is that I managed to put a curse on Chairman Quan's immortal body. They might even be able to destroy that annoying Achilles armor if they did everything right. The rope who was piloting the helicopter flashed its eyes and handed something to him while he was laughing. Restore this for me. Restore it. The rope's eyes were flashing as it handed the garlic and Korean wormwood artifact to Yu Jeha. Well, the fact that this punk is covering its body in garlic and Korean wormwood is okay, let's say that's fine. But Egu, you bastard, you're too much. Just eat me. I'm not meant for something like this. Even if an artifact ate the garlic and Korean wormwood artifact, it wasn't cruelly eating a fellow artifact it was similar to eating the fruits of the herb of eternal youth. A simple comparison would be like giving some hair. Egu, my head. My head. The garlic and Korean wormwood that had become bald in a way were crying in pain. My hair won't grow back like this, you bastard. But the rope didn't care as its eyes flashed while reeking of garlic and Korean wormwood. I'll give this to you as compensation if you restore it. I'll give this to you. The rope was holding a picture of Juhian. Restore their hair. Do it. Yu Jeha was in disbelief while understanding what the rope wanted him to do. Is it really thinking about rubbing these things on its body for 100 days, Yu Jeha succeeded. Really? That's unexpected. Ju Hian was very satisfied. Now then, how about we test it out? What Ju Hian took out was unexpectedly a remote control. They wondered what it was, but this was the matching set for the curse artifact that Yu Jeha had activated in Chairman Quan's body. Fourteen-sided drinking game dice of the Silla Noble's Punishment Dice B-grade, rare grade, 
consumable artifact the moment he pressed a button on the remote the dice that has risen in level thanks to the power of wrath is able to act as an S-grade artifact. The 14-sided dice is starting to roll. The dice has stopped. Multiple people hit your nose has been rolled. Juhian started to smile. He should be able to check on the TV whether the curse worked properly. The problem was that in order to loot the Tomb of Pride I need to trick the eyes of the EU, UN, and Pandora, they had put quite a lot of things to prevent him from getting in. How can I get past their thorough surveillance reing? Juhian smiled while looking at the text message he received. Mr. Han Ji Sang. Congratulations on passing TKBM's open recruitment. Captain Nim. Good. It's about time to go loot the Tomb of Pride. The attack of the tomb raiding team. The bastards who would make Chairman Quan blow up in anger if he knew what they were doing started to move. Chapter, 199. What did you say? TKBM Excavation Team Recruitment Announcement. Yu Jeha, who had returned after successfully completing his mission, dropped his jaw in shock. It was great that he received a storm of praises from his captain upon his return, but what? You passed the TKBM open recruitment test. Really? Yes. They told me to start working tomorrow. The first thing Yu Jeha did was scream. Maybe that was to be expected. It was that motherfucker Chairman Kwan's company, but TKBM was quite a famous global corporation and just talking about getting into it was quite prestigious for a person. As for their excavation team it might be a dangerous job but something that everybody wished to join. But he managed to be accepted to such a place on the first try. I bet there were a ton of applicants after hearing that Chairman Kwan had woken up. Wow, shit, TKBM is the cream of the crop. Well, it wasn't hard for Ju Hien since he was just going back into his old company. No, wait, you damn person. Control yourself. Don't you even feel bad for them? What? Why? You're not satisfied with doing what we did to Chairman Kwan that you're going to murder the regular employees? The employees are innocent. Ju Hien, who was sitting with his legs crossed, started to frown. Hey. You keep treating me like a villain every so often, who do you think? What's wrong? It's true. Why are you pretending it's not? No. I did this just to dodge the individual inspection. I understand. Just tell me what to do. Do I just need to abduct all of them? Abduct them and sell them off to a tuna fishing boat? Or maybe the algae coal mine? If not that, then maybe to dig for oil in the Middle East. Anyway, you damn monarch of crime, I guess I should just be glad that you're not participating in the organ trade out. Juhian stomped on you Jeha. Sure. I'll cut you up and sell your organs first. Flash. Yu Jeha screamed once Ju Hien took a dagger out with fluid movements. Joke, it was a joke. It really was a joke. A gasping Yu Jeha lowered his head and started to beg for forgiveness. As Chloe was watching this situation with curiosity Egu, of course I know. I definitely know it. The reason you applied for TKBM was to cause a shit no, because of that detection artifact, right? As long as you know. Ju Hien snorted and put the dagger away. That was right. Pandora must have been quite annoyed with Ju Hien running wild that they personally offered their detection artifact. They also offered the assistance of expert detectors who were famous in Ju Hien's past. Of them, the bastard called the Monarch of Detection was nicknamed the Human Radar. Basically, these bastards had placed long-range radars all over the world. This punk would end up being recruited for wars in the future, but he already had his fancy radars all over Europe. That was why Ju Hien's location would be revealed the moment he arrived in Europe, even if he was far from the tomb. There was a lot of discussion in the press about detectors right now. A successful detection has led to the capturing of more illegal excavation teams. All teams who had tried to sneak into the tomb without getting excavation rights have been captured as tomb raiders of course, the captured excavation teams are complaining that Pandora is only issuing excavation rights to certain people Pandora responded that they have shared excavation rights with people who have met the qualifications and labeled these people as terrorists. They hope to increase the punishment of course, these expert detectors were not the issue. They were quite annoying, 
but Zhu Hian's excavation team was called a tomb raiding team for a reason. They were experts when it came to dodging detectors. However the detector artifact that Pandora offered, could this be that Pandora system artifact? Ah, Pandora's brain artifact that is said to be able to track anything down. Pandora is currently using that to track the movement of artifacts and artifact, no. There's something I want you to take care of for me with Irene. But. No. Chloe flinched after seeing Ju Hian's gaze. Ju Hian was originally slightly younger than her. Furthermore, Ju Hian seemed much younger as it was currently 15 years in the past. It wasn't that he seemed like a kid, but he was at an age where an old man like Chairman Quan would look down on him. But his presence and charisma was at least as strong, if not stronger than back then. His dominance is much stronger than back then. Even then he was one of the top 10 artifact users. He's definitely beyond the monarch grade now. He could probably aim for one of the four emperor's positions. He still didn't have the special filthy feeling that monopolizers gave off as they forced people down. That was why Chloe found it interesting and amazing. Yu Jaha tilted his head in confusion at that moment. But why did it have to be TKBM of all places? TKBM is only one of the five teams with the excavation rights to this tomb. Julian checked through the files and responded. Ah, uh, I analyzed the other four teams and they were no joke. TKBM is no joke either, but we had an opportunity this time. Our captain caused a shitshow no, his plan succeeded so TKBM lost a lot of manpower. Their core personnel are still there, but this recruitment is the best time to infiltrate them. Yu Jaha suspiciously looked toward Ju Hian. Ju Hian was having fun rolling the dice that he placed in Chairman Quan over and over. All right, let's see what will come up next. I wonder if this can turn him into an eunuch. Maybe that one can give him hemorrhoids? He was smiling wickedly. Kong Ming seems to have worked hard to analyze all teams before choosing TKBM, but it seemed as if their damn captain had chosen the prey that could make things most interesting. What did you say? Seo Ju Hian might try to sneak into the tomb as a part of our team. In front of the tomb of pride the current TKBM's captains, who had carried malicious thoughts about him in Ju Hian's past life, dropped their jaws in shock. Seo Ju Hian's name alone was enough to get them angry but that bastard might stealthily infiltrate into their team. That's right. It might happen. He might try to sneak in with an excavation team with excavation rights in order to dodge the Monarch of Detection's radar. TKBM recently recruited a lot of people. You have to be especially careful. That made TKBM's ace team captain start to sneer. Who do you think we are? TKBM was one of the top three excavation teams in the world. Do you know how thorough our excavation team is? You guys just worry about yourselves. The other excavation teams that had come to warn them responded with disbelief. They were thinking that TKBM's foundational attitudes would never change. Look at these frogs forgetting what it is like to be tadpoles. One shoe, they might hear you. There was a reason TKBM was one of the top three excavation teams their tremendous amount of capital played a part, but the virtue necessary to gain artifacts, their trashy personalities, also played a part. Anyway. Chairman Quan and his bastard subordinates are all the same. What? Ah, uh, you heard me. Anyway, just know that Seo Ju Hian might try to sneak in through your excavation teams. Ho, oh, we are artifact users as well. Do you really think we would not be able to recognize an artifact user at Seo Ju Hian's level? That's right. Don't talk shit about TKBM. Do you really think we wouldn't have expected something like that? We've gone through all sorts of shit recently because of that bastard Seo Ju Hian, but we were thorough with our recruitment. Our interviews were quite strict as well. In fact, it isn't our TKBM teams but you guys who should be careful. You trash like fools. What? Trash. You guys have no right to say that. Do you know how many of our people TKBM has killed? You guys even killed our interns who didn't know anything. That's why you should have sent some hot shots. Did you send them to build a friendship because we talked about having an alliance? What? And what do you mean we killed them? We just threw them aside because they were useless and they got themselves killed. 
Send some useful people next time. They were useless out in the field. What? You bastard. Other excavation team captains started to calm down the people who were about to start fighting. Stop, stop. Anyway, fine. We will be wary of Seo Juhian just in case. Let's contact each other if there are any signs of him trying to infiltrate any of our teams. The excavation team captains quickly dispersed from their meeting. Seo Juhian and his band of misfits. You guys won't be able to take a single step into TKBM. However one step was bullshit. My name is Lin Yun, and this is James. Hello, my name is Han Ji Sang. Yes, it must be hard going into one of the seven great tombs on your first day at work, but good luck. They had openly walked onto the TKBM excavation team already. Well, the one who had to pull an all-nighter was Yu Jeha though. Jeha was really about to die. Julian, who had turned into James, an American, felt sorry for Yu Jeha. His name was on the verge of going up as the monarch of pushoverness, but he truly was the monarch of fraud Julian remembered. Is it because Juhian thoroughly trained him? Jeha, and even Siole are developing quite a lot. They might even become stronger than they had been during their prime. Julian's heart was beating quickly. Well, it was good that you Jeha used Da Vinci's artifact to change their faces and physique, but you understand? I created this artifact skin quickly so its duration and durability are quite low. Just three days. You need to clear the tomb and get out within three days. Also be careful since receiving a strong attack would return you back to normal. Most great tombs took at least three days just to move around. Would this really work since the fastest time any great tomb has been cleared still took a whole week? Furthermore thoroughly investigate the new personnel. Report up if you see anything suspicious. Yes sir. It looks like they have their suspicions. Well, they had expected as much. In fact, they would have clicked their tongues and called these people idiots if they weren't suspicious. But if there was something Julian had not expected Seo Juhian, that dog-like bastard. He really is a thorn in our eyes. How many excavation teams are being fucked over because of a single bastard? Fuck, we've had to work overtime and more overtime because of that motherfucking Seo Juhian. Please let me go home. Let's kill him if we capture him. I managed to get my hands on a torture artifact. His only talent is sneaking around like a damn rat I wonder if his thing can even get up to be a man. Exactly. What a fucking retard. There was a woman whose eyes flashed as she took out a knife after hearing their comments. Julian quietly screamed while seeing this happen. Ciole, stop, stop. Julian held Ciole back from assassinating those bastards. Ciole's gaze was quite chaotic. I will be back after cutting off their necks. She looked ready to chase the people who talked shit about Juhian to the ends of the earth. Julian desperately stopped Ciole since he knew she would actually do that. I know you're angry that they talked shit about Juhian, but relax. Relax. This is the middle of the enemy base. We can't get caught out here. Even our captain is holding back his temper and staying quiet. That's why. He was definitely not staying quiet. Huh. My artifact, where did my artifact go? You idiot, look again. Hey, where is your artifact then? Ah. Where did it go? Julian grabbed his hair and started to freak out after hearing this. Many people were starting to scream around them. Huh. Hey. Where did the artifact I was restoring go? Huh. Did the owner already take it back? Of course not. Fuck, what the hell? Julian grabbed the back of his neck. C.O. Juhian, you motherfucker. His suspicions were correct. While everybody was in states of chaos, there was a young man with glasses that was calm. He had horn-rimmed glasses and mop-like hair. This dismal appearance was quite different than the strong impression he usually gave off. He was acting as if he had no idea what was going on. I'm new here and have no idea about anything. He had an innocent expression that seemed to be giving off such a message, but well snicker snicker. Julian clenched his hair after seeing the corners of this young man's mouth twitching while others couldn't see it. 
Damn it. There's no way a sparrow will just pass by a gristmill. Well, was this actually more of a crow being unable to pass by a sparkling object without trying to get it? This guy can never be still. What will he do if he gets caught? They had not even gone inside the tomb yet, but Ju Hien was already running wild as if he was a crow that had found a sparkling object. Chapter, 200 This bastard. He truly deserved the title of Monarch of Plunder. Julian was starting to get a headache. It couldn't be helped. That bastard always had a bad habit of using his hands like this. We use them quite effectively for each mission. Was it the archaeologist's artifact? That artifact should have given an ability related to dexterity. Ju Hien had always done bad things with his hands but getting that ability had turned him to a master. He used that ability to steal things, pick locks, it was quite useful. But Ju Hien had not enjoyed stealing things he only used the ability when he needed it. But now ah. Uh, where did my artifact go? Hey. Look for it again. Egu, I'm going crazy. Should he be praising this ghost-like ability? Julian couldn't help but sigh. Even if they seemed to be declining, TKBM was still one of the largest excavation teams their members should have a lot of rare and unique artifacts compared to the small excavation teams no wonder he's excited. Julian quickly headed over to Juhian. Hey CEO. Julian was about to call out CEO Juhian, before looking around and touching one of the buttons on his jacket. The assistant for chivalrous fighters to hide their conversation from others C-grade, general grade, consumable artifact remaining uses, 986100 it was a C-grade artifact, but it was quite useful when around enemies. And Seo Juhian, what the hell are you doing? He started to scream at Juhian. It was a sound of the mind so others couldn't hear it, but Juhian put his hand to his ear as if he was hearing a speaker screech. He then responded while frowning. What the hell, you son of a bitch. I was having so much fun. Julian became urgent after seeing the TKBM employees' gazes turn sharp. You idiot. I know your dexterity is amazing, but you'll still get caught if you cause this mess. How many did you steal in that short time? Huh? What's wrong with you? I only stole 100 of them. What, 100? And only about two of them are useful. Julian couldn't believe Ju Hien's grumbling. Whether it is two or twenty, are you out of your mind? You're going to get caught if you have one hundred of them on you. What do you take me for? Ju Hien started to smile instead of responding. Ju Hien then pointed at Yun Shi Wu, one of TKBM's captains. He was tilting his head in confusion in this chaotic situation. Ah, Captain Yun Shi Wu. Other teams seem to have lost their artifacts. They seem to be looking for them will things be okay. Don't pay them any attention. It's fine as long as it doesn't happen to our team. But at that moment ah. I found one. Isn't this one of the artifacts that disappeared? What? Julian freaked out after hearing that shout. It was because Ju Hien had been the one to shout. Captain Nim. I found the missing artifacts in Team 3's bag. What? The members of Team 4, the team Ju Hien was on, rushed over. They foamed at the mouth after seeing the bag that Ju Hien handed them. Hey, Team 3. What the fuck, man? Do you guys want to die? What, what happened? The other employees, as well as Chairman Quan's eldest son and second son, rushed over at this sudden chaos. Yang Chen, the captain of TKBM's Team 1 and the vice captain of all teams, was there as well. Julian screamed internally as more people rushed over. C.O. Ju Hien, you motherfucker. Why do you keep causing issues? Ju Hien feigned ignorance and started to shout, probably without any knowledge of the concerns going through his vice captain's mind. They really are the items that disappeared from our team. I believe team leader Yun Shi Wu's team 3 is the culprit. Yun Shi Wu, who had instantly been cast as the culprit, dropped his jaw in shock. Hold hey. Who the hell are you? I've never seen your face before. Yun Shi Wu tried to grab Ju Hien's collar but Chairman Quan's eldest son, Quan Sung Wu, grabbed his collar first. You bastard, I knew you would do something like this. Director Nim. 
I thought that your gaze changed ever since my father disappeared. How dare you try to steal your fellow teammates artifacts like this? No sir. This is all just a misunderstanding. Then what are all these things in your subordinates' bags? What else? It's all the artifacts you guys lost. A frustrated Yun Shi Wu started to shout. Please hold on a minute. Director Nim. There really must be a misunderstanding. Director Nim. We found some with the other teams as well. According to our investigation, it seems that all members of the Yun Shi Wu faction were involved. Yun Shi Wu grabbed the back of his neck. However, it didn't end there. Hold on. Isn't this the Chairman Nim's artifact? Ju Hien was the one who shouted again. Ju Hien took something out of Yun Shi Wu's bag and showed it to everyone. I remember seeing this on TV. Is this the Chairman Nim's? The eldest son's eyes opened wide. That. That's the artifact I brought. Yun Shi Wu was instantly beaten up by the eldest son. You damn trash who is trying to steal my father's inheritance. No, it's not true. But Yun Shi Wu's faction had no chance to say anything. Yan Chen's subordinates, who had a bad relationship with people from Yun Shi Wu's faction, rushed in as well. I got you now. You guys have always been annoying me anyway. How dare you take our artifacts? Pow, pow. Pow. TKBM's base camp ended up turning into the Colosseum with a fight between factions. Julian showed a look of disbelief as he watched. He didn't know whether to say it looked familiar or if it felt new. Similar to how there were internal conflicts in any company, TKBM had its factions as well. The different teams did not have good relationships with each other. Ju Hian had used that to his advantage. He knew exactly which teams didn't like each other. He's a fish in water, a fish in water indeed. These people were not regular people they were people who had received training for fighting and freely using artifacts. The scale of this conflict was beyond what anybody could imagine. As a result bang. Baba ba bang. The materials they brought were destroyed, the durability of artifacts went down they were losing supplies and strength before they even entered the tomb. But Julian was thinking that this was good. It's better for us if there are a lot of internal conflicts. Why? TKBM had lost a lot of personnel, but their core personnel was still intact. TKBM's excavation team had a total of 10 teams but each of those teams were strong enough to go up against an expert-grade artifact user's excavation team. As for their tomb raiding team, they were an 11th team separate from those officially recognized 10 teams they were the hidden 11th team. In addition, they only had 10 members unlike the official teams that had hundreds or even thousands of members. Either way, each team's captain is the problem. The captains of each team these captains were the core members of TKBM's excavation team. Those bastards are all expert-grade artifacts users who could become monarchs at any moment. It was beneficial to create internal conflict and make them fight against each other. Of course, Ju Hian's abilities at that time were the greatest even compared to the other ten teams they talked shit about him and pulled some crap because of his superiority quite often. Well, CO Ju Hian was treated like a hunting dog and couldn't spread his wings back then because Chairman Quan had his weakness in his hands, but, it was different now that there were no restrictions whatsoever. He will push aside all monarchs and become one of the four emperors. Once that happened, he would be able to get rid of all of those monopolizer bastards who tried to hoard the artifacts for themselves. Julian was looking forward to it quite a bit. I can't let CO Ju Hian's talents go to waste. Of course ah. Uh, I really didn't do it. Fuck, you motherfucking bitch. Ha <laughs> ha. Those retards. Ju Hian was just chuckling while watching them fight each other to the point they were bleeding without knowing what was going through Julian's mind. It was at that moment. Yun Shi Wu glared at Ju Hian. That bastard really is suspicious. He was quite sharp and felt that something was off with this situation. Yun Shi Wu grabbed Ju Hian by the collar. Hey you. Look at me. You've been quite suspicious since earlier. Excuse me. M, my apologies. I'm sorry team leader Nim. Someone rushed over after Ju Hian quickly shouted, as if he had been waiting for this moment. Hey, are you crazy? 
he's a part of my team. It was the team leader for the team Juhian was on. Stop provoking him and get lost. Ho, hey. You damn arrogant son of a bitch. Juhian swung his leg and tripped Yun Shir Wu who was trying to charge toward his team leader. Boom. Ugh. Yun Shir Wu glared at Juhian after falling down. Hey, look where you're going. But that innocent face this man had until just now had disappeared as Ju Hien quietly whispered in Yun Shi Wu's ear. You look where you're going, you retard. He quickly released his overbearing dominance. Yun Shi Wu started to shake in fear at that overbearing dominance. This feeling. You, are you? He quickly started to shout. Co Ju Hien. You're Co Ju Hien. That made everybody stop what they were doing and look toward them but they just looked at Yun Shi Wu as if he was crazy. It made sense since Seo Ju Hien. Are your eyes just for show? You think this kid is giving off the dominance of a monarch? Seo Ju Hien might not look like it, but he's still a monarch. You'd be able to tell if you saw him. Fuck. No, just now. Shut up. You'll be sent to a hearing. You damn artifact thief. Yun Shi Wu felt wronged while Ju Hien, who had hidden his aura back as quickly as a ghost, wanted to roll on the ground laughing. Julian put a hand against his forehead. Please stop wasting your talents in such weird ways. His heart was beating crazily in fear of getting caught. At the same time something seems weird. Is there no chance that Seo Ju Hien is hiding here? A weird rumor started to come out of TKBM. You think that Seo Ju Hien might have infiltrated into our teams? Really? Yes. Artifacts suddenly disappearing he's the only bastard who could have such ghost-like skills. But. Artifacts suddenly disappearing that could be brushed off as something that happened because they are in a tomb appearance area. But Seo Ju Hien was known for being a thief. And now that there were rumors about how he might have infiltrated into a TKBM team it was only right to be suspicious. The TKBM team leaders started to get riled up after hearing these rumors. Co Ju Hien is hiding in here. That dog-like son of a bitch is here. Find him. Do whatever it takes to find him. Find him and kill him. Julian gulped after hearing the shouts around him. It makes sense, TKBM people aren't dumb. It was normal for them to be suspicious. It's dangerous like this. It would become complicated if they caused any more ruckus. However Mr. Han Ji Sang. We're told to report up if we see any suspicious individuals. Pandora has provided some information, so please use it as reference. You'll be able to spot him immediately because his dominance is high. Yes sir, I understand. None of the employees recognized that this was Ju Hian. Was it that Yu Jeha's skin was superb or that Ju Hian was such a genius that he could even trick these elite artifact users? Anyway, this is a relief. The people who had been fighting started to move. They could now see the tomb entrance. All that was left was for them to go into the tomb. Julian and Siole started to smile while looking at the tomb entrance. Now that we have excavation rights, we can easily loot the tomb if we go in with this group. Whisper whisper. The teams up front had stopped and were talking. What the hell? Why is that person over here? We never heard anything about him being here. Ju Hien also started to frown as he looked forward. Standing up there was I'm sorry, but I'm here because I want to search through TKBM. It was the Monarch of Detection. Chapter, 201 Around the same time Irene was overhearing the conversations of the Pandora members who were gathered in France. Of course, she had barged in after hearing that Pandora's European branch was trying to harm Ju Hien. They're planning on taking care of Mr. Ju Hien in this tomb. Irene started to frown. It had not been difficult to come into Pandora's France branch. Her brother was a member of Pandora. Well something that reminded her of Moses's miracle did happen too. T, the monarch of destitution. Fuck, I mean, W, welcome ma'am. Please enjoy your stay. The guards got out of her way on their own, allowing her to install a bug to eavesdrop on the information. Buzz, buzz. 
George Holton, who was freaking out about his younger sister's radical actions, was getting anxious next to her. Irene. Who taught you all these terrible things? Shoo. I can't hear them. George, who was unintentionally cut off by Irene, felt as if he had received a major shock. Our little girl has changed. It would probably hurt less than this to be slammed over and over in the head with a hammer. George's eyes filled with anger after thinking about the fact that the reason Irene was working so hard was for Seo Juhian. Seo Juhian. Juhian was definitely their benefactor. Even though that was the case our Irene George slammed his head a few times against the wall. He would probably hire an assassin if he ever learned that the two of them had a relationship that went beyond just holding hands. Either way, Irene was focusing on the earpiece of the bug. That bastard Seo Juhian will not be able to make it into the tomb this time. The European Pandora members seem to have high expectations for this situation. Asia, America, Middle East he made all of them eat shit. But we can't let that happen to Europe. The tomb excavation will be a breeze as long as that bastard is not there. The excavation rights were given to five teams this time. Yes. They were given to the teams that offered the most money. Regardless Seo Juhian, that damn thieving bastard things keep going wrong because of him. Even civilians keep running into artifacts because of that bastard. That is not good. What benefit would there be for those poor shitheads to get their hands on artifacts well, at least one of those five teams should end up getting the artifact in the Tomb of Pride. We can ignore Seo Juhian. The members and excavation team captains started to sneer, but they soon heard another voice. Don't look down on Seo Juhian. That's right. There's no way that such an obsessed bastard would give up on the tomb. There's no way that a cat would just pass by a fish shop. That might have been the reason that the people who had their tombs looted dry in the past quickly changed the direction of the conversation. First, please have them thoroughly investigate the company where Seo Juhian is the major shareholder. Even if the government and Pandora gave permission, how dare he try to sell artifacts for business without the executive board's permission. Investigate and put just the right amount of obstacles to hinder his business. You know that what we really mean is to completely destroy it in the end, right? If anybody gives you shit, tell them it is the Secretary General's orders. You can also say that this is the result of the desires of multiple royal families and presidents. Irene's eyes started to burn with anger after hearing this. What? Presidents? Royal families? Which countries are they from? Irene looked toward her older brother. Bro, which countries are trying to get in Mr. Juhian's way? Is there any country that isn't trying to do that? That was true. Well, the U.S. seemed to be accommodating Juhian after he recovered their artifacts, but the current U.S. president is known for being capricious. CO Juhian's name has been handed to Interpol already. Although it is not guaranteed to be the case, there are quite a lot of countries where CO Juhian is restricted from entering. That wasn't all. There are even talks of using beautiful women to seduce CO Juhian. What did you say? No matter what, the strengths of these countries were quite high. Pandora's directors were strong as well. George Holton was doing everything he could as a Pandora member to cover for Juhian, but I don't have the strength to protect him. It happened at that moment. This. Chloe quietly swore after seeing a message on her phone. She must have received a message from one of the moles that George had planted. Miss Chloe. What's wrong? The U.S. apparently sent the special forces out. They're headed toward the hotel Seo Juhian currently resides in. The Chinese government also seems to have sent people to Korea. Irene realized something after wondering why they would send people to those locations. They must be aiming for Mr. Juhian's family members and close friends. She was certain. The farmers were working their asses off to take care of the herb of eternal youth in Juhian's temporary hotel residence. As for Korea, that was where Inspector Kim and his wife, who could be considered parents to Ju Hian, resided. The thorough Ju Hian would have handed them some artifacts to guard themselves, but there was no way that civilians would be able to defeat well-armed organizations. George felt as if he was in an awkward situation as he started to speak. We should first inform Seo Ju Hian. No, please wait a moment. 
It's fine to let him know, but... Irene started to frown while thinking about something. I'm certain Mr. Juhian might give up on this European tomb if he hears about this fact. Juhian actually cared a lot for the people around him. Irene didn't want Juhian to give up on his goal. Right now is not the time for Mr. Juhian to focus on such external affairs. That was probably why she asked the following. Appa. Can you connect me with the US president and the Chinese leader? Huh. What are you planning on Irene, are you? Irene's eyes were burning up in anger. Mr. Juhian's enemies are my enemies. And she was akin to the devil in present society. Specialty, destroying the world economy. The monarch of destitution, no, the monarch of threats who had no problem swaying an entire country for her needs, started to contact someone. I'm sorry, but I'm here because I want to search through TKBM. The monarch of detection was there with a lot of expert detectors. This woman seemed to be in her thirties. She looked as if she would make things quite difficult. Furthermore, she was not here alone. She was with the soldiers sent by Pandora's European branch. TKBM's excavation team members looked quite upset at her appearance. Why is that woman here? We already passed our inspection. That's true, but didn't she just say that she wants to search us? Search our teams. Why? I heard that they even sent Pandora's system artifact to deal with the illegal excavation teams what? That special artifact in Pandora? The monarch of detection started to speak after hearing them start to talk. I heard a rumor that Seo Juhian might have infiltrated his way into your teams. Ah, we heard that rumor as well. But it is just a rumor. The monarch of detection smiled viciously after hearing that. Are you sure you guys aren't just hiding Seo Juhian? TKBM's captains foamed at the mouth. What the hell did she just say? Who is hiding who? How can she say that when there are quite a lot of people here grinding their teeth in anger because of Seo Juhian even now? Why the hell would we hide Seo Juhian? Is this bitch crazy? Please cooperate with me if that is not the case. Ow. Seo Lei looked toward Juhian with a gaze that seemed to be asking if this was okay. The detectors are a problem, but we will be discovered right away if it really is the Pandora system artifact. Being caught here would lead to dealing with the thousands of European soldiers the monarch of detection brought with her. TKBM was there as well. If they added the other excavation teams to the equation as well we'll lose quite a lot of time. It was dangerous even if they had two monarchs on their side. But both Juhian and Julian looked as if things were okay. TKBM would not let them search unless they've gone crazy. TKBM's members did indeed look quite upset. This was the normal reaction. What the monarch of detection was saying was pretty much that she wanted to install a CCTV on people on the same side. How could they feel good about this? Ah, whatever. Get lost. You would loot all information about the artifacts in our possession if you search us. Do you really think we would allow you to do that? Listen carefully. Do you really think we are retards who wouldn't even know if Seo Juhian snuck in? Aren't you? You don't know that I am here. You didn't realize it. The corners of Juhian's lips were twitching while Julian had his hand on his forehead as if things were starting to get complicated. TKBM shouted as Juhian expected them to react. We don't need your help so get lost with your little lackeys. We need to head into the tomb now. The monarch of detection started to sneer. Seo Juhian isn't here. Are you joking? I can feel the dominance of monarchs inside this excavation team. Seo Lei urgently peeked toward Juhian and Julian with only her eyeballs. She might not be there, but Julian and Juhian were definitely monarchs. Both of them were hiding their auras, but did they figure it out? The monarch of detection's sharp gaze was around the area where Juhian and Julian were standing. She was looking only at that vicinity. Julian seemed anxious after hearing what she had to say as well. No. Both Seo Juhian and I have hit our aura perfectly. The two of them definitely had enough skills to do that. Of course, he couldn't hide and reveal his aura over and over as Juhian did. The monarch of detection viciously laughed at that moment. 
the monarch of fate prophesied that he would show up here. Seo Juhian is definitely among these people. Julian started to frown. Ah, monarch of fate, you son of a bitch. Juhian seemed to be feeling the same way. I need to really drag that motherfucker out and fuck him up. He then started to glare. TKBM hesitated a bit after hearing about the monarch of fate, but they soon started to speak. Fuck the monarch of fate, do you really think we don't know this is just a ploy to gather information about our excavation team? My goodness, you sirs are difficult to chat with. She then activated her artifact of detection. Flash. An aura that detects everything is approaching from the side. An aura that was like a tentacle swept the excavation teams from the side. The excavation teams to the right of Juhian started to scream. They couldn't see anything but Julian could see that they were all being attacked by something long. Ah, uh, what is this? They were throwing up in pain. Ah, uh, it's weird. This feels weird. Barf, it feels terrible. Juhian and Julian both started to frown. Are they really using the Pandora system artifact? The artifact of detection activated once more at that moment. Ache. T, that bitch. The artifact of detection did not touch Juhian once again. The only area left now was the section Juhian was standing in. The monarch of detection triumphantly started to laugh. Just one section left now. It was her fault if she couldn't find Seo Juhian here. We need to crush that bastard here in Europe. She had to return a ton of money to the European government if she failed. Maybe that was the reason. The artifact of detection is descending. Come out, Seo Juhian. The artifact activated again and Seo Lei tightly grabbed Juhian's hand. Captain Nim. Julian, who was also concerned about being found out, was about to activate an artifact. The hundreds of top-tier artifact users around them would all turn into enemies if the truth was revealed. Being surrounded would be a headache. This ended up a bit dangerous. The artifact of detection was spreading out through the entire base camp. The moment the aura of detection descended on Juhi and you are being exposed to an upsetting gaze that is searching your body. The eye of detection is searching your entire body. The crow's power is being exposed to the enemy. The hand of detection is starting to squeeze the crow's body. Juhian felt something disgusting as soon as he saw the messages. It felt even worse than another man touching his body. It was quite interesting. Is the artifact a male type artifact? Juhian definitely felt something at that moment. He could feel the crow surrounding him starting to go wild, as if it didn't like this either. Julian instantly noticed it and telepathically sent Juhian a message. Suppress your aura. Hurry. However, Juhian just smiled at him. Suppress my aura my ass. Instead, Juhian released the roaring demon god, the crow's power. Boom. A chaotic and vicious aura suddenly burst out. The monarch of detection suddenly felt a creepy sensation. What the heck? What is this? Of course, Juhian had not released his dominance or an artifact. It was something that only the woman who was using the artifact of detection could sense. Nobody other than her would be able to see or feel this sensation. That wild aura then went berserk, as if it was going to eat her up. This strength was completely different than most divine grade artifacts. She clearly saw it. She saw Juhian's gaze as he handled that chillingly scary and fearsome aura as if it was nothing. Bong! The crow's aura attacked her as Juhian's eyes flashed. It was as if a crow was roaring. Her entire body started to shake. She suddenly had a thought. I'm going to be eaten up. And that thought became reality. Chapter, 202 Boom! The crow's aura had attacked out of nowhere. That aura opened its vicious wings and spread its presence around. Dowsing McCann, the monarch of detection, who had barely managed to get the information from the monarch of fate, suddenly became full of fear. I'm scared. She was someone who had a different kind of clairvoyance compared to the monarch of fate. If the monarch of fate was able to see the future, she was someone who could detect everything in the present. Her power allowed her to detect any and all enemies and threats right away. 
this Seo Juhian or whatever bastard just became a monarch through thievery. But Seo Juhian's information is still sold for quite a lot of money. She was also someone who had reached the monarch grade. I won't lose a battle of will against such a bastard. Let's just quickly get paid and go shopping. That was the thought on her mind. That should be how this went. But what the hell? The animal that was caught in her radar might have been better not to have been noticed by the radar at all. That was how scared she was right now. It felt as if she was looking into the eyes of a wild beast who was glaring at her asking who the hell she thought she was to look at it. The crow's chaotic aura attacked the monarch of detection as if to eat her up. Ah! The monarch of detection plopped down on the floor in fear. What is this artifact? It wasn't a vague sense of fear. This fear felt as if she was being dragged into the deep sea. This fear felt as if she was about to be eaten by a mysterious thing. That was the kind of fear she was feeling from Juhian. She started to think once that fear reached the top of her neck. I need to run away. She needed to do it. Otherwise, she might really be gobbled up. However boom. Kaya. Juhian was smirking, as if he wouldn't let her get away. A vicious black aura spread out as if it was opening its wings. It was extremely quick to the point it gave her the chills. As the hand of the black predator started to choke the monarch of detection's neck a message popped up in front of Juhian. Starting to gobble up the opponent's artifact. Trying to eat the power of the white god. This will end with the host being gobbled up as well. He was certain that the message had popped up because the crow was running wild. Unable to gobble up because this is not the true body. Lacking strength. The crow's power said that while sounding as if it was sighing. The vicious rampaging crow's chaotic aura quickly disappeared. The monarch of detection, who had barely kept her life, plopped down on the ground. Huff, huff. T, this is crazy. Her legs and arms were shaking and she might have even peed a little. TKBM's excavation team members and the soldiers started to whisper after seeing her reaction. What the hell? Why is this woman acting like this? I don't know. Why the hell is she suddenly screaming? Why else? She hysterically started to shout. He really is here. Seo Juhian is right here. You crazy shitheads were hiding Seo Juhian. What? What is this woman saying again? Only the monarch of detection who had cast her radar seemed to have noticed the crow's aura. Actually, Julian had felt it too, but Seo Juhian, this crazy bastard. Julian, who had cold sweats down his back, was looking at Juhian as if he was looking at a monster. He knew that there was a crow's aura that was chasing Juhian around, but it's amazing that he can use such a thing this way. He realized something today. The crow's aura chasing Juhian around truly was a monster. It was just an aura and not the real body but it was already this scary. It was almost bizarre that Juhian could handle that aura so easily. I'm sure there's nobody else who can do such a thing. The monarch of detection and he had a level of mental tolerance toward divine grade artifacts as fellow monarchs. However, the expert grade and below artifact users might end up fainting. Well, I'm sure he didn't only reveal the aura to that woman because he cared about the others. It was probably more correct to say that he purposely only revealed it to the monarch of detection. He wanted to turn the monarch of detection into an idiot. That was the reason Juhian was smiling triumphantly. As a result, TKBM and the European soldiers were looking at the monarch of detection with suspicion. It does seem like the monarch of detection used her radar. The monarch of detection started to swear, as if she realized those suspicious gazes. What is up with those gazes? Do you not believe me? And, no that is. It was definitely a level of an artifact's power that cannot be brought out unless the user is at the monarch grade. It was divine grade. No, really we didn't feel anything. Such a person isn't here. She started to shout in frustration. He really is here. Either TKBM is hiding Seo Juhian or these retards didn't know that he snuck in. It's either one or the other. The prideful TKBM members started to frown. TKBM was one of the top excavation teams in the world with extremely talented individuals. 
this woman thinks she can say whatever she wants. What the fuck is she talking about when she randomly started to scream while using her artifact? Did she even use the artifact? They started to shout as they were already extremely upset. Where the hell is Seo Juhian? You should know if you detected him. Tell us which person is Seo Juhian. The monarch of detection immediately stared at Juhian. I'm certain it's that man. She immediately grabbed Juhian by the collar. His face was completely different than what she had seen in the picture, but it's you. Both Julian and Seo Lei were shocked. But Ju Hien completely feigned ignorance. What are you talking about, ma'am? Feigning ignorance won't work. The monarch of detection started to roughly pull at Ju Hien's shoulder, making Ju Hien scream while asking why she was doing this. The reactions were split in half. Is he really CEO Ju Hien? Ju Hien put on an expression as if he was the most wronged person in the world. How could someone like me be a monarch? Furthermore, CEO Ju Hien, that son of a bitch is my hated enemy as well. That motherfucking scammer and criminal bastard. This is serious slander. The monarch of detection's subordinate started to pull at Ju Hien as well. It's true if the lady says it is. He is someone in Seo Ju Hien's excavation team at minimum. No, why would I join an excavation team like that? It's got a thug for a captain and he doesn't even treat the members as people. After seeing Ju Hien's truly wronged expression, Julian was in a state of disbelief even though he was on Ju Hien's side. What the hell did this guy just say? The monarch of detection started to sneer while looking at the shameless Ju Hien. Ho, oh, is that how you want to play it? Whatever, as long as I activate my radar again. The monarch of detection immediately activated her artifact. Horn infused with Heimdall's sight and hearing SS grade, divine grade, possession artifact Heimdall, the shining god of Norse mythology, was a sort of watchman of the gods and Loki's enemy. He was said to have clairvoyance and extreme hearing that allowed him to even hear the grass growing. That was how he would sense danger. The highest grade radar ability would be cast to live up to that ability, however the power is not being activated. Heimdall's power is unable to activate properly as it was ripped apart by the crow. Ju Hien started to smile while reading those messages. I guess I won't need to use the artifact I prepared to deal with the monarch of detection at this rate. This seemed much more effective than what he had planned. Furthermore a portion of Heimdall's power has been absorbed after ripping it apart. You have learned about the existence of predation. Ju Hien was very satisfied with that message. That crow bastard. I did hear that he was a predator that gobbled up artifacts. Of course, it didn't seem to be able to use its full powers as it was just a chunk of aura right now without its true body. Does that mean I will be able to steal abilities if I get that crow bastard in my hands? Would he be able to steal the powers of artifacts and tombs? Ju Hien was quite amused. It was at that moment. Fuck. The monarch of detection, who could not detect anymore, was grinding her teeth. I'm certain it is this bastard. Why is my artifact not working now of all times? You bastard, I will reveal your true identity. She would end up being reprimanded by Pandora at this rate. It's obvious he is using a doppelganger artifact or a transformation artifact right now. If her artifact won't work, she would just rely on the power of an artifact she had borrowed. What, that is? That's the Pandora system artifacts. Something flashed in the monarch of detection's hand. She grabbed Ju Hien by the collar with one hand and tried to pull his hair with the other. Colas eyes flashed while Julian was thinking this was dangerous. The transformation will be removed if you are injured. Please keep that in mind. Captain Nim. That was what Jeha had told them. His dominance will give his identity away if he uses an artifact, it's dangerous. The problem was the mysterious artifact this woman was trying to use. What the hell is that artifact? He couldn't tell very well because it was covered in light, but it seemed to be shaped like an eye. Is that the Pandora system artifact? She then started to speak. I know that a few of Seo Juhian's excavation team members have infiltrated here. Show yourselves if you don't want to see your captain being injured. 
she must have thought that she would be able to prove Seo Juhian's identity and drag out the other members of his tomb raiding team by doing this. This artifact can send this bastard's head off. As that artifact was about to touch Juhian excuse me, Miss Dowsing. What? What is it? There's an emergency call from Pandora's European branch. An emergency call? Um, you are to return immediately. Get lost. Who do you think told me to capture Seo Juhian in the first place? No, they're saying that the country is about to go bankrupt there is someone they need to find. The country is going bankrupt. What the hell are you talking about? The monarch of detection turned around and started to walk away while glaring at Juhian every few steps. Juhian was not even paying attention, but Julian saw it. Julian saw how the corners of Juhian's lips were twisted up. The detectors then moved away from TKBM's excavation teams all of them started to talk, wondering what the heck just happened. What the hell did they come here for? What's up with them? Right? Why did they suddenly go back? Why else? Weird phenomenon with the World Stock Index Exchange Rate Emergency Stock Price Paralysis Money Evaporation at the bank the world was in quite the chaos. The stock price was in a state of emergency and the exchange rate jumping up and down was making the different countries suffer. The countries that had received the major blow of this weird phenomenon were the US and China. My goodness, what the hell is this? The detectors, who were heading back to Pandora, could not close their jaws after reading the related information in the car. We ignored the request of the monarch of destitution and all this happened in just 10 minutes. Request. What did she want? That you know how you asked us to attack Seo Juhian's friends? We were told to cancel that mission if we don't, she will do something about it. What? Why didn't you tell me about that? Well, we didn't think something like this was really possible. Ow. Just as they were trying to use the opening where Seo Juhian was missing to attack his surroundings what nonsense was this? At the same time the order to withdraw has been given. X, excuse me. Are we really withdrawing? The US troops who had charged into the hotel room with the farmers who were raising the herb of eternal youth were becoming anxious. The O Sung Wu group farmers, who were almost in danger of being dragged away by the Pandora soldiers, had cast a defense type artifact and were gulping inside. It was fine that they were working hard to raise the herb of eternal youth today as well, but they had almost fainted because Pandora soldiers suddenly barged in with guns but withdrawing. Korea was facing a similar situation at that time. What do you mean withdraw? Why are we withdrawing? Seo Juhian won't be able to do anything if we capture these people. It's fine, just withdraw. I'm dead if we don't withdraw. Both the Chinese Team Red and Pandora soldiers started to grind their teeth. They were withdrawing when they were right outside the finish line. But they had to do it. The monarch of destitution will kill me if we don't withdraw. She confirmed this before contacting Pandora. Why did you stop us? We could have dragged Seo Juhian out if I had some more time. Are you sure you didn't make a mistake? Excuse me. Seo Juhian appeared in the English party hall along with Yu Jeha. They became anxious. There's no way. No, there is no way that could have happened. I'm certain it was Seo Juhian. I can go back and confirm with this Pandora system artifact. No, there is no need to confirm. The person on the other side of the call seemed to have changed. She flinched in shock. Who the hell are you? What's wrong, we were just together until a moment ago. Is this perhaps Seo Juhian? Juhian started to laugh and respond through the static noise. Oh, it's nothing much. I'm just curious about the Pandora system artifact you brought. Show it to me. The monarch of detection quickly started to speak. Turn the car around. Seo Juhian really was there. Ah, you don't need to come back. Just hand it to that thing. She turned her head to see the rope suddenly pop out and start to move up and down. It must have been hiding under the monarch of detection's skirt. Give it to me. Give it to me. The monarch of detection was in disbelief but quickly clenched her bag. Screech the driver suddenly slammed on the brakes and they lost balance. The orb-shaped artifact had rolled out of the bag in the process. 
This was the so-called Pandora system artifact. The rope, which grabbed it with its head, started to move in joy. Thank you. Thank you. The rope then almost instantly left through a gap in the window. Ah. As the monarch of detection and her subordinates tried to chase after it oh right, I forgot about something. She heard the voice in the call she had forgotten about. If you make such bullshit threats ever again, I won't let you get away with it. Was he talking about how she had tried to use his life to lure out his team members? Well, I don't think there will be a second time though. What? The car they were in burst into flames and exploded in an instant. Chapter, 203 You took care of her. Juhian's eyes opened wide after Julian used the telepathy artifact once again. Julian continued to speak. You were concerned about the Pandora system artifact. Didn't you send the rope to them to take it away? Juhian started to laugh after hearing that part. I knew he would know what I did. Juhian did indeed send a call interference artifact, a bomb artifact, and the rope with those bastards. Well, the rope should come back with it soon. Julian sighed in relief. Hugh, I'm glad nothing much came of it. I guess we somehow ended up getting the monarch of destitution's help. Why did we suddenly get such an obstacle Julian was relieved that they didn't have to make it messy and fight against the European troops. No, I don't think she ended up being a total obstacle. Hmm. Juhian smiled while looking at the message that popped up. You have received the title of hiding your body like a ghost and learned of the stealth skill. You have gained the stealth skill. This was the first skill that had come out since he received the tomb restoration and the artifact destruction skills. Juhian happily opened his skills window to check. Linguistics F rank increases communications with artifacts training A rank, a skill to handle artifacts and people spy A rank, information confirmation and increases detection ability tolerance S rank, increases tolerance toward auras tomb restoration A rank restores tombs, increases range, increases dexterity dexterity S rank improves pickpocket ability. Increases ability use artifacts and fit tomb destruction s rank destroy tombs as you please, decreases affinity artifact destruction ss grade destroy. Artifacts as you please, increases dominance, decreases affinity Juhian smiled while looking at these skills. Linguistics had no chance of going up because he didn't give a damn about what the artifacts said to him and somehow, the artifact destruction, which was his newest skill, was at the highest level, but stealth. This was quite interesting. Why? Getting a new skill was interesting, but most importantly Juhian peeked around. Since this was an above-ground tomb, the entire city had turned into a tomb. Juhian read the tumblef written on a small house before stealthily putting his hand on the wall. However, at that moment hey, what are you doing? A shocked Julian called out to Juhian. Thankfully the people around them didn't hear because he shouted quietly, but Julian had been so shocked that he even forgot to use the telepathy artifact. C.O. Juhian, what the hell are you doing? That's a trap over there. His eyes could see it. A trap to cut off Juhian's hand and neck would activate the moment he touched it. Even C.O. Lei looked toward Juhian with nervousness. Captain Nim. C.O. Juhian. But Juhian ignored the two of them and gently put his hand on the trap. Grab. As an anxious Julian and C.O. Lei were about to pull Juhian's hand away huh? Julian questioned his eyes. What is going on? He was fine. Juhian's hand was fine even though he had placed his hand on the trap. This was probably the reason for their reactions. What the hell, how are you fine? How are you still alive? Juhian's subordinates' gazes were quite a spectacle as they asked such questions. What did you do? Julian and C.O. Lei became flustered as they looked over Juhian's body. A, hey, are you okay, Captain Nim? Juhian enjoyed the concerns of his subordinates as he lightly chuckled. It is as I expected. That was right. Juhian, who had made a dangerous gamble, saw a message pop up in front of his eyes. You used the stealth skill. The trap is not being activated because of stealth. Juhian snickered. I got quite the useful one this time. It would be even easier to loot tombs with this skill. Juhian's gaze then headed toward the TKBM members who were aiming for him. 
We must get the artifact from this tomb. We will go attack Seo Juhian as soon as we get the artifact. Each and every one of them were grinding their teeth in anger toward Juhian. Seo Juhian, see what happens if we catch you. We will cut your head off and hang it on the company roof. Oh oh oh. Juhian's dangerous smile was quite wicked as he looked toward them. Uff, stop, stoop. While all of that was going on, Chairman Quan was screaming because of a terrible pain. When had this pain started? It seemed to have started after that bastard Yu Jeha had appeared in his treatment room. Since then, Chairman Quan had been struggling with terrible pains that he could not even discuss. Ah! This was what the doctors had to say about it. I'm sorry. You have grade 4 hemorrhoids. What did you say? That wasn't all. Ah! Uh, my foot, my foot. I'm sorry. You have an extreme case of athlete's foot. Ache. It's leaking, leaking. Doctor. My goodness. You have incontinence. Having it at such a young age. Ah. It hurts, it hurts. Oh my, it is kidney stones. Ah. My skin, my skin. Doctor. It is syphilis. Excuse me. And currently ah. Another scream shot out of the room. The aides turned pale and quickly started to move after hearing the painful scream. These company executives would usually curse Seo Juhian and effectively cater to Chairman Quan's mood, but it was different now. Chairman, are you okay, sir? Where does it hurt? The aides jumped up and got angry after seeing his secretary get anxious. What are you asking? You should be able to tell by now. Hurry up and bring it. Excuse me. Ah, that then I will get the donut C, cushion. You idiot, not that. Call the female nurses over. He needs ointment, the ointment. You retard, it's his diaper. None of you are right you dumbass. Chairman Quan was in pain and wanted to cuss them all out. Sub, sob. Over there, my thing. Chairman Quan could not keep talking and just clenched the area between his legs. He was feeling a terrible pain where it felt as if that spot between his legs was being crushed. Damn it, what the hell did you do to me, Yu Jeha? Well, Seo Juhian was probably responsible for it since Yu Jeha had done it. What he was certain of was the fact that Yu Jeha had installed a monstrous artifact in his body. That was why he couldn't help but to grind his teeth. Motherfucker, where the hell did he get such a shitty artifact? He suspected that it was a curse-type artifact. However, it didn't seem to be a regular curse-type artifact as weird things happened to Chairman Quan regardless of the time. There were times his eyes felt as if they were on fire, times he got sick, and even times he almost died because he could not stop laughing. Even his sword between his legs that was standing rock hard thanks to the return to youth artifact was limping down. As for right now ow. He felt another pain in between his legs. Even Chairman Quan's artifact started to rampage, as if it was reacting to that pain. Grab. Bobo bo boom. It was his artifact of conquest. The items in the room started to break as his artifact rampaged. People started to scream once things started to float, as if they were being controlled by psychokinesis. Ah. Chairman Nim, Chairman Nim. P, please calm down. Chairman Nim. Medical equipment, vases, fruits, all sorts of things floating up in the air made his subordinates feel a sense of urgency. Hurry up and see, call the doctor. No, stop that first. N, no, call the artifact users over. Yang Chen, go get Yang Chen. Vice Captain Yang Chen. Excuse me. They're all out on a tomb excavation right now. Kaya. As all the aides stood there without knowing what to do boom. An artifact's power suddenly shot out. The sparkling light created a circle and surrounded the room. That made the items floating around all fall to the ground. This power was Newton's artifact that impacted gravity. The subordinates dropped their jaws in shock while looking at the items that were stuck to the floor. I, it stopped. Just who? They heard an angry voice that seemed to answer their question. This is not the time to be angry, you old bastard. 
Chairman Kwan's eyes opened wide after hearing this familiar voice. The person who had come to visit Chairman Kwan was the monarch of fate. Joshua, the man who had the seer, Nostradamus's artifact. This man, who stealthily supported numerous countries and businesses from the back, was breathing heavily as if he had run over. This young man would usually call his driver for even short distances because he didn't want to sweat. That made this current situation odd, but Chairman Kwan just glared at the monarch of fate. What are you talking about? Why are you suddenly here? What is going on? Did you know? Seo Juhian snuck into your excavation team. This man must have seen something through his dream again. Your excavation team is currently in Europe, right? Seo Juhian is hiding among them. Chairman Kwan started to scoff. Do you really think they wouldn't be able to sniff out that damn rat? Chairman Kwan started to boil inside just thinking about Seo Juhian. He didn't know the reason for it. But if he was to make a guess I saw something weird at that time. Actually, Chairman Kwan had made a personal deal with the executive board. That was how he was able to learn the method of instantly raising his dominance through the system artifact. But Chairman Kwan had seen something during that process. He saw Ju Hian who seemed to be in his thirties. Kill him. Get rid of him before he gets any bigger. I will promote you to director if you manage to lure those bastards. No TKBM employees will have seen or heard about anything that is about to happen. CO Ju Hian was never in TKBM to start. He didn't know the details as he had only seen that one scene. It had felt as if he was seeing a film still of a movie he had never seen before. But the way he found Seo Juhian to be so annoying must have meant that they were connected in some way. Chairman Kwan soon shook his head. It's fake. Even if they were connected in some way, Chairman Kwan only cared about the present. The thing he needed to focus on right now was your saying Seo Juhian snuck into my excavation team. Yeah. Even my excavation team is being swept up because you guys can't find Seo Juhian. What did you see? First, both your and my excavation teams were thoroughly destroyed. Chairman Kwan slammed his hand on the table after hearing that. Don't say such ominous things. Even if that bastard is hiding like a rat, we can take care of him in the Tumag. Chairman Kwan started to twist his body. The pain in his groin was just extra. The monarch of fate, who had his hands clashed by his stomach, clicked his tongue. Yes, I'm sure it'll be fine. He had already contacted the excavation team just in case. But things were definitely not fine. What did you say? What about that bastard Seo Juhian? He's where? No, we're saying that Seo Juhian is in your excavation team ache. What are those things? It's a trap, a trap, sir. The tomb entrance was currently full of screams from TKBM and other excavation teams it was because of the terrible pranks that Ju Hian was pulling. Fuck, fix the formation. But ancient Chinese soldiers seemed to be coming out of every alley. The excavation teams foamed at the mouth after seeing the large number of soldiers. It was to be expected. Fuck, we didn't even touch the trap. Who the hell did it? Who else? Tap, tap. Tap, tap. Ju Hian was activating trap after trap with ghost like movements. Of course, it wasn't difficult to find the traps. This was child's play once he used his experience and knowledge from going into numerous tombs. Click. Julian and Seole truly prayed for their happiness in the afterlife after hearing their screams. I now understand why he said to pretend like we are injured and stay in the rear. This damn thug. Julian had instantly realized Ju Hian's plan. The trap path is the shortest path to our destination for sure. All tombs were set up so that the most dangerous routes were the closest to the artifact. Using the safe path would make it difficult to find the artifact and also take too much time. Some paths would take over a year to get to the end. That was why excavation teams usually chose the short paths even though they knew these paths were full of traps. They could just use the baits they dragged into the tomb to deal with the traps. But what had happened? Ah! The bait, throw the baits. We're out of baits. What did you say? I believe all of the traps have been activated. 
Why did they activate? Ah. That was right. This was all Juhian's doing. The rope had stealthily returned with that Pandora system artifact or whatever and given it to Julian. It was fine that he was analyzing the artifact without other people knowing about it, but his damn captain seemed to have started acting like a total thug while he wasn't looking. Was he planning on lowering the number of people as much as possible since they would get to the central region of the tomb soon? Ah. He didn't seem to like what these bastards did by using human bait that he had already sent those people off elsewhere. It was because Ju Hian knew how these bastards abducted those people to be bait. Clear the tombs with your own strength if you want the artifact, you bastards. He then urgently shouted in the middle of the chaos. Captain Nim. The exit seems to be this way. Their faces lit up after seeing Ju Hian easily cross a bridge. Yes, over there is the path without a trap. But the moment they got onto the bridge ah. Ah. The trap activated and Ju Hian started to shout. I'm sorry sir. It must have been a trap. I was okay but why? Hey you son of a bitch. Although Ju Hian was apologizing, Julian saw it. He saw Ju Hian's smile that seemed to be saying that things were going according to the plan. This devil-like bastard. But Ju Hian didn't care and just walked over to Julian and Co Lei as he started to speak. I succeeded in holding these bastards back. We will head to the central region before these lowlifes chase after us. Ju Hian brushed his hair up before taking off the horn-rimmed glasses. His sparkling eyes were as savage as those of a crow. Chapter 204 I succeeded in holding these bastards back. We will head to the central region before these lowlifes chase after us. Ju Hian brushed his hair up before taking off the horn-rimmed glasses. His sparkling eyes were as savage as those of a crow. It could be described as the gaze of a wild beast aiming for its prey. Julian and Ciole flinched after seeing this gaze. It wasn't because of a bad reason. Captain Nim. His gaze right now had overlapped with his old appearance. It reminded them of Juhian when he was their leader in the past. His body was rotting away from illnesses, but Juhian had defeated monopolizers with his charisma. Juhian had been so sick that his skin almost looked rotten. The venomous aura his corpse-like face gave off had been so vicious. Anyway, he had an indescribable charisma about him. Compared to back then, the current Juhian looked quite fresh and cute. His smooth appearance must have made them subconsciously think that he was meek compared to back then. Maybe that was the reason. I didn't think there was a reason for me to follow him. There was no reason that Julian, who was ranked third among talented artifact users, should work for Juhian. But he was wrong. You truly are our leader. This familiar sensation made both Julian and Cola's heart start to beat wildly. It felt as if even they were returning to the past. They liked this feeling. That wasn't all. What are you doing? Hurry up. I can't watch the artifact fall into those terrible bastards' hands. I won't forgive them. Julian was full of admiration after hearing that. Co Ju Hian. It was to be expected. This thug who only looted artifacts for his own benefit in the past. He grabbed Ju Hian's shoulder in awe. I'm relieved. You've changed. Fine. Let's keep working together. Let's aim toward world peace together this time. What bullshit are you talking about? What? Those sons of bitches. How dare they aim for something that will belong to me. Juhian instantly disappeared as soon as he said that. And bang. Baba bang. Ah. Save me. There's a trap here too. Fuck. Julian's face looked full of despair. Yes. There's no way a person could change that easily. Actually he probably did change. For example, he could have become more docile which would have made him a bit nicer dammit. Who stole my artifact? Kaya. Who touched my boob? Who stole my underwear? Who did it? Became nicer my ass. What the hell is that punk stealing? Julian turned his head with eyes that looked ready to shoot lasers and saw Juhian running wild. But it only lasted for a moment until he was caught by someone. Hey! 
You. You've been suspicious since earlier, where do you think you are trying to go on your own? Yun Shi Wu had appeared. He was one of the few people who had been suspicious of Zhu Hian since earlier. Zhu Hian started to frown. Things are getting complicated. The people who had caught Zhu Hian were the elite team leaders of the twelve excavation teams, with whom Zhu Hian had a lot of beef in the past. They're all experts who could become monarchs. They would not be easy to handle. Zhu Hian didn't pay much attention to it even though he was being held by the collar. Why? What is that in your hand? Yun Shi Wu almost foamed at the mouth while looking at his hand. It could not be helped as there was a warm pink bra in his hand. There were all sorts of underwear poking out of his bag as well. Zhu Hian started to snicker while looking at it. You have some interesting hobbies, sir. Naturally, Yun Shi Wu and the other captains with him could not help but turn pale. Wait W, what is this? A woman who was feeling her chest that felt as if something was missing looked around for a bit before starting to scream. Kaya. Team Leader Nim. W, what are you all holding? What? W, wait, this is. The flustered Yun Shi Wu and the team leaders all glared at Zhu Hian, but Zhu Hian just mischievously smiled. Ah, no wonder. I was wondering what you sirs were talking about earlier when you said there was a great artifact to use inside the tomb. W, what? Hey! When did we? The tomb is sealed and the traps make it so that the female employees cannot run away is that right? No that's not it. The women didn't care for what he had to say as they started to glare. Wow, that's crazy. I should have realized it from the sexual harassment in the office. We can't let him get away with this. Let's inform the vice captain Nim and drag him down right now. Hey, hey. Shut the hell up. You stupid bitches. It's this bastard, this bastard is CO Ju H. However, Ju Hian had instantly disappeared. Yun Shi Wu and the members of his team started to scream at the same time. It was because the teams that were against them had pointed their weapons toward Yun Shi Wu and his faction. Bang, baba ba bang. Of course, Julian was just shaking his head at Ju Hian who had managed to slip out of there. Hey, what the hell are you going around stealing? What did I do? You're a bad person, but still, women's underwear. I didn't steal those. The screams coming from all around proved that he was telling the truth. Ah. Kaya. Who did it? Just who could it be? Kaka kaka kaka. Money, money. The worm was the one that was going around stealing the underwear with excitement. This bastard was able to swipe anything that was related to wealth. For artifacts, any human item that could be traded for money was considered wealth. But Julian found this to be odd. This bastard that doesn't take anything other than money, gold, or jewels is stealing underwear. Ju Hian said something as if he was reading Julian's mind. One hundred million won per piece. I told him I would pay him if he stole those things. Julian was in disbelief. Are you really going to pay up? Are you crazy? The worm, who probably had no idea about this, just continued to steal underwear with joy. On the other hand, it didn't seem to be able to abduct its fellow artifacts. It's still useful. The worm would probably sell its fellow artifact off if Juhian offered about 300 million won. But as they were about to start moving poke poke. There was something poking at Ju Hian's leg. It was the rope. The rope's eyes were sparkling as it looked up at Ju Hian. I brought something too. I brought it. The rope seemed envious at the fact that the worm had received an order from Ju Hian, making it imitate the worm like this. The proof was the panties the rope was holding. Praise me too, praise me. The rope's eyes were sparkling and it seemed to be waiting for Ju Hian's praise. But both Julian and Ju Hian instantly started to frown. It made sense since I don't need men's underwear. It was rare for the two of them to agree on something. At the same time what the, isn't that the monarch of pushoverness? What does he need from here? Why else would he be here? He's probably here to be someone's servant. Yu Jeha's hands were shaking. It was fine that he came to a party for the wealthy at Ju Hian's order. This was the United Nations Antiquities Fair that was being built in Russia. 
The CR Alliance had invited Pandora, saying they wanted to exchange knowledge. Well, that's what they called it, but it was more of a, let's see how far your skills have developed as they scope out the competition. It was fine that Yujeha had followed Juhian's proxy, President Edward, to come here, but wow, the atmosphere is so tense in here. There are royalties and people I've only seen on TV and newspapers. This was a place where artifacts, industrial items created by artifacts, and artifact byproducts were traded. There was only one thing Juhian had ordered him to do. Yu Jeha. There's an artifact I need you to swipe from there. He had come here because of that order, but Yu Jeha has risen to the position of Monarch of Pushoverness. Monarch of Pushoverness. New Monarch to fill the place of the deceased Monarch of Burglary. Pandora, the system artifact has decided this. What the hell is this? Things had changed for him while his captain and the others were in the tomb. Damn it, the monarch of pushoverness. That was right. He seemed to have been raised to the monarch grade after making the official restorers eat shit, launching a sneak attack on Chairman Quan, and doing all sorts of odd things. Either way, he was now a person with the destructive force and influence equivalent to a world war. He was thankful to be on that list. It was cool. It made him seem awesome. There was also the prophecy about how people in the monarch grade would end up receiving special artifacts. However my goodness, what kind of abilities would someone called the monarch of pushoverness have? The power to be a pushover? The power to be a doormat? Yu Jeha was screaming internally. Why did they have to put such a shitty title out of all things? These people were sneering at him in English since he was Asian, but he was an Ivy League graduate. Yu Jeha had no trouble understanding their English. He looked ready to breathe fire out of his mouth. I'm going to destroy that system artifact or whatever. Yu Jeha started to grind his teeth. The Captain Nim and Cole had been making fun of him for being an expert pushover for a while. It was okay right now since they were inside a tomb and disconnected from the outside world right now. He was certain they would make fun of him for at least a month if they found out that he really became the monarch of pushoverness. They might even make fun of him forever. Fuck, what do I do? Is there no way to change this before the Captain Nim comes out of the tomb? Well, whatever. The monarch of pushoverness was annoying, but there was a bigger concern right now. Artifact users are being hunted. Who is responsible? Is the anti-terrorist NGO responsible for this? Is it the work of talented expert grade users who want to move up? Is the Russian International Artifact Fair going to be dangerous? Yu Jeha was quite concerned about these articles. But at that moment. On, on. Over here, over here. M, 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 P, H. Yu Jeha almost suffocated because of a pair of panties that suddenly covered his face. On, young man. The artifact the Sir is looking for is here. It was Bayan Kongso and Ong Nayo's artifacts that Ju Hian had sent flying. Please hurry up and get the item before restoring us. Ong, Ong. MMPH, let go of me you bitch. People inside the auction house started to talk after seeing Yu Jeha being dragged away by a pair of panties. My goodness, panties. The fact that Ong Nayo's artifact was following Yu Jeha as well was enough to make people scream. We need to hurry up and make the Sir happy. We need to. Kaya. What is this? How can there be such a frivolous artifact? What kind of monarch is this? Is he really a monarch? As Yu Jeha's image was falling, there were people who started to scoff at Jeha. Oh, that damn monarch of pushoverness. He showed up here. There were some people observing you Jeha. That shit made us look bad last time. We got him now. They were the official restorers and official appraisers. The restorers were shamed in the White House. The appraisers ate shit because of you Jeha's work during the plane incident. We can probably bury the monarch of plunder with him if we find a way to bury him. That bastard should also have Seo Juhian's artifacts on him since he is Seo Juhian's restorer. They started to smile wickedly. Clang, clang. As all of that was going on, it was quite a difficult path to get the central region of the tomb for the others. 
well, not Ju Hian's group but TKBM and the other teams that had gotten the excavation rights. Fuck. Why are you acting like this? Snap out of it. They were struggling earlier because of traps. Now, people who were fine just moments ago were starting to become unconscious one by one. I'm certain. CO Ju Hian is in here. What? He really was here. Holy shit. They finally understood the severity of their situation. They had not believed it at first, but it seemed to be getting clearer and clearer as they got closer to the central region of the tomb. I'm certain. This is the dominance of a monarch. A monarch's dominance that had definitely not been here earlier was starting to be felt. Yun Shi Wu pounded his chest in anger and started to swear as people chatted. I told you that that bastard from earlier was Seo Ju Hian. You retards. Fuck it really is that bastard. They were looking at a tower that was standing at the center of the city area. They called it the Tower of Pride. In this city area where the tomb appearance took place this tower in the center of the city was where the artifacts were located. It seemed to be at least 50 stories tall. It was an extremely luxurious and elegant tower. Of course, they still didn't know what artifact was in there, but what I know for sure is that Seo Ju Hian must have headed that way. We can't fall behind. Chase after him. As they expected, Ju Hian's group was already inside the tower. It did change a bit compared to the past. Ju Hian kept his guard up while climbing this beautiful and radiant tower. That was why his dominance had naturally started to flow out. Julian started to speak. It looks like this tomb was a collaboration between multiple artifacts, similar to the Valley of the Kings. There were going to be multiple artifacts here. That's not weird since it is one of the great tombs. It was at that moment. Watch out! Julian shouted while Ju Hian and Seo Lei blocked the bullets heading toward them with artifacts. The artifact is being destroyed after receiving significant damage. The defense-type artifact was destroyed as easily as if it was tofu. There was an overwhelming aura. The aura seemed quite strong. Finally, an army appeared in front of them. Clang! Clang! The army looked like modern European troops. Someone who was giving off an overbearing aura then appeared from within the soldiers. Listen, my soldiers! Listen, puny humans! The person who had appeared on a horse started to speak. Kill everyone who is taller than me. It was an extremely famous person. Chapter, 205 Kill everyone who is taller than me. It was an extremely famous person. It was someone who would show up in any textbook if searched from the French Revolution and on. Anybody who knew about world history would know about this bastard. That was why Julian started to speak. D, did he just talk about height? I, I think so. Then maybe. That was right. Inside this tower of pride the person that had appeared on the first floor was none other than Napoleon. Julian started to mumble. All three of them seemed shocked. Why were they so shocked? This is different from what I remember. Napoleon had not appeared in the tomb of pride in the past. Napoleon had risen to the position of emperor during the French Revolution era. He was a conqueror who was said to be a genius at military strategy and politics. He achieved quite a lot of things before causing significant influence throughout all of Europe. However, this was Napoleon who was reborn as an artifact. That was the reason nobody was able to recognize him at first glance. They could only make a hypothesis. Ju Hian asked Julian a question. Is it really Napoleon? Julian nodded his head instead of responding. Part of it was thanks to Zhuge Kongming's artifact, but even without analyzing it there's only one general famous enough to appear in one of the seven great tombs while being short. Of course, the real Napoleon was of average height compared to Europeans of the time. There were rumors that the claim that he was short came from the fact that his height was compared to modern-day heights and that Europeans did it to cut down his character. But it's not weird for him to look like this since this is an artifact. Artifacts were reborn based on people's thoughts. But why did it have to be reborn as a prideful version? It was somewhat understandable. Even Beethoven, who had supported Napoleon, supposedly claimed, so he is no more than a common mortal. 
as he threw the sheet music for the Sinfonia Eroica. It was natural that Napoleon would show up as the symbol of arrogance and pride as he had made himself emperor. But that was not important right now. I will repeat myself. Benighted humans. His voice was overbearing. He then glared down at Juhian's group with an extremely sharp gaze. I said to kill all bastards who are taller than me. A vicious aura started to fly toward them as soon as he said that. It seemed like a wind sickle. A shapeless blade that was cutting through the air was aiming for Juhian's group's heads. Slash! Watch out! Julian shouted while some balls of fire appeared in front of Juhian and Siole. Crack! A green barrier appeared in front of Juhian and Siole along with the fireballs. This was the shield artifact, Athena's Aegis. Its specialty was a strong defense along with Medusa's head at the center of the shield, however. The barrier was destroyed. It was to be expected. It is merely an S-grade artifact. It is only an imitation of a divine-grade artifact. Napoleon looked down at Juhian as if he found this to be ridiculous. That wasn't all. Nothing is impossible for this emperor. The message windows quickly warned him as soon as Napoleon said that. The morale and strength of Napoleon's army is increasing. Napoleon's code of law is being activated. Napoleon's quotes are showing their powers. All three of them must have sensed serious danger as they had activated their artifacts at the same time. It was almost done out of reflex. The artifacts they had activated were the thunders of Indra, the ghosts of Bai Hyung, and the sandstorms of Set. Each of their artifacts started to fight against Napoleon's aura. This shitty bastard. He's very unpleasant. ba ba ba, -ba bang Crackle. However, Napoleon's army was known to have at least 600 zero, zero people. Only a couple thousand were called out right now, but that was enough to overwhelm just three people. But Julian didn't seem to care much about it. Two of us is enough to take all of them down. Indra's artifact and Set's artifact together were enough to defend against them. But there was more. This emperor has already said it. All bastards taller than this emperor must die. A vicious aura struck out toward them once again. Napoleon's curse is spreading throughout the entire tower. Juhian clicked his tongue after seeing that message. He had realized something after blocking Napoleon's attack with Aegis last time. There's no way to dodge this. I guess I have no choice. Juhian activated an artifact. This was the pharaoh's artifact he had earned last time. A bright light surrounded his body as soon as he activated the artifact. Flash. The pharaoh's curse has descended. Your body is shrinking after receiving the pharaoh's curse. Ugh. Juhian's view instantly changed. He had been forcibly warped elsewhere on the tower. He quickly figured out that he was now much higher on the 30th floor. Juhian, Julian, and Colas body then ended up shrinking. Ah. Ugh. Their age had changed similar to how Yu Jeha, Irene, and Cola had turned old or young after being cursed in the pharaoh's tomb. He had adapted to the situation and made them all shorter than Napoleon. They were now all shorter than 150 centimeters. They looked like elementary students now. A bright light surrounded the entire tower again as soon as they changed to these kids. Napoleon's curse has descended. It looked as if they would not die as they became small at the perfect time. The curse passed through once more before Siole got up. See, Captain Nim. A short Siole was squirming inside her now too big clothes as she urgently started to look for Juhian. Captain Nim, are you oh? But Siole almost screamed while looking at Juhian who was squirming next to her. See, Captain Nim. What is it? Juhian started to frown but the young Juhian was crazily cute in Siole's eyes. Of course, Siole, who looked like a child model, was the prettiest of the three, but that wasn't important. I, I want to take a picture. I probably can't, right? She almost lost her rationality at this situation she had never faced before. Siole had never seen Juhian as a child, even in pictures. But this precious sight that would probably never come around again was seen by her and not Irene. 
Seo Lei, who was happiest about that fact above all else, was feeling obsessed with the fact that she wanted to tightly hug Ju Hian before she snapped out of it. Oops, this is a tomb. Seo Lei quickly started to focus so that she could protect Ju Hian. She could feel Napoleon's army coming up from the bottom. Seo Lei became completely alert after feeling their vicious auras. I will protect the Captain Nim. It was at that moment. We're returning to normal. Seo Lei. Make sure to cover up properly. Ha. Huh. Yes, yes sir. Kaya. All of them returned to normal at that moment. Seo Lei was unable to grab her clothes properly as she returned to normal. Julian probably found COAS naked curves to be too thrilling as he covered his eyes and started to speak. We need to hurry. The same curse will come again. Julian prepared to attack while Juhian peeked at Anubis's ankh. He believed in an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. He would use an item to fight another item. It might be best to deal with an army summoned by an artifact with Anubis's army of the dead. Julian looked at Juhian, who was looking at Anubis's ankh, with concern. Are you thinking about using that right now? Will you be able to handle the risk? He was being ignored as a black doggy right now, but Anubis's artifact was still a divine grade artifact. The risk was one thing but it also took a lot of stamina to call forth its army. They weren't even at the top of this tower yet. It's bad if he wastes his stamina here. Juhian just nonchalantly responded. It's okay. It should be fine based on the numbers we saw down there. He was trying to say it should be okay. Until the enemies arrived that is. Oh, oh. Where is Seo Juhian? Capture Seo Juhian. In addition to Napoleon's army, ancient Chinese soldiers had shown up as well. Is it here? Is this where Seo Juhian, that bastard who caused a rampage in our Valley of the Kings, is this where he is? They were followed by the Egyptian army. Juhian looked out of it after seeing the numbers suddenly increase. This was a bit overwhelming. Damn it. What the fuck is up with this tomb? Artifacts usually tried to gather with others within their cultural heritage to create a tomb. Why were all these artifacts from different cultures gathered together in one tomb? In fact, these artifacts started to fight against each other. Our general was the first to find Seo Juhian. Shut up, all that matters is who kills him first. Shut up, you inferior dogs. Well, it didn't matter. It was obviously the supreme leader's orders. It made sense that they would come to capture Juhian who was infamous in the artifact world, but there are too many. The number of soldiers gathered here were probably in the tens of thousands, no the hundreds of thousands. That meant I'm 100% going to faint if I call forth enough of Anubis's army of the dead to match their numbers. But it wasn't like he had a boss artifact that was strong enough to take them down. Juhian started to frown while speaking almost as if he was sighing. I guess I have no choice. Julian and Seo Lei were shocked after hearing that. Are you? Yes. Prepare yourselves. Juhian started to glare at the enemies with a vicious gaze. That meant that he was getting ready for battle. Julian and Seo Lei tensed up as well. And at that moment. I will give the bastard who catches me first the chance to take my head. His shout made the armies of different cultures flash their eyes. Even Napoleon started to smile as if he was interested. But at that moment oh. I like the spirit of this bastard. It was someone who was dressed in ancient Qin dynasty attire. It was Xiang Yu, the hegemon king of western Chu during the Chu Han contention period. Hundreds of thousands of soldiers started to charge toward Zhu Hian at that moment. There were too many of them. Julian and Seo Lei gasped while looking at the number of soldiers charging toward Zhu Hian. Hey Seo Zhu Hian. They wondered what was giving Zhu Hian the courage to provoke them, but they were even shocked at what Zhu Hian did next. Zhu Hian suddenly jumped out the window. A completely pale Seo Lei and Julian rushed over toward the window. Hey. Are you crazy? This is 30 stories up. Captain Nim. Juhian was holding onto the rope as he fell to the ground, almost as if he was bungee jumping. 
Where Zhu Hian ended up was by TKBM and the other excavation teams that were arguing with each other outside the tower. All of their eyes opened wide at Zhu Hian's sudden appearance. W, what? Isn't that CO Zhu Hian? Zhu Hian smiled and walked over to them. Weren't you looking for me? Ho, oh, is this guy retarded? He walked over to us with his own two feet. He thinks he can take us on by himself. They grabbed the shameless Zhu Hian by the collar and pointed an artifact gun to his head. We got you now. You bastard, I'm going to blow your head off. Oh, you're going to kill me. That's right, you son of a bitch. If I think about everything you did to our TKBM. Um, um, team leader Nim. What is it? I'm busy. Um, B, behind him. Behind him. What about Ha? Huh? Their faces turned pale after looking behind Zhu Hian. It was because they saw what seemed like a horde of black ants I'm going to catch that bastard first. Get him. Get Co Zhu Hian. The French army, ancient Chinese army, and the Egyptian army. These three extremely strong armies were headed toward the excavation teams while chasing after Zhu Hian. The excavation teams dropped their jaws in shock after looking at this sight. H, holy crap. What the fuck did this bastard drag with him? Good luck. What do you mean good luck? Zhu Hian just pushed the person and disappeared. He had used his stealth skill. The armies that had chased after Zhu Hian ended up entangling with the excavation team's bo 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 All of it had happened in an instant. There were shouts and the sounds of weapons clashing against one another. Ah. Ah. Who are these bastards? Where is Co Zhu Hian? That was what the armies wanted to ask as well. Find Co Zhu Hian. Fuck, we can't see him sir. You hid him, didn't you? Ha. Huh. No, you hid him. No. These humans must have hid him. That made the artifact armies target TKBM and the other excavation teams and hand over Co Zhu Hian. H, hold on. That place ended up in pandemonium. Uff, ugh. The excavation teams were instantly stomped on by the armies. Zhu Hian, who was returning to his original spot while still using his stealth skill, started to smile. Thanks for taking care of the trash mob. He truly was the devil. Chapter, 206 Zhu Hian, who had gone around gathering the aggro to take care of the trash mob, had returned to his original spot. He had to hear some terrible things once he returned to his subordinates. Hey, you damn devil king. Julian was looking at Zhu Hian with a disgusted expression. You should just change your title to the monarch of evil. Zhu Hian started to pout after hearing Julian's nagging. What the hell did I do? Should I have included you as well? What do you mean, included me? A frustrated Julian could only pound his chest. Hey. Even if you have the rope, jumping out at this height, ah, uh, whatever. Wait that try disappearing again. Hmm. I told you to disappear. There's something I need to confirm. Zhu Hian immediately used his stealth skill. He then disappeared even without holding an artifact. Julian gasped after seeing this. He had been thinking that it was amazing that he kept disappearing even without using an invisibility artifact. Is this the power of the crow he mentioned last time? The dark purple aura in the shape of a crow that was surrounding Juhian Divine Grade. No, it was probably not enough to label it an evil Divine Grade artifact. That was how dangerous it was. It was something that even monarchs would find difficult to handle. That was the reason Julian gulped. How is he fine while having something like that stuck to his body? Julian had checked something with Zhuge Kongming's artifact because he was concerned that this aura would be dangerous to Juhian. He started to frown. The reason he's so focused on artifacts might be because of this crow's artifacts risk. Julian started to look at Zhu Hian with a serious expression. However huh, look at this. The stealth skill is totally a jackpot. I swiped some artifacts on my way back. No. It's just that this bastard is a damn artifact file with no chances of recovery. Well, I'm sure it'll be fine. The crow's aura was extremely chaotic, 
but he could tell that it was chaotic because it was telling him not to mess with Juhian. Once Julian finished confirming this anyway, where's Napoleon? That bastard disappeared after you gathered the mob. Juhian turned wary after hearing that. I'm sure he didn't get far. Keep Kongming's artifact activated. I know. The three of them became extremely tense. They had gone through all sorts of dangerous tombs with each other. They were all strong enough to clear most tombs on their own without Juhian covering them. But still this is one of the seven great tombs. They could be dead in an instant if they put their guard down. In addition, they could feel that there were more than just one or two artifacts here. It felt as if the most prideful bastards throughout the world were gathered here. And the first of them was Napoleon. The person who had shown up last time was King Louis XIV, the Sun King. The difficulty had gone up significantly compared to last time. I feel like I sense a divine great aura coming from the top. It happened at that moment. Boom! Napoleon's aura is descending on the battlefield. Juhian immediately looked up at the ceiling. Napoleon, the arrogant emperor on his horse, had appeared again. Grovel! You uncivilized thief! An overbearing aura descended once he said that. Soldiers following the orders of this general are being summoned. That wasn't all. Warning. Napoleon's curse will happen again in five minutes. TSK, is it that curse on the tall people again? He had dodged the curse last time with the pharaoh's artifact, but he couldn't keep turning small while having to deal with the risk. Napoleon started to observe Juhian while Juhian was thinking about what to do. I've heard a lot about you. The bounty on your head is quite high. Juhian scoffed at that comment. There's a bounty on my head even among the artifact bastards. Napoleon started to smile at Juhian. To be honest with you, I'm not interested in the bounty but I heard that you managed to make divine grade artifacts submit to you. That was why I became interested in you. Of course, you could only do that because those were all useless divine grade artifacts. The divine grade artifacts Juhian had on him started to shake in anger. But this bastard's arrogant attitude was understandable. Why? Similar to how divine grade artifacts have a hierarchy, the S grade artifacts have one as well. The artifacts created from people who were seen as transcending human limits and having superhuman strength through idolization, heroization would be able to have powers at the level of deified artifacts at the divine grade. That was why an artifact at Napoleon's level would be strong enough to consider itself as a divine grade artifact. Maybe that was the reason. Napoleon started to laugh triumphantly. Your petty tricks will not work against this emperor. That might actually be true. Napoleon's artifact was quite the headache in the past as well. His ability, the in Napoleonic Code, was known as one of the three major codes of law in the world along with his Code of Hammurabi. It was quite annoying. It has a special ability that would make even divine grade stop working for a moment. And warning. Napoleon's curse is right in front of your nose. The curse will strike in four minutes. That's right, it was this curse. I need to do something about this curse first. He needed to make Napoleon weaker in order to do that. Juhian debated what to do for a moment. How could he make Napoleon weaker? Napoleon's curse will happen again in two minutes. Juhian became desperate. Juhian seemed to have come up with an idea as he started to smirk. Hey artifact, let me ask you a question. His disrespectful demeanor made Napoleon's subordinates glare in anger. You rude human. How dare you speak that way to his majesty. Shut up. Just answer my question. That bastard. Napoleon stopped his subordinates who wanted to go and kill Juhian. Human, speak. I will grant you this request before you die. Napoleon was quite interested in Juhian. Juhian pointed at this monstrous tower and asked to confirm his hypothesis after hearing Napoleon accept his request. This tomb. There are at least three or more different cultures mixed in here. What is this tomb for? What it is for, you ask. There were some battles over the rights to this tomb. However, we were unable to determine a winner. Napoleon had a smile suitable for an emperor. In the end, we decided that the one who killed you will gain the rights. 
Ju Hien accepted that response. Basically, there were multiple artifacts that were strong enough to create great tombs all gathered in one location. But they were all competitive bastards that they couldn't come to a conclusion. Well, fine. Thanks for telling me. Is it time for me to take your head? Are you crazy? Ju Hien took an artifact out and quickly gave an order to his subordinates. The two of you should run. Julian and Siole both chuckled after hearing that. Stop the nonsense, CO Ju Hien. Captain Nim, where would I go without you? Ju Hien tilted his head in confusion. You guys are going to regret it if you don't run. What? What do you? Julian soon gasped after seeing the artifact Ju Hien took out. Hey you, that thing. Ju Hien snickered. I told you that you'll regret it. Ow. The artifact was activated. Julian grabbed Ciole and didn't even look back as he jumped out the window. It was because he knew that he would see some terrible things if he didn't run. Co Juhian, you bastard. He's a totally crazy motherfucker. Julian, who had given Juhian crap for jumping out the window but ended up jumping out the same 30-story window, was swearing internally. They were fine after jumping out of the high building thanks to Gildal's artifact, but still still, this was not the answer. Julian covered his nose while returning to where they had been and then sighed. Just as he had expected. Napoleon was twisting his body in serious pain. That wasn't all. Ow. Ow. The place was full of soldiers who were about to die from pain as well. A terrible stench filled the entire floor. Shit, what the hell does he think he is doing in a confined area? That was right. Ju Hien had used a shit-like artifact on them. This was the artifact that he had forced to sign a contract with him. Yes, this was the artifact that had come out when they went into that tomb in the Middle East. Germ reagents bag thrown away by Nam Tar, the god of diseases A-grade, treasure-grade, consumable artifact it was his disease artifact. Some people might ask why he used this artifact, but Julian and Ciole quickly figured it out. This vicious bastard. All artifacts had weaknesses and it was important to make artifacts weaker. This was especially true for Ju Hien since the artifacts wouldn't give him a test because of the Supreme Leader's orders. It was so that he could not clear tombs. In other words, he needed to find ways to forcibly drag artifacts out of the tomb even without them giving him a test. It was necessary to weaken the artifacts to make that possible. But to use the plague artifact like this, Napoleon was said to suffer quite a bit from hemorrhoids. That was why, in the Battle of Waterloo that was said to bring the Napoleonic Wars to an end there were many reasons as to why he had lost, but supposedly, his hemorrhoids had been at their worst during that battle. Rumors even claimed that the hemorrhoids were responsible for his defeat at the Battle of Waterloo. That was the reason Juhian had used the plague artifact. It was full of bacteria to cause diarrhea. Most importantly, diarrhea makes hemorrhoids worse. Ironically, the disease artifact was the thing to make Napoleon weak. The thing that worried Ju Hien the most disappeared once Napoleon couldn't focus. The curse has disappeared as Napoleon is unable to focus. This was also super effective against Napoleon's soldiers who had failed their conquest of Russia due to the cold weather and war plague. Well, this won't be enough to make him submit though. Ju Hien needed to take it to the next level to make Napoleon submit completely. Maybe that was the reason. Ju Hien was checking the time as he looked toward the window. It's about time it showed up. It finally appeared. You retard. Another bastard had appeared. You acted like you were the shit but look at you now. It was Xiang Yu, the hegemon king of western Chu. This young man looked full of vigor, as if he could even take monsters down with his hands. He was the only person in Chinese history who was so strong that he was said to have studied real martial arts. His skills were so overwhelming that he was able to defeat a grand army of 600-00 soldiers with just 30-00. Unfortunately, none of that mattered. He's a lone wolf who doesn't listen to anybody else. It made sense why he would show up in the Tomb of Pride. And at that moment boom boom boom. The artifacts all around the Tower of Pride started to rush over. Napoleon and Xiang Yu started to fight as well. It's fine so get lost. I will capture Seo Ju Hien. 
You get lost. Where do you think you are coming with those dirty feet? Shut up. You damn barbarian of the West. Napoleon released a strong aura at that moment. Although he had been affected by the plague artifact, the artifacts in this tomb were all arrogant and strong artifacts that were at the level of divine grade artifacts. Warning. His aura is exploding out. An extremely strong aura is threatening your life. With the two of them looking ready to fight at any moment his threatening aura made Xiang Yu and Napoleon soldiers start to die. But Zhu Hian nonchalantly stopped the two of them at that moment. Now now, you guys shouldn't fight. I'll give you my head, so let me ask a question. Hmm. Who would win if the two of you fought? Chapter, 207. What? The corners of his lips slightly went up. They seemed to be in disbelief after hearing what Zhu Hian asked. You want to know who would win? What are you talking about? Zhu Hian shamelessly continued to speak after seeing their shocked gazes. What's wrong? All artifacts strong enough to create this tomb are amazing bastards. I just want to know who would win if such strong bastards fought against each other. That made Napoleon and Xiang Yu sneer at him. It was at that moment. Julian urgently shouted out. You can't make eye contact with Xiang Yu. Zhu Hian shouted at the same time. Cole. Cole quickly used an artifact. She had moved at lightning speed. Pot. The three of their bodies suddenly flew back. Xiang Yu's attack slashed through the air at the same time. Boom. Xiang Yu's is exploding. You will not be able to escape if you are captured in his eyes. It was extremely quick and strong. The reason three normal humans like them were able to escape the attack was because of possession. Three ghosts that specialized in fighting had possessed their bodies, allowing them to just barely dodge the attack. Of course, using such methods would mean ugh, my body. That they would suffer from extreme muscle soreness. Zhu Hian was fine but Julian was groaning. Xiang Yu and Napoleon were looking at Zhu Hian as if he was stupid. Hey, human. I see that you are trying to use such shitty provocation to make us fight each other but it won't work. That was what the two of them were about to say. At least until Zhu Hian said the following. I guess the answer is too obvious. Xiang Yu is someone most people haven't even heard about. In comparison, Napoleon is so famous that most people in the world know about him. Wouldn't the Emperor of the West be the winner? Napoleon started to laugh. Yes. It is obvious that this Emperor would win even if we didn't fight to find out. That is why such provocation wouldn't work but at that moment hey. What the fuck did you just say? There were flames of anger in Xiang Yu's eyes. Why is it obvious that you would win? Napoleon clicked his tongue and started to speak after seeing the angry flames in Xiang Yu's eyes. How foolish. Do not fall into his provocation. It is that human shitty method. No. I know that as well. But this is a different issue. Why would a shitter like you win? I would obviously be the winner. Ho, oh, I told you not to fall for it. The fact that you are falling for such stupid provocation is proof that you are an idiot. You understand. We are great gods that are different from such uncivilized humans Zhu Hian gasped and started to speak again at that moment. Ah, right. On the other hand, Xiang Yu was such a man. He's so cool. Josephine would probably have fallen for the manly Xiang Yu over Napoleon if they were from the same area. What did he just say? A vicious aura shot out from Napoleon's body. Bang! The aura seemed ready to destroy the whole tower. Rumble, rumble. This chaos made Julian and Cole urgently look toward Zhu Hian. It couldn't be helped as the two of them couldn't understand what the artifacts were saying at all. They could tell that the artifacts and Zhu Hian were talking, but. What the hell are they saying? It's not Chinese nor French. It oddly sounded as if they could hear Chinese or French, but it was neither. Zhu Hian was probably the only human who could communicate with artifacts. They could at least hear this incomprehensible noise while inside the tomb appearance region, but they couldn't even hear this when they were outside. 
It was as if the artifacts were saying that they would give humans special consideration to hear their voices inside the tomb but that they could not let such uncivilized and lowly humans hear their voices outside. That was how it felt to the humans. That was why they were always amazed by Ju Hian. He was the only person who could always hear and understand the artifacts' language. Based on what Ju Hian told them, the artifacts would say things like uncivilized bastards who can't even understand the artifacts' language. They were always looking down on humans for it. This was the reason Ju Hian was different from the other humans who had no choice but to deal with the tests the artifacts handed out. He was the only person who could negotiate with artifacts like this. It sounded as if he was saying something to negotiate with them this time as well, but boom. Boom. Boom boom. What the hell did he say to make them act like this? Julian destroyed a falling boulder with his thunder as he started to shout. Hey. I get that you're amazing, but I can't understand anything you're saying. I need to know what he is saying to make a plan. Ju Hian realized his mistake and apologized. He sometimes ended up using the artifact language subconsciously when he focused too much on the artifacts. It's not much, I just provoked them. I brought up Josephine and consort you. J, Josephine. Consort you. Are you talking about Napoleon and Xiang Yu's lovers? Josephine was Napoleon's first wife and queen. Although they ended up divorcing for political reasons, Napoleon cared for her so much that she was called the only thing in the world Napoleon could not conquer. As for consort Yu, a woman beautiful enough to cause the downfall of a country, she was Xiang Yu's woman who committed suicide to keep her fidelity to him. There were numerous stories about Xiang Yu's and consort Yu's sad farewell that she was often drawn as a pair with Xiang Yu. But why did you have to bring up those two women? Ju Hian started to snicker. Wouldn't they get angry if they are men? He was right as Napoleon and Xiang Yu were both releasing chaotic auras. You barbaric man whose brain is covered in muscles. Do you even know how to read? A man only needs to know how to write his name. It is shameful that I am being compared to an animal that only knows how to fight. Shut up you shitter. At least I got to be emperor, you couldn't amount to anything, you bastard. You're just an animal of the east that only knows how to fight. I told you to shut up, you can't even control your bowels. Sparks started to fly out of both of their eyes. Their chaotic auras descended on the tower and caused an earthquake. The soldiers became frantic and tried to calm their respective generals. Your Majesty, please calm down. Please stop, sir. Right now is not the time for this. This is just what that human wants however shut the hell up. Ah. I don't care about that human right now, I need to get rid of this pest in front of my eyes first. Sure, let's do it right now. Call your soldiers. Sure. There cannot be two emperors under one sky. Die. The two auras clashed at that moment. The subordinate started to cry while Juhian started to laugh. Yes, hurry up and fight. Fight more. More. Then I will give my head to the winner. Well, it seemed more as if the winner would have their head taken by Ju Hian. Either way, both of them are useful bastards. He was at least certain of their abilities. Napoleon was so famous that nothing needed to be said about him, and while Xiang Yu was less famous in world history, he was said to have been Lu Bang, Lu Bei's ancestor's rival. If Lu Bei and Chao Chao were major players in the Three Kingdoms era, Lu Bang and Xiang Yu were the same for the Chuhan contention period. They were two of the strongest people throughout Chinese history. As a result Xiang Yu, whose spirit could not be compared, flashed his eyes. The valiant general's spirit is piercing through the heavens. The tomb is being destroyed because of his strength. It looks as if they will take care of destroying the tomb for you. Xiang Yu and Napoleon's subordinates are all starting to die. The artifacts on other floors are starting to be harmed as well. Ju Hian was extremely happy as he read those messages. I can get the bastards on the other floors as well. There was at least that Egyptian artifact and a divine grade artifact as well. I pretty much have all of the Egyptian artifacts, which one is this? But not everything was beneficial to Ju Hian. Warning. The valiant general's spirit is killing off the morale of all artifacts. 
your artifacts are becoming weaker as well. The artifact's abilities and effectiveness are going down. Julian became concerned and started to shout. He did not see the messages but he could tell that their artifacts were getting harmed because of Zhuge Kongming's artifact. Hold on. Even our artifacts are getting harmed. Zhu Hian started to smile wickedly as he shouted back. It doesn't matter. The most important thing is that those bastards are getting damaged. What? Are you saying it doesn't matter if our artifacts get destroyed? Who cares? It's our restorer bastard who needs to fix them. Hey! They felt a large impact at that moment. At the same time D, doctor. What did you just say? Um, you see. Inside Chairman Kwan's treatment room. There was an odd silence in the room right now. The doctor who was examining Chairman Kwan looked toward him with a bitter smile. I was going to tell you later, but... Chairman Kwan was frozen stiff as if he had received quite the shock while the aides around him all turned pale. D. Doctor. P. Please repeat. Yes. It is disappointing, but... The doctor sighed before continuing to speak. It is not curable with modern medicine. That's why. The doctor truly seemed sad for Chairman Kwan. The Chairman Nim will not be able to have children anymore. He is unable to have sex anymore. What did you say? My father? What's wrong with the Chairman Nim? You're telling me my husband is a eunuch. Chairman Kwan put his hand up to his forehead before plopping down on the bed. Honey. Egu, what the hell is he saying? My father is a eunuch. The doctor calmly started to speak without seeming to understand how they were feeling. I believe it is a curse from an artifact. However, please don't worry. He should be able to heal quickly if he finds a related healing artifact or gets the help of an healer with a S-grade healing artifact. But Chairman Kwan had fainted without hearing everything. The aides, secretary, and children started to shout after seeing him faint. See, Chairman Nim. Please wake up. Father. Fuck, you still haven't found which curse artifact was used on my father. I told you to find it and get rid of it right away. T, the radius of where the artifact is located is quite wide. We are narrowing it as much as possible but all we can tell is that it is currently in Russia. Fuck, C.O. Juhian is in France right now who the hell was it if it wasn't him? Who turned my father into an eunuch? Who else would I be? Ha. This should be enough, right? Yu Jeha, who was in the Russian artifact fair, put the 14-sided drinking game dice of the Silla nobles away and nodded his head. Zhu Hian had thrown him the dice and told him to frequently bother Chairman Kwan while he was in the tomb. It was to prevent Chairman Kwan from entering any tombs himself. This artifact was originally just a punishment dice but it was quite useful for 70 hours as it had powered up. Well, Ju Hian had told him to avoid one section of the fourteen sides as much as possible, but it makes me want to make it come up since he said not to do it. Yu Jeha seemed quite content. BR. Hmm. Yu Jeha took Ju Hian's cell phone out of his pocket. He was holding on to it while Ju Hian was in the tomb. It was fine that he was holding on to it because there might be urgent issues, but are you busy right now? Play with me if you have the time. Aren't you lonely at night? I prepared a great artifact for you. It's a $100 million business. Do you want to do it with me? This is driving me crazy. These annoying messages wouldn't stop. They were extremely odd messages. Although they were all sent from different numbers, your highness could tell that they were all sent by the same person. This is obviously that woman, Jin Kai Yuan. Yu Jeha did not know at first, but there was a day when Ju Hian had looked as if he had eaten shit before getting tired of just deleting messages and blocked the number as well. Captain Nim. That was information on an artifact just now. Why did you delete it? Isn't this some juicy information from Irene's brother? No. It's not from George. H. Huh. That brother of hers is extremely noble-like and uses annoyingly proper English. He doesn't use words like these. Then what about this one? Isn't this one from Irene? Irene wouldn't text me like this. It was amazing that he was able to recognize all of that, 
but it seemed as if Juhian was being stalked. Of course, this person was giving information about great artifacts or tombs for it to be a regular case of stalking. Other people might be desperate to get such information, but Juhian didn't even care to look. He just hated Jin Kai Yuan. But it seemed as if Shen Kai Yuan was getting even more interested every time she was ignored. Whatever, let's delete it before the Captain Nim sees them. Delete. Of course, he put the useful information in his head first. It happened at that moment. Isn't that Princess Charlotte and Prince Paul? The entire hall was starting to get rowdy. Yu Jiha's eyes flashed while looking at the VIPs who had just arrived at the auction house. Why? There's the target the Captain Nim gave me. They were the Prince and Princess of England. These two were Yu Jiha's target this time. Let's get close to them. As Yu Jiha was about to get closer, look who it is. Isn't it the monarch of pushoverness? He turned his head to see some familiar faces. They're the official restorers and appraisers. Their noses were pointed up as if they had Yu Jiha where they wanted him. We got you now, monarch of pushoverness. Yu Jiha just sneered at them. These bastards never learn. Something that would turn the unknown Yu Jiha into a famous person was about to take place. Two thirds of the tomb has been destroyed. Xiang Yu and Napoleon's armies have perished. Zhu Hian was smiling wickedly while looking at what was going on in front of him. He seemed quite pleased to mess with these artifacts. Free items, free items I'll get all of them for free without doing anything. As for Xiang Yu and Napoleon, they were still holding on quite well. You motherfucker, I'll completely destroy you. That's my line. Keep the damn noise down. The Egyptian bastard could not hold it in any longer and appeared. Chapter 208 The Egyptian bastard could not hold it in any longer and appeared. No, it was not just the Egyptian bastard. Did you guys go crazy? Why are you acting like this? Ha! Huh. The artifacts of pride from the other floors were all grumbling. I'm going to report you guys for excessive noise. I'm going to cut your legs off. Zhu Hian snickered after seeing the artifacts appear while Zhu Hian and Colas eyes opened wide. Why? It was because they could hear the artifacts' voices this time as well. It was probably because they were inside a tomb, but what did they just say? Excessive noise. This was an apartment complex. It seemed as if all sorts of arrogant artifacts were living on the different floors of this tower. The residents who were angry about what was going on down below were barging in with weapons in their hands. I'm really going to kill you. I can't sleep because you're being so loud. Hey. It's better for you because you're on the upper floors, I'm going crazy because of all the pounding on my ceiling. They were all glaring at Napoleon and Xiang Yu as if they wanted to kill them. It was understandable. There was a reason there have even been murders in apartments over excessive noise. They then started to charge toward Napoleon and Xiang Yu who were still growling at each other. The Egyptian artifact's strength was quite tremendous. Egypt's greatest king is using the power of the sun. The king's authority is descending on the tomb. Rumble, bang. Baba bang. The golden walls started to crumble at the attack while the majestic sculptures started to break. The tomb is being destroyed. The Egyptian artifact is damaging Napoleon and Xiang Yu's artifacts. Zhu Hian's eyes opened wide. I should have swept up almost all of the Egyptian artifacts in the Tomb of Wrath. What is this one? Which one is left? An angry Xiang Yu and Napoleon glared at the other artifacts. Hey! What the hell are you doing? Did you forget how much we paid to create this tomb? The Egyptian artifact clicked its tongue in disbelief. For knowing how much it cost, look at what the hell you guys have done. Bang! Baba ba bang! The battle that had started over excessive noise was about to destroy the entire apartment. The falling debris wasn't an issue for Juhian's group. Boom! Large boulders would turn into dust from Juhian's sword slashes crack. While the items made of steel were sent flying with Julian's thunderbolts. Julian could see all of the artifacts fighting in front of them. Napoleon and Xiang Yu were still okay, but the newly appeared artifacts were the problem. 
How dare you turn my precious house into this mess because of some human bastards? The Egyptian bastard glared arrogantly at Napoleon and Xiang Yu. This is why humans are useless. You useless idiots. What? Hey. You're human too. He could tell that it was an Egyptian artifact as Egypt had an extremely distinct culture. The aura is at the divine grade level. It was extremely strong. That was why he had wondered if it was an Egyptian divine grade artifact Juhian had not gotten yet, but Pharaoh, it is a human artifact. Julian's analysis didn't take long. Is it Ramesses? Excuse me? Did you say Ramesses? He seemed to be right as the tomb suddenly started to change. The tower is changing shape to turn into the great temple of the sun because of Ramesses's power. Everyone other than Ramesses will become his slaves. It was at that moment. This is dangerous. Juhian started to frown after seeing that his hand was starting to move on its own. That wasn't all. Ramesses's power of dominance is infiltrating your brain. You are getting a desire to grant Ramesses's wish no matter what it takes. The effects were only at this level because it was the three of them expert grade users and lower would probably have been brainwashed as soon as they were touched by the aura. He was certain of it. This was the pharaoh who was said to have had the strongest royal authority among all Egyptian pharaohs. It was the Egyptian pharaoh who was said to have taken the Hebrews as slaves and argued with Moses. This was Ramesses too. As a result looks like there are some useful slaves this time. Siole urgently shouted after seeing her hand take a sword out on its own. Um, there were pharaohs in the Valley of the Kings. They're in the hotel right now, but wasn't one of them Ramesses? Ah, there is one. But that is Ramesses six. This one is the second. This is his ancestor. Julian glared at Juhian who was speaking so nonchalantly. C.O. Juhian, weren't most of the Egyptian artifacts in your possession? Juhian had four important Egyptian divine grade artifacts. That meant that most Egyptian artifacts would feel an affinity with Juhian or submit to him. However what the hell is going on? Are you telling me that you're unable to dominate the divine grade artifacts right now? Julian was confused but Juhian understood what was going on. I am a god. Ramesses had an arrogant gaze as he looked toward Juhian. His frown, crunched lips and cold smile you seem to have the other gods, but well Ramesses suddenly disappeared into dust and appeared right in front of Juhian. Do you think they will allow you to take us out of this tomb? You have the wrong idea, you uncivilized human. All you have are the uncivilized gods. What? The idiot who only knows how to fight. The errand boy dog that just runs errands. The king of the netherworld that any king, whether they be dogs or cows, can turn into upon death. And that stupid bird that has no powers at all. I will cut all of their heads off and decorate my bedroom with them. That was right. Most pharaohs believed that they turned into Osiris, the god of the underworld, upon their deaths. But Ramesses was a conqueror who deemed himself a god even while he was alive. He thought himself as being so great that he even created a statue of himself to sit side by side with Are, the greatest of all Egyptian gods. He even made the slaves create the statue and temples to deify himself. No wonder he isn't afraid of any of the gods. Ramesses, who was angry at the fact that his apartment ended up turning into a chaotic mess, started to snicker while looking at Juhian. In the end, getting rid of this human will put an end to the excessive noise of my slaves. The other artifacts became shocked at what they heard. What? Hey! Are you thinking that we are your slaves as well? Look at this son of a bitch. Of course, there were others who were shaking in anger after hearing what he had to say. Flash. What did you say? An errand boy dog. The idiot who only knows how to fight. The stupid bird that has no powers at all. Did you say any dog or cow can turn into me? The divine grade artifacts in Juhian's possession burst out in anger. At the same time these bastards never learn. Yu Jeha scoffed while looking at the bastards in front of him. They were all wearing expensive dresses and suits. They were covered in name-brand items, but that wasn't enough to hide the disposition of artists who had suddenly gained a lot of money. He had seen these bastards before. 
They're the restorers I saw at the White House. They started to surround you Jeha. It looks like you are here on your own. The first thing you Jeha did was sigh. Getting tangled up with them will just be annoying. Shoo, shoo, I'm a busy man. Get lost before I throw some salt, you retards. It happened at that moment. Hey hey, what do you mean you're busy? It was an extremely familiar voice. He turned his head to see a familiar face. How long has it been? Yu Jeha. It was a foreigner who was as tall as Ju Hian had had beautiful blonde hair. Yu Jeha became shocked as soon as he saw them. Sunbei, what are you doing here? One Julian Sunbei isn't the only one who is here. A pretty Asian girl appeared as well. Yu Jeha got a headache as soon as he saw her. Shin Sung Hee. It's been a while, Jeha Sunbei. Is Min He doing well? Who were these people? They were Yu Jeha's university Sunbei and Hubi. Two they had all worked together with Jean Richard as their professor. These two were successful artists who achieved fame early on because they were smart and talented artists. They had the combination of beautiful appearances and skill. They had everything required to be a star. They had been quite popular at the university and frequently in the press. These people were people who had everything in life. Why are these bastards here? They started to speak, as if to answer that question. It looks as if you've become quite famous now. Yu Jeha had no intentions of chatting with them regardless of what they said. It couldn't be helped because they had remained silent even though they knew that Professor Jean Richard had plagiarized his work. He asked them to be witnesses, but sorry, I've never seen your painting. Let's be honest, there's no proof that it was your painting, Sunbei. He had considered them to be his family, but they had shunned him just like that. That wasn't all. They ended up sucking up to Jean Richard and gave testimony that benefited him. I was completely buried because of them. Maybe that was the reason. I have nothing to say to you. I don't know why people who needed to suck up to Jean Richard to become instructors are here in the first place. Julian ordered his subordinates to grab you Jeha. Where do you think you're going? Julian, who had been smiling like a gentleman until now, started to smile viciously. You made us official restorers eat shit. I can't sit still as the chief official restorer. Yu Jeha flinched after hearing that. Wait a minute. What did he just say? The chief official restorer. Then. Yes, Mr. Julian is the top restorer of all official restorers. You son of a bitch. He was number one of less than 100 official restorers in the world. I do remember seeing his name among the expert grade users. He had seen Julian's name. He had wondered if it was just someone with the same name. Julian started to smile brightly. You made our official restorers eat shit and I have a personal issue with you as well. An issue? That's right. Originally, I was supposed to move up to a monarch position last week. But suddenly, you burst into the position. Ho! That was the truth. Because Ju Hian had gotten rid of a lot of the original monarchs Julian was supposed to take one of the spots as the monarch of creation. He had the skills for it as well. But whether it was the Pandora system artifact or someone else, Yu Jeha had suddenly taken his spot. How could he not be angry? Julian's smile looked full of loathing. Yu Jeha. Don't you care about seniority? I heard that Koreans find things like that quite important. No, more importantly, why is a talentless person like you even a monarch? Did it feel nice to throw your instructor who cared for you so much into prison? What? Shin Sung He chimed in at that moment. Ah, don't be like that. What would Jeha Sunbei know? Congratulations on being able to argue that the professor's painting was yours as you wished, Jeha Sunbei. Wow, this bitch. The other restorer started to suck up to the top restorer. Do you really think this bastard became a monarch because he is skilled? He probably only became a monarch through Seo Juhian's backing. Look at these thieves even stealing monarch positions. Please don't worry since your name will be up there with the other monarchs next week. Julian laughed at their flattery before starting to speak again. Anyway, I heard you're a minor restorer. I won't say much. Get the hell out of here right now. 
Humph, why would I? You still have no tact. This is a place with VIPs and our office. They're going to think less of us if we are with quacks like you. Ah, uh, right, what is your annual salary? Excuse me. We'll pay you for your troubles so get out of here, go back to Korea, and don't create a fuss for a while. Is 100 million won enough? What? 100 million won. Yu Jae-ha scoffed before responding back. Chapter, 209. What did you just say? I'll give you 100 million won so lay low and don't show your face in this profession. You don't get what I'm saying. There was a reason he was doing this. The authority of the official restorers will crumble if Yu Jae-ha keeps running around like this. It was obvious based on how he made them eat shit not too long ago. Their value will go down in the long run if this bastard continued to be in this profession. This damn thorn in our eyes. That wasn't all. Make it so Seo Juhian can't restore any artifacts. You guys boycott him too. But still, Yu Jae-ha just scoffed at him. Um, did you just say 100 million won? Julian was confused at Yu Jae-ha's scoff. The only thing Yu Jae-ha said whenever they went out for drinks during college was, ah, there's only 100 one in my bank account. I can't even ask my parents for money since they're working hard. Ah, my only wish in life is to have 100 million won. It was the same every time. He even used other people's discarded art supplies and starved himself from time to time in this modern world. He was so shabby that it had been embarrassing to be around him during college. Julian soon clicked his tongue. I guess CEO Juhian is at least paying you well since you are a restorer. Fine, then I'll give you ten million dollars. The restorers around them gasped in surprise. How could they not? Chief, did you say the right number? That's too high. Are you going to pay this bastard with Pandora's money? It's fine, it's only ten million dollars. It wasn't much for him since he only handled royalty, presidents, and the top ten wealthiest people in the world. They were not just wealthy people, they were the royalties of oil-producing countries, Pandora's top executives and the leaders of the largest corporations in the world. But Yu Jae-ha just scoffed again. Ah, whatever. I'm leaving since I don't have time to listen to your bullshit. Julian clicked his tongue. Okay. 300 million won. I'll give you 300 million won. No, you shouldn't have any complaints if I give you 30 million dollars, right? The other restorers dropped their jaws in shock. 30 million dollars. 30 million dollars, or 33 billion won, was the salary for the top 10 official restorers. Yu Jae-ha started to laugh out loud after hearing his shout. The restorers were wondering why he was acting like this. Yu Jae-ha started to speak. 30 million dollars. That's what the top restorers make. W, what? You want me to lay low for only 30 million dollars? Yu Jae-ha found this so funny that he was clutching his stomach as he laughed. The restorers were starting to get upset. What's up with him? Did he go crazy? Yu Jae-ha viciously started to smile. Hey, how much do you guys think I make in a year? 300 million dollars 330 billion won. Unless you can give me more than that, don't ask me to lay low, you retards. Ah, and that ten million dollars you mentioned at the beginning? I don't need that either. I can easily earn that as a bonus. Yu Jae-ha then turned around and headed into the auction house. Of course, the official restorers who heard what Yu Jae-ha just said were standing there with their jaws dropped. Holy shit! He makes three hundred million dollars a year. That was the salary Yu Jae-ha had made in his prime as well, but they were all flustered since they had no way of knowing that. Seo Juhian is that wealthy? He was giving a salary that would be difficult for even large corporations to give to their restorers even with a multi-year contract to a single restorer. They were angry. But there was something they didn't know. The fraud in the monarch of fraud could be because he scammed people, but there had been talks that his abilities were so amazing that it was unbelievable. Yu Jae-ha waved at the shaking restorers and waved at them. I'm leaving if you guys have nothing else. I have to go by the artifact the English princess has on her. What? What did you? 
But Yu Jiehua was already long gone. Of course, Julian would not just stand by and watch. What are you doing? Contact the guards. Make sure that bastard can't meet with the princess. Yes sir. How could they do that? They were actually here as the restorers for the English royal family. The official appraisers were with them as well. The reason they were trying to kick Jeha out of here was because of the VIPs from the English royal family as well. The princess is interested in Seo Juhian's tomb raiding team. That meant that she would obviously be interested in Yu Jeha as he was a part of that team. There was no way Yu Jeha would show any special abilities or whatever, but if he did something weird or started to run wild the authority of the officials will crumble. Most importantly, he didn't want to see that bastard Yu Jeha acting superior to him. Stop him. We must stop him. They quickly started to move with their minds full of anxiety. While that was going on, the divine grade artifacts that were angry at Ramesses's remarks burst out on their own. This arrogant human thinks he can say whatever the fuck he wants. An errand boy dog. The idiot who only knows how to fight. The stupid bird that has no powers at all. Any dog or cow can turn into me. They were not in their usual doggy form but their ultimate forms they all popped out in their original appearances. They did this even though they hated to show their true forms in front of the lowly humans. That was how angry they were. Because they were so angry master, you can feel free to use us as you please even without giving me chicken. I don't even need a fan signing this time. I don't ever recall getting anything from you, but it's fine. Their eyes were open wide and they were more than willing to lend Juhi and their powers. They wanted to do this even though they were against a fellow Egyptian artifact. But Ramesses and the artifacts of the Tower of Pride all started to scoff at them. You guys are siding with the human. The commanders of the corps and division commanders truly have fallen. I feel pity for the fools who have to call such idiots their boss. The artifacts in the Tower of Pride considered all artifacts other than themselves as trash in the first place. It wouldn't be different because they were looking at divine grade artifacts. Napoleon and Xiang Yu interjected at that moment. They weren't going to follow the supreme leader's orders and they didn't have any large complaints against these gods, but now that I think about it, wouldn't defeating those bastards mean that the commanders of the corps and division commanders are below us as well? That is true. We can truly be known as gods if we destroy those bastards. Are they strong? I already conquered Egypt. Their gods are all below me. Hmm. Where is Egypt? Are they the guard dogs? Probably. Ah, I have a good idea. Let's take their heads and decorate our tower with it. That sounds good. The divine grade artifacts' angers reached their peak after hearing the three long tenants of this apartment speak. Even if these famous bastards were deified and able to have powers close to the divine grade level these morons don't know the difference between the heavens and the earth. Are there no gods or superior beings in your cultures? Boom! Set's artifact is going berserk. Anubis is calling the dead from the underworld. Osiris has activated the Book of the Dead. They started to shout with flames of anger in their eyes. Master! Capture those bastards and train them the same way you trained me. Yes. Contract with them and destroy them just to the brink of death, restore them and destroy them again. Show them hell. Juhian clicked his tongue and started to speak. I need to first clear the tomb in order to do that. We will clear it for you. Juhian was shocked. What? Clear it? You guys are going to clear it? Was that possible? Clearing the tomb would make contracting these bastards much easier than forcibly dragging them out of here. Why? Rather than asking an artifact if it wanted to contract with you or if it won't it was easy to clear the tomb to get the right to contract them. But still artifacts could clear another artifact's tomb. No, most importantly hey. These guys have no plan on leaving this tomb. They probably have no intentions of giving a test. They started to blow fire out or their mouths. Then we just have to force them to give it. Give the test while we ask nicely, you damn bastards. Beams shot out of their eyes and they used their powers toward the artifacts of pride sneering at them. A bunch of extremely strong auras clashed at that moment. Boom. 
Julian clutched his head as he watched. It was one thing for all these artifacts to fight, but Seo Juhian, are you okay? He used four divine grade artifacts at full power. You're going to die from the risk. The risk is going to come right now. It's fine, I'm okay. I'm really okay. It won't come right now. But suddenly, Ju Hien, who had been smiling, pulled out a sword and grabbed Julian by the collar. So be good and hand over one of your useful eyes. Ack. It's already here. The risk is already here. It's even worse than usual. Julian gasped after realizing that this was Set's artifact's risk since Set took Horus's eye. But Ju Hien didn't care and channeled his strong dominance to power his artifacts. Even if the risks came right now, Julian would take care of it for him. This is good. There were things I wanted to test out. A message popped up at the same time. You can use a combination skill for the four divine grade artifacts. You are able to use the judgment after death. Ju Hien started to smile in response. The judgment after death was something everybody who died would face. Osiris was the judge, Thoth was the scribe, and Anubis was the guide of the underworld. There was also Set the slaughterer who would bring forth death. They would work together to forcibly detain their target and stand in the position of the omnipotent judge. The divine grade artifact's combined skill was instantly activated. He could feel the aura of the dead pushing up from the ground. That aura grabbed Napoleon, Xiang Yu, and Ramesses. What is this? Judgment has descended on all artifacts inside the tomb. The artifacts are being captured. The sins of the artifacts are being judged. It was extremely powerful. The residents of the Tower of Pride are starting to submit. The divine grade artifacts have taken over the sovereignty of the Tower of Pride. They have started the tomb's tests on their own. The tests on every floor started to activate at once. Boom boom boom. A flaming chair appeared on the floor Juhian was on. This was the test from the first floor of the tomb. The contents were probably related to how they tested if someone was a witch and the person had to survive through it. However ha ha ha, this is nice and warm. Orisis sat on the burning chair and enjoyed it as if it was a sauna. Isn't there anything hotter? Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. The test for the first floor of the Tower of Pride has been cleared. The artifact of pride from the first floor ended up in Juhian's hand. Alright, next. The second floor's test was summoned. But this was just a piece of cake for them. The test for the second floor of the Tower of Pride has been cleared. You have gained the second floor's artifact. The test for the third floor of the Tower of Pride has been cleared. You have gained the third floor's artifact. The test for the fourth floor of the Tower of Pride has been cleared. You have gained the fourth floor's artifact. The artifacts of Pride started to shiver in fear as they watched. What the hell, these bastards' tests are so easy. It's going to end quickly like this. The Egyptian divine grade artifacts were laughing. All right. Shall we clear everything to the top? They were extremely excited. Chapter, 210 The test for the twentieth floor of the Tower of Pride has been cleared. You have gained the twentieth floor's artifact. The test for the twenty-first floor of the Tower of Pride has been cleared. You have gained the twenty-first floor's artifact. The test for the fortieth floor of the Tower of Pride has been cleared. You have gained the fortieth floor's artifact. All right. Next. It had been about 30 minutes since the Egyptian divine grade artifacts started causing this shitshow. The Tower of Pride had turned into pandemonium. Fuck, who the hell are these thugs? This is a scam. This is unbelievable. The artifacts were swearing left and right while looking at the Egyptian gods causing this shitshow. Humans were supposed to fulfill the tomb's tests. These tests were created to harm and kill humans. It would not work on artifacts. Furthermore, the thugs causing this shitshow were divine grade artifacts. How would any of these tests work on them? As proof of that ha ha ha. Bring on more fire. Bring it all. Hey, bring more kindling. Stab me some more, I dare you. These fuckers tests are total shit. Try some more, do your worst. 
Fuck, these crazy bastards. The angry artifacts foamed at the mouth as they scolded the Egyptian gods. Hey, you dumb fucks. Do you have no respect for your fellow artifacts? The Egyptian gods' eyes started to burn with anger after hearing that. Respect? Did you just say respect? You bastards are the ones who stomped on respect first. They then released a scary aura. The Egyptian gods have cleared the 41st floor of the Tower of Pride. The test for the 42nd floor is starting. Napoleon's test has started. This test can only be cleared by not sleeping. There were stories about how Napoleon did not sleep much. This test was filling for that belief and truly might be an impossible test for a human. But the ones dealing with it were gods. Gods do not need something like sleep. Napoleon's tomb was instantly cleared. Ramesses's test has started. You must be praised as a more famous god than Ramesses to clear this tomb. You are already being praised. Ramesses's tomb has been cleared. Xiang Yu's tomb's test has started. You must defeat Xiang Yu in battle. The annoyed Egyptian gods have written in the Book of the Dead. Xiang Yu was dragged to the underworld without even having a chance to fight. This is still considered a victory and Xiang Yu's tomb has been cleared. The gods' cheating shortcut continued. Julian's jaw dropped after seeing all of the artifacts ending up in Ju Hian's hands. These artifacts are just like their master. They're total thugs. Julian couldn't listen anymore and started to speak. Hey, do you think this is a normal way of clearing a tomb? Julian tried to object, but Ju Hian just snickered and asked what was wrong. Since when did we ever clear tombs the normal way? Hey! You know how it is. The method is not important. What is important is that we got the artifacts. Taking the artifacts and getting out of the tomb is the most important thing. Well, that is true, but the problem is the risks you'll face after doing it this way. That's your problem. Take care of them properly, Vice Captain. You're dead if you fail. Julian, who had instantly ended up as the cover up team once again, was fuming inside. He was really afraid of the risks Ju Hian would face after this. Ju Hian did not use his artifacts whenever and wherever, probably because of the toll it took on his body and the artifacts' risks. It was because he thought that it might drag in the people around him. But that was before Julian was with him. Julian and Chloe were the only team members who could handle Ju Hian's risks and take care of them. It happened at that moment. All residents of the Tower of Pride have submitted. This is an impossible new record for quick completion. The Tower of Pride has been cleared. Many bright lights flashed from the tomb. Then the tomb started to shake. The tomb will be destroyed in ten minutes. Julian must have realized the flow of aura as he quickly started to shout. We need to hurry up and get out of here. We'll be stuck inside the tomb forever. Of course, the artifacts started to openly object to Ju Hian once the tomb was cleared. This is a scam. Having others take your place to clear the tests is not acceptable. But at that moment we cannot accept THUG. The Egyptian god bastards who had succeeded in the Tower of Pride raid stomped on them and started to sneer. They had been waiting for this moment. All right, master. Hurry up and teach these bastards a lesson. Hurry. Hurry. Quickly. Anubis, Set, Osiris, and Thoth, the four Egyptian gods, urged Juhian on. All right. Grind them up like you did to me. Saw them down with a saw. Drown them like you drowned me. Tease them with chicken. It brought to question how Juhian usually handled his artifacts, but, anyway there's somewhere we need to go before that. What? Juhian suddenly started to head toward the top. Siole and Julian urgently shouted toward him. It's dangerous, Captain Nim. The tomb will be destroyed soon. But Ju Hian ignored them and headed for the top floor, making Julian and Siole chase after him. They saw it once they got to the top floor. Ah! They saw a suspicious man trying to escape from the tomb. But that man was not human. It's a divine grade artifact. Ju Hian's suspicions had been correct. I knew I faintly smelled a divine-grade artifact. 
but Julian jumped in shock after analyzing this artifact. It might be normal for him to be surprised. That is Loki's artifact. This bastard was a disastrous artifact that would cause nuclear wars in the future. But most importantly this artifact should already have a master. It was someone who was either a monarch, in the executive board, or at least within Pandora. Why was an artifact with an owner doing in this tomb? Juhian nonchalantly started to speak. I guess it was acting as the landlord. L, landlord? He was right. Loki was not associated with this tomb. It was just a landlord who got a good spot. Well, I don't know whether it was the owner's intents to build the tower or if it was Loki's, but this Loki bastard was probably the one who called these artifacts here and pushed up the tomb appearance for the Tomb of Pride. That's most likely seeing as how the location and contents were different than in the past. It was probably done so that someone from Europe could easily gobble up the Tower of Pride. Juhian chuckled and received a pile of papers from the rope. They were the documents in Loki's hand. Julian and Seo Lei could not read them because they were written in Tumblef. As for Juhian, he smiled wickedly while reading through the files. Why? Move in contract list of tenant certificate of land possession I got something good. Ju Hien seemed to have a plan as he channeled his dominance into the rope. See, Captain Nim. Siole wondered why Ju Hien was suddenly doing this, but Ju Hien just smiled and sent the rope flying. The flying rope quickly captured Loki's artifact. Loki's artifact tried its best to resist. Fuck, let go of me. Ah. You're that shitty rope bastard, aren't you? You're famous, you bastard. An angry Loki tried to get rid of the rope, but the rope's current attribute was a rope that neutralized the power of the gods. The rope's attribute is making this god's powers weaker. Fuck, why can't I use any of my powers? Loki's groans were to be expected. Juhian then launched a skill toward Loki. It was his artifact destruction skill. Bong! Loki was ruthlessly destroyed as soon as Juhian's skill reached it. Crack, crack. Loki coughed up blood and staggered after receiving a direct hit from the artifact destruction. T, this bastard. The eyes of Loki, this artifact that looked like a total playboy, flashed. I won't let you off easy. Juhian started to snicker. Shut up and hand over the rights to this land. W, what? Give it up. Give up this building. Ah. Juhian continued to ruthlessly destroy Loki's artifact. This artifact already had a master and Juhian wasn't interested in an evil god's artifact. If he had no intentions on having it, he might as well destroy it. That wasn't all. Real estate is the real way to make money. With this thought in mind Juhian started to destroy Loki, the landlord, left and right. He was going to completely destroy Loki to get rid of its name from the documents. Then all he had to do was put his name in the empty slot. In simple terms, this was stealing wealth. But Loki was still a divine grade artifact. Hey, you damn thug. I should have known you were so terrible after hearing the rumors about you, you son of a bitch. Loki's artifact tried to use its powers. However Siole quickly threw some white powder toward Loki. Captain Nim. Don't worry and just keep destroying it. This bitch. Loki, who was covered in white powder, was huffing as it looked at Siole, but it was soon whipped by the rope. Juhian looked at the thing that Siole had thrown. Powder from pieces of Heimdall's horn SS grade, divine grade, consumable artifact remaining uses, 910 it was the artifact they had gotten from the monarch of detection before coming into the tomb of pride. To be more specific, it was just the pieces that were left after the crow ripped it off, but even a portion is still useful. This Heimdall's artifact was very effective against Loki. Heimdall and Loki are eternal enemies in Norse mythology. Heimdall was the one who had killed Loki. That was the reason Loki was in pain right now, making Juhian smile as he started to speak. All right, hand over the authority. C.O.L.A. Siole realized Juhian's intentions right away and started to pour Heimdall's artifact on Loki, as if she was putting salt on something. He said to hand it over. Loki was about to die. Fuck, I'm not even fully activated, this is cheating. 
Pow pow. Hey, let's talk it oh you pow 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 pow. Hey, I told you not to do this. Pow 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 pow. Fuck. A message appeared at that moment. The destroyed Loki has given up the rights to this tomb and has disappeared. Juhian snickered after seeing that message. As for Loki, who had thrown away this tomb, was grinding its teeth for a different reason. Fuck, why does that bastard have a portion of the Pandora system artifact? Loki soon disappeared. Once he left Rumble. The tomb is being destroyed. Hurry. Let's go out. The artifacts were becoming frantic that their home was being destroyed while Juhian's group quickly escaped. TKBM's excavation team and the other excavation teams that had been around the tower had run away a long time ago. The artifacts that came outside were in despair after seeing the tower crumble. Our home. Our tomb. I brought all of my precious possessions because I planned on living here forever. It was at that moment. Juhian cracked his fingers and then activated a skill. Boom. You have used the tomb restoration skill. Something amazing then started to happen. The completely destroyed tomb started to be restored. The tomb is starting to be restored. The Tower of Pride is being rebuilt. The artifacts, as well as Julian and Ciole, dropped their jaws in shock. The building debris started to clump together, once Juhian used his skill, and returned to normal as if time was flowing backward. The 50-story Tower of Pride was restored just like that. The artifacts living in the tower were very happy. Oh. Our home has been restored. I really like this place. Human, I guess you're a bit useful. You're a good bastard unlike the rumors. I won't forget what you've done for us. This was close to a miracle. But his subordinates did not understand. Captain Nim. Why did you restore a destroyed tomb? The artifacts did not care as they were happy. Woohoo! I can live in my house again now. But as they tried to go into the tower hey hey. Where do you think you're going? What? Juhian prevented them from going on before showing them the contract he had taken from Loki. The artifacts freaked out after reading through it. It couldn't be helped, since landlord and building owner, CO Juhian monthly rent 50 million one can be paid with artifacts the monthly rent may increase as the owner pleases. Can be renegotiated 12 times a year security deposit, 1 billion one. H, hold on, what is this? The building owner has changed. You'll need to meet the new conditions of the lease before going back in. Hand over the money or get out. Juhian started to smile. Now that he thought about it, the leasing business was quite appealing. Other artifacts might rush over if this place was known for being great. Ah, by the way, you'll have to pay for the remodeling that happened as well. T, this bastard. Chapter, 211 Tomb of Pride has been cleared, the tomb appearance phenomenon has disappeared. Co Juhian did he clear another one of the seven great tombs? Excavation teams and political powers are fuming with anger. However, the questionable tower has not disappeared. This demonic tower is now located in a public area has the tomb not been cleared completely? Pandora, numerous artifacts found inside the tower. Pandora and different governments have decided to send people into the tower. Julian put his hand on his forehead after seeing all these articles that were starting to pop up. The news spreads so fast. There was this much chaos in less than one day since the tomb was cleared. Julian looked toward Juhian, as if he found this to be a headache. Are you serious about getting into the leasing business? Can't I? Forget whether you can or cannot, that land already belongs to someone. Juhian started to laugh as if he found this to be ridiculous. What? Landowner? Then isn't it your job to contact them and buy this land in advance? That land is not private property. It is public property owned by the French government. Then under Pandora's Tomb Laws Section 4 Article 32, original owners cannot claim rights to a tomb area until it is cleared. But it is cleared. Other people don't know that. This damn thug. Julian started to press his temples as if he was tired. Basically, this was what Juhian had said to him. 
let's do a leasing business with the artifacts as our tenants. It was getting difficult storing all of their artifacts inside the hotel. He was saying that he needed a place to stash those bastards. It was fine whether it was a storage room or a house, so why don't they just become the landlord for an apartment complex? Of course, he would ask for an extremely high security deposit and rent to rip them off. Maybe that was the reason. I, I robbed a bank. I robbed Austin Rockefeller. I grabbed all the money in the district office. The artifacts were stealing from nearby people and places to pay off this extensive security deposit and rent. Here, please take it. Please take it. Of course, he wouldn't accept all of their offers regardless of the source. I can't take money from the bank. Go put it back. Go, go. Austin Rockefeller's money is okay. I can't take stolen taxes either. Hollywood actress Christine. No. She's pretty. John Hudson. He's a comedian I like. Go away. Ah, uh, Chairman Quan Tae Jun's money is totally fine. I'll even take material goods as long as it is stolen from him. This landlord's preferences were quite difficult as he wouldn't accept the money based on the source. That was why the artifacts started to sell off their own stuff to exchange for human currency, or. I abducted my friend. I abducted him. I dragged this bastard who was sleeping. I'm here. I can rent the place now, right? They were even abducting their friends and fellow artifacts to hand over to Juhian. The artifacts that were dragged without knowing what was going on wanted to cry and complain, but Juhian didn't care. It was their choice to come here but not to leave anyway, that was how Juhian's leasing business was starting to grow. But I am still curious. Julian was quite concerned. He was concerned about Loki's artifact that provided this great piece of land to them. Loki belonged to the Tmonarch of Disturbances. That bastard had been on the list when Julian had checked the list of monarchs. He should be a member of the executive board. Pandora's leadership, the executive board was surrounded in mysteries. They were known as the ones who ruled over the system artifact, but even Julian did not know much about them. Why? They've never shown themselves to the public. The only thing he knew for sure was that they were very strong. They were at least at the level of the monarchs. In addition, the system prevented monarchs from treating them with disrespect. Even Chairman Quan was wary of the executive board as one of the four emperors. He couldn't help but be concerned. Since Loki was the one in charge of the Tower of Pride, they were bound to contact Juhian or start something because of this incident. Furthermore, it was his job to deal with all this crap in the back end. That was the same right now. Hey! What the hell were you guys thinking to show up in front of us? Huh? Julian raised his head after hearing an angry shout. He saw some people who looked as if they would not feel refreshed even after killing them, grinding them up and drinking them down. They were TKBM's excavation teams did these morons go crazy. What the fuck were you guys thinking to crawl in here? Julian sighed. That was right. They were currently meeting with TKBM. Yes, they were meeting with the same people who came back empty-handed because of them and probably wanted to chop them up with a chainsaw. Why else? Co Juhian had sent them here. Fuck, Co Juhian, what the hell are you thinking? Julian and Co Lei had been ordered to make a delivery. They were told to give an artifact they earned in the Tower of Pride to TKBM. The reason for it? They had no idea. Their captain was not the type to warmly explain these things to them. Ha! There's no way these bastards would accept it even if we offered it to them. He was right. Are you guys crazy? Why would you give us an artifact? Be honest. What the fuck are you planning now? Ha! Huh. Where the hell is your captain? Ciole started to frown as she responded. Our captain Nim is currently busy. Can you please just hurry up and let us finish this deal? Ugh. They started to drool for a moment because of the beautiful Ciole before quickly snapping out of it and starting to swear. She looked like a weak woman but numerous excavation teams have already been countered and stomped on by Ciole. They roared in anger. Humph, we don't need it, so get lost. 
Do you really think you can keep fooling us like that? Julian started to frown. Well, I do understand how they feel. Even he would not receive an artifact from his captain. I'd rather take a cookie from a murderer. A tired Julian sent a text message to Juhian. It's as we expected. They won't take it. I don't think I can give it to them. This was the message he got back. You retard, you can't even take care of that. This son of a bitch. Julian started to shake in anger. He felt that Ju Hien was using emoticons that he normally didn't even use to mess with him. Julian, who could usually not be angered, put his phone away and started to smile. He then started to speak in a tone that was difficult to tell whether he was laughing or threatening them. Shut up and listen to me. I don't think this is a bad deal for you guys either. You guys are returning empty-handed because of our captain, aren't you? Won't Chairman Quan chew you guys out for that? Hey, what did you say? You son of a... One of TKBM's captains stopped the shouting subordinate at that moment. I went to Harvard with Julian Miller. We should hear him out. He then whispered to his subordinates. Forget scamming someone, that retard can't even lie. Someone here seemed to know Ju Hien's gaze and warm and caring words that she would never hear on a normal basis. Seo Lei, who ended up being tightly hugged by Ju Hien, turned as red as a tomato before happily planting her face in his chest. Julian got rid of the money as Ju Hien tried to use that opening to burn the money once again. Hey! Stop it! TSK! Ju Hien pulled out a sword toward Julian who was getting in his way. This was the start of the chaos. Crackle, crackle. Clang. Chairs and tables were flipped over, destroyed, and created a mess. Ju Hien's abilities were uselessly strong and skilled that someone who wasn't at Julian's level would find it difficult to block his attacks. Julian knew that Ju Hien was like this because he trusted Julian, but Julian still became angry and started to shout. Ow, stop. I knew it would end up like this. The artifact's risks truly were scary. For example, the code of Hammurabi's risk would make someone into a good person, a person of justice. It was called the virtues of justice. Juhian would make donations to random charities and do many good deeds because of it. That was a risk that Julian was happy to see, but there should be some limits. Juhian would try to donate all of his wealth and even his organs when that risk struck. That risk made a person try to donate everything without holding back. He had to work so hard to stop that. Damn, whatever, I don't care anymore. You are wasting your own money, it doesn't harm me in any way. But at that moment the cash withdrawal has been completed. Julian opened his eyes in shock after receiving that text message. More withdrawal messages started coming. The loan has been approved at First Bank. The loan at XX Capital is currently awaiting approval. Eek, a private loan. As Julian was turning pale he saw it. He saw the rope using his phone to take money out of his accounts. Ju Hien calmly started to speak. I withdrew all of your money. I'm going to donate all of it now. Ack. Stop. Wait, stoop. As he was about to donate all of his money, including the money from his new private loan flash. A light surrounded Ju Hien. Something like that looked like bandages made of light started to surround Ju Hien. This was Chloe's nightingale's artifact. Chloe. Chloe clicked her tongue and started to subdue Ju Hien's risks that were going berserk. The risks had been subdued by an artifact's powers. She grabbed the falling Ju Hien and urgently asked Julian a question. How many artifacts did he use in the tomb this time? The risks shouldn't go berserk like this normally. Julian sighed in relief as he sat down. He used four divine grade artifacts at full power at the same time while also using other artifacts at the same time as well. What did you say? Chloe gasped in shock. A person's life would be in danger if they used two divine grade artifacts at full power at the same time. It was only at this level because it was Ju Hien, anybody else would have already been dominated by artifacts and died. He should have just died in the tomb. Although Chloe was talking like that, she still seemed to be slowly caressing Ju Hien's head. Of course, she had to receive CLA's envious gaze at the fact that she was hugging Ju Hien. 
How long will it be until he wakes up? Probably about two days. It was at that moment. I'm up, you punks. Captain Nim. Ju Hien, whose risks had disappeared, was groaning but apologized for his actions as he started to speak again. What about the artifact I told you to hand over to TKBN? We gave it to them. I still don't know why you wanted us to give it to them though. Good. Chloe, what about your task? There were no issues. Oh, I don't know if you saw this yet. Chloe showed Juhi and something that just posted not too long ago. They were all shocked after seeing the article. You, unbelievable. It was an article about Ujeha, the monarch of pushoverness. Chapter, 212 What the hell did this punk do while we were in the tomb? Juhian read the article with a shocked expression. The article was full of breaking news about Ujeha. Of course, it wasn't on the front page. The front page had information about Juhian as usual. But on the second page there was a large article about their damn restorer. Looks like some interesting things happened while we were away. He didn't seem to be believing the story described in the article. It couldn't be helped, since he did what with the Princess of England. While Ju Hien was still inside the Tomb of Pride it was right around then the Divine Grade artifacts were causing a shitshow. My goodness, is that really that artifact? It is. Yu Jeha, who was at the Russian Artifact Fair, was looking somewhere with sparkling eyes. Is that the artifact that Captain Nim wanted me to bring back? There were leaders from different countries, royalty, Hollywood celebrities, generals, CEOs this place was full of important people. That was why he was feeling small as these people could all squash him into a pancake, but it's the British princess and prince. Ju Hien's order was to buy the artifact they had on them. He's probably going to kill me if I can't do this. So. He would probably be killed by the guards before he could even get to the item. The people around him were whispering at that moment. That is Princess Charlotte of England, right? She's still young. Is that Queen Victoria's artifact around the princess's neck? Holy shit, are you for real? The princess is one thing, but look at the one the prince has on him. That crow brooch. Didn't they say that the brooch is some kind of divine grade artifact? They did. Ah, uh, what did they say I think they said it was a crow goddess from Ireland's Celtic mythology. I think they said it was Morrigan. They said she was the goddess of war and destruction. My goodness, war. That's unbelievable. How can the prince of a country proudly walk out while wearing such a thing? Maybe he's making a declaration to the world. He wants to tell the world that he wants to go back to the colonization era. The VIPs in the auction house were getting tense. The English royal family did not have much influence over the world in modern society. But this was now the era of artifacts. The artifact they had in their possession was the problem. Queen Victoria and Morrigan's artifacts are indeed a problem. Queen Victoria, the queen during the Great British Empire when the empire on which the sun never sets held about one-fourth of all territories around the world. Queen Victoria's artifact could be seen as the artifact being used by the royal family to groom the next queen. It was Morrigan's artifact that was the problem. Queen Victoria and an artifact of war. It's obviously a provocation. The countries near England were extremely tense right now. Of course, there were some opposite opinions as well. There are talks that both of them are artifacts of abundance. You mean like how England was at its peak during Queen Victoria's era. There are talks that Morrigan was a goddess of prosperity as well. Either way, the people here were all interested in the prince and princess's artifacts. It was the same for Ujeha as well. Wow, there's going to be a lot of competitors. What the hell am I going to do to take their artifacts? He couldn't just steal it like his captain would do. Ah, uh, do I really need to use the thing I prepared in advance? Ujeha decided to approach the princess first. But at the same time Ujeha, we found you. Grab that bastard. The official restorers, who had no thoughts of letting Jeha meet with the British princess, started to become frantic. But Ujeha, who probably didn't care about what they wanted, was jumping up and down trying to get the princess to notice him. Princess. Please sell your artifact to me. Your artifact. 
the princess noticed him. Ha! Huh. That person is, she must have recognized him as Juhian subordinate. She was interested in Seo Juhian. Of course, the official restorers would not sit back and watch. Stop him, Stupheim. It was at that moment. Boom. Bang. The auction house suddenly started to shake and the ceiling crumbled. The lighting on the stage fell, windows broke, and it was quite the mess. The lights all went out at that moment as well. People started to scream while looking for the exit. Holy shit, what the hell? This was not a tomb appearance. Yu Jae-ha had followed Ju Hien around for so long that he instantly realized that a person had done this. He then heard a man scream. Uff. It was the sound of someone getting killed. No way. He seemed to be right as he started to hear shocked voices all around him. Kaya. General. Police, call the police. Hurry. People fell into states of panic once the backup lights turned on. It was because there seemed to have been a murder. Hurry up and block the doors. Don't let anybody out. Yu Jae-ha gulped while looking at the general who was killed with his head cut off. Why? A monarch was instantly killed. This was the monarch of criticism who had recently become a monarch. This person was someone who said a lot of radical things, including saying things about how immigrants and refugees were all evil and potential terrorists in the making who needed to be killed. He should have a divine grade artifact on him, but he was still instantly killed. That wasn't all. Yu Jae-ha had seen something. He read about a similar incident in the newspaper. Serial killing of artifact users. Will the Russian International Artifact Fair be safe? He had clicked his tongue while showing the article to Ju Hien. Wow, Captain Nim. This is already the third newbie monarch who has been killed. They're calling it a serial killing, I wonder who is responsible for it. Ju Hien had said the following after seeing how the victims had been killed. I hope it isn't him, him. Yes a famous artifact you also know a lot about Jack the Ripper. That was what Ju Hien had said. Yu Jae-ha then got the chills after feeling a murderous intent behind him. It was definitely there. The murderer was behind him. He was right. You're Seo Ju Hien's restorer. And you're a monarch. He heard a girl's pretty voice. He was sure about one thing. I'm dead. Yu Jae-ha immediately activated his artifact as soon as he had that thought. He had used Salieri's artifact. Ju Hien had taken Medici's artifact and cast aside Salieri's artifact, but it was still one of the strong artifacts of the Seven Great Tombs. The woman must have felt the aura of the artifact as she picked her knife up to kill Yu Jae-ha. But at that moment. Don't touch our young man. He's our master's subordinate. What the hell are you doing? The bizarre panties and wooden penis screamed as they surrounded Yu Jae-ha. The woman's knife slashed the wooden penis. Slash. The penis was cut in half and the panties started to scream. Egu. My wife, my wife. She was cut in half. The woman looked at these bizarre artifacts for a bit before disappearing. Maybe she didn't want to deal with these things. No, it might just be that her goal was not Yu Jae-ha but the other VIPs in the first place. There was another boom and the stage crumbled before people started to scream. It was in the direction of the England VIPs. Uncle. Uncle. The British princess was crying while holding the corpse of the prince. Their artifacts had already been destroyed. Everybody fell into states of shock and even the restorers could not close their mouths. Prince William, the prince has been murdered. Kaya. Protect the princess. Find the culprit. Find them. Yu Jae-ha knew they would not succeed as he could feel it. She's not here. She's long gone. He was extremely talented at detecting and using artifacts because of Juhi and Spartan-style training. That was how he was able to know that Jack the Ripper had disappeared. The princess was holding her dead uncle as she cried. Uncle, uncle. The official restorers and guards didn't know what to do. It was at that moment. Yu Jae-ha, who didn't really know what to do as he looked at the crying princess, started to speak. Um, excuse me, please don't worry. Your uncle is not dead. 
Yu Jiehe had nonchalantly walked up to the princess. The official restorers started to glare at him. His son Bei, Julian, started to shout. Hey! Yu Jiehe! Stop with the nonsense! How can you say such bullshit to the shocked princess? No, I really mean it. I couldn't save the general but her uncle is fine. Julian grabbed Yu Jiehe by the collar. Hey! Charlotte! Is Charlotte safe? A man who was only wearing underwear burst into the party hall. My goodness, it's Prince William. Uncle. Then this corpse is. Yu Jiehe picked up a chair. Hey, what are you do? The corpse changed from the shock once it was slammed by the chair. It was a fake Yu Jiehe had created with Da Vinci's artifact. A fake. The appraiser started to shake, as this familiar sight gave them deja vu of the plane incident. Julian glared at Yu Jiehe at that moment. He wanted to know why Jiehe had transformed the prince. His intentions must have been terrible. What the hell are you planning? What else would it be? He had exchanged the prince to a fake on purpose to purchase the artifact from the princess. If the princess's uncle were to say, sell the artifact to Yu Jiehe, he thought that would make it easier to purchase. Well, it was lucky that he aimed for when the prince went into the restroom and that he put the scary guards to sleep as well. He had been happy that things were going so well, but he ended up unexpectedly saving the man's life. TSK. It is good but, he couldn't tell them the truth about his scheme. That was why Yu Jiehe decided to use the special technique, medicine selling, he had learned from Ju Hian. To be honest with you, I sensed that something was weird. I had read an article about how this artifact fair would be dangerous. That was why I protected the prince just in case. W, what did you say? I've seen enough assassinations of princes. The official restorers and appraisers started to shake in anger. Protect my ass. There's no way Co Juhian's damn subordinate would do something like that. Stop trying to scam us. Yu Jiehe didn't care and just picked up an artifact that had fallen on the ground. It was the princess's artifact, Queen Victoria's artifact, that had been destroyed. This is completely destroyed. Should I restore it for you? The pretty princess wiped away her tears as she looked at Yu Jiehe. Can you really restore it? It's already completely destroyed. Yes, it's not hard. But in return, could you please? Don't you dare. Princess. You can't leave your artifact with a quack like that. Julian took the artifact away from Yu Jiehe. This bastard is Seo Ju Hian's quack restorer. Your artifact will only end up destroyed. How can you leave us, the official restorers, aside and ask such a bastard? Their overbearing attitudes and pride were annoying. The British prince interjected as well. Yes, that item belongs to the royal family. You can't leave it with a restorer who is in a tomb raiding team with an unknown background. Did you hear that? Yu Jiehe just nonchalantly waved. That's fine. Feel free to fix it if you can. Julian was in disbelief. What? Of course I can restore something like this. Crack. Forget being restored, the artifact broke even more. What the hell, why won't it be restored? Yu Jiehe started to snicker. Hand it over if you can't do it. The monarch of pushoverness. This was the moment that the man who had only been known for his association with Ju Hian would make his debut in front of world leaders, royalty, and celebrities. Returning to the present Yu Jiehe, the monarch of pushoverness. Invited to visit the British royal family. Saved the British prince and their treasure. British princess, I really want to meet Mr. Ju Hian, the captain of the team. The monarch of pushoverness is receiving scouts from numerous different nations around the world. You want to know my desired salary? The monarch of pushoverness, I'm looking for a girlfriend right now. Ju Hian was baffled at the different stories about Yu Jiehe in the article. There were a lot of things that caught his attention such as the assassination of a skilled general and such, but I didn't know he would really end up becoming the monarch of pushoverness. Wow, Jiehe instantly became famous. Julian tilted his head in confusion before he started to speak. But he's getting scouting offers for his artistic talents. 
There's even talks about freelancer restoration requests. Is Jaha going to end up transferring to a different team? Excuse me. Co Ju Hian, what are you going to do? It looks like you're going to need to get a new restorer. Ju Hian just laughed after hearing Julian tease him. He then started to call someone. The person picked up quickly. Yes, hello. His ego seemed quite inflated as Yu Jaha's voice sounded haughty. As a result ah, uh, I don't know who is calling but I'm quite busy right now. I already have enough requests for a whole year and am currently in the middle of an interview. Please don't call me directly next time and contact my manager. Any media appearances will need to be addressed with my manager as well a manager, my ass. He heard the phone dropping. His heart must have almost burst out of his chest as he dropped his phone in shock. Yu Jaha started to speak in a shaking voice. See, Captain Nim. What are you doing? You little punk. T, this is definitely the Captain Nim's voice. Is that you, Captain Nim? W, what the hell? I don't know this number. Shut up. What did you just say? You are full of requests for the year. Excuse me. Ah, uh, T, T, that, you see Ju Hian's eyes flashed. You. Are you taking jobs on the side aside from working for me? Huh. N, no that's not the case. Yu Jaha looked ready to cry. It was obvious that he was kowtowing on the other side of the phone. Egu, whose artifact would I touch other than yours, Captain Im? What about the artifact I told you to purchase? Egu, I got it. Of course I got it. Good. It looks like I didn't give you enough work if you can talk about girlfriends, interviews, artistic talents and other bullshit. I feel like I'm wasting the $300 million salary I'm paying you. Yu Jaha started to scream. Not at all, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. You're really not wasting your money. Ju Hian's eyes flashed like tiger eyes as he sat with his legs crossed. Then return immediately before I kill you for breach of contract. I'll give you one hour. I'll be there in 30 minutes. I will tell you everything once I'm back. I'll even introduce you to the princess so please. A crying Yu Jaha hung up as he started to run. Ju Hian nodded his head in satisfaction. No matter how talented he was, the monarch of pushoverness could do nothing in front of the monarch of plunder. Chapter, 213 Fuck, you Jaha, you son of a bitch. Julian, the top restorer, was kicking an artifact. Bang bang. He looked quite angry after returning to his workroom. This reaction should have been expected. That bastard pulled off a scam and the entire royal family fell for it. It wasn't just the royal family, the entire world was being tricked by him. The top official restorer was stomped by a quack restorer. A restorer ended up breaking a precious artifact instead of restoring it. Governments and royal families around the world are starting to become skeptical of official restorers. Should the evaluation of official be rediscussed? Co Juhian raised this so called quack restorer. What is the true identity of Co Juhian? News anchors were discussing these things on almost every channel. Julian's subordinates ran over after seeing artifacts, furniture, and tools all being destroyed. Chief, please calm down. It's not that you're not good at restoring. That's right. You Jaha that scammer must have tricked us. That was right. Julian closed his eyes and recalled what had happened at the auction house. He had tried to fix a broken artifact but it didn't get restored. The artifact just broke even more instead of reacting to him. But why? He was someone who had risen to the number one restorer position in the world. He wasn't an idiot who wouldn't be able to restore something like that. He was even at the monarch grade as well. But Yu Jaha had reached his hand out at that moment, as if he had been waiting for it. Hand it over if you can't do it. That had been so weird that Julian investigated it further until he found the answer. Yu Jaha that bastard must have switched it for a fake. It could not be restored because the one he had in his hand was not an artifact but a fake. Fake artifacts could not be restored with the restoration ability. Yu Jaha then switched it for the real one when he restored it, which was why it worked. 
The one that broke was a fake that couldn't handle the strong impact of the restoration artifact. Even the appraisers had claimed that there were signs of da Vinci's artifact being used. He was at fault for not noticing such fine details, but this was a scam from the beginning. But the princess, prince, and the press, all those idiots. Wow, you're amazing. You completely restored something that even the top restorer could not fix. What the hell? You're an official restorer but you were defeated by an illegal. Yet you charge an arm and a leg for your services. It's true that only talented people are in Mr. Seo Juhian's tomb raiding team. You are at a completely different level. Talented individual my ass. This was all just a scam. Julian, who had been tricked by Yu Jeha, felt frustrated. He had no proof to reveal this scam. Do you think that bastard Seo Juhian put him up to it? This is enough to put him on the international wanted list. We can get him for fraud and defamation. But they still thought things were okay. Why? They had built connections with a lot of people until now. You Jeha, we play in a different world than you. Maybe that was the reason. First, contact all of our sponsors and clients. Let's go bury the bastards who slandered us. They just needed to do the same thing as what Professor Richard had done with the academics and his sponsors to bury Ujeha. However chief, this is bad. What is it? LDU's CEO he wants to cancel his request. What? Why? T, that he said he was going to get CEO Juhian's permission to have Ujeha do it. What? Unbelievable fine, whatever. Get rid of him. We have plenty of other sponsors. Um, but that the other sponsors. What? The Arab royal family. The French government who gave us a large sponsorship. They were getting flustered at the number of cancellations. People cancelling their requests meant that they had lost their trust. That meant chief, I think it will be difficult to get help burying you Jeha and Seo Juhian. The top restorer and his hoobies faces scrunched up into frowns. Official restorers are attempting to sue you Jeha for defamation and fraud. But they are not gaining much traction. Yu Jeha is declaring his status as a freelancer. Good job. The first thing Ju Hian did when he saw Yu Jeha was to praise him. But Yu Jeha was on his knees and shouting in a loud voice. Egu, I wasn't trying to do this, sir. I've committed a grave sin, sir. Why is he acting like this when I said he did well? Yu Jeha just completely lowered himself to the floor and started to beg. T, there's no way I would betray you, Captain Nim. I think that the article is wrong I never declared my status as a freelancer or anything like that. There are multiple royal families contacting me with requests, but I'm not interested at all. I will only restore your artifacts even if you tell me you don't want me to do it, Captain Nim. So please, don't kill me. Juhian and the others held back their laughter. Yu Jeha must not be hearing Juhian's praises as praises. He was probably thinking that Juhian wanted to kill him. The way Juhian was sitting with his legs crossed with his chin in his hand and a smile on his face made him look like the godfather who didn't give a shit. He looked like a vicious mafia boss. It'd be perfect if he had a cigar in his mouth. But Juhian was actually quite happy about what had happened. We can tell who has which artifact if he restores other people's artifacts. That was amazing information to have he could know what his enemies had, negotiate with some people, and even catch information that had changed from the future. I can also swipe any useful ones I see. That was probably his main goal. Anyway, it was worth teaching you, you really did well. But Yu Jeha became even more scared and continued to cry at this bombardment of praises. Egu. I'm really sorry. Aegu, please don't kill me. To be honest with you, I thought that I might be able to meet some famous Hollywood actresses if I started taking celebrity requests. Wah! The other team members had these thoughts on their minds. This damn monarch of pushoverness. What a pushover he really is a pushover. It was at that moment. But did Jack the Ripper really appear at the auction house? Yu Jeha seemed to finally remember it as he reported it right away after hearing Julian's question. That's right. That's right. That artifact showed up. 
the person you discussed before showed up. The members were shocked. That murderer showed up again. Jack the Ripper. That artifact brought serial killings with it, fitting its identity as a serial killer artifact. They were not regular serial killings either. Only monarchs are killed. This opponent had been difficult for Ju Hian in the past as well. But we don't need to worry much about that bastard right now. Bastard? Jack the Ripper is a man. Why? Nothing. Yu Jaha tilted his head. The voice was definitely a woman's voice. Ju Hian, who had no way of knowing that, reached his hand out. Whatever, just hand over the artifact you bought. Seo Lei became interested after hearing that. You're talking about Queen Victoria and Morrigan's artifacts, right? The members were waiting to see what these artifacts could do until Ju Hian responded like this. Why the hell would I tell him to buy those things? I don't need them. Uh, uh, excuse me. But. Yu Jaha started to complain. Damn, it wasn't those things. It would have been so much easier if it was. Ha. Huh. Yu Jaha pulled out a statue of a woman in an embarrassing pose from his backpack instead of responding. Here, we're good now since I bought it, right? Yu Jaha channeled his affinity and the statue that was the size of his palm turned into the size of a human. It was definitely a 19 statue of a beauty in an embarrassing pose. Ju Hian was extremely happy to see it. Yes, this is it, this is it. Excuse me. Siole and Irene looked completely in shock at Ju Hian's reaction. T, this is it Captain Nim. However, Ju Hian was serious. Yes, I really wanted this thing. I need it when I sleep. W, when you sleep. What is he planning to do with this? That wasn't all. Yu Jaha took out some steamed buns that looked like dishes at a dim sum restaurant. The Emperor of the Qing Dynasty's Manchuhan Imperial Feast Food of the Emperor A Grade, Treasure Grade, Consumable Artifact He activated it and beauties wearing skimpy clothing appeared and started to make food. They are creating the most delicious food in the world. Julian put his hand against his forehead. He couldn't help it after seeing the abilities of this artifact. He couldn't help but start to shout. Hey, C.O. Ju Hian. This is just an artifact for a mukbang. One yes. What about it? Julian was in disbelief. You used two billion dollars for each one no, I'm sure that's chump change for you, but you still gave two artifacts for something like this? C.O. Lei started to shout as well. Vice Captain Nim, why are you only angry about the mukbang artifact? T, this sexy woman statue too. Co Lei could not finish her sentence. Yu Jaha quickly interjected, telling them that it was okay. Hey hey, it's fine, it's fine. I got them for free for restoring their artifact. Free, completely free. Hey. That's not the problem. As Co Lei grabbed Yu Jaha's collar Julian slammed his hand on the table. Ah, fine, let's say you don't need Victoria and Morrigan's artifacts. The fact that Ju Hian wasn't interested must mean that the risk or ability was trash for both of them. But still, this artifact isn't it. You could pay money to buy food. No, Vice Captain Nim this 19 statue is also a problem. Co Lei was timidly sniffling behind him. But Julian didn't care as he pointed to the statue of the woman in an embarrassing pose and continued to speak. This is just an air freshener as well. You could have just bought a diffuser instead of buying something like this. Excuse me. A, an air freshener. Colas eyes opened wide as she inspected the statue. There was an extremely fragrant and relaxing smell coming out of the statue. It felt similar to aromatherapy. Juhian angrily shouted back. Hey! A person should eat some delicious things in his life. As for this air freshener, I'll be able to sleep well with it. You know I have trouble sleeping. I'm going to sleep with this thing next to me. Chloe, his doctor, could not listen any more and interjected. Captain Nim, in that case, please take the medicine I prescribed you. Please don't do anything weird. Yeah. Take some sleeping pills instead. There's so much delicious food in the world, 
why do you need such an indecent artifact? I don't like my mind being fuzzy when I take medicine. I can't focus. The artifacts are much more effective. Same with this feast. I've never liked anything I got from a store. Why are you all throwing a fuss when they are just consumable artifacts with no risks? Julian and Chloe, who were the common sense of the tomb raiding team, sighed as if they couldn't say anything. Ow, you damn artifact file. I don't care. Do whatever you want. Chloe, make sure to get a CT scan of his head while you are examining him. Do you think that will be enough? Ciole and Irene sighed in relief after learning the identities of the artifacts that Juhian had purchased. He didn't buy these things with weird intentions. That was why they were relieved, however both of their gazes quickly changed. One of them headed over to Ujeha while the other headed over to Chloe to ask serious questions. Chloe. I'm going to ask a serious question as a fellow team member. What is it? Do you have any fragrance or oil artifacts on you? W. What? Couldn't I take the place of that beautiful air freshener if I rub that around my body and lie down? What the hell is this girl thinking? Irene, who was tightly holding on to Ujeha's arm, had a vicious glare as well. Mr. Jeha. You frequently eaten with Mr. Juhian, right? You should know a lot about Mr. Juhian's tastes. X, excuse me. That is true. What do I need to do to make a better dish than that stupid food of the emperor that those women are making? Both of their eyes were on fire because they were about to lose to artifacts. Of course, the rope bobbed up and down as it approached Juhian as well. It was concerned that Juhian wasn't sleeping well. Does this scent not work? Does it not? The rope that had covered its body with garlic and Korean wormwood was shaking its body around. Juhian flinched as he watched. Well, he didn't mind the shaking because it looked cute. But still garlic and Korean wormwood were a bit Juhian couldn't handle it any longer and called you Jeha over. Jeha. Can't you do something about this? Mm. Just let it do that for about 100 days. What? You Jeha was being serious. On the other hand, in Chairman Kwan's hospital room Chairman Kwan's son and daughter cautiously knocked on the door. Knock knock. Excuse me, father. Have you verified the Ramesses artifact that TKBM's excavation team brought back? The team members worked really hard to bring it back do you like it? They did not hear a response. The son who was worried asked a question. Dr. Kim. What is going on? Doctor. Why is father not saying anything? The doctor looked as if he was placed in an awkward position as he responded. I swear he was very happy to receive Ramesses's artifact he was saying that he could even save his dead son too. Then why is it so quiet? Ah! Chairman Kwan's children burst into the room after hearing him scream. Slam! F. Father. Kaya. They gasped at what they saw in front of them. Chapter. 214. T, the chairman name will be okay, right? There was an odd silence flowing through the TKBM excavation team right now. It was great that they had returned to the company and offered up Ramesses's artifact. Julian's offer was quite smart as well. It's a hundred thousand times better than coming back empty-handed. They had invested twenty billion dollars in this tomb of pride if they included the cost for the excavation rights. They had also received billions of dollars worth of damage because of Seo Juhian. That was why it would mean that they would have lost all of that money for nothing if they returned without a single artifact. That wasn't all. We're really done for if it was revealed that Seo Juhian pretty much killed us. That was one of the reasons they debated not taking the item, but the captains chose to take it in the end. They didn't want to be cut from the excavation team. The chairman's sons were very happy to receive the artifact from them as well. However D, do you think it was a good idea to offer an artifact Seo Juhian gave us to the chairman Nim? We were able to get a decent idea of its abilities. That's right. Its abilities are focused on prosperity and idolization, similar to how Ramesses idolized himself. A prosperity artifact is exactly what the chaotic TKBM needs right now. But we didn't look into the risk. Someone started to shout at the person who said that. No. 
the Chairman Nim is said to be dealing with a serious illness right now. When you say serious illness. Well his son is dead. They became quiet. Something like Ramesses's artifact might help the Chairman Nim become strong again. That makes sense, Ramesses is said to be the king of virility who had 130 children. It should be beneficial for the Chairman Nim. Would that really be the case? F. F. Father. Chairman Kwan's children gasped once they entered the room. His youngest daughter, who was still in high school, freaked out the most. Ah! The youngest daughter covered her eyes after seeing something. It was as if she saw something she never wanted to see. Father, please cover yourself. Her frantic brothers sent their youngest sister outside. It was because Chairman Kwan had used Ramesses's artifact. The appraisers had said the artifact would be beneficial for Chairman Kwan as well. F. Fuck, it won't go down. This bastard won't go down. Chairman Kwan was about to die from pain. His sons became extremely anxious. The artifact's ability should be for prosperity and idolization. In P. Public. The fake doctor started to smile. You should know what the risk is after hearing that part, right? Holy shit. We've ran into each other a few times because of work-related issues, but I never. The monarch of fate started to frown. I don't know the reason for it, but I think you'll die a terrible death. What did you say? No, I saw it in my dream. Co Juhian said this to you. He called you a traitor. He said he would make you pay the price for killing seven of his family members. Ho! Yang Chen was in disbelief. Yang Chen had no way of knowing that the seven family members Zhu Hian was talking about were the members of his tomb raiding team. I have no idea. You really don't know. There's no way I would know about such a thing. Yang Chen tried not to think much about it. But why was he feeling like this? Why do I have such an ominous feeling? He kept having these ominous feelings every time he saw Seo Juhian. It felt as if he had done something wrong to him in the past. Yang Chen gulped before asking another question. When is it going to happen? I don't know. I can't tell that much detail. Yang Chen quickly handed him a bag of money. Boom! Yang Chen pulled a pin off his tie and handed that over as well. It was an S-grade artifact. Do you need anything else, sir? The monarch of fate smiled, calling him someone who knew how to act. I will give you two solutions. First. I don't know much about it, but a crow-like artifact will appear in a tomb in the near future. A crow? It seems to be an extremely strong evil divine grade artifact. Evil divine grade? I don't know the identity of it, but I do know that it was extremely strong. Co Juhian won't be able to do jack shit if you manage to get that artifact. Second. There seems to be three more people Co Juhian really wants to find. Maybe they are his team members. Anyway, I'll tell you their names and describe their appearances, so you should look for them. Yang Chen was smiling even as he gulped. There was no way that he would be killed by Co Juhian. Please don't worry. I will take care of Co Juhian properly. I happen to get my hands on an army artifact that is greater in number than Seo Juhian's army of the dead. Is that so? Yes sir. I was also able to get my name in as the monarch of natural resources this time. Then please do something about that damn thorn in our eyes. There's only a week left until that monarch's heirlooms show up. Seo Juhian, Julian Miller, and Yu Jeha. Do you plan on giving them to those bastards? The monarch of fate continued to shout as he kicked the table. We need to hurry up and get rid of those bastards to put our clients up as monarchs. Yang Chen seemed to be running away from Joshua's hysteria as he exited the room. Your Highness, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Mr. Jeha. Welcome. Around the same time Yu Jeha was smiling as he entered a palace in England. She's a total beauty, a total babe. She seems to have a nice personality as well. In addition, she was a high-grade artifact user. Now that they got closer to each other because of the restoration this time, maybe I might be able to escape my single life. Maybe that was the reason. 
He wickedly smiled as he approached the princess. Excuse me, princess, I've actually been studying palm reading. Your Highness, Mr. Seo Juhian is waiting for you. The princess's smile became even brighter after hearing her subordinate's report. Mr. Seo Juhian came with you too. Nice to meet you, Your Highness. My name is Seo Juhian. The princess seemed to have been looking forward to meeting with Juhian quite a bit as she was extremely happy. The princess's eyes were sparkling incomparably to when she had met with Yu Jeha. Yu Jeha, who was awkwardly standing there with his hands still out, glared at his captain. Damn it, I hate you, Captain Nim. Ju Hien was shocked. What did I do? The princess looked quite embarrassed while looking at Ju Hien, as if she was his fan. She then quickly ran outside before crouching down and covering her face. My goodness, I saw him in person, I saw him with my own two eyes. The princess took out her phone and started to send a message in a group chat. I saw him, I really met with Mr. Seo Ju Hien. The name of that group chat was Gathering of People Who Want to Meet with Seo Ju Hien in Person, Executives Chat 7 People, this was a group chat with princesses from around the world, wealthy heiresses, and famous celebrities. The princess's message caused an explosive reaction in the chat room. Really? You really met with Ju Hien Nim? Picture, picture. Picture. I've already invested in Ju Hien Nim's company. Should we sponsor his team members too? Can we give him some artifacts? I've already bought some excavation rights. I'm personally going to excavate some artifacts. I plan on meeting Ju Hien Nim to hand over the artifact I find. Gasp, I want to do that too. Me too. Picture. The princess took a quick picture of Ju Hien as her heart beat wildly and posted it to the chat room. The chat room was about to explode. Kaya. It's real. It's real. Appa, you're so cool. Look at that slight smile on his face. I want to meet him too. Ah, the guard is covering his body. Princess, can you broadcast this live? We should show it to the believers around the world. No. We can't do that without permission. That's not right. That's true. Let's first inform Commissioner Sasaki about this. That was right. They were all here because of Sasaki Yuka. To explain further, they were Juhian's believers. That the Jairu girl whom Juhian had left in charge of publicity for his Avesta sacred text had gathered. As the former president of an idol fan club, Sasaki was quite talented in this business. She had used her unofficial but official in her mind experiences to enhance her business skills and gather royalty, wealthy heiresses, celebrities, and even teachers and students to Juhian's fan group. But all of these people were not regular people. She had only selected talented artifact users on purpose. Juhi and Appa's excavation team's only weaknesses are a lack of numbers and power. The other top-ranked excavation teams had a lot of people and manpower to gather information and collect artifacts. That was how an amazing network of people who were gathering for Juhian was being created without Juhian's knowledge. It happened at that moment. Chapter 215. Everyone. It's the rope. It's Ju He and Nim's partner. The British princess quickly uploaded a video of the rope, which made the chat room explode again. Kaya, so cute. Ah, I really wish I could be that rope. It has apparently helped Ju He and Nim quite a bit. It looks so plain, should I buy it a ribbon or something? I want to see some of Ju He and Nim's other artifacts too. I researched all of them. I'm going to make a list and send it to Juhi and Nim. At that moment the rope's recognition is increasing. Your artifacts' recognitions are increasing. The C and D grade artifacts in your possession are starting to gain new abilities because of their newfound fame. They are starting to meet the conditions to upgrade. The Avesta sacred text's power is increasing. You are starting to meet the conditions to use Odin's army, the Valkyrie artifact. Juhian tilted his head in confusion after seeing these messages that had suddenly popped up. What the hell? They were getting famous without him having any knowledge about it. The artifact's recognition is increasing. The artifact of evangelism, the Avesta sacred text, is gaining strength. 
these messages had continued to pop up since earlier. Something is weird. The Avesta sacred text activated. Juhian had a rare confused expression on his face after seeing those messages. However, Yu Jeha started to provoke him because he could not take it longer. What is it now? I'm going to kill you if you're concerned about something stupid like why women like you or something. After being dumped by the princess, Yu Jeha was pouting in anger while Ju Hian was looking at him with a gaze that seemed to be asking what the hell he was talking about. You're going to kill me. Yu Jeha started to cower after receiving Ju Hian's gaze. Ju Hian was about to mention the messages before he stopped. Nobody knew about this system right now. Even if it was one of his trustworthy team members, all he had told them so far was that he saw a crow-like artifact in the final tomb. Ju Hian believed that he needed to be careful about saying anything more than that. Maybe that was the reason. Are you still in contact with that Japanese girl? Japanese girl? Ah, uh, you mean Yuka? Yu Jeha started to speak with an expression that seemed to be wondering why Ju Hian would ask such an obvious question. She called me a few days ago. She wanted to know what style of clothes you like to wear. His gaze seemed to be asking why the hell she would ask such a question. Yu Jeha grumbled as he responded. Well, it's probably to send you a present or something. She seems to have worked hard to gather fans. A present? She's gathering fans? Yu Jeha started to sneer. Well, we're calling them fans but she seems to actually be trying to gather some manpower that can be useful to you, Captain Nim. But how many could she really gather? There's probably just one or two of her friends. What he didn't know was that, forget one or two people, there were thousands of people already. Furthermore, the caliber of the people in that group was extremely scary. Anyway, it's nothing for you to be concerned about. She said she wanted to get you a present, so I told her to get you a slacker sweatsuit made by Gucci's top designer. Slacker sweatsuit? You know, that blue sweatsuit with the stripes. Ahaha, how could Gucci's top designer make something like that? But at that moment hey, Jeha. What is this? Siole, who was with him, stealthily showed him something. What is what? It looks like a weird item was delivered to the Captain Nim. Ha! Huh. What Siole showed him was an urgent video sent by the farmers. Yu Jeha couldn't help but be shocked after looking at it. It couldn't be helped, since eek, that's the clothing design I sent to Sasaki. The item that was delivered was an old-fashioned blue sweatsuit. It was the same blue sweatsuit that slackers would wear. But that wasn't all. What the hell, this person? That's Gucci's top designer. Yu Jeha dropped his jaw in disbelief. He rubbed his eyes and looked again but the famous top designer was still with the farmers. Gucci's top designer had personally delivered the clothes he had made. A shocked CLA asked Yu Jeha a question. Did you order something without the Captain Nim knowing about it? Yu Jeha became flustered. Hey! How the hell can I make Gucci's top designer do anything? Do you know how snobby he is? But there's no way that the monarch of destitution would have sent such a design. Yu Jeha started to blank out. He had definitely sent the design to Sasaki, but how the hell did that girl? It was at that moment. Ding! Yu Jeha gasped after seeing the text message he received. I sent a present to Ju Hian Nim. His fans wanted to support him. I wanted to send a better design, but Jeha Appa, you said that Ju Hian Nim won't wear it unless it was something like this. Yu Jeha almost started to scream. What kind of fan is able to make Gucci's top design do such a thing? It hasn't even been a week since I sent the design over. What the hell kind of believers has she gathered? I hope it is not a dangerous person. But before that this is an artifact. The sweatsuit in the video was moving around on its own. The farmers sent a message about that as well. Apparently it is an S-grade defense type artifact this feels like it is made of an artifact. I think this is processed artifact goods. Processed artifact goods. Basically, this meant that the clothes were made of fiber, fabric, or thread-shaped artifacts. The artifact-related business Ju Hian was having Edward start up was in a similar field as well. That's great. 
Hyung Min was looking for a new defense artifact since Aegis was broken in the Tower of Pride. Yu Jae-ha continued to scream internally. Fuck, it's an S-grade defense type artifact made by a Gucci designer, how much is this thing worth? Seo Lei, who was reading the messages, started to speak as if she realized something. What? A fan? Is this Sasaki? You said she was going to make some kind of gathering to upgrade the Avesta sacred text. Colas jaw dropped in shock. Anyway, it's going to be extremely expensive if it was made by this top designer. I'm so jealous. I want to wear it too. Yu Jaha was in despair. It probably costs more than my annual salary. I'm so jealous. I want to receive something like this from a female fan too. The despairing Yu Jaha took away Colas phone. He then quickly tried to send a message to the farmers. Hide it. Hide it. Ciole started to glare after seeing what he was trying to do. Hey. What the hell are you doing? I'm going to wear it. The captain Nim doesn't know that he has fans yet. What? What if she asks you to send a picture of him wearing it or something? I'm going to send a picture of me. Ciole started to shake her head and sneer. It's going to fit differently on you than the Captain Nim. First of all, you guys are not the same height. As they were chatting what the hell are you guys looking at? Excuse me? Ah, uh, you see. Yu Jaha suddenly ran over and interrupted their conversation. Shoo, shoo. Captain Nim, the princess is heading over. You should go see her. Ju Hien was dragged by Yu Jaha and forcibly sat down. At the same time what? You want me to get revenge for father? Chairman Quan's youngest daughter gasped after hearing her brother's suggestion. But she quickly pretended to be modest after seeing the handsome man sitting next to Director Quan. Do you really have to talk about such things with Mr. Tao here? The person that was dragged here was one of the monarchs, Tao, the monarch of popularity. This man had temporarily pushed down the monarch of seduction, who had been one of the original 15 monopolizers, to get there. He was a famous musician who was on the top of the billboard charts and had fans all around the world. He was the artifact user with the most fans among the monarchs. Until not too long ago that is. C.O. Juhian, that damn bastard. The royalty and heiress fans who had been sponsoring him had dropped their memberships in his fan cafe. My important artifact funding sources have all disappeared. They were quite useful as they had offered him artifacts every so often. Fuck, they were like my excavation team that didn't cost me any money to maintain. He had heard that all of those people had chosen to support Seo Juhian instead. How could he not go crazy after that? Why would they support such a criminal? That wasn't all. He had seen a paparazzi picture of Seo Juhian not too long ago, but he had almost fainted in shock after seeing an article that came out after that. Why? Tao is just an downgraded version of Seo Juhian. Tao almost went crazy with anger after seeing that. It was fine that he used a plastic surgery artifact, but for some reason, the plastic surgery artifact had turned his face to be oddly similar to Juhian's. He didn't know the reason for it. He thought it was just because Seo Juhian was handsome, but a downgraded version of Seo Juhian? I really need to get rid of that Seo Juhian bastard. Anyway, Chairman Kwan's oldest son was quite serious after having called his youngest sister here. Look at father's condition right now. Of course you need to help father. He only called your name over and over in the hospital room today. The youngest daughter sighed after hearing that. How was she supposed to love her father who committed such shameful acts by the river? Furthermore, it had been a one-sided love from her father from the beginning. The eldest son said something as if he was reading her mind. Father's wealth didn't you want to get it? Humph. Co Juhian took it all away thanks to you. Her brother's eyes flashed after hearing that. The most important wealth is still in father's possession. Ugh. Director Kwan, who was glaring, picked up a document his subordinates brought over as he continued to speak. It's pretty simple. You and Tao need to work together. You have the ability to amplify an artifact's power. But. Her brother continued to speak. Tao has had to cancel everything because of Seo Juhian. 
What? Appa, is Seo Juhian the reason you didn't show up for that fan meeting last time? Tao and the eldest son chuckled as if they were flustered. Actually, it was because I found the fans to be disgusting. Either way, TKBM, who was sponsoring Tao, the monarch of popularity, thought that this was a great opportunity. Your artifact's ability would create synergy with Tao to send Seo Juhian away for good. It'll be even better if you can use the fans to drop Seo Juhian's company's image as well. Create some accidents, have some of them be black consumers, and other things like that. Can we really do that? Yeah. He's the owner of a company as well. Black consumers are also customers. We can use things like that to lower the value of his company and counterattack him. We should have used such a method from the beginning. No, right now is the best time to do it since the value of his company is on the rise. They started to smile wickedly. For reference, the impact that fans could have was scary. Even Seo Juhian would probably find it difficult to handle this issue. It seemed as if Seo Juhian was only assertive with artifact users. It's not like he's going to attack the regular fans. Seo Juhian would be buried in society if he laid a hand on the civilians. Even Pandora wouldn't be able to deal with the fallout except by removing Seo Juhian from the monarch list. That would mean that he would lose the qualification to earn the monarch's heirloom that would show up soon. An eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Their eyes were flashing as they smiled. I'm sorry for making you wait. Juhian Nim no, Mr. Juhian. The British princess's eyes were sparkling as she sat down in front of Juhian. You said you have something to request from me. To be honest with you, what? Victoria's artifact is one thing, but he's aiming for that thing. A fake Morrigan's artifact. The prince seemed quite shocked but Juhian gently chuckled and picked up the mug. I will keep your secret. You're probably doing it to keep England safe. The prince and the British prime minister both dropped their jaws in shock. C.O. Juhian, this crazy bastard. He had instantly recognized that this artifact was fake although even an SS grade official appraiser had failed to notice. Yu Jeha was looking at Juhian with disgust. I'm the one who realized it was a fake. But Juhian would have probably assumed the same even if he had not told him. That's why he wasn't interested in that divine grade artifact and just had me buy some weird artifacts. Juhian continued to speak. Why are you carrying around a fake artifact? Fake artifact. How dare you speak such ludicrous nonsense. The prince clenched his eyes shut after seeing that Juhian showed no reaction. He probably realized that there was no point in lying in front of Seo Juhian any longer. To be honest with you, it was so that I could gain one of the monarch's heirloom. Having a divine grade artifact would allow me to meet the requirements of being a monarch and having my name up as a monarch would give me the qualifications to gain an heirloom. Juhian sighed. Please don't do anything stupid if you don't want to die. How many bastards do you think are trying to become a monarch by gaining a divine grade artifact? Cat seemed to have gotten everyone's tongue at Juhian's question, but Yu Jeha seemed a bit confused. He whispered to Juhian. Excuse me, Captain Nim. What are those monarch's heirlooms that even England is acting like this? How the hell would I know, you bastard? You probably know better since you were the monarch of fraud. Juhian, who had not been able to become a monarch due to environmental circumstances in the past, snorted. The monarch's heirlooms these were special reward artifacts that only showed up to the fifteen monarchs. Once they appeared, only the people who were in possession of these artifacts were officially considered to be monarchs. Chairman Quan had cherished his heirloom quite a bit as the monarch of conquest. The only thing I'm certain about is that they are special buff-type artifacts with amazing abilities. The monarchs had changed significantly once they got those artifacts in the past. They had been strong to start with but they seemed as if they were demigods once they got them. Juhian had bothered Yu Jeha, who had been the monarch of fraud at the time, multiple times a day because he was curious about the heirlooms hey, the monarch's heirlooms what kind of artifacts are they? Yu Jeha had just chuckled at him. Captain Nim, there's no need for you to know. Shut up, I said, what kind of artifacts are they? Ah, please stop thinking about it. Why are you so curious when you aren't even a monarch? I bought you booze. 
I know it was the company card. It was my card. I know all of your cards are unusable Captain Nim. I got them reactivated. I see. Anyways, don't worry about it. Hey. You only got your incomparable restoration ability because you got that monarch's heirloom. Not really. It's just my skill. The slightly no, extremely disrespectful Yu Jeha at that time had even treated Ju Hian as if he was an idiot. Bring me 100 billion won and some women if you really want to know. Oh, and buy some of my paintings too. Are you really trying to forcibly sell your paintings? Captain, you're the only one who ever buys my paintings. Fine. Hand it over. All right, the money is in my account. Hurry up and tell me. To be honest with you my ass, did you really think I would tell you, you retarded captain? You're just Chairman Kwan's little doggy bastard. Ha ha ha. What Ju Hian managed to hear after beating him half to death was a r, rare reward. An epic reward? You can see it as rights to the monarch position. No matter what, it is extremely beneficial to have it. That was all he managed to get out of Jeha. It was probably really good if that extremely picky bastard claimed it was good. I need to make sure to get an heirloom no matter what. That was the only way to make sure the future didn't turn as terrible as it had been in the past. It would be great if all of his team members could become monarchs and earn heirlooms as well. It's important to find the other team members in order to do that, Juhian scrunched his eyes. Where would the rest of those punks be right now? As Juhian was deep in thought excuse me, Captain Nim. What's wrong? You look upset. Siole and Yujeha were worried about Juhian. Juhian looked toward Yujeha when suddenly, the past Yujeha and the present Yujeha overlapped with each other in his mind. Ho! Don't even think about the heirlooms if you're not a monarch. You retard. Thinking about the past is making me extremely angry. Um, Captain Nim. Yu Jeha. You're working overtime today. Ha. Huh. Why this time? What the hell just happened? What did I do wrong? Yu Jeha started to cry. While that was going on Miss Holton, excuse me for prying, but have you ever slept with the Captain Nim? Irene almost sprayed the tea she was drinking after hearing Chloe's question. They were currently observing the monarch of fate as Ju Hian ordered. But what did she just ask? Julian actually did spit up the coffee he was drinking. Hey Chloe. He rebuked Chloe for asking such a question but Chloe was being serious. Please don't eavesdrop on our conversation, Vice Captain. Do you think I listened in because I wanted to? Irene was flailing around while her face turned red. No, that. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I hope you haven't misunderstood me. I didn't mean it like that. I just meant if you've literally fallen asleep around him. Chloe, who had been checking the condition of all of Juhian's group members, continued to speak while looking at Irene's examination file. The captain's dominance is extremely strong. He might put the people around him at risk while he is sleeping because he can't suppress it when he's asleep. In simple terms, his dominance could make people around him have nightmares or even be controlled by him. Irene and Julian seemed to realize something at that moment. Then is the reason Mr. Juhian always sleeps on his own. Juhian always kept the seat next to him open whenever he was on a plane or train. He also enjoyed staying up deep in thoughts while other people went to sleep. Although it doesn't suit his personality, he has a tendency to cherish the people around him. Ho, oh, I thought he was just a sensitive boss who couldn't sleep when others were around. You would think so, right? Chloe sounded brusque as she said that but her gaze was very warm. Maybe that was the reason. Irene started to smile in joy. Miss Chloe, I thought you didn't like Mr. Juhian. She was extremely brusque with Juhian when compared with how Siole treated Juhian. That wasn't all. Mr. Juhian said that you think he is your bitter enemy or something, Miss Chloe. Ah. Julian became interested after hearing that. Chloe had always seemed to dislike Juhian but something seemed to have happened between the two of them once again when they were in that final tomb. Chloe started to laugh out loud. Bitter enemy? I guess he's talking about that time. That was right. 
Ju Hian would kill his allies if he had reason to do so and he had taken away Chloe's sight in one eye at that final tomb. Why? All who look at the world with two eyes will embrace despair. Death will strike down. Ju Hian had immediately stabbed Chloe's eye with an artifact as soon as he read the tumblif. It was so that she wouldn't be affected by the conditions of the trap. He was trying to save Chloe while facing the attack of the trap on his own. The trap had activated almost instantly after that. Captain Nim. That trap ended up only attacking Ju Hian. He had managed to save his life thanks to Chloe's medical skills, but Ju Hian seemed to have had a misunderstanding. I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you, she had muttered those words over and over while grinding her teeth. He probably thought that she hated him for taking away her friends and her sight. However it's obvious that the person I wanted to kill was Chairman Quan. Ju Hian cherished his subordinates. The situation was so dire that he had determined that it was better to lose one eye than to lose her life. It's nothing much. He's not a bitter enemy but someone who feels like a bitter enemy from a distant past. Ju Hian had been a patient at the hospital she worked at, and somehow, she ended up getting tangled up with that scamming bastard. Irene was happy after seeing the look in Chloe's eyes. Miss Chloe, I'm just relieved that you don't hate Mr. Ju Hian. Chloe started to frown after hearing that. No, I hate him very much. E, excuse me. I had a job. What kind of scoundrel makes someone quit that job and force them to sign a contract? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. So please don't worry about me and give your best with the Captain Nim. Chloe continued to speak with a slightly grumbling expression. And personally, it makes me angry to see C.O.L.A. stick to the Captain Nim the way she does. Excuse me? Why? It was at that moment. Chloe. Julian urgently shouted. She looked to see what was going on and saw that Yang Chen was coming out of the Monarch of Fate store. He was the past Monarch of the Sun. He ended up crippled because of the artifact's risk and was banished to their tomb raiding team. Ju Hian had pretended not to know and helped him recover to be useful again, but that bastard had betrayed them, forgetting about everything Ju Hian had done for him. Grind. Julian's gaze was burning up. The bastard seemed to be heading somewhere after getting a cab. Did he get some information from the Monarch of Fate? There was a reason he believed that to be the case. Region 3 Penitentiary please. Julian was sure he heard that thanks to the hearing enhancement artifact. Something seemed weird. Why is he heading to the penitentiary? Nobody related to that bastard or TKBM should be at the penitentiary based on Julian's information. Let's follow him. They started to follow Yang Chen after the vice captain gave the order. Yang Chen soon arrived at the penitentiary. You're Dan, right? CO Ju Hian's remaining team members he had a twisted smile while meeting with the prisoner who was one of those members. We need to have a long chat. He had no idea about who had followed him there. At that moment Wu. Tao Appa. I. L. O. V. E. Tao. Kaya. Appa, you're so handsome. Please come out soon. The largest concert hall in London was full of frantic cheers and excitement. There were 50 people inside already with many more waiting outside. The person at the center of this attention was none other than Tao, the monarch of popularity. This is a concert to get rid of Seo Ju Hian. I'll get rid of your qualifications to earn an heirloom first. The monarch of popularity started to smile. But as he did that screech. Multiple Mercedes-Benz stopped in front of Tao's concert hall. The people entering the hall gasped but were happy. Tao truly is different. He's at a different level. There are so many people with such expensive cars coming here. Of course. Did you expect anything else from our Tao? Sadly, they would soon be disappointed. Time for roll call. 1. 2. 3. 4. 5. 6. All here. Good. Shall we get started? These people who had arrived at the concert were devils. Chapter, 217. Kaya. Tao Appa. Loud screams were echoing through the concert hall. 
This was Wembley Stadium, the Field of Dreams, one of the largest stadiums in the world. This place, England's mecca of football and a stadium where many famous musicians have played, was currently full of screams for the monarch of popularity. Appa. Take me. Kaya. Tao was laughing out loud while listening to their screams from behind the stage. The stadium is full. The concert had indeed sold out. He lived up to his title as the monarch of popularity and managed to easily sell out the 90 00 tickets for this venue, and now he just needed to slowly prepare to drag Juhian down. He would start right here. How? I'm going to hypnotize everybody who is here. He would make them all have negative feelings about Seo Juhian. But they wouldn't just simply bother Juhian as that would not be enough. They would be black consumers, use hidden cameras, boycott, commit harmful terrorist acts, and even commit murder. He would make them do all sorts of terrible deeds to Juhian. Even Seo Juhian cannot attack regular civilians. Beside that, how could he handle 90 00 people? As Tao was about to activate the hypnosis artifact and get on the stage Mr. Tao, a staff member who was close to Tao came urgently looking for him. He looked like a regular staff member, but he was actually part of Tao's entourage and knew a lot about artifacts. Tao started to frown after seeing that his expression looked quite serious. What is it, what's wrong? Actually, I heard some information that some members of the royal family have shown up at the concert hall. Really? So what? That's good. No please wait a moment. Stop the stage device. The audience started to wonder what was going on as the music had started but Tao had not come out. What the hell, bring out our appa. Tao became angry after hearing their shouts as well. What the hell's wrong with you? The performance has started. Don't you know that focus is extremely important for my artifact? Like I said, some members of the royal family might be here. What about it? What do you mean, what about it? It's weird that seven members of the royal family would show up to your performance. Tao almost threw the microphone in his hand. Why is that weird, you son of a bitch? Is there a law that the princess can't come to my performance? Do you want to get fired? No, that's not it. The staff member shouted in frustration. Some of the princesses who have shown up are said to be Seo Juhian's fans. You never know. The information might have been leaked. Our CEO has suggested that we don't go through with the plan to take down Seo Juhian, just in case that was the case. We might end up getting investigated by Pandora. Tao became extremely angry. Are you crazy? When do you think I'll be able to have a concert like this ever again? Do you think it is easy to gather 90 00 people? This is our chance of a lifetime. Most importantly, this was a chance for him to use Quan Juhi to upgrade his artifact. That was why Tao, who didn't want to miss this opportunity, vehemently opposed this suggestion. I'm just having a concert that was planned in advance and only added the thing about Seo Juhian this morning. How the hell would the information have leaked? You never know. Some of the princesses were candidates for monarchs. We should be wary of them. Are you stupid? They were candidates but they didn't actually become monarchs. Pandora just put them on the candidates list to look good to their member countries. Look at you shaking in fear because some bitches from the royal family who couldn't even become monarchs are here. We will proceed as planned. Get lost. But are they really here? Are you sure? N, no, that. Get lost if you aren't even sure of it. Why can't you just think that the princesses decided to cast Seo Juhian aside and come cheer for Tao? Whole. The fans are stupid idiots who will follow me like sheeps if I just flirt with them a little. There's no need to worry about the princesses even if they have artifacts. Their heads are just as empty. The staff member clicked his tongue. Whatever, I'm sure it'll be okay. The guards would have already caused a scene if the royal family was here. The audience started to cheer once Tao appeared on stage. Kaya. Appa. Tao started to smile in response. We are starting the plan. Who cares if the royal family is here? As a result I have something special to tell all of you cuties here today. Will you hear me out? Yees. 
Tao activated the artifact. Chairman Quan's youngest daughter started to smile while sitting in the VIP section. It's time to use the amplification artifact. That would make it possible to thoroughly brainwash all of these people. She activated the amplification artifact. Tao confirmed that she had activated the artifact before he started to speak to brainwash the audience. To be honest with you, I almost died in a car accident not too long ago. The other driver was Seo Juhian. But at that moment, MMPH, Chairman Quan's youngest daughter was abducted by someone as she was activating the artifact. Quan Ju he became anxious after feeling someone grab her from behind. Wait a minute, who the hell are you guys? M. 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 P. H. Some mysterious men were the ones to grab Chairman Quan's daughter. That wasn't all. Their movements looked as if they all had special training. They started to speak after commandeering the concert hall. We are here because we received information about an artifact terrorist attack. Please step back as it is dangerous. Chairman Quan's daughter and Tao were captured without knowing why. What the hell, why are the soldiers here? Are the royal family or whatever really here? Of course, Tao would not just sit back and let them do as they pleased. I don't know what is going on, but I can't miss this opportunity when so many people are gathered here. Maybe that was the reason. Wait, let me tell you about Seo Juhian. As Tao and Chairman Quan's daughter tried to activate their artifacts again, they felt the power of strong artifacts that seemed to be angry at what they were trying to do. Flash. The artifacts that were activated were female legendary hero grade artifacts. Joan of Arc, Nangi, Empress Dowager Xixi, and other strong artifacts flashed their eyes. The powers of the activated artifacts soon destroyed the stage that Tao was on bang. Okay. Follow me. Joan of Arc's artifact started to lead the crowd out of the concert hall. Joan of Arc's artifact had the power to lead crowds around. Kaya, big sis. The crowd instantly turned away from Tao. Tao started to grind his teeth in response. Those damn princesses. He continued to grind his teeth as he quickly activated his artifact. Something amazing happened at that moment. The gazes of the 90 00 people who were about to head out changed and they started to glare at the princesses. This was Tao's power. Rip those princesses to shreds and drag Seo Juhian down. Seo Juhian cannot be allowed to have the qualifications for an heirloom. The crowd started to pick up anything that could act as a weapon around them. However, Tang. Ugh. Tao fell down after being shot in the leg. There was a princess viciously smiling when he turned toward the shooter. Please stop your artifact while we are asking nicely. The princess pointed the gun at Tao again. Unless you want to die with a bullet through your brain in the middle of your performance. That wasn't all. Empress Dowager Tsishi's artifacts suppressed the bodyguards while the Queen's Knights Brigade appeared to protect the princesses. Some of their dominance levels were so strong that they were at the level of monarchs, making Tao and Quan Ju He unable to believe what they were seeing. This makes no sense, why do the princesses have such strong abilities? I thought they were people who couldn't become monarchs. The regular middle-aged man who was holding Quan Ju He let out a cough. They weren't people who couldn't become monarchs. Some of the princesses had received invitations to become monarchs but could not do so. Why? Kaya, I'm too embarrassed to be at the same level as Juhi and Nim. That's right. How could I dare to be at Juhi and Nim's level? We also can't leave the other fans behind and be with Juhi and Nim by ourselves. Kaya. They had said some nonsense like that. However, he just kept his mouth shut and started to drag Quan Juhi away. You are under arrest for planning a suspected large area artifact terrorist act. Quan Ju he started to shout in anger at the man wearing a turtleneck sweater who had grabbed her. What the fuck do you mean by suspected artifact terrorist? Who the hell are you, mister? Who am I? I'm the chief of the general staff in the British army. Fuck, today was supposed to be my day off. But what could he do about it? Your highness, we have captured her. The eyes of the British princess flashed after receiving that information. He said they captured her. The other princesses were extremely happy to hear that as well. Oh my. 
that's a relief. I'm so glad that the brainwashing artifact was not activated. I can't believe they were trying to use so many people to harm our Juhi and Nim. As for the Chief of the General Staff, Chief of the Air Staff, Chief of the Naval Staff and others who were dragged here by the princesses despite it being their day off they were sweating bullets. Excuse me, Your Highness. If you use the army for such personal reasons. What are you talking about? The Prime Minister would agree with what we did. Artifact terrorism is extremely dangerous. It looks like they'll spill the beans if we interrogate them but is this really okay? You used to like Tao in the past. Please shut your mouth. Juhi and Nim is the best. The chiefs continued to sweat bullets. How could our innocent and lovely princesses end up like this? Anyway, please make a public proclamation about this incident with Tao. We need to make sure something like this never happens again. They had quite a lot of power. Do you think he'll just sit still? Just think about how he might use this cooperative monstrous weapon. They already didn't care about the means and methods, but they couldn't run completely wild because of their positions. But for princesses around the world to be his fans this bastard would definitely find a way to use them. That might really lead to World War II. Ah, uh, anyway, you can't tell him. Got that? Oh, and the captain him can't find out about the sweatsuit either. Cole started to glare at you Jeha. Hey, be honest. It's just because you want that sweatsuit for yourself, isn't it? N, no. I'm just doing it for the Captain Nim and for world peace. What? Juhian tilted his head in confusion while looking at the two of them fighting. What's up with them? It was at that moment. Ding. Hmm. He received a message from the vice captain. I found Dan. Juhian's eyes opened wide. Chapter, 218. Captain Nim. Cole looked toward Juhian with a confused expression. This was only possible because Cole was able to notice even the slightest of changes to Juhian's expression. Did something happen? Juhian showed her the phone instead of responding. Cole was also shocked after seeing the message about finding Dan. Dan. Really? They really found him. I guess so. The chance of it being a lie was low because it was coming from the always do everything properly, Julian. They somehow managed to find him. Juhian had hired people to look for Dan but had no luck until now. He had no idea how they ended up finding him. Juhian immediately made the call. Julian picked up right away. Hey. Captain. Where is he? Julian scoffed at Juhian who got right down to business. You don't want to know how I found him. I don't care about your methods. Ho, oh, anyway, it's the penitentiary. Penitentiary? Juhian tilted his head. Yu Jeha was poking Cole on the side to ask a question as he listened. Hey, hey, who is Dan? Is he a lawyer? No, we already have one of those. What is it this time, an accountant? Or maybe a voluptuous babe? Cole looked at him with disbelief before saying one word. Hunter. Ah. That's right. There was still a hunt, huh? You mean someone like those shitty bastards Chairman Quan had with him? It was a combatant position that all excavation teams needed to have however, Yu Jeha, who had almost been killed by those motherfucking bastards when he landed in front of them as an old man, was shaking in fear. Why, why do you need such a scary person? Why else? The competition for tombs will be even more fierce from now on. It'll be extremely terrible when the heirlooms come into play. Dan was extremely strong. He was almost legendary among people who used battle-type artifacts in the past. He was a genius when it came to all sorts of battle-type artifacts and was strong enough to be a monarch. He was like a human weapon that allowed Juhian to only focus on excavation. The enemies all called him Azura and quaked in fear in front of this man who neither shed blood nor tears. A hunter is essential to an excavation team. However, Yu Jeha shook his head. And, no, a hunter is one thing, but he said the penitentiary. That means that he is a criminal. Now the Captain Nim's godly gotcha hands is plucking someone from the penitentiary. What? Godly gotcha hands? Yeah. 
he could not understand it at all. Why? It was because the way Ju Hian looked for his team members was quite odd. All these people had nothing in common. They had never even met Ju Hian. But each and every person he brought over was crazy strong. How else can he do that if he doesn't have godly gotcha hands? That wasn't all. Plus, everybody he brings over like that are all soulmates except for me. Were you guys all childhood friends or something? Huh? Why do you guys alienate me? We're not alienating you. You have no problem hanging out with us as if you've known us since birth whenever we go out to eat. Yu Jaha became extremely angry. I want to be a part of the secret conversations too. All of you share a common memory, don't you? Seo Lei nodded her head as if she understood. Fine. I'll let you know since you want to know so bad. I'll tell you about that memory or whatever. Yu Jaha's face lit up. Really? Thank you. The Captain M wouldn't tell me no matter how many times I asked. That was probably true. He had told them to not tell Jaha anything since it was annoying. Seo Lei, you're an angel. I think you might be the prettiest girl I've ever met. No, you really are the prettiest girl and I almost fell for you, but anyway, you'll be blessed. Seo Lei put her hand on Jaha's shoulder. There is something I need to ask before I tell you. Hmm. Seo Lei started to smile like a scamming ascetic. Do you believe in a former life? Yu Jaha's expression was quite the spectacle. It happened at that moment. What? What did you just say? Ju Hian raised his voice while talking on the phone. Around the same time Irene was looking at Julian and Chloe who had serious expressions on their faces. It was fine that they followed Yang Chen to this suspicious penitentiary. However um. The two of their expressions were too scary after chasing Yang Chen here. It was rare for Julian and Chloe to show such murderous intent on their faces as they were very rational people. But why M, did something happen with Mr. Yang Chen in the past? Chloe had a rare frown on her face after hearing the question. There's no need to speak formally about that bastard. Irene flinched after feeling the murderous intent Chloe was giving off. She did not know how many times Julian and Chloe had to suppress their anger while chasing after Yang Chen. Chairman Quan's damn dog. Yang Chen. He was the last person to join the tomb raiding team. TKBM's official excavation teams were made with 12 large teams the man who was in Team 1 and was the vice captain of all of TKBM's excavation teams had joined the unofficial 13th team, their tomb raiding team. It was pretty much a demotion. He had reached the monarch grade after getting his hands on Apollo's artifact. However, he overused the artifact until he became unable to use any artifact stronger than the C grade because of the artifact's risk. His body had been destroyed. He instantly fell from a monarch to a third-rate novice-grade low-grade artifact user. He had then been relieved of his position and sent to their tomb raiding team. But there was no point for it. He couldn't even go into tombs. Yang Chen was just a supporter. He was responsible for the team members' communications and their pay. He probably went crazy after having to face this demotion. It would probably be similar to a talented musician or surgeon who could not use their hand anymore. That was why Ju Hian had paid quite a lot of attention on Yang Chen to heal him. He was able to use up to A-grade artifacts again thanks to the Captain Nim, but he... Chloe clicked her tongue as she walked toward the penitentiary. Anyway, he had spent three years with the rest of the tomb raiding team as if they were all part of one large family. He was even on great terms with that scoundrel of a captain, and acted as if they were siblings. But how did things end up? That bastard had betrayed them. C.O. Ju Hian, captain and the greatest expert excavator. Julian Miller, the greatest analyst. Yu Jaha, the greatest restorer. Lee C.O. Lei, the greatest pathfinder. Dan, the greatest hunter. Chloe Loran, the greatest doctor. Ilya Volgov, the greatest aftermath cleanup crew. Those were the seven main members of the tomb raiding team. There were two other supporters with the greatest abilities as well. All of them, including these two supporters, had disappeared aside from Yu Jaha and Yang Chen. 
To be more specific, Chairman Kwan had gotten rid of them and their tomb raiding team had forcibly been erased from the world that day. It was no wonder they were grinding their teeth in anger. How dare he make the captain cry tears of blood? What the hell is he planning now? Excuse me, Miss Chloe. Ah, please don't worry. It's nothing. She could understand how Ju Hian was feeling and what he was trying to do. He probably wanted to gather all of the old team members again and place them in the highest positions possible. I will help him do that. Let's focus on what's in front of me right now. Maybe that was the reason. They had been trying to figure out why Yang Chen had come to the penitentiary as quickly as possible. However, the moment they met with a guard that Irene had bribed Dan, they couldn't help but freak out after seeing the picture of a prisoner the guard handed them. It was a muscular Asian man in his mid-thirties whose features were quite sharp. They saw their former teammate in the picture. That was why they freaked out. How does Yang Chen know about Dan? The Yang Chen of this time should not know about Dan at all. Was it just a coincidence? Or did he come looking for Dan because he knows something? Either way, Julian had contacted Ju Hian as his mind was a chaotic mess. And currently Dan is on death row. Ju Hian started to frown while listening to Julian. No wonder I couldn't find him. His network did not reach the penitentiary. But why? It's not yet time for Ju Hian realized something and quickly asked. What about his daughter? What? His daughter. Su Wei. Julian realized something and told him to wait before quickly hanging up. Have you been well? You homicidal maniac. Yang Chen, the person who was pretty much responsible for sending him to prison, started to smile. There was a man in an orange jumpsuit in front of him. Right now, he was just the owner of a butcher shop. He was just a regular dad with a four years old daughter. However this bastard is going to end up as Seo Juhian's teammate. He was just a thorn in Yang Chen's eyes right now. Maybe that was the reason. I'm sure you know why I'm here. He had come to take care of Dan. Dan would end up being extremely helpful to Seo Juhian according to the Monarch of Fate's prophecy. This was the warning the Monarch of Fate had given him. You must get rid of all of them before the heirlooms appear. Can you do it? Of course he could do it. Yan Chen started to sneer internally. This bastard was just framed for murder. The person responsible had been a member of TKBM's excavation team. The son of one of their partner companies had come to learn about excavation when he and Chairman Kwan's eldest son had caused an accident. Apparently they killed a civilian while fighting after getting drunk, there were quite a lot of casualties as many people ended up being involved. Dan happened to show up because his daughter had gotten lost. Of course, Yang Chen knew better than anybody else that Dan was not the murderer. He was the one who had framed Dan. He had called the aftermath cleanup crew that was great at manipulating evidence and messed with people's memories and the CCTV. Dan claimed he was innocent but he was at a disadvantage because he could not even hire a lawyer. Even the judge did not side with Dan since he had no evidence. It's not hard to change the criminal. They helped the actual criminal escape out of the country. They made sure to shut up any and all witnesses. As for the dead they could not talk. So many people had to work their asses off to take care of that incident. It's still unsettling because the police are not done with the investigation. The FBI somehow heard about the situation and was working around the clock to investigate. He needed to make Dan admit to the crime to make his days more relaxed. Like I said, it wasn't me. The culprit was that man named Stephen who was there. Dan's fists were shaking. He had seen the person who had committed the crime. But the business partner who came with Yang Chen clicked his tongue and started to speak. Man, this person doesn't know how to live in this world. I will get right to the point. President Maison, the father of the man you are claiming is the culprit he's in a coma after falling down in shock. What are you going to do about it? Don't give me some bullshit about a public defender or an appeal and just confess. I never killed anyone. I really didn't. The evidence is there. The evidence. There's proof you killed the person on the CCTV. Dan clenched his eyes shut. He had no idea how that was possible. 
he just went to deliver some meat that day. He ended up witnessing the murder when he went to look for his daughter who had disappeared. It was at that moment. Yang Chen's eyes flashed wily. Now that I think about it, you you have a daughter. Dan's gaze changed after his daughter was mentioned. I heard she'll die if she doesn't get surgery. But you can't give her the surgery because you don't have the money. Dan's hands started to shake again. Yang Chen started to smile as if he had been waiting for this. I'll let your daughter live if you confess. TKBM will pay for her surgery. Dan's eyes flashed. Yang Chen could not tell at first, but he became more certain the more he saw Dan. This bastard has quite high levels of dominance and fit. The man himself seemed to have no clues about artifacts at all though. However, he would become a headache if he ever learned about his abilities. And if he ended up in Seo Juhian's hands I can't let Seo Juhian get any stronger than he is already. That meant that he needed to get rid of this seed before he could meet with Seo Juhian. Yang Chen started to smile wily once again. Sadly, he had no idea who was in the next room. Chapter, 219 On the other hand, Julian and Chloe fell into states of shock. It was great that Irene was able to get them access to observe the room next to them. It wasn't hard to spy on Yang Chen since they had an eavesdropping artifact as well. However I didn't know Yang Chen would be involved in this way. The guard who had received Irene's sponsorship. A.K.A. Bribe was very nice and explained the situation to them. It was buried because it wasn't a big issue in the press, but I'm certain it was this incident. The guard was blanking out while looking at the beautiful Irene and Chloe. Irene was shocked after seeing the article on the guard's phone. Ah, I know about this incident. I remember my brother looking at it. Chloe and Julian had never heard about this incident. It was understandable as the incident was only mentioned in the regional newspaper. It looks like the incident itself was buried on purpose. Dan must have come up with a pseudonym later, as his name was different right now. Anyway, the incident had happened in a party hall. It seems to have been a party for businesses to celebrate excavating some artifacts. A murder happened inside the hall. For some reason, this incident was still buried and not mentioned much in the press. It looks like an employee of the hall was murdered. Julian started to frown. The incident was simple. Dan got into an argument with two men and killed an employee who came over to stop them. The CCTV and evidence at the scene of the crime made it so that nobody looked further into it. Well, Julian would have probably let it go with that much information as well. But the guard said something that changed his mind. The two bastards that supposedly fought with the culprit they were actually the TKBM chairman's eldest son and a member of his excavation team. I think they said that the excavation team member was someone with some clout as well. The guard was obviously saying that the person had some backing. Chloe started to speak as if she suddenly remembered this incident. I do think I heard about this incident. Our organization was talking about how an artifact user probably buried the incident. Since she was part of an NGO that despised artifact users, they probably detested an incident like this and had tried to cause a ruckus. They tried to put articles in the newspaper and even tried to protest. But none of it worked. It was as if an artifact was burying things related to this incident on purpose. It was completely forgotten in the world. Of course, it was quite obvious who was responsible for it. Yang Chen, this son of a bitch. They were certain. Since it involved Director Quan, TKBM would have definitely been involved and Yang Chen would have taken care of everything. This was tampering with the evidence by using artifacts. This was the work of people who would go on to be known as the Aftermath Cleanup Crew. Chloe thoroughly read the article before putting her hand against her forehead in defeat. They would need to win the trial in order to clear Dan of murder and get him out of here. But Dan is at a disadvantage since they tampered with it so much. I don't see any potential to win. That was why Yang Chen, the person who was responsible for tampering with everything, sounded confident as well. He knew that the prosecutor in charge of this incident was no joke. He was also someone who had an extremely favorable relationship with TKBM. Will we be able to get Dan out? Even the captain there might struggle with this. Julian started to scoff. Who does she think she is saying that to? 
don't you want to save your daughter? Dan bit down on his lips while thinking about how Yang Chen had laughed. He was certain of it. This had all been planned. He didn't know how they did it, but they must have tampered with the CCTV and somehow messed with people's memories as well. How was he so sure? It was because he saw it clearly. He saw the two bastards who had looked like messes inside the restroom on the day of the murder. I'm certain those bastards are the real culprits. Quan Sung Wu, the eldest son of TKBM's chairman Quan Tae Jun. Stephen, the young man who seemed to be a member of TKBM's excavation team. Dan had been frantically running around the building looking for his daughter who had disappeared. He had heard it when he found his daughter. Hey, shit. What are we going to do about this? It's already been 20 minutes. Is someone coming or not? When is the cleanup crew headed over? Who told you to mess around with an artifact knife? Fuck, I was just testing to see if it worked well. This bastard kept peeking at me. What the fuck do you mean he was peeking at you? Steveen. I told you to get off the drugs. The two men had been fighting in front of the bloodied employee. But they were not the only ones there. Now now, please stop fighting. Please remain calm while I discuss with the aftermath cleanup crew. He was certain that he saw that man there. Yan Chen was there to clean up the mess. That wasn't all. Hey little girl. When will your daddy get here? His daughter, whom he had thought had disappeared, was with Yang Chen as well. It was as if he was trying to lure Dan to this location. That was why he was certain. I'm certain those bastards did something with those things called artifacts. But nobody would believe him regardless of what he said. There were weird things caught on the CCTV as well. And currently I heard about the situation from Mr. Yang Chen. What do you plan on doing? The public defender was looking at Dan as if she was bored. She had tried to find Dan innocent at first, however we will reward you as well if you get him to confess. Even this lawyer had been bribed by Yang Chen. She would receive a hefty reward if she got Dan to confess. They would reward her with an artifact. It's not like I have other opportunities to earn an artifact. TKBM was one of the top three excavation teams in the entire world. She had heard that they had plenty of artifacts that could change a person's life. They even said that she would be able to select the artifact she received. There's not much to this case since the evidence is so clear anyway. She wouldn't be able to make any money or advancements to her career through this incident. Something smelled fishy based on how very important people were personally getting involved, but who cares? This man just messed with the wrong people. That guy was an important person in TKBM who even has connections to the president. It was better to convince the defendant and get paid rather than messing with such people. I would be lying if I said I wasn't greedy for that artifact. Maybe that was the reason. Your daughter is sick. It's probably best for her to get the surgery. She started to slowly convince Dan. The other side doesn't want to drag this out and rather than going to trial when the results are obvious, it might be better to confess and have them pay for your daughter's surgery. That's beneficial for me too. Okay then, what do you want to do? Dan's hands were shaking. He felt wronged but this might be the only thing he could do for his sick daughter. It's my fault for not taking care of her better. His wife had passed away a long time ago, but he couldn't send his lovely daughter to join her so soon. But Dan knew the truth. He knew how many people were harmed and had their memories tampered with because of that incident. He also knew that they were the ones who framed him. Excuse me, ma'am. As I mentioned before, the real culprits are the people in TKBM and not me. The lawyer sighed and jumped up from her chair. I understand. Then I will resign. I'll give up on representing you. Excuse me. The lawyer decided to come out strong. I don't really want to represent someone who is going to lose. Whole. The lawyer calmly started to scam Dan. Other lawyers are going to find this case to be a headache as well. Even if you try to find another lawyer, nobody is going to want a case like this. It also doesn't look like you have the money to hire another lawyer. Rather than being stubborn, I think it would be smarter to take TKBM's goodwill and take the money while they are still offering it. Your daughter is only four years old. 
please think about it carefully. You should know what the smart decision is. Dan clenched his eyes shut. Do I have no choice? I understand. Then I will confess. It was at that moment. Bang! The lawyer jumped up in shock after the door slammed open. W, what the? Who are you? Who else would I be? I am that person's lawyer. Julian was the one who had barged in. He looked at the lawyer with a cold gaze as he continued to speak. Who gave you permission to speak to him alone? Dan's lawyer could not believe what she was hearing. Whose permission? Excuse me. I am this person's lawyer. Ah, please go back since you are no longer needed. I am this man's lawyer. What did you say? Dan was shocked as well. E, excuse me. Julian glared at the lawyer regardless of how shocked Dan was right now. I didn't think you should let a piece of shit like her, who would let her personal benefits sway her decisions, handle this case. What do you mean by personal benefits? How could someone who calls themselves a lawyer sell their soul to the other side for an artifact? That's just too shameful. Hurry up and resign. Chloe whispered to Julian at that moment. Um, Vice Captain Nim. I'm sorry but do you even have a law license? The other lawyer started to grind her teeth. She had not noticed at first because she was shocked, but she quickly realized that this was the monarch of strategies. That's right. You, you're not even a lawyer. What the hell do you think you are doing when you aren't even a lawyer? I'm going to report you. Julian started to frown as if he was wronged. I am a lawyer. Of course, he was just a completely noob who recently got his license. Anyway, feel free to leave I can prove that this man was innocent. The lawyer could not believe it. Ha, ha. Innocent? Anyway, you're the person who has nothing to do with this. Get out before I call someone. Please get him to confess. Then we will give you a great artifact. Really? The lawyer turned pale after hearing her voice. Wait, how does he? Julian had turned on a recording artifact. He then started to chuckle. Should I send this to the press? Fuck. She ran out while claiming she would resign and asking Julian to delete the recording. Dan could only sit there and watch all this happen with confusion. Excuse me, I don't know who you are, but are you a different public defender? No. Mr. M. Hey Jean, I wanted to represent you after hearing about your situation. Ah, uh, but I don't have any money to pay for your services. Ah, uh, I don't need any money. I already received it. Dan looked at Julian with a suspicious gaze. What is it that you want? I don't need anything. I just want to take care of the incident and prove that you are innocent. Why are you helping me? Julian started to chuckle. I guess you must have saved a big oddball in your past life. Are you sure it'll be okay? Yes, I'm certain that he will confess. TKBM's captains were participating in the trial as witnesses. A lot of people had gathered at the courtroom after hearing about the case. They had kept the press at bay until now but it was quite a hot issue as TKBM's director Kwan and a famous celebrity had been summoned. Yang Chen started to smile while looking at Dan's seat. Anyway, we should be able to make Seo Juhian eat shit by getting this bastard executed. The other captains tilted their heads in confusion after seeing Yang Chin sneering. What does executing this bastard have to do with Seo Juhian? That just know there's a relation. It should be fine since I already took care of the lawyer. But at that moment hold on. Hey. Isn't that Seo Juhian? Yang Chen's eyes opened wide at this unexpected question. Seo Juhian. Did he just say Seo Juhian? Seo Juhian was actually sitting in the courtroom. Yang Chen foamed at the mouth while looking at Juhian who was snickering as if he came to see something entertaining. W, why is that bastard here? Something even more shocking happened at that moment. Hey! I, isn't that Julian Miller? Julian was at Dan's lawyer's seat. This was the lawyer of the tomb raiding team who had never been defeated. Chapter, 220 Hey! I, isn't that Julian Miller? Julian was at Dan's lawyer's seat. 
This was the lawyer of the tomb raiding team who had never been defeated. They became flustered. They rubbed their eyes and looked again but nothing had changed. The person in front of them was definitely Julian Miller, the monarch of strategies. In addition, Seo Juhian was in the room. They anxiously glared at Yang Chen. Hey! What the hell is going on? Why are those bastards here? Explain! What the fuck can I explain? Yang Chen wanted to swear. He was the one who wanted to know why those bastards were here the most. A flustered Yang Chen looked back and forth at Seo Juhian and Julian with a pale expression. What the hell is going on? Did they already know each other? No, that wasn't possible. He had already done a thorough investigation into Dan's life. Dan and Seo Juhian had no connections at all. But how? Juhian was laughing as he watched. It was surprising that that bastard was involved with Dan so early, but to think that he helped me find my friend. I don't need to search for him anymore. Thanks, you son of a bitch. Yang Chen started to shake after seeing Ju Hian's gaze that looked as if he was praising a dog who had fetched the stick. That son of a bitch. I'm definitely going to kill him. Yang Chen had been quite shocked and the monarch of fate had told him about Dan. Why? It was a coincidence, but it was someone he had already met. That was why he thought it was a chance to stealthily get rid of him before Seo Juhian could find him. However fuck, it's getting complicated. There was no way that those bastards would have gotten themselves involved with this case because they were bored. Juhian's gaze looked serious as he looked at Yang Chen. How dare you frame him? You guys are dead. He had a relaxed smile on his face but his gaze was extremely fierce. His gaze was giving off the signal that he would make them all pay. Yang Chen became even more anxious after seeing that gaze. Fuck, what the hell happened to the original lawyer? Why is that bastard here? He picked up his phone to send her a text message to complain. I'm going to give up on this case. He had received a message from Dan's original lawyer a few minutes ago. Anyway, please be careful. Those bastards are going to try to claim that the defendant is innocent. This damn bitch. Could you have sent that text any later? She probably sent the message at such a shitty time because she didn't want to be reprimanded. But putting this shitty lawyer aside, they were going to get Dan off clean. Yang Chen could not believe it. But he was not the only one who was flustered right now. Fuck, that bastard was a lawyer. I've never heard about it. No, I remember hearing that he graduated from Harvard Law School last year. The TKBM members in the audience became flustered as well. Last year? Then he's just a noob. The prosecutor's side started to speak at that moment. I heard that he changed lawyers earlier today, but is it really okay? I don't think the outcome will change. Julian started to smile. It will change. The defendant is innocent. The courtroom became rowdy after hearing that. Are you completely denying all charges? Yes, the defendant is not guilty. Whisper whisper. People started to get rowdy again. His confident demeanor made Yang Chen, who had fabricated all the evidence, start to frown while TKBM's excavation team members were shaking their legs. Vice Captain Nim, will it be okay? What if they noticed? Shut up. There's no way that is the case. Yang Chen quietly growled as his eyes flashed. It should still be okay. We brainwashed the witnesses with an artifact as well. There was no way they would say anything unexpected. Furthermore, Julian was a new lawyer who had never been in the courtroom before. Forget flipping everything, Julian should just focus on not stuttering and making a fool of himself. But worrying about Julian making a fool of himself was bullshit. Hey, what the hell is this? Something unbelievable was happening in the courtroom right now. It was something Yang Chen could have never even imagined. And at this moment objection. This was already the twenty-first time. Yang Chen swore internally after hearing Julian's voice again. This motherfucker. He turned his head to see a triumphant expression on Julian's face. He was currently examining the witnesses. They were the TKBM excavation team members and the business people who were at the scene of the crime, 
the same ones who have been told exactly what to say. What the witness just said contradicts itself. Are you sure you haven't been told what to say? Excuse me. Of course not. I'm just telling the truth. According to what the witness just said, he was whispering sweet nothings to a lady on the first floor while also witnessing a murder on the thirtieth floor. That's some amazing superpower. I am envious. That. Julian had been running laps around the opposition like a pro since the beginning. He was so calm and wise for a new lawyer. He was using facts and flashy methods to sway the judge and the jury. How could this happen? The prosecutor and the judge were quite shocked. This was not the skills of a rookie. Is he really a new lawyer? Of course, Ju Hien was watching the flustered people with as much joy as if he was in the movie theater enjoying some popcorn. This much is to be expected. He is a part of my team after all. He had been stuck under Chairman Kwan because he was a pushover. But this bastard was a veteran. Chairman Kwan's eldest son and the culprit, Stephen, who were called as witnesses, were grinding their teeth as they watched everything unfold. How could they not? How the hell did they take care of things that this bastard can do as he pleases? Their anger was not directed at Julian anymore but at Yang Chen. Yang Chen bit down on his lips. The true culprit was the problem. Stephen was the real murder. He might look like a regular member of TKBM's excavation team, but he was actually a VIP that even Chairman Kwan paid close attention to. Why? Stephen was the son of a central figure in the U.S. finance sector. Most importantly, that person was the major shareholder for TKBM's foreign shares. He had planned on stealing the know-how from TKBM and becoming a captain in his own independent team, but he just had to cause an accident with the eldest son. Fuck, I can't let the truth come out like this. TKBM's shareholders will all cause a fuss and they will receive quite the hit in their corporate image if the truth was revealed. It was already a shit show but it would become even worse of a shit show. Maybe that was the reason. Fuck, I need to do whatever it takes to make that bastard the murderer. But forget making him the murderer I definitely heard it. The victim and TKBM's members were fighting and I heard some screams I don't think the defendant was there at that time. I remember hearing something weird from the victim before he died. He said that he thought one of TKBM's members was doing drugs in the restroom. I think that was why he went to take a look. The defendant was with me at that time. We were delivering meat. He's not the culprit. Now that I think about it, I remember someone named Yang Chin coming to find me and using a weird coin. I feel like my memories were changed after that for some reason. Do you think he messed with your memories with an artifact? Fuck, are those bastards crazy? That was right. They were proving that Dan was innocent. All of the people who had originally claimed that Dan was the culprit were changing their stories. The presiding judge was in shock. What the what is going on? The members of the jury were confused after hearing these people change their stories. The other judges and the prosecutor were shocked as well. One it was no wonder the people responsible for fabricating the evidence were going crazy as well. Vice Captain Nim, what the hell is going on? Ju Hien almost fell to the ground laughing as he watched their reactions. What else could have happened? Julian had used Juga Kongming's artifact. He used it to figure out which artifacts were used and got rid of the effects using an opposing artifact. The reporters were getting excited at the changing testimonies. The reporters who had shown up because this was related to TKBM's excavation team had caught quite the scoop. Then was a member of TKBM's excavation team the true culprit? Did they mess with the witnesses? The TKBM employees started to cause a ruckus. Hey! All of you need to shut up. Stop spreading nonsense without any proof. The angry TKBM employees jumped up from their seats but the reporters were very happy to have such a juicy scoop. The prosecutor could not hold it in any longer and started to protest. Your Honor, this is unbelievable. The prosecutor glared at the witnesses and Julian. The witnesses are fooling around in this sacred courtroom. I believe we should punish the witnesses and the defense attorney. It was at that moment. Fooling around. Julian dropped a thick stack of papers in front of the prosecutor. 
the prosecutor looked at him in disbelief. W, what is this? Please confirm for yourself who did the fooling around here. The prosecutor quickly looked through the document and saw Pandora's seal of investigation clearly visible on it. These are the results from Pandora's authorized appraisers. They said that they found some unnatural evidence of artifacts having been used throughout the crime scene. Basically, they used an artifact to mess with the memories of the witnesses and tried to get rid of the evidence. The presiding judge shouted in anger. What did you say? Mess with their memories. Dominating their memories. This would become as big of an issue as Kira controlling the African children. Hey, this is breaking news. Breaking news. They even tried to frame someone for murder. The TKBM employees felt as if their asses were on fire. Most importantly why the hell are Pandora's appraisers involved in this? We told them so many times to not investigate it. The true culprit could not hold it in any longer and started to shout. How can we trust that appraisal from Pandora? The Pandora bastards could be in this with them. Julian responded. Then I guess that means that TKBM is doing shady business all the time since they always use Pandora's appraisers. Pandora is an internationally accredited organization and it comes to anything related to artifacts. Sir, what were you doing on that day? Stephen foamed at the mouth after hearing that. What qualifications does a lawyer from who knows where have to? The prosecutor quickly interjected as well. Mr. Miller. This trial is to question the crimes of the defendant, not to question the witness. Your Honor. There's no need to listen to this any longer. This is the defense's ploy to drag things out. Bang! This is currently the defense's time for questioning. Mr. Miller, please continue. Fuck! Yang Chen instantly glared at Ju Hian in anger. It looked as if he would not just give up like this. It's obvious that they pulled all sorts of strings to get that bastard Dan out. We have our methods too if you guys are going to come at us like this. He quickly looked toward his subordinate. The subordinate nodded his head and quickly sent a message. Excuse me. You want us to abduct that little girl named Sue? The TKBM members who were at the university hospital were shocked. They had moved Dan's daughter to a hospital connected with TKBM after making the deal with Dan. Keep an eye on her just in case. That was the order Yang Chen had given them. It was because he knew that Ju Hian would come looking for the daughter once Dan joined him. But the subordinate sighed while looking at the child who was sleeping on the bed. He wants me to keep an eye on her but nobody has shown up. Only the doctor and the nurses have come to see the girl. But at that moment, they saw some suspicious shadows moving about the hallway outside the room. It looked like a male nurse at first glance. However, their eyes were burning with anger as soon as they saw who it was. It couldn't be helped, since hey. You Jeha. Fuck, that got me good. You guys scared me. Yu Jeha was the one snooping around the room. He looked as if he was looking around to make sure nobody was nearby before going into the room. Yu Jeha awkwardly started to smile once he was caught. Am I not a bad person? I, I just came to see the patient. Came to see the patient my ass. The TKBM members started to chase him with fire in their eyes. Hey. Get him. Get that bastard. Who knows what that damn monarch of pushoverness is going to try to do this time. Yu Jeha screamed as buff men charged toward him. Hey, five people is overdoing it, don't you think? Hey. Don't come any closer. Yu Jeha started to run. The remaining members entered the room and started to speak while five of them chased after Yu Jeha. We found Yu Jeha. It looks as if Seo Juhian's people are trying to pull something as the vice captain Nim mentioned. We will move the girl somewhere else just in case. They tried to take the little girl who had woken up somewhere else. Sorry, did we wake you up? Come with us since this place is dangerous. As they grabbed the child's hand and started to walk out of the room huh? Hey, what is this? Something weird had happened. Chapter, 221 Ha! Huh. Hey, what is this? Something weird had happened. Hey, what happened to the artifact you had around your neck? Ha! Huh. 
You're right, where did it go? Their artifacts had suddenly disappeared. It was very weird. It also felt as if they could faintly smell garlic around them. Why would they smell garlic in a hospital? But they ignored that and started to check their clothes. Hey, is it really not there? Look carefully. Do you know how important that artifact is? A person who was checking his clothes urgently shouted. Hey! Something's weird. I think someone must have stolen it. His peers all sneered at him. Hey retard! Why are you making shit up when you probably dropped it somewhere? No, I really didn't drop it. Someone took it. Ah, uh, shut up. Just find it. Fuck, I'm telling the truth. They were flustered but they didn't think much of it. Well, at least they were planning to not think much of it. Why? Don't even think about mentioning that you lost it. You'll be seriously reprimanded by the superiors. Fuck, I'm being serious. Shut up and look carefully. You could have dropped it on the floor. Okay. However, at that moment something else had disappeared. It felt as if a black shadow had sped past them and another artifact had disappeared. The men were starting to go crazy. Hey, fuck. Where did your artifact go? I don't know. It suddenly disappeared. Someone grabbed the person who said that by the collar. See? I was right. The artifact suddenly disappeared. N, no. Fuck, what the hell is going on? As they looked around as if they were looking for a ghost or something swoosh swoosh swoosh. That mysterious something rummaged through the men's clothes again. That wasn't all. Kaya. The female excavation team member who was with the men started to shake. It was because something had pushed its hand up her skirt. The female member looked at her teammate who was behind her and started to scream. Ah. The teammate shouted as if he had been wronged. N, no. It wasn't me. I know. Not you. The female member was pointing behind her teammate. All of them screamed once they saw what she had seen. It was because Dan's daughter who was behind them was the problem. Kaya. What is that? She looked comparable to the Chucky doll. She looked like a five-year-old whose face was splitting open. A. Ah. The man who had subconsciously pulled the child toward him almost fainted from shock. The child's hand broke off when he pulled it. It didn't stop there. Kaya. Something burst through the child's skin like a scene from an alien movie. Ache. Kaya. W, what is that? Ah. Doctor. Doctor. Blood burst out of her eyes. And the thing that popped out of the child's body like a parasite and started to squirm on the floor was. Hand it over. Hand over everything you have. The rope roared as best as it could, as if it was trying to threaten them. Sadly, it just looked like a rope whose eyes were sparkling. But the shocked excavation team members were still screaming. Not many people could remain calm when a five-years-old child's body splits open and blood bursts out. They were pretty close to fainting after seeing this grotesque sight. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Fuck, what the hell is that? It's not made of plaster. Ujeha was laughing his ass off after hearing their screams I got them, I got them. Ha ha ha. Those morons. The men's eyes flashed after hearing their teammates' screams and Ujeha's sneering. They didn't know what had happened, but they were certain that Ujeha had done something. What the hey? What the hell did you do to our friends? They heard some more screams before they could hear a response. Ah. Mommy, save me. Ah. I'm going to die. They all sounded as if they were about to die. Jeha didn't know what the rope was doing, but these people probably would not act this way even if they fell into the depths of hell. Maybe that was the reason. The people chasing Ujeha became anxious while Ujeha started to scratch his cheek as if he felt guilty. He had felt mischievous after thinking about the grotesque alien movie that Chloe had kept on TV all night, but ah uh, I guess hyperrealism was a bit much. The men snapped out of it and turned red in anger after hearing that. Hey! What the hell did you do to our team members? What did you do to Chris? 
and the kid in the room. Ha! None of your business. You retards. Yu Jaha quickly started to run as if he was a rat. But it did not last long. Get him. I told you to get him. Ugh. The people who had been chasing Yu Jaha had used artifacts to attack him after getting annoyed by his antics. Yu Jaha was instantly captured. His legs had been turned into stone. Ha! We got you now, you bastard. This damn eel like son of a bitch. Today is the day you die. Where did you hide the little girl? Where did you hide her? Yu Jaha, who was being crushed under five buff dudes, started to swear. But they didn't care and just started to drag Yu Jaha away. It wasn't hard to drag him away since his legs had turned into stone. Drag this bastard to TKBM right away. But then their eyes opened wide as if they realized something. Verify that he is real first. Yeah. The men started to pull at Ujeha's hair and pinch his cheeks. This person they had captured should start to crumble if he was a fake made by Ujeha. Ujeha's fake humans were easily revealed when attacked. But rather than the skin crumbling away ah. Uh, hey. That hurts. You shitheads. It hurts. Ujeha's appearance did not change no matter how hard they hit him, pinched him, etc. The men's eyes flashed after confirming this. There are no changes. That must mean that. This is really him. They started to smile. Good. Drag him away. Although they were all monarchs, Ujeha was different from Irene or Seo Juhian. The monarch of destitution was a walking disaster, Seo Juhian was the modern day Satan no, he was a walking plunderer, but Yu Jaha was simply the monarch of pushoverness whose only talents were on escaping. There was no need for them to be scared. Break one of his legs before the petrification wears off. They pushed Yu Jaha down and picked up a hammer shaped artifact. Then they swung that hammer artifact down. But at that moment, thud. There was a dull noise and they were sent flying. They couldn't help but be shocked at what they saw. What did you say? The daughter disappeared. She exploded like an alien. Yang Chen started to swear after receiving the information. The trial had not ended yet. Yang Chen was just using a ten-minute recess to give orders to his subordinates. He was quietly and stealthily sending his subordinates to abduct Dan's daughter. He was trying to use her as a hostage to gain the upper hand. I will capture the daughter and use a curse-type artifact or something. He was going to try to make a deal with Seo Juhian with that card in his hand. It would be complicated if TKBM's VIP ended up as a murderer and especially complicated if the fact that TKBM tried to cover up a murder was revealed. But what? That shitty monarch of pushoverness had appeared. Yang Chen's hands were shaking while he was on the phone. He then glared at Zhu Hian who was drinking a bottle of water by the entrance. He didn't like how Zhu Hian had all of the reporter's attention. CO Zhu Hian. You even figured out the location of the hospital. But it didn't matter. All of CO Zhu Hian's excavation team is here. CO Zhu Hian, the one who handled artifacts the best, Julian, the lightning power plant, CO Lei, the one who controls ghosts they were all here. The rest of the members other than them did not require much attention. None of them were battle-type artifact users. We can easily handle a damn pushover in the hospital. Yang Chen scoffed as if it was nothing. It sounded as if a woman who uses a healing-type artifact was there as well, but she was not a fighter either. The staff we have at the hospital right now are all thoroughly trained. They could all be considered hunters who specialized in capturing and killing people. It sounded as if Zhu Hian had either looked down on them or had other more important issues as he only sent the monarch of pushoverness to the hospital. Retard. That was your mistake. Yang Chen gave an order to his subordinate on the phone. It's fine so get rid of that shitty son of a bitch and quickly find the daughter. It was at that moment. Ah. The subordinate on the phone screamed. He didn't know what had happened, but it sounded as if he was hit by something and dropped the phone. Yang Chen became anxious. Hey, what's wrong? Hey. What is going on? The call then ended. 
Yan Chen anxiously called back but the phone was turned off. What the hell just happened? He had just heard that they had captured Yu Jeha. He bit down on his lips after seeing Dan who was still sitting in the courtroom with a stiff expression on his face. We were told to find evidence of the fabrication because you wanted to make sure to tie up all loose ends. You said you would look at the report to completely take care of everything. We took care of it that same day. Yang Chen grabbed the back of his neck after seeing those messages. He didn't even need to ask who went into Pandora looking like him. Damn it, you damn monarch of pushoverness. This lupin-like son of a bitch. The thing that made him even angrier was the person who would have controlled all of this from the back. Seo Juhian, that damn son of a bitch. As an angry Yang Chen tried to walk toward Juhian the recess is over. We are starting the trial once again. The jury have come to a decision as well. They received orders to return. Yang Chen turned pale while Ju Hian mischievously smiled while looking at him. Egu, I guess it's time for the results of the trial. Yang Chen clenched his eyes shut. Damn it. This bastard is ruining things again. Chapter 22 Although it is difficult to believe that artifacts could be used to fabricate evidence, using Pandora's appraisal results and the witness testimonies as foundation, we find the defendant, Im Hei Jin, not guilty. In fact, based on the evidence provided by the defense, it is highly likely that the culprit is actually the witness, Stephen Patterson. As a result, the witness, Stephen Patterson, will be taken into custody while the defendant, Im Hei Jin will be freed. Not only did Stephen Patterson murder the victim, he intentionally murdered more people in the party hall to hide his crime. In addition, witness Quan Sung Wu will also be arrested as there is significant concern that he would flee before he can be tried for attempting to cover up a crime and destroy evidence after witnessing a murder. The jury finds it terrible that artifacts that should be used for the good of society were used to frame an innocent man for murder. As a result, all related TKBM employees will be investigated and will be tried by the International Artifact Justice System according to Pandora's laws. Some thrilling results were being revealed. All TKBM members in the audience were in disbelief after hearing the decision. It was because they had just come to watch Dan be sent to his death after framing him for the murder. But what? TKBM will be investigated for conspiracy to murder. Furthermore, Quan Sun Wu and Stephen, who had come as witnesses, were now the culprits. In addition, the excavation team's vice captain, Yang Chen, would be questioned as well. They had blank expressions on their faces. Forget being unbelievable, this was something that should not have happened. Please wait a minute, this trial was for the defendant, Im Hei Jin, it has nothing to do with us. So. The judge scoffed at their comment. It was as if he couldn't believe what this terrible bastard was saying. That is why all of you will need to respond to the court summons once more. This time, you guys will be the defendants. You guys will be properly tried at that time. Holy shit. The officers grabbed the three who were involved with this, as they were afraid that they would make a run for it. Yang Chen glared at Dan and Ju Hian with bloodshot eyes as he resisted the officers. Do you really think we would go down on our own? They had done all of this to prevent Seo Juhian from doing as he pleased. They didn't know why, but this bastard was someone who kept destroying the things they were trying to create. He was a troublemaker and their enemy. That wasn't all. The monarch among the monarchs will be able to command all artifacts. They could not allow Seo Juhian to become that person no matter what. That was why he quickly pointed to Dan. Your Honor. That person over there is a fake. Seo Ju Hian's subordinate helped a convict escape. That made the entire courtroom become loud. The fact that a convict on death row had disappeared meant there was a prison break. Yang Chen had a fishy smile on his face as he continued to shout. If we have committed a crime by using an artifact, those bastards have also committed a crime by using an artifact to help a convict escape. Yang Chen triumphantly started to smile. However how the heck is he fake? It is impossible for a person to create such a perfect clone. Yang Chen became frustrated after hearing the officers. Impossible for humans my ass. It's because you guys have never seen it before. I will show you proof. Yang Chen walked over toward Dan, 
who was sitting down with his hands cuffed. Julian, who was sitting next to Dan, became anxious. It was because he knew what Yang Chen was trying to do. Yu Jiehua's fakes would be revealed if they were attacked. We won't be safe if it is revealed that this is a fake. Julian jumped up from his seat. But Yang Chen had managed to get away from the officers and grabbed Dan by the collar. The courtroom turned into pandemonium. Hey! What the hell are you doing? Hurry up and drag him out. But Yang Chen started to smile viciously. Now we will all go to hell together. He punched Dan's face. However, at that moment, he did not break even though he was punched in the face. In fact, he now had a bruise on his face. Why didn't he turn into a sculpture? Dan was glaring at Yang Chen as if the punch hurt. Fuck, this shouldn't be the case. Yang Chen channeled his dominance into the gloves he was wearing. I'll need to give him a stronger shock if that wasn't enough. The judges were getting angry. What is that bastard trying to do? Hey, get him. Stop him. Yang Chen threw a punch and there was a small explosion. Bang! People started to scream. They then gasped. They couldn't help it because Dan was a bloodied mess on the floor after being punched by Yang Chen. He looked as if his cheekbone was broken. There was chaos inside the courtroom. What do you think you are doing? Are you trying to kill the defendant? Yang Chen became anxious. Is he really human? But Zhu Hian was snickering in the audience. Yang Chen started to shout again as he knew what that snicker implied. Your Honor. This really is a fake. He's fake. Nonsense. It's obvious he is a person. Yang Chen was about to shout again as he felt wronged. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. Heavy handcuffs were placed on the witnesses. What do you think? Did it go over well? In the first floor garden outside the hospital Yu Jeha was speaking to Ju Hian on the phone with a shaking heart. He was checking to see if the fake Dan in the courtroom was not revealed. I put in more effort than usual so they shouldn't have found out, right? He had made it extremely realistic in order to cover the weakness of them being revealed as fake being too easy. That was why he made it so that it would spurt blood instead of cracking even after receiving impact. Well, it's just an optical illusion so it'll be found out if anybody looks at it closely. Ju Hian started to laugh while Jeha asked with his ass on fire. They didn't find out. Anyway, we're almost there, where is Dan? Ah, uh, that mister. Yu Jeha turned his head. Dan was currently bawling while hugging his daughter whom they had moved to a different hospital. Are you hurt anywhere? Hmm. Are you okay? The bad misters didn't say anything weird to you, did they? The pretty daughter then pointed toward Yu Jeha and nonchalantly started to smile. That mister told me to go somewhere nice with him. He said I'll be really happy. Yu Jeha felt murderous intent at that moment. Maybe that was the reason. He was shaking in fear as he did not want to be butchered. Um, 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 mister. I believe you might be having the wrong idea when I said somewhere nice I didn't mean the kind of places you're thinking of, I simply meant we should go to where you were I don't remember saying anything terrible to a little child up. Yu Jeha plopped down on the ground after someone hit him on the back of his head. He then heard a voice. You resorted to hitting on a kid now? See, Captain Nim. He turned around to see Ju Hian there. He had said that they were almost there but they must have been nearby. What about the trial? No problem. Dan stood up and bowed toward Ju Hian once he saw him. It was because he had heard that Ju Hian was Julian's boss. Um, T thank you very much. Sir, I don't know who you are, but thank you for letting me meet my daughter before I die. Dan probably had no idea what just happened in the courtroom. He had been switched out with the fake by Yu Jeha prior to the trial. He probably just saw Ju Hian as someone who helped him escape from prison. Ju Hian and Yu Jeha had found their way into Dan's cell and escaped with him after leaving the fake. He probably never even imagined that he would be found innocent. But he was satisfied with this. My wish to see my daughter's face one more time before I was executed. 
Thank you very much for granting me this request. He knew his situation. He needed to be framed and executed for TKBM to pay for his daughter's surgery. That was why he knew that he needed to go back to prison now. Thank you very much for helping me. But I should probably head back to the prison. Yu Jeha was about to ask why he was speaking such nonsense. However, Ju Hien stopped him and made a call somewhere. Damn it, it can't go on like this. Yang Chen. Quan Sum Wu. Stephen. The three witnesses were being transported in different police cars right now. No, the three suspects were shaking. The true culprit behind the murder in the R.I. building restroom has been revealed. The true culprit is shockingly Stephen Patterson, the son of Mr. Patterson, an extremely influential figure on Wall Street TKBM's director Quan Sung Wu and TKBM's excavation team Vice Captain Yang Chen have both been arrested for accessory to murder and fabricating evidence by using artifacts Pandora member George Holton has stated that using artifacts to mess with people's memories is a violation of human rights and the worst type of crime and they will be tried. Under Pandora's laws though. Criticism of TKBM and Wall Street will increase because of this incident this issue was blowing up everywhere. They were shaking in anger as they heard these stories. I went to the courtroom to watch and have some fun so what the hell. They were not the type to easily be arrested like this. Do they think I am crazy? Do they really think I would rot in prison for tens of years? Our TKBM really will be eaten up by CO Juhian at this rate. The heirlooms will soon appear. There is still a way to flip all of this around. As a result fuck. The first to move was the police car in the front with the culprit, Stephen. The police car exploded and the road instantly turned into pandemonium. He had used an artifact. He had most of the artifacts confiscated when they did a body search, but the artifact he had hidden away for emergencies was still on him. It was an explosive artifact that all TKBM members had in their teeth. Although it could only be used once, it was good enough to escape. Boo boo boom. This is an emergency. S. Stephen Patterson is running away. But the accident didn't stop there. Bang. Bang. The cars with Quan Sum Wu and Yang Chen blew up as well. You, ugh. There were no people around but the bloodied cops were reaching toward the criminals who were getting away. Quan Sum Wu. Yang Chen, also running. A. All of the culprits are running. Those bastards used artifacts to run away. The road turned into pandemonium and the three men who managed to escape were laughing. They were all artifact users. Did they really think civilians would be able to arrest us? Although Quan Sun Wu could only handle up to C-grade artifacts, there was still a drastic difference between people who had artifacts and people who didn't. About one hour after they escaped Yang Chen came into a building under construction and started to look for something. He lifted the marble floor off a part of the fourth floor to find his emergency stash of cash. This money was important to escape his current predicament. The director Nim and Steven should be looking for their hidden artifacts and emergency funds as well. TKBM's excavation team had actually hidden artifacts and money in all major cities. They had prepared these artifacts as reserves because they never knew when someone might steal their artifacts. We need to save these but there's nothing we can do in our current situation. Yang Chen continued to hear Quan Sung Wu's voice through the phone. My subordinate eavesdropped on the police station but it doesn't sound as if CO Juhian would help with the search. I don't think we need to worry about that. I expected that to be the case. That bastard's goal should have been I'm Hei Jin. Anyway, Director Nim, please hurry. It happened at that moment. Hey, did you prepare the money? Some people walked into the floor Yang Chen was currently at. They were wearing black from head to toe. It was a man and a woman in black coats. They were people with special artifact-related occupations such as restorers, appraisers, and hunters. They were the aftermath cleanup crew that used modification artifacts. They were Yang Chen's last resort. Yang Chen glared at them. Are you really able to get rid of everything that happened in the courtroom today? Yeah. We can modify the memories of everybody who was in the courtroom and even get rid of the court records. It won't be easy, but our captain would be happy to take care of it for you if you give us the right number of artifacts. 
we need to gather a lot of artifacts to gain an heirloom. As Yang Chen smiled and started to hand over the artifacts ah. He heard a scream through the still-connected call. D, Director Nim. There was a large explosion in the direction Stephen should have escaped as well. Something very weird was happening at that location. Rumble, ruumble. There were thunderbolts even though the sky was clear. Thunderbolts were ruthlessly falling in the middle of New York City. Bang. Baba bang. Bang. H, holy crap. Is that perhaps? Even the man and woman from the aftermath cleanup crew were anxious. What the, is that perhaps the monarch of strategies? Fuck, you didn't mention this. The man and woman coughed up blood and fell over at that moment. Yang Chen didn't know why. What he could see was that the building they were in was starting to crack. A flustered Yang Chen quickly gathered the stuff and tried to run. Grab. But someone grabbed both of Yang Chen's shoulders. Chapter, 223. Grab. Someone grabbed both of Yang Chen's shoulders. A shocked Yang Chen turned his head to see a familiar face. Oh my, you hid quite a lot. How much is all of this? It's still not even enough to last for one year. There was a woman on each side of Yang Chen. One person reminded him of Catwoman. She was wearing a sexy all-black sleeveless shirt and some risque hot pants. The other had on a white one-piece with boots and a cute red hat. The two of them were smiling so beautifully that they almost took his breath away. Yang Chen almost plopped down on the ground after seeing their gazes. It was not just because of these women's beauty. They are Seo Juhian's women. That was right. Irene and Lee Seo Lei were next to him right now. They might look pretty but they were monsters on the inside. The proof of that was the chaotic army behind these two beautiful women. This punk would be gone in a single bite. Should we eat him? Should we eat him? Hundreds of ghosts that looked like things straight out of folktales looked ready to rip Yang Chen to death as soon as they were given the order. That wasn't all. Thank you for your withdrawal. Taking it all. Thank you for the 50 purchase. Thank you for the 120,300 purchase. Thank you for the 74,020 purchase. Thank you for your purchase. Thank you for using our loan with your body parts as collateral. He felt as if he could hear things that would make him go crazy. All right, they shouldn't even dream about running away anymore. We took all of TKBM's artifacts and emergency stash of money hidden in New York. Ju Hien laughed out loud after hearing Julian's update on the situation. Their plan seemed to have succeeded. They found all of the hidden artifacts and money. Their plan to loot all these hidden items had succeeded. They knew that those three would never quietly go to the police station and would attempt to run in the middle. How? It was simple. All TKBM employees have an artifact hidden on their body. They were all for getting out of dangerous situations and were usually C-grade or B-grade artifacts. They were installed on the bodies to easily dodge searches. It was not hard to figure that out. They also had artifacts hidden in their teeth crown shape when they were TKBM members. That was how they were able to predict these bastards' actions. We might as well loot the money and the hidden artifacts while we're at it. Only then would they be unable to do any funny business. Anyway, Julian had told the police about this to work together with them, but he was completely ignored. Ju Hien had told him that there was no need to cooperate with the police once he heard that. Ju Hien let those bastards escape on purpose. It was so that they would head to their secret stashes. Well, the police officers who ignored Julian's warning were reprimanded while the FBI, who was happy to capture these fugitives thanks to the help of Ju Hien's team, apologized on behalf of the officers. Anyway, CO Ju Hien. Let's use a more gentle method next time Ju Hien cut him off after he felt another round of nagging coming. It was because he would nag for a minimum of one hour once he got started. Ah, uh, it's fine. Where are you? What? I'm currently restoring the facilities the culprits destroyed. He was apparently crouched down fixing mailboxes, crosswalks, street lamps, and other things the culprits destroyed. It made Juhi and sigh. Why the hell are you doing that? 
It's not like we're not related to this incident at all. I'm just patching up things I can see. Ho, oh, you stupid bastard. Pandora had already thanked them and offered to take care of all cleanup for helping them capture the fugitives. But Ju Hian just hung up since he had no obligations to tell Julian about it. He wasn't the one who needed to suffer. Yu Jiha's eyes flashed as soon as Ju Hian ended the call. They caught all of the criminals. They threw all of them in prison. Ju Hian started to chuckle. Yeah. Yang Chen, that bastard Chairman Quan's eldest son, and even the true culprit, Stephen, were all captured. Yu Jiha screamed in joy. Wow, those so-called witnesses are going to rot in prison, totally rot. There was someone who was confused in front of them. It was Dan. What the heck are they talking about? He wasn't sure, but e, excuse me I think I should return to the penitentiary. He was probably concerned about the police sirens he was hearing from outside the hospital. But Ju Hian started to laugh. What? Go back to the penitentiary. Are you really going to go back? Even though you were found innocent. E, excuse me. Ju Hian looked at the five years old Sue in Dan's arms. Mm, she's pretty. Her white cheeks, large round eyes, and smart looking expression, she looked quite gentle and wily compared to her brusque father. She was just extremely skinny, probably because she was struggling with an illness. Actually, this was the first time Ju Hian saw Sue. Why? She was already dead by the time we met Dan. Dan was a soldier who did special operations. But he was dishonorably discharged at a court martial. It was for being violent against his superior. Well, he might have had a reason to be that way though. His one and only daughter was sacrificed because of his superior. It was the request of the Middle Eastern terrorist group they had been confronting. They were told to hand over the child of the commanding officer, but Dan's daughter had been sent because his superior was a monarch. She was sent without his knowledge. What they told the crying Dan once she came back as a corpse was quite the spectacle. It doesn't matter since your daughter only had a little longer to live. Did you think I would send my son? Huh? Dan had tried to sue the government and the country for feigning ignorance of the situation, but it had failed. He ended up barging into the Middle Eastern terrorist group's base on his own to destroy the people who had taken his daughter away before getting rid of all of the people from his side who had played a role in it as well. The imprisoned Dan had tried to kill himself after that. Ju Hian was the one who had stopped him at that moment. I'm buying your life starting today. Chairman Quan had been interested after hearing about a monstrous man who had destroyed a large Middle Eastern terrorist group on his own. But Chairman Quan had cancelled the scout. It's fine so just give up and come back. It was because he believed Dan would be harder to handle than he had expected. But Ju Hian seemed to have other thoughts on his mind as he bought Dan's life. He had then placed Dan as a member on his team. Your life is mine starting today. That's why you can't die. It's now up to me whether I kill you or keep you alive. Basically, he had hired a convict on death row to be a hunter. There was a simple explanation. I wanted to let him live to resolve the grudges of his daughter. He would feel too wronged if he died like that. Ju Hian wanted to help Dan at least get the minimum amount of revenge to the people who had killed his daughter. The people Dan had wanted to kill were monarchs. Well, we all died together in the end. But things were different now. His daughter is still alive. Su Ei kept sneaking glances at Ju Hian, as if she found him interesting. She would hide behind her father whenever she would make eye contact with Ju Hian. Of course, that made Yu Jeha go, sigh, even little children only like the captain Nim now. He had continued to grumble while pounding his chest. It was at that moment. Captain Nim. Chloe entered the hospital room. Ju Hian asked as if he had been waiting for her to come. Yes. And the surgery? Yes sir. Miss M. Sue's surgery date has been scheduled. We paid the fee as a lump sum as well. Dan questioned his ears for a moment. Excuse me. That was why he was looking at Ju Hian with such widely open eyes. What did you just say? Ju Hian nonchalantly started to smile. Your daughter. You said she needed surgery. That's why we scheduled a date for her, what's wrong? 
Dan plopped down on the floor in shock. Daddy. You don't need to go to prison anymore. Your innocence was revealed and you can save your daughter. B, but. I told them to gather the best doctors and make your daughter a priority. What is it, should I not have done that? Juhian got up from his seat. Now live happily with your daughter. There's nothing to worry about. PPPA completely shocked Dan asked in disbelief. D, do you really mean that? Can my daughter really live? Feel free to go meet with the doctors if you don't trust me. The surgery date is a week from today. Why are you doing all of this for me? Just because. Because your daughter is pretty. Juhian caressed Sue's head. If we can save a life, might as well save it. Yu Jaiha then took out his phone and started to show him reports from all over. Now now, over here, over here. Mister, take a look at this. Yu Jaiha, who had not wanted to be butchered. Desperately praised his captain's work. It was the story of how Dan was found innocent and the true criminal was caught. There was an interview with the director of the hospital that was going to do Dan's daughter's surgery underneath the articles about Dan. Dan's eyes started to tear up after he read it over and over. There really was an article about his daughter getting surgery. He kneeled on the ground and screamed loud enough for the whole hospital to hear. Thank you very much. Dan lowered his head to the ground and started to cry. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Truly, truly, thank you very much. I will never forget your kindness. This was the greatest day in the world for Dan. He had been focused on his work so much that he had not even realized that his daughter and wife had been sick. His wife had already left this world once he learned about the illness and he was only left with his daughter. It had been extremely painful since then. He was happy that he was found innocent, but he was even happier at the fact that there was now a future for his daughter. She would not have been able to live past this year if she didn't have surgery. I don't know who you are, sir, and I don't have much, but your kindness I will give my life if I have to do so to pay you back. Juhian scoffed, as if he was telling Dan to cut the bullshit. What? It's bad if you die. You can treat the fee for your daughter's surgery as a down payment. Juhian smiled wickedly before this emotional moment could even end. He then slammed something down in front of Dan. Bang! It was obviously a suspicious looking document. Juhian's eyes flashed. Why don't you sign this first? It was the appearance of the slave contract once again. Ah fuck, he really was amazing. He beat down the trained hunters with his bare hands. He was fine even after being stabbed by an artifact knife. I thought he was some Indian elephant or something. The team members all started to laugh at Yu Jaiha who was freaking out as he explained what happened. He was going on and on because he found it hard to believe, however that's expected of Dan. Dan was an ability user who could control Azura's artifact. There was a reason he had enough fit to handle that artifact. Julian quietly whispered at that moment. He had temporarily been arrested for destroying the building because he was looking around the building when Juhian made the report, but that was just a minor misunderstanding. Hey! Are you really not going to restore Dan's memories? He wanted to know because Juhian had used the artifact on some of them almost immediately. Isn't the Dan you want the Dan of the past? But Siole and Chloe understood why Juhian had not used that artifact. He probably doesn't want to use it. It was probably a different case than Yu Jaiha. Things might get complicated if Yu Jaiha got his memories back. Part of it was that Ju Hian didn't want to give Jaiha his memories of living as a copycat back, but anyway he probably doesn't want Dan to feel the pain of losing a child again. The Ju Hian they knew was that kind of person. But the Azura of the past would only descend if he gets his memories back. He was quite skilled right now as well, but there was something called a person's prime. Ju Hian was fidgeting with the crow's artifact in his pocket. Ha! Huh. Ju Hian tilted his head in confusion once he returned to the hotel after taking a look at a decent personal jet. There's something weird. There's something weird. The rope was digging something out of the restroom. Hey, what are you doing over there? It had removed the tile from the floor and was digging underneath. He was about to scold the rope when, unexpectedly, 
Ujeha started to scream. W, wait, hey. It couldn't be helped, since look at this. Look at this. The excited rope took out a box that was covered in a waterproof bag. Juhian was tilting his head in confusion after seeing this unexpected item. Chapter, 224 Look at this. Look at this. The excited rope brought over the box that was covered by a waterproof bag. Juhian tilted his head in confusion at this unexpected item. It was to be expected. Gucci. It was because there was a present with the Gucci logo clearly present inside the waterproof bag. This was the sweatsuit that Juhian's fan club had sent him. Of course, Juhian, who had no idea about that, inspected the box with a confused expression. The box seemed to have a shirt inside based on the size why is a box like this inside the restroom, something was very very weird. The moment he reached his hand toward the rope that was bobbing up and down. Ache. Why is something like this over here? Yu Jaiha used some swift movements to plunder the box. All of the members were shocked. But Yu Jaiha, who didn't care about their reactions, was laughing after swiping the box at light speed. Ha, ha ha, so interesting. Why is this in the restroom? He looked quite odd smiling while avoiding their gazes. Of course, the rope was angry after having the box swiped away like that. Why did you take it from me? Why did you take it from me? Yu Jaiha had to face the rope's chastisement. The rope started to chase after Yu Jaiha with a scary expression on its face. The rope's attack strength and lethality was higher than usual as it chased after him while smelling like garlic and Korean wormwood. Hand it over. I said hand it over. Yu Jaiha was instantly placed in a BDSM rope harness. Ah! Seo Lei, who knew about what was going on, put a hand against her forehead. That idiot. She was wondering where he had hidden the box with the sweatsuit but he had modified the restroom to create a secret storage space. That's too much. Seo Lei looked toward the newly created secret storage space in the hotel restroom with disbelief. This level of skill was fitting of a spy movie. It was the type where you have to press a special tile on the floor for the ground to open and the box automatically pops up. He probably planned it so that he would have an excuse if he got caught as it played happy birthday when the box came up and probably to defend against his captain. He even had a defensive wall that prevented its aura from being noticed. It was so well made that even Zhuge Kongming Julian, the greatest artifact detector under heaven, was amazed. That's unbelievable how could such a thing be possible. Chloe didn't seem interested as she was reading a fashion magazine, while Seo Lei just sighed. It's a total waste of his talents, a total waste. He would probably create a secret passage like Lupin did in the future. Unfortunately, all of his efforts were for naught as he was caught by the rope. Anyway, Juhian was looking at Yu Jaiha who was being choked by the rope as if he was an idiot. So what is this sweatsuit? And my fan bought it for me. Fan. Juhian started to frown as he tilted his head. Even you have fans. Jaiha flinched before starting to shout. T, that's rude. Captain Nim, you might not know about it, but I have fans too. T, they gave it so that I can wear it in my workroom. Aren't you jealous? Yu Jaiha and Juhian made eye contact at that moment. Yu Jaiha clenched his eyes with guilt after looking into Juhian's wild beast-like eyes. He was too scared to trick Juhian. Um, actually, Captain Nim, you see. Juhian sneered at him. I won't steal it from you. Uh, e, excuse me. Yu Jaiha's eyes opened wide. It looks like you wasted your talents to create such a place to hide it because you thought I might take it away because it is an artifact. Even I wouldn't take away my subordinates' artifacts. Yu Jaiha was shocked. Lies. You took away everything until now. A flustered Seo Lei started to whisper to Juhian. I'm, um, Captain Nim. Actually, that. I know. Didn't it come for me? Seo Lei was shocked. We haven't even told him about his mysterious fans, you knew about it. Of course. There's no way Irene would send such a terrible design. If anything, it was probably George or someone like him. 
either that or it's a bribe from a company that wants to look good to a monarch. And, no, it's not like that. Captain Nim, it's not like that. He's probably just doing this because he's jealous so let him be for a while. He'll hand it over on his own eventually. Even Juhian did not seem to want to wear a slacker sweatsuit. He actually did like sweatsuits so it might just be that he didn't like the color. He must really want it if he's going to claim he has fans that don't exist. The captain looked at his subordinate with a pitying gaze. It's fine. He said it's for work so tell him to wear it and just stay in his room and work. Wasn't it great since he could make Jeha work? Seo Lei was amazed at Ju Hian's comments. As expected of the Captain Nim. Yu Jeha, who had no idea about this conversation, had a sparkle in his eyes. The Captain Nim didn't notice at all. He then looked at the sweatsuit with a serious expression. He really thought that my fan sent it to me. Doesn't that mean that he could wear it? He now had the legal rights to wear it. Yu Jeha started to jump up and down in joy. Hooray! It's mine! It's mine! Yu Jeha's eyes were sparkling as he quickly put the sweatsuit on. I won against the Captain Nim. But at that moment ding! Jeha Appa! If it is okay with you, the sweatsuit we sent please take a secret picture of Juhi and Appa wearing it. Yu Jeha froze in place. Seo Lei saw the message and shook her head at Yu Jeha. They want proof of him wearing it. Her gaze seemed to be asking what he was going to do. There was no way that Juhi and scary fans would let this go. It was at that moment. Yu Jeha set the timer, quickly backed up, and took a picture of himself wearing it. Click. He then cropped his face out of it and sent it to Sasaki. And Captain Nim Proof 1. JPG Captain Nim Proof 2. JPG Captain Nim Proof 3. JPG Captain Nim Proof 4. JPG Captain Nim Proof 5. JPG Captain Nim Proof 21. JPG He sent a ton of pictures to Sasaki. Siole gasped after looking at it. Where is this confidence coming from? An anxious Siole grabbed Jeha. Hey! It fits you completely differently than the Captain Nim. Your physique and heights are different too. It was as clear of a difference as the fit on a model inside the mall and a regular person wearing it. Yu Jeha then started to laugh like a scammer. It's okay. I won't get caught. No. That's what he wanted to believe. While that was going on Quan Sun Wu, the eldest son of TKBM's chairman Quan Taejun. Arrested for aiding a murder and destroying evidence. Sentenced to 15 years. TKBM's excavation team member Stephen Patterson, arrested for murdering 10 people and artifact-based special crime. Sentenced to 150 years. TKBM's Vice Captain Yang Chen. Concealment of evidence, intimidation, artifact-based special crime, and attempted child abduction. Sentenced to 10 years. What the hell is this? Chairman Kwan could not raise his head after reading the article in the newspaper. It had to do with none other than his own son. A TKBM shareholder's son going to prison for murder was one thing, but his eldest son? How the hell are you guys taking care of Busi Ug? Chairman Nim. Chairman Kwan grabbed the back of his neck and fell over. Chairman Nim, please wait a little longer. We've consulted the monarch of healing. Chairman Nim, you'll be able to recover in a little bit. But Chairman Kwan could not speak. Seo Juhian, is this what you meant by continuing to cause me pain? It wasn't just his eldest son. Quan Sung Jae, the second son of TKBM's chairman Quan Taejun. Lost all of his wealth due to overusing Louis XIV's artifact. Arrested for illegal gambling. Quan Ju He, chairman Quan Taejun's youngest daughter. Is she the monarch of popularity's sponsor? Are they lovers? Arrested for conspiracy to include thousands of people in a crime. There were issues not just with his eldest son but also with his other children. Chairman Kwan couldn't believe it. My children, all of my children. W, what should we do? What else? Call the lawyer to take care of things. The subordinate started to sweat. All of them just had to commit crimes with artifacts, making it difficult to get them out. 
Artifact-related crimes were charged more severely because artifacts could harm large numbers of people. Chairman Kwan knew about that as well but Chairman Kwan had currently lost all rationality. He didn't care much about his sons. But it was different for his most beloved daughter. Ju He. Chairman Kwan received a message at that moment. Chairman Kwan jumped up after seeing who sent the message. Sender, my beloved daughter Ju He. Chairman Kwan quickly checked the message. However, his jaw dropped after reading the message. Not only did his jaw drop, it felt as if his whole chin would come off. Chairman Nim. Ah oh oh ah ah ah. See, Chairman Nim. Chairman Kwan was shaking in anger for a bit before his mouth started to spew out flames. Ak. Bring me my artifact right away. Excuse me. It's war. The subordinates freaked out and tried to get a doctor over. Chairman Nim. Chairman Nim. Please calm down. What do you mean, it's war? The employees quickly checked the message to see what had gotten Chairman Kwan so riled up. And gasp. The subordinates fell into shock as well. Don't mess with Juhi and Nim. I'm going to marry Juhi and Nim. How could this happen? Chairman Kwan's dominance exploded. Ju He. What the hell happened during this time? Boom. The items inside the hospital room were destroyed, flying around, and causing all sorts of issues. Chairman Kwan could not hold it in any longer and tried to get out of the bed. His subordinates did their best to hold him down. See, Chairman Nim. Please calm down. I'm sure your daughter did not send that. How can she when she is being questioned? That's right. This is someone impersonating her. But the daughter idiot Chairman Kwan ran out of the hospital room bare feet. And? What business do you have with me? Yang Chen glared at the woman who came to meet him. A woman he had never met had come to find him at the penitentiary. Well, he knew who she was. The monarch of gluttony. It was the Chinese artifact user who uses the supreme leader artifact. He had heard that she was struggling to get rid of a curse that Seo Juhian had put on her. Isn't it busy season for China because of the heirlooms as well? The monarch's heirlooms they were said to only appear to people who were currently monarchs. The prophecy had said that the world would change once more depending on whether a person was able to get that heirloom or not. The monarch of fate prophesied for large changes in the world. He had said that the world would change significantly upon reaching each of those four moments. The first was the beginning. That was when the Egyptian trio artifacts had appeared. Yes, this was the great tomb appearance that Chairman Kwan had caused. That was when the tomb appearances that they had only considered as precursors had truly started to appear, bringing the world officially into the era of artifacts. The second point of change would be the appearance of these monarchs' heirlooms that is why we must gain an heirloom. Everybody in the world is waiting to figure out where the heirlooms would appear. You should be very busy since Seo Juhian took all of the keys to find the heirlooms. Zhen Kai Yuan smiled as if to stop him. I'm here because of Seo Juhian. You seem very close to Seo Juhian. He gave her a look of disbelief. Zhen Kai Yuan started to smile. You heard it from the monarch of fate right? He told you about Seo Juhian's teammates. Did this woman make a deal with the monarch of fate as well? But I didn't think China would directly make a deal with Pandora. But she started to smile as if she read his mind. I know what you are thinking about, but that's not important right now. What? It seems like the monarch of fate didn't tell you, but actually, he said that he saw you in that dream about Seo Juhian as well. That means that you are Seo Juhian's teammate as well. Yang Chen looked flabbergasted. He had only heard about three people, including Dan. There was one more person. More important, why was it him? There was no way he would become Seo Juhian's teammate even if he went crazy. What the hell is about to happen? To be more specific, the monarch of fate had seen the past when they were teammates rather than the future. He saw it from the records of the world that were bound to be kept somewhere in the universe. Zhen Kai Yuan's eyes flashed at that moment. Anyway, I'm very curious about these so-called teammates of Seo Juhian. I don't know where the rest of them are. 
That's why I couldn't help but become interested in you. She looked extremely curious about Ju Hian. It looked as if she wanted to know anything and everything about Ju Hian. She seemed confident that this bastard would be able to let her know more things about Seo Ju Hian. Yan Chen started to frown. What is your goal? Zhen Kai Yuan showed him something instead of responding. A suspicious camera created by Merlin A grade, treasure grade, consumable artifact the item she showed seemed to be a simple Polaroid camera. It was the type that the picture would print right away once it was taken. But Yang Chen instantly realized that it was an artifact. I don't know what artifact it is though. She took a picture of Yang Chen at that moment. He was about to yell at her but Chen Kai Yuan showed the Polaroid picture that came out to Yang Chen. Yang Chen became anxious. Ho! I don't think anything special would show up if you take pictures of me ah. Uh. He couldn't help but be completely shocked after seeing the picture Zhen Kai Yuan handed him. It was because there was something shocking visible in the photo. Chapter 225 Ho! I don't think anything special would show up if you take photos of me ah. Uh. He couldn't help but be completely shocked after seeing the photo Zhen Kai Yuan handed him. It was because there was something shocking visible in the photo. What is that? What he saw was himself as a mutilated corpse. That was right. He was a corpse. It was the terrible sight that only homicide detectives would usually see. He rubbed his eyes and looked again, only to find his face on the body again. He looked a bit older, but that was the only difference. Yang Chen's hands were shaking before he glared at Chen Kai Yuan. What the hell is this? What kind of photo is this? He was trying to act calm but his voice was shaking. There weren't many people in the world who would be fine after seeing their own corpse. Zhen Kai Yuan started to laugh. What else, this is your fate. Other photos started to come out of the Polaroid camera as well. The monarch of fate let me borrow it. He said he uses this artifact to visualize the future for his clients. He normally only told them the contents of his dream, but he would sometimes take a photo of the future for them with this as well. Why? The future experience. As seeing is believing, it was better to experience the future for themselves rather than hearing it from the monarch of fate sometimes. It meant that those people could go into their photos taken through this camera. They would be able to personally experience the image that was captured in the photo. That would make it easier to know the future than to decipher someone else's dream. But he would only do this as a service if the client paid him a ton. He looked toward Jin Kai Yuan with confusion until she nonchalantly explained. He said there was a dream that he could not decipher at all or something. He said any future related to Seo Ju Hian was difficult to decipher. He was wrong about them quite often too. He was wrong about them. That was why it was a free special service. He wanted you to experience the future for yourself and he won't be charging for it. In return, he wanted you to experience it and tell him about it as well. Nobody can go into someone else's future. Zhen Kai Yuan was smiling but Yang Chen could not believe it. It was obvious what she was telling him to do. Hey! You're telling me to experience my own death. He foamed at the mouth while looking at the photo of his butchered corpse. It was obvious that he would experience the future where he was murdered if he went into that photo. Does she think I am crazy? But Chen Kai Yuan mischievously laughed. I'm sure it'll be terrible. But at least you would know why you die. Is this woman really crazy? But Chen Kai Yuan didn't care as she pushed over the other photos that came out as well. Yang Chen was shocked after looking at the photos. These bastards are. It was a group photo. It was as if the photo was taken to celebrate being on the same team. The background was familiar. TKBM's office area. There were annoyingly high piles of documents, excavation files, and artifacts. Everybody had TKBM ID badges as well. But they're not the current members. Yang Chin got the chills. There were ten people in the photo, but shockingly enough, there were some people who should not be there looking extremely friendly. Co Ju Hian, Yu Jeha, Li Co Lei, Chloe, Julian, Dan, etc., etc. There were some people he had never seen before as well. 
The monarch of fate had probably looked at this to tell him about the three people. He had shared their appearances and name based on what was on their ID badges. But why am I here? He was hanging out with them as well. That was what he was having trouble understanding. Maybe that was the reason. Hand it over. Yan Chen quickly gathered the photos she had pushed toward him. He didn't want to experience his own death, but he was too curious now. There's no way I would be on the same team with these bastards unless I went crazy. Yang Chen, who had no way of knowing that the photo he was looking at was both the future and the past at the same time, started to shake. He then quickly channeled his dominance into the photo. Captain Nim, Little M Suea's surgery was a success. Is that so? Ju Hian started to laugh after hearing Chloe's comment. Good. I thought the surgery would be difficult because she was suffering from tomb syndrome. Chloe had realized something shocking when she examined Su Wei. Tomb syndrome. Su Wei was suffering from that as well. That was why it would have been extremely difficult to perform surgery on her as the tomb syndrome would get in the way. She would have seizures every time they placed her on the operating table. It was as if the cancer cells inside her body were rejecting the child's treatment. Of course, the surgery was a success because Ju Hian happily gave her some herb of eternal youth. That's why Dan said he really wanted to come see you to thank you again. Good. I have business with him too. That made Chloe nod her head. Are you planning on using the memory artifact? I will use it. But I need to pick the best time frame to return it to. He then asked her a question. What about the rest of the team members? We might have found some traces of them. Really? Juhian started to smile. We can gather everybody now. And at the same time Kia. Kaya. Everyone. We got a photo of Juhi and Nim. Oh my, we weren't even expecting it to actually come. The princesses were very happy to hear that Yujeha had sent them a photo of Juhian. They were even happier because they had not been expecting a reward from Juhian. But one of the princesses tilted her head in confusion. Ha, huh, but Sasaki Nim says something seems weird. Excuse me? Why? The photo we got is proof that Juhi and Nim is wearing it. They all gathered around and tilted their heads in confusion while looking at the photo Sasaki had sent them. It couldn't be helped, since oh my, isn't this Mr. Jeha? It looks like Mr. Jeha was wearing it instead of Juhi and Nim for the photo. These women, who pretty much knew everything about Juhian, were quite informed about the people around Juhian as well. Whether it was Yu Jeha or Lee Cole in fact, these people probably knew the length of the rope as well. Why would Mr. Yu Jeha be wearing this? Why else? Yu Jeha swiped it. The guards pushed down on their temples. It was because they knew the whole story about this incident. They had spied on Ju Hian's hotel for a bit because they were worried that their princesses might be liking a dangerous person. They clearly saw everything. They saw Yu Jeha create the secret storage area and hide the present. Yu Jeha had no plans on informing Ju Hian about the fan club's existence at all. That was good news for them but it was still a present from their princesses. That was why they were about to tell the princesses about this preposterous situation. Excuse me, your highness. At that moment Yu Jeha was in a state of shock. It was because of a message Sasaki had sent back. What the hell is going on? He knew that Ju Hian's fans would quickly figure out after seeing the photos. Even he knew that the Captain Nim and he had different body types. He had sent it on purpose even though he knew that they would figure it out. I stole the artifact you guys sent him. Kaka kaka kaka. He was planning on messing with them like that. It was because he was envious of the Captain Nim's fans. It was his way of acting out. That was why he had been waiting for the fans' angry protest to respond, but we understand Ju Hian Nim's big heart. As expected of Ju Hian Nim. We're sorry. We should have thought more about it. We will get some S-grade uniforms ready for the entire team. Please wait a little bit. We will match the design and shapes to each person's style. Yu Jeha plopped down on the ground after seeing Sasaki's message. W, wait, what is she talking about now? I stole your present. But you're talking about uniforms? 
what the hell just happened? How the hell did things end up like this? To be honest, this was good news. Other excavation teams all had useful uniforms they were all defense-type artifacts to save their lives inside tombs. Ju Hian had been talking about how good it would be for the entire team to have sturdy artifact clothes for the tombs, but why are they acting like this even though I didn't say anything? He would have to ask about it later but Yu Jeha, who had been feeling guilty, went and cowed out in front of Ju Hian. Captain Nim Yu Jeha who had taken off the sweatsuit and folded it neatly said that he would go get it dry cleaned. No, he said he would go somewhere and find an artifact to bring back. Captain Naim I, I'm sorry for everything. It was because I was jealous of you, that's why. What's wrong with him? Fuck, what the hell is this? Yang Chen had cold sweats down his back after coming into the photo. He was in the group photo. This really is the TKBM office. CO Juhian's excavation team was there. However, it was not the present based on the calendar. Everybody looked oddly older and a bit exhausted. Captain Nim, Captain Nim. Let's take a photo. Take a photo with me. An excited COA walked in with the camera. Why do we need a photo? Why? It's your birthday today, Captain Nim. Yang Chen even bought a cake. Yang Chen urgently turned his head. CO Ju Hian, who had a manager ID on him, seemed to be in his early thirties and seemed to have bad eyesight as he had reading glasses on while holding a thick book. He looked like a total bookworm because his desk was full of encyclopedias. He didn't have a smile on his face and looked completely pale, as if he was a vampire, unlike his present self. Did he do some drugs or something? He was completely different from the present Seo Juhi and Yang Chen knew about. There were severe dark circles under his eyes, his cheeks were sucked in making his cheekbones completely visible, and his body was skinny. He seemed to be dealing with some kind of pain because he was slightly frowning and looked annoyed even when they took the group photo. He looked like a cripple who was wasting his good looks might be a good explanation. Siole grabbed Ju Hian's hand and pulled him toward them. She was still pretty but seemed to be in some kind of pain as well. She was trying to add some color to her face by using lipstick but even that made her lips look pale. The others looked similar as well. But they all seemed quite happy and close to each other. The scene blurred past him. What he saw next was a conversation with Chairman Quan. Kill them. Doesn't it hurt your pride to serve under Seo Juhian when you used to be a monarch? That. Seo Juhian is too dangerous if we let him be. That bastard is not normal. He's pretending to be loyal right now, but he might end up killing me. It was the scene of where he betrayed Juhian. But Yang Chen was shaking in fear after seeing what happened. Something was weird. This was definitely the future, but for some reason, it felt as if he had experienced this in the past. That was how his body was reacting. That wasn't all. He almost went crazy when he activated the photo where he was murdered. You traitor. Seo Ju Hian was walking toward him with a cold gaze. This was the future where he would be butchered into pieces. This was the only photo that showed the present and the future that was to come instead of the memories of the past life. He screamed and stopped using the artifact. Huff huff. Huff. Zhen Kai Yuan tilted her head while looking at Yang Chen. Did you see anything? Seo Ju Hian, Seo Ju Hian, Seo Ju Hian. Bang! Yang Chen fell off the chair. His eyes were bloodshot and his hands were shaking in fear. He seemed to slightly remember. About Seo Ju Hian, about his captain. He also slightly remembered his sins as well. Chapter, 226 Kill them. Doesn't it hurt your pride to serve under Seo Ju Hian when you used to be a monarch? That. Seo Ju Hian is too dangerous if we let him be. That bastard is not normal. He's pretending to be loyal right now but he might end up killing me. It was the scene of where he betrayed Ju Hian. But Yang Chen was shaking in fear after seeing what happened. Something was weird. This was definitely the future, but for some reason, it felt as if he had experienced this in the past. That was how his body was reacting. That wasn't all. 
He almost went crazy when he activated the picture where he was murdered. You traitor. Seo Juhian was walking toward him with a cold gaze. This was the future where he would be butchered into pieces. That was the only future of the present instead of a memory of the past life. It was something he would eventually experience. He screamed and stopped using the artifact. Huff huff. Huff. Zhen Kai Yuan tilted her head while looking at Yang Chen. Did you see anything? Co Ju Hian, Co Ju Hian, Co Ju Hian. Bang! Yang Chen fell off the chair. His eyes were bloodshot and his hands were shaking in fear. He seemed to slightly remember. About Co Ju Hian, about his captain. He also slightly remembered his sins as well. Maybe that was the reason. Fuck, fuck. Yang Chen's pupils were violently shaking. The memory about how he had betrayed his teammates and Zhu Hian's overwhelmingly strong abilities. The memory of how Chairman Quan had been envious and afraid of Zhu Hian. Fuck. He was scared after Zhu Hian popped into his mind. He had not gotten his memories back completely like the others with the Raven's Tears. The camera artifact that Shen Kai Yuan used was only an A-grade artifact that allowed people to experience the image in the picture. It was not made to return someone's memories. That was why he didn't know anything about artifacts or tombs that would show up in the future like Ju Hian did. But it was as if he was deeply immersed in a movie. It felt as if he had taken the place of the movie's main character. It was enough to feel as if it was his own experience. That was probably why he was acting like this. I, I betrayed my teammates. That was the thought on his mind. He then did his best to brush it off. No, this is something that would happen in the future. Co Ju Hian will join TKBM in the future and that's when he'll end up betraying him but he screamed after looking at the Ju Hian in the picture. Ache. Captain Nim. It felt more like fear than regret. Zhen Kai Yuan jumped up from her chair after seeing his reaction. What the hell? What did you see that is making you act like this? Zhen Kai Yuan was extremely curious. She was curious about anything and everything related to Ju Hian and wanted to know it all. Hey, Yang Chen. But he shook his head. No, nothing. Yang Chen did not easily trust people. Zhen Kai Yuan was an enemy in the end as well. He had only seen a portion of everything, but there was no way he would easily tell this woman about it. But he peeked toward the pictures again. I might be able to use this to figure out Co Ju Hian's weakness. He didn't know what it was, but this was Seo Juhian's future that only he could see. It should be beneficial for the Chairman Nim. He was shaking but reached his hand out toward the picture again. It was a picture of Juhian with Chairman Quan this time. Mr. Juhian. It looks like that professor, Chen Kai Yuan, went to the penitentiary with a suspicious camera. Juhian was amused at this unexpected situation. A camera? She took it to Yang Chen. Yes. It looks like this. Irene showed him a picture she received from her brother. Ju Hian scoffed after looking at the picture. It's the Monarch of Fate's artifact. He knew this tool very well. It was a camera that could take a picture of a person's future and let them experience it. Ju Hian had a pretty good idea about what Chen Kai Yuan and the Monarch of Fate were scheming. It's obvious they're trying to use Yang Chen to read the future he didn't think that would change much. He would change it all regardless of what they tried. It was at that moment. Hmm. No, wait. He suddenly had a thought. Would the images in the picture be things that have yet to happen? Or would they be that future that could be called a past life? Ju Hian started to smile after having that thought. This is good. He had been curious about what had happened after they all died. I'll kill him to get rid of any other memories. He could recover Yu Jeha's memories and ask since he was the only one among them who was alive after that, but Ju Hian looked toward Yu Jeha who was sniffling while restoring an artifact. Yeah. We can't have the monarch of fraud. That'll be a major headache. Ju Hian nodded his head. He then got up from his seat. I'm heading to the penitentiary for a bit. Excuse me. That lunatic Shin Kai Yuan did something useful this time. Excuse me. 
What do you maya? Irene became a bit sullen and Ciole started to grind her teeth as Juhian left the hotel instead of responding. I can't let that obsessed bitch get tangled up with the captain Nim any more than she already has. Juhian seemed to loathe Shin Kai Yuan as an attention-seeking crazy woman, but Ciole thought that it was a bit different. She thought that this professor's craze for Juhian was based on affection. This woman had committed suicide in front of Juhian in the past after all. I don't think she's fallen that deep for the Captain Nim yet, but either way, she needed to make sure that woman did not become interested in the Captain Nim. Why? Who cared if it was based on affection? That was a type of twisted affection and that woman was one of the four emperors. She would be Ju Hien's enemy in the end. At that moment that lunatic Shin Kai Yuan did something useful this time. Ju Hien's praise. That wasn't really a praise put the rope in a state of shock. My master praised someone else and not me again. The rope looked as if it would sulk for a moment before its eyes flashed. Yu Jeha took a step back after getting an ominous feeling from it. Hey, hey hey. The rope slowly approached Yu Jeha. And. Ruer. Hey, hey. Stoop. But the rope that seemed to be charging at Yu Jeha started to dig the floor right next to him. It was similar to when it found the secret safe that Yu Jeha had hidden in the restroom. The rope was digging as if it was finding some money it had stashed away or as if it was a dog that was looking for where it had hidden a bone. Its gaze seemed to be saying that it might find something else its master might like if it digged again. Yu Jeha started to shout as he watched. It was because he would end up having to restore everything the rope destroyed in the hotel. Hey! Stop it! But the rope didn't care and continued to dig. It had found the sweatsuit artifact and it dug through the restroom last time. That was why you. An artifact would come out again if I dig. It will come out. The excited rope started to dig all around. Yu Jeha, who knew what it was thinking, felt as if he was going to die. It was obviously trying to dig through to give the captain Nim something. Hey! Things don't just appear because you dig around. Ha! Huh. The rope didn't care that Yu Jeha was shouting and just put a shovel in his hand. You should dig too. Dig. Hey! This is vandalism. Louis looked at his father. And shook his head as he changed the TV channel. While that was going on Yang Chen was looking for Ju Hian's weakness through the photos. The location was the TKBM office building. However, the TKBM in the picture was much larger than the present. It was pretty much an empire. The excavation team members were shocked at the breaking news they saw. The ruler of the Middle East, one of the four emperors, destroyed. Will the four giants crumble one by one? TKBM CO Juhian has conquered the Middle East Europe Africa area. Jackpot. CO Juhian completely destroyed the monarch of evangelism. Holy shit, he took down one of the four emperors with just ten people. He took down the Middle East and the Europe-Africa alliance. He did that with his small team. He's crazy. He's definitely the chairman Nim's right arm. Well, honestly speaking, that bastard is the one who raised our chairman Nim to become one of the four emperors. TSK. Ju Hien was one of Chairman Quan's strongest cards after taking down the monarch of evangelism, one of the four emperors. Chairman Nim, congratulations. The only original for emperors left is Zhen Kai Yuan, China's monarch of gluttony. Yes. CO Ju Hien No, Chairman Nim, your dog has been trained very well. I am envious of you. Yes. But he wasn't always so proud of his ace. Proceed with the plan as soon as CO Ju Hien takes down the emperor in China. You want us to kill him? Yes. Get rid of CO Ju Hien and his entire team from this world. They are too dangerous. Seo Ju Hien, the man who had raised him to this level and his teammates who could take down the four emperors with just ten people. Chairman Quan was scared of them and they probably got on his nerves. He was scared that this slave that he had raised would cut his head off and rise in his place. Yang Chen cautiously observed Chairman Quan. Seo Ju Hien and his group won't be very easy to kill. Try to get Yu Jeha on your side. He seems to not like Seo Juhian. 
The monarch of fraud is a bit difficult to trust. Yang Chen then checked the examination records he had stolen from Chloe. Those records should show Zhu Hian and the team's body conditions, as well as their strengths and weaknesses. Yang Chen was happy to see through this memory. He just needed to turn one more page to see Co Zhu Hian's weaknesses. Good. Turn it. Turn one more page. But at that moment human. How dare a lowly human try to look into this future. The area inside the picture he was in started to crumble. He felt an extremely chilling aura. W, what the? Boom. Yan Chen started to scream. He then gasped after seeing the animal sitting behind him. There was a pair of cold red eyes. The crow that preyed on artifacts was behind him. It was the same artifact that had eaten numerous divine grade artifacts until now and had been watching over Juhian this whole time. You are not qualified to see any further. Yang Chen let out a terrible scream as he was forcibly kicked out. Ah! And once Yang Chen got out of the picture boom. He heard something explode. Chen Kai Yuan was shocked. Merlin's artifact. The pictures with the future started to burn and the Monarch of Fate's camera artifact was completely destroyed. Ache. My head, my head. Yan Chen clenched his head in pain. The information he saw in the pictures were being destroyed in his mind. The only ones left were the memories and hatred for his sins. A chaotic aura filled the area, making it impossible for them to do anything. Zhen Kai Yuan started to frown after sensing the aura. It's that crow's aura. Why is that artifact? Let's kill that bastard first. We must kill that bastard first. Yang Chen seemed unconscious as he mumbled. Kill who? The person he wanted to kill was an unexpected person. Yu Jeha. Monarch of fraud, you son of a bitch. What he saw for a moment inside the picture was what had happened right after Zhu Hian's group had died in the crow's tomb. It was only a portion but he almost had a seizure. It was as if there was a clashing between his past life and the present. It made the guards barge into the room and drag him out. Zhen Kai Yuan was flustered while watching him leave, but Yang Chen seemed to have lost all rationality as he continued to shout while being dragged away by the guards. Let go of me. We need to get that bastard away from Seo Ju Hian's side immediately. After Seo Ju Hian died, that bastard, with TKBM secrets. Jeha was the only one to survive from the tomb raiding team. Yang Chen had said they needed him to restore artifacts and kept him alive. However he claimed it was for revenge or whatever, but because of that son of a bitch, TKBM. What the hell are you talking about? Ugh. Someone stomped on Yang Chen. Yang Chen almost fainted after hearing that voice. I think I heard something quite interesting just now. Revenge? What about TKBM secrets? The voice sounded quite amused. You're talking about some interesting things. It was because Zhu Hian was in front of him. Yang Chen felt an instinctual fear and started to shake as soon as he saw Zhu Hian. His whole body was stiff, as if he was a herbivorous animal that had met a tiger. Zhu Hian had a wicked smile while looking at Zhu Hian. Let me confirm something first. Do you remember me? Chapter 227 Let me confirm something first. Do you remember me? Yang Chen plopped down after seeing Zhu Hian smile. Ah ah. It was because his face overlapped with the face of the Zhu Hian in his thirties. Co Zhu Hian. People had thought that he was a druggie, but he was actually Chairman Quan's king maker and mighty hunting dog that took care of the four emperors on the chairman's behalf. He was also the leader that Yang Chen himself had gotten killed. Yang Chen's limbs started to shake once he acknowledged that fact. His whole body was now shaking as he started to mumble while looking at Zhu Hian. See, Captain N. Zhu Hian had a vicious smile after hearing Yang Chen's mumbling. What he just heard was enough to know. Zhu Hian then stepped on Yang Chen's neck. Ugh. Yang Chen couldn't breathe after having his neck suddenly being stepped on, but he could not escape. It was because the vicious voice that reached his ears seemed to paralyze his spine. Oh ho, you do seem to remember. It was a level of murderous intent he had never seen before. 
was it that Ju Hian had just been hiding this murderous intent until now? His dominance had channeled out at full force as soon as Yang Chen recognized him. Yang Chen started to shout out of instinct after seeing Ju Hian like this. Captain Nim, I'm sorry. I didn't want to do it ugh. Shut up and only answer the questions I ask. Ju Hian started to speak with a vicious gaze that looked as if he wanted to kill Yang Chen. First. Tell me your damn monarch title. Yang Chen would normally wonder why he had to respond to Ju Hian, but it was different now. He felt as if he was going to die. He felt as if Ju Hian would really butcher him like he saw in the picture if he didn't respond. The sun, the monarch of the sun. Second. Tell me the artifact the monarch of healing had on her. Oh, and the location of the tomb they possess too. T, the monarch of healing's artifact. Tomb. Ju Hian started to smile after hearing that confused response. He had been testing how much information this bastard knew, but thankfully, it doesn't look as if he remembers the important information of the future. He remembered just enough to remember the members of the tomb raiding team. Good. Of course, the team members who came with Ju Hian were showing different reactions. Captain Nim. Let's kill this son of a bitch. We can't let someone with information go. Siole and Chloe were the ones who had shouted. Ju Hian agreed with them. He had no plans on leaving the sly bastard who had pushed his precious subordinates to their deaths alone. He just had a few things he was curious about. TKBM secrets. And W, what? What is going on? Ujeha, the monarch of fraud. Ujeha looked toward Yang Chen who was flustered as he did not understand the situation at all. The only one of us who managed to survive. He should know what happened after all of them had died. He was curious about that but he had not restored Jeha's memories because it was annoying. It would be annoying to retrain a bastard who would easily sell off even his fellow team members. He also didn't want Jeha to remember his days as a copycat. But something must have happened once they died. And it must have been related to their deaths. He has important information. He had information they didn't know about. Yang Chen foamed at the mouth once he saw Yu Jeha. You damn scamming son of a bitch. W, what did you say? Who are you calling a scammer? What the fuck is this son of a bitch talking about? Yang Chen continued to shout as if he felt wronged. Do you know how much TKBM suffered because of you? Yu Jeha looked toward Ju Hian, wondering what nonsense Yang Chen was talking about. Wait, what the hell did I do to TKBM no, I guess there are some things I did act as a black consumer because I hated TKBM, but who cares about that? Why? Yu Jeha started to get angry, wondering if the black consumer incident was the reason Yang Chen was causing a fuss. Are you acting like this because I did some black consumer business? Be honest with me, there's no way a global corporation like yours suffered because of some negative complaint. Huh? Yang Chen felt frustrated. That's not what I am talking about, you idiot. Yang Chen subconsciously got angry while still confused about his past life and the present as Ju Hian peeked toward Yu Jeha. He had not thought about what would have happened to this bastard after they died. Why? It was because he expected this bastard to find a way to stick with Chairman Quan and live a happy life. It was not that he was angry about that this guy was just that kind of terrible materialistic bastard. He had not joined their tomb raiding team because he wanted to in the first place. He didn't try to get close to any of the tomb raiding team members. But getting revenge? There was also the talk about TKBM secrets. Yang Chen seemed to have realized his mistake after seeing Ju Hian's gaze. He had shouted out loud because he saw Yu Jeha while the memories of the past memories were still fresh on his mind, but no. This is top secret information. It involves the other monarchs as well. He didn't know for sure, but it wasn't just an issue of his past life. These TKBM secrets were deeply connected with the current monarchs as well. That was why it would be terrible if Ju Hian wanted to find out about it. I need to change topics. Maybe that was the reason. Yang Chen quickly came up with an idea and urgently started to shout. I'm sorry sir. I've committed a grave sin, sir. However. He shouted whatever came to his mind. 
To be honest with you, I'm not the only one who betrayed you at that time, Captain Nim. His eyes opened wide as he quickly turned toward you Jeha. That bastard. That bastard betrayed you too. The team members became shocked while Juhian started to frown. Don't put Jeha on the team. It was probably right after Julian got his memories back through the Raven's artifact. Julian had said the following to Juhian. I agree that Jeha is talented. But I am against having him as one of our team members again. Julian had not looked very happy. Julian did not trust the monarch of fraud. It was obvious that Yu Jeha would have a bad relationship with Julian who worked as an appraiser with Zhuge Kongming's artifact. It was the relationship between an appraiser and a scammer. Furthermore this is just my hypothesis, but Julian had stealthily told Zhu Hian after he had recovered his memories. I don't think that Yang Chen was the only one to betray us. He believed that Yu Jeha had betrayed them as well. There was a simple explanation. The artifacts we had on us at that time none of them were fully restored. That was true. The artifacts Jeha had given them while saying they were fully restored only had about half of their durability. They broke easily as well. That was why they couldn't fight at full power after just a short time inside the tomb. He always took care of our artifacts. It wouldn't be hard for him to mess with them. Hey! Kong Ming! That's not all. Jeha was the only one who didn't come into the tomb with us. He said he was sick. He always said that though. Julian ended by saying one more thing. There's also Chloe's chart artifact that had our data on them. Don't you remember you Jeha stealing it a few weeks before we went into the final tomb? There had been a time when Chloe's examination records had been replaced with a copy. In that case, what would have happened with the original? It's obvious. He claimed that he was pulling a prank to see if Chloe realized it, but he probably handed our data over to those bastards that wanted to kill us. Returning to the present Julian had the same look as that time as he looked at Yujeha. Yujeha was also a traitor. Julian's gaze looked much more agitated than usual. The proof was the thunderbolts crackling around him. Indra's artifact was responding to the user's emotions. That bastard really was a traitor too. Ciole was shocked after hearing Julian's vicious tone. P, please wait. Vice Captain Nim. Are you really trusting what Yang Chen is saying? No. You guys know it as well. There was a lot of circumstantial evidence that made me believe that. T, that. Ciole shook her head. She always bickered with Yu Jeha until their faces became red as if they were bitter enemies, but she had treated him as her friend. Although he would frequently cast them aside and run away, she just thought that that was his personality. There's no way Jeha really betrayed us. You guys might not know it, but our restorer didn't come into that tomb with us. Vice Captain Nim. He knew that the Yu Jeha that came into the tomb was fake because he was using Zhuge Kongming's artifact. As the vice captain and as someone who cherished and trusted his teammates more than anybody else, he loathed those traitors. That was why he was extremely angry right now. Co Juhian. You know it too. You know that Yu Jeha was suspicious. You're just staying quiet because there's no proof and you are greedy for his abilities. Yu Jeha was extremely flustered right now. What are these people talking about right now? Wait, excuse me. I know you guys always talk about some weird life on the moon without me all the time, but I really can't keep up with this one. A traitor? Do you know how hard I've been working to restore Captain Nim's artifacts? I feel wronged. But Thunderbolt struck down regardless of what he was saying. Boom. Then Julian's eyes flashed. Let's kill them halfway and restore their memories. Then once their sins are confirmed. His thunderbolts were about to strike down on Yang Chen and Yu Jeha. Yu Jeha and Yang Chen screamed at the same time in response. Wait, Captain Nim. Captain Nim. Eek. Please save me. Yu Jeha, who had no idea what was going on, plopped down on the ground and started to scream while Ciole became anxious. Julian's strength and dominance was quite strong as he was a monarch as well. Baba Babang. As his thunderbolts started to strike down on Yang Chen and Yu Jeha Bang. 
Ju Hien's artifact gobbled up Julian's artifact. Set's artifact started to viciously suppress Julian's artifact. You, ugh. That wasn't all. Osiris is summoning Hell's Book of the Dead. Julian Miller's name is being written inside. Preparations for judgment have begun. Julian started to scream as Ju Hien read that message. Steel Rod suddenly fell from the sky and he ended up captured inside a suspicious cell. His dominance instantly fell once he was captured. Julian looked flustered as he looked at Ju Hien. Hey! What the hell are you doing? It's fine so calm yourself and prevent your artifacts from going berserk. What? Hold! Shut the hell up! That is an order from your captain. Julian flinched after seeing Ju Hien's cold gaze. Ju Hien clicked his tongue. He understood that Julian lost his rationality because he was fired up with his desire for revenge, but I agree with punishing the traitors. I also agree with restoring their memories and forcing them to tell us information we don't know about. However. He roughly pulled Yang Chen by the hair. Hey Kong Ming. Information about the future is very precious. That was why he only restored the memories of people he trusted as well. He would have to be crazy to let these bastards know about the future. This is not the time to restore their memories. The moment he achieved everything he wanted he would use the artifact on Chairman Quan and these traitors at that time. Then he would watch them frown. Julian asked Ju Hien a question. Then how the hell are you going to drag information out of them? First. Ju Hien flicked his finger and Chloe approached them and grabbed Yang Chen's shoulder. Yang Chen glared at Chloe but ah. Yang Chen screamed and coughed up some blood. Yang Chen realized something was wrong. The dominance in his body was slowly disappearing. He was shaking as he glared at Ju Hien and Chloe. W, what did you do to my body? What else would it be? Do you really not remember? That was right. Nurse of Healing and Punishment. That was Chloe's nickname. She could heal risks and illnesses but she could also remember those risks and illnesses to return them to the person. She had just done the same to Yang Chen. Ju Hien had a cold smile on his face as he looked at Yang Chen. That's for lying to my face. You are now a D-grade artifact user, you bastard. You can't use any artifacts higher than C-grade. Actually, you probably can't even use D-grade artifacts properly. Yang Chen quickly grabbed the key that was around Ju Hien's waist. It was an A-grade consumable artifact. Nothing happened even after he channeled his dominance into it. He really couldn't use high-grade artifacts. Fuck, fuck. He shouted in anger and looked toward Ju Hien as if he had been wronged. You can't only punish me, sir. You should also punish that bastard Ugg. Yang Chen was stomped on by Ju Hien. Ju Hien glared at Yang Chen as if he was ridiculous. Shut up. I'll cut your head off right now if you run your mouth any longer. Ju Hien then peeked at Yu Jeha who started to shake in fear. He didn't know what they were talking about at all, but please hold on a minute. Captain Nim. I really don't know anything. I don't know what he is talking about. Ju Hien then grabbed Yu Jeha by the collar. Don't worry. I will be the one to decide that. Ju Hien then used an artifact. It was an artifact to restore memories. Chapter, 228 Please hold on a minute. Captain Nim. I really don't know anything. I don't know what he is talking about. Ju Hien then grabbed Yu Jeha by the collar. Don't worry. I will be the one to decide that. Ju Hien then used an artifact. It was an artifact to restore memories. It happened in an instant. Ju Hien had taken out the raven's tears and activated it. I will restore this bastard's memories with this. Of course, doing this came with a risk. This bastard was a headache compared to the others. Furthermore, he might be a traitor as Julian mentioned. There was just one reason for doing this. Tell me TKBM secrets. He wanted to know the information after they died. The information was probably not that important, but Ju Hien was the type who could not handle curiosity well. That wasn't all. What Yang Chen said was interesting too. 
the corners of Ju Hian's lips started to twitch. There's enough value to restore his memories. The moment the raven's artifact was about to descend on Yu Jeha. Ah! Yu Jeha clenched his head and started to scream. Getting these memories of the past seemed to cause quite the headache for everyone. He should fare better than the others though. The others would vividly remember their deaths but Yu Jeha wouldn't have that. However, something weird happened at that moment. Barf. Yu Jeha barfed and was in serious pain. Huff huff. Captain Nim. He looked toward Ju Hian in terrible pain after who knows what he had seen. Yu Jeha was crying as he recognized Ju Hian. Captain Nim, Captain Nim I'm sorry. I did something terrible. Ju Hian started to smile. Good he remembered. Yes. Hurry up and tell me. He wanted the information. Information none of the others knew about. Jeha. You'll have no choice but to tell me the information. He would now be able to tell whether Yang Chen was telling the truth, what TKBM's secrets are, and what this revenge thing pertained. Yu Jeha's hand was shaking as he grabbed Ju Hian's hand that was holding the raven's artifact. I really, really did something terrible. Okay. It's fine, so tell me. Yu Jeha was still gagging as he apologized to Ju Hian. To be honest with you, the artifact you just used was fake. What? Imar, really sorry. Yu Jeha fainted as soon as he said that. Plop. A blank Ju Hian soon returned to his senses. And then hey. What the fuck did this bastard just say? Julian started to sweat after hearing Ju Hian's vicious voice. You, um, that tears artifact. He said it was AF, fake. Really? Is that the truth? Julian felt as if he would die if he didn't tell the truth. Julian looked toward Ju Hian with an awkward expression. That now that I'm looking at it, it really is a fake. But didn't you already realize it before you used it? Then are you saying he fainted from the side effects of using a fake? Yes. The fake raven's artifact was instantly destroyed. His chaotic dominance started to fill the area and the team members started to shake in fear. Ah! Captain Nim, calm, please calm down. But Ju Hian didn't care and grabbed Jeha, who had fallen unconscious while foaming at the mouth, by the head. Wake up, you son of a bitch! You, ugh! I, I'm so we. Captain Nim, you didn't use this on me so I was planning on secretly using one drop. Yu Jeha then fainted once again. My goodness. He changes to a fake on his own and faints as he wishes. The fact that Ju Hian was able to destroy it with his dominance was proof that it was a fake that Yu Jeha had made. The pale Yu Jeha really seemed to be in pain, potentially from the side effects of using a fake. He looked as if he was suffering from appendicitis and enteritis at the same time. Ju Hian clicked his tongue and got up. Ah, uh, whatever. Let this son of a bitch sleep for now. Ha, huh, ha. Huh. Then what about the real tears? I found it in his pocket. Shove that son of a bitch in a hospital for now. Wait Captain Nim. Where are you going? Where else? You really don't know where. Ju Hian viciously glared at Yang Chen before looking at the monarch of fate's destroyed camera. They're extremely annoying. That was right. Ju Hian found the monarch of gluttony and monarch of fate who had come looking for Yang Chen to confirm the future to be annoying. The one to actually show up to decipher the future was the monarch of gluttony, but the monarch of fate had let her borrow the artifact. Their asses were probably on fire because there was a future they could not see, but there's also the fact that they gave Yang Chen information about team members we still haven't found. He found them annoying. Very annoying. That motherfucking monarch of fate. I was letting him do as he pleases because I have some use for him in the future. But he kept getting on his nerves. Because of that I'm going to go teach him a lesson. Ju Hian cracked his knuckles. While that was going on Mr. Joshua. What is it? What do you want? Joshua, the monarch of fate, was sleeping with a sleep eye mask. His clients kept telling him to please take care of Seo Juhian. They went on and on about it that he even had to work overtime. 
but the subordinate's response was serious. Sir. Seo Juhian's status does not seem normal. Joshua sat up completely annoyed. Fuck, is it Seo Juhian again? Please stop. I left that situation to that woman, Jin Kai Yuan. He didn't know why, but that woman seemed to be interested in Juhian. That was why he had even let her borrow his artifact to take care of Seo Juhian. Seo Juhian that bastard, he's nothing if I can read the future. What do you mean he's nothing? Seo Juhian is moving extremely quickly. It's almost unbelievable. The monarch of fate didn't even snort after hearing that. Who cared if it was an unbelievable speed? He must be on a plane or something. Where is he headed? Chairman Kwan's house. A government building? A tomb? Who the fuck cares where that son of a bitch is heady dash? You can't be this calm, sir. Ah uh, why? Did he go to a brothel or something? Fuck, no sir. He's headed here. W, what? To this building? The monarch of fate, who had been confused as he was still half asleep, dropped his jaw in shock. He felt as if he had been hit over the head with a hammer. Wait, what did he just say? Holy crap. He's headed over here right now. But why? He jumped out of his bed. Prepare the defenses right away. Use that thing. They all became anxious at this unexpected emergency situation. Look at him sleeping so peacefully in such a situation. Seo Lei clicked her tongue at Yu Jeha who was completely pale as he laid there unconscious. It was fine that they got him admitted to a hospital, but there's nothing dangerous. He just got a stomachache. Egu, this stupid idiot. Who told you to copy an artifact and switch it as you pleased? Even medicine can be bad for a person if taken incorrectly. The other team members clicked their tongues at him, saying this happened because he was greedy for an artifact. Siole cautiously looked at Julian at that moment. But Vice Captain Nim, do you really think that Jeha is a traitor? Julian's thoughts had not changed. There's no other reason for our artifacts being in such terrible conditions. Julian's gaze turned cold while looking at Jeha. Siole flinched after seeing his gaze and turned toward Chloe. Chloe, not you too, right? I think there is a 83-7% chance that is the case. She wondered how Chloe could come up with such a number, but Chloe was peeking at Yujeha. She wasn't shaking in anger like Julian, but her gaze was still not nice. I'm sure all of the team members would be suspicious of Yujeha. The monarch of fraud had no issues selling out the team members whenever he was placed in a terrible position. It's nothing new. Chloe was very calm. I was uncomfortable from the beginning when I found out that Yujeha was on this team. I also thought that Yujeha betrayed us. W, what? But. I just haven't said anything because it seemed that the Captain Nim trusts this guy. Julian clicked his tongue. Juhian might not show it, but he's a very affectionate person. He considers the team members as his family. That was the reason he tried his best to even tutor the employees that TKBM had called trash and help them get stronger. Julian had even thought Juhian wasn't a bad guy at one point because he knew this side of Juhian. But we still can't accept a traitor. Please don't worry. The Captain Nim knows right and wrong as well. Chloe was not very worried. She knew that Juhian wouldn't be controlled by affection. That was how he was. Juhian would definitely get rid of Yujeha if he really was a traitor. If there was something Juhian was worried about it would be finding a restorer to replace him. There was no other restorer at Yujeha's level in this world. Actually, nobody in the world could replace any of the team members on this tomb raiding team. Each person was worth about a thousand people. They were also subordinates who had developed chemistry with Juhian. That might be why he is just trying to use his abilities without restoring his memories. Seo Lei started to tap her feet after hearing what the two of them had said. She could understand where the two of them were coming from. Everybody on the team had been smacked in the back by Yu Jeha multiple times. They had lost all of their money more than once, been betrayed, fallen into traps, and even felt that their lives were in danger. He would then say some shit like, it's your fault for being tricked. This damn son of a bitch. 
There really was no way to deal with this punk, but hey. Look at this. The captain Nim bought my painting. Ho. You probably forced him to buy it again. Fuck, I didn't. He's the only person who appreciates my painting. She didn't think that he would really have betrayed them C.O.L.A., who was waiting for Juhian to contact them, asked a question. Um is it really okay to send the Captain Nim to the Monarch of Fate's place on his own? Julian wasn't very worried about that. Juhian wasn't the type to be beaten up no matter where he went. It's not like the Monarch of Fate has an artifact to make a person powerless. They knew all about the artifacts he had. That was why they knew how to deal with him as well. Juhian was the type who liked to move on his own from time to time. Siole seemed to be worried even though she knew that was the case. But it's the middle of enemy territory what if something happens when he's there alone? Chloe sighed while looking at her. Then you go too. What? Then what about Jeha? Chloe looked at you Jeha, who was still fainted, as she continued to speak. I'll keep an eye here. Vice Captain Nim, you can go too. Should I? Even Julian seemed to have been worried about Ju Hian. He didn't think anything would happen, but he was concerned as a friend. Let's go meet Dan on the way and go with him. Siole nodded her head. Chloe walked the two of them out and returned to the room. However huh? The fainted Ujeha was now up. You're up. Ah, uh, I feel like I'm dying I want to vomit Chloe, where's the restroom? Ujeha groaned and tried to go out. Sigh. The restroom is to the left. Chloe released the lock and opened the door. Chloe then heard a voice by her ear. I'm relieved to see you again. Ujeha's tone was different than usual. She turned her head in shock to see Ujeha slam the door as if he had never been sick. Bang! Chloe became flustered after instantly getting locked in. Hold on, hey! Ujeha! She tried to open the door but he seemed to have used an artifact to make the door feel like concrete. Ujeha laughed out loud as he started to speak. Stockfish! You stay here because it's dangerous. I'll be back soon after seeing the Captain Nim. Chloe became shocked after seeing the familiar look in his eyes. That gaze and what he called her she was certain. Hey! You Jeha! This bastard! He was tricking us even though his memories had returned. Chapter, 229 Hey! You Jeha! This bastard! He was tricking us even though his memories had returned. Chloe became flustered. She was certain. That pessimistic gaze just now and his annoying tone it's the monarch of fraud. It wasn't that the original Ujeha's tone was annoying. The way the monarch of fraud spoke felt more sarcastic. It was also more relaxed and confident as fitting for a scammer. But most importantly, Ujeha had just called her Stockfish and not Chloe. That's the nickname that Bastard used to use. With a team full of extremely different personalities, the way they addressed each other was very different as well. They mainly called each other by their names but there were two people who never called anybody by their names. One of them was Ujeha. He called her Stockfish, C.O.L.A. Fangirl, Juhian the retarded Captain Nim, Julian a pushover, and such. And that dominance I just felt. It was slightly different. His dominance had gone up quite a bit compared to before. She was certain it was the level of dominance he had during his time as the monarch of fraud. But Chloe did not understand at all. How? He was completely pale and unconscious until now. Wait, did he pretend not to have his memories this whole time? Just when? If Ujeha got his memories back, it was most likely when the Captain Nim used the Raven's artifact at the penitentiary. But wasn't that a fake? Chloe realized her mistake at that moment. Now that I think about it, the real one had been in Ujeha's pocket. And if Ujeha had gotten his memories back from his time as the monarch of fraud Chloe stopped thinking and shook her head. That wasn't important right now. If what just happened was real Captain Nim, I need to quickly inform the Captain Nim. She needed to inform the others as well. However huh? Ha ha. Chloe's eyes opened wide after putting her hand in her pocket. Her cell phone was not there. 
She looked in her bag and all over the room but she couldn't find it. She then glared at the door that Ujeha locked before running away. That son of a bitch. He stole my phone in that short period of time. He only learned terrible things from the Captain Nim. Around the same time in an alley within what seemed to be an empty city. Huff, huff. Ujeha was vomiting once again after running out of the hospital. He had acted shameless before running away from Chloe, but his complexion changed as soon as his teammate disappeared. Barf. It was the same as when the other members had recovered their memories. They had all experienced the moments of their death and felt extreme amounts of pain. Ujeha was trying to catch his breath after feeling a similar pain. Fuck. It felt extremely shitty. He lamented the fact that he had been jealous that Juhian had used the raven's tears on the others. But his curiosity had been satisfied. Man, I've been wondering what everybody had been talking about while leaving me out. It was this. Ujeha sighed in disbelief. He really did switch out Juhian's raven's tears out of curiosity. He just used the real one at the same time Juhian had used the fake one. Either way, his memories had returned. He now had his memories from his time as the monarch of fraud. Fuck. He then realized it. He remembered his time as a copycat and the time he spent as the monarch of fraud, screwing over countries with his teammates. He also remembered what had happened to him after his teammates had died. Ujeha vomited again after thinking about those moments. Maybe the raven's artifact was messing with him quite a bit as he felt as if he wanted to die of sorrow. His eyes opened wide after he vomited once more. Yang Chen. That son of a bitch, trying to get out of it on his own. He then started to laugh as if he was crazy. If we're going to die all, of us traitors should die together. On that day he really did not go into the tomb. It was also true that he had not restored his teammates' artifacts properly. Most importantly, he knew about what Chairman Quan and Yang Chen had done. What? They're all dead. The news had been shocking. TKBM's people had then said the following to him. You did very well. You Jeha. The information you swiped for us allowed us to take care of them. I will give you a promotion. Then came Chairman Quan's request. You're the only restorer in the world now. Work hard if you don't want to end up like your captain. Yu Jeha had seen it at that time. That was when he saw TKBM and the other monarch secrets. And right after that that bastard Yu Jeha betrayed us, sir. He schemed with the other monarchs. That son of a bitch. Yu Jeha vomited again after thinking about that moment. He then started to cry by the trash pile he was vomiting at. The faces of his dead teammates passed through his mind one by one. Fuck, fuck. Captain Nim. Captain Nim. He continued to walk even though he was in pain. I need to go to Seo Juhian. It was because he had overheard Julian, Chloe, and Seolae's conversation they had outside the room. I think that Yu Jeha is a traitor. Will the Captain Nim be okay going to the Monarch of Fate on his own? He needed to go. There was something he must do. In the Palm Beach area within the U.S. state of Florida the monarch of fate's home was a mess. Fuck, that bastard C.O. Juhian is barging in. Shit, why the hell is that bastard coming here? The monarch of fate's subordinates were always trying to keep tabs on all monarchs. Of course, they couldn't always know where they were. They could only track Juhian right now because he was getting close to the monarch of fate's home. Anyway, the fact that Juhian was heading over was shocking news. It looks like he's already arrived at the gate sir. The gate has been breached. Holy shit. Why the hell is that son of a bitch coming to find me? What business does he have with me? The monarch of fate soon shook his head. Right, that's not important right now. There's no way that this bastard would show up without a plan. What about the defenses? We have activated the artifacts. It should be difficult for him to enter. Good. That bastard would dig a hole to sneak in if he needs to do so. Make sure to pay close attention to the floor and blind spots. But forget the blind spots ding dong. Someone openly rang the doorbell. 
The monarch of fate was wondering who it could be in such a situation. Which motherfucker rang the doorbell? Do they not understand the situation? The subordinate started to shout at that moment. I, it's C.O. Juhian sir. What? Um, C.O. Juhian was the one who rang the doorbell. What? It really was Juhian. The person visible on the intercom camera calmly stating, what the hell? Why is there no response? That was definitely C.O. Juhian. He seemed to be getting annoyed after not getting a response after ringing the doorbell a few times that he started to continuously ring the doorbell over and over. Ding dong ding dong ding dong ding dong. That wasn't all. I know you're in there, hurry up and get your ass out here. He started to cause a ruckus. At the door. The people inside became flustered. W, what do we do? The monarch of fate grabbed the back of his neck. Fuck, why the hell is he coming through the main door? Doesn't Seo Juhian usually not come through the door? The monarch of fate started to frown. See, connect him. Let's see what bullshit he has to say. Yes, yes sir. The subordinates gulped as they connected to the intercom. Um, what brings you here today, sir? Juhian nonchalantly started to speak. Send the monarch of fate out. What do you mean send him out? Yes, your house is too far. It's annoying to go there. So just send him out. I have something to say to him. They wondered what he needed to say just to the monarch of fate, but does he really think we would send him out because he told us to do so? It's not like he came here just to talk. The monarch of fate snorted. Tell him to scram. End the call. They had their defenses set so that that bastard should not be able to get to them. The subordinates did as they were ordered. I'm sorry sir, but Mr. Joshua says he has nothing to say to you. Click. The monarch of fate smiled with satisfaction after the call was disconnected. That bastard won't cause a ruckus if he has any sense of rationality since this is not a tomb. I guess I can go back to sleep. Bang. An extremely loud explosion came from the property. He opened the curtains in shock to see a vicious sandstorm destroying the plot of land around the house. The garden that was larger than over ten soccer fields put together three pools, numerous buildings this property that was as large as most resort complexes was being completely destroyed. The monarch of fate foamed at the mouth as he watched. This crazy bastard. He's really destroying this even though it's not a tomb. He immediately told them to activate the defense type artifacts. You've analyzed all of his divine grade artifacts, right? Yes sir, they are all Egyptian artifacts and Set's artifact is the natural disaster type while Osiris and Anubis's artifacts are related to the underworld. You can't forget that all artifacts have their counters. Ju Hien, who was destroying someone else's home without any guilt, started to sneer after seeing them activate an artifact. The sandstorm is subsiding. The power of the dead is becoming weaker. Joshua didn't seem to be an idiot as he had thoroughly set his defenses. The proof was that Set's sharp winds subsided while Anubis's soldiers and Osiris could not properly show their powers. It looks like they have an artifact that is their weakness. Soldiers rushed out of an inner building, probably because they thought that they had Juhian where they wanted him. There was a large cross that Juhian remembered seeing in a history book once. They were crusaders. He is Satan. Kill him. He is a heathen. Kill him. Protect our sacred land. He didn't know the identity of this artifact, but the fact that the soldiers were coming in formation must certainly mean that it was an S-grade artifact. However, he didn't care much about it. Why? Why do you think I came here alone? The rope jumped out behind Juhian and slightly lifted up Juhian's jacket. It then took a chain rope out of his belt and handed it to him. The moment the soldiers were right in front of Juhian. Flash. Juhian activated the artifact at the time. What appeared was a large spear and sword. That artifact was the world conqueror. It belonged to the hero whose power was said to be strong enough to pull out mountains and conquer the world. It was the valiant General Xiang Yu's artifact. It might be lacking in other ways, but it was amazing when it came to fighting. 
the sword and the spear turned into shapes that were most efficient for Juhian once he channeled his dominance. They changed into dual daggers about the length of his forearm. I'll sweep all of you away first. The devil of the battlefield descended once Juhian's eyes flashed. Holy shit, this is crazy. The monarch of fate could only drop his jaws in shock after looking at the unbelievable sight in front of him. He had wondered what was giving Juhian the courage to openly press the doorbell. Your package is here. Come get it. That bastard. He seemed to have gotten a valiant general's artifact from the Tower of Pride. The monarch of fate got up from his seat after it looked as if Juhian would really barge in. His subordinates became shocked after seeing him trying to open the passage to a secret location. Are you planning on using the artifact the Pandora directors gave you? You're going to use them here sir. That's too dangerous. They haven't even passed the testing phase yet. Shut up. There's nothing more dangerous than my house being destroyed. As he was about to walk into that suspicious passage BR. He received a call. It was from Ujeha. Chapter, 230. BR. He received a call. It was from Ujeha. The monarch of fate didn't know who it was at first. He did not have it in his contacts. Is it a new client? Hello. He then heard a voice. You can talk right now, right? They were shocked to hear this familiar voice. Maybe it was to be expected. The monarch of pushoverness? Why would that bastard Ujeha be calling? They were extremely confused. It was the same for the monarch of fate. Why would he call right now? Was it part of Seo Juhian's ploy? He found it weird but decided to talk for now. What is it, monarch of pushoverness? I'll let you know that I'm not going to leave that son of a bitch Seo Juhian alone. He answered confidently but the words he heard on the phone were shocking. Unknown. The Pandora Director's Artifact. You have it, don't you? The monarch of fate froze in spot. Normal people might not know what that meant, but it was extremely shocking to the monopolizers who were colluding with Pandora. Why? How does this bastard know about that? The only people who knew about that should be Chairman Quan and the other monarchs who had been around since the creation of Pandora. Did the information leak? No. There was no way that this information had leaked. But how did you Jeha of all people know about that? As the monarch of fate's pupils were shaking I'm sure you don't want other artifact users knowing about unknown and you really don't want the world knowing about it. All of you will have major headaches if that happens. This son of a bitch. Where did you hear? It's fine, make a deal with me. A deal? I'll give you information on Seo Juhian. I'll make it so you can take care of him with certainty. The monarch of fate was in disbelief. Wasn't this punk in Seo Juhian's tomb raiding team? Is he crazy? Is he trying to betray Seo Juhian? What's your goal? Nothing much. Just give me unknown too. It's really tempting. The monarch of fate scoffed once he heard that. How dare you ask for that when you are just an illegal restorer who became a monarch without any qualifications? What's wrong? It's not that hard for you guys. I'm offering you a way to take down Seo Juhian, someone you guys have failed to take down no matter how hard you've tried. You don't like it? Then never mind. This bastard. Yu Jeha quickly added on before the monarch of fate could figure out what Yu Jeha was really planning. Don't get the wrong idea. I'm in a situation where Seo Juhian might kill me if I do something wrong. What? I caused a bit of an accident. That's why I'm just preparing a lifeline before my captain finds out about it. The monarch of fate started to frown. What? You think Ujeha got his memories back? Julian and Siole were frantic after getting a call from Chloe. Ujeha seemed to have escaped somewhere after getting his memories back. Julian asked Chloe a question. Have you tried calling him? He's not picking up. I think he's ignoring my call. Did you contact Seo Juhian? That. Chloe sighed while looking at the phone. It looks like the Captain Nim's cell phone is broken. What? Really? Why? 
Julian put a hand on his forehead as Ciole shouted. Why else? He probably broke it again. Juhian was someone who destroyed a phone every time he went into a tomb. It was extremely likely that it was already destroyed since he was causing a ruckus at the monarch of fate's house. Well, TKBM had provided them with phones in the past. Anyway, so you can't contact him. They started to become desperate. It looked as if the worst possible scenario they had imagined had happened. It looks like Ujeha really is a traitor. There was no other reason for him to run away after getting his memories back. He knew because he had recovered his memories as well. Even if there weren't as many emotions as during a family reunion for families that have been split apart in North and South Korea, they should at least be able to greet each other. Instead, this son of a bitch chose to run away. What else could that mean? That bastard really must have sold us out. There's enough circumstantial evidence as well. Ciole turned pale while Chloe looked anxious. Julian started to grind his teeth while looking at Ujeha's number that he couldn't reach. I didn't want to believe it was real. Julian must have been unable to control his anger as thunderbolts started to crackle around him. He quickly asked a question. Ciole, are you able to track him down? Ciole was a talented searcher and scout. It would be easy for her to track down any of her team members. Ciole, who quickly used her ghosts and took out a radar, hesitated as she looked at Julian. She was worried that Julian would really kill you Jeha if she informed Julian about Jeha's current location. Um. It's fine, tell me. Will it be okay not to tell the Captain Nim? What if we met up with the Captain Nim and tell him what is going on first? Julian started to frown. Who knows what the hell that monarch of fraud would do in that time. Ciole debated for a moment before starting to speak. It looks like he is within New York City. Good. He hasn't gotten that far. It would take Juhian three hours to fly here from Florida but they were only about 30 minutes away. Julian quickly started to run. You Jeha. I won't let you get away with this. Juhian had taken good care of Jeha because he was one of their team members. That was why Julian was angry. You repaid his generosity with betrayal. I'm Vice Captain Nim. The captain doesn't know about this yet. No. He didn't want Juhian to know about it. Let's take care of it before Juhian figures it out. They would get rid of him from this world along with Yang Chen and Chairman Quan. Why? You don't want to make a deal. The monarch of fate's pupils were shaking at Ujeha's offer. It was because he couldn't figure out what this bastard was thinking at all. Damn it. Is this son of a bitch telling the truth or is he lying? Ujeha looked annoyed at the prolonged silence and sounded as if he would hang up. Well, it's fine if you don't want to. I just need to tell the world about the unknown that should be at your house right now. And, no, wait. I don't know how you know about it but I've never seen it or used it. What? Weren't you going to use it on Seo Juhian right now? The monarch of fate started to frown before he heard his subordinates shouting from the floor below. Ah! Mr. Joshua! Hurry! Seo Juhian is right outside. His subordinates were shouting because Juhian was causing a ruckus and charging forward. Ow! Stop breaking everything, you son of a bitch! Do you know how much that costs? It was at that moment. Bong! Juhian made it into the bedroom on the floor below. Juhian, who had used his tomb destroying abilities to destroy this house, brushed the dust off of his clothes. Ah, so annoying. There's so many fucking rooms. The monarch of fate started to shake while looking at him through a surveillance camera. T, that bastard. Juhian was smiling as he walked up a set of stairs. Xiang Yu's sword of the sovereign and spear of the overlord were quite threatening. The guards rushed toward him, but, unfortunately the rope jumped out, wrapped around the guards and used them as drumsticks. Don't come closer. Don't come closer. The monarch of fate started to shake while looking at the screen before he shouted to Ujeha. Okay. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you so stop this son of a bitch. Now. Ujeha started to smile on the other end of the call. I got you now. 
You bastard. Then stop trying to activate unknown for now. What? Joshua's subordinates tried to enter the secret passage as Juhian got closer. The monarch of fate quickly stopped them. Stop. Hold off on unknown for now. His subordinates were shocked. Excuse me. But we need to use it to get rid of Seo Juhian for good. The monarch of fate shook his head. It was dangerous to use it now that Yu Jeha knew about it. It would be a major headache if it was revealed to the world. An urgent monarch of fate turned on the speaker system that broadcasts through the entire residence. Stop. Stop. He was stopping. Okay, I'll head out so stop destroying my house. That message broadcasted throughout the house but Juhian just laughed. Too late, you son of a bitch. ba ba ba, -ba bang The monarch of fate started to scream. Hey! I told you to stop. Damn it, my house. That thing's worth 100 million dollars. Shit, that one's worth 50 million he started to foam at the mouth before continuing to shout. Fuck, I'll sell you some good information about the future. Information about the future my ass. Juhian just went bang. He destroyed another wall. I know more than you, you bastard. He then finally barged into the bedroom the monarch of fate was in. Hey there, monarch of fate. Did you keep your neck clean for me? The monarch of fate became desperate after seeing Juhian's vicious smile. But it didn't matter as Juhian stomped down on the monarch of fate. All right. Feel free to tell me which body part you want me to destroy first. I'll be generous and give you that option. The monarch of fate who was under Juhian's foot started to shout. Shit. Co Juhian, you have bigger things to worry about than doing this right now. You need to be wary of your subordinate. Juhian stopped moving. Was it because he already had an idea about it? The monarch of fate thought this was his chance after Juhian stopped. I had a prophecy. Co Juhian will die when the monarch of fraud appears. Do you know what that means? One of your subordinates can be considered the monarch of fraud. Shouldn't you take care of that bastard first? The monarch of fate was talking about Yu Jeha. There was no way Juhian wouldn't know that. He had seen it in the newspaper a while ago. The monarch of fate became excited and continued to blab as Juhian stood there without talking. To be honest with you, he wanted to make a deal with me. He said he would sell information about you because he felt as if you would kill him. I will do a thorough reading of your future. Huh. It looks like that bastard ran away from the hospital, should I track him down for you? You don't know where he is, right? That's why. I don't need it. He's here. As soon as he said that, bang. The wall crumbled. The next room was completely visible once the wall was destroyed with Set's artifact. As for the person who had been hiding in the next room Yujeha gasped. Fuck, I hid my presence completely. That was right. The Yujeha COA located in New York was a fake. The real one had secretly followed Juhian. But to notice him he held his breath and continued to hide thinking it could have been a coincidence, but Juhian started to sneer. Come out, you retard. How long are you going to be secretly following me? Yu Jeha's hands shook for a moment. What do I do? Should I go out? Ju Hian became annoyed. Hurry up and come out, you beggar. Yu Jeha, who had been hesitating, jumped up as if he had been struck by lightning. He then coughed out loud before slowly crawling out toward the hole in the wall. A, hey, Egu, you found me. Why did you follow me? Ah, uh, why else? I came to help you, Captain Nim. Yu Jeha nonchalantly smiled as he approached Ju Hian. Do you need my help with anything? I want to get a bonus. However, at that moment, Ju Hian's dagger was pointed at Yu Jeha's neck. Yu Jeha was shocked. See, Captain Nim. Ju Hian started to smile with satisfaction. Oh ho! Retarded Captain. You're not going to call me that. Yu Jeha stiffened up after hearing that. He anxiously asked back. E, excuse me. What do you Maya? Why are you shocked? You already got your memories back. 
the poker face on Yu Jeha's face instantly disappeared. Ju Hian started to smile as if he found Jeha to be despicable. Did you think that I wouldn't know? You really thought I wouldn't know you got your memories back? Silence filled the area. Had the others contacted him? Jeha looked toward Ju Hian with a gaze that seemed to be asking that question, but Ju Hian showed him his destroyed cell phone. He was showing that he couldn't have been contacted by them. Yu Jeha gulped after seeing the blade against his neck. H, how can you know even without getting a call? It's not my first time dealing with your obvious methods. He knew from the beginning that this bastard had been lying. How? I can tell by looking at the durability. The real raven's artifact that Yu Jeha had on him he had only used it three times but it showed that it had been used four times. The gears fell into place once he thought of this bastard's habits. That was why he had pretended not to know to let Jeha do as he pleased. It was because he could predict what this bastard was going to do. And now, in order to take care of everything Ju Hian placed the tip of Xian Yu's sword right up against Jeha's neck. All right, answer my questions while I am asking nicely. Your head will be gone the moment you lie. Yu Jeha could see the light smile on Ju Hian's face. Did you betray us too? Chapter 231. On the other hand, Julian scoffed after arriving at New York City. This son of a bitch. They had arrived at New York's Times Square. They were somehow able to find Yu Jeha in this crowded area. Even if Jeha was hiding his aura, they were all Juhian subordinates. It wasn't hard for them to do something like this. However, I've been feeling that something was weird the closer we got, but. This son of a bitch. They grabbed the back of the neck of the item in front of them. There was a well-crafted corpse in front of Julian, Ciole, and Chloe. Of course, people around them were screaming that someone was murdered. S, someone is dead. No. It's not a person. Kaya. Look at it. The corpse that had fallen down while spewing blood had jumped up and started to rampage. It was as if it was telling the people who had followed it, you retards, you were tricked. You were tricked. It was making fun of them. Julian started to shake as he watched. This bastard is dead once I find him. Of course, even Ciole who had tracked you Jeha looked as if she had not expected this. Maybe that was to be expected. Why? Unbelievable. Jeha went somewhere without Leonardo da Vinci's artifact. That was right. Yu Jeha's fake corpse had Leonardo da Vinci's artifact with it. He would never leave this artifact behind for a scam. That was the reason Ciole had focused her search on this artifact. Why did he leave da Vinci's artifact behind? He would definitely need this artifact to run. This was unbelievable even if he was trying to get away from their tracking. Da Vinci's artifact was the greatest artifact for the monarch of fraud. This could be compared to a soldier going out into the battlefield leaving his gun behind. How can he leave such a precious artifact behind? It felt as if he left it behind on purpose, knowing that they would recover it. Maybe that was the reason. Julian, who had recovered Da Vinci's artifact, looked anxious. Da Vinci's artifact is the reason we were always tricked by him. Yu Jeha was just a toothless tiger who only had his restoration abilities without this artifact. He had even given up his ownership of it. Why? It happened at that moment. Ciola's eyes flashed as she looked at her radar. I found the real Yu Jeha. Julian and Chloe focused on her. Really? Where is he? Um, that. Ciola looked at the map of the United States. Florida. It said Jeha was at the Monarch of Fate's house where Ju Hian was right now. Did you betray us too? Yu Jeha's body started to shake after hearing those words. He couldn't help but shake. It made sense. The person he had killed was standing in front of him. Of course, Ju Hian was viciously smiling. He didn't sound angry. But Yu Jeha couldn't help but gulp because of Ju Hian's gaze. I'm certain. Ju Hian's gaze was saying that he would really kill Jeha if he tried anything funny. In that sense, Ju Hian was really like a sword. Every member of his tomb raiding team knew how Ju Hian became when he got angry. His recovered memories clearly remembered the vicious side of Ju Hian. 
Zhu Hian especially never forgave his enemies. He would never forgive someone for betraying him either. Yu Jiha clenched his eyes shut after having those thoughts. Damn it. However, the monarch of fraud was not someone who would be scared by just this. He was someone who always said, the fault lies with the fools who were tricked, the fools who were smacked in the back. That was kind of his motto. He just needed to say the same thing this time. He confidently started to speak. That that's right. I killed you and the others just like Yang Chen did. So what? Who told you to get on Chairman Quan's bad side? You're the idiot for getting screwed over. Yu Jiha was about to say something like that as he usually would. He couldn't open his mouth to speak. Yu Jiha clenched his eyes shut after recalling the memories of his team members' deaths. And I'm sorry. Yu Jiha unexpectedly got down on his knees and lowered his head to the ground. This was something that would never happen in the past life since the monarch of fraud never knelt down for anyone. He was banging his forehead on the ground as he cried. They were not fake tears he was not acting. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. I wasn't trying I wasn't trying to do that. It really was my fault. I got you and the others killed. It was because of me. Yu Jiha bit down on his lips while recalling the incidents of the past. At that time I swiped the information about our team members and handed it over to the bosses. Zhu Hian's tomb raiding team was overbearing. They were able to clear any and all tombs without any issues, causing jealousy and envy from the others. Ah, CO Zhu Hian's tomb raiding is so lucky. They always end up with the easy tombs. I know, right? Well, I guess they're only given easy tombs since they are an unofficial excavation team. They wanted to give a bad name to Zhu Hian's team no matter what it took. That was why Yu Jiha, who had gotten upset at their slander, had responded back. Those retards. Look at them acting like buffoons. It's obviously because they suck. They responded to him. Then go clear a tomb we would approve of. Then we will accept your skills. Ho. Get lost. You're not even worth talking to. Why? Make sure to give us the correct information about your team members as well. We will pick a difficulty using those files as our foundation. Pandora was able to pretty accurately determine the danger level of a tomb at that time and they wanted to use that. Of course, Yu Jiha just ignored their bullshit. But Chairman Quan seemed to have been amused by it. Fine. We will test the strength of our team members. Yang Chen had asked Yu Jiha for the team's charts. Yu Jiha didn't want to do it but this was what Yang Chen had said to him. I want to show them our true strength during this test. It makes me angry seeing the Captain Nim being looked down upon like this. That was the reason Yang Chen wanted him to swipe the team members' files. They will use the information as foundation to assign a tomb with the right difficulty. That's the only way to make sure nobody claims we got another easy tomb. Yang Chen had said that this was an opportunity for their tomb raiding team to become an official excavation team. Hey Jaha. Don't you want to proudly come up to the sun rather than continuing on as a ghost team? I don't really care. He was Chairman Quan's personal restorer and a monarch so he was treated pretty well. But he knew how the rest of his team members were treated in TKBM. They were an unofficial excavation team on paper and were part of a ghost branch that didn't even come up on the organization chart. The accounting team used that as an excuse to not give them any funds or artifacts and their salary was a third of everybody else's as well. It was like this even though Zhu Hian's team was the one who had raised Chairman Quan to the four emperor's position and brought in 80% of all of TKBM's profits. That's all because we're an unofficial excavation team. To be honest with you, I want to be accepted by everyone and proudly stand with my head up high through this chance. After hearing that from Yang Chen who was one of his team members, Yu Jiha had rummaged through Chloe's examination records and swiped the team members' files. He did it hoping that his team members who were working so hard could finally come out of the shadows and into the sun. They were annoying, frustrating, and aggravating bastards, but he had received a lot from them during their time together. Let's help them. Of course, all of this was done in secret. The team members knowing this was a test would not make it as effective. 
but he had no idea that this was Chairman Kwan's scheme to delete Ju Hian's team from this world. There was even that stupid argument with his team members the day before the test. Ah whatever, I don't care. They'll only know about how important I am to the team if their artifacts don't work properly inside the tomb. He was tired and upset. That was why Yu Jeha had done something out of anger. I'll make it so that they will say sorry and that they can't do anything without me once they get out of the test. That was why he had not fully restored their artifacts. He had received information about the tomb in advance and it did not seem that dangerous anyway. Plus, it's just a test. He had received an extremely sweet order as well. We are going to be conducting the test for the team members so do not enter the tomb in order to keep it a secret. That made him think, great, it's my first break in a long time. He then went out and had some fun with women and booze. He would be able to see the others in the office after fooling around for a few days. Excuse me? What did you say? He then heard that all of them had died. Yu Jeha was flustered. This was what Chairman Kwan had also said. You did very well. Yu Jeha. The information you swiped for us allowed us to take care of them. I will give you a promotion. He was fuming with anger when he went to find Yang Chen and grabbed him by the collar. You said it was a test. Why would people die during a test? Who knows? They were just unlucky. Who could have expected history's worst tomb appearance to happen in that area? You son of a why would you not know that? What happened to all that shitty technology those sons of bitches at Pandora are so proud of? But the TKBM employees patted you Jeha's shoulders, as if they had all known about this in advance. Forget about them. You'll do much better now too. The shitty tomb raiding team that was holding you back is gone. Hey, you damn sons of bitches you Jeha had been grinding his teeth. He was about to grab these bastards who were worse than animals to object. If not, then are you going to say you weren't involved at all? What? We used the information you swiped about the tomb raiding team to find that tomb. We set the traps accordingly as well. You also said that you didn't fully restore their artifacts. It sounds like you had a good idea about what was going to happen. Hey monarch of fraud, I respect you. You even scammed your own team members to their deaths. You truly are at a different level than the rest of us. Let's work together well from now on. The cancer aiming for the chairman Nim is now gone. The only thing he figured out was that he had killed his team members. Hey Jeha, did you hear? The captain Nim gathered all of your paintings that he's bought until now and asked a cafe to display them. It's not big, but it's still an exhibition. People were asking who painted them. Yu Jeha had cried. He cried out of guilt as he sat in the empty office where nobody would come anymore. Why is nobody coming? Why? That bookworm retarded captain should be reading over there the stockfish should be nagging me the pushover should be watching her while sighing, Yu Jeha started to plan his revenge now that he knew that TKBM had planned this from the beginning. It took a long time to do it. It took about one year to pull it off. Even though he called it revenge, he didn't know if it would end up causing only a small impact and not matter in the long run. His opponent was TKBM's chairman, someone who could be compared to the emperor of an empire. In contrast, he was just a worker ant in that organization. How much damage could a puny little ant cause? But he still used the best method he could to get his revenge. Of course, he had no idea what happened to TKBM after that. It was because he didn't know what happened in the future after that. Fuck. Yu Jeha, that son of a bitch is dead. The only restorer left in the entire world committed suicide. The artifact's durabilities are at zero too. But his team members didn't return. Even if it had not been his intentions, his actions had led to his team members' deaths. And now I'm very sorry. I'm so sorry I did something wrong. Yu Jeha was apologizing to Ju Hian. He didn't try to make any excuses. While that was going on I don't know what the hell is up with them, but the monarch of fate, who was still captured by Ju Hian, thought that this was his best chance to escape. This is my chance while CEO Ju Hian is distracted. As he was about to use an escape type artifact. Stomp. Ache. 
Zhu Hian nonchalantly stomped on the monarch of fate's hand. It was his way of saying there was no way he would let the monarch of fate escape. Don't try anything funny and stay right there. There's something you need to do. Yu Jiehua continued to speak. I won't ask you for your forgiveness. You can punish me with death right now. I am the traitor. But Captain Nim, there is something I must tell you before that. It was at that moment. You're finally telling the truth. Yu Jiehua heard an angry voice. Yu Jiehua turned his head to see Julian, Chloe, and Seo Lei, who had chased him here. The other team members had used an artifact to fly here while Zhu Hian was busy destroying the residents once they realized that they had chased a fake. Julian was shaking while looking at Yu Jiehua. Captain. Don't pay him any attention. He's going to say whatever he can to stay alive. Yu Jiehua clenched his eyes shut after sensing Julian's anger. All criminals will apologize for their actions before they receive their sentences. They'll beg and say that what they did was wrong. Julian said that those tears could not be considered true tears. Those criminals were only apologizing with their mouths even if they didn't mean it. They were doing it so that it could help them reduce their sentences. This bastard would be the same. Yang Chen is one thing, but because of this bastard. Julian had a lot to say because of his fellow team members who had died wrongful deaths. But Julian sighed and didn't go on. He knew that there was no point in getting emotional right now. The important thing was what happened from here. I'm sure you are already aware even if I don't say anything else. This bastard. Yes. Zhu Hian was looking at Yu Jiehua with a cold gaze, as if he had made up his mind about something. Chapter, 232 I'm sure you are already aware even if I don't say anything else. This bastard. Yes. Zhu Hian was looking at Yu Jiehua with a cold gaze, as if he had made up his mind about something. He's not a traitor. That's right, he's not a tray. Julian's eyes opened wide. Wait a minute. What did he just say? Hey. Co Zhu Hian. What did you just say? Zhu Hian looked back at Julian with a confused look on his face. I said he was not a traitor. Ho. The team members gasped. They had never expected those words to come out of Zhu Hian's mouth. Chloe and Co Lei were standing in shock as Julian shouted in anger. Co Zhu Hian. Are you out of your damn mind? What's wrong? Is there a problem? A lot of problems. You're saying you're going to forgive a traitor. Are you trying to protect him? Co Ju Hian scoffed in response. Protect him my ass. You know how I am. I do know. Everybody needs to take responsibility for their mistakes. That was Co Ju Hian's philosophy. But knowing that was the case was making Julian even more frustrated right now. So what is it? There is circumstantial evidence proving that this bastard sold us out. But you're saying he's not a traitor? What? Circumstantial evidence. What circumstantial evidence? What else? He didn't restore our artifacts, he didn't come to the tomb, and he swiped our information. Ah, uh, those things? Zhu Hian just laughed. Julian was confused at Zhu Hian's laugh that seemed to be asking if that was all Julian was talking about. Hey CO Zhu Hian. You can't be like this. Huh? The captain could not be like this in consideration for the team members who had died. But Zhu Hian nonchalantly responded back. You are right that our artifacts were not fully restored at that time. Yu Jiehua started to shake as Zhu Hian peeked toward him. It's obvious he was being a jackass after arguing with us the day before, but. It was obvious. This bastard was petty and sly. That was probably why he only restored their artifacts a little bit, however but he didn't do that to kill us. Julian could not believe it. Listen to this bastard. Co Ju Hian. You. Shut up. I'm not saying that irrationally. Ju Hian started to frown. The durability of our artifacts didn't mean anything in that tomb anyway. I know it's not easy to look at it rationally. But I need you to calm down and be your usual self. Zhu Hian recalled the situation in that tomb. Think about it. 
Did the durability of our artifacts have anything to do with what happened in that tomb? They didn't. That was obvious. Their artifacts had not even worked in that tomb. Why? Their artifacts had crumbled as soon as they channeled their dominance into them. No all of the artifacts in our possession were destroyed as if there was something that despised artifacts in there. It was understandable now that they knew more about the situation. That was the tomb of the crow that loathed artifacts. Any artifact brought into that tomb would have been destroyed by the crow's savage aura. Either that or it was a trap that was placed to make that happen. Regardless of the reason, they were unable to use any artifacts inside the tomb at all. All they could do was run away as even their possession-type artifacts ended up being destroyed with a single use. All that they could do in that tomb was use those S-grade artifacts once. It was an extremely shitty tomb. But what about fully restoring the artifacts? It was a tomb where having any artifacts with us was meaningless. That's why although it was disgraceful that he did not fully restore our artifacts as a restorer, that's all it is. Strictly speaking, it had nothing to do with our deaths. We would have died even if they were fully restored. Julian started to frown after hearing this accurate deduction. But he probably could not fully accept it still. But he didn't even come to that tomb that day. A secret test of strength. Yu Jeha was shocked to hear that familiar term. Ju Hian just laughed at that reaction. Why do you look so shocked? Did you really think I wouldn't know about the rumor that was going around the company? T, that. Julian quickly asked a question. Hold on. What do you mean a secret test of strength? Ah. I don't know all the details, but I think they were trying to secretly test each team's strength. None of the restorers would take part in the test. Well, that old bastard ended up using that to get us killed it seems. Ju Hian's gaze turned vicious as he said that. He had felt that there were things he had not known, but he had not known about Chairman Quan's true colors. Who would have expected to die like that? Julian shouted in frustration after hearing what Ju Hian had to say. Then what about the fact that this bastard swiped our information? Let's be real, if they didn't have that information. Ju Hian started to laugh. Ah. The information he swiped. I'm sure that was useless. Even Yu Jeha's eyes opened wide after hearing that. You, useless. Why? Why else? I modified it before that. What? Yu Jeha gave Ju Hian a gaze that seemed to be asking him to explain and Ju Hian glared back at him to lower his gaze. There were enemies all around us at that time. There were numerous hyenas trying to find out our team members' weaknesses. Of course I modified it. Nobody knew about it since he didn't even tell Chloe who had created the files. Julian was truly flabbergasted. T, then. Our information was not given to them through this bastard. Then who? Ju Hian's gaze turned sharp. There's a person. There's a bastard among the monarchs who could do that. A monarch? Wait a minute then. This is just a hypothesis from here, but I don't think TKBM was the only one responsible for our deaths. Anyway, this bastard is not a traitor like Yang Chen for those reasons. Julian glared at Yu Jeha. How do you know that? He could have stuck with TKBM after we died and laughed it all off as he got promoted. I don't think so. Ju Hian recalled what had happened when Yu Jeha had gotten his memories back. He had thrown quite a show about using a fake artifact, however he had clearly looked as if he had gotten his memories back and he had been in pain. He had looked how everybody else had looked as well. Their gazes were all the same as they recalled the moment of their death. He had seen the same gaze on Yu Jeha at that time. Because of that I think this bastard ended up dying too. After we died of course. Yu Jeha started to shake while recalling that moment. Chairman Quan had destroyed his legs and prevented him from running away, saying that he was the only restorer left in the world. Yu Jeha had used all sorts of excuses to lower the durability of all artifacts before doing something he considered as a rebellion. He used a gun-type artifact he had hidden away. Of course, Ju Hian looked at him as if he was an idiot. You dumbass. You should have just stuck with Chairman Quan and lived a good life until you died of old age. T, that's so mean. 
Ju Hian was sure that TKBM would not have crumbled after that. Yu Jiehua's rebellion had caused meaningful results, however, it was not enough to destroy a large corporation like TKBM. Julian shook his head in disbelief at this point. C.O. Ju Hian. Then you never thought that this bastard betrayed us from the beginning. Are you an idiot? Why would I bring someone who really betrayed us as a team member? This bastard. Ju Hian was being serious. He would not have sought out this bastard if he thought Jeha was a traitor. The rest of the team members glared at Yu Jeha. They were feeling less suspicious after hearing their captain say all these things, but then why did you run away? You even threw away Da Vinci's artifact. That. Yu Jeha could not raise his head. The monarch of fraud had felt serious guilt facing his former team members once he got his memories back. He had believed that his actions had led to their deaths. He felt extremely guilty for having been alive and the rest of the team members had died. That was why he had returned Da Vinci's artifact, the symbol of the monarch of fraud, and planned on having Ju Hian punish him with death. He was worried that he would subconsciously try to run away if he had the monarch of fraud's artifact with him. That I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'll take any punishment you give me. You can even kill me, Captain Nim. He didn't think he would be able to raise his head if they didn't come to some kind of conclusion right now. It was because no matter what Ju Hian said, regardless of the fact that he didn't know what was going to happen, even if his actions had not impacted their deaths it was still true that he had stolen the files and not fully restored their artifacts. So please. Ju Hian just sneered at Yu Jeha who could not raise his head. Shut up. Why would I do something to make you feel better? Ju Hian snorted in response. You probably think dying is the best result, don't you? Ju Hian looked at the hard case on his destroyed cell phone. It looked like a regular cell phone case but this was the code of Hammurabi. The names of the team members who had signed the slave contracts were clearly written on it. How dare you plot ways to get an easy out when you are slave number one. Don't think about dying for a while. I don't plan on letting you do that. Ju Hian continued to speak. You definitely have things to feel guilty about. So shut up and work without causing any issues if you really feel guilty. I'll fuck you up if you mess around like you used to when you were the monarch of fraud. Yu Jeha started to cry after hearing that. The joy of meeting his team members again, the relief at the fact that they were alive and his guilt. Yu Jeha could not raise his head. Yes sir, yes sir I understand. I understand. Most importantly, you need to do something very important from now. E, excuse me. Ju Hian gently grabbed Yu Jeha's shoulder as if he had not been rude this whole time. Jeha. This is a very important question. Ju Hian's tone was very warm. Yu Jeha gulped in fear. You, um, Captain Nim. You saw TKBM secrets after we died, right? Ju Hian had an extremely friendly expression on his face that did not suit him at all. What is unknown? He was quite curious. Ju Hian wouldn't normally care whether he knew about an artifact or not, but this was still an artifact he didn't know about. He couldn't help but be curious. In addition, although this risk had disappeared now, the archaeologist's artifacts risk from the past the greed for knowledge that was gone now but he now had a greed for artifacts. Speak. What kind of artifact is it? Um, um T, that. Yu Jeha probably thought Ju Hian's gaze was scary as he responded while shaking. That M, um, unknown is basically an artifact that Pandora's executive board has. Okay. What does it look like? Um, um that. Be specific. You must know a lot about it if you were willing to make a deal with the monarch of fate. Yu Jeha was now sweating bullets. Um, Captain Nim. There is something I wish to tell you first. What is it? Um, your memory is better than most people's right? That's why you are able to remember the tombs and artifacts from the past. You know that isn't normal for most people even if they get their memories back. Right, sir. What the hell are you trying to say? S, so what I'm trying to say is that I don't remember. I remember seeing it, but ah, uh, shit, I don't know. Are you crazy? How can I remember everything from the past? 
You're the weird one, Captain Nim. The doggies were summoned as soon as he said that. And he's a traitor. Take care of him. Don't leave behind a corpse. Yu Jeha started to scream. Wow, isn't this too much? Yu Jeha started to grind his teeth. It was because he was stuck with a pile of artifacts and had to do all sorts of chores including cleaning, laundry, and looking after the artifacts. He could not hold it in any longer and started to shout. Hey, retarded CA no, Captain Nim. Logically speaking, most of these aren't my jobs. Yu Jeha, who was no longer a pushover, immediately started to resist. These shitty jobs they weren't his duty. Ah, uh, whatever. I don't care if there's a contract or not, I can make a living doing something else. I can't work while being treated like this. He immediately grabbed Da Vinci's artifact and was about to run. Disappearing after leaving his team members behind that was something he frequently did during his time as the monarch of fraud. The others who saw him acting like this were starting to get headaches, thinking that they knew he would be like this. They were getting headaches thinking about how he would smack them from the back now that the pushover got his memories back. However Jeha, now that I think about it. What is it, retarded captain? We might have been able to last a little longer in that tomb if you fully restored our artifacts. Right? Even though he said it was for us, it is true that he gave them our information. Ah, uh, I think the leg I lost in the tomb is starting to hurt. Ache. I'll do it. I'll do it sir. I'll do anything. I'll do anything you tell me to do, Captain Nim. Yu Jeha, who had been getting ready to run away, kneeled again. The way he addressed Ju Hian became respectful again. Although he was the monarch of fraud, it was still difficult for him to get away from his guilty conscience. As for Ju Hian, this was just the birth of a talented pushover. The other team members scoffed while looking at their interaction. I expected it, but it is quite rowdy. They clicked their tongues while looking at the articles in the newspaper. The monarch of fate, one of the world's greatest VIPs, has gone missing. Was it an abduction? Have there been no requests from the culprits? The puppeteer controlling things from the shadows has disappeared. The leaders throughout the world are in a state of panic. Where is he headed? Nobody knows whether he is alive or dead. A $100 million reward for any witnesses. This VIP must be found no matter what. We cannot locate the heirlooms or the remaining seven great tombs without the Monarch of Fate. Well, I'm sure it's a shit show since the Monarch of Fate, the person who pretty much controls the world, has disappeared. Hmm, what do we do now? They peeked toward the restroom. And inside hey. Fuck. Are you going to keep me like this? What the fuck are you planning on doing with me? The VIP who had been abducted by Ju Hian was shouting in anger. Chapter, 233. The team members sighed after hearing the loud shouts coming from the restroom. Joshua, the monarch of fate, was being held captive inside the restroom. He had been in there for about two days already. It's about time he got tired. He's still quite lively. Will he calm down if we drown him? The monarch of fate started to foam at the mouth. Lively. Drown me. What the hell did they just say? Hey. You guys shouldn't be doing that. How can you do that to a person? Someone slammed the door open after hearing that. The person who had been the first to do so was unexpectedly Julian. The monarch of fate's face lit up after seeing Julian. The monarch of strategies. This bastard is a good person who will not forgive wrongdoings. There was no way this guy would leave a poor soul who had been tied up with duct tape and imprisoned inside a tub for two days. That might have been why the monarch of fate started to feel rushed. Hurry and free me. This is a crime. Let's work together to put that bastard Seo Juhian behind bars. He believed that Julian would be on his side. You hated Seo Juhian quite a lot too. You called him a criminal. However can't you cover his damn mouth? He's so loud. What the hell did he just say? The monarch of fate looked at Julian as if he had been punched. Julian just looked back at the monarch of fate as if he was ridiculous. He was probably thinking that there was someone better than this guy for his goodwill. 
I definitely think there is a problem with his methods, but it shouldn't matter. What? The monarch of fate was a member of Pandora's executive board and the shadow puppeteer of the world's powerful leaders. He was a criminal who had control over countries and a strong influence over the black markets that were known as the underground economy. He had harmed a ton of people and caused chaos for the benefit of those he supported and his own. Furthermore, that was not just in the past life. There are over 20 zero zero people who have been killed by your hands. Do you know that? All of that had happened in the past one year. He's the culprit behind wars. He had purposely caused war and chaos to kill people or push them out of their land so that he could take control of artifacts and tombs. Although Africa and the Middle East were still the main focus because of the terrorist organizations and riots it was slowly spreading to Europe. He even ordered the monarch of destitution to cause an economic crisis in the past life. World leaders would often try to use wars to overcome their economic danger. It had made it so that the countries stuck between the weak countries and large countries would be beaten down without being able to do much. It should be less now since Kira, the monarch of war, is gone, but still Asia would end up scorched in a few years too if the current situation continued. That was why although Julian would normally believe that all humans had the right to dignity isn't it good in its own way if getting rid of one criminal would mean that hundreds of millions of people could be happy? The monarch of fate froze in place after seeing Julian's bright smile. He was certain of it. This son of a bitch is planning on killing me. The monarch of fate started to shout as if he felt wronged. Don't you know that your captain is a greater villain than me? He's a wanted criminal. That made Julian sneer as if Joshua was a pot calling the kettle black. The two of you look the same in my eyes but I guess the results are a bit different. What? The monarch of plunder and the monarch of fate. The people who will be happy with your disappearances are different. That was true. The monopolizers would feel as if the whole world had been destroyed if the monarch of fate disappeared. The people of the world would still suffer from wars and famine. But what if Juhian disappeared? The civilians might not necessarily be happy, but the monopolizers would be jumping up and down in joy. That was the difference. That is why if I had to choose between the two of you, I would wholeheartedly choose you to disappear. The monarch of fate gasped and Yujeha who had entered the restroom started to snort. And there you have it. So please keep your damn mouth shut. He then started to run the water in the tub. The monarch of fate gasped once more as the water level started to rise. Hey! Are they really thinking about drowning me? And the water is cold. Fuck, it's cold. It's fucking cold. Ah, uh, it's cold. Here you go. The monarch of fate started to scream that he was going to boil as Ujeha turned on the hot water instead. Julian clicked his tongue as he watched. Hey scammer, don't overdo it. This can be considered torture. Don't do something that cannot be forgiven in modern society. Huh? Hey. You're the one who imprisoned that son of a bitch here. There's a big difference between holding someone captive for a little bit and torturing them. He knew that both actions were bad but Julian just didn't like the monarch of fraud. Even if Jeha reflected on his past actions, he was still just the monarch of fraud to Julian. Yujeha snorted, knowing that was the case. Ah whatever, don't tell me what to do when you're not the captain Nim. You damn pushover. The two of them started to fight. They had fought a lot in the past as well since Yujeha was a scammer who made fakes while Julian was an appraiser who revealed the fakes. Julian used his position as a lawyer to angrily sue Jeha whenever he was scammed. That made Yujeha get angry at the fact that it seemed as if he received more court summons than credit card statements. They sued each other so much that they saw each other more in the courtroom than in their office. They were pretty much bitter enemies now that they got their memories back. The Captain Nim is the only one who can tell me what to do. Got it? Sure, you damn scammer. Of course, the monarch of fate was about to die while they argued because the water had risen to his nose. M. 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 P. H. Splash splash. The monarch of fate started to shout once the water moved up past his nose and started to get to his head. Hey, wait. Stop fighting and stop this. Please stop this. 
Ugh. Guzzle, guzzle. It was no longer an issue of whether the water was hot or cold. I'm D. Cough, gurgle. It was at that moment. Hey. We still need him alive. Yu Jae-ha moved at the speed of light once Ju Hian said something. All right, one, two, three. The lights of the restroom went out as soon as Jae-ha shouted three. Chloe was the one who turned the lights off. They turned the lights back to see that the monarch of fate had fainted while foaming at the mouth. The monarch of fate, who really had not heard anything, had been toyed with by the team members. Yu Jae-ha clicked his tongue while looking at him. Wow, what a retard. Anyway, C.O. Ju Hian. What are we going to do with him? Ju Hian was currently taking a look at the stock markets around the world. Things were changing because the monarch of fate had disappeared. The person they had abducted was an extremely important person. The excavation teams that had been using information given to them by the monarch of fate in order to find artifacts were in states of chaos as well. Captain Nim. What are you going to do with the monarch of fate? Ju Hian started to smile after hearing the team members ask him the same question again. What else? Put him to use. Put him to use. We're going to let him live even though he heard everything. They were asking if that wasn't dangerous. They knew very well that the monopolizers were not easy to deal with. But to kill him, there were two types of monarchs who were difficult to kill. The first were people like Chairman Quan and Jin Kai Yuan who had special artifacts. They were difficult to kill because they had artifacts of immortality, healing, curse resistance etc. The second were members of Pandora's executive board. The monarch of fate fell under the second type, which made it quite the headache. Well, all monarchs would be difficult to kill for some reason once they got the heirlooms, but either way, it would be difficult to take care of or use the monarch of fate. Ju Hian didn't seem to have any thoughts about killing the monarch of fate yet. Why? The heirlooms are the issue. The heirlooms were said to come out of the monarch's tomb. That was the case in the past as well. The monarch of fate had prophesied that the heirlooms would appear in about two weeks. The remaining seven great tombs would appear within the next two weeks and the monarch's tomb would appear after that. No. I'm certain the heirlooms would appear before that. Ju Hian had shamelessly said that. Ilya Volgov. He was usually referred to as the aftermath cleanup crew. There were seven total tomb raiding team members excluding the three supporters. Now that there were six of them, that bastard was the only one remaining. That bastard was a specialist in all sorts of modification. In simple terms, that bastard was the operative who made everything easier for the tomb raiding team. They would have used him on the monarch of fate if he was here right now. All we need to do is modify his memories. He's great at erasing his own tracks since he is the aftermath cleanup crew. It was extremely difficult to find him. What should we do? Should we look for a different aftermath cleanup crew? Well, it's fine. I don't really need his help for this. Excuse me? Ju Hian nonchalantly started to call someone. Ah, uh, old man, it's me. Prepare a camera crew and bring them over. Huh? A camera crew? I'm going to do an entertaining live broadcast. Only bring people you can trust. A live broadcast? What the hell is he trying to do? Chapter, 234 Fuck, I'm going crazy. The monarch of fate started to pull at his hair. It had already been a few days since he was abducted by Seo Juhian. The monarch of fate continued to swear after seeing the piles of items around him. It couldn't be helped, since he was still imprisoned inside a restroom. He also had an issue with the piles of items inside the restroom with him. Extremely strong sleeping pill fall asleep immediately. Sleeping pill you'll never open your eyes again. Sleeping pill let sleep until we die. Sleeping pills over here and sleeping pills over there. Ah, so crazy. There seem to be at least 500 boxes of sleeping pills. The monarch of fate started to swear at the CCTV on the ceiling. Hey, fuck, I'm going to die if I stuff myself with so many sleeping pills. He heard a voice respond in the speaker. Don't worry. 
we'll get your stomach pumped if it looks as if you're going to die. It was Chloe. So, just relax and eat them to fall asleep. That's the only way for you to see the future. The monarch of fate grabbed the back of his neck after hearing the doctor's calm voice. How are there no normal people on this damn tomb raiding team? That was right. These bastards were keeping him imprisoned and threatening him to look into the future. Why? Live broadcast of CO Stratamus's daily future forecast. It was because of the TV program that Juhian had created. Juhian had created a suspicious program after calling the camera crew over. He then had the monarch of fate predict things that would happen in the near future. They were in numerous categories. Today's report is about the results of the sports competition happening later today. Today's stocks are looking today's weather. Today's report is information about tombs and artifacts. Of course, Joshua was not the one on TV. Oh. Irene. Irene. Show us your face. Oh, the monarch of pushoverness is not a bad MC. He gets to be on the same program as Irene. I'm going to kill you, you damn monarch of pushoverness. I'm so jealous of Seo Juhian. I heard he's close to Irene. The ones on the show were Irene, the total babe, and you Jeha, the likable talker who looked as if he would be a good MC. And he's here again today. Seo Stratamus. Kaya. Juhian Nim. Juhian Nim came out. There was Seo Juhian, the one making the predictions. Anyway, Joshua had to be stuck in this restroom sleeping and having dreams he would read the future before Irene and Yu Jeha shared that information on the program. Thanks to that, this mysterious program was currently breaking all viewing records throughout the world. Even the political colossus and the extremely wealthy were focused on this program. There was a simple reason for that. Seo Juhian, this bastard, did he abduct the monarch of fate to use him for this? What the hell is he planning? Focus for now. It was pretty obvious that Seo Juhian had abducted the monarch of fate since he disappeared when Juhian broke into his home. That was why the numerous excavation teams and individuals who had been relying on the monarch of fate could only focus on this program. Anyway, we need to send over the contents for tomorrow's broadcast. Go to sleep while I ask nicely. Joshua started to pull at his hair again after hearing Chloe's threats. They were doing this because he needed to fall asleep to see the future, but hey. How can a person sleep 24 hours a day? Are you crazy? Are you blind? What do you think all those pills are for? They are sleeping pills, sleeping pills. They're there for you to take them and fall asleep. Ow. How can she call herself a doctor? What about food? Are you not going to feed me? I put all of the nutrients you need on a daily basis in the pills so shut up and go to sleep. Was she thinking about turning him into a druggie? I can't keep going like this. He would really become a druggie and die at this rate. The sniffling monarch of fate made up his mind to attempt to escape. Wow, this is crazy. We hit the jackpot in views again today. The people at the station were shouting in joy. The views were high and they consisted of people in top positions around the world as well as extremely wealthy people. There were also regular civilians who watched as well. How could a single program get half of the entire world's population to chime into it? This is enough to call it the program with the most influence in the world. We've made so much in ad money. But there was something they did not understand. Why is Seo Juhian doing this broadcast? Isn't he just seeking attention? No, this is Seo Juhian after all. That was right. They had no idea as to why Juhian would have a program like this. Yu Jeha started to chuckle after overhearing their conversation. Why else would he do it? There was a simple explanation. First. It's to mess with the monopolizers. The monarch of fate had been responsible for the lives of many terrible bastards. The important individuals in the world had all been moving according to what the monarch of fate had said. It was a daily occurrence. But if Juhian got involved and took that away those bastards would 100% be controlled by the Captain Nim. Juhian wasn't honest about everything he said on the show. He added fake information on purpose to make those bastards waste their time. 
That was why the monarch of fate's clients were about to blow up in anger. There was more. The monarch's heirlooms are going to appear soon. The number of talented artifact users were going up as more artifacts appeared. There were many expert grade users with the talents to become monarchs. Everybody was saying they deserved to be monarchs and waiting in line after bribing Pandora, but things would change once the heirlooms appeared. People with the heirlooms are the true monarchs. The monarch of fate was the only person who could predict where those heirlooms would appear. The monopolizer's asses were on fire because he had disappeared without sharing the location. But we know where they will appear. Ju Hien was working to drag the excavation teams away from the location because of how inconveniently it was located. He'll probably start to release false information about the monarch's tomb now. The people who had no choice but to focus on the program would end up getting a headache as to whether Ju Hien was telling the truth or lying. He was aiming for the chaos it would create. They would use that opening to get a head start on the monarch's tomb. Their enemies were getting angry without even knowing the real reason this program had been created. Just as he had expected hey. Where the hell is your captain? Someone grabbed Yu Jeha by the collar again as he headed out after the show ended. Hey. Monarch of pushoverness. Damn it. It's you guys again. Aren't you tired of doing this every day? They looked as if they had a lot to say. Drag your damn captain out right now. Co Stratumus my ass. Do you really think we don't know what you guys are scheming? They were so angry that they were about to explode. That was obvious. He was openly spreading information about the future that only they should know about. They really wanted to use their influence to get this program cancelled, however fuck, cancelling this program might mean we have no contact with the real monarch of fate at all. That was why the monopolizers could only grab the back of their necks in anger without being able to do anything every time they watched the program. Fuck, where the hell are they hiding him? They thought about threatening Irene as well but gave up on that and only chased after Yu Jeha who seemed easier to handle. Ah, uh, whatever, where the hell is the monarch of fate? Where is he? At the same time breaking news. The monarch of fate who has been missing for five days, already appeared on TV. The Mysterious Disappearance of the Monarch of Fate As there were many speculations about him being dead or him running away with his hidden cash the Monarch of Fate had suddenly appeared on TV. The entire world gasped after seeing him appear on live television. Before they could even get over that shock at Disneyland while everybody else was enjoying themselves on the rides you are Mr. Black, the excavation team wrecker, right? A suspicious deal was being made. Please disband Co Juhian's excavation team. Please also find the monarch of fate. I'm sure he was abducted by Co Juhian. The silver-haired young man snickered after receiving the money. Please don't worry. Disbanding excavation teams is my specialty. The hidden aftermath cleanup crew bastard had appeared. Ilya Volgov. He was a member of the tomb raiding team in the past and the leader of the aftermath cleanup crew. Whether it was recovering things from the scene of the incident, restoring damage caused by artifacts, gathering evidence, or destroying things he did all sorts of modifications but his specialty was modifying human memories and character, changing records, assassinating people and torturing people. Basically, he was responsible for doing whatever it took to make things more advantageous for the team. Ciole and Chloe had been trying their best to find him but had not been able to find any traces of him at all. They had wondered if he was living a life not related to artifacts at all, but he was quite infamous among excavation teams already. He was infamous for being a wrecker. He was a person who was feared by any monarchs who had their own excavation teams the excavation team will be completely disbanded. It didn't matter about the size of the team. He would modify their memories to completely disband an entire excavation team. There were over 100 cases of teams being disbanded by him already. His job was to be a hunter who targeted his clients' enemies to get rid of them. In the middle of the dark night, this team was they were observing someone while stationed on a roof of a building in the city that never sleeps. Their unique characteristic might be that they all wore black suits that made them look like grim reapers. Haha, <laughs> Captain Ilya. Is our prey this time that famous Co Juhian's excavation team? Yes. We will get 80 B-grade and higher artifacts if we take care of them. 
Our backer will be quite pleased. He's been gathering artifacts to tackle the monarch's tomb. No. We are preparing to take a heirloom for ourselves without involving that person. But without our backer, I don't think 80 B grade and higher artifacts are enough. Don't be surprised just yet. They will give us 5 SS grade artifacts as a reward if we get their captain. There is even a possession type artifact among them. Son of A. Wow, monarchs truly are different. No wait, they never gave us such payments for any other monarchs. Is it because it is Seo Juhian? Anyway, all we need to do is modify their memories. That was right. They sneered at the hunters for being barbarians. They were an intelligent organization in comparison. Memories and evidence they modified scenes of the crime and even modified family relationships or people's personalities if they needed to do so. They would modify anything and everything to completely get rid of an excavation team's existence. For example hey, you know who I am. Who the hell are you and what the hell are you doing? You don't know who I am. Wah, tombs are so scary. You stole my money. Who the hell are you? That was what happened once Ilias' excavation team made their way through. They were able to naturally get rid of excavation teams without any physical fights. That was why numerous monarchs had lost their excavation teams in their hands already. As for their target this time, Seo Juhian. How should we disband his team? Ilya was looking through binoculars as he started to smile. They were looking at someone right now. Wow, I truly am talented. I'm a celebrity no matter where I go. I won't lose to the Captain Nim now. They were looking at Yujeha who was returning to his workroom while praising himself. He had given everything he had to scam people on TV since there was only a few days until they went to look for heirlooms as the self-praising. Yujeha said, I should go get praised by the Captain Nim. And picked up his phone look at the monarch of pushoverness running his mouth. Yujeha was shocked after hearing that voice. Ha! Huh. Wait a minute. This voice? However, Yujeha was swallowed by a serpent before he could even scream. Ah! The only thing left was a tall young man with a long black coat. That's one down. Ilya started to smile. Chapter, 235 I'm giving up restoring now. Please don't look for me. Juhian tilted his head in confusion after seeing the message from Yujeha. He checked the number again and it was definitely Yujeha's number. He read it again to make sure and it clearly said he was giving up restoring. That wasn't all. Please deposit my severance pay into my account. P.S. I will report you to the labor administration if you don't. Is he crazy? The person next to him looked concerned after seeing the confused expression on Juhian's face. Um, Mr. Juhian, is something wrong? It was Irene. He was currently on a date with Irene. Well, this date was just sitting in a cafe together and going through files. Juhian was preparing to enter the monarch's tomb. Irene seemed to be going through some Pandora audit related files. Juhian didn't ask what she was doing, but she seemed to be part of Pandora's leadership like her brother for some reason. Did she say it was the audit team? That team was responsible for observing all artifact related businesses and all artifact users. How scary. The monarch of destitution was on Pandora's audit team. Pandora is okay, right? Juhian was seriously concerned about Pandora's future. Irene was intelligent and an amazing individual, plus she seemed to be thoroughly doing her job with a great sense of responsibility, however d, don't get on the monarch of destitution's nerves. Pandora might be completely destroyed if we make a wrong move. We're going bankrupt if we are even missing a cent. F, fuck, I spilled some coffee on the monarch of destitution. Are you crazy? Eight generations of your family will be cursed. Pandora was in quite the anxious situation because of her. George has gotten obsessed with artifacts now. Irene's older brother, George Holton. He hated artifacts but liked the artifacts Juhian gave him. It was especially true of the artifact from the Tower of Pride. He had given George the Louis XIV artifact after forcing it to vacate its room since it could not pay the rent and George seemed to be using it to run a dictatorship. In Pandora. 
Seo Juhian, you're the best. I've been able to beat up the thorns in my eyes thanks to you. He had not given that artifact to George for that reason. As expected, the monarch of torture is starting to show his true colors, Pandora was currently shaking in fear at George and Irene, the Holton siblings ruling with fear. And now Juhian was currently trying to figure out how to drag the enemies away from the monarch's tomb which would appear soon. The enemies were much more thorough than he had expected. It would be difficult to lure them away if it continues like this. Was there no way to use the monarch of fate even more? He had been thinking about that when he received the text from Jeha. This is a text from Mr. Jeha, right? Irene was shocked after seeing the message from you Jeha. She couldn't believe that he suddenly said he was giving up on restoring artifacts. It also said that he was giving up on painting. How could that you Jeha say these things? Do you think something happened to Mr. Jeha? However, Juhian just nonchalantly threw his phone aside. That son of a bitch is just upset. At that moment please don't look for me. I'm giving up on restoration and painting. Julian, who had received the same message as Juhian, started to frown. Is he doing this because he wants attention? What could make him want to send me a text message? Siole, who had also received the same text message, found it odd. No. He's not the type to seek attention like this. Plus, he would rather die than being unable to ever paint anymore. That was why this was weird. But Siole just started to laugh. Well, I'm sure he's joking. He's doing it now since he won't be able to do so when we go to the monarch's tomb. But Julian had a serious expression on his face. Vice Captain Nim. Julian stared at the message a little longer before turning around. This son of a bitch has a screw loose in his head. Vice Captain Nim. Julian growled and barged into Ujeha's workroom. Hey! Scammer! Vice Captain Nim. Please don't fight again. How dare a damn restorer talk about betraying the captain and running away? He was thinking that Ujeha was scheming as he used to do during his time as the monarch of fraud. And once he opened the innermost door, he found a hanging corpse in the room. They were shocked because the corpse looked to be similar in build to Ujeha at first glance. However ho! Unbelievable! Does he think we would be tricked again? It was at that moment. You idiot! Don't come closer! Julian and Siole screamed after hearing a familiar voice. They were then gobbled up by the serpent just like Ujeha. The corpse they had thought was Ujeha had turned into the serpent. The silver-haired young man, Ilya, then appeared. Good. I caught two more. There was a serpent that was large enough to fill the room squirming in the room behind him. The boa constrictor that swallowed an elephant B-grade, rare-grade, possession artifact this was simply the boa constrictor from the little prince. It was a scary snake that gobbled up everything, but everybody other than the user would see a hat or some other regular item instead of the serpent. For example, his subordinate was seeing a hat on the ground instead of the serpent. As for Ilya, he saw a serpent running wild. Julian and Siole seemed to be causing a ruckus inside the serpent. All right, all that is left is that female doctor and Seo Juhian. He left his subordinates here and started to move. I'll leave these bastards here to make sure to modify their memories completely. Yes sir. Ilya sneered as he walked out of the room. I was looking forward to it since they were said to be monarchs. Retards. Even that infamous Seo Juhian's excavation team didn't seem to be much. While that was going on Sai. You idiots. How can you guys end up gobbled up as well? Yu Jeha was in despair inside the serpent's stomach. The Captain Nim is going to kill us. That was right. Yu Jeha, who had been swallowed earlier, was inside the serpent's stomach. But he despaired once Siole and Julian ended up inside as well. He grabbed Julian by the collar. Can you even call yourself a monarch? Are you a retard? How can you fall for such a trap? I should be asking you the same. Sai, whatever. Don't call yourself Zhuge Kongming anymore. It's embarrassing. Ho. Hey. I was swallowed on purpose. What? I let it happen to figure out what was going on. 
Bullshit. That socially awkward son of a bitch got you too. He started to frown. That was right. They knew who had abducted them. There was only one person who could do this. Ilya Volgov. He had not expected to meet that twisted bastard like this. We're lucky we met him before going to the monarch's tomb. We'll be able to use the monarch of fate if we drag this bastard in. Yu Jeha didn't sound too convinced after hearing what Julian said. Who knows? It'll be difficult to drag him in. What? Why? Did you forget about his personality? He's not going to be close to us even if we use that raven's tears. In fact, he would probably betray us. It was sad that Julian couldn't disagree. Ilya never had any bonds with his team members. But I still didn't expect him to come crawling out like this. It looks like he already has a spellbook artifact as well. Dan mainly used warriors and physical strength related artifacts but Ilya was the complete opposite. He mainly used spell books from people like Merlin, Medea, Alistair Crowley, and Nicholas Flamel. He had an amazing level of fit with those kinds of artifacts because he used a devil-type artifact. As for the artifact he was using right now, Solomon's Lemigiton. What? Lamy Wadawat? Lemigiton was the name of the spell book King Solomon was said to have used in the Bible. You can just consider it a spell book that allows him to handle 72 devils. The reason monarchs like them were so easily captured was probably because of that artifact. Even monarchs found it difficult to handle spell book type artifacts. Anyway, I don't like him. That made Julian sneer. Well, I don't like you. You hid the information about unknown and never told us anything regarding TKBM secrets. You also forgot how you got revenge against TKBM. Maybe you never got any revenge against TKBM. To be honest with you, I still can't trust you. Damn it, I told you that I didn't remember. I swear. Humph. Egu, Captain Nim, where are you? I'm being treated unfairly. Sob sob sob. He truly felt wronged. He had told Juhi and everything he remembered. Anyway, that twisted bastard is going to modify our memories now. We won't even recognize the Captain Nim. Well, we would be lucky if all he does is modify our memories based on his personality. Anyway, it's a difficult artifact for even the Captain Nim to deal with. What are you going to do? So who told you to get captured? What? You were captured too, you son of a bitch. My goodness, please stop fighting. We need to get out of here first. Did they get caught in an enemy's trap? Captain, we probably should go. But Juhian stopped her. And then M, um, I don't know who you are, but deliver this message to my subordinates whom you have captured. What? You're all fired. You are all insincere and have neglected your duties. Oh, and ask them if they've completed their tasks before playing around like this. Click. The enemies as well as the scheming monarchs were all flabbergasted at the suddenly ended call. W, wait, that's not right. Chapter, 236. You're fired. You are all insincere and have neglected your duties. Oh, and ask them if they've completed their tasks before playing around like this. Click. The enemies as well as the scheming monarchs were all flabbergasted at the suddenly ended call. W, wait, that's not right. Ilya's team members dropped their jaws in shock while looking at the disconnected phone. They were checking that Juhian had really hung up. They even tried calling back thinking that they might have made a mistake. However Reing I told you, they're fired. I'm hanging up. The enemies became angry once Juhian hung up again. Damn it. We haven't even said anything yet. Hey, call him back. The person you are trying to reach is unavailable right now. Please leave a voicemail this crazy son of a bitch. It looked as if Juhian had taken the batteries out of his phone. The abductors started to pound their chests in anger now that they were unable to contact the bastard they needed to draw out. Fuck, what do we do? Captain Ilya should be waiting for him at the intersection. Do you think that this bastard is crazy? Exactly. Does he not care if his team members die? The team members inside the belly of the serpent were going crazy as well. 
They might be in the belly but they were still able to hear everything because the call had been on speakerphone. That was probably the reason. Yu Jeha and Julian were foaming at the mouth. Hey. What the hell did I just hear? F fired. Co Ju Hian, that bastard. There was no way that that bastard did not realize that they had run into trouble. He should have noticed that his team members were in danger. But what? Fired. The two monarchs looked as if they would soon start shooting lasers out of their eyes. How can that shithead call himself our leader? Wow, I didn't think the Captain Nim was that kind of person. They were furious. It was not because he had not saved them. They were tearing up at the fact that their cold-hearted captain had hung up the phone even after hearing that his team members were in danger. What the hell? How can he do that to his friend who was with him until his death? What the hell? I might not have been there when he died but how could he do this? Lee Siole became anxious after seeing them ready to spew out fire. You, um. Both of you, please calm down for now. I'm sure that the Captain Nim has a plan Kaya. Siole covered her eyes and plopped down on the ground. They were all hiding behind things because their clothes had melted away from the gastric juices. Siole was covering herself with just a t-shirt but the men did not seem to care much. She ended up seeing some things she didn't want to see as they jumped up in anger. She might have enjoyed it if it was the Captain Nims, but unfortunately, the naked men in front of her were not Juhian. Please cover yourselves. I don't want to know the sizes of you two. They finally realized what was going on and quickly tried to gather scraps of clothes that were still intact but the two of them still seemed angry even as they gathered the scraps. What the hell, how can he throw away his team members like this? I know, right? I guess the Captain Nim doesn't know how important we are at all. I think we became his team members too easily once we got our memories back. I know, right? It's not like we'd be pushed around regardless of where we went. Kong Ming, you were the captain of your own excavation team. Yeah. You can succeed without this tomb raiding team too. Wow, our nerdy bastard. No, no, our vice captain Nim. You're quite smart, sir. Was their relationship with each other good or bad? I can't handle it. It's time to go on strike. I need to get out of here to show the captain Nim how important all of his team members are. How rare. We have the same thought. The two of them looked at each other with smiles on their faces but C.O.L.A. started to shout. Whatever, just cover yourselves. Is it really okay not to do anything? Chloe was shocked to see Juhian's reaction. It would be one thing if Yu Jeha was the only one who was captured, but it sounds like the Vice Captain Nim is captured as well. Didn't you hear C.O.L.A. too? It doesn't matter whether she is there or not. Juhian started to laugh after seeing Chloe start to pout. Why were all of his team members like this? Anyway, Captain Nim. Is it okay to just stay here like this? It didn't sound like they were acting. Yeah, I'm sure it wasn't an act. Juhian peeked around. He did feel a gaze observing him. A mirror artifact is reflecting your image. The enemies are currently observing you. The presence of a memory modification artifact can be felt. Even Pandora could not accurately determine Juhian's location. Other people shook in fear at Pandora's power play and agreed to have their locations tracked, but Juhian looked at Pandora the same way he looked at dog shit. But the fact that these people were able to locate him they really seem to have been captured by the enemies. These enemies are probably some kind of aftermath cleanup crew. That shocked Chloe even more. Then it's even bigger of an issue. An aftermath cleanup crew would be able to read their memories as well. If information about the past life is seen. But Chu Hien just snorted. Why are you so worried? All of them know how to deal with it. But. Dragging out someone's memories was done the same way as forcibly lowering someone's dominance. It required shaking their mental fortitude. Basically, people could be tortured, embarrassed or threatened to shake their mental fortitude but what could they do to scare people who have already experienced death? I guess that is true. Death was the greatest fear for humans. Unfortunately, even death could not threaten his team members. 
most things would probably just get them to laugh. That was why he didn't really need to be worried. What was annoying Juhian was the fact that these punks were caught by a stupid aftermath cleanup crew. These supposed monarchs really want me to kill them. That wasn't all. Ding. It seemed as if they decided to contact Chloe because Juhian turned his phone off. She received a voicemail and a video. The contents were astonishing. Ah. You idiot. Don't get any closer. Ah. Chloe was shocked after watching the video. It was because the video showed you Jeha, Lee Siole, and Julian all being gobbled up by the snake. That wasn't all. Ah. Kaya. They seemed to have filmed the inside of the snake as there was even a video of them being attacked by the gastric juices. She rubbed her eyes and looked again but the video had not been fabricated. Ilya's team members were laughing after having sent those videos. This should make Seo Juhian burst out in anger. But forget bursting out what do you want for dinner? Ilya's team members who were observing Juhian gasped in shock after hearing him calmly ask that question. How can that bastard not even blink an eye after seeing that? Is he crazy? Fuck, Seo Juhian weren't his team members supposed to be his weakness. They started to shout as if they couldn't handle it any longer. Hey! Tell him we're going to spread that video all around the world. Tell him we're going to broadcast them. Yeah. Even that bastard should care about the reaction of the world. They sent another video to Juhian. The contents were shocking. Hand over all of your artifacts while I'm asking nicely. Ah. Please don't kill me. It was a video of Ujeha, Lee Siole, and Julian threatening other excavation team members. It was obviously a fake video, but it was such a high-quality fake that even Ujeha would praise it. Their threat was simple. Come out to the intersection if you don't want your subordinates being caught up in rumors. Juhian just clicked his tongue. Ah, they're so annoying. Block their number. Ah, uh, they said they would broadcast the video. Won't that make things annoying? Who cares? It's not like I'm the one in the video. Juhian really looked as if he had no plans on going to rescue his team members. Ilya's team members' asses were on fire after seeing his lack of reaction. The plan will fail at this rate. Captain Ilya. What should we do? Ilya started to frown after hearing his subordinates shouting on the phone. I need to lure him to the trap. Ilya looked at the barrier he had cast in between buildings. It was invisible to the naked eye but this was a barrier created on the intersection by devils. All I need to do is lure him here. Ilya thought for a moment before he seemed to have come up with an idea. I remember hearing that Seo Juhian had a girlfriend. Girlfriend are you talking about Irene Holton? You're not talking about the monarch of destitution, are you? Yes. Let's abduct his girlfriend. Ah. I'm submitting my letter of resignation. We have no connections to you from now on, Captain. Thank you for everything until now, sir. These bastards. As Ilya was about to swear ah. The call suddenly ended. Ilya was shocked and started to shout. What the hey? What's wrong? What is going on? What else would it be? Ha, he's really terrible. The more I hear. The Lee Siole, Julian, and Ujeha trio had forced them to hang up. A pitiful looking snake that was ripped to shreds was behind them. They had ripped the snake from the inside to get out. But oddly enough, they were angrier at someone else instead of the people who had imprisoned them. Seo Juhian, you bastard. I'm really submitting my letter of resignation. How can he say he treats us like family? He just treats us like dogs. Ah uh, over there. They looked quite comical just having a coat or a jacket to cover themselves, but they were angry. It was because of the cell phone they had taken from Ilya's subordinates. See. He ignored all of them. That damn captain ignored all of them. How can he act like this? Ujeha could not hold back any longer and made a call. Ah, uh, stockfish. Hey. Why the hell is the captain Nim not picking up his phone? What? He turned it off because it was annoying. Actually, forget that, what does he mean we're fired? 
Did he really fire us? Chloe seemed to be trying to calm you Jeha over the phone. There's no way the Captain Nim would really fire you guys. He just said that to motivate you guys. Motivate my ass. He doesn't care if we die. What is the Captain Nim doing right now? Looking at a menu for dinner. Yu Jeha, who was crouching on the ground, started to scream. What did you say? He's thinking about dinner when his team members are on the brink of death. Ilya's team members started to groan and stand up. G, grab those bastards. Modify their memories first. Change their memories of Seo Juhian. Crack. Ah. Forget modifying the trio's memories, the trio just stomped on them. Wow, these bastards seem to have some nice clothes. Aren't they brand names? Thanks for the clothes. The trio even looted them of their clothes. The enemies who had instantly turned into the victims were flabbergasted. W wait, why is the artifact not working? Why can't we modify their memories? Cola sighed after hearing that. There's no need for you guys to know why. Cola calmly looted their wallets. All of our wallets melted in there. We're going to take these to pay for a cab. She even took their company credit cards. The men who had all of their clothes taken except their underwear started to shout and call them thieves. Yu Jeha, who went into a different room for a moment, took something out of his work clothes. Hey Cola. Catch. He threw a letter of resignation at her. A shocked Cola looked at Yu Jeha. You, um why do you have this? Yu Jeha responded with venomous intent in his eyes. An employee always has a letter of resignation on him. He seemed to always carry this with him. He handed one to Julian as well. Jeha really seemed upset this time. Cola was not sure about what to do. Wait, a letter of resignation? Are you crazy? Why not? He was the one who said he would fire us first. I'm going to quit before he can fire me. Wait, hey. Vice Captain Nim, please try to stop him. It's a very good idea. Excuse me. Cola became flustered but an angry Julian started to draft his letter of resignation as well. Cola's jaw dropped in shock. A, are you both really going to leave the Captain Nim? Are you crazy? I'm just scaring him. But maybe we'll get to see the Captain Nim cry and beg us to say now. Right, Kong Ming. Ho, we are very important people. We would be scouted by numerous teams around the world. Yeah, we went under the Captain Nim way too easily if I'm being honest. Wait, excuse me. Please calm down. Why? Cola, you have issues with the Captain Nim because of Irene. Don't you? Well, that and this are. Cola started to groan and Yujeha smirked before secretly drafting Cola's letter of resignation as well. They then sent the letters of resignation over with excitement. Good, I sent it. He should finally feel our importance. Hey. Ha, Captain Nim. You won't be able to find talented people like us anywhere else. But the response he received was quite the spectacle. Okay. I've accepted all of your resignations. P.S. There will be no severance pay. Ha, ha. T, this wasn't what I expected. Chapter, 237. The team members became extremely anxious. W, wait, that's not right. Yu Jeha, who had been the first to suggest resigning, gasped in surprise. D, did he really accept our resignation? The Captain Nim really let us go. Yu Jeha had been the one to receive the text message. Cola clicked her tongue while looking at the anxious Yu Jeha. See, I told you such useless threats won't work on the Captain Nim. E, even still. How can he really accept our resignation? So who told you to submit a letter of resignation? Who thought he would accept it? Well, even if he doesn't give me any severance pay, I should be able to collect unemployment. It was at that moment. Ding. Cola and Julian received text messages as well. Regarding the report to cancel the four major insurances and confirmation of change of occupation resignation confirmation guide. 
Regarding the fact that you are no longer qualified to continue with the company insurance as a result of your resignation P.S. You have three days to remove your belongings. Chloe seemed to have sent this text to tell them what they needed to do. Cola's eyes opened wide after receiving that message. Her reaction was understandable. It was because her name was on the resignation guide message. Cola started to shriek in despair. Kaya. What the hell is going on? I didn't submit a letter of resignation. Why? Ujeha tried to slowly escape after hearing that. Cola noticed it and started to rage. Hey. Ujeha, you. Ugh. It was you, wasn't it? You sent a letter of resignation on my behalf. Cola was grabbing Ujeha by the collar. How can you submit a letter of resignation for me, you motherfucker? What would the captain name have thought after seeing my letter of resignation? Cola wanted to cry once she had that thought. She didn't know whether the captain Nim would believe her if she told him that it was a mistake. Cola looked at the letter of resignation Ujeha had sent on her behalf and started to foam at the mouth. You bastard, you even forged my signature. Do you really want to be punished? Cola looked ready to rip Ujeha's head off. But he seemed as if he had something to say as well. What's wrong? Team members share the same destiny. Same destiny my ass. Cola, who had been wronged, looked toward Julian. Vice Captain Nim. Shall we kill this damn scam Vice Captain Nim? She had been wondering why he had been quiet this whole time. Even the almighty Julian seemed to have had a mental breakdown. C.O. Juhian, that bastard, he really fired us. Were they really not that important to him? She had thought he would just snort and start a new excavation team if Juhian had fired him, but he seemed quite shocked at what had happened. I thought we were comrades in arms who had shared a good portion of our lives together. Of course, this talk about comrades in arms was bullshit since he had been complaining just a few minutes ago. Cola shook Ujeha by the collar even more after seeing the vice captain in despair. Hey, what are you going to do now? What else? You go back to China, Kong Ming goes back to being the captain of his own excavation team and I I guess I can open a workshop or something. Hey. Are you serious? N, no. Ujeha seemed to be having a mental breakdown as well. Around that same time excuse me. Chloe who had been sending the resignation guide to the team members, peeked toward the captain. Zhu Hien was packing his artifacts and leisurely finishing his preparations to go get the heirlooms he seemed to have meant it when he said they were fired because he was not packing artifacts for the others. Chloe quietly called out to him. Captain. What is it? Buzz, buzz, buzz Chloe picked up her phone that was going crazy. Is it really okay to fire them? She was getting a ton of messages from the fired people. The fact that even Cola, someone who always tried to act strong in front of her, was urgently sending her messages like this made it easy to tell what was going on on the other side. She could tell based on the previews in the push notification windows buzz buzz, buzz vice captain Nim, don't remove my stuff scammer, is this for real? Scammer, hey, this isn't right. Scammer, hand the phone to the captain Nim scammer, hey, Tell the captain Nim to look at his phone. Scammer, ah, what the hell is that person doing? No name, I wasn't the one who sent that letter of resignation. It was Jeha. It wasn't me, Chloe sighed while looking at the messages bombarding her phone. They seem to be in quite the mess over there. They're saying that this makes no sense. Juhian started to laugh. What's the problem? Tell them they're the ones who wanted to resign. I just gave them what they wanted. Tell them they have no severance pay but at least they can collect unemployment. Chloe sighed. Maybe Juhian was angry at how relaxed his subordinates had been. They were monarchs and had the memories of their past but they were so easily captured. Is this just some mental training? If it isn't that is there a different reason he's doing this? Chloe then started to respond to Jeha, who was bothering her the most. Don't worry. I'll talk to him so that you can be rehired but at that moment Chloe. Yes sir. You should have just told me if you wanted to quit too. Excuse me. Chloe looked at Juhian wondering what the hell he was talking about but Juhian just chuckled and waved the document that was just faxed over. 
I got another letter of resignation just now. It was a letter of resignation with a forged signature. The contents were shocking. Letter of resignation name, Chloe Loran reason for resignation, I can't stay here alone when everybody else has resigned. Chloe's eyes were burning up in anger after reading the content. You Jeha, you son of a bitch. You Jeha, who had sent Chloe's letter of resignation as well, started to smile wickedly. Good. Everybody has resigned now. Siole, who was at a loss for words at what he had just done, blankly asked a question. Are you out of your mind? Yu Jeha just started to laugh saying whatever will be, will be. What? All of our team members have a shared destiny. We can't let even a single person betray us. If we're leaving, everybody has to leave. She just couldn't believe it. His mind had taken such a shock that he had gone completely crazy. He couldn't see straight. Those were the thoughts on her mind. She then had another thought. This son of a bitch is dead now. He had written Chloe's letter of resignation without her permission. Yu Jeha seemed to not know because he had not really had many run ins with Chloe in the work setting. Chloe's not an easy target. And as she had expected, it happened once they submitted their letters of resignation, gathered their stuff, and came outside. Flash. Ah. Yu Jeha started to scream after suddenly seeing the bright light that came with a lot of pain. Yu Jeha started to roll on the ground screaming as the risk from an artifact he didn't even use came to him. Seo Lei looked around wondering what was going on and saw a woman who was grinding her teeth. Chloe. Chloe, who had rushed over as soon as she saw her letter of resignation, looked as if she was going to shoot beams out of her eyes. Why had he made someone who had no intentions of resigning resign? Who is going to conduct the Captain Nim's examinations? You, ugh. Stockfish, what's wrong with you? You told me it was annoying to look after the Captain Nim Ugg. Yu Jeha felt as if he was going to die. It's okay. It's really okay. It's the Captain Nim. The Captain Nim can easily hire a voluptuous babe of a nurse Ugg. Chloe choked Yu Jeha even harder, as if she really didn't want that to happen. Siole also glared at Yu Jeha in anger. Yu Jeha tried to get them to calm down. Okay, okay. I didn't do all of this without thinking about it. Oh, really? Then what the hell were you thinking? The Captain Nim should realize something if all of the team members resign up. Yu Jeha ended up being beaten up by Siole and Chloe. Joke, it was a joke. I'll go and beg the Captain Nim to take us back I'm sorry. Anyway, all of them had resigned. Ju Hian had calmly accepted all four of the letters of resignation. The team members who had no idea what Ju Hian was thinking couldn't help but groan. But the thing that was the most aggravating was it is rumored that CO Ju Hian's tomb raiding team members have resigned. There are many candidates rushing to become a part of CO Ju Hian's tomb raiding team. Will this be a new phase for the monarch of plunder's tomb raiding team? A chance to earn a monarch's heirloom with him. Will you be able to gain an artifact from one of the seven great tombs if you join Seo Juhian's tomb raiding team? The rumors seemed to have spread already. It had been less than one hour. Well, it was probably because there were people spying on Juhian 24 hours a day because of the monarch's heirlooms, the monarch of fate's disappearance, Seo Stratimus, etc. The people who learned about this were quickly trying to enter Juhian's tomb raiding team. Numerous skilled expert grade users and even some monarchs from all around the world were sending him love calls even though he didn't even post anything to say that he was recruiting. Of course, Ju Hian was not the only one getting the love calls. Mr. Monarch of Pushoverness, please come work with us, you'll only have to work 16 hours a day CO Lei, your spy task seems to have failed so return to China. CO Ju Hian didn't find out that you were a spy, right? Dear Monarch of Strategies. Please join our team. The team members then quickly drafted some cover letters and sent them to Ju Hian, but I have no plans of hiring anyone at this time so please try again in the future. Ju Hian even stopped picking up their calls. That was why they were going crazy. Yu Jeha, the person who had caused this mess, started to cry. Captain Nim, please take us back. I'm sorry. Julian seemed liberated. 
Ha ha ha, should I just pick a good one from these and join their team? The salary and conditions are much better than what Seo Juhian offered me. I don't have much work since I'm a new lawyer anyway. And what if Irene curses you? All the money you make will instantly disappear. They truly got the chills. They had forgotten about it, but now that they had a chance to think about it, they had been able to avoid the monarch of destitution's curses until now because they were Juhian's team members. But the moment they betrayed Juhian. Damn it, to deal with that nightmare once again. Siole was in despair as well, but she had an odd experience that evening. Why? Are you making sure to eat? In the middle of the night Juhian had secretly come to see Siole. Siole gasped. All of the team members were staying at Yujeha's workroom because the buses had stopped and they had nowhere to go. Juhian had come over, as if he had known that they would be there. He had come so stealthily that even she, the human radar, didn't notice. Juhian was looking at the others who had fallen asleep while writing what seemed to be an essay about reflecting on their mistakes. I, is it really the Captain Nim? Is this an ambush from an enemy? Siole, who had been in the kitchen, quickly tried to wake the others. However you guys should have gotten a lot of offers to scout you today right? Juhian, who had a hat covering his face, walked over to Siole who was getting anxious. Wait are you really the C, Captain NMPH? Siole's mouth was covered. Juhian had kissed Siole. Juhian started to speak, as if to calm her down, once their lips separated. Shu. It really is me so don't cause a scene. Juhian was treating her like normal before asking this question. Were there any suspicious bastards nearby? Excuse me? For example, someone like Ilya. Siole was shocked after hearing the familiar name. Ilya, then Captain Nim. That son of a bitch went into hiding once again after his subordinates were defeated. Juhian had been aware that it was Ilya since the moment he knew that his subordinates had been abducted. There were only a few people who could instantly abduct his subordinates like that. Especially when Kong Ming was with them. That was why Juhian had looked for Ilya, but there wasn't even a single crumb, as if he was some kind of misophobia patient. That wasn't all. Ilya seemed to be provoking him as he stole information about the heirloom tomb and then turned the original into a mess. It's fine since most of it was going to be used on tomorrow's broadcast. Juhian, who had been playing hide and seek with Ilya, started to speak as if things had become annoying. To be honest with you, that bastard Ilya might really be able to modify your memories. Ilya usually made his subordinates modify memories, potentially because of his artifact's risk, but his subordinates were not strong enough to modify the memories of the two monarchs and Siole. Then that bastard will definitely come to personally modify your memories. That bastard's goal is probably for our tomb raiding team to disband. It was obvious that the other monopolizers had put him up to it. Regardless, what was he trying to do when Juhian barely got his teammates back thanks to the Raven's artifact? Disbanding of the team. Do you really think I would lose you guys again? Captain Nim. Was that why he purposely made it look as if the tomb raiding team had disbanded? Ilya would not approach them if it looked as if they were no longer a team. But you should have trusted us more. No. That bastard Ilya has quite an annoying backer. It's probably someone at the four emperor's level. Excuse me? A backer? Is that perhaps but that person is? Anyway, this is a secret to the others. Juhian scrunched his eyes. Furthermore, I don't know if that bastard Ilya would follow me even if I gave him back his memories. That was something the others had worried about as well. He's always been like a sore thumb. The chances of Ilya sticking with one of the other four Emperor's level users was highly likely if he got his memories back. That bastard was the type who would say something like, why would I travel down a path I've already traveled down once before? That was why they might need to take care of him. Of course, Juhian's goal was elsewhere. Anyway, just wait, I'll let you and Chloe come back to work once we take care of those bastards. Siole sighed in relief. Then Jeha and the vice captain Nim would feel a lot better. Jeha was crying his eyes out. Juhian snorted after hearing that. What bullshit are you talking about? I'm not going to rehire the two of them. E, excuse me. 
they made the decision to leave those bastards can interview again. She felt as if she could hear them cry already. It happened at that moment. Ju Hien, who was checking the security camera in the workroom, opened his eyes wide. He seemed to have seen someone in the footage as he ran out. He made so much noise that the sleeping members woke up. See, Captain Nim. What? Did you say the Captain Nim? Ju Hien started to laugh once he came outside. I got you now. Ilya, you son of a bitch. Chapter, 238 Ju Hien urgently ran out of the workroom. Bang! The loud noise made the people who were sleeping wake up in shock. What is it, what's going on? Uh I feel like I heard the Captain Nim's voice for some reason. Whether they heard his voice or not, they felt as if they could feel Ju Hien's dominance as well. That might have been why Chloe's eyes flashed. Captain Nim. This was definitely Ju Hien's dominance. Other people might not be sure but Chloe, who thoroughly touched Ju Hien's entire body quite frequently, could tell. The captain came here. Chloe rushed out of the room and found Ciole standing there. Where's the captain? Ciole pointed outside instead of responding. Ciole was checking something before she could rush after Ju Hien. It was the screen of the security camera. She was looking at the screen Ju Hien had seen before running out. They had installed the CCTV because all of the artifacts were in Ujeha's workroom. Of course, these were not regular cameras. Artifacts. These surveillance artifacts were recording everything without any blind spots, however I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Chloe said with confusion. But at that time oh, he's there. Ilya is there. Julian was the one who had said that. He still seemed half asleep as he was looking at the screen while frowning. They could see a parking lot on the screen. There was a young man in his late twenties who seemed to be working on something. Normal people would not be able to see what was going on because Ilya had cast a barrier, but Julian could see it thanks to Kongming's artifact. He hasn't modified the CCTV recording yet, so Ju Hien should be able to catch him if he goes there right now. But that was not important right now. The captain was here. The captain Nim was really here. Yu Jaiha chimed in as well. Their expressions showed what they were all thinking. Their eyes were sparkling as well. Why did the captain Nim come here? Did he come looking for us? Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Did he say he would hire us back? Siole looked toward the direction Ju Hien went before nodding her head. Yeah it seems as if he disbanded the tomb raiding team for a moment because of Ilya. He will restore it after. Julian and Yujeha's faces lit up after hearing that. Restore. Did you say he would restore things back to normal? The Captain Nim said that. The two were so happy that they could not control themselves but pretended as if they were as cool as cucumbers after seeing Cola's gaze. Ho, oh, I knew Co Juhian would back down. See, see. There are no better people in the world than us. I knew he would hire us back. My words exactly. Like hell you guys knew. Yu Jaiha had cried while clutching his phone and Julian had a mental breakdown. But they triumphantly pointed their noses in the air as if they had never acted that way. Even if he says he will hire us back. Does he really think we will come back? My thoughts exactly. He needs to learn to treat people better. Ciole cut them off at that point. He didn't say he would rehire the two of you. Their snickering faces instantly turned pale. Wait, what did she just say? He's not going to hire us back. Why? They desperately grabbed Ciole's arm. Why? For what reason? Why? Ciole became flustered. I, I don't know. He said he was only going to rehire Chloe and me. They started to pull at their hair. This is discrimination. He's discriminating against us for being men. This is a conspiracy, a conspiracy. This is tyranny. Ah. The two monarchs had mental breakdowns once again. At the same time yes, inform that person about it. Ilya was on the phone with someone. Yes, I'm about to ambush their workroom soon. He was planning on entering Ujeha's workroom and modifying their memories. Why? 
it doesn't feel like they have disbanded completely. The timing was too perfect. Seo Juhian fired them before I could disband them. How can that happen with such perfect timing? Well, the truth was that they had submitted their letters of resignation and Juhian had accepted them. It's too unnatural. It felt as if Juhian had disbanded the tomb raiding team knowing that he was aiming for them. I would have normally withdrawn after seeing that the team has been disbanded, but the seniors hate Seo Juhian's tomb raiding team way too much. That's why you need to make sure it's taken care of properly. But why didn't you hire the Monarch of Evangelism? The Monarch of Evangelism has his assassination brigade. No. I thought about doing that but that person seemed to be after one of Seo Juhian's team members. It was at that moment. Who is that person? Ilya gasped after suddenly hearing a voice behind him. It was understandable. Seo Juhian. Why is that bastard here? That wasn't important right now. Ju Hien should not have been able to hear him since he had cast a barrier. How did he find me? Ilya urgently looked around. He was in a transparent area that made it look as if everything around him was warping. Ilya was hiding himself inside that barrier. The barrier is still fine. Ju Hien must not be able to see Ilya as he was looking around. So where did you say Ilya Volgov is? Ilya became anxious. Was I wrong? Did he not find me? Ah, uh, over there. Juhian quickly walked closer to Ilya. Ah, uh, a bit more to the left. It sounded as if he was talking to someone. And at that moment. Grab. Ilya gasped. Juhian had walked over and grabbed him by the collar. Ilya almost screamed. It doesn't seem like he used an artifact of detection. How was Juhian able to grab him? But this was easy for Ju Hien. Co Ju Hien. It's Co Ju Hien. Over here. Here. Hurry up and fuck him up. Fuck him up. Ilya was hiding himself with artifacts, but those artifacts were the problem. Hey hey, he said that person is aiming for Co Ju Hien's team members. He was planning on ambushing your team members now. I did well, right? I did well, right? So please give me a discount on my rent. Hmm. Juhian started to laugh. Sure, I'll give you a discount. One million won for now. Wow. Hooray. Hooray. Ilya, who was hearing what Juhian was saying, was extremely anxious now. What the hell is this bastard doing talking to himself? But other artifacts started to complain. Hey. Why are you only giving him a discount? I'm the one who kept this bastard here. No. It was me, me. I'm the one that gave you the information. Hey hey, C.O. Juhian. This bastard seems to be connected with the monarch of evangelism. Juhian started to smile. Oh, you're in contact with the monarch of evangelism too? That's great. Eileen felt as if he was going crazy. What the hell is up with this bastard? He was honestly scared. It was at that moment. Ilya decided things weren't good and tried to push Juhian's hands away to run. However you're too slow, you little punk. Boom. Set's artifact was activated. Ugh. There was an invisible gust of wind as sharp as blades around Juhian once he activated Set's artifact. Baba bang. Kaka kaka kaka. Die. All who mess with my master must die. Set, who had received a franchise chicken shop from Juhian recently, was extremely excited. Juhian just thought it was better to give a whole store than to order ten whole chickens a day, but Set was extremely happy. He was even making a bit of money selling chicken in this shop. He was a proud chicken shop business owner. Baba Babang. A sandstorm that could even turn buildings into dust descended around them. The ground split open, the trees nearby were cut down, and that vicious wind instantly broke Ilya's barrier and his artifacts. Clang! Ilya was completely visible now that his barrier and his artifacts were destroyed. Ilya plopped down on the ground. And I got you now, you damn thief! Juhian stomped on him as he smiled brightly. What? A backer at the four emperor's level? 
Julian was quite shocked. Ciola was telling him what Ju Hian had told her. It was shocking enough that Ju Hian had disbanded the tomb raiding to take care of Ilya, but there's one of the four emperors behind Ilya. Yu Jeha tilted his head in confusion. Didn't the Captain Nim destroy half of the four emperors already? Kira, the monarch of war. The Captain Nim already got rid of Kira. Zhen Kai Yuan, the monarch of gluttony. He wondered if it was her, but Ju Hian would have said it was Zhen Kai Yuan if it had been her. As for Chairman Quan, that old bastard should be a bag of bones thanks to Ramesses's artifact by now. He needs to jerk off in moderation if he wants to live a long life. There was no need to even bring him up. Then the only one who was left was the monarch of evangelism. They had thought he had disappeared the moment Ju Hian had taken the Avesta sacred text. Is it that bastard? Julian looked at him as if he was stupid. Hey, monarch of fraud. You really don't know. He's talking about TKBM's shadow boss who was in charge of the aftermath cleanup crew and the assassination team. Ha. Huh. That's none of my business. Yu Jeha pretended as if he didn't know but there was no way that he didn't know about that person. TKBM's shadow boss. Chairman Quan was the visual face as the CEO of the TKBM empire, but the monarch of love was the man in the shadows. He did that for fun but he was actually a major player in the underworld. He was a man who did all sorts of things from destroying evidence, modifying world events, assassinations to many others. He had been one of the four emperors for a very short period of time in the past. He was one of the main individuals responsible for turning TKBM into an empire. The monarch of love. He was sworn brothers with Chairman Quan. But he had stepped down from the four emperors position even though he was extremely strong. You need the four emperors position. Really? Okay then, you can have it, Hyung Nim. He had handed over a position in the four emperors, something that anybody would love to have, over to Chairman Quan. He had done it without any hesitation. Even Ju Hian, who had been planning on quite a war to get it, had been flustered. That person is strong beyond our wildest imagination. In some ways, Pandora of the past could have been quite difficult if he had not given away his spot in the Four Emperors. That man really might have become the Overlord. That wasn't all. It was for a short time but there were rumors about that man being Juhian's instructor. He's one of the top individuals in the entire world and it comes to using artifacts. The team members were shocked at the name Julian mentioned. When you say the monarch of love, you mean that. He was such a saint and a pacifist that people wondered if he had Mother Teresa's artifact or something. He's worse than Chairman Quan. That person is probably stealthily aiming for an heirloom this time. He probably sent his aftermath cleanup crew to locate the monarch of fate. Please hold on a minute. That old man is Ilya's backer. Nah, no way. Already? Has the captain's intuition ever been wrong? That was true. Although that petty captain of theirs had ignored the new applications they submitted to get their jobs back but I don't remember seeing his name on the artifact, you never know when they'll show themselves and rush past you. But that son of a bitch is not someone who would sit still and not scout monarchs. Ju Hian, who had a big tomb to deal with soon, had no plans to waste this opportunity. I hate being followed. At that moment oh, Ilya is with Seo Ju Hian right now. At a beach in Hawaii a middle-aged man relaxing under a parasol started to smile. There are no hindrances. Yes sir. CO Juhian's tomb raiding team has been disbanded as you wished, Chairman Nim. Oh ho. Chairman Kwan's sworn younger brother, Kwan Hyuk Su. He was quite a peculiar man. He was a wealthy man who had asked Chairman Kwan to be sworn brothers just because they had the same last name. He was one of the world's top three influential figures in the finance world and was stealthily assisting TKBM from the shadows. That was why there was no way he didn't know about everything Ju Hian had done to mess with Chairman Quan. Well he actually seemed quite interested in Ju Hian. I see, and how is Hyung Nim? H, he is still working hard to get it down Quan Hyuk Su started to laugh like a maniac. Wow, Hyung Nim is so amazing at his age. He truly deserves to be my Hyung Nim. I guess I'll send him some women next time. You, 
um he might really die if you do that sir. Anyway, I've been quite interested in Seo Juhian, so that's great. It's obvious that even Seo Juhian would be no match for Ilya. Quan Hyuk Su's eyes flashed. Deliver a message to Ilya. Modify that bastard's memories. I'll be there soon. Chapter, 239 Deliver a message to Ilya. Modify that bastard's memories. I'll be there soon. Quan Hyuk Su If the Holtons who originated from a line of English nobles had a firm grasp on the European business world, this man was the emperor who had grasped the American business world. The man who had been one of the four emperors in the past saw Ju Hien as a cute little boy. In fact, all monarchs were like cute children in his eyes. That was how much of a genius he was when it came to handling artifacts. It is praiseworthy how much shit he's given to my Hyung Nim. Other monopolizers were holding the back of their necks in anger talking about how Ju Hien was crazy and could not be reasoned with, but he can be tamed. That was why he had given Ilya the order. He should be able to control Ju Hien using Ilya, who he had been raising until now. In some ways, it was as if he was adding Ju Hien to his collection. That was why he was quite satisfied while looking at the information about Ju Hien's tomb raiding team. The female team members were both beautiful and skilled. Most importantly, CEO Ju Hien's team has two monarchs in it. This was now the era of artifacts. It was an era of war where people would attack each other to monopolize on benefits or prevent harm on themselves. He believed that the final victor in this prolonged war would be the one who has a large number of people under them. Why? It was not because that person would be lacking in individual strength. However, he was collecting artifact users since there was a limit to the types and number of artifacts each person can use. Furthermore, there was a difference in the level of dominance between talented and not so talented subordinates. For example, it was better to lead a single tiger than 100 chicks. A person's status would rise the more felines they had under them. The monarch among monarchs was called an emperor and having these tigers kneel would make their boss's dominance and plate increase as well. That would increase the amount of artifacts that person could contract with, and most importantly that person will be able to use the unique artifact that only the monarch among monarchs could use. That person would be able to use the majesty's treasure. Well, even the monarch of fate said that that was just a theory, but either way, it was important to procure a talented collection. The heirloom is just a step toward it. He was interested in Ju Hien's tomb raiding team but he was most interested in its leader. Ju Hien is a rare tiger among the herd. Inform Ilya. Tell him to hurry up and tame Seo Ju Hien first. But forget taming him ah. Uh. Not there. Stop. Shut the hell up. Don't move. Otherwise, I'm going to kill you. Ak. Ju Hien's hand was moving all around. He was running his hand all over Eilis' body from head to toe. Ilya, being the deceitful and sly person that he is, had artifacts hidden all over his body. They were not just visually hidden either. He had used his spellbook artifact to place all sorts of traps on the artifacts. For example, if his ring was touched bang. Ugh. Ilya received a critical hit from the exploding artifact and started to groan. And if his earring was touched Cecil. Ah. Hydrochloric acid would start to fail. And if his belt was removed you, ugh. The belt started to move on its own to choke Ilya's neck. But something was weird. I put the anti-theft devices but why is it responding to me? This was like putting up alarms to catch a thief but the alarm responding to the owner's movements while ignoring the thief. Is it crazy? Ju Hien sneered while looking at the confused Ilya. Humph, my goodness, you put so many devices on them. This bastard. Ilya was curious as to why his anti-theft devices were not working properly, but that wasn't important right now. I need to modify his memories. Ilya recalled the orders he had received. Don't worry about the means and methods used. Modify Seo Juhian's memories and turn him into my subordinate. Seo Juhian was someone who had abducted the monarch of fate, the guide of the world, as well as the person who had swept the majority of the artifacts from the seven great tombs. He was a hindrance to them getting the monarch's heirlooms he needed to modify Juhian's memories for his superior who desired Juhian. 
That was why Ilya activated his artifact to modify Juhian's memories. It was an extremely strong artifact. Ah uh, really, where the hell did the retarded captain run off? Julian and Yujeha, the two monarchs, were huffing while looking for Juhian. They had run over to the parking lot they had seen in the CCTV but they did not see Juhian at all. Siole, you can't find the captain Im. He's not around here. Yujeha gasped after hearing that. The fact that Siole could not locate him quickly must mean that he was out of the country already. Wow, shit, did that damn Captain Bastard go on a trip around the world with another man. He started to wave his hand as if he had no regrets. Ah whatever, it's fine. It's obvious that he doesn't need help from any of his team members. We're done with it too. Right? Kong Ming. Exactly. Let him do everything on his own. Chloe looked at the two of them before nodding her head for a different reason. I guess so, the captain just wants to bring Ilya in as a team member. There probably won't be any bloodshed. Julian and Yujeha looked as if they had been wronged after hearing that. What did you say? He's going to take Ilya in as a team member. He's going to do that after kicking all of us out. There was fire burning in Julian and Yujeha's eyes. Wait, even we can't return to the Captain Nim's side but what? What's so good about that bastard? What's wrong? The Captain always talked about it. Ilya's personality is shit but he is skilled. The two of them looked as if they would start breathing fire out of their mouths. We're skilled too. We're much better than him. That's right. We are monarchs. That son of a bitch is an expert grade user at max. Chloe clicked her tongue after hearing Yujeha shout. Ilya is at the monarch level if you look just at his abilities. He'd probably be better than you if he didn't have that trauma against risks. Yujeha truly became angry. Get lost. I'm the Captain Nim's right arm. Maybe she touched his pride that should not have been touched. Hey. Ju Kong Ming. What the fuck are you doing that you can't even find a single person? You unskilled son of a bitch. What? Chloe made a comment after hearing that. Didn't you just say that you're not going to pay any attention to the captain now that you are not a part of the team? Yujeha started to shout again after hearing Chloe's comment. I can't deal with my pride being shot. Where the hell is the captain Im? Where is he? Siole had a rare pale expression on her face. I don't know. I can't feel the Captain Nim's aura. What? The Captain Nim should be okay, right? There's no way that Hell have his memories modified by Ilya, right? All of them became silent. It was because they knew best about how annoying and strong Ilya's aftermath cleanup abilities were. Ilya had even modified the memories of everybody in the world once at the request of his backer and twisted everyone's relationships. He had restored things to normal pretty much right afterward, but that had been a scary moment. That was why they were scared that even Juhian might end up being affected by Ilya. It was at that moment. Boom. They heard artifacts clashing somewhere. The team members quickly started to move after hearing that. The fact that his aura disappeared means that was proof that his memories had been modified. When that happens, the worst possible situation could be that he wouldn't remember any of them. That was why all of their asses were on fire as they ran. They always complained about how they hated Juhian, but they didn't want Juhian to forget them either. Ilya, that son of a bitch, just watch what happens to you if you laid a finger on the Captain Im's memories. But forget putting a hand on it Ilya was grinding his teeth. The modification is not working. He had definitely activated his memory modification artifact. But it did not work on Juhian. He had no idea why. On the other hand, Juhian was smiling. You're already done. Is that it? Huh? Juhian was kicking his former subordinate while smiling wickedly. It didn't matter that it was hard to tell who was the evil one right now. Try again, you little punk. Juhian stomped on Ilya's head so that he could not escape. Of course, he had not destroyed Ilya's artifact. Ilya's memory modification artifact was a parasitic artifact. He needed to pull Ilya's eye out to destroy it. There was no way he would do such a thing to his own subordinate. 
well, he's a twisted bastard so I don't even know if he would become my subordinate. There was the question of whether someone who was having their head being stomped would choose to become the subordinate of the person doing the stomping, but Ju Hien debated for a moment over using the raven's tears before starting to smile. But to think that you tried to modify my memories with your puny skills. Ilya clicked his tongue after hearing that. The modification method he had just used was the first of two levels. Level 1 was usually enough to take care of monarchs but it was difficult for the monarchs with the high levels of dominance. The fact that their dominance was high meant that they were firm in their self-confidence and determination. Those kinds of people were difficult cases to modify their memories using regular means. I have no choice. Ilya didn't like doing this because of the risk but he raised it to the max level. Level 2. Ilya's eyes instantly turned gold. Ju Hien saw some urgent messages pop up as well. An unpleasant power of modification is entering your mind. Your memories are starting to change. The things you know are starting to change. It was quite strong this time. It was definitely no joke since even difficult to handle monarchs had been knocked down from this in the past. In fact, Ju Hien's memories started to become weird as well. Are you hurt? He saw an extremely familiar face. The person he saw was Quan Hyuk Su, Chairman Quan's sworn brother. He was calmly taking a place within Ju Hien's memories. He was replacing Inspector Kim, the person who had taken care of him since he was young. The face of the inspector he considered to be his family had disappeared and Quan Hyuk Su had taken his place. Inspector Kim, someone who Ju Hien cherished quite a bit, was starting to change into Quan Hyuk Su. Furthermore, Ilya had changed the faces of his team members to Chairman Kwan and the Bastards from TKBM. Ilya was creating memories that did not exist while erasing other memories to modify Ju Hien's memories. Ilya started to smile once Ju Hien started to frown. It's done. This was the sign that it had worked. Now he will believe that he is that person's subordinate. You motherfucking Russian son of a bitch, what the hell are you doing? He heard a familiar voice. They barged and even though there was a barrier set up to prevent people from entering. Ju Hien's team members had barged in. Julian immediately started to frown after sensing the aura of the artifact. He had realized that Ilya had used the modification artifact. That bastard already used the modification artifact. Ilya started to sneer while looking at them. My prey have walked in on their own accord. He turned toward the tomb raiding team members as if this was great. You guys are next. His smile was quite evil. Julian and Chloe looked toward Juhian with concern. It'll be complicated if the captain's memories have changed. Unfortunately, the chances that his memories had been changed were high. There's traces that he already used the level 2 modification. Ilya's modification ability was strong. It was strong enough to mess with the memories of monarchs. Level 1 could be overcome with dominance, but if it is level 2 level 2 would be dangerous even for me. Julian had thought Ilya would not use it because of the risk but he had done it. Ju Hien started to walk toward the team members at that moment. The team members started to shake as they watched. It was because the look on Ju Hien's face was quite cold as he looked at them. Captain Nim. The team members then started to glare at Ilya. Hey, hurry up and undo it. Ilya just scoffed and started to speak. CO Ju Hien is my subordinate now. I modified one of his memories. Pow. Ilya saw an illusion as if things were flashing in front of his eyes. Something dull and painful had struck his face. He had already been sent flying away once he realized it was Juhian's foot. It was so painful as if his teeth would fall out. However, what he heard after that was even more shocking. Egu, big boss. The salary is too, too low. How can you pay your subordinate so little when the cost of goods is so high these days and when I'm worth so, so much more? Do you want to get fucked up? Chapter, 240 Ju Hien's mocking tone made the team members gasp. They wondered if they had heard wrong but that didn't seem to be the case. Big boss, big boss Ilya, you make people work so much. You run us ragged with everything you make us do. I'm going to sue you for labor law violation. That's okay, right? Ho. 
Juhian snickered and kicked Ilya. Both Ilya and the other team members were confused. His memories seemed to be modified since he was calling Ilya Big Boss, but the way he was acting what the hell, did his memories get modified or not? Hold on, CEO Juhian. How dare you do this to your Captain Ugg? Juhian snickered as he kicked Ilya. What is it, Captain Nim? I'm just bringing up some concerns to my employer, do you have a problem with that, you son of a bitch? Ugg. Ilya, who was sent flying by Juhian's kick, started to grind his teeth. This son of a bitch is it possible? Juhian, who supposedly had his memories modified, was laughing loudly. What's wrong? What's wrong big boss? Who told you to turn that old bastard into my team member? It's like you want to be killed. Ilya started to frown after hearing that. Just as I expected. His memories were not modified. Ilya could not believe it. The second level didn't work. Does this bastard not have a subconscious or something? That was right. The artifact Ilya was using to modify people's memories was Freud's artifact. Freud was an important figure in the field of psychology and had studied the human subconsciousness. Ilya was modifying a person's subconsciousness to change their memories. Even monarchs easily fell victim to him as there was nobody who could control their subconscious. That was why he couldn't help but become anxious after seeing the perfectly fine Juhian. Is he crazy? Level 1 is one thing since it's just like hypnosis, but... Similar to how Freud first used hypnosis to treat a patient, level 1 was just using hypnosis to modify their memories. But level 2 was completely different. Level 2 modified the subconscious inside the target's brain. It was modifying the memories that, although might not be called up, were still stored in the brain. That was why it was not something a person could defend against using their will. So why? However, Juhian just smiled viciously. Whatever, how about you just take one more hit, you son of a bitch. He had tried to peacefully abduct No, take Ilya with him since Ilya had once been one of his cute subordinates, unfortunately even in video games, mages had to be destroyed immediately as letting them escape would lead to a lot of trouble down the road. Thud. Ilya seemed to have realized he was unable to do anything as he tried to escape. Forget modifying Juhian's memories, he would turn into a pancake if he stayed here. GAAP, come out. Ilya activated Solomon's artifact. Solomon's artifact was an artifact that summoned devils. He was trying to summon a devil that was capable of teleportation. A devil slowly ascended from Ilya's shadow starting with its head. However percent. Where do you think you are crawling out to? Where? The rope started to slap the devil's cheeks as it crawled out. The devil that had been slapped felt wronged. What the hell? What are you doing to your fellow artifact? Unfortunately, the devil was slapped again. Slap. 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 Go back in. I told you to go back in. It was slamming down on the devil's head now to push it back into the ground. Slap, 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 slap. It looked as if the rope was playing a game of whack-a-mole. Ow, it hurts. That hurts. Stop it. The rope continued to slap away as if the devil was being too loud. Are you not going back in? Are you not going back in? Ilya saw this and started to grind his teeth as he grabbed the rope's body. A stupid rope like this he would use the modification artifact to change its owner. As he was about to activate Freud's artifact again Ilya was ruthlessly kicked by Juhian again. What do you think you are trying to do to my artifact? He didn't care about the other artifacts but he seemed a bit annoyed that Ilya was trying to mess with the rope. Ugh. Ilya clutched his stomach and fell to the ground. The aftermath cleanup crew was the intelligent types who only knew how to use their heads. Although they were in the occupation of aiming for artifact users similar to the hunters, they sucked at fighting in comparison. That might be why when Juhian launched another kick. Pow! You, ugh. Ilya felt as if he would die even though Juhian's kick had not been very strong. This was probably the sorrow of a man who has probably never worked out in his life. Fuck, just use some artifacts. He could activate the defense-type artifacts he had set around if Juhian attacked with an artifact. 
Ilya continued to get hit before he couldn't take it anymore and started to stare at Juhian. You son of a bitch I'm going to sue you. I'm going to sue you for assault. Juhian laughed as Ilya shouted in Russian. Ilya usually sneered as if he was better than them and leisurely said whatever was on his mind but there truly seemed to be no solution to violence. So who told you to modify my memories like that? What? Why the hell did you have to change my memories of Irene into that old bastard? I almost threw up. Do you want to die? Pow pow pow. Uff. Ilya was being scolded for not thinking harder about his modification. That shitty chairman Quan had replaced Irene in his memories and Yun Shi Wu had replaced Seo Lei. It was no wonder he was as angry as possible, given what he had done with the two ladies in the past. Well, at least I was able to get information about Quan Hyuk Su. Thanks for that. This bastard. Ilya, who ended up only having information taken, continued to grind his teeth in anger. There was definitely something weird. How was this punk able to dodge something that the other monarchs are not able to dodge? Juhian started to laugh while looking at the shaking gray pupils. There's no need for you to know the method. Juhian had a scary look in his eyes as he cracked his knuckles. Ah, this bastard. What a headache. M. 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 P. H. Inside a nearby park construction site here the cold breeze of dusk was blowing and there was a painful groan echoing through the third floor of this building under construction. Ilya was the one groaning. He was buried in cement with only his head sticking out and he was trying to get some help. Anlun Ph. Anlun Ph. They could take him out since the cement had not hardened yet, however this bastard will use his spell book to escape if we let him out. They had dunked him in cement since he was annoying to deal with. To use this or not to use this. The item in his hand was the Raven's Tears artifact. Would this bastard follow him if Juhian restored his memories? It was at that moment. Wow, that's crazy. Totally cruel. Hey, CO Juhian. How can you dunk a person into cement? Familiar faces came up to Juhian. Juhian tilted his head in confusion as he looked toward them. It was understandable that Chloe and Seo Lei were here. Why are you guys still here? I thought you guys texted me saying that you quit. Julian flinched at Juhian's comment before getting angry. Wow, you're too much. We were worried about you but you still say such things. I don't need men worrying about me. What? It was at that moment. Yu Jaha interjected as if he didn't care. Ah, uh, Captain Nim, you're acting like this again. I heard about it from Seo Lei. She said that you pretended to disband the tomb raiding team on purpose because of Ilya. Yu Jaha had a stupid looking smile on his face. I knew hiring us back was guaranteed. Ahem, of course we are better than the others. What? The two of you can start by submitting your applications again. Why I ought to? It had started at interviewing again but now it was all the way down to submitting an application again. Seo Lei asked at that moment. Oh right, what are you planning on doing with Ilya? She looked at the raven's tears in Juhian's hand. Juhian wasn't sure about what to do. I've been debating about that. Is it because of the four emperor's level backer behind him? Julian started to frown after hearing that. It's Quan Hyuk Su, right? Chairman Quan's sworn brother. That was the reason that man couldn't help but be Ju Hian's enemy in this situation. They couldn't let their guard down because he was at the four emperor's level. I remember hearing in the past that he was your instructor. The members were shocked. Ju Hian scoffed after seeing their gazes. Instructor my ass. He just taught me the basis during my training. Quan Hyuk Su must have had an eye for talent as he cherished Ju Hian quite a bit. In fact, he had chased after Ju Hian telling him to become his subordinate, no, his number one disciple, instead of being his young Nim subordinate. Of course, he probably treats Ju Hian as if he wasn't anything much right now. Julian sighed in relief. I'm relieved. I was wondering whether you could go up against your instructor. Ju Hian scoffed once again. I admit that he is talented. But that bastard is no different from Chairman Quan. In fact, he was the thorn in their eyes that had turned TKBM into an empire. 
he had no reasons to hesitate. At the same time we are still unable to locate the monarch of fate. This is driving me crazy. The people gathered at Pandora truly were going crazy. The monarch's heirlooms would soon appear. They needed the monarch of fate to know where they would appear. There's less than a week left until the prophesized time. Seo Juhian will really steal all of the heirlooms if we cannot locate the monarch of fate within a week. Seo Juhian, that damn son of a bitch. They were certain that Juhian had abducted the monarch of fate for this reason. He wanted to monopolize the location of the heirlooms of course, they could not just give up on the heirlooms why? Didn't he say that we need to become monarchs in order to continue using divine great artifacts? That was right. That was what the prophecy had said. Only those with the monarch's heirlooms are qualified to use divine great artifacts. That was why the monarch of fate had looked into it four times before determining that the heirlooms were important. They didn't know whether they would really be unable to use divine great artifacts any longer, but things would get complicated if the prophecy was true. They already knew about the strength of the divine great artifacts. Divine great artifacts are too strong for us to be satisfied with just legendary hero great artifacts. It was also obvious that the ones with divine great artifacts would control the world both economically and by force. How could they let the heirlooms go when they knew that was the case? Some bastards we've never even heard of will show up and act all cocky if we are unable to secure the heirlooms for ourselves. As for us, a competitor company is threatening us. Imagine if an artifact user from China became a monarch. They will control the international society. Basically, the people with money and power did not want it taken away. As for people without money and power, they wanted the heirloom to gain money and power. These people were aiming to become monarchs for different reasons. Furthermore, we can't let that damn snake, Seo Juhian, monopolize the heirlooms. It's fine. We will rescue the monarch of fate soon. Pandora had received contact from none other than Quan Hyuk Su. You are. The monopolizers were shocked after hearing from this unexpected individual. Why are you? Quan Hyuk Su calmly laughed. Ha, huh, I'm moving around since my Hyung Nim is unable to do so right now. He told them not to worry about Seo Juhian too much. I ordered my subordinate to take care of Seo Juhian. The people gathered at Pandora gasped. W, will he be okay? That subordinate of yours? I, is he still alive? Quan Hyuk Su, who was inside a Benz right now, started to laugh after hearing the rowdiness on the other side. Why are you so shocked? Seo Juhian is just a little whippersnapper with decent artifacts. His abilities handling artifacts is just subpar. Then that kind of punk won't be able to defeat my disciple no matter how hard he tries. Ilya was someone he had groomed. Quan Hyuk Su had a natural eye for figuring out a person's talent as an ability user. Ilya was his subordinate who had received his approval. Ilya should have turned Seo Juhian into my subordinate by now. He was quite happy. In the past, Chairman Quan had used one of his abilities as the monarch of conquest, force domination, to steal individuals. Quan Hyuk Su did things a bit differently both in the past and now. He used memory modification to procure individuals. Although their methods were different, they were both monopolizers of talented individuals. He would first find out the location of the monarch of fate once he met Seo Juhian. I'll thoroughly tame him after that. Although he didn't know how skilled Juhian was when it came to handling artifacts, he found Juhian's ability to raid tombs to be quite desirable. I will use that bastard to aim for the heirlooms that bastard already had artifacts from the seven great tombs that were necessary to gain heirlooms anyway. It was killing two birds with one stone. He finally managed to locate Ilya and headed toward the construction site. Chairman Nim, Ilya is over there. Seo Juhian is with him. He could see the two of them standing on the roof with the morning sun falling on them. Seo Juhian. Ilya flinched after hearing Quan Hyuk Su shouting for Juhian and Juhian turned his head. Good job. Ilya, you tamed Seo Juhio, huh? But something was weird. Chapter. 241. Good job. Ilya, you tamed Seo Juhio, huh? But something was weird. Ilya? 
Ilya clenched his eyes shut and Juhian started to smile after hearing Quan Hyuk Su calling out to Ilya. What the? It was extremely weird. They were currently standing on the first floor of the construction site. Juhian and Ilya were on the seventh floor, the roof. They were close enough to hear each other and they seemed to be the right people. Juhian was wearing a black rider jacket and a cap while the blonde Ilya was wearing a blue jacket with a hood. Ilya was taller but both of them were tall and physically fit. They were not the type to get beaten up no matter where they went. Anyway, it was fine that Ilya was with Juhian, however Mr. Ilya, what happened? The guards who came with Quan Hyuk Su seemed anxious as well. The reason was obvious. Didn't you turn Seo Juhian into your subordinate? Why are you captured? Like hell Ilya turned Juhian into his subordinate do you want to die? Who the hell is whose subordinate? Right? Juhian pushed down firmly on Ilya's head and Ilya started to frown. This damn bastard. Quan Hyuk Su and the guards dropped their jaws in shock as they watched. Ilya was no longer in cement but he looked like quite the spectacle standing there tied up by the rope. He was also by the ledge and looked as if he could fall at any moment. Of course, the rest of the team members who were hiding as they watched clicked their tongues. He's basically Captain Hook. He truly seemed like Hook. Why? Master. My jaw's about to go out. How long do we need to do this for? Hurry up and drop him. The Egyptian doggies were at the bottom with their jaws open instead of a crocodile. Their vicious teeth were quite sharp. That wasn't all. I'm going to rip that human to shreds. No. He's mine. Mine. The animals that Anubis had summoned were roaring with their jaws open as well. They looked as if they were piranhas in the Amazon chomping for prey. They were all ancient crocodile-shaped mummies and their teeth were still intact that falling down would mean being ruthlessly ripped to pieces. That was why the team members could only click their tongues. He should feel lucky that the captain is not actually dropping him. Actually, he might really drop him if he got angry. Either way, Quan Hyuk Su couldn't help but gasp because Ilya was being held captive. Ju Hien also said the following. It's already too late. This bastard is my lapdog starting today. What kind of bullshit is that crazy bastard spewing? Quan Hyuk Su's guards immediately rushed toward Ju Hien. We will go shut that bastard up. They pulled out their artifacts as expected of the guards of an artifact user. They seemed to be pistol-shaped artifacts at first glance. It was at that moment. Oh ho, don't you dare come any closer. Ilya started to scream as soon as Ju Hien said that. It was because Ju Hien had kicked him. Boom! The tightly bound Ilya started to plummet down to the ground. While that was going on the Colossus from America, Tom Hugan, seems to be stepping in to locate the Monarch of Fate. Tom Hugan, otherwise known as Mr. Quan Hyuk Su, is sworn brothers with Chairman Quan, the Monarch of Conquest the Monarch of Fate, who was still imprisoned inside the restroom, started to become optimistic. The things he was hearing from the TV outside were his only sources of hope. Hugan. They're talking about Quan Hyuk Su. The monarch of love. That bastard is stepping in to find me. Quan Hyuk Su was a monarch. Although his name wasn't on the list yet, he was very famous among the monopolizers. He placed Chairman Quan of TKBM in the limelight while gathering his strength and raising artifact users in the shadows. That bastard is grooming an aftermath cleanup crew and some assassins. He had heard that Ilya Volgov of the Aftermath Cleanup crew was quite a unique bastard. That bastard should be able to take care of CO justification and rescue me. The monarch of fate started to smile before grunting and groaning as he squirmed out of the tub so that he could hear better. He then put his ear against the door and waited for more information. Just a little more, just a little more. He was going to gather information however he could, so that he could help them find him bang. Ow. The door slammed open and the monarch of fate, who had been unexpectedly attacked by the door while leaning against it, started to shout and cry. Dan was the one who had opened the door. The monarch of fate touched his nose that was bleeding and started to swear. Damn it, do you want to die? Fuck, you damn motherfucker. However, he soon gasped and closed his mouth. 
It was because of the item in Dan's hand. It was a butcher's knife used to slaughter cows. The monarch of fate started to scream after seeing the blood. On the knife. Okay. I'll stay in there. I'll just stay in there. The shocked monarch of fate slowly crawled back into the tub. He then curled up and started to sniffle. Fuck, he's going to cut my neck off with that knife if I resist. That was right. He had thought that all of Seo Juhian's team members who had been observing him had left and started going, wow, how great. My subordinates, I'm over here. Hurry up and find me. He had started to formulate a plan to escape. But Dan had suddenly appeared in the hotel. He seemed to have come after receiving orders from Juhian. He had not gotten his memories back yet but Dan saw Juhian as the person who had saved his daughter. He had no reason to say no. Of course, Joshua had shouted, You bitch, you ended up siding with that son of a bitch CEO Juhian. But well he had been threatened by that butcher knife for talking shit about Juhian. The monarch of fate still could not forget Dan's gaze from that moment. Mr. VIP. Have you ever heard a pig getting slaughtered? Dan's gaze had told him that he should not run his mouth as he pleased. Dan looked extremely scary even though he had just stood there while holding the knife. His gaze was fierce, he was tall, and his muscles were firm. Just being lightly smacked by his thick arms could probably break his ribs. Furthermore, he was a butcher, so he would know how to use the knife better than most gangsters. Joshua had felt as if he shouldn't cause a ruckus. Of course, this was all just a misunderstanding and Dan just tilted his head in confusion after looking at the sniffling monarch of fate. I was just trying to ask him if he knows what kind of meat Mr. Seo Juhian likes most. He then started to hum as he returned to the kitchen. Today was the day that the highest quality meat was delivered. He would serve Juhian some extremely high quality meat when Juhian gets back. Ah! Ilya, who had been kicked by Juhian, was plummeting down to the ground. He was falling from the seventh floor. Anybody would die if they fell from this height. However, at that moment. Ha! Huh. He thankfully stopped just before turning into a pancake because he was tied up by the rope. But it still caused everybody who was watching to almost have heart attacks. That damn bastard. I feel like I've lost ten years of my life. Ilya was feeling relieved when the doggies and vicious crocodiles started to gather around him. Ilya gasped after seeing the crocodiles jumping up to rip apart his lower body. Kwon Hyuk Su's group as well as the team members all started to scream as some of the crocodiles were even trying to rip apart Ilya's important part. Seo Juhian truly had a rough and vicious way of handling his subordinates. Hey! Seo Juhian! Control yourself! That's right! I want him to become our team member still as a man. Even Yu Jeha was shouting but Ju Hian didn't care. In fact, Ju Hian just nonchalantly started to speak regardless of what they were saying. It's not hard to take this bastard as my subordinate as is, but I have a proposal. A proposal? Quan Hyuk Su seemed shocked as he looked toward Ju Hian. The situation was so unbelievable that the smile that was always on his face was gone. Yes, hand over your artifacts. Then I'll let this bastard go. Is he crazy? That motherfucking monarch of plunder. They started to foam at the mouth as expected. Chairman Nim, please don't listen to him. That's not Ilya. It must be a fake made by the monarch of pushoverness. That retard. He must have created something weird again. Did you really think we would fall for it? Yu Jeha, who was still hiding, became upset and shouted, What the hell did you fuckers say? He then tried to run toward them but Seol was holding him back. As Quan Hyuk Su's guards tried to get closer to the fake Ilya, Stop, you idiots. Devils started to come out of Ilya's shadow. That was Ilya's possession type artifact. They gasped after realizing that these were Solomon's devils. Fuck, that's really Ilya. Really? Juhian viciously laughed at that moment. He's real, motherfuckers. The rope must have read Juhian's mind as it quickly released Ilya. Ack. Ilya started to fall into the field of crocodiles. Damn it. He subconsciously grabbed onto the end of the rope. 
He thankfully didn't fall into the field of crocodiles, but all he could do was dangle on the rope that was floating in the air. Ilya could only glare at Ju Hian. Is he really planning on killing me? Quan Hyuk Su and the guards were extremely shocked. Devils had come out of his shadow. It really is the Chairman Nim's disciple. Even that bastard Yu Jeha should not be able to copy the summon devils. They quickly started to shout. Ilya. Use your artifact. What the hell are you doing? Use your devils. Fuck, I would have done so if I could. The guards soon started to shout. Chairman Nim. It looks as if he cannot use his devils right now. There's no other reason he would have been captured by Seo Juhian. I know. Quan Hyuk Su was scoffing as if he knew even without them mentioning it. His face looked quite flustered unlike his usual self who seemed to be able to see through everything. For him to have been able to capture Ilya Seo Juhian who the hell is this bastard? It doesn't seem like the memory modification worked either. What the hell happened? Quan Hyuk Su was extremely shocked right now. This was weird even if the memory modification had not worked. Ilya was his top disciple. Compared to him, Seo Ju Hian should just be a thief whose only talent was in tomb raiding. So why? Had he made the wrong judgment about Seo Ju Hian? Quan Hyuk Su soon shook his head. There's no way. He's just a damn thief. This bastard had become a monarch by fluke. Quan Hyuk Su put on a fake innocent smile and started to speak. Okay, okay, so let Ilya go first. Chairman Nim. His guard seemed shocked that he sounded as if he would do as Seo Ju Hian wanted. But Quan Hyuk Su was sneering internally. Ilya, you idiot. It must be that Ilya's trauma acted up again. Ilya actually had a ton of fear about using artifacts. He needed sedatives to suppress that trauma and Quan Hyuk Su had used that to tame Ilya. Seo Ju Hian was just lucky to run into Ilya at that time. That was why Ilya couldn't control his devils and didn't manage to modify Ju Hian's memories. It seemed obvious. To think he's speaking some bullshit about how Ilya is his subordinate from today on and acting as if he caught him when it was all just a fluke. Eat shit, Seo Ju Hian. Quan Hyuk Su started to smile. He decided to act as if he was agreeing to Ju Hian's demands. I'll pretend to do as he wants before slipping a sedative artifact to Ilya. Then Ilya would be able to call his devils out again. Then he would be able to modify Seo Ju Hian's memories. It was great since Seo Ju Hian's subordinates all seemed to be hiding around here as well. I will tame all of them as my subordinates. Quan Hyuk Su then used an artifact to approach Ju Hian. See, Chairman Nim. It seemed to be an artifact that let him walk on air. Quan Hyuk Su handed out his artifacts without any hesitation. These are all of the artifacts I have now then. Pow! Quan Hyuk Su was ruthlessly sent flying. The one to punch him in the chin was none other than Solomon's devil. It was a devil that Ilya had summoned. Chapter 242. See, Chairman Nim. Quan Hyuk Su was ruthlessly sent flying. The one to punch him in the chin was none other than Solomon's devil. It was a devil that Ilya had summoned. The devil that seemed to resemble a lion roared wildly as it sent Quan Hyuk Su flying. It was extremely strong. The ruthless punch sent Quan Hyuk Su flying quite far away. It might have been even stronger of a hit than being hit by a car. The impact was so strong that a human's limbs might have ripped away. The guards ran toward Quan Hyuk Su with stiff expressions. Chairman Nim. Are you okay, sir? Chairman Nim. They just couldn't believe it. I'm certain Solomon's devil jumped out. But something was weird. Solomon's artifact should be Ilya's artifact. So why? Had Ilya betrayed them? As they turned toward Ilya stop acting like you're hurt and get the hell up. Ju Hian jeered at the chairman who was lying on the ground as if he was hurt. I know you won't die that easily. The guards started to grind their teeth. Of course, Ju Hian was right. Quan Hyuk Su had a great defense type artifact similar to how he had found Achilles's armor for Chairman Quan. But even if he has a defense type artifact it still doesn't mean that he doesn't feel any pain, 
you son of a bitch. Wait, that's not the issue right now. Ilya betrayed us. As they glared toward Ilya, ow, 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 stop, stop it. Quan Hyuk Su groaned as he stood up. His head was bleeding as if he had been involved in a major car accident. It had been a while since he had felt this much pain. We will call an ambulance right away. Groan, no, no. It's not that bad. Quan Hyuk Su stabbed what looked like a syringe into his arm. It looked like a lancet or a pen, and sticking the needle into his skin made Quan Hyuk Su's expression much better. It was an anesthesia artifact. Of course, using it did not mean that he had no pain at all. It was only a C-grade artifact. He wanted to drop everything and lay on his bed but he couldn't do that right now. Calm down everyone. There is no way Ilya would betray me. But why else would the devil? It was at that moment. Come out, Glashalabolus. They heard Juhian nonchalantly say that. This time, a black dog with griffin's wings aimed for Quan Hyuk Su. The devil that was called this time was a devil that oversaw murder and slaughter. Its sharp fangs aimed at Quan Hyuk Su's neck. That bastard. Tang Tang. They shot their gun-shaped artifacts toward the devil but it seemed as if regular attacks would not work because it was a devil artifact. Quan Hyuk Su stepped in at that moment. Put those away, they won't work on a devil artifact. But. But I get it now. I understand why Solomon's devils are coming out. Excuse me. Quan Hyuk Su looked toward Ju Hian instead of responding. His subordinates were shocked after following his gaze and looking at Ju Hian. That is. Ju Hian was waving a ring around. It was a ring with a star-like pentagram on it. That was Solomon's ring. Ju Hian snickered as he waved it around. Are you looking for this? Quan Hyuk Su's guards who finally realized the situation started to foam at the mouth. Ilya. You let him take that from you. Ilya was clenching his eyes shut while dangling on the rope. He was apologizing. Quan Hyuk Su started to scoff. Yes, there's no way our Ilya would betray me. He seems to have been completely looted by this thieving bastard because of his trauma. He clicked his tongue as if he was pitying Ilya. But Quan Hyuk Su didn't care much about this situation. Why? He just had to take it back. Don't worry. I will quickly return your artifact to you. Quan Hyuk Su then wrote something into a notebook. The people in the area felt a significant amount of pressure. A stealing artifact is taking away your artifact. Something shocking happened. Solomon's ring that had been in Ju Hian's hand had disappeared. Quan Hyuk Su had done it. Ju Hian seemed shocked. Quan Hyuk Su, who had stolen the artifact, waved his notebook around as he smiled. As expected, CEO Ju Hian, the rumors exaggerated about your abilities. You're nothing. I was able to take it away so easily. Crack. The artifact broke into pieces. An S-grade artifact crumbled as if it was nothing. The guards and Quan Hyuk Su all gasped while looking at it. What the hell? Did an S-grade artifact just break? Quan Hyuk Su quickly inspected the broken pieces of the ring. He then started to swear after looking at a certain piece. Made in Ujeha. It was the product of that damn monarch of pushoverness. He heard an extremely apologetic voice behind him. Ah, I'm really sorry. That's a B-grade fake so I can't guarantee the quality. His smile made it debatable whether he was really sorry though either way, the guards started to glare at Ju Hian once they realized the situation. What the, hold on. If the one that bastard was holding was a fake. Where is the real one? No. That bastard must have the real one. That's how he was able to summon the devils. Ju Hian started to laugh as their gazes were all focused on him. You retards. I never used an artifact like that at all. W, what? Then what about the devils you summoned earlier? What else would it be? Pow! The black dog of slaughter popped out of the shadows once more, as if to respond to their question. The dog of slaughter bared its sharp fangs after appearing suddenly without making any noise. Chomp! 
It then ruthlessly chomped down on Quan Hyuk-su's arm. Blood splattered everywhere. Quan Hyuk-su felt an intense pain. In fact, Quan Hyuk-su's arm was completely ripped off. Ugh. His left arm was sent flying down to the first floor and landed in the mouths of the crocodiles. The crocodiles happily gobbled it up. However, it didn't end there. The dog of slaughter rummaged through Quan Hyuk Su's pockets and grabbed some artifacts before returning to its master. In fact, it returned to Ilya. Quan Hyuk Su, who finally realized the truth, glared at Ilya. Ilya! You! What are you doing? Ilya calmly started to smile. He wants to know what is going on. I'm very sorry. Chairman Nim. You are not my superior anymore. He had just jumped ship. Quan Hyuk Su and his subordinates questioned their hearing after what they just heard. What did that bastard just say? Ilya. Quan Hyuk Su staggered before a rare frown appeared on his face. His gentle expression had instantly turned hostile. No, it might be best to describe it as the face of someone who had been smacked from the back. Ilya. What the hell did you just say? His voice was extremely angry. His subordinates were saying, Sir, you need to heal your arm first. The hospital, no, we need to go to Pandora. But he couldn't even hear them because he was fuming with anger. What the hell do you think you're doing? Ilya answered as if it was nothing. It's all just an act, sir. Actually, I wasn't captured by Co Juhian. But even Ilya had not expected his captain to actually throw him off the roof. He thought he would die holding onto the rope with his weak arms to the point that he could not even call out more of his devils. Anyways, thank you for the artifacts, Chairman Nim. What? You probably don't have a healing artifact on you, so please hurry over to Pandora. Otherwise, you'll have to live without an arm forever. Quan Hyuk Su was shaking as he glared at Ilya. That was right. Ilya had not had his Solomon's devils taken from him nor had he been captured by Ju Hian. He had just put on a show. He had pretended as if he had been caught. I'd have to be crazy to keep being a slave like that. What happened before Quan Hyuk Su arrived would explain the situation. It was about thirty minutes ago. Ju Hian, who had slammed Ilya into some cement, had been thinking hard about what to do. Should I use this or not? He needed to decide whether it would be better to use the raven's artifact or not. It wasn't just because it was Ilya. He had debated whether to use the raven's artifact on everyone except Siole and Chloe. That bastard Julian would provoke. Him all the time. That bastard Ujeha was a headache. As for Dan, it would have been fine to restore his memories, but he chose not to because of the memories Dan would remember about his daughter. Finally, Ilya was because of his terrible personality. However, he didn't have to think long. He had used the raven's artifact. His original plan was to use the Monarch of Fate's camera to slowly see Ilya's reaction before using it, but he just ended up using it. He chose to do so because Quan Hyuk Su had arrived. In a way, Ju Hian saw this as a great chance to test Ilya. He wanted to see if Ilya would stick to Quan Hyuk Su even after getting his memories back. That was why he didn't even discuss it with Ilya. I would have had to get rid of him if it looked as if he would go back to that bastard. As for Solomon's artifact, he had Jeha make it in advance to scam Quan Hyuk Su. Ilya had actually chosen to attack Quan Hyuk Su on his own accord. Maybe that was the reason. Ho, oh, that little punk. Ju Hian's team members had all been shocked. They had never expected Ilya to attack Quan Hyuk Su. Ah, I thought that that bastard would only follow the Captain Nim with a slave contract. I know, right? Ilya had always been a lone wolf who didn't like hanging out with the others. He followed the Captain's orders, but always gave off this feeling of staying away from them because he thought they were inferior to him. He was a completely arrogant jerk. They thought that he would sell information to Quan Hyuk Su once he got his memories back. Quan Hyuk Su looked ready to explode right now. Ilya. Are you out of your mind? Are you really going to betray your master who has trained and raised you? Ilya avoided his gaze. Quan Hyuk Su then glared at Ju Hian instead. What did you do to my disciple? 
nothing at all. Ho, oh, whatever. I'll get rid of both of you here. He had a smile on his face but he definitely looked angry. Quan Hyuk Su then channeled his dominance. They're just kids. Ilya and Seo Juhian were only at the expert grade or monarch grade level. They were nothing compared to him. He had made the wrong decision to use Ilya to tame Juhian in the first place. I will make all of them submit to me. The pressure to forcibly make people submit started to spread out. Boom. The dominance was so strong that the weak-willed would instantly kneel. It felt as if an invisible power was forcibly pushing down on your head. Ah. Quan Hyuk Su's subordinates started to shake before kneeling and kowtowing. Some were even pissing their pants. They weren't the only ones. W, what is this? Everybody within a radius of one kilometer plopped down to the ground while some people even fainted or started seizing. Dominance was different for expert grade and below, but the dominance used by monarchs and higher were not just for using artifacts. Well, it was true that the people with more artifacts were generally stronger, but the issue was that Juhian's occupation was a thief. He had thought that the reason Juhian became a monarch was because of the danger he caused others based on his ability to collect a lot of artifacts. That was the reason he had told himself that Juhian lacked the ability to handle the artifacts and thought Juhian's only talent was in stealing. But he was wrong. Juhian did not seem to be a regular thieving bastard. The artifacts started to go wild once Juhian's dominance started to shake the area. Boom. Ah. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. Ah, this is C.O. Juhian. Run away. Run away. You'll become his slave if you're caught. The artifacts nearby started to run as if their asses were on fire. They were probably acting on their instincts for survival. Artifacts are running away. They are running as if they've gone mad. Juhian clicked his tongue after seeing those messages. Those damn cowards. This was the reason he did not normally release his dominance. On the other hand, Ilya was standing with his jaw dropped. What the hell, nobody told me about this. He was certain. Juhian was at the four emperor's grade. He knew better than anybody else because he had been serving someone at the four emperor's grade this whole time. He would not even lose out to Quan Hyuk Su in his prime. He would not lose out even if Ilya were to compare Juhian to the four emperors of the past. I did notice that he seemed oddly different than the past, but Juhian was no longer an expert grade artifact user. The other team members who were watching were sighing and gasping as well. That damn monster. Ah, he's so scary. I'm scared. He's going to turn into a Demon King grade artifact user later, isn't he? Demon King is most suitable for the Captain Nim. No, that's a bit. Anyway, I guess destroying all those artifacts had its advantages for him. Julian was disgusted after observing Juhian with Kongming's artifact. I can't believe he's at the level where he won't lose out to Quan Hyuk Su. Forget losing out to him, it felt as if he was suppressing Quan Hyuk Su. That was probably the reason. Julian's heart was beating faster with excitement knowing that such a bastard was his captain but he was also scared. Ju Hien had always been talented but he had been suppressed by his environment, but he's really scary now that he can actually expand the wings he could not expand in the past. It was at that moment. A vicious dominance completely ripped apart Quan Hyuk Su's aura. The collision was destructive. In the end, Quan Hyuk Su's dominance was pushed back. Ju Hien had succeeded in overwhelming Quan Hyuk Su's dominance. The others couldn't help but be shocked. He really got rid of it. He got rid of one of the four emperors' dominance. Something shocking started to happen at that moment. Hey, hey, he's fucked. Hurry up and change ship. Change ship. Damn it, this idiot couldn't even handle that. Change. Change. Quan Hyuk Su's possession artifacts started to destroy their contracts. Artifacts were shameless beings to start with but they truly were faster than the speed of light this time. Cast him aside. Throw him away. Quan Hyuk Su started to frown while looking at the tattoos on his body starting to disappear. These shitheads. Of course, Ju Hien was not someone who would quietly watch the artifacts escape. 
What are you doing? Capture all of them and don't let a single one get away. The rope's eyes sparkled as it jumped out. Where do you think you're going? Where do you think you're going? The rope seemed excited as it captured the artifacts trying to escape. But Quan Hyuksu's artifacts would not get caught so easily. Damn it, go away. Go away, you little punk. The rope ended up being attacked as they were a group of strong artifacts. Their attacks were quite painful and threatening. Hmph, that should be enough. It's just a damn rope. It's just a lucky bastard that became an S-grade artifact by fluke. But our dear rope would never submit that easily. The rope's eyes flashed. Get over here. Get over here. The rope chased after the artifacts with a scary expression. On its face. He told me to capture you. He told me. Ah. Don't come any closer. Don't come any closer. Ack. Why isn't it hurt at all? Although the rope did not have overbearing strength like the other divine grade artifacts did, it still ran around doing its best to capture these artifacts. Quan Hyuk Su was in disbelief at this point. What the? Ju Hian sneered at him. You should have taken good care of your artifacts. Old man. He had a truly aggravating smile. It was rare to see Quan Hyuk Su angry like this. You damn thieving bastard. What's wrong? Are you upset that I'm a thieving bastard? Quan Hyuk Su had a calm expression on his face, but it was obvious to Ju Hian that he was angry. Ironically, Quan Hyuk Su was angry but also extremely interested in Ju Hian now. Why? Ju Hian was strong. No wonder Ilya wasn't enough to take him down. He had no choice but to admit it. It made him desire Ju Hian even more. Ju Hian was probably the highest grade among the current monarchs. He really wanted to take Ju Hian in as his number one disciple. I need to take this bastard no matter what it takes. Julian started to shout after feeling a gloomy aura. Co Ju Hian. Be careful. He's been hiding an artifact. He must have detected it with Kong Ming's artifact. Julian's warning seemed to have come too late as Quan Hyuk Su laughed and disappeared. Ju Hian tilted his head. He knew that Quan Hyuk Su had been hiding an artifact, but what artifact is it? He had no ideas about what it could be even after going through his memories of the past. Julian shouted at that moment. It's an assassin artifact. Yu Jaiha gasped after hearing that. Huh? What? Why does this bastard have that? It was the Nazari Ismailism artifact the monarch of evangelism had frequently used in the past. The Assassin's Creed of the Syrian Assassins aiming for Saladin's life A grade, treasure grade, possession artifact basically, it was an artifact to summon the Arab Assassin Brigade that would take drugs and carry out assassinations. They were a denomination that aimed for martyrdom through assassinations. This group would be called the Assassins in the future. Their assassination targets were usually important figures in Islam and they would even change their religions to blend in to get closer to their targets. A group of Middle Eastern assassins suddenly appeared and tried to take Ju Hian's life. A scream shot out at the same time. Quan Hyuk Su leisurely started to smile. There goes one. He then glared toward Ilya with a vicious gaze. Ilya, you're next. Ilya started to shake after seeing Quan Hyuk Su's gaze. It was because he knew this scary gaze very well. It was the gaze he had when he would even turn someone into a cripple to turn him into a subordinate. Chairman Quan used his position as a superior and used people's weaknesses, but Quan Hyuk Su was different. He would destroy a person's mind, body, or personality. Although he was known as the monarch of love who loved and cherished his subordinates, he was actually the monarch of self-love. He would cut down the bastards who tried to crawl up in order to protect his position. As Quan Hyuk Su's overbearing power was about to turn Ilya into a cripple some odd noises came from where Ju Hian had been standing. Ugh. Ah. Ah. They were being beaten up. They were being ruthlessly beaten to a pulp. Ju Hian had activated Xiang Yu's artifact. Fuck, this bastard, what ugh. Xiang Yu's artifact was doing what it did best. Ju Hian, who was almost invincible in battle thanks to Xiang Yu's artifact, 
was easily beating them down. It seemed as if the scream from earlier had not been Juhian screaming. Quan Hyuk Su was taken back for a moment but actually saw this as an opportunity. You can't use other artifacts while using an S-grade artifact. Quan Hyuk Su activated an artifact to summon ancient mages. However all people are equal in the eyes of the law, they have the right to have their freedom and property protected, and to the freedom of religion. Ju Hian activated a Codes of Law artifact. The Napoleonic Code is being activated. The area in a 1 km radius is starting to fall under the Code of Law's influence. An unfamiliar Code of Law appeared in front of Ju Hian. This was the Napoleonic Code. The Code of Law released an almost unbearable aura. All individuals within the area are equal in the eyes of the law. Both people and artifacts must obey the same laws regardless of their grade. The negligence rule is being imposed on the enemy. A sentence is being given to the enemy. Their actions will be restricted until they are proven innocent under the code of law. The mages from the artifact that had been charging toward Ju Hian started to scream. Quan Hyuk Su's assassin artifacts started to roll on the ground without being able to do anything. They started to die from various legal sanctions. Quan Hyuk Su was shocked. I didn't even sense him activating an artifact. How did he of all people not notice an artifact being activated? It was also activated extremely quickly. It had been so stealthy that others couldn't notice and happened in an instant. Furthermore, Ju Hian was bringing out close to 100% of the artifact's power. That meant that his technique in using artifacts was amazing. Most people wouldn't be able to draw out the artifact's full power if they activated it like that. There were both pros and cons to activating an artifact like this. Quan Hyuk Su got the chills as he knew that was the case. But to put a collar on Ju Hian's neck right now my body is a mess right now. He also had all of the artifacts he brought with him stolen. That was probably the reason. Quan Hyuk Su slyly started to smile. Fine, okay. I'll give up for today. In return Ugh. Ju Hian grabbed Quan Hyuk Su by the collar. He then glared as if to tell Quan Hyuk Su to know his place. There is no in return. I know you're plotting something. There are no negotiations. Ju Hian snickered before activating Osiris's artifact. Flash. The ground started to shake and a black hole appeared on the ground. The enemy's names have been written in the Book of the Dead. The door to the afterlife is opening. There was a black gust of wind roaring above the hole that looked as if it could easily gobble up a building. Then the people whose names had been placed in the Book of the Dead started to get dragged into the hole. While Anubis's ability was to summon soldiers from the afterlife, Osiris's ability was the opposite, dragging living beings into the afterlife. Ha ha ha. Come on in, I will take you as my slaves. The powerful god of the afterlife started to drag Quan Hyuk Su and his subordinates into the afterlife. Quan Hyuk Su started to smile as he was tired of getting shocked. Artifacts became harder to handle the more their powers were beyond human capabilities. Death was at the top of something that went beyond human capabilities. Artifacts regarding death fell into the top tier that even monarchs would have hard time controlling. But this bastard. Ju Hian violently laughed. Goodbye. Give King Yama my regards. There was an extremely strong explosion of power. Chapter, 244. Osiris is pulling the enemies in. The living are unable to escape. Orisus's strength exploded even stronger, making the black hole stronger as well. It made strong gusts of wind swirl the area as if a typhoon had arrived. Ugh. The gusts were so strong that even adult men needed to grab onto something if they wanted to stay standing. But they would not be sucked in even if they fell down. The only bastards to be sucked into this violent black hole were the ones whose names were written in the Book of the Dead. Quan Hyuk Su, one of those people, ended up being sucked into the black hole. Chairman Nim. His subordinates were sucked in after him as well. Ah! Ilya could not close his mouth as he watched them disappear into the afterlife. They really had disappeared from this world. But at that moment the black hole started to go berserk after sucking in Quan Hyuk Su's group. Warning! 
Osiris is trying to suck in humans whose names are not written in the Book of the Dead as well. Everybody nearby is starting to be sucked in. Boom! An even more ferocious gust of wind descended, so strong that trees were being pulled out by the roots and benches were flying around. Divine grade artifacts were extremely difficult for humans to suppress. They tried to go berserk like this if the user put their guard down for a moment. Boom 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 boom. People lost control of their bodies because of the violent gusts. Osiris had gone crazy with excitement that he was trying to drag everybody to the afterlife. Kaya. As Juhian's team members were all about to be dragged into the afterlife as well a desperate Julian started to shout. Co Juhian. Suppress Osiris's artifact. Close the gate. Sadly, he didn't know whether Juhian could easily suppress such tremendous power. Juhian casually clicked his tongue. These damn doggies, do they really have to cause such a ruckus when I release their leash a bit? As Juhian started to walk MMPH. C.O.L.A. The light C.O.L.A. slid on the ground while being pushed by the gust before she started to fly away as if she was a plastic bag. Chloe, who had been standing next to her, tried to grab her. She looked quite desperate to do so, making it seem as if they were much closer friends than people who didn't even have each other's numbers saved in their phones. Unfortunately, this made Chloe start to fly away as well. T.S.K. Chloe. But the two of them soon stopped flying. Grab. Juhian had grabbed both of them. He grabbed C.O.L.A. with his right hand while carrying Chloe, who flew directly at him, over his shoulder as if she was a sack of rice. The two of them thanked Juhian for saving them. Thank Kia. There was another strong gust of wind and Chloe hugged Juhian's face out of reflex. It made Juhian say something before she could finish thanking him. Chloe. I can't see. Chloe, who was shocked at her own actions, quickly stopped hugging him. It made Juhian laugh. Why the hell did you hug him? T. There was nothing to hold on to. Ciole looked ready to shoot beams out of her eyes as she glared at Chloe. Juhian told both of them to hold on tightly after hearing them argue. Stop arguing. You'll fly away if you don't hold on tightly. E. Excuse me. Juhian used his strong dominance as soon as he said that. It was to suppress Osiris. Ah. The gusts of wind became even more ferocious once Juhian started to suppress Osiris. Juhian pushed down on Osiris even stronger. This guy is so annoying. He's always been a pain since his risk is paralyzing you as if you have rigor mortis. Of course, Osiris did not want to be suppressed. Master. Please let me play a little longer. Playing. What total bullshit. This isn't playing. An artifact's natural instincts made it want to harm and kill as many humans as possible. How could it not complain when Juhian was forcibly trying to suppress that instinctual need? Osiris resisted Juhian's suppression. Let me play a little longer. Shut up. I'm going to cancel all of the fan meetings. That made Osiris flinch. No. Anything but that. I'm sore. Too late. Juhian instantly made the divine grade artifact submit, as if he was telling a pet that they would not get a meal. A violent dominance slammed into Osiris. Ah! Juhian's dominance and Osiris's artifact aura crashed into each other. Shu! Orisis returned to its original necklace form after being suppressed. This battle had been so scary that Ciole had a blank expression on her face. Chloe looked as if she forgot that she was still on Juhian's shoulder. Julian was amazed at Juhian. It's amazing that he managed to suppress that. As for Ilya, he could only stare at the spot where people disappeared through the gate to the afterlife. That person really disappeared. This was not possible. That man had been one of the strongest artifact users he knew. People would faint if they found out. Pandora was currently in a chaotic state. Sir, Chairman Quan Hyuk Su's location suddenly disappeared. What? What the hell are you talking about? Pandora was able to track contracted artifact users' locations at all times. The artifact users agreed to have their movements tracked in return for receiving numerous benefits from Pandora. 
pretty much all artifact users except Ju Hian who told them to screw themselves were being tracked. That was why they couldn't believe what just happened. What do you mean Chairman Quan Hyuk Su disappeared? What happened? He said he would go find the Monarch of Fate just 30 minutes ago. Didn't he say he met up with Seo Ju Hian? That, um, apparently they noticed the aura of an Egyptian artifact here the Monarch of Love had been. They said it was most likely a divine grade artifact. Their eyes flashed with anger. Hold on. That's Seo Ju Hian's go to artifact. Did Seo Ju Hian dash? They became anxious. Ilya was anxious as well. They really disappeared into the afterlife. He had a lot of pent up anger toward the monarch of love. He was happy about it, but he's not someone who would go out this easily. Ilya gulped. It was at that moment. Captain Nim, aren't you at the four emperor's level now that you took down that old man? Wow, that old man shouldn't be able to come back. Ilya looked at you Jeha as if he was stupid. You retard. Do you really think that person went all out? What? He'll return later. That person will be back. Ju Hian started to laugh after hearing that part. That's right. He should come back. E, excuse me. What did you say? Ju Hian's gaze turned vicious. No. In fact, I want him to come back. Excuse me. What do you mean you want him to come back? I have some things I need to take from that lunatic. Quan Hyuk Su was a man who was skilled enough to turn TKBM into an empire. He was also a big fish in the United States. It was such a waste to get rid of someone like that so easily. Furthermore it was luck even though I managed to defeat him. That lunatic was injured and his dominance should not have been at its usual level because of it. He had lost an arm. Even if Quan Hyuk Su had pretended to be calm, there weren't many people who would maintain their mental fortitude after something like that. Ju Hian was thinking that he had simply used a great time to suppress Quan Hyuk Su. But Julian just laughed internally after hearing his captain's words. Who knows? I don't think it was luck. Why? Quan Hyuk Su truly was strong. It was also true that his dominance had been reduced because of the injury. However, it was clear when he looked through Kong Ming's artifact. Although Quan Hyuk Su was injured, Ju Hian's level could already be considered at the Four Emperor's level even if that factor had been removed. He was definitely strong enough to fight against and defeat the Almighty Monopolizers. That made Julian scared of Ju Hian but also made him laugh. It would be bad if he couldn't even become one of the Four Emperors. Yu Jeha and he were monarchs. They were fellow monarchs with Ju Hian. It did not make sense for someone at their same level to be the captain. It would not be weird even if they asked to switch captains. Ju Hian soon started to speak. Anyway, I stuck the lunatic who would get in our way of getting the heirlooms in the afterlife for now. Then all that is left is to use the monarch of fate to go to the monarch's tomb then. Chloe peeked toward Ilya as she said that. Is that why you used the raven's artifact on Ilya? Everybody turned toward Ilya. That's right. We will use the Monarch of Fate to spread false information. Unfortunately, Co Stratimus's TV program was not enough to do that. The Monarch of Fate had to personally appear on TV to make the others believe. But there was no way that the Monarch of Fate would do as they wanted and say what they wanted him to say on TV. Yu Jeha could disguise himself but the appraisers weren't complete idiots, so they needed a more certain method. Memory Modification they would be able to use the monarch of fate as they pleased. They needed a professional who could modify the memories of monarchs to do that. Ilya, we need your ability. Ilya, who was called out by Julian, opened his eyes wide. He then started to frown as he responded. Does that mean you want us to be a team again? That made you Jeha chuckle thinking that this bastard would get a slave contract as well. Captain Nim. Shall I prepare the contract? Do you want the consequence to be death? No, Ilya is good for now. Yu Jeha was completely shocked after hearing that and started to mumble while standing with his head down. This is discrimination, complete discrimination I treat the captain him better I'm more useful. Yu Jeha peeked toward Ju Hian before starting to draw something on the ground with his foot. 
Julian didn't care and started to speak to Ilya again. He's not here but we also found Dan. Our entire tomb entering team would be complete if you join us as well. Juhian's tomb raiding team had a total of 10 members. Seven of them were the official tomb entering members. They would be extremely important in getting the heirlooms and excavating tombs from here on. Julian was convincing Ilya in Juhian's place. So why don't you join us again? But Ilya lamented in a loud voice. Are you crazy? I got a good look at the captain's skills. But that's why you're fucked. That lunatic will chase after the captain when he manages to get out of the afterlife. He'll keep badgering the captain to be his disciple. That old man's followers won't let him be for a different reason. Ilya turned around as if he wanted to move away. It'll be annoying to get involved with you guys. Furthermore, the captain treats people like shit. The rest of the team members are shitty as well. An intelligent type like me is going to go look for an easier monarch to work for. This was an opportunity for him. It's a chance to live a new life. UJ has eyebrows started to twitch after hearing Ilya's response. He expected this from Ilya. This was one twisted bastard after all. There was no way he would join the team again so easily. At that moment Ilya prepared to fly away using Solomon's artifact as he had an annoying smile on his face. Either that or let me be the captain of the tomb raiding team. Then I might join. He said that because he knew Juhian would never agree to it. Yu Jeha sighed and took something out after hearing that. It was a familiar contract. Yu Jeha had created it and started to snicker. Ha, this punk. Why does someone so smart is acting so stupid and digging his own grave? Yu Jeha started to laugh out loud as if he had not been sulking just now. You retard. The Captain Nim was being nice to you and was not going to make you sign a slave contract but what? You stupid idiot. You just slammed his generosity in his face. What? A slave contract? What do you may a ug? Crack. Crackle. Crack. Eilis' precious artifacts started to be destroyed one by one. Solomon's artifact was no exception. The artifacts started to cry as they were being destroyed by Juhian's dominance. Egu. Egu. Co Juhian, you bastard. Stop destroying us. My bones are breaking because of you. Ilya gasped. Wait, this is an extremely precious artifact. Juhian smirked without caring about what Ilya was thinking. I will add some special conditions just for you before you sign the contract. The smart Ilya's instincts let him know what Juhian meant by that. He could tell that those special conditions would not be beneficial to him. He turned completely pale before he knelt down in front of Juhian. N, no sir. I'm really sorry. I said the wrong thing. I don't need anything else so please just accept me as a team member A.G. Juhian smiled brightly at him. It's too late, you son of a bitch. Next came a terrible scream. Maybe this was what Juhian had been planning from the beginning. Chapter, 245 Ugh. This must be what it is like to feel as if the world was spinning. Ah. Uh. Ilya truly felt as if he would die as he was being beaten up. What kind of company beats an employee to a pulp like this? To be more specific, he was being beaten up not by Juhian but by Juhian's artifact. Why? So who told you to aim for the captain's artifact? You've truly gone mad. That was right. A few minutes ago Ilya had decided that he could not end back up in Juhian's tomb raiding team like this. It wasn't that he had no intentions of working together with Juhian. It was a thousand times better than being used by Quan Hyuk Su or Quan Tae Jun, and most importantly, he was very much aware of Juhian's excavation abilities. In fact, it would be extremely beneficial to join Juhian's excavation team again. The way he fought against Quan Hyuk Su earlier was just one example. However, the captain will have his way with me if I go in just like this. That was right. Ilya was the type to always calculate the pros and cons before making a decision. That was why he was trying to negotiate with Juhian. He couldn't just do nothing and end up a complete slave like this. That was why he had used his brain, 
but he did something weird in the name of negotiating. For example I'll steal his artifact. That was right. He had looked for an opening to aim for Ju Hian's artifact. He thought that he might be able to get an advantageous contract if he stole Ju Hian's artifact. He thought it would be possible to negotiate since Ju Hian knew the value of artifacts. Furthermore, he was a type of artifact user hunter. He knew the way to deal with people like Ju Hian. The current captain is the type whose dominance is stupidly high. If this was a game, his character was one who had spent all the stat points on strength. He had overwhelming strength even compared to most artifact users, however I can steal an artifact from him. Basically, dominance was a whip. On the other hand, affinity, which Ju Hian called sucking up or pushoverness, was the carrot. Artifacts were things that would happily come with him if he used a bit of affinity against them. So I will use affinity here too. He would steal Ju Hian's artifact. He would then use it to negotiate. That was why Ilya had immediately put his hand on Ju Hian's artifact. He then poured affinity into them. However wow, what a dumbass. Of all artifacts to mess with. I wish you the best of luck. W, what? The other tomb raiding team members seemed to be pitying him. And then uff. He was smacked. First, he was smacked by the rope. The rope was getting angry that someone other than Ju Hian had channeled their power into it. Go away. Go away. It was not just the rope. How dare a lowly human put his hand on me. Human, know your status. Hand over some chicken. His butt was then ruthlessly bitten by the doggies. He almost had his family jewels bitten off as well. And that was how Ilya ended up being beaten up by the artifacts. Although Ilya was a monarch, even he could not easily handle Ju Hian's artifacts using affinity. Yu Jae Ha slowly handed him the contract at that point. Here. Hurry up and sign it. Sign it. He grabbed Ilya's thumb as if he had been waiting for this. Ilya gasped. It was because he had already read that contract. I'm no longer human if I sign this thing. He had only read it for a moment but the contract in front of him was not normal. In simple terms your body and your time all belong to the company. You will show up for work and probably never leave you will be killed if you try to leave that was how it felt. That was the reason he was calling it crazy. Who the hell would sign such a contract? However, Yu Jae didn't care and stomped on his back. Just shut up and sign it, you son of a bitch. Yu Jae seemed to have gone crazy. He felt as if he was a ghost haunting Ilya. Put your thumb print on it. Why are you acting like this? Did you go crazy or something? Get lost. Sign this now. I can't be the only one with a contract like this. Ilya became anxious. Is this how your contract is formatted? Yeah. What about it? You scared? Ha. Huh. This crazy bastard. I was wondering what kind of stupid pushover would sign a contract like this. But Yu Jae Ha looked as if he would cut off Ilya's thumb to sign it if he had to do so. One the other team members sighed while watching the two of them. Their contracts were bad too, however well, that punk's contract is truly formatted as a slave contract. It was Jae Ha's own doing though. Actually, Yu Jae Ha had asked Ju Hian to change his contract after regaining the memories of his past life. Of course, Ju Hian couldn't believe it. He thought Jae Ha would say $100 million per year was not enough or ask for better conditions, but what? He said that he did too many terrible things in the past and that he couldn't accept any money. He would work more and not accept any money. Ju Hian had told him that there was no need to do that. However, Yu Jae-ha had started to cry and say that he couldn't take it. I can't forgive myself. But now ha ha ha. Do you think I'll die alone? You should die with me. Yu Jae-ha was carrying a red stamp pad and chasing after Ilya. He had changed the conditions of his contract to clear his conscience but he didn't seem to like being the only slave these were the thoughts in the other members' minds. That idiot. Dumbass. Push over Yu Jae-ha's eyes seemed to be on fire as he continued to chase after Ilya regardless of what the others were thinking. The Monarch of Love's location record truly has disappeared. 
What? Chairman Kwan started to panic after hearing his subordinates report. His Dongxing had said a few minutes ago that he would fuck Seo Juhian over and bring the monarch of fate back. He had thought that Kwan Hyuk Su of all people would be able to find the monarch of fate, however Seo Juhian, that son of a bitch. I heard that he used a divine grade Egyptian artifact. I'm certain it was Osiris's artifact. Excuse me. The only reason Pandora's location information would disappear is if someone entered a tomb or that they disappeared out of this earth. Since there were no tomb appearances around where the monarch of love had been, it must mean that he was no longer on earth. It meant that he was sent flying to another world or into space. There was only one thing that was capable of doing that. Osiris's artifact. Set's artifact was an artifact focused on slaughter. It caused murderous sword-like gusts of wind, but it would not make someone disappear. Anubis's artifact summoned the dead. It would also not make someone disappear. That only left Osiris. If it is Osiris, do you think he fell into the afterlife? The afterlife? Don't speak such nonsense. There is no way that such an esteemed individual would have been defeated by Seo Juhian. He's probably still trying to rescue the monarch of fate. That needed to be the case. They needed the monarch of fate in order to aim for the heirlooms but forget rescuing the monarch of fate oh, is that so? He just quietly stayed in the tub. Yes sir. He didn't do anything suspicious. Okay. Keep an eye on him until we get back. Ju Hian started to smile after hearing the news over the phone with Dan. It seemed as if the monarch of love's goal had been the monarch of fate. He did send that bastard to the afterlife but he had to confirm that he didn't find a way to escape and go to the monarch of fate. He called just to check and make sure that the imprisoned bastard did not escape either. It probably wouldn't have mattered even if he tried since Dan was there. But Dan added on at that moment. Um, this bastard got caught trying to send some information to his subordinates. And? The content was suspicious. The content? He said to make sure to get the crow when the heirlooms appear he said to take that tomb first. Crow. Is it that bastard's tomb? Got it. We will be there soon. As he hung up the phone you stamped it. You Jeha must have succeeded in grabbing Ilya's finger as he was shouting hooray. You're a slave now too, you little punk. Ha ha ha. Ilya started to grind his teeth while looking at the contract with his thumb print. Come out, whores. He summoned a devil to burn up the contract. The devil he called this time was a panther devil that burned down its enemies. He had burned up the contract, however you're the same as Kong Ming. Ha ha ha. You retard. That's a copy. Yu Jeha shouted at Ilya to find the real contract from among the numerous copies. Ilya couldn't hold back his anger and told the devil to light Yu Jeha on fire. Yu Jeha used some clones to dodge the attacks like an eel before starting to shout toward Juhian. Captain Naim. I made this son of a bitch sign the contract. I did well, right? I did well, right? He looked like a dog asking to be praised. He then acted pompous in front of Ilya who was grinding his teeth. Whatever, you are my junior now. What? Treat your son Bay well. You are in charge of getting me drinks. Ilya started to shake in anger. Like hell Jeha was his son Bay. They were the same age and they had started working for TKBM at the same time in the past as well. Yu Jeha stood there with his nose up in the air. You might not know because you were the last to join us, but I'm actually the number one member of this tomb raiding team. That is why I am the sunbay to all of the team members. As for you, you're the last one to join. There's a six month difference between the two of us. Got it? Wow, is he really acting like this for just six months? Hey! You're using just six months. What's wrong? Whether it is six months or a single day, a sunbay is a sunbay. Ilya was pounding his chest but Yu Jeha had an annoying smile on his face. Anyway, youngest. You should bring a drink to the eldest senior. But at that moment what? You being number one is only until a few days ago. Chloe was the first to casually bring it up. Ciole added on as well. 
You're currently jobless. If you come back, you'll be Ilias Hubi. If I get rehired with the vice captain Nim, then maybe you'll be the youngest. Ujeha turned completely pale and covered Ilya's ears. But it was too late. Oh, you're currently jobless. Ilya started to laugh out loud. Jeha had acted as the sunbay even though he wasn't even hired. Ilya then had a mischievous smile on his face. You said it yourself, the person who got hired even one day before is the sunbay. T, that. You're my errand boy once you are hired. Yu Jeha started to cry. Captain Nim, please fire that bastard. Ju Hian gasped as he walked out of the bathroom. It was because Yu Jeha was kneeling outside the restroom in protest. What the hell are you doing here? Yu Jeha continued to grumble in anger regardless of whether Ju Hian was shocked or not. Please fire that bastard Ilya. You can hire him back after I am hired first. Please. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Ju Hian looked at Yu Jeha who was groveling while holding onto his leg as if he was crazy. He truly thought Jeha had gone crazy. But Ilya chimed in at that moment. Hubi. Go get me a coffee from the vending machine. Ah. Right, you're not my Hubi. You haven't even been hired. That bastard. Yu Jeha started to shake. Hey. I've submitted my application, okay? I'm going to be hired soon. Ho, oh, there are hundreds of applicants trying to join this tomb raiding team. One of them was the president's daughter. Do you really think you can pass with your specs? Yu Jeha pounded his chest after hearing that. Damn it, why the hell is this tomb raiding team so popular? Ah, uh, whatever. My specs aren't lacking at all. Ilya started to frown. Ho. Oh. Do you really think the specs are the issue? I heard that you, in your past life. It was at that moment. Rip. Chloe and Ciole suddenly ripped something in front of them. Yu Jeha and Ilya gasped in shock after realizing that those were their applications. Hey. Why did you rip that? The female team members were cruel. The captain in told us to rip it up if you guys keep fighting. By the way, we are in charge of the interviews. Both of them turned pale after hearing that. Egu, Captain Nim, I'm sorry. We won't fight, I promise we won't fight. Please. We'll be friendly to each other. Juhian completely ignored them. Although they acted like this, they worked very well together when they went into a tomb. The thing he needed to worry about right now bang. Hey there. What's up, Monarch of Fate? Ah. The monarch of fate who was in the tub screamed after seeing Ju Hian appear. Ju Hian started to smile. It was now time to use this bastard to trick the monopolizers around the world. Chapter, 246 The monarch of fate turned pale as soon as he saw Ju Hian. Maybe it was to be expected. How long do you plan on keeping a person imprisoned here? You just wait until I manage to contact my subordinates. They won't let you ug. Have you not considered the fact that I might kill you first? This motherfucking bastard. The monarch of fate was grinding his teeth while being kicked away by Ju Hian's foot. He was only in his early twenties. He was someone who had been treated with respect by the leaders of the world despite his young age. Nobody dared to lay their hands on him and these so-called leaders had bowed down to him, asking him to see into their future. But this bastard. Does he not have anything else to take? Ha! Huh. Should I take his underwear off too? This son of a bitch's underwear was a name brand one as well. Are these bastards not satisfied with looting tombs? Ju Hian walked closer to the monarch of fate. Oh, but you were a good boy and stayed in here while I was gone. A good boy? Fuck, how the hell could I do anything suspicious when that damn guy was here? As the monarch of fate was about to object do I just need to take care of him now? The monarch of fate gasped after seeing Ilya walk into the restroom. The monarch of fate knew Ilya very well. Holy shit, isn't he the leader of that aftermath cleanup crew? This was the first time they had met in person, but he was sure. This man was the leader praised by those people who took care of his requests quickly and efficiently. 
The monarch of fate's mind turned into a mess after seeing this unexpected individual show up. That's weird, I'm sure this guy was Quan Hyuk Su's subordinate. Why is he with Seo Ju Hian? But Ju Hian was calmly chatting with him. Yeah, modify it. Ah, take out all the futures this bastard might have seen before you do that. Ju Hian started to smile. That was right. It didn't matter to Ju Hian whether the monarch of fate lived or not. Unlike the other monopolizers, he had at least a decent idea about what would happen in the future. It was just a little better if he was alive. There was just one reason he was interested in the monarch of fate's prophecies. He said that the crow's tomb would appear when the heirlooms appear. That was something that had not happened in the past. It was no wonder he was curious. Ilya asked at that moment. Oh, should I just modify this punk's memories? I can modify his personality as well. The monarch of fate almost fainted after hearing that. What did he just say? Hey. Are you crazy? No. I'm not. Ilya put on a black leather glove and clenched the monarch of fate's head. Captain, tell me what you want. Should I just turn this punk into our lackey? The monarch of fate started to sweat bullets as he heard Ilya laugh. Why is this bastard acting like this? He's supposed to be Quan Hyuk Su's subordinate. His face lit up as if he realized something. Ah, right. He's here under Quan Hyuk Su's orders. He must be here to save him. He thought Ilya was being extremely cautious to approach him because of who they were up against. Oops, he was wrong. Flash. Ilya activated Freud's artifact and his gray eyes started to glow gold. The monarch of fate started to foam at the mouth and flail after seeing the light. Hold on, why are you doing this? Didn't you come here to rescue me? Your act is too good. Even I'm about to be fooled. Ilya looked at the shower head then sneered viciously, wondering what bullshit he was hearing right now. It's okay to use this to knock this son of a bitch out right? He needed to put him to sleep to modify his memories. Juhian clicked his tongue as Ilya was about to use this weapon. To knock Joshua out. No. His value will go down if he is damaged. Don't even hit him with a flower. TSK. Juhian called Chloe over instead. Chloe, put him to sleep. Chloe sighed before activating a surgery artifact. It looked like an oxygen mask at first glance. It seemed to be an anesthesia used in surgery. This was actually an artifact to knock someone out. Chloe pulled the monarch of fate by his hair since he tried to run away. His mind started to get groggy as she forced the oxygen mask on him. Ilya then activated Freud's artifact. An aura that was stronger than when he had used Freud's artifact on Juhian descended in the bathroom. This was not the second level memory modification he had used on Juhian. This was a much stronger memory modification. This third level was one where Ilya would invade into the person's dream. Freud believed dreams represented a disguised fulfillment of a repressed wish. Basically, Ilya was going directly into the person's subconscious and changing it as he pleased. It allowed him to change a person's personality, memory, disposition, and even their desires. It was in essence an artifact to change the monarch of fate's personality to be a well-trained dog for them. That was probably the reason. Damn it, it can't go on like this. The monarch of fate tried to grab onto the last ounce of consciousness he had remaining. I would rather die than become Seo Juhian's lap dog. As he focused on that strong sense of will clang. Kaya. Chloe. A strong power destroyed the anesthesia artifact Chloe was using. Maybe it was because its master was in danger. Or maybe his will had reached his artifact. His possession type artifact, Nostradamus's artifact, flashed and activated. To be more specific, the power of its aura was strong enough to destroy Chloe's artifact. He wasn't a monarch for nothing. The monarch of fate who got away from the anesthesia artifact started to laugh out loud. Do you understand? You are wrong if you think I would become your servant like that. It was at that moment. Pow! You, ugh. The monarch of fate foamed at the mouth as he fell backward. Juhian had punched him in the stomach. 
It felt as if his bones were being broken by a hammer. That wasn't all. Pow. Pow. Crack. Crack. Juhian ruthlessly beat the monarch of fate to a pulp. He seemed to want to turn him into a squid as there were even sounds of bones breaking. He punched the same spots over and over and really turned him into a mess. Ugh. The team members dropped their jaws in shock. Their opponent was a monarch and had a strong artifact so something like this was probably necessary to knock him out, but D, didn't he just say that the value would drop? He had just told them not to hit him even with a flower. A few moments later, Juhian threw the now squid-like monarch of fate toward Ilya. Get to work. He should sleep well now. Juhian then said he was hungry before casually walking out of the bathroom. A shocked Ilya prayed for Joshua's survival. At his current state, Joshua probably didn't even need his memories modified. He would probably be suffering from amnesia. Hitting him with the shower head would have been more humane. As for you Jeha who had been peeking into the bathroom ah, uh, I'm so glad I'm not enemies with the Captain Nim. He truly meant it. The monarch's heirlooms will appear in three different locations early morning on November 26th. Oh, so it is appearing ten days from now. That seems to be later than originally prophesized, what do you have to say about that part? What I had originally prophesized was the appearance of the precursors. The precursors will happen three times and the first precursor will be an earthquake in the Atlantic Ocean tomorrow night. One of the seven great tombs will appear there within the next ten days. You are saying that the artifacts of the seven great tombs are the keys to open the monarch's tomb. The entire world was in shock. The monarch of fate, whom they had believed was gone, had suddenly reappeared. He had appeared as a guest on a news broadcast. Mr. Monarch of Fate, you are saying you had been abducted by some unknown assailants until now? Yes, he was. The one to answer the announcer's question was surprisingly Juhian. The culprits had already escaped by the time we found the Monarch of Fate. My goodness, you are saying that the culprits tossed Mr. Joshua in the desert and ran? Things could have been terrible if you didn't find him, Mr. C.O. Juhian. I'm relieved to know that he is safe. We were finally able to escort him here today. Then, the reason you did the C.O. Stratimus broadcast until now was all for the Monarch of Fate. Yes, the Monarch of Fate was not there when I went to his house in Florida. He had disappeared and dropped the prophecy artifact along the way. Then you did the C.O. Stratimus prophecy broadcast in order to provoke the culprits. Yes ma'am. The culprits would show up on their own if they knew that I was using the Monarch of Fate's prophecy artifact. I was able to use that to my advantage in order to rescue the Monarch of Fate. That was his story. They had been scamming the whole world. It was all a plan to rescue the abducted Monarch of Fate. Yu Jeha, the former Monarch of Fraud, looked disgusted at how Juhian could say such things so nonchalantly while the monopolizers were in disbelief. However, the worldwide live broadcast continued on. Then who do you think was the culprit? The monarch of fate, who was sitting next to Juhian, said something that almost made people faint. I believe the culprits were my clients. This is the list of potential suspects. The excavation team that was on the top of this list became extremely angry. What fucking bullshit is this? How dare he say our team is the culprits? The monarch of fate had gone with a team kill. Stop the broadcast right now. Wow, how could the abductor become the person who saved the monarch of fate? You were the one who abducted him, you. The members of the Jordan excavation team that had been the most annoying to Juhian recently and even framed him for murder were grinding their teeth in anger. He's trying to frame us for this. It's not like he's getting revenge. I'm sure of it. The monarch of fate has been messed with. Either that or that's a fake. But they were unfortunately dragged out. There was proof of the abduction they had not even committed. The leader of the aftermath cleanup crew was very talented. Anyway, the monarch's heirlooms will now appear. I hereby announce that Mr. C.O. Juhian and I are happily forming a partnership to excavate them. Is that true? Yes, but we agreed to share the details of the tomb with everybody else as well. Then. 
Yes, the location of the fifteen tombs where the monarch's heirlooms will appear are and that was how the locations of the tombs were revealed to the world. Of course, many people thought that they were providing false information. I told you, that Seo Juhian controlling the monarch of fate. But what if it is true? The fact that the monarch of fate is casually contacting Pandora must mean that he's fine. In fact, they heard that the monarch of fate was planning on using Seo Juhian. That was why they were going crazy. They needed to gain the heirlooms but they couldn't tell whether the information was real or not. Anyway, the heirlooms are the priority. We can't become monarchs without them. He said there will be precursors so send people to all 15 locations even if it breaks our teams down in number. No. Seo Juhian is going to make a move anyway. Just chase Seo Juhian wherever he goes. Yu Jeha was laughing in the hotel at that moment. Now everybody will think that there are 15 monarchs tombs. But in reality, there is only one. They were pulling the wool over the world while preparing to head out for the monarch's tomb. The most advantageous time would be when the other excavation teams all left the location of the monarch tomb. Continue to spread false information and create the precursors as needed. Make them split up their forces. Julian could only sigh in response. This was the work of someone who couldn't even stand up because of Osiris's artifacts risk paralysis at one point. You truly are going to be the downfall of mankind. It had not been easy to mess with the monarch of fate's memories. Damn it. This bastard is living up to his name as a monarch and making it damn hard. Hey, look right into my eyes. Ilya had to work his ass off to bother the monarch of fate over and over with devils to achieve this result. That was how the bruise on the monarch of fate's face had appeared as well, but Juhian casually pushed the blame onto these true culprits. All they had left to do was to stealthily get out of New York without people knowing. We will now grab all of the heirlooms for ourselves. And if he could determine who the monarchs were, how would the tables turn? There were two people envious of the fact that the two beautiful female members were concerned about Juhian. Ah, I'm so damn jealous of that bastard captain. I know, right? They were Ujeha and Ilya. Ujeha looked toward Ilya with a serious gaze. Hey! Should we steal the harem artifact without him knowing about it? Get lost, you won't be popular even if you use that. You retard! Yu Jeha grabbed Ilya by the collar after hearing that. Hey! I am pretty popular too. What the hell? I'm popular. You sure are good at bluffing. They then started to get into a fight again. Juhian started to frown once their ruckus started to get louder. Hey, quiet down. Both of you, stop fighting. Stop fighting. The rope slithered over to stop the two of them but the fight had gotten worse where they were channeling their affinity and fit against each other. Hey. You're really going to get fired like this. Pft, you're the one who is going to get fired. Do you know how hard I work? Bullshit, you're going to be fired. Bobo bo bo the impact sent the rope flying and it crashed into the wall while Juhian's cell phone broke as well. That wasn't all. All of the artifacts in the restoration room were damaged as well. As a result these sons of bitches. Some terrible screams echoed through the hotel. The two fighting beagles were kicked out of the hotel. Juhian had only one thing to say to them. Both of you are fired. Yu Jeha and Ilya both looked as if they had been wronged. Even if they had slightly done something wrong, how could he fire them like this? Damn it, it's all your fault. No, it's your fault. As you Jeha and Ilya were fighting outside I don't think you'll ever be allowed back in if you continue to fight outside. Dan, who was on his way to pick up his daughter, smiled as he walked toward them. He was treating them as if they had just met because he still had not gotten his memories back. Well, I guess Mr. Juhian was a bit harsh. How could he fire you for this? Both Ilya and Ujeha started to grumble. Right? The Captain Nim's personality is totally trash. We're very precious commodities. Do you know how hard we worked? How can he do this because we broke a couple artifacts? He even gave Dan a slave contract. We feel your pain. Dan. Dan started to laugh. 
Excuse me. A slave contract. I didn't sign anything like that. Ha. Huh. You signed an employment contract too. That wasn't an employment contract. It was for a house. Mr. Ju Hien got me a house to enjoy the fresh air with my daughter now that everything is resolved. The two of them gasped after hearing that. Wait, then you're not joining our team. No wait, that Dan captain didn't drag Dan back in. Ah uh, I said that I would help, but Mr. Ju Hien said to just live happily with my daughter without getting involved with these things. Ho. Oh. But I will rush over if anything happens. I owe him everything. They blankly said goodbye to Dan who said bye and started to walk away. They had never expected their captain to do such a thing. Well, this might be for the better. Ah, uh, does that mean we need to recruit a new hunter? Ah, uh, I don't want anybody other than Dan. But at that moment Ilya. Ilya became anxious after hearing a familiar voice. A voice echoed in his mind as if it was coming through telepathy. Most importantly, this voice was Quan Hyuk Su. I thought this bastard fell to the afterlife but he's still alive. Ilya. I'll forgive you. So do as I say. He then continued to speak. Take care of that man named Dan and his daughter. This bastard. Chapter, 247. Ilya became anxious. He had to question his hearing for a moment. He needed to check whether he heard wrong. But he was sure. This was definitely that lunatic, Quan Hyuk Su's voice. Ilya. Are you listening to me? Ilya clicked his tongue. Yes sir. I can hear you. The telepathy was understandable. Quan Hyuk Su had placed an artifact in all of his groom's subordinates' heads. It was a collar of sorts. It was a small microchip that could be used to deliver messages from him to his subordinates. It was a telepathy walkie-talkie of sorts. Fuck, I forgot to ask to have it removed. This was something that either Quan Hyuk Su could retrieve or the person could have taken out with a surgery artifact. He had not paid much attention to it because he thought Quan Hyuk Su was dead. It didn't matter. It was annoying to have an old man's voice in his head but it didn't cause any other issues. But there was something he could not understand at all. Why? Where are you right now sir? Are you still alive? That was right. Quan Hyuk Su had been dragged into the afterlife by Ju Hien. Quan Hyuk Su started to laugh. I am alive for now. But I am the only one who survived. It sounded as if the assassins and the artifacts he took with him were all dead. That makes sense. The afterlife that a divine grade artifact dragged them into is probably no joke. But how the fuck is this son of a bitch still alive? Quan Hyuk Su seemed to realize something and said something else. You don't need to worry about me, Ilya. I'm not worried about you. I'm not even curious. Ilya started to frown. It seemed that there was a reason Quan Hyuk Su was at the four emperors level. I guess that means he won't die easily even if he is sent to the afterlife. But it wasn't completely bad. Why? Ilya. I am unable to get out of here right now. I need you to do some things for me. In conclusion, he was alive but could not get out of the afterlife. Otherwise, he would have burst out of there right away instead of asking Ilya to do things for him. What Quan Hyuk Su said next was proof of it. I know that you are with Seo Ju Hien. There should be a bastard named Dan by his side. Of course there is. He was the Azura whom even the members of their tomb raiding team called the descendant of a ghost. But why was he suddenly mentioning Dan? Quan Hyuk Su continued to speak, as if to respond to that question. I heard something from the monarch of fate. He said that guy was someone who would become Seo Ju Hien's ally. But that man is the only one of the team members who can't use artifacts yet. Do you understand what I mean? Ilya started to frown. Is he telling me to catch the weakest rabbit first? He was being told to take down the people around Seo Juhian in order to get to Juhian. He was being told to aim for Dan since nothing was easier than taking down someone who could not use artifacts. However is this old man crazy? You Jeha. Is there a law that says Ilya can't go eat? Right? Captain Nim. You're right. 
see, even the Captain Nim is saying it is nonsense. That bastard Ilya is very suspicious. E, excuse me. How come? Juhian answered their questions with a serious expression. Ilya would answer any questions from this idiot with a shut up, get lost, retard, dumbass, or something of the sort. The women were shocked. How bad must their relationship be for those words to be the norm? Yu Jeha, who had been frowning, continued to speak after seeing that Juhian agreed with him. Plus, the way he looked at Dan was quite weird. He then started to frown again. Maybe Ilya was still connected to the monopolizer somehow. Maybe that son of a bitch maybe he is just pretending to be on our side. We really need to leave him behind when we go to get the heirlooms tomorrow. Siole started to laugh at that statement. Ah, uh, come on. Just an act. There's no way. It was at that moment. Bang. The building they were in started to shake violently. The building caught on fire and the staff and actors inside the building started to run out screaming. Kaya. It's a terrorist attack. A terrorist attack. A suspicious man is calling out monsters. The devil has descended. The team members were all flustered. A terrorist attack. And they're saying the person is summoning monsters. Ilya was one of the few peoples who could summon devils and cause this much damage. And today, in this broadcast station there was no way that Ilya would not know that Juhian was planning on using the monarch of fate for his scam again here today. In that case, is it possible, Captain Nim? Do you think Ilya? Yu Jeha shouted after hearing that. Yeah. I told you that son of a bitch betrayed us. I told you he's suspicious. It happened at that moment. What do you mean I'm suspicious? You retard. Ugh. Somebody kicked Yu Jeha and sent him flying. Ilya was the one who kicked him. He quickly flew over on a devil and started to swear. You motherfucker, I'm going to kill you if you keep spewing bullshit. Yu Jeha rubbed his cheek as if he felt wrong as he looked at Ilya. Hey, are you crazy? What the hell are you doing? Ilya, who had kicked Jeha because he had felt wronged, was huffing. Hey, you really fuck. Ilya, who appeared in front of Juhian and the others, was breathing heavily. This useless son of a bitch, he really. Ilya stepped on Yu Jeha saying he was speaking nonsense. The other team members' minds were chaotic messes as they watched and Juhian looked at him for a bit before asking him a question. Ilya. Yes sir. Jeha said that you were suspicious. Did you secretly communicate with them? Ilya seemed oddly anxious after hearing that. It was rare to see his usual poker face crumble like this. There wasn't a big change in his expression but he was definitely anxious. It's a misunderstanding. Captain. Maybe he was scared that Juhian would fire him or get rid of him. I never had any weird thoughts in my mind. I promise. Yu Jeha shouted while still under Ilya's foot. Then what is this mess right now? You're the only one who can summon monsters like this. I also heard you earlier. You said you will do as someone said. Are you sure you didn't telepathically chat with those bastards? Shut the hell up. There are more members to the Aftermath cleanup crew other than me. And what I said earlier. Captain Nim, don't be fooled. Who would believe Th Ugg? Juhian stomped on Yu Jeha this time. Shu. I understand so shut up for a moment. Juhian looked toward Ilya with a cold gaze. Explain what happened. Ilya started to shout with urgency. Quan Hyuk Su, that old bastard contacted me. The team members were shocked to hear that. That old man is still alive. I thought he was dragged down to the afterlife. How is he still alive? Juhian shockingly responded back calmly. I already knew that. Osiris was whining to me. He said that all of his subordinates are being butchered. He asked me to hurry up and let that old bastard out. Osiris had complained about the old man showing off his strength in the afterlife. Well, I still plan on keeping him in there for a little longer. Julian felt frustrated hearing Juhian laugh. This isn't the time to laugh. The fact that he contacted Ilya means that he still thinks Ilya is his subordinate. 
if he tries to use Ilya to find a way out of the afterlife. Juhian shrugged his shoulders in response. I don't think he can use Ilya anymore. What? Around the same time this is driving me crazy. Quan Hyuk Su was breathing heavily in the afterlife. All he saw when he looked around were mummies and monsters. The guards of the afterlife serving Osiris had all been murdered by him. It was probably thanks to the artifact he had on him. No matter what anybody said, he was not just a monarch, he was one of the four emperors. Sadly, none of that mattered. My goodness, how the heck am I supposed to get out of here? But he wasn't too worried. Ilya should be by Seo Juhian's side. He needed Juhian to let him out using Osiris's artifact or for someone to destroy Osiris's artifact in order to get out. That meant that he had a way out if Ilya managed to take down Juhian. He found it weird that Ilya was helping Seo Juhian, but it didn't matter. That bastard is a coward. That bastard could never even think about betraying him. Nobody else could fix that artifact's risk, his trauma, other than him. He has no choice but to return to me. He started to laugh triumphantly. Although he was in the afterlife, he still had many subordinates on earth. Ilya will soon find a way for me to get out of here. Human, I found you. Shu. A devil appeared in front of Quan Hyuk Su. Quan Hyuk Su was very happy to see this devil. How could he not when he knew this was the devil Ilya always used for his errands? It must have snuck by Osiris to get here. The devil was biting on an envelope. His name was written on the envelope. But there was something weird. This isn't Ilya's handwriting. He thought about it for a moment before deciding it wasn't too weird. He probably had someone else write it for him in order to avoid having Seo Juhian find out. Ilya must have found a way to get him out as they discussed. As expected of Ilya. You figured it out so quickly. He opened the envelope full of anticipation. Let's see what he wrote. He started to frown as soon as he read the letter. Eat shit. Juhian was the one who sent it to him. At the same time Julian sighed after hearing that Juhian had been nice enough to send a letter to Quan Hyuk Su. When the hell did this punk do something like that? Ilya put a hand to his forehead thinking that he was screwed. He didn't have any intentions of betraying Juhian, but Juhian had completely sealed any potential of that happening. The trauma risk was okay because he could deal with it thanks to the experience he remembered from his previous life. Juhian started to laugh. How dare he try to steal my team members. Only I can put my team members to work. Julian started to feel tired. Ah, whatever. Ilya. What did that chairman tell you to do? Ilya quickly realized his mistake. And he told me to get rid of Dan and his daughter. W, what? Silence filled the room before everybody started to laugh. Ujeha was laughing so hard that he thought he might die. Huh, that's crazy. You. He wanted you to kill Dan. Good luck, what the hell is he asking a skinny eunuch priest to do? How cruel of him. You'd probably die in an instant. I'd pay to watch you try to hunt a close-range dealer in close combat. Ilya started to shake. I'm going to secretly kill this son of a bitch without the captain knowing. Anyway, what about Dan? I thought he would be here since he wasn't at home. Ah. Dan should be at work right now. He said some extremely high-quality meat was arriving today so he went to pick it up. Ilya quickly turned around. That old bastard's other subordinates will be aiming for him. Dan and his daughter might be in danger. He was telling them that they needed to hurry. But Juhian was just laughing for some reason. You think they are in danger? Juhian wondered which side was really in danger. Chapter, 248 Bang Bang In Manhattan, New York the mysterious terrorist attacks in New York where the major broadcast stations were gathered were continuing to happen. Breaking news. There was a suspicious explosion at 11 a.m. at the ABC station mysterious monsters were appearing all over the building bang. Bang. Ah. There was chaos all around Manhattan. Buildings were being destroyed and things like large birds or lions were appearing all around them. Is it another terrorist incident? 
people were disgusted. Those damn terrorist bastards. They're going crazy after getting their hands on some artifacts. That was right. People believed that this was the work of terrorists. It was because there were some terrorist organizations that had been quite active lately. There were three extremely famous terrorist organizations. One of them had been quite strong for a while, the Middle East IS-related group with the Monarch of Evangelism at the center. The other was the group that looked like an NGO but was actually the anti-artifact group NOAA. They were the hunters who wanted to get rid of artifacts and artifact users to return the world to how it used to be. The Monarch of Healing was with them and Chloe had been a part of this supposed anti-terrorist group in the past as well. The third was a group that was growing at a scary pace. People were thinking that this third terrorist organization was responsible for all of these attacks. The truth was that it was act they couldn't remember anything once the women who were throwing themselves on them started to moan. The women's soft white hands started to slowly run up their legs and then they completely lost it. Fuck. They quickly stripped naked and jumped the women. Kaya. But it only lasted for a moment. Ache. Ah. What the? They started to scream once the women's faces started to melt away. The liquid dripping from the melted skin melted the men's skin as if it was hydrochloric acid. Ah. My arm, my arm. The amorous Dodgy started to laugh seductively as she watched. Stupid human bastards. We only give ourselves to our master. She then called someone over as if she was calling a puppy. Come here boy. I took care of things here. Go take pictures of those humans going wild in the hallway. Ho. Yu Jaha gasped while holding a camera. Why the hell did he have to take something like this again? Yu Jaha sobbed while taking pictures of the evacuating actresses and the naked terrorists chasing after them. They should be able to have some fun if they sent this to the press and informed them these were Quan Hyuk Su subordinates. Click click. That wasn't all. Daji wasn't Ju Hian's only artifact having fun in the station. Hooray. Kill all humans. You. Take it off. Take it all off. The Silver Axe was running around chasing after only the female terrorists while Nero was creating art with flames to annoy the humans. There were also the pharaoh artifacts that considered humans to be slaves and even the wealth extracting worm. All sorts of artifacts were causing commotion throughout the building. The inside had long since turned into a terrible dungeon with monsters that enjoyed torturing humans. Although all of them could only whimper in front of Ju Hian, they were all actually amazing artifacts. That was why forget saving him, the terrorists couldn't even get close to the monarch of fate. And after a while ugh. Quan Hyuk Su's subordinates were dragged over to Ju Hian. They were whipped by the rope on their way here and started to grind their teeth once they saw Ju Hian. Co Ju Hian, you son of a bitch. Yu Jaha smiled brightly as he looked at them. Welcome, we were lacking some helpers since all of the staff evacuated, so this is perfect. They couldn't believe it. Hey, do you really think you guys will be okay after this? There were some people from the assault team and some from the aftermath cleanup crew. The assault team only had buff dudes but the aftermath cleanup crew had a lot of people who looked like regular office workers. They started to smile while looking at Ju Hian's group. It doesn't matter what you guys do. Although they were captured, they had something they were relying on to save them. It was Ilya. Although they haven't heard anything from him, the fact that they couldn't contact Ilya was proof that he was doing his part of the plan. Captain Ilya should be somewhere in the station after receiving orders from the Chairman Nim as well. You got that? Ilya Nim will soon. It was at that moment. I will what? Their faces lit up after hearing a sudden voice. Why? It was because Ilya appeared in front of them. Ilya. You. Captain. They were extremely happy to see him appear. Captain, you were already here. They looked as if they were soldiers who had met a hero in battle. How could they not feel this way? Ilya is the strongest of all of the elites. They were all A or S grade artifact users as well, but Ilya was a monarch. He was much more reliable. We can turn the tide now. They bowed their heads to Ilya. I'm sorry sir. 
we had to make the first move because we couldn't contact you. They then looked toward Seo Juhian and started to smile. Captain Nim's devil can capture Seo Juhian. We will then quickly take care of things here and bolt. They exchanged glances and started to throw their bodies. We will create an opening for Ilya. They struggled but managed to surround Juhian. They then tried to push him down. Captain Ilya. Now. Juhian looked toward them wondering what the hell they were doing as they continued to shout toward Ilya with urgency. Please take care of this bastard while we have him down. Captain, hurry. Fulfill the Chairman Nim's orders. Kill these bastards. Turn them into terrorists. Hey retards, what the hell are you doing? Ilya said something shocking with his arms crossed. They became flustered. I, Ilya. I guess our dumbass are slow to receive the news. They felt as if their minds had been blown. You, um. Captain Ilya. Ilya clutched his stomach and laughed for a bit before putting on a bright smile. Well, don't worry. You won't die. They wanted to ask what he was talking about. They then felt an ominous aura and turned their heads. They looked up at Juhian they were holding down and his gaze hey. Get the hell off of me. Flashed like the eyes of the devil. While that was going on eat shit. Quan Hyuk Su was shaking after receiving Ilya's letter in the afterlife. This is definitely from CO Juhian. He had no proof that Juhian had sent this letter. However, he was thinking that only Osiris's master could send a letter like this to the afterlife. But it was Ilya's devil that had brought this letter over. Did Juhian take away his devil artifact? Or did that bastard really end up jumping ship to work for Seo Juhian? As he was about to send a telepathic message to figure out what was going on Chairman Nim. Something bad has happened. One of the connected subordinates quickly started to speak. He was part of the aftermath cleanup crew that was sent to take down the station. Captain Ilya betrayed us. He's with Seo Juhian now. This bastard. Quan Hyuk Su laughed in disbelief. How dare he forget his master who raised him and bare his fangs at me. Well, it's fine for now. He would punish Ilya and thoroughly retrain him once he got out. Ilya wasn't the only ace up his sleeve. There were many hidden subordinates Quan Hyuk Su could use. If that's how you want to play it, I will personally hunt the weakest rabbit first. Can you hear me? His direct attack on Seo Juhian and his team had started. Yes, Chairman Nim. I will do as you ordered. There was a group of people observing something from an alley. They were Chairman Quan Hyuk Su's personal subordinates, similar to how Ilya had been. They were starting to make a move after receiving telepathic communication from an angry Quan Hyuk Su. We hired some gangs to come with us as well. We will do as you ordered, sir. They were looking at a butcher shop. It was where Dan was with his daughter. Can we really proceed as the chairman Nim ordered? We heard he was one of Seo Juhian's team members. That bastard doesn't know how to use artifacts. He then gave the gangs a signal. It was because they knew that they would be punished under Pandora's laws if they used artifacts against a civilian. That was why they had hired the gangs. The gangs that had received a ton of money entered into the alley. They were heading for Dan's butcher shop. Dan's daughter was inside the shop. Welco. Sue warmly welcomed them but the scary looking men pulling out knives turned her completely pale. K, Kia. Daddy. They didn't care and yanked little Sue from the counter. Oh, cute little lady. Stay with mister for a moment, okay? The customers gasped and quickly ran away. Kaya. Why is a gang over here? Report them. They didn't seem to care and started to kick some things around before approaching the young employee. Who told you that you can run a business here? Huh? Did you pay for our protection? P, please stop. Call your boss. Where the hell is your boss? What is going on? Dan, who had been butchering a pig that he had just received farther in the shop, rushed out. The gang members started to speak once he showed up, as if they had been waiting for him. Oh, so you're the boss. They slowly walked over and pointed an artifact dagger at Dan. 
Hey rabbit. Come with us while we are asking nicely. There's someone waiting. But at that moment did these morons go crazy? What? Thud. The gang member was sent flying after being punched by Dan's sturdy fist. He even dropped the artifact dagger. They gasped and looked toward Dan. Hey. Are you crazy? T, that son of a bitch. The others activated their artifacts and started to shout. Fuck him up. However, at that moment Dan, who had picked the dagger up from the ground, started to speak in anger. Hey. Have you ever heard the sound of a pig being slaughtered? The eyes of the slaughterer were extremely scary. Chapter, 249 You guys. Have you ever heard the sound of a pig being slaughtered? The eyes of the slaughterer were extremely scary. This was clearly a warning. However, his words only made the gangsters inside the shop start to sneer at him. I was wondering what this bastard was going to say after sounding so serious. Wow, I'm so scared. This was an obvious reaction. They were extremely experienced brawlers. In comparison, this Asian bastard was just a butcher shop owner who sold meat. The environment we live in is different, you son of a bitch. Dan just sighed as if he was tired or as if he didn't want to cause a ruckus. Ju Hien had prepared this shop for him. He was extremely angry because these bastards destroyed the display counter, scared his powerless employee and threw all of the meat on display to the ground so that they couldn't be used anymore. But none of that mattered. The only thing that mattered to him right now was the safety of his captured daughter. All right, let the girl go. Then I will pretend that none of this happened. They continued to sneer at him. Does that idiot not understand the current situation? You're acting all tough but are you an idiot? You don't know who we are, do you? Ah, whatever, youngest, go fuck him up. Destroy the shop too. Yes sir. A thug then stabbed a knife in Dan's body. Puk. Dan curled forward and the gangsters started to laugh out loud. Ha. Huh. So who told you to act so tough? Put an end to it. Finish it properly. Let that bastard squeal like a pig like he mentioned. They heard a squeal as if to respond to that. Squeal. The gangsters started to laugh even harder, thinking Dan was actually squealing. Hey hey, youngest, don't overdo it. How can you really make him squeal like huh? They soon gasped. Dan was not the one who had squealed. Why, youngest? They turned around and saw that it was their youngest and not Dan who was on the ground. The man was clutching his stomach as he rolled around on the floor. Ow. It hurts so much. I'm going to die. They then heard a calm voice respond. That's weird. It shouldn't hurt that much since you're so fat. The gangsters gasped in shock. They couldn't believe it. Dan was the one speaking calmly right now. W, what the hell who the fuck is this son of a bitch? He doesn't even look pale. I saw the youngest stab him with the artifact knife. What the hell? How the hell are you fine? Dan wiped the blood dripping out of his stomach area and continued to speak. Uh even if you ask me why I am fine, I don't know anything about artifacts, so. W, what? It might have hurt more if you used a regular knife. I, is he crazy? Dan started to walk forward to save his young daughter. Sue A, just wait a little bit, okay? He was speaking calmly but Dan's eyes were quite tense as he looked at his daughter. But the enemies would not just sit still either. Look at him thinking he's the shit because we went easy on him. They were so angry that they started to shout. Hey! Stab his daughter! Why don't you see how it feels? They then jerked Sue toward them. D, Daddy. B, Boss. Sue A. Sparks started to fly out of Dan's eyes. Something shocking happened at that moment. Squeal. Squeal. There were numerous sounds of pigs getting slaughtered in the butcher shop. Even they didn't know what had just happened. What they did know for sure was that Dan suddenly disappeared and that they started to hear screams all around them. Puk. Puk. The five men who had barged into the butcher shop all fell to the ground clutching their stomachs. 
Dan had ripped their flesh off in an instant the moment they tried to harm his daughter. He had swiftly pulled the artifact knife out of the thug on the ground in front of him to do that. They were rolling on the ground in pain after having their flesh cut off. Ow, fuck. Dan then said something toward them. I guess I should tell Mr. Juhian that I'm bringing pork belly instead of tenderloin today. This little punk. However, they could not understand this situation at all. What the hell is going on? He was certain of it. That bastard used our artifact. That was what made it weird. Why? What the hell? I thought they said that this son of a bitch couldn't use artifacts. It's completely different from what they told us. That's right. This was clearly different from what they had been told. They had triumphantly barged in here after hearing that he was a civilian. But what the hell was going on? Quan Hyuk Su's subordinates who were observing the butcher shop were in shock. That man used an artifact. This was unbelievable. The fact that he showed ghost-like abilities made sense since he used a possession-type artifact. Most weapon-shaped artifacts were possession types. However we were told he was a regular butcher. They had finished investigating Dan a long time ago. They knew that Dan had nothing to do with artifacts. How the hell did he use an artifact? Is he the type that has a high fit with knife artifacts? He is a butcher after all. What? You think it is because he is good with a knife? They sneered even as they said that. Hey, if that made his fit really high, all experts in the world would be elite artifact users. Yes, it is just a coincidence. I guess you're right. The knife artifact he just used was a C-grade artifact. That was right. Most civilians could use up to C-grade general-grade artifacts if they read a manual. A healthy civilian would have the dominance will and affinity sociability to handle a C-grade artifact. Fuck, Seo Juhian must have taught him the basics. TSK, I could see that bastard doing that. It's fine, he's just a C-grade artifact user. Did he drink a ton of milk growing up? Is that why his bones are so strong that artifacts don't work on him? Ah, that must be why Seo Juhian rescued this bastard. Now I get it. He let him out of the penitentiary because he's a talent. They started to swear as they headed toward the butcher shop. Ah fuck, whatever, I guess we have to do it. Yeah. We will use this bastard to take down Seo Juhian. We'll grab this bastard for the chairman name in the process. The other monarch candidates are watching what we do as well. The other monopolizers were indeed keeping their eyes on what was going on. Their fate as monarchs laid in these people's hands and whether they could take down Juhian and get the monarch of fate back. In addition to the fact that Juhian abducted the monarch of fate, they also hated the thought of Juhian becoming a proper monarch. Seo Juhian is the bastard who destroyed the market. That was right. Juhian was selling healing artifacts and defense-type artifacts to civilians for cheap. To be more specific, his company, Grave Company, was processing artifacts and mass-producing medicine and self-defense weapons to sell to the public. It was leading to a decrease in people suffering from tomb syndrome and being harmed by artifacts. This made the monopolizers extremely angry. Our source of money. He must be crazy. We can monopolize those necessary artifacts and sell them in the future with extremely marked up prices. Why the hell is he handing out those precious healing artifacts and defense-type artifacts to civilians? Damn. That bastard gave away a way for us to grab control of the world. It was something like that. There was more. They had no other choice and tried to buy those processed goods from Juhian but he said he wouldn't sell it to them. He told the monopolizers to go find some on their own since they had the means to do so. How could they not get angry? They ended up deciding that they needed to get rid of Juhian and his company in order to monopolize the important artifacts and increase their influence. Although it was unlikely, what would happen if that bastard really did loot all of the heirlooms? That would be the worst. Their first step to taking care of Seo Juhian was through Dan and his daughter. We will start with him and take down all of the people around him. As Quan Hyuk Su's subordinates were angrily heading toward the butcher shop daddy. Su Wei had safely returned to Dan. She jumped into Dan's arms and Dan was urgently looking to see if she had been hurt at all. 
A, are you hurt? He looked anxious that she might have even the smallest of injuries on her. He was shaking so much that it was hard to tell that this was the same manly man who butchered meat all day. Sue rubbed her cheeks against her dad's chest saying she was okay. Dan finally sighed in relief before tightly hugging his daughter. I'm so relieved, so so relieved. Daddy, I'm okay, so don't W. Like hell she's okay. The daughter who had been consoling her dad suddenly fainted. Dan jumped in shock. Sue, Sue. Sue. He started to shake his unconscious daughter. Unfortunately, Sue showed no signs of waking up. Quan Hyuk Su's subordinates all walked into the butcher shop. These people in slim fit suits were the aftermath cleanup crew. They were shaking a diffuser like bottle. Don't worry about the kid. I just put her to sleep for a bit. I don't want to do anything that'll get us in trouble with Pandora. They were telling the truth. Sue was mumbling about wanting to eat cake. Sue is okay but one of the men took something out of his pocket. It was unexpectedly an airplane ticket. Let me give you a warning. You seem to be thinking of Seo Juhian as your benefactor. That bastard is not a good person. He's on Interpol's wanted list. I have proof. That bastard is trying to use you. He's probably trying to make you into a hunter M, basically, he's trying to turn you into a meat shield. He wants to use your special body that can't be harmed by artifacts. So please leave leave and receive Pandora's protection. Your ability will be even more helpful to Pandora. He then took a bag of money out of a backpack. You won't need to worry about living expenses either. Dan tried to pull the knife he used to take down the gangsters out of one of their bodies. But they would not just sit back and let him do that. Ahem. They quickly took the artifact knife away and sneered at him. I understand you got some confidence after taking down some C-grade artifact users, but it's useless against us. We're all wearing A-grade defense-type artifacts. The suits they were wearing seemed to be the defense-type artifacts. Of course, they were enhanced manufactured goods and not actual artifacts, so the durability was low. But it should be able to withstand a C-grade artifact. Please accept our offer if you understand. Don't be fooled by Seo Juhian and used by him. That's right. We are A and S grade artifact users. Don't think that we are the same as these gangsters. We won't be taken down by a C grade artifact user like you. Something weird happened. Ha. Dan sighed at them before heading into the back of the shop. Hey. Are you ignoring us? He handed the sleeping Sue over to the employee before coming out with something. B, boss. What he brought out was a butcher knife and a whetstone for sharpening knives. They were what he had used to chop up the meat earlier in the morning. He brought it out and started to sharpen it like a pro. Quan Hyuk Su's subordinates became confused. Hey! What the hell are you doing? We're not here to buy meat. Sharpen that later. Hurry up and accept our offer. Someone else urgently shouted at that moment. Hey. That's not it. Take a closer look at that. What? Shoo, 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 shoo. That was right. The issue wasn't the fact that he was sharpening a knife. The important part was the identity of the knife he was sharpening. Wait a minute, that. It was an artifact. Furthermore. Hey, hold on. That feels like it is stronger than an A-grade artifact. Is that an S-grade artifact? They were certain of it. All of Quan Hyuk Su's subordinates were talented individuals so they were able to instantly figure out that this was an S-grade artifact. Dan was sharpening it and channeling a large amount of fit into it. They became desperate after realizing this fact. What the hell is going on? How the fuck can this bastard handle an S-grade artifact? A C-grade artifact was understandable since civilians could use them after reading a manual. However, B-grade artifacts and higher required time to get used to the artifact in addition to dominance and affinity. A-grade treasure-grade artifacts required quite a lot of effort and time to use them properly. How could a civilian with no training use an S-grade artifact? Fuck, where the hell did he get such a precious item? Shit, that's not important right now. 
he's about to activate it. They instantly started to move. Fuck, hurry up and use the memory modification artifact. TSK, I didn't want to use the memory modification, but... Unfortunately, forget using the memory modification artifact ha, huh? I didn't want to do this. Ha, ha, ha. But these crazy bastards want me to betray the captain. Dan had a vicious smile on his face as he activated the Sarabi artifact that Juhian had gifted him. 1. Chapter, 250. Damn it, what the hell is going on? Quan Hyuk Su's aftermath cleanup crew members truly couldn't help but swear. It was because of the Sarabi who had descended in front of their eyes. Ahem. Esteemed customers, you really should stop running away like that. They foamed at the mouth as they watched his fluid movements. What the hell, nobody told me about this. That wasn't all. They had been transported to a barren wasteland the moment he activated a suspicious S-grade artifact. Dan's attacks had started the moment they landed there. You, ugh. Dan leisurely chased after them. He was moving as leisurely as a warrior wandering through a reed field. Of course, he looked more like a butcher than a warrior. Dan raised the knife with the chaotic aura up above him. H. Huff. He's coming. Run away. Ah. He did not take their lives. He only destroyed their artifacts and harmed them just enough so that they could not run away. That was what made him scarier. Why? It was because they realized something after looking at Dan's gaze. This is enough to prevent you guys from running away. That was what his gaze was saying. That was right. This bastard had no plans on using his full strength to capture them. There was no need to use your full strength to catch some small fries. But they might really die if they tried something because he seemed to be going easy on them. They plopped down in fear and started to shake. W, we wouldn't have come on our own if we knew it would be like this. He's totally a hunter. He was an expert hunter at that. That was why this was too weird. Even if the artifact he was using was a possession-type artifact, this was not right. Giving the same gun to a child or to a trained soldier would have very drastic differences. Similarly, giving the same possession-type artifact to a civilian should be different from an expert hunter using it. Civilians usually just tried to hack and slash, leading to a lot of missed hits and opening to exploit. Hunters were a different story. They couldn't help but have this thought because of the current situation. Is that son of a bitch a hunter? Are you crazy? We would have heard about it if there was a hunter like this. D. Did he already receive Seo Juhian's lectures or something? They foamed at the mouth once again. Are you crazy? Seo Juhian has known this guy for less than a month. Shit, if he could do this in a month, I'm quitting right now and going over to Seo Juhian. I'm going to push Seo Juhian to start a lecturing business. I'm going to turn him into a star lecturer. Damn it, that's not the important thing right now. They quickly turned pale after seeing that Dan had moved closer. Hurry up and call for reinforcements to take down this bastard. Yeah. Contact the team that went to the station. They should be able to help us. Unfortunately, they would not be able to help. Ugh. Ugh. The situation at the station was not much different. They were being completely destroyed right now. The only difference between the two groups was who was doing the beating. You, ah. Uh. They were being ruthlessly beaten to a pulp by Ju Hian. They had originally thought Ju Hian wouldn't be that strong because he wasn't a hunter, but well ugh, groan. They felt as if they were being beaten up by a professional hunter. Thud. Thud. Crack. A swift kick would hit their faces, a sharp punch would hit them in the stomach, they were about to go crazy from all these hits. Fuck, fuck. Both the aftermath cleanup crew and the assault team were groaning in pain right now. However Captain, it looks like these fuckers went to the butcher shop as well. Their so-called captain snitched on them. This crazy bastard. They exploded with anger. You're the most traitorous bastard under the heavens. Shut the hell up. Otherwise, I'm going to rip you to shreds. They started to shake after seeing the bright smile on Ilya's face. Who was the first to betray me? 
E, excuse me. I know that you guys put something in my food every so often. I'm sure it was some kind of drug to make my risk worse. They became anxious after hearing that. How did he? Well, this was a truth that Ilya only remembered after getting his memories back. Although he had figured out who was responsible for making his condition worse in his past life, it would still have been many years later in this world. He only learned of it when it was to the point that there was no way of fixing it. Anyway, weren't you guys the first to betray me? W, we didn't want to put the drug but the chairman Nimag. Ilya smiled brightly again. I'm already going easy on you guys since you guys were my subordinates. He then said something so cruel that they wondered if he really was going easy on them. Captain, I offer them as tribute. They are shitty people but I can guarantee this. They are talented bastards. There's a lot of things you can suck out of them. Finally some good news. The captive started to shake in fear after hearing Juhian laugh. They continued to shake as they started to beg to Ilya for forgiveness. Please. Please. Captain Ilya, can you be the one to get rid of us? We will quietly retreat from here. We won't bother you esteemed sirs ever again. Please. They instinctively knew something. They knew that being taken out by Ilya would be more humane. It was at that moment. Captain Nim, is it okay to be doing this? If those bastards really went to capture Dan. Juhian flinched and the enemies who had been in dire straits started to smile. Yeah. You shouldn't be wasting your time like this. I'm sure he's spurting blood like a fountain right now. Of course, Juhian wondered who would be the one spurting like a fountain right now. The team members became quiet instantly. Captain Nim. I will head over there first. Sue is there as well. The enemy started to smile as if they had Juhian's group right where they wanted him. We will negotiate for you. What? Don't do this if you don't want to see that bastard die. Yeah. We will call them and tell them to stop. They were shocked to see Juhian start to laugh. Do whatever you want. Captain Nim. Well, I don't know if they will pick up your call though. W, what did he say? Br. Oh, even a tiger will show up if you call its name. Juhian seemed happy as he picked up the phone. Up until the moment Juhian received that call Julian, who had gone over to Dan's butcher shop, was in disbelief. W, what the hell happened? Julian was questioning what he was seeing right now. It was fine that Juhian told him to head over just in case something happened to Dan. He knew something had happened once he got here because he heard people gathered outside talking. He heard things like some gangsters showed up, someone was stabbed he heard all sorts of things. He started to rush after hearing terrible things but what? The gangsters were all unconscious and the aftermath cleanup crew had disappeared. Julian realized things might be bad and tried to quickly find them but an S-grade artifact. Dan is using an S-grade artifact. It was an artifact Julian had never seen before. But that was not even the most shocking. Julian realized that Dan had used the artifact to create a separate dimension and used Koming's artifact to find an opening to get inside. Julian clearly saw it on that barren wasteland. He saw Dan's godly movements with the knife. He couldn't help but gasp in shock. It's pretty close to Dan in his prime. What the hell was going on right now? Returning to the present CEO Juhian. What the hell is going on? Julian, who went to find Dan, was shouting on the phone. I wasn't told about this. Whatever, is Sue A okay? Ow. She's fine, they're all okay. Dan used a knife artifact and took care of them with little shanks. But you. Oh, Dan took care of all of them. As expected of the boss of a butcher shop. He's very good with the knife. Okay then, put Dan on the phone. Hey. Dan seemed to have magnificently taken care of all of the enemies. Of course, the captives on Juhian's side were fainting or in complete states of shock that they could not do anything. Defeated by the butcher shop owner? Did they lose after going to capture that bastard? Those idiots. Their minds turned into chaotic messes. How the hell could they be defeated by a civilian? 
Ju Hian didn't care about them as he calmly apologized to the person on the phone. Ah, uh, yeah. Is that you, Dan? I already heard from Kong Ming but he said you took care of all of them. Sorry the small fries went and bothered you over there. The captives had even more of a metal breakdown after hearing that. It was now confirmed that their teammates had all been taken out. Anyway, I'm really so. Please don't worry. There is no need to apologize. I think I can change the interior of the shop thanks to them. Ju Hian started to laugh out loud. I guess that makes sense since Kong Ming is there with you. You don't know this but he's very good at suing people for things like that. Make sure to have him make them pay up a truckload of money. These are the times we can put our lawyer to work. Ah, uh, yes sir. But M. Dan kept trying to say something. But at that moment ah, uh, sorry. Let's talk a bit later. I'll send someone over so make sure you look after Sue too. Ah. Uh. Excuse me. Wait. Cap Juhian then stomped on one of the aftermath cleanup crew members' hands. Ah. The captives seemed to have realized that they were fucked and tried to escape. Looks like you guys are useless. Juhian started to punish them once again. Excuse me. The artifact you gave Dan is General Guy Beak's artifact. They were currently contacting the press to inform them about the bastards who attacked the station. C.O.L.A. was shocked to hear about Dan. Guy Beak's artifact. Captain Nim, when did you get that? Ah, uh, was it from the auction? No. C.O.L.A. gasped. Did you go into a S-grade alone without us knowing about it? Yeah. It was a few days ago. C.O.L.A. grabbed the back of her neck. She would need to hear the details about how he got that artifact later, but... Captain Nim. Please don't do something dangerous like that. How can you go into such a dangerous place alone? Ju Hian covered his ear at CLAS concerned nagging. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Kong Ming is terrorizing me with the same nagging through texts. He wasn't looking at his phone but he could tell it was Julian by the fact that it continued to vibrate. Julian would have noticed General Guy Beek's artifact by now as well. He must have figured out where it came from because he knew it wasn't from the auction. He would have figured out that Ju Hian went into an S-grade tomb on his own. The text terrorism was quite the spectacle. BR. BR. No name, hey, CO Ju Hian. Pick up the phone. No name, try to think about your heel no name, are you going to keep ignoring my texts? Read them no name, photo no name, it's information about an artifact. Ju Hian started to frown while looking at all of the text messages on his phone. Damn it, how the hell does that crazy bastard send 100 messages? Is he a spam bot or something? I need to fire this bastard. He ruthlessly fired Julian. Ciole asked a question at that moment. By the way, I forgot to ask you this, Captain Nim. Hmm. Dan used an S-grade artifact. People normally need months of practice for those. Yes. C.O.L.A.S. face lit up. Then did Dan's memories come back? Ju Hian nonchalantly responded to her. Chapter, 251. Then did Dan's memories come back? Ju Hian nonchalantly responded to her. No. The rest of the team members were flabbergasted. It was to be expected. He can handle a S-grade artifact even without his memories. They had not heard it clearly, but that was what it had sounded like. Dan had taken care of those bastards with a S-grade artifact. Even if Ju Hian had given him specialized training, there was no way someone could use an S-grade artifact in half a month. Even monarchs like Irene or Yu Jeha needed a month to freely use their artifacts. That meant that there was no way for Dan to use General Guy Beak's artifact unless he got his memories back. So how? Are you sure you didn't restore his memories? What are you talking about? I didn't. Then how did he use an S-grade artifact? Ju Hian pulled out a camera instead of responding. It was the camera artifact he had taken from the penitentiary during that interaction with Yang Chen. I used this to quickly teach him. It was the monarch of fate's future camera. Taking a picture of someone would show their future, or in their case, their past lives. 
activating the picture could allow the user to enter the picture and experience the scene. It would feel as if they had transmigrated into a different world. Juhian had used that to test something. He wondered if he could use it to restore Dan's senses from the past without restoring his memories. It should be faster than starting from scratch. Handling artifacts were all about the senses so getting a feel for it would help Dan learn faster. Of course, he let Dan see numerous memories except for the one where he lost his daughter. But to think that he was really able to handle an S-grade artifact with just that. It should have taken at least a month even after using the camera. Ju Hien found this a bit odd but he was satisfied with the results. I was originally planning on giving him my A-grade Warang sword but this is great. He then started to think about Warang's sword that was in his hand. He had to thank it. General Gaibik's sword was pretty much found thanks to Warang's sword. How? A few days ago he had been on his way to pressure the residents of the Tower of Pride to pay their rent. Warang's sword suddenly started to glow and reacted to something. Artifacts lit up like that for only reason. There's a related artifact nearby. Artifacts that are related to each other would react like this. It helped Ju Hien realize something. He had almost missed a hidden tomb. He debated whether to go get the others since it clearly looked like a S-grade tomb, however there are only four days until your occupation is changed. Your occupation will forcibly be changed in four days. Damn it. This motherfucking crow. His skills might have been forcibly taken away if he waited to come back later. That was why Juhian had no choice but to enter a S-grade tomb on his own. It had not been as dangerous as he had expected, but the artifact he got was quite useful. Gaibik Sword S-grade, Legendary Hero Grade, Possession Artifact A precious artifact of a general from Beach had appeared. One this general was the one who was famous for the Battle of Wangsenbeel and for being Jim Yusin's rival. Ju Hien had laughed while looking at Warang's sword that had helped him find the tomb. Warang's sword that was the only thing that ever popped up in the messages. I wonder if this was actually Guan Chang's artifact. Guan Chang was a young member of the Warang who had charged into the enemy formation on his own during the Battle of Wangsenbeel and ended up a prisoner of Beach. The story goes that General Gai Beek let him go without killing him. Ju Hien did think this Warang sword that he swiped from the CIA had to be at least a decently famous person since it was an A-grade artifact after all. How entertaining. And now C.O.A. suddenly shouted after hearing this story. Ha, huh, but wait a minute. C.O.A.'s face turned pale as if she suddenly realized something. Didn't General Gaibik? General Gaibik was famous for the battle, but he was also known for holding back his tears and killing his wife and children before heading out to the battlefield. He supposedly did it because he knew that he was going into a battle where their kingdom would lose and feared what would happen to the civilians who were taken as prisoners of war. This was the artifact of a person who was famous for that tale. There was no way an artifact would not use something like that to its advantage. Is General Gaibik's risk? Siole urgently grabbed Juhian's arm. Captain Nim, no. If Dan keeps holding on to that artifact, Sue. It was at that moment. Juhian lightly chuckled and Yujeha, who had been oddly quiet for some reason, started to clutch his stomach as he laughed. Hey hey hey, don't worry. Are you stupid? What? Do you really think the Captain M would give something like that to Dan? He naturally took that into consideration before giving it to Dan. Siole was relieved. You're right, the Captain M is not someone who would do that. Siole then glared at Ujeha who was acting oddly pompous. Hold on. How do you know that? W, what? Yujeha slowly tried to escape but there were sparks flying out of Siolea's eyes. Yujeha. You knew about it. You knew about the artifact. You, ugh. Then that means you knew before the rest of us that the Captain Nim went into a S-grade tomb on his own. When was it? When did you find out? Ugh, ugh. I'm sorry, I'm Sue. Siole grabbed Yujeha by the collar. You better not tell me you knew and didn't stop the Captain Nim from going into the S-grade tomb. Ow, no. It's not like that. I would have stopped him if I knew. I only found out about it afterwards, ma'am. 
I only found out because the Captain Im suddenly asked me to make a fake. Seo Lei looked toward Ju Hian in confusion. A fake? Captain Nim, then. This was clearly different from what they had been told. Ju Hian had given Dan a copy of General Guy Beek's artifact, a fake created by Jae Ha. Why? Dan has no memories of the past. That meant that unlike the other team members, Dan had no knowledge of the dangers of an artifact's risk. Possession type artifacts were convenient but quite dangerous because of the risks. General Guy Beek's artifact's risk was no exception. Siole nodded her head. I guess it makes sense to only give him a copy. Especially for an artifact with a risk like that. But Siole was quite disappointed because she knew the limitations of a fake. What do you mean for an artifact with a risk like that? Sai, I don't understand it at all. He even changed the risk just for Dan. What? Ju Hian had negotiated the risk with the artifact to give Dan a good artifact without the terrible risk. How? Hey General. Change your risk while I'm asking nicely. Otherwise, I'm going to destroy you. You bastard of a descendant. I should have realized you were no good from the moment you destroyed my tomb. Shut up General. I'll help you find Jim Yusin or King Weija's artifacts if you be a good boy. I'll even make sure that you are treated well. How about I help you find the true descendants of Beach? I'll even listen to whatever you want. Well, it was similar to that. Either way, the artifact was so pampered that it would be impossible to imagine Ju Hian doing that. Of course, Ju Hian was not the one who pampered it. Ha, <laughs> General Nim. I am also a distant descendant so please take good care of me. Please. I'll even give you a massage every day sir. Please. You just have to add a few words in that risk. It's just a few words. Pretty please. Ahem do you know how much I like Beach and respected its honorable history those damn bastards of Scylla. Why I outa. They act all pompous when they only manage to unify the three kingdoms due to luck. Seriously. They just ended up crumbling in the end anyway. Yu Jaeha, who had high affinity, had been dragged by Ju Hian and had to suck up to the artifact for multiple days. As a result, the risk of kill your wife and children had changed. It was now kill those who try to harm your wife and children. The artifact just slipped in a few words and barely changed it. But after he struggled for days to change the risk to a buff, what did he do? He just made me create a fake to give to Dan. Why the hell did I need to suck up to the artifact then? Ha. Huh. Yu Jaeha sniffled thinking that things were unfair. It's a waste since I worked so hard to change the risk. Are you going to let it rot? Then give it to me. Yu Jaeha kicked Ilya who interjected. Get lost, you damn feeble fool who is only as strong as a baby chick. This son of a bitch. They had now changed stations to have the monarch of fate proceed with a broadcast. And then I still think it is a waste. Yu Jaeha peeked toward Ju Hian. Ju Hian looked so cool that all of the staff at the station couldn't help but stare at him, but Captain Nim, you and Dan are the only ones on our team who can use a warrior's artifact like that properly Dan is the best and even better than you. The fake can't even compare to the real one. Ju Hian sneered at Jaeha who was talking about this again. No. I will only give him to him after thoroughly teaching him. It's too dangerous. Ilya interjected. Then why don't you just give him back his memories? Let's be honest, where are you going to find someone like Dan? Even if you thoroughly taught someone they would need at least five years to be useful. He continued on. The memory of his dead daughter is something for Dan to worry about. It's something that's bearable for the benefits of the team. Yu Jaeha kicked Ilya after hearing that. Yes. I think we need to fire you for the benefits of the team, you bastard. What the hell did you just say? Ju Hian started to laugh. It is true that everything would be resolved if I give Dan his memories back. Dan's personality was one where he would happily return as the tomb raiding team's hunter again, he would handle the possession type artifact very well, and most importantly, he would have the strength he had during his prime. I know about that punk's abilities better than anybody else. It was just too desirable. 
it was to the point that even Zhu Hian was a bit greedy for it. However, there was nothing he could do about it. I can't let him experience the sorrow of losing his daughter again. I won't restore his memories. But Dan's position is the most dangerous on the excavation team. We can't let him take on the monopolizers without his memories. I never said I planned on doing that. Why would I make him do something so dangerous? Yu Jeha and Ilya both seemed completely shocked to hear that. Why? This makes no sense. Our captain can be this generous. He could actually think about other people's feelings. They were jealous. They felt wronged. This is favoritism. You wouldn't even care if either of us died. Of course. Ilya and Yujeha fell down and started to pound the ground after seeing Juhian's calm demeanor. Wow, shit, we were dragged by the collar as soon as we met him. He forced us to sign the slave contract. He beat me up from the moment I met him. You guys would have run away if I didn't do that. Ah, uh, that is true. But can't you still treat us like you treat Dan? Ju Hian looked at them as if he was wondering how they could say such bullshit. You guys and Dan are not the same. They continue to lament. This is discrimination. I'm going to sue you for discrimination in the workplace. Ju Hian usually only treated the female team members well but Ju Hian cherished Dan as much as he cherished the female members. Dan had saved Ju Hian's life. Actually, he had saved Ju Hian's life multiple times. He's also the only one who listens to what I say without complaining. He didn't mind running the other bastards to the ground as long as they didn't die, but he didn't want to let Dan get hurt. He wanted to take care of Dan now while he wasn't fighting since he had always received so many injuries to protect the tomb raiding team in the past. The others were good but the two of you were not. Both Yujeha and Ilya started to frown at the fact that they had been lumped together. Captain Nim. That's too much. I'm at least better than this guy. What? I'm better than you. Shut up. The two of you are the same. They started to sulk. Ju Hian then took out the raven's tears and started to sigh. He was still tempted to use the raven's artifact but he shook his head. No. Let's not be any greedier than I've already been. He would give up on Dan. Anyway, use that glib tongue of yours on the reporters outside. Ju Hian looked toward the monarch of fate who was getting some rest. Fake prophecies were soon spread throughout the world. These prophecies would help Ju Hian steal the monarch's tomb. And at that same time Julian, who had instantly been fired, heard the following message when he called Ju Hian. Your number has been blocked at the recipient's request, his clenched fists were shaking in anger. C.O. Ju Hian. Why I ought to. My goodness, Captain Nim he fired the vice Captain Nim again. Dan had a bitter smile on his face while looking at the grumbling Julian. It was obvious what had happened. Sue A came over and hugged her daddy at that moment. Daddy, daddy. Is it a call from Juhian Appa? Yes, it's a call from Juhian Appa. Sue A's eyes opened wide as if she wanted to hear Juhian's voice. Dan carefully picked up his daughter and looked at his phone. There's something I must tell the captain Mr. Hey Jean. Can I borrow your phone? I'm sure he wouldn't have blocked your number. Julian had a vicious glare on his face. Dan handed Julian his phone as he asked a question. Excuse me. Could I get an application to join the excavation team? Julian furiously started to type as he responded. Ah, I can give you one but I doubt our captain would accept it. He said that you couldn't get your MEM no, that he couldn't let you get involved in dangerous situations, Mr. Hey Jean. Dan awkwardly smiled and scratched his cheek. What do I do about this? Based on their conversations, nobody seemed to know yet. Nobody seemed to know that his memories had been completely restored. Chapter, 252 What do I do about this? Based on their conversations, nobody seemed to know yet. Nobody seemed to know that his memories had been completely restored. That did indeed happen. Dan had recovered his memories just like the rest of the team members. The only difference was that he had recovered his memories without the raven's tears. Of course, he had not done it on his own. There was something that pushed it to happen. 
It had happened just a few days ago. Ding. Hello, Welko Ah. Mr. Ju Hien. A casually dressed Ju Hien had come to the butcher shop. The first person to greet Ju Hien was none other than Su Ei. Hello Ju Hien Appa. The pretty Su Ei had ran over with her short legs and hugged Ju Hien. She had hidden behind her dad at first probably because she thought Ju Hien was scary, but that was no longer the case. She must have become familiar with him since Ju Hien stopped by the last few days to teach Dan about artifacts. It was at that moment. Ju Hien Appa is not the only one here. Yu Jeha walked in behind Ju Hien carrying a bunch of toys. Su Ai's face lit up after seeing so many toys. Her reaction made Yu Jeha snicker as he started to speak. Su A, say thank you very much and give me a kiss. Yu Jeha turned his cheek toward her. But what did she do? Thank you very much. Su A kissed Ju Hien on the cheek. Yu Jeha could not believe it. Whyy. I was the one who brought her presents. Yu Jeha persistently turned his cheek toward her but Su Ei must have gotten scared as she started to cry and hug Ju Hien. Ju Hien kicked Jeha for making her cry. You are banned from getting close to Su Ei. Just carry the presents in. Damn it. Yu Jeha, who had instantly been turned into the baggage carrier, had to go back and forth to the car to bring in all of the toys. There were some duplicates of the same toy. The reason for the duplicates was because of Ujeha's damn mouth. Wow, Captain Nim, you really have no sense at all. Are you only picking the pink ones because it is for a little girl? Why? Is there a problem? She might like blue. What if Sue doesn't like pink? Pick an assortment. He had said that to see Juhi in struggle, but then well by one of each color. E, excuse me. By the way, you're the one who needs to carry them. That was how Yu Jeha, who had dug his own grave, ended up having to carry a ton of toys inside. Ju Hien had taken out the Monarch of Fate's camera after having dinner with them. I want to slowly teach you but I don't think we have the time for that. There was no way that the monopolizers aiming for Ju Hien would leave Dan alone. He would keep protecting Dan and fuck those monopolizer bastards over, but still you never know what might happen. That was why he had used the Monarch of Fate's camera artifact to have Dan experienced the sensations from his past life. Dan ended up experiencing the odd feeling of being sucked into a picture. He was in an unfamiliar tomb with familiar faces that were older than now. Captain. I will take care of this area. All of you use that opening to escape. Dan, no. It's too dangerous. There are thousands of them. He could physically experience things from his past life that would not happen in this life. Of course, they were not random experiences. Ju Hien had thought hard about the pictures to choose and even took some away without telling him about what they were. In addition everything you are about to see is fake. You can consider it virtual reality created by the artifact. He sternly said that to Dan as well. However, Dan had felt an odd sense of deja vu while experiencing those memories of his past life. It was an extremely strong sense of deja vu. He was feeling extremely emotional about Ju Hien and the others even though his memories had not returned. It felt as if he saw people he thought he would never be able to see ever again. It had been so weird that he asked if they had been a part of the same team in the past. Captain Nim, the members at that time and you. Ju Hien seemed to be having a difficult time figuring out what to say before he finally responded. I'm not your Captain Nim. Excuse me. Ju Hien sternly responded to Dan. I don't know what you saw about me but it is a delusion in your mind. You were too immersed in it. We are strangers with no connections whatsoever. It felt as if Ju Hien was stabbing a wedge between them. Ju Hien left after only teaching him how to use artifacts. Dan, who had been thinking about Ju Hien's odd expression, had reactivated the pictures that Ju Hien left behind. He activated them over and over. He continued to activate them after putting Su Ei to bed. The number of times passed from tens to the hundreds. Unfortunately, nothing popped up in his mind and it was just tiring for him, but Dan kept thinking that there was something he needed to remember. The Dan in the picture was doing everything he could to protect Ju Hien and the others. 
the image was too vivid to be fake. He felt as if he was missing something important. He thought that he would never get the chance to recall it if he gave up on it. And after a while something weird had happened. What is going on? After he had activated the pictures hundreds of times human, stop. Something completely different from what he had seen until now had appeared. Normally, he should have been transported to what seemed to be them wandering through a jungle. Your mind will be destroyed if you keep this up. A crow had suddenly appeared in the jungle. The crow was perched on a tree and staring at him with his glowing red eyes. It was covered in a chaotic aura. He felt an immense amount of pressure and spirit coming from it, even though it was a single crow. He had run into many artifacts until now but it was much stronger than anything he had seen before. It was much more savage and stronger than even those so-called divine-grade artifacts. He was scared. However, the crow that was giving off this scary aura showed no murderous intent. It actually seemed concerned for Dan. Do you plan on wasting the life that the human saved? It seemed to be talking about Juhian. So stop. You won't be able to figure anything out no matter how many times you come in here. It said that he would not be able to tell the difference between what was real and what was fake. Your brain will be destroyed. But Dan shook his head. I can't stop. I feel like I'll figure out something I've forgotten about if I keep it up a little longer. Your brain is playing tricks on you. Dan desperately shook his head. He was saying he knew it wasn't a trick. I'm sure of it now. I know the captain. He was certain of it. The crow was saying it was his brain playing tricks on him, but he knew Juhian. He knew Juhian in the past. He also knew the others who were with him as well. But something was weird. Although he knew them, he had no idea how they became close or why he teared up every time he saw them. He started to shout in frustration. Mr. Juhian saved my life and my daughter's life. I can't just brush this aside if there is something I've forgotten. Even if that may lead you down a path of regret. It doesn't matter. That is my choice as well. Both my daughter and I would be dead without Mr. Juhian anyway. He didn't know what it was, but he couldn't just let it go without doing something about it. He wanted to resolve this frustration and pay Juhian back for his generosity. Although I don't know if doing this will help him at all. As Dan was about to activate another picture humans truly are stupid creatures. The crow gasped. But the crow seemed to be smiling as it sighed. Then there was a bright flash of light. Dan screamed inside the light. Ah! Dan clearly saw it at that moment. He saw all of his memories that he could not see through the camera artifact. Losing his daughter, meeting Juhian for the first time how Juhian saved him. How Juhian had given him a reason to live when he was a mess because his daughter had died. He started to cry once he was out of the picture. It was to the point that his daughter woke up in shock and started to shake him, asking him what was wrong. Daddy, Daddy. Dan had cried so painfully. A shocked Sue didn't know what to do before she tried to call 911. But Dan just grabbed his daughter and cried. Dan just cried after getting all of his memories back. He cried from sorrow remembering how he had lost his daughter and he cried from joy knowing that he did not lose his daughter again. He was extremely thankful to Juhian for saving his daughter before he lost her again. He was thankful that Juhian helped him to keep his reason to live. I'm so relieved, so relieved. Dan tightly hugged his daughter while continuously thanking the crow and Juhian. He had almost forgotten about it. He had almost forgotten about everything Juhian had done for him in the past. He had almost forgotten about things that he should never forget about. Returning to the present hmm, what to do I already got my memories back. Dan was not sure about what to do. He had been a chaotic mess when it had happened, but he had quickly returned to being rational. Of course he wanted to go back to where Juhian was. However the number you are trying to reach this is driving me crazy. Did the captain him break another cell phone? Dan continuously wanted to tell Juhian that he got his memories back. He wanted to tell Juhian to let him back into the tomb raiding team. That was what he had wanted to say. However, there had been no good timing to say it. He even tried to contact his old teammates but ah, um hey Jeha. Oh, 
It's nice to hear you call me in such a friendly way. I can call you Hyun Nim too, right? Ah sorry, something urgent just came up. Click. Um, Chloe. Oh, hello Mr. Hey Jean. Did you call because of Sue? Please don't worry. Sue is very healthy. Ah, uh, e, excuse me. No. The reason I called today. I'll give you a list of drinks and food that would be good for Sue. Do you have something to write on? Ah, uh, no, that's not it. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, yes. Ginger and. Excuse me, Vice Captain Nim. Ah, uh, thanks for calling me. There's some documents I need you to fill out for your testimony, Mr. Hey Jean Ah, um, I sent it via text as well, but I got my memories back. So could you please give me an application? My goodness. Mr. Hey Jean. I understand how you must be feeling, but you still shouldn't lie. Why did these damn team members of his have to be like this? He knew that returning to the tomb raiding team meant that he would have to be a meat shield against the monopolizers again. Unlike the past, he had no reasons to get involved with artifact users in this life. Artifacts would probably be everywhere in the distant future, but he had no reason to join Juhian's excavation team. There was an easier path he could take. Even Juhian had told him to just live happily with his daughter. The world is in shambles after the monarch of fate's prophecy. People were questioning whether this is a scheme by Seo Juhian or it truly is a prophecy from the monarch of fate it is even more shocking because Pandora has indicated that even monarchs would not be able to use divine grade artifacts if they do not manage to get their hands on an heirloom the United States is forming an excavation team to send to the Middle East Japan's JSDF China is starting to move centered around Shen Kai Yuan. The suspicion that Seo Juhian is planning on looting all of the monarch's tombs is making excavation teams all around the world rush the number of factions searching for and tailing Seo Juhian are increasing the whole world was chaotic right now. All monopolizers were aiming for Juhian. I need to go back into the Captain Nim's tomb raiding team. Recovering his memories helped him realize why Juhian had let him go. But he could not stay away. The monopolizers were strong. Juhian was overwhelmingly strong now too and had all of the main members by his side, however how can he do it without a hunter? And most importantly protect him if you do not regret your decision. The crow had said that to him. He recalled everything the crow said to him at the end. Those bastards would come after that human again. He didn't know who those bastards it was talking about, but it was proof that Juhian would be in danger. Also. The crow had continued on. Please stop letting him get so distracted. He had no idea what that meant either. Captain Nim. I'm here. Dan chose to go see Juhian face to face. He knew that speaking face to face was the fastest way to take care of things. But his efforts were for naught. Huh, do you know the people who had stayed here? The housekeeper handed Dan a bag. They left something behind. Please give this to them. Excuse me, what happened to the people staying here? Ah, uh, they checked out early this morning. They said they're rushing to enter a tomb or something I think they said they were going to Korea. Damn it. Dan put a hand against his forehead. There were two days left until the monarch's tomb appeared. It made sense that they would rush over, but. Those damn artifact files. Dan made a call while fuming with anger. Chapter, 253. Stop the broadcast. Stop the broadcast now. Damn it, that scammer. The monopolizers were grinding their teeth in anger while watching TV. It was because of the CO Stratomus broadcast being shown. We have now shared all of the locations of where the monarch's heirlooms will appear. However, you need an artifact from the seven great tombs to enter this tomb so it is recommended that you wait for the remaining seven great tombs. They will pop up in these locations. They will be here soon. Of course, you can work together to get the monarch's heirlooms after that. It makes sense to split teams and send some in advance to the monarch's tombs as well. We hope that all monarch grade excavation teams quickly start to move. They had done it. They had ended the tomb prophecies that had started like a countdown by revealing the location of all tombs. Not everybody was happy with this situation. 
how could they be when the monarch of fate publicly announced something that he was supposed to only tell them? What about all the money we've given the monarch of fate? Why did we buy the information about the monarch's tombs and the excavation rights to them in advance? Now everybody is going to be there. Sue the monarch of fate and Seo Juhian. Sue them for infringement of our excavation rights. But what would suing him do? People are trying to sue Seo Juhian. It was revealed to be an intentional attack to lower the stock price of Grave Company. A petty move to steal his artifacts from the seven great tombs. They ended up being slammed for trying to drag Seo Juhian down. I'm certain. There is someone protecting Seo Juhian. Who could it be? Is it the Holtons again? Some areas are definitely the Holtons but nothing is working even in places the Holtons have no influence it must be that there is another faction other than the Holtons that is protecting Seo Juhian. What? Who the hell is it? Who else would it be? Princess, thank you for all of your hard work. Mr. Jeha said he would send us a picture of Juhian Nim as a reward. I really want to see Juhian Nim wearing the sweatsuit. What happened to the uniform we commissioned? They'll be ready soon. Juhian's fans were taking care of things without his knowledge. But is it okay if we don't go to the remaining seven great tombs and the monarch's tombs? We should be able to help Juhian Nim if we excavate them on his behalf. Oh right, the Valkyrie artifact appeared a few days ago, did you all remember to form a contract with it? Of course. Mr. Jeha said it seems to be an artifact that would allow us to be Juhian Nim soldiers, so of course I did it. A special weapon artifact appeared when I formed the contract. There are people following Juhian Nim so let's use them to get rid of those pests. It would be best if we can hold them back long enough so that they cannot bother Juhian Nim with his excavation. They are lacking in numbers. These women were trying to use the Valkyrie artifact to become a strong pillar of support for Juhian. Of course, Juhian was just wondering why his enemies were dying off in random places without his knowledge. All of this was making the other excavation teams more desperate. Send people to the expected locations of the monarch's tombs and the seven great tombs. We must have a team ready by the heirlooms. We can't become monarchs if we can't get them. We might not be able to use divine grade artifacts anymore if we don't get them. Send teams to all 15 locations even if it dwindles our numbers. No. Track where Seo Juhian is going. They had to prevent Juhian from grabbing all of the tombs no matter what. Pandora, great omen regarding the seven great tombs. The monarch's tombs will be difficult to clear without an artifact from the seven great tombs. The entire world is currently on the search. Something like this has never been seen before. Secure a spot in all fifteen locations. D for days until the appearance of the monarch's tombs. It should be quite chaotic right now, right? Ujeha was chucking while watching the news. There's actually just one monarch's tomb. We're also planning on opening it today and not four days later. They were currently on a ship. It was not a personal yacht this time. They were mixed in with a bunch of people because it was best to hide a leaf in a forest. They made sure to look like other people and forged their identities. They also released their doppelgangers around the world to make the enemies tracking them confused. Ujeha's nose was in the air thinking that his ability was the most useful. Ah, this is all thanks to my ability. I really am amazing. What? Do you know how many people have been suspicious of us until now? What? They would have found us if it wasn't for my memory modify barf. Yes, yes, you seasick punk. You sure you don't need any more medicine for your motion sickness? Shut the he barf. Ilya felt terrible because he was seasick. Chloe was sighing while looking over him, but it would not subside easily. That's typical of the Aftermath cleanup crew. The Aftermath cleanup crew members who mainly relied on spellbook artifacts were generally weak both physically and mentally. The spellbook artifacts all shared the same risk of making the user's body weaker. What was the point even if they could use rare magic? What was the point if they called themselves the Intelligent Brigade and could modify information throughout the world? 
They were so weak that they were out of breath after running a short distance, their defense was so low that a light hit might break their bones, their immunity was shit and they were usually the first to catch a cold they end up like that even if they were buffed before they started using the artifact. Groan, the medicine, the motion sickness meds. Headache pills. Anticonvulsants. You look fine but your body is shit. Ujeha clicked his tongue and commented about how Ilya's body was weaker than an elementary student. Ilya was an elite in the aftermath cleanup crew, but that also meant that his body was in the worst condition. At that moment Mr. Juhian, is it really okay to leave Mr. Hei Jin behind? Irene was staring at Juhian. She could tell that Juhian wanted to bring Dan into the team even though she had not heard the details. Based on what Mr. Julian said, Mr. Hei Jin wants to join your excavation team. Ju Hian thought for a moment before shaking his head. That's only because the camera artifact made him temporarily unable to tell the difference between reality and an illusion. He's mistakenly believing that we were a team in the past. Yu Jaiha chimed in as well. Ha, huh, that's right. He might actually be relieved that we left. Well, forget being relieved. He was extremely angry that nobody was picking up the phone. Ju Hian started to speak to Yu Jaiha at that moment. Enough, just explain things about the monarch's tomb to the others. Excuse me. Why do I ugh? You're the only one here who has experienced it. I have a decent idea about it but the others don't. Everybody should be informed since it is a dangerous tomb. Furthermore we need to know a lot about the tomb in order to swipe all fifteen of them. The team members were shocked to hear that. A, are you really planning on getting all fifteen? At once? As expected of the Captain Nim. Well, it shouldn't be impossible. Although Juhian only had five of the seven keys from the seven great tombs, there were uncleared great tombs in the past as well. All of the monarch's tombs were still cleared. There has to be a way. Even he didn't know the way, but just wait, Captain Nim. The monarch's tomb that island is divided into seven regions but I clearly remember the one I went to. As for how it looked. Ah, uh, I don't care about the one you went into. Huh. Why? Why else? You can deal with that one on your own. Yu Jaiha started to foam at the mouth. Hold on. Oh, oh, on my own. We're not splitting up, are we? Juhian sneered at him. Of course we are. Time is of the essence. You should be fine on your own since you've been through it once already. Yu Jaiha looked as if he was going to die. That is as strong as the seven great tombs. I tagged along with a TKBM excavation team in the past as well. Then you should know everything about that region. You're dead if you can't get them. By the way, I mean all of them in that region. Yu Jaiha looked ready to scream in despair. Inside Pandora's executive board building. The Pandora members gathered there were all anxious. Co Juhian this is quite the headache. They would not be able to pick monarchs as they pleased at this rate. They were only planning on letting people they wanted as monarchs know about the monarch's tomb and make it so that they would get the heirlooms everything was ruined once the monarch of fate was abducted. We must stop Co Juhian from becoming a monarch no matter what. This bastard will be a hindrance to our plan. What are you planning on doing? They all looked toward the person who was there from the executive board. Rothschild, the man they were all looking at, lightly chuckled. Please don't worry. The monarch's heirlooms are different from other artifacts. He will not be able to take them like how he has taken the others. The Pandora members nodded their head in agreement. However, the eagle on Rothschild's shoulder screeched in protest. How can you be so calm, sir? That bastard has the protection of the crow. The eagle artifact was huffing. Giant supreme leader, Co Juhian will really become a monarch at this rate. Zeus's eagle artifact continued to speak. Are you planning on letting a human we despise dominate us? Rothschild was silent. That was the truth. Artifacts like them were originally tools. They needed a master because they needed someone to use them. That was the law for artifacts no matter how much they wanted to get away from it. Tools not used by humans would slowly lose their strength before turning into regular antiques. 
However, artifacts despised humans and wanted to kill them. They would have to be crazy to follow a human master. The solution that the artifacts came to was to control humans and force them to use them or to find a human who fits their taste and serve them as master. Unfortunately, there was still a limit to that. They were currently in charge of the artifacts right now but that could not go on forever. We do need to pick the best of the humans. It was once again time like last time. Of course, the lower grade artifacts didn't have to try as hard to find a suitable human. Most people could use them. However, divine grade artifacts were different. Not everyone could handle divine grade artifacts. That was why the divine grade artifacts devised a plan. They didn't want to be dominated by just any human. Their plan was to find a human they found suitable and make that person their master. This was the reason divine grade artifacts infiltrated Pandora's executive board and made deals with a few humans. The results of these deals were the births of the monopolizers. The divine grade artifacts gave all sorts of benefits to help these greedy but loyal bastards reach the monarch level. They were grooming them to become monarchs who would harm humans as much as possible. The four emperors level were those monarchs getting strong enough to control all divine grade artifacts. This was a deal that was a win-win for both sides. The human would gain more benefits the more they exploited their fellow humans. The artifacts liked humans who would exploit and harm other humans. They were using each other for mutual benefits. In that sense, Juhian was a thorn in their eyes. He was someone they could not have a discussion with. He was a human who dared to suppress artifacts. It'll be even worse if a bastard like that ended up at the four emperors level. He was someone not to their taste. He was similar to the crow's master in the past. It was at that moment. We received another complaint. They're asking if Seo Juhian really won't be a problem. The candidates we selected should be able to become monarchs in the end, right? Rothschild maintained his calm and smiled after hearing the question. Of course. The monarch's tombs already have their masters. He will not be able to steal them. Really? Yes, the heirlooms are set to not respond to anybody who is not already on the list Pandora decided. They had made that deal with the heirlooms already. But at that moment director. This is bad. A tomb appearance stronger than the seven great tombs has been detected on the Pacific Ocean. It is somewhere other than where the monarch of fate prophesized. They were sure of it. It was the monarch's tomb. Those bastards created the tomb over there. Is it a precursor? No, sir. The tomb has appeared. It's already here even though it is not yet time. Rothschild, no, the giant supreme leader, started to frown. The heirlooms were special artifacts that even the supreme leaders could only negotiate with them and not dominate them. That was why they had absolute power over this. I thought we at least negotiated on the date. This is bad. The monarch's tomb has appeared before the rest of the seven great tombs. The prophecy was wrong. We need to hurry up and inform our partner excavation teams. Director, do you think things happening prior to the scheduled time is Seo Juhian's doing? Rothschild shook his head during this urgent situation. They already have their masters. There are no heirlooms for that human to take. He calmly gave the order. Inform those teams and please quickly send our monarchs to that spot. However please hold on a minute. What is it? Zeus's eagle anxiously started to speak. Um, in that monarch's tomb they can apparently feel the aura of that imprisoned crow bastard's tomb he started to frown. What the hell is going on? Why was the tomb they had hidden away showing up there? Chapter, 254 They became anxious. How could they not be? It was the tomb of the crow bastard they had imprisoned a long time ago in the past. Why is that bastard there? The artifacts that should come out of the monarch's tomb are their allies. Heirlooms were special artifacts and sat on their fancy asses except to come out to judge the monarchs. They were also artifacts that had helped them imprison the crow. That was why there was no way that the crow bastard would be a part of a tomb they had created. Furthermore there's no way it would be there. That was not where they had imprisoned the crow. We imprisoned that bastard in that great prison. Zeus Eagle, 
the same one that was sent to eat Prometheus' liver, cautiously asked. Do you think it is a coincidence and just happened to show up there because it is a drifting tomb that moves around? Could it really have been a coincidence? Rothschild shook his head. Even if it is a drifting tomb, it would not show itself so easily. Unless the seal is removed that is. It was a special tomb that hundreds of divine grade artifacts had worked together to seal. There was no way to call that tomb out without having all seven artifacts from the seven great tombs that were the keys for it. I'm sure it's nothing. But it wouldn't hurt to be cautious. Send our allies over there. Rothschild gave the eagle an order. The eagle said it understood and flew away. A total of twenty people. These are the total number of people who are currently listed as monarchs. We purposely added five spots from the original fifteen because of Seo Juhian's group taking some of the spots but they are the fifteen who will become monarchs in the end. Monarch of Plunder Monarch of Pushoverness Monarch of Strategies Monarch of Harassment Monarch of Proclamation Monarch of Gambling Monarch of Wealth Monarch of Surplus Monarch of Abundance Monarch of Gluttony Monarch of Healing Monarch of Conquest Monarch of Sales Monarch of Perversion Monarch of Seduction Monarch of Games There were all sorts of monarchs. The screen showed a live feed of where they were moving. The one that stood out the most was the Monarch of Plunder. Rothschild started to grind his teeth. The monarchs there right now are candidates selected by the system artifact. Only the fifteen who get the heirlooms will become the true monarchs. Do you understand, everyone? They all started to shout. Hurry up and send the monarchs and their excavation teams we must not let Seo Juhian take the artifacts. Fuck, it's another miss. The TKBM excavation team members could not hold it in any longer and started to swear. That motherfucking monarch of pushoverness bastard. They kicked the chuckling statue in front of them. They seem to have destroyed another fake Seo Juhian. The monarch of fate did share the prophecies, but they weren't so stupid that they would blindly listen. They knew that Juhian had done that to steer them in the wrong direction. Seo Juhian is aiming for those artifacts as well. The smartest thing would be to tail him. But that dog's hit you Jeha bastard pulled this shit again. I can't handle it anymore, let's stick an assassin on you Jeha. We can aim for him when he's sleeping. No, just kill him in the middle of the street. You Jeha seemed to have instantly become unable to sleep or even walk out on the streets as he pleased. Ah, you Jeha is one thing but the monarch of fate is driving me crazy. Exactly. What if the chairman M gets unlucky and ends up not becoming a monarch? TKBM was one of the excavation teams that, until recently, had a secret connection with the monarch of fate. They were one of the people who were screwed over by Juhi and shenanigans. They became angry after looking at the article in the newspaper. Pandora system artifact, only those with the heirlooms will be finalized as monarchs. The excavation teams that are suddenly in danger, we cannot miss out on a monarch position. This might be the last chance to become a monarch. What the hell do they mean by the last chance? Do they know how much money we poured into Pandora? They would have easily gotten their hands on an heirloom and become a monarch as long as Seo Juhian had not abducted the monarch of fate. What if none of the candidates we've been backing end up as monarchs? The number of people applying for the excavation team would go down if the captain is not a monarch. How the hell is the playing field going to change? The world would change for times as the monarch of fate had prophesized. The world would go through extremely drastic changes each of those four times. Those changes were a sort of opportunity. Someone shouted at that moment. Wait a minute, doesn't that mean that we have a chance to? What? We can become monarchs if we earn those heirlooms ourselves. Silence filled the area for a moment. Their gazes almost instantly changed. Now that you mention it, that is true. Isn't this the chance to change our lives? They had considered the monarch position to be something reserved for the rich until now. Other than a few of them, most of those so-called monarchs are nothing. Bastards with a decent amount of money and power who met the minimum requirement for their level of dominance had been listed as candidates. Honestly speaking, we're not lacking in skill compared to those bastards. That's true. The expert-grade artifact users on the elite excavation teams started to riot. Hey! Find the heirlooms. 
They said five generations of your family will be able to live lavishly if you become a monarch. That was the start of the destruction of numerous excavation teams the monarchs were starting to get headaches because of the situation. What did you say? The atmosphere is weird with our employees. Yes sir, I believe that some of them have become hyenas aiming for the heirlooms. The monarchs in charge of excavation teams had to deal with this negative fallout. Thanks to Seo Ju Hien, a lot of them were getting led astray in thinking that anybody could become monarchs. Did your team revolt as well? All of them seem to be distracted right now. It's all because of that damn monarch of fate. There were many monarchs who had deals with the monarch of fate. Pretty much all monarchs except Ju Hien were the monarch of fate's clients at some level. The people who had purchased a monarch's position with their money were angry. That was why they were shouting like this. Seo Ju Hien, you son of a bitch. Ju Hien was turning into a dog quite a few times today. Around the same time the monarch's heirlooms seemed to have appeared by the Pacific Ocean. The general secretary of the Chinese Community Party and other political executives informed the supreme leader artifact user. Professor Zhen Kai Yuan, the monarch of gluttony, smiled brightly at them. Yes, I've heard as well. Our team member, Li Seo Lei, told me about it. The Chinese executive's expressions lit up after hearing that. Oh, Li Seo Lei told you. I thought we had lost her to Seo Ju Hien but she seems to be doing her job properly. She's talented but the fact that she is so young was concerning. They had placed Seo Lei around Ju Hien as a spy but they seemed to have been worried whether she would do her job correctly. Things were bound to happen when a young man and a young woman were together. Anyway, there was nothing especially concerning but we were planning on getting rid of her because we were antsy about what happened to her. I even considered using her family to threaten her. Zhen Kai Yuan told them not to do that and smiled. It's fine. That child is properly handing over information about Seo Ju Hien to me. That's a relief. Zhen Kai Yuan started to smile. Like hell Seo Lei was giving her information on Seo Ju Hien. Seo Lei had not even contacted Zhen Kai Yuan once. However, Zhen Kai Yuan was still protecting Seo Lei. Why? I might be able to win some points with Seo Ju Hien by doing this. The fact that Ju Hien cherished his team members seemed to be true. And most importantly technically, I am getting information. Zhen Kai Yuan was happy while looking at her phone. The phone was full of documents she had hacked from the Chinese executives. To be more specific, it was the phone of the superior Seo Lei was reporting to, with information about Ju Hien. Zhen Kai Yuan had hacked that phone so that she could read everything Seo Lei sent. There was nothing important but she was able to get some important information about Ju Hien. Seo Ju Hien, height 183 centimeters, weight 74 kilograms. Foot size is 275 millimeters. Anybody else would wonder if these were truly important things. Should I send him some clothes or shoes as a gift this time? Maybe I should send him a book since he has a written text addiction. Or how about a pair of gloves since he seems to like boxing? Zhen Kai Yuan seemed quite obsessed now. She had never found a man who had piqued her interest like this. At first it was to get rid of a hindrance, but she sent emails and text messages every single day to gain Ju Hien's interest but she was ignored and ignored again. She probably never faced such treatment in her life as she was the type who would be hit on no matter where she went. She seemed quite excited about this monarch's tomb issue. I should be able to meet with Seo Ju Hien again if I go to find the heirlooms, right? She didn't seem to be thinking about the fact that she would be ignored again. It looks like the hyenas are about to gather. The team members were shocked to hear that. It was shocking enough that an island suddenly shot up out of the Pacific Ocean once Ju Hien arrived with artifacts from the seven great tombs. They were in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and didn't even have service on their phones but what? How do you know they are coming? Ju Hien just laughed instead of responding. How do I know? Divine grade artifacts are slowly getting closer. The goddess of beauty is slowly getting closer. A violent devil is slowly getting closer. It was thanks to the messages popping up non-stop in front of him. This was the reason he didn't need Pandora's system artifact. His spy skill was much better than its detection. 
but there's a lot of people I've never seen before. Monarchs from around the world were coming because of the importance of this tomb. All of the artifacts popping up on the messages are probably divine grade artifacts. However a terrible stench is slowly getting closer. The curse of not wanting to do anything is quickly moving. A pervert is approaching. What the hell are these things? They were monarchs he had never seen before. Well, there were 33 monarch candidates in the past before the final 15 were determined, basically, over half of them would fail. Ujeha packed their bags and gasped while looking outside. I didn't know I would end up somewhere that is not on a map. That was right. They arrived at a nameless island on the South Pacific Ocean. It was not very far from Guam. The island was small enough that a person could probably drive all around it in one hour. But this island should have sunk underwater a long time ago. It was a small island that had completely disappeared from all maps but it was different now. It is a temporary island created by the artifacts. That was why it was an unknown island not on maps that could not be detected. The water around it was blue and the sandy beaches were white but it was no vacation spot. The proof of it was the forest and cliffs closer to the center of the island. It definitely gave off the smell of a dangerous deserted island. Ilya had to have quite the intimate conversations with the crew to get to this island that was not on any maps. Well, Ilya basically modified the captain's mind and changed the route. The other people on the ship, including the crew, were all asleep. I'm sure they'll return on their own once they wake up. How are we going to leave? Do you really think only a few people are going to come here? Basically, he was saying that they would steal someone's ship to leave the rest of the team members' side. Anyway, be careful. The island is full of chaotic artifacts. Juhian smiled and took out the five artifacts from the seven great tombs again. They started to react. Bo 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 boom. The island suddenly started to shake. You are awakening the sleeping monarch's tomb. Five of the seven regions are awakening. The entrance will be revealed as an advantage to the individuals with artifacts from the seven great tombs. Pillars of light that only Juhian could see shot up from multiple spots on the island along with that message. Juhian quickly had everyone touch the artifacts from the seven great tombs. That light. Hurry up. We are heading toward the area with the strongest aura first. Once they got off the ship and took a step onto the island are you the monarch candidates? It was an unfamiliar voice. The message window started to shake. Warning, a strong aura is descending something unexpected happened. Captain Nim. All of the team members disappeared and Juhian was teleported elsewhere as well. Captain Naim. Mr. Juhian. All of the team members seem to have been teleported to different spots on the island. It was at that moment. All of the artifacts in your possession have flown off somewhere. However, the special benefit for possessing artifacts from the seven great tombs will continue. You are still able to see the location of the tomb entrance. They all heard a voice echo throughout the island. True strong artifact users who are the first to step onto the monarch's tomb. You are each allowed one artifact in your possession. You have each been given the artifact most suitable for you. Use them to get to us if you can. The team members all quickly looked for their artifacts after hearing those messages. All of their artifacts were really gone. This seemed to be this tomb's trial, however fuck. Why the hell did I get stuck with this one? My Da Vinci's artifact. How the hell am I supposed to survive with this? Oh, yes. I knew you would choose me. Hey Bui. Ak. I don't know how to use this guy at all. Ujeha was in despair while looking at the happily dancing artifact of envy, Salieri's artifact, of the seven great tombs. What the hell? Why the hell did Seo Juhian's artifact end up with me? What the, do you have any money? Julian fell to the ground after seeing the worm in front of him. Their artifacts seem to have been swapped as well. Ho! Juhian sighed after seeing that his useful doggies had all disappeared. And why did this artifact of all things have to be left with him? Chapter, 255 Around the same time Ho! Juhian sighed after seeing that his useful doggies had all disappeared. 
And why did this artifact of all things have to be left with him? I'm still here. I'm still here. It was the rope. Well, to be more specific, the rope did not seem to have been picked as his partner. Why? Huff huff. Sire. Sire. I was Cho Ug. There was one more artifact here. The panties were being ruthlessly trampled by the rope. Although it was unintentional, the panties, air, Bayan Kongso's artifact, was being buried alive in the sand thanks to the rope jumping on top of it. Uff, ugh. The rope didn't seem to notice the dying panties underneath it. Did you call me? Did you call me? No. I didn't call you. That was what Ju Hien was saying with his gaze. It felt as if the rope was asking that question. Its eyes were sparkling as it jumped up and down in joy. It was probably thinking that it was the only one left when all other artifacts had disappeared. Furthermore, it thought that Ju Hien had personally picked it. Master picked me. He picked me. It was no wonder the rope was jumping up and down in joy. Ju Hien just looked at the rope and shook his head. It's not like I picked it. The original artifact he was supposed to end up with was probably Bayan Kongso's artifact and not the rope. This message confirmed it. The tomb's owner has selected Bayan Kongso's artifact for you. You must survive on this island with this artifact. Those damn heirlooms seem to be trying to mess with them. They pick the most useless artifacts for each person to watch them suffer and fail. Sadly, the truly selected artifact was being buried alive by the rope that had suddenly appeared. S. Sire. I, I am the. The rope finally seemed to realize that Bayan Kongso's artifact was there after hearing the pandy shriek. The rope realized the shocking truth at that moment. W. Was I not the one to be picked? It seemed to have abnormally been left here. The rope quickly peeked around at that point. What do I do, what do I do? It wanted to be with its master. However, it was scared Juhian would get angry at it for making him break the rules. The panties popped out of the sand at that moment. S. Sire. It is me. Sire, I would serve yo ug. The rope quickly grabbed the panties. It then quickly started to shout. T, two were chosen. Two. The panties seemed to want to appeal to Ju Hien that it was the only one to be picked. That's not true. Sire. I have been chosen to serve you. Ju Hien sighed as if he was tired. Well, better than an artifact I can't use at all. For example, he would not have been able to use Yu Jeha's Da Vinci's artifact at all. He wouldn't have been able to use an artifact like that since his affinity was zero, and if he had ended up with an artifact like Daji's artifact, she would have been useful but she was smart enough to try to jump him in return for helping him. Whatever, let's go. Yes sir. Bayan Kongso excitedly followed behind while the rope was sniffling and jumping up and down behind him. It seemed to be quietly asking something. See, can you take me with you too? Please. It seemed to be appealing to Ju Hien to take it with him as well. It was doing all sorts of things to prove its worth. It was tying itself to a tree, jumping up and down, throwing rocks, and even dancing. However, Bayan Kongso's artifact started to scold the rope. You were not chosen. Go away. I will serve the sire. But at that moment hey, get lost. Rope, come over here. Sire. Bayan Kongso stuck to Ju Hien's leg as if it was holding on to Ju Hien's leg. Where else would that artifact file captain go? He should meet with the captain M. If he followed the heirlooms it was easy to choose a direction. Furthermore, he had to get an heirloom as he did in the past. That was the only way for him to become a monarch again. However oh, boy. How do I earn a heirloom with this bastard? This is driving me crazy. He would normally ask the captain M. for help but it was different this time. Most importantly, Ju Hien had told him the following. Don't let your guard down. We don't know what kind of artifacts these heirlooms are. Yu Jeha had laughed out loud after hearing that. Nah, don't worry about it Captain Nim. I guarantee it. There's no need to be afraid. Oh, you sound quite confident. Captain Nim, you've never been a monarch but am an experienced veteran. 
I am probably above you in knowledge when it comes to this tomb. He had tried to act arrogant since he rarely had the chance to do so, but Ju Hian had responded with the following. Really? That's good. Then I guess there's no need to back you up. E, excuse me. I was planning on helping you since you're not the battle type. W, wait. His problem was the same as usual. His damn mouth got him into trouble and he would have had to earn an heirloom on his own. Ah, uh, I'm screwed. He might have had a chance if he had Da Vinci's artifact. Ha, huh, is Ciola near me by any chance? The safest would be by the Captain Nim or Dan's side. But Dan wasn't here and he couldn't ask the Captain Nim to help him get an heirloom. Chloe and Julian were too scary. Ilya would just sneer at him. Ciola was nicer than the others so she would help him. She was reliable as well. Ujeha shouted out for Ciola once those thoughts filled his mind. Seal Triple A. Something that drove him even crazier happened at that moment. It's a human. Get him. Ah. A trap seemed to have been activated by Ujeha's voice. Kill him. Kill him. Get him. Get him and roast him. Ujeha screamed after seeing a bunch of cannibals charging toward him. He might end up being the first person to die on this island. Fuck, there are so many damn traps. On the way to the stone mountain at the center of the island Juhian was swearing at the hordes of traps that kept popping up. Please change directions. There is a trap in this area. Damn it. Again. How many is this already? He had come across five traps in what felt like less than fifty meters. Of course, Ju Hian had his experiences and trained body. Those things, along with the rope support, made it so that he could easily dodge all of the traps. It was the jungle that made Ju Hian the most upset. Why was that the case? It reminds me of that time. It reminded him of the Amazon where the crow's tomb had been. The other members might be thinking about the same thing right now. It was giving off a similar aura and there were just as many traps. However, Ju Hian sternly shook his head. No, it's different from that time. The artifact's aura was completely different and the scent of the tomb was different as well. I think I can faintly smell the crow, there was also the monarch of fate's prophecy that the bastard would appear here. It was at that moment. Boom. Not over there. No. The ROP clenched onto Ju Hian's arm. Ju Hian stopped and the direction he was about to walk in sank. Boo boo boom. He thought it was a regular area but it was the edge of a giant cliff. He had come across another trap. These shitheads. His heart had almost popped out. Even the experienced Ju Hian had missed that trap. It was an extremely advanced trap. This tomb was no joke. Sire. Are you okay, sir? Bayan Kongso was completely useless right now. Are you okay? Are you okay? The rope groaned as it pulled Juhian up the cliff. He only had artifacts that were useless in battles right now and even his possession type artifacts had all been taken away. Regular humans would have a hard time just walking through this tomb. This should make it difficult for the other monarchs to get to the center as well. In fact, how many of them would be able to survive? Even he would have been in danger multiple times if it had not been for the rope. I'm relieved that the rope is still here. As Ju Hian was feeling relieved hmm, wait a minute. He was about to brush it aside, but it was odd now that he thought about it. The other artifacts were sent flying because of the will of the heirlooms, the owners of this tomb, but why was this punk still here? The heirlooms were strong enough that they even managed to abduct the divine grade artifacts. They are at least divine grade artifacts. But the rope had ignored those divine grade artifacts abduction. And remained here. That wasn't the heirlooms doing. They would not have done something that would be helpful to humans. It's weird now that I think about it. Ju Hian started to stare at the rope. What the hell is this thing's true identity? Chapter 256 What the hell is this thing's true identity? The rope was only an S-grade artifact. Well, its rank itself was nothing to look down on, but it was a different story right now. This is the middle of a tomb. 
most artifacts were at their strongest in their own tombs. It was similar to a sports team playing on their home field. That was why the other divine grade artifacts were so easily abducted. But the rope managed to resist it. It was very suspicious. Now that I think about it, this rope has defied logic in multiple ways. It had been able to subdue S-grade artifacts as a C-grade artifact and now, as an S-grade artifact, even divine-grade artifacts ran away from it. The doggy artifacts always gasped in fear whenever they saw the rope. He had brushed it aside because it was useful and effective, but this was too suspicious. How was it able to stay here? Juhian stared at the rope and thought for a bit before finding his answer. Why am I thinking about this? This punk even slapped the supreme leader. Its rebellious nature might be the greatest in the artifact world. It wasn't the type to get scared because the heirloom artifacts ordered it to come. That was why there was only one possible answer. It resisted it with its will. Of course, the heirlooms were probably extremely angry right now. That was the truth. What the hell is that artifact and why is it not responding to our summon? The owners of this monarch's tomb could not believe it. This was unbelievable. They had imprisoned the rest of the artifacts that had come to this tomb. There were quite a lot of complaints coming from the underground area of this central region of the tomb. Ho, oh, is this how you punks want to play? How dare you lock us up in here? The artifacts were all here. They were in this underground cave-like area, submerged in what seemed to be a shining lake. They looked as if they had nonchalantly been thrown in there. That wasn't all. You guys made it so that we could not use our powers. All of the artifacts there were grumbling. I know this is the monarch selection process, but don't you think this is too disrespectful? These sons of bitches summoned us by force too. Huh. You guys want to start something? Let us out of here right now. The heirlooms started to speak as Juhian's divine great artifacts bared their fangs. Shut up, you Egyptian gods. There were a total of fifteen heirlooms some of them looked human while others looked like beasts. They continued to speak in an extremely overbearing tone. We are aware that you guys are trying to help that human, C.O. Juhian. What? The fact that you guys are helping a human is quite well known already. You so-called divine-grade artifacts even cleared a tomb as his substitute. Ugh. How do you know about that? Anubis sighed while looking at Set and Osiris who were feeling guilty. Did they really think others wouldn't find out after they caused such a ruckus in the Tower of Pride? That's why I told you guys not to overdo I you're also an accomplice, Anubis. Set and Osiris started to sneer at him. That's right, that's right Anubis, you were the one who got most riled up and swept them all away in the Tower of Pride. Wow, those poor S-grade artifacts. What did they ever do to you? You diabolical bastard. Anubis felt wronged. Set and Osiris had ordered him to destroy everything and they were now putting all the blame on him. The heirloom snorted and looked at the Egyptian artifacts. To believe that you guys were won over by mere food or by treats. What's so entertaining about human women dancing? Set and Osiris started to get angry. Mere food? Are you looking down on chicken, you bastard? Are you looking down on the uncle fans? One you damn bastard. Take that back right now. Their anger made the artifacts imprisoned with them shake in fear. It was because the Egyptian gods were much stronger when looking at just their attacking abilities. They were commander of the corps and division commanders for a reason. The heirlooms were special divine grade artifacts compared to other artifacts. The monarch's plate. That was the term given to these special artifacts. It made the other artifacts respect them. But there was still a limit to what the other artifacts were willing to tolerate. We went easy on you guys because you guys are the ones to pick the monarchs but what? However, at that moment one of the heirlooms urgently shouted. Hey, that's not important right now. That rope is the problem. They truly found the rope to be odd. Why doesn't it respond to our summon? Do you know anything about it? Set sneered at them. Say it properly. You guys were unable to summon it. The heirloom started to frown. Set didn't seem to like them paying attention to the rope. Whatever, that rope is just a mutant. 
you don't need to worry about it. Set, you son of a bitch, what the hell are you hiding? Nothing. Set you son of a bitch you're suspicious. You gave us quite the handful in the past with that crow incident as well. Set snorted at them and responded. Why don't you create more traps if you have the time to think about those things? There's someone who is already nearby. As soon as he said that, boom. They all felt an earthquake. The central region they were in was shaking. Someone's already here. They got past all of those traps. Who is it? Who is already here? Who else would it be? Huff. Huff. Julian was catching his breath around the tomb's central region. Although they might seem as if they are missing a few screws, Juhian's team members were all talented. They were all instantly getting through the traps and heading toward the central region. And good, I might be able to get inside if I do it a little more. Julian was mimicking Juhian and creating artifact bombs before throwing them. The bombs were quite effective. Good, just a few more times like this. Julian quickly reached his hand out. Hey! Give me a few more artifacts. However hand over the money. Money. Hurry. Ho! Julian let out a tiring sigh as he looked toward the screeching worm. This was what he was stuck with. He ended up with Juhian's worm artifact. It was Su Fu's greedy artifact that just wanted money. Its ability was to grow the Herb of Eternal Youth and it was just an artifact that ripped people off when the Herb of Eternal Youth was not around. It really is taking everything. He had already had his wallet, shirt, and bag taken. All that Julian had left now was his pants and his watch. Why the hell did all of my artifacts have to disappear and something like disappear? This artifact is a shitty bastard like C.O. Juhian. He had no choice but to make deals with it since it was the only artifact he had with him, however hey, you beggar. Hurry up and hand over the money. I let you borrow the artifacts. Arg, why I outa? He didn't know what it was saying, but he could tell that this damn worm was acting like a loan shark. Hand over the money, Moni. It was kicking him and writing money. On the ground. That was extremely weird. In the end, Julian undid his watch and handed it to the worm. The worm started to frown after looking at Julian's watch. And then get lost. I don't need such a cheap thing. Give me something else. Julian became upset. Hey, it might look like that but it's pretty expensive. Julian soon sighed. There's no point to argue with a damn worm. I need to hurry up and get an heirloom. He wasn't sure but he felt as if the other monarchs were getting closer to the island. They were probably less than one kilometer away. He could feel the strong aura of divine grade artifacts. That was enough proof that the monarchs were getting closer. Well, they should have their artifacts forcibly taken and end up just like them as soon as they landed on the island. There are some already hiding on the island. As proof of that they're here. They probably thought that they wouldn't get caught but they were clearly visible to Juhian's tomb raiding team members. Large rocks started to fall toward Julian. Boom! Julian quickly dodged. He then saw some unfamiliar people on the trees. Stop him! Don't let him get into that central region. He didn't know which excavation team it was just yet, but what was clear was that they were enemies. The enemy started to charge toward Julian while carrying knives. Julian urgently called out to the worm. Give me one more artifact, I don't care what it is. Hurry up. Then hand over your pants. Julian started to frown. My pants. All right. I'll give it to you so hand it over. Don't forget the price. Human. The worm handed him a B-grade pen artifact. Julian threw a fastball with an artifact bomb toward them. Bong. Ah! Julian then handed the worm a pair of just worn pants. Of course, it wasn't his own. Here. Here's the price. The worm was happy after receiving the enemy's pants. It must be a decently expensive pair of jeans. Oh, this is a decent pair of pants. Julian continued to strip the enemies and the worm happily handed him artifacts. The enemies looked shocked at this point. 
W, what the hell? Is he crazy? Julian just started to smile as if he had met some easy prey. Shut up and hand over everything you guys have while I'm asking nicely. W, what did you say? I'm in need of some artifacts right now. They screamed once Julian came closer. S, C O Juhian is here. Julian started to twitch his eyebrows in anger. Hey. I'm not C O Juhian. Then someone like C O Juhian has appeared. Die. The fallen. Julian charged toward them. He had become a looter and he seemed to be enjoying this new life. Around the same time damn it, stop chasing me. Ilya, who was running unlike his usual self, was grinding his teeth in the jungle area. He knew that his artifact file captain would head toward the central region of the tomb. That was why he had come here, but stop chasing me. He was being chased by about five cannibals. He would usually use his devils or magic to destroy these bastards, but ah fuck, even if it was random, why this one? Ilya was swearing while looking at his artifact. But at that moment ah ha ha ha. What the hell? You're being chased. Ilya quickly turned his head after hearing a familiar voice. This voice definitely belonged to that shithead Ujeha. But he smiled, thinking it was his chance to get out of this predicament. Hey! Push over. Great, help me oh you. Ilya turned pale after looking behind him. Ahahaha. Who is going to help whom? I have more, ahihi. He's gone crazy. They were in the same predicament. Ujeha was also being chased by cannibals. In fact, Ilya had it easy being chased by five cannibals. Ujeha had close to one hundred of them behind him. He he he. You're going to be a roast too, a roast. Ow, this useless son of a bitch. Don't come this way. Stop, you son of a bitch. However, Ujeha was happy to see the artifact in Ilya's hand. Hey. What the hell? You at least got a decent artifact unlike me. Use the artifact. It's useful. Save me. That was technically true. Ilya might have gotten a useful artifact compared to the other members. He got lucky and ended up with an attack type artifact. Silver Axe B grade, rare grade, consumable artifact well, they didn't really know if it was an attack type but at least it had a sharp end. It was able to kill people. Furthermore, it was Juhian's artifact. Ujeha seemed to find it reliable as he started to shout. Hey! Use that to do something. Ilya started to foam at the mouth. Are you crazy? I can't use this. Ilya was a mage-type artifact user who used spellbook artifacts. His stamina, reflexes, toughness and all fighting-related stats were much lower than the average person due to the risk of those artifacts he would pretty much die with a single hit. There was no way he could fight a close-ranged fight. That was why he could only swear. Fuck, of all artifacts. Hey. Push over. You use this then. Sorry. I can't reach it. Then what can we do? Yu Jeha started to laugh. What else? Go. Go little chick. Become Jason. I'm going to kill this guy. Chapter, 257 Ilya held himself back from swearing. Why did he have to meet this shitty bastard of all people? Ha ha ha. I came to the strongest area since that damn bastard of a captain would head that way but I ran into our little chick. It would have been much better if he had met up with the captain. Why did I have to run into the most useless bastard on the team? Ilya is probably the only one who thinks Jeha is useless. But anyway, he frowned and started to speak. Ah, uh, whatever. Which artifact did you end up with that you're in this Maya? He didn't even need to finish his question. He could see the familiar artifact behind you, Jeha. Oh, boy. Don't leave me behind. Ilya started to swear after realizing that this was one of the artifacts from the seven great tombs. That bastard has a great artifact like that. Furthermore, that artifact was an extremely strong art type artifact. Art type artifacts could not only create things, they could also bewitch people. Beautiful pieces of art were said to bewitch people after all. 
That meant that it was very compatible with him since it was similar to his devil artifact. It would be easy for Ilya to use it. That was why there were flames in Ilya's eyes. I ended up with a stupid axe but that bastard. Hey! What the hell are you doing? Use that artifact properly. Just give it to me if you are going to mess around. Ujeha's eyes opened wide. What? He wants this artifact. Ilya had expected Jeha to tell him to get lost, but he was actually snickering. Sure, I'll give this to you. He happily said he would give Ilya the artifact. Ujeha then threw the small notebook shaped artifact. Catch it. It's yours now, you son of a bitch. Ilya happily reached out his hand. As expected of that pushover bastard. What a retard. He probably doesn't want to use it because it is gay but something like that can easily be suppressed with Dom Dash. Sadly, he was mistaken. Get him. Get him now. Huh. The moment Ilya caught Salieri's artifact the cannibals chasing Ujeha all started to gather toward Ilya. Rip that bastard into pieces. Ah. What the hell is up with them? The over 100 cannibals looked extremely angry as they charged toward Ilya to kill him. Ah! Ilya started to run away. Ujeha could finally catch his breath. Retard, did you really think I hated it just because it was gay? That was not the case. There was a different reason Ujeha disliked Salieri's artifact. That reason was, aggro. Salieri was the artifact from the Tomb of Envy. One of its attributes was naturally jealousy. This jealous attribute would make someone envious of you and that emotion would explode into anger and hostility. Basically, it would increase the enemy's attack by a lot. It's like aggro in a game. That was why the cannibals had moved to Ilya the moment he threw Salieri's artifact. Anyway, thanks, you son of a bitch. I finally got rid of them. Ilya had just said, give me the artifact. He had responded with okay. He would not have been able to throw Salieri's artifact away if it had not been for that consensual exchange of ownership. Why? It was because his affinity was extremely high. Artifact tended to gather around people with high affinity and would usually not think about leaving. It was basically something like, you pushover bastard, where do you think you're going? You're my servant forever. Friend, where are you going? Let's be together forever. Honey, let's die together. Those were just some of the things the artifacts have said to Jeha. Fuck, I would be able to take care of them if my dominance was high. Although his affinity and fit were extremely high, his dominance was pretty much zero. In that sense, Juhian might have been able to properly train Salieri's artifact. He had begged Juhian to take the artifact from him, however get lost. Any artifact that requires affinity is trash. They shouldn't exist in this world. He had been instantly rejected. Ju Hien had even given him a special lesson on how useless these artifacts that required affinity were. However like hell they're useless. You're just upset because you can't use them ug. Yu Jeha had been beaten up after he said that. But Yu Jeha was telling the truth. Even the great Ju Hien would be a eunuch in front of an artifact that used affinity as its base trait. As for the little chick Ilya Ah. Uh, that damn monarch of pushoverness, you son of a bitch. Ah. Uh, Jeha didn't care whether he lived or died. You Jeha picked up the silver axe that Ilya dropped on the floor. Ha ha ha. Ilya, you stupid retard. This thing is a million, no, a billion times better than Salieri's artifact. Salieri became excited hearing that. Kaya, this is great. My friend. My accomplice. Let's strip women. Let's strip women together. The question was whether this really was better. While that was going on Sai. Hey little kid. Don't run away. Ciole sighed while looking at the artifact running away. It was easy to pick a direction to head since it was obvious where Juhian would go, but this damn artifact was the problem. Hey little kid. I promise I won't hurt you, so come here. Ciole had also ended up with a weird artifact instead of her trusty ghost artifact. That was why she was planning on using this to earn an heirloom since it was nearby, but wow. 
I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. The artifact that looked like a nine years old child was crying as it ran away from C.O.L.A. She managed to grab it, but they said all pretty girls are transformed foxes. Wah! It said some bullshit like that and started to run again. C.O.L.A. couldn't believe what she had to deal with. She couldn't tell what it was saying but she could tell that she was being treated as a devil or a nine-tailed fox. There's an actual fox somewhere. C.O.L.A. started to shake while thinking about Dodgy. As the artifact of lust, Dodgy tried to seduce the male team members all the time. She would always wear extremely low-cut shirts and shorts short enough to show her but to mess with them. There was one time she sat on the top of the stairs and positioned herself so that everything was almost visible. Human, it's too cold. Ugh. The pure Julian who had been going up the stairs ended up falling down. Human, I wish to learn about art as well. You, ugh. Dodgy lowered the sculpting Ujeha's pants and he ended up hurting his hand. As for Ilya, he lost all his money buying clothes for Dodgy. But the thing that made her the most angry was human, is it that you don't like me? Get lost. She shamelessly tried to sleep with Juhian. Dodgy ended up being found completely tied up by the rope every time she tried, but how could she not be angry? Dodgy, that damn bitch. Once she said that who did you call a damn bitch? Boom. Watch out. Ciole was pushed after she heard a familiar voice. A vicious assailant appeared after that. Ciole looked happy after hearing the familiar voice. Chloe. Chloe was standing there. I'm so relieved, are you oh huh? Ciole gasped after looking behind Chloe. It couldn't be helped, since oh ho, this is a very good opportunity. The one who was attacking Chloe was none other than Dodgy. She was wearing a Chinese outfit that revealed her cleavage. Her pear-shaped body, large breasts and white skin she was a total babe without a single flaw. Dodgy was tapping her face with elegant and sexy movements. It's time to show the wicked human women who stick to Seo Juhian who the true lady of the house is. Seo Lei could not believe it. What was Dodgy saying when they should be going after the heirlooms right now? The lady of the house? That wasn't important right now. Why is Dodgy here anyway? Chloe, was that the artifact assigned to you? No. Not me. Then who was she assigned to? I don't know Eth. They couldn't stand and chat because they were attacked again. Bong. Kaya. Who was Dodgy assigned to if it wasn't Chloe or Siole? Is it going berserk and ignoring its master? It was at that moment. Dodgy suddenly flinched in shock. She then started to grind her teeth as if she had been placed in an extremely awkward situation. That human managed to get here already. Dodgy urgently tried to escape. Ahem. Who said it is okay for you to run? The person who appeared was Irene who seemed quite angry for some reason. It's the monarch of plunder. We found the monarch of plunder. Fuck. Ju Hien, who had been the first to arrive at the central region of the tomb, was frowning because of the people chasing him. It was great that he managed to sneak into the central region of the tomb but there were people hindering him. The major excavation teams were scattered all around the world thanks to his ruse with the monarch of fate, however the minor excavation teams are the problem. They were not famous excavation teams they weren't large excavation teams either. They were all teams that would normally be looked down upon. The only thing that concerned Juhian was water. Juhian frowned while looking at the river flowing through the jungle. There were fish carcasses floating on the river. The trees nearby were shriveling up as well. He was certain. This was the work of the monarch who had polluted the environment in the past. He was the reason there was a lack of fresh water in that world. Multiple monarchs like that are close to the island now. They weren't major players so they had not been noticed until now but difficult to handle bastards were here to get their hands on the heirlooms as well. This tomb was the place for monarchs to gather after all. That wasn't all. The aura of an artifact that should not come out into this world is being detected. Juhian could feel chaotic auras he did not recognize. The devils of World War II are getting closer. The communicable disease that instilled fear throughout Europe in the Middle Ages is approaching. 
Devils of ancient times that tried to destroy the world are approaching. Those were the people who ended up with the evil divine great artifacts that Chen Kai Yuan had released into the world. He needed to get the heirlooms before those bastards. Heirlooms were special artifacts and ended up being eternally attached to them. That meant that they could not be taken away if someone ended up possessing them first. I need to find them before that happens. Yu Jeha had said that getting an heirloom would allow a person to gain some kind of divine power. SS grade divine grade artifact users would turn into vassals of the gods or something of the sort. Zhu Hian started to frown while looking at the chaotic aura that was swirling around the stone mountain. Anyway, I need a stronger artifact to get inside there. Of course, the rope was working hard slapping the enemies and fighting on Zhu Hian's behalf. Go away. Go away. However, it had its limits. I need more attack type artifacts. Was there anywhere he could gather some artifacts? And at that moment, Zhu Hian took out a knife after sensing a presence behind him. He then ruthlessly stabbed the knife into the enemy's neck. Puk. He had no intention of checking to see who it was first. Anybody who came up from behind him inside a tomb was his enemy. A man was spurting blood as he fell down from Zhu Hian's attack. You, Ugg. The monarch of plunder. Plop. It seemed to have been an enemy aiming for him as he had expected. More people aiming for Zhu Hian appeared at that time. It's Co Zhu Hian. Take the artifacts from the seven great tombs away from him. I don't know what they are but we need them to gain the heirlooms. Zhu Hian started to smile while looking at them. Perfect, I needed somewhere to get more artifacts. Hand over your artifacts. Crack. Crack. He twisted their necks, slashed their arteries, dug out their muscles with the knife Juhian seemed to be having a lot of fun looting them. Ugh, ugh. B, boss, the monarch of plunder truly was too much for us. They all fell without being able to do anything. As for Juhian, he was extremely happy. This person has a strong A-grade artifact in his possession. This person has a B-grade artifact with high attack strength in his possession. This person has an S-grade artifact that can summon fire. They might have had their artifacts taken as well since they each only had one artifact but they all had quite useful artifacts since they were a monarch subordinates. Good. Now that I have these. However, Zhu Hian started to frown. He couldn't help it. You need affinity. You need high affinity. You cannot use this artifact. Raise your affinity. These shitty bastards. Why the hell are they all affinity type artifacts? As Zhu Hian was about to stomp on the artifacts human, don't you think that you need my help? Zhu Hian quickly turned his head after hearing a familiar voice. Chapter, 258 This voice is the voice echoed throughout the cave it was very familiar to him. It was the voice of an artifact. However, it was not the crow. He was used to the crow's voice since he had heard it multiple times. It didn't have this cunning and disgusting tone. The crow's voice sounded like a noble aristocrat man from the past. Then was it one of his other artifacts? No, that was definitely not it either. He had some terrible bastards but most of them were more like mischievous goblins. But this bastard was different. This artifact fell into the category of artifacts that Juhian hated the most. It fell under the category of the truly disgusting artifacts. It was one of those cunning and evil bastards that treated humans like pigs. This voice was very similar to the voice of those bastards. When was it Hey Kai Yuan, what is this? Ah, uh, that thing. It must have been when he approached Chen Kai Yuan because of Chairman Quan's order. Chairman Quan had been extremely close with the US at that time and cared a lot about what China was going to do since the two countries were about to go to war. That was why he made Zhu Hian do what he often made him do and approach Chen Kai Yuan. Zhu Hian became so close to Chen Kai Yuan that he had a chance to go deep into Chen Kai Yuan's laboratory. He remembered seeing it at that time. It was a suspicious box. What is this box? It looks like there are artifacts inside. Ah, it is a small version of a certain artifact. A certain artifact. You mean Pandora? 
The real Pandora artifact is much larger but I got a piece of it by chance. I plan on using it against the US this time. I can show it to you if you're interested, Juhian. Is that okay? I am happy to show you everything. The artifacts he had seen at that time she had said that there were terrible historical figures such as Hitler's artifact along with some disease type artifact as well. The voice he was hearing now was the same as the voices of those terrible artifacts. Human, let us out of here. Hurry. We will turn you into the greatest king if you let us out of here. They were eerie and chilling voices. He could not forget them because their voices were eerie and because their auras had been truly disgusting. They were way too dangerous. He had never heard about those artifacts until then. Why would those artifacts from back then be here? A message popped up at that moment. Warning. A wicked artifact is hiding among the monarch's heirlooms warning. That evil monarch's heirloom is approaching you. Warning. It seems to like you a lot. A chaotic aura charged toward Juhian. It looked like a sharp black tentacle. Boom. Boom. The aura that was strong enough to be seen was stretching out through the cave and chasing after Juhian. Warning, you are becoming vulnerable to an extremely strong level of tomb syndrome. Your skin is starting to deteriorate because of the aura. Your tolerance is defending against it. It is difficult to block all of it even with your tolerance. TSK. Juhian quickly started to run. However, the black aura that was stretching out like vines of thorns attacked underneath Juhian's foot. Boom. Juhian had to jump out of the way to dodge. Debris started to fall from the ceiling as if to tease Juhian. Boom. It wouldn't be an issue if he had his divine grade artifacts but all he had right now were Bayan Kongso and the rope. Ugh. Juhian grabbed the rope to barely dodge the debris. However, the artifact bastard wasn't done. Humans truly are weak without heirlooms the chaotic aura wishes to be with you. It desires your body. This unpleasant yet strong heirloom likes you very much. It wishes to contract with you. I don't need you, you bastard. He didn't know what it was but it gave him the chills. What is this artifact? Even Juhian had never seen this artifact before. It was actually a dangerous and greedy artifact that had never been seen in the world before. Its chaotic aura tried to wrap around Juhian. But at that moment. It's too dangerous. It's too dangerous. The rope swiped Juhian and got him away using strength that Juhian didn't even know it possessed. Juhian who managed to get away was huffing and trying to catch his breath. However, it only lasted for a moment before he started to cough. It was because of the rope. There's something dirty on you. It's on you. The rope was grumbling as it started from Juhian's face to rub the evil artifact's aura off. It looked extremely upset. It didn't seem to like the fact that another artifact was desiring Juhian. It was at that moment. Warning. That bastard is approaching again. It now looked as if the rope was bearing its fangs. It was telling the evil artifact to bring it on. But it only lasted for a moment. Juhian quickly grabbed the rope's tail and used a skill, as if telling it that it was in the wrong spot. You used tomb destruction. Boo boo boom. Juhian quickly created a hold to escape. TSK, the one I'm going to contract first isn't a bastard like that. Even if he planned to take all 15 heirlooms away, he still needed to pick a heirloom to contract with first. However, he didn't want a heirloom like this even if it flung itself at him. He had no plans on giving a bastard like this to any of his team members either. It's too dangerous. As he had that thought warning. The artifact is right behind you. The stalker artifact from earlier seemed to have quickly caught up to Juhian. It started to speak to Juhian. I like you. Contract with me. It was trying to contract with Juhian no matter what. Of course, Juhian would not let it do as it pleased. Shut up and get lost. You're not my type. That wasn't all. Juhian recalled what Yujeha had told him. You understand, Captain Im. You cannot contract with just any heirloom. The heirloom's buffs are two sides of a coin. Two sides of a coin. 
you do become superhuman but some of them will give you a debuff instead. For example, your dominance can go down to zero you might become an eunuch the opposite gender might lose all interest in you Saab. That's not what you had to deal with, is it? I used it because I wouldn't have been able to use divine grade artifacts without it, but fuck. Anyway, it was important to think things through before contracting a heirloom. He wouldn't be able to contract with other heirlooms if he contracted with this one first. But most importantly, he didn't like how this bastard felt. Unfortunately, this eerie artifact didn't seem to care about his thoughts as it grabbed Juhian by force. It is rare to find such a strong monarch like you. I like you. No. I don't like you. The black aura wrapped around Juhian's leg and started to crawl up. Danger. You are starting to erode. The artifact is trying to force a contract on you. Bayan Kongso must have felt something terrible as it shouted, Sire. It then charged toward Juhian but ended up destroyed as soon as it touched the aura. The rope also got angry and tried to grab the bastard. Juhian realized something at that point. No. That punk should be debuffed right now. He was right. The rope started to erode the moment it touched the black aura. It was because its opponent was so chaotic that it could not handle it. The moment the suspicious artifact completely covered Juhian's body and was about to force him to sign a contract the rope started to whine and its eyes flashed. And at that moment who dares to put their hands on that human? There was a familiar voice and a bright light flashed. Juhian and Yujeha had talked about something in the past. It was in their past life. I I I will tell you something nice since you bought me some booze, retarded Captain Nim. Hey retard, just go to sleep. Damn it, just listen. I think that the artifacts are looking for a talented ruler among the humans. A ruler? Yees. They're looking for a strong and influential ruler who can change the history of mankind. Someone like Jesus or Sakamuni. Well, the artifacts just want a strong destroyer who will shake human society on their behalf. He said that he believed that was why the monarch's heirlooms had appeared. Why? Everybody is the same if they don't have artifacts. Artifacts were basically items they were similar to equipment or potions in video games. That was why people became regular again if that item was destroyed or stolen. There were many ways they could lose artifacts. However, things seemed a bit different once someone earned a heirloom. You truly stop being a normal human once you get a heirloom. Is the reason you can survive after falling out of an airplane because of that? Ah, ahem. Crazy bastard. They seem to make people superhuman so that they can handle artifacts better and more effectively than others and live much longer as well. Even a cunning human wouldn't be able to do anything if they lost their strength, was assassinated, or arrested. The heirlooms were created to create humans who could bother other humans most effectively. It was truly fitting of the artifact's desires. Now back to the present Juhian had a pretty good idea now. This unknown artifact was desiring him for a similar reason. He wondered if the crow was looking at him the same way, but get lost artifact. Don't you dare lay a finger on that human. Ugh. A familiar aura that Juhian presumed was the crow's pushed the chaotic aura away. Evil divine grade artifacts are clashing against each other. It was a clash between two extremely strong powers. The shock from the battle destroyed the ground and the ceiling making Juhian fall underground. Thankfully, that chilling artifact did not chase him any longer. Ugh. Juhian caught his breath and started to think. Did the crow appear again? He wondered why it was here but decided not to think much about it. That bastard was a stalker that always followed him around anyway. Sire, sire. It smells. The shaking panties air, Bayan Kongso crawled out of Juhian's pocket. It smells. You smell in my opinion. Juhian became annoyed and tried to turn around. I need to go find a different heirloom. One that is decent enough to contract. He could tell after coming up against one heirloom. They're strong. Juhian started to smile with excitement. That bastard he just saw might be unique but heirlooms truly seem to be at a different level. That was why he desired them even more. 
he could now understand why the people with heirlooms became much stronger. Ju Hian's eyes were sparkling as he started to walk down a side path. He could tell where to go after focusing for a moment. I feel an extremely strong heirloom in that direction. There were two heirlooms in this area. He didn't know why there were two here but he seemed to have made the right decision to come to the area that seemed to have the strongest artifacts. This one gave a much better feeling than that chaotic one from earlier. Not over there. Not over there. The rope was whimpering for some reason and tightly grabbing onto Ju Hian's foot. Ju Hian got angry because it was pulling him in a direction where he didn't feel anything. Let go of me. It's not over there. The rope vigorously shook its head. No. No. Not over there. Let me go. No. No. Why the hell is it acting like this? Ju Hian was about to ignore it and go look for another heirloom. Boom. The tomb suddenly started to shake. He tilted his head in confusion and tried to walk again. The tomb started to shake with anger every time he tried to go to find a different heirloom. Ju Hian didn't know why that was happening. He didn't know until Bayan Konso said something. Sire. I believe the crow's tomb is near this area. Ju Hian stopped moving. Chapter, 259. Sire. I believe the crow's tomb is near this area. Ju Hian stopped moving. Wait, what did it just say? He looked at Bayan Konso in his pocket thinking that he had heard wrong. What did you just say? T, the cronym no. That crow that deserves to be cursed is nearby sire. Bayan Kongso was shaking as he said that. This reaction was understandable. The crow was an artifact that even Divine Grade were extremely wary about. There was no way that Bayan Kongso's artifact, a mere B-grade artifact, would not be scared of it. Ju Hian frowned after hearing it mention the crow. The crow's tomb is nearby. Ju Hian found this to be odd. It wasn't that he did not expect it. The monarch of fate made that prophecy. He said that the crow's tomb would appear when the heirlooms appear. That was something he would not forget. However, Ju Hian had believed that it was not this place. Why? I didn't feel the aura of the crow's tomb at all. He had already been to the crow's tomb once before. He would not forget the unique sensation of that tomb. This was not Ju Hian being arrogant that was how impressionable the crow's tomb was as it was a tomb that openly showed off its domineering strength. It was a tomb that his team, the veterans among veterans, could not figure out. It was a place where you were dead by the time you noticed a tomb and a place where, forget having a funeral for their fallen team members, they didn't even have time to grab their bodies. If that shitty tomb was here, he would have definitely noticed it. It left such a terrible taste in his mouth that he was extremely wary of it. But what? Did you say the crow's tomb? Yes sir, it is quite far, but Ju Hian thought for a moment before starting to walk in the original direction he had planned. It was to be expected. There was another heirloom nearby. An extremely strong heirloom is nearby. The rope reacted nervously and held on to Ju Hian for dear life once again when he tried to move. Not over there, no. What's up with this thing? Ju Hian looked at the rope in disbelief but the rope was whimpering. It was weird because it would not normally act like this. There was a reason the rope was acting this way. There's something dangerous over there. Something dangerous. It was a dangerous bastard even among the heirlooms it was better than that artifact that stalked Ju Hian earlier, but it was still dangerous. It was the type that cut away at its master's life. The rope was flailing around trying to explain it to Ju Hian. Ju Hian watched the rope make all sorts of odd motions before nodding his head. Got it. I understand exactly what you are trying to say. The rope's face lit up after hearing that comment. Then. It's so nice of you to cheer me on. Thank you. The rope was shocked. The rope turned pale after seeing Ju Hian start to walk again. T, that's not what I meant. The rope sniffled and chased after Ju Hian, making Bayan Kongso say something. S, sir, I think it is saying that you shouldn't go that way. I know. He was just messing with it. It looked quite cute as it desperately flailed around. 
Zhu Hien soon started to focus and detect auras. Xiao Lei would have been able to do it better if she was here, but she was not with him right now. However, he could do just enough for what he needed. An evil artifact is being sensed. A holy grail is being sensed. An artifact of knowledge is being sensed. An extremely chaotic crow's aura is being sensed. Zhu Hien started to smile. He could sort of tell where the crow's tomb was located even without asking Bai and Kong so. Zhu Hien then nonchalantly chose a direction. Good, let's head toward this holy artifact. Yes sir, I have a good feeling about that artifact as well. The tomb started to shake once he made up his mind. Rumble. Zhu Hien looked up at the ceiling after feeling this sudden shake. Should I just aim for the artifact of knowledge then? Oh. That sounds great too, sire. However the tomb started to shake again. Whatever was causing it seemed even more upset than earlier. Zhu Hien chuckled and chose a direction. No. The evil artifact it is. The tomb started to shake as if the whole world was ending as Zhu Hien entered the middle road. It seemed to be protesting why he had to pick that one of all things. It was at that moment. The tomb started to shake as if the thing responsible for causing this phenomenon was annoyed. S. Sire. Of course, the tomb was not crumbling. The terrain was just shifting and creating a path for him. A small path appeared to Juhian's right. The small path seemed to be asking him to come that way. Some messages then popped up. It seems as if something good will happen if you take this path. It seems as if you will become extremely lucky. It seems as if you will gain an extremely beneficial artifact. Juhian scoffed after reading those messages. My goodness, look at this punk. As for how the others were doing our shit, how the hell do I get in there? Yu Jeha was holding an axe as he tilted his head side to side inside a cave he had come to find his monarch of fraud's heirloom. He clearly remembered the place he went to in the past. Fuck, it's impossible to go in here alone. He couldn't do it alone. This was an extremely dangerous path. He went in with TKBM's excavation team in the past as well. Yu Jeha peeked toward his friend. Next to him. Hey, you go inside. Are you crazy? Ilya, who barely managed to get away from the cannibals, was huffing as he looked back at Yu Jeha. They could tell because they were both veterans. We're fucked if we go in there like this. That was why they were struggling out here when they barely made it to just about where the heirloom was located. What to do? The heirloom is right in front of us. What the? Why are you here? It looks like you made a new friend. Yu Jeha's eyes opened wide after hearing some familiar voices. He turned around and saw some people standing there. Julian and Shin Sung Hee. Yu Jeha scoffed after realizing who they were. Sun Bei No, why are you shitheads here? Who were these people? The official top restorer team was in front of him. The number one official restorer, Yu Jeha Sun Bei, and his hubby were with them. Julian started to frown after hearing Yu Jeha's response. He didn't like how Yu Jeha was coming off extreme. She felt as if she was being forced to kneel in front of Irene. She felt as if she had turned into a maid. Of course, Irene was nice to Daji when they first saw each other here. How could she not? Whether she liked it or not, Daji was Juhian's artifact. However get lost. I don't want to be dominated by you. Daji tried to kill Irene and ended up being instantly suppressed by Irene. Whether it was because she was a monarch for a reason or because Juhian's lessons were extremely effective Irene easily suppressed Daji even though she should have been difficult to handle. She treated Daji nicely even though she did not like Daji very much. However human. Do you know which part of my body Seo Juhian likes the most? Daji started to seriously get on Irene's nerves. She was doing it because putting a person in disarray would lower their dominance. However, forget Irene's dominance going down are you asking if I know what kind of skinship Mr. Juhian likes? She's asking if I know where Mr. Juhian likes being touched. You damn artifact of lust. What the hell did she just say? Bong. Irene had exploded in anger. Returning to the present Kaya. No, I was wrong, stop, stoop. Kaya. 
Daji was being destroyed by Irene's dominance. She was a model student in Juhian's classes and knew how to destroy artifacts unlike most people. That wasn't all. What? What did you say about the Captain Nim's Yang energy? You damn artifact. Where the hell did such a treacherous thing roll in from? I was being nice to it until now because it is the Captain Nim's artifact. Let go of me. You damn concubines. I am the true wife. Are you fucking crazy? Daji now had to face not just Irene's wrath but Ciole and Chloe's wraths as well. Daji tried to call her subordinates out to defend but it was useless. Daji forcibly had her powers removed and turned into a little girl. There were people shaking in fear as they watched. A, as expected of a monarch. She's strong even without the artifact of destitution. That's not all. I'm sure that all of those women are monarchs. There are truly amazing people around Seo Juhian. The hunters who had approached to take care of them did not dare to get close. L, let's run away for now. But at that time where do you think you're going? They screamed after seeing a man place his hand on one of their shoulders. Why, you are. The monarch of strategies. Julian smiled brightly. Just hand over everything you have. The area was soon full of screams all of the enemies foamed at the mouth and fainted because of artifact bombs. He then calmly took everything from them, including their wallets and artifacts. The monarch of strategies seemed to have turned into the monarch of pillage for some reason. Irene and the others were shocked to see this. Vice Captain Nim. Mr. Miller. Julian was relieved to see that they were all okay and started to speak. It looks like we need to start moving quickly. The main excavation teams seemed to be arriving at the island one by one. He asked them if they had seen Juhian or the others. I feel like I can sense an heirloom around here. Ciole looked anxious as she pointed to the north of the central region. I felt the Captain Nim's aura over there. A bright light burst out from the stone mountain they expected Juhian to be. That is. Julian and Ciole were especially shocked. They saw a chaotic aura shooting up into the sky. This aura was familiar to both of them. It was the same aura they had felt in the tomb where they had died. Chapter, 260 It seems as if something good will happen if you take this path. It seems as if you will become extremely lucky. It seems as if you will gain an extremely beneficial artifact. Juhian shook his head after reading those messages. This crow bastard. In a way, it was kind of obvious what it was trying to do. That was why Juhian was trying to ignore it and go find the heirlooms he then started to wonder. Will that bastard really be beneficial for me? That bastard had been the one to return him to the past as he was about to die. It had since then followed him around like a stalker. It probably gave him powers so that he could help it get out of its tomb. Is it really okay to let that bastard out of the tomb? Ju Hien had never seen that suspicious artifact before. Furthermore, this cursed crow was despised by the artifacts. Ju Hien decided to walk down this side path. There were other heirlooms available but he was now curious. He really wanted to know how useful it was that it was saying such bullshit. His curiosity was too strong to go look for any other artifacts right now. He came across a dead end not long after entering the path but it didn't matter. Tumblif. This was probably some kind of seal created by the artifacts. There were lots of difficult text that humans should never be able to read. Unfortunately for them, Juhian had no problem reading it. The interesting thing was that the faint tumblifs started to light up every time he touched them. It was at that moment. A portion of the tomb is being opened. Boom. The wall crumbled and an extremely bright light flashed. That was how the chaotic aura started to shoot up from the monarch's tomb. And at the same time Vice Captain Nim, that is. Juhian's team was becoming anxious while looking at the raging aura. They were certain of it. That aura is, it was the same chaotic aura they had felt in the tomb where they had died. It's that crow. Of course, they had never met with the crow. Juhian was the only one who had done so. However, they could tell. They could tell that this was the tomb where they had died. It wasn't completely the same but it was almost identical. 
They then started to shake with fear. How could they not? Siole, is the captain Nim? This question did not need to be answered. They didn't know what was going on but they knew that Juhian was over there right now. He was in a place that was similar to the tomb where they had died. The tomb from back then didn't appear again, right? Siole started to run the moment she recalled Juhian having his legs cut off in the past. Captain Nim. Siole. Juhian had told them that the crow helped send him back to the past. It had helped him. But who cared about that? It's still an artifact. It was the owner of the tomb that killed them. Since they didn't know anything about that tomb, they could only rely on the one thing that they knew, the crow was their enemy who had eaten Juhian. Siole was fuming with anger thinking about that. Julian realized something and started to shout. Siole, you can't go that way. There were suddenly giant balls of fire falling from the sky. Irene flung herself to push Siole out of the way. Boom! The fireballs just barely missed Siole. You guys can't go over there. The enemies started to appear one by one. They saw people wearing orange jackets. They seemed to be part of Austin Rockefeller's excavation team. They could also see other excavation teams that were aligned with them. None of them were in the top five like TKBM's team but multiple teams close to that level were slowly showing up. Julian started to frown. What the hell are you guys doing? The enemy started to laugh at Julian's question. What else? Our captains ordered us to hinder people that are in their way. What? We heard that there is an heirloom that is stronger than all the others. What was it, the crow or something? That chaotic aura is probably that crow. We don't know what kind of artifact it is but that belongs to our captains. Why not choose the best of the best, right? They seem to believe the monarch of fate's shoddy prophecy. Aim for the crow among the heirlooms it is the strongest artifact. Most of the monarchs should have heard that rumor. However, Juhian's team members snorted after hearing that. It wouldn't have been weird if they started rolling on the floor laughing. Retards. They had to aim for that artifact of all artifacts. They're all going to die. They knew from experience. That was why Juhian's team members were worried about Juhian as they looked toward the stone mountain with the chaotic aura. The captain should be okay, right? Don't be greedy. That's a monster. Julian hoped that Juhian would be smart. The tomb suddenly started to shake. Everybody in the tomb started to scream. Ilya started to shake in fear because of the chaotic aura spreading all around them. Fuck, this is. Ilya plopped down after sensing the terrible aura and almost vomited. Ilya also recalled the moment of his death as Julian, Siole, and Chloe had felt. Ujeha became anxious. Hey baby chick. What's wrong with you? Ilya was shaking as he quietly mumbled. That time, when we died, that that tomb. Ujeha had not felt it because he had sent a clone. But he was smart enough to quickly figure it out. That bastard, the monarch of fate, said that the crow's tomb would appear here. It really is here. An extremely strong earthquake rumbled the island and the scared excavation teams started to talk. Hey, what was that earthquake just now? Is someone already getting their hands on a heirloom? Julian, the top official restorer, was confused as well. Unlike the sensitive Ilya, the others did not seem to have noticed the crow's aura. It was the same for this woman as well. Um, I guess Co Juhian really isn't here. Ujeha and Ilya started to frown. It couldn't be helped, since Shinkai Yuan, the monarch of gluttony. The woman from China with the supreme leader artifact. Why did this woman of all people have to appear? They were just too unlucky. It was understandable if another monarch suddenly showed up. Even they would be quite the headache right now, but one of the four emperors is too much. Ilya started to swear. Hey, fuck, shouldn't one of the four emperors showing up in front of the Kapta Ugg? Ilya was saying that when Ujeha smacked him. Ilya instantly started to glare at Jeha. What? Am I wrong? No. I just wanted to hit you. Ujeha was catching his breath as he said that. 
He had been flustered for a moment after meeting one of the four emperors, but decided that it should be okay. Zhen Kai Yuan should have had her artifacts taken as well. Everybody should have ended up with useless artifacts. We're all dealing with the same conditions. That meant that they should be at an advantage since they had more know-how of tombs. But what? Hey. Push over. I, is that thing? They gasped after seeing the orb in Jin Kai Yuan's hand. It was an orb with lightning crackling around it. Is that perhaps? Is that Kongming's lightning artifact? Ilya and Yu Jeha gasped at the same time. They knew they were right. That was definitely Julian's Indra's artifact. They then became angry. Did you bastard Har Miller? Julian, who seemed to be working with Jin Kai Yuan, sneered at them. What bullshit are you talking about? We never even ran into Julian Miller. Professor Jin Kai Yuan was just assigned Indra's artifact from the beginning. This made Ilya and Yu Jeha extremely angry. Wait, what the hell? We get some stupid dog bone like artifact and she got Indra. She got a damn divine grade artifact. Those motherfucking heirloom bastards. It seemed to be true that the heirlooms had already chosen their candidates. That was why the heirlooms gave the artifact users they didn't care about useless artifacts while giving their preferred candidates great artifacts. Well, I guess it is expected that they would treat the woman with the supreme leader artifact well. However, at that moment something even more shocking happened. What could it have been? Sunbei. You know what this is, right? Julian and Yujeha's hubi, Shin Sung He, took out a problematic item. It was Leonardo da Vinci's artifact. Yes, this was Jeha's artifact. Julian's subordinate ended up with Leonardo da Vinci's artifact. Ilya gasped while Yu Jeha foamed at the mouth. Ah, uh, fuck. Why the hell is my artifact over there? Unfortunately, it was like pearls on a pig since Shin Sung he did not have the skills to activate it. Julian started to laugh as he watched Jeha's reaction. Sung he can't transfer ownership so she has it right now but see what happens when we get out of the tomb. Da Vinci's artifact and the heirloom are both mine. You just wait and see, Yu Jeha. Yu Jeha grabbed the back of his neck. Now it made sense why Jin Kai Yuan agreed to work with these restorer bastards. There was a simple explanation. Those bastards probably agreed to become exclusive restorers for China if she helps them get heirlooms that was the truth. No matter what happened in the past, Julian was the top official restorer. Yu Jeha may have pounded him to the ground but he still had the title of world's greatest restorer. China cherished restorers because Pandora swiped away all good restorers right now. They were training some of their own but they would need time for them to get better. Furthermore, they needed something like Da Vinci's artifact to restore divine grade artifacts and the supreme leader's artifact. So, when the top restorers showed up in front of her and offered to be exclusive restorers for China if she helps them get heirlooms? In addition, they happened to have Da Vinci's artifact with them. It must have been a deal China could not turn down. This situation looked quite problematic for Jeha and Ilya. We're going to lose the heirlooms to them like this. Zhen Kai Yuan would not have issues going through the traps and getting the heirlooms since she had Indra's artifact. Ilya poked Jeha and asked a question. Hey. Push over. What the hell are you going to do? We have no useful artifacts right now. They would be too embarrassed to face Ju Hian like this. But at that moment there was another earthquake. Ah. Again. What is up with these earthquakes? The crow's chaotic aura shot out again. It was stronger than last time. It was strong enough that the others noticed it as well. Hey, is this is this what the monarch of fate prophesized? This is that crow's artifact. Zhen Kai Yuan must have felt that strong presence as she started to smile. This is. She had an extremely desiring look on her face. And then she quickly started to move in Ju Hian's direction. She must be aiming for the crow's artifact. Yu Jeha became concerned and started to shout. Wait. He didn't know why, but he felt that it would be bad if this woman went to where his captain Nim was right now. That was probably the reason. Hey professor. Why don't you ignore those bastards and work with me? What? 
He needed to keep this woman here. He also needed a way to gain an heirloom. Finally, he also needed to get Da Vinci's artifact back. The monarch of Pushoverness had found a way to kill three birds with one stone. Professor, you're interested in our Captain Nim, aren't you? I'm right, aren't I? Zhen Kai Yuan stopped moving and looked toward Yu Jeha. What does that have to do with you? Yu Jeha started to smile. I got you now, you bitch. What does that have to do with me? I'm thinking about giving you something extremely precious. The heirlooms were a mess. It was because of that damn crow's aura that was spreading throughout the monarch's tomb. Holy shit, what the hell is this? It's the scent of that crow. They were extremely anxious. Zeus's eagle had visited and told them the following. Take a good look around the tomb. We can feel that crow bastard's aura. But even if they had gotten the warning they had ignored it until now. They thought that something like that was not possible. The only ones in this tomb are the fifteen heirlooms only the fifteen special artifacts to select the monarchs were here. That was what they believed. Fifteen total godly and evil godly artifacts. Fifteen artifacts to rule them all. These artifacts would choose the humans they believed were qualified to be monarchs and give them power beyond their wildest imaginations. However, the scent of the crow bastard they had exiled was spreading through their tomb right now. What is going on? Why is that bastard here? Someone else responded. A, hey, actually, it's not that weird is it? What? The crow was originally one of the heirlooms it was just that it had its qualifications revoked and a different artifact had taken its place. D, does that mean there are 16 heirlooms in this tomb then? What's most important is how that bastard got here. The heirlooms became anxious. They had not noticed it until now. They had not realized that the crow bastard had snuck into the tomb. Around that same time Juhi engulfed after breaking the seal of the tomb and entering. That motherfucking crow. How the hell is this going to help me? It was rare to see Juhi in sweating bullets like this. He became scared once he broke the wall and entered. It was because he was reminded of the tomb where they had died. It felt as if he was walking into a tiger's den. Bayan Kongso had fainted a long time ago. The rope was fine but it was stuck on Juhian's shoulder and looking around. As the rope was doing that they walked through the small path and entered a wide area of the cave there was a small bit of light coming in from the ceiling. It allowed him to see something sitting there. Human, you are here. It was a bastard with pitch black wings. Chapter, 261 There was a small bit of light coming in from the ceiling. Something was sitting there. Human, you are here. It was a bastard with pitch black wings. Juhian scrunched his eyes. He looked around this dimly lit cave there was sand all around with a large lake. Juhian was quite familiar with this tomb. It's that tomb from the past. His hands couldn't help but shake in fear. Maybe that was to be expected. Even he couldn't be calm in the tomb where he had experienced death. Who would be able to remain calm in such a situation? Who could do that, especially if the death had been extremely brutal? Juhian vividly remembered that moment as if it was yesterday because his memory was extremely good. He would have to be a robot to not be shaking in fear. But Juhian's shaking slowly started to stop. He realized something important. No, it's not that tomb. He had originally thought it was the same because of the crow but it was different. It's different from back then. It was oddly different in some way. Was this a different tomb? Or maybe this was a fake tomb? Juhian glared at the bastard with his eyes opened wide. That bastard should have the answer. The bastard was sitting up high with its wings spread out. Its red eyes were flashing. Human, it's been a while. It had only seen Juhian face to face twice before. The first time was in that final tomb. Juhian had seen it in that bright flash of light that had brought him back to the past. He had seen the appearance of the crow that any human would desire. He saw the apparition of a crow in that blinding light. The other time was when he was fighting against Chairman Quan during the Great Tomb appearance. That bastard had appeared during that first incident with the Egyptian doggies. It had fluttered its black wings. It had the same overbearing eyes. 
That was the same right now. That was why Ju Hian only had one reaction. He sneered at the crow. You haven't changed at all, you stalker bastard. This was probably not a clone. He would have recognized it right away if that was the case. Most artifacts were sadistic perverts who liked to hide away and peek at the humans trying to complete their tests. But this bastard revealed himself even without Ju Hian looking for him. Ju Hian asked him a question. He had something that had been on his mind for a long time. Why did you save me? No, why did you bring me back to the past? All of these damn artifacts had a reason for their actions. There was no way this bastard gave him such abilities out of goodwill. Did you hope I could get you out of here? Or were you thinking about fattening me up before you ate me? Those were both plausible reasons for artifacts. They were evil creatures that enjoyed human suffering as the greatest form of entertainment. He had been wary about the crow's abilities for that reason even though he kept using them because they were useful to him. He still did his best to use the crow's abilities, such as the tomb destruction ability, as least as possible. The crow seemed to want him to use those abilities to destroy tombs after all. However, this was how the crow responded. There was no reason. I have never really had any interest in humans. I saved you on a whim as well. A whim? Yes. I was sleeping when you started shouting so much, you damn bastard. That was true. Ju Hian had been shouting in anger because his teammates had all died and he was being eaten by the snake as well. He had been shouting in anger toward Chairman Quan. I just decided to see how far a human bastard could go since I was so bored. So then, you're saying you didn't have any ulterior motives. That's correct. Ju Hian accepted that answer. As he nodded his head the crow fluttered its large wings as if it was happy with Ju Hian's reaction. Now then. Here is your reward for making it all the way here. I will give you special treatment and assign the tomb's TE it was about to say that it would give Ju Hian the test. However okay, keep up the good work, bye. Ju Hian turned around without any hesitation. He then calmly started to walk down the path he had come from. He seemed to have no regrets. The crow called out to Ju Hian. Hey, human. It seemed oddly flustered. It felt that way although it was trying its best not to show it. Hold on. I'm telling you that I wish to contract with you. However, Ju Hian didn't care and started to walk. It even made the rope that was wrapped around Ju Hian's neck urgently look at its master in confusion. Is it really okay to just leave like this? Is it okay to leave? It must have thought that Ju Hian had come here to get the crow artifact. The crow had thought the same as well. Human. Did you not come here to earn an heirloom? I did, but you're not an heirloom. The crow then started to laugh. If it is something like that, then it doesn't matter. I am also one of the heirlooms to select the monarchs. I'm sure I'll be beneficial to Y really. Then good luck finding another candidate. Ju Hian was almost out of the pathway and started to laugh. He didn't care that this crow was an heirloom. Where the hell would I use such a savage crow? This was the crow that all artifacts feared. He did want it, but that crow ended up killing its own master. That was what the doggies had told him. Of course, Ju Hian knew that the crow had a former master. I heard that you guys pretty much brainwashed the crow's master. They had made the crow's former master betray the crow. That was why he thought that a different artifact had killed its former master. Did the crow really kill its master? It did. That human was already dead when the artifacts went to capture the crow. There was no other reason he would have died. Well, even the doggies didn't seem to know the full details. What Ju Hian did know was that this crow was cursed. There was no reason to take an artifact with such a shady background as his own. He definitely could not contract with it if it was an heirloom. Heirlooms were possession-type artifacts that each person was only allowed to contract with one. He would lose his chance to contract with another heirloom if he contracted with the crow now. There are more desirable ones. Ju Hian's eyes flashed. Honestly speaking, there were some artifacts that caught his attention. Based on the information he managed to force. Out of the Monarch of Fate, there were some heirlooms that Ju Hian would be interested in. 
He did not manage to figure out exactly what they were, but there were some he could hypothesize based on the information he heard about their traits. One of them was a divine Hadi. One there was also a divine giraffe that was said to be looking to select a benevolent monarch who would treat their subjects well. There was also the great fly, the symbol of the devils, but anyway those are more desirable than this guy. He preferred the other heirlooms over this cursed crow. As Juhian was about to get out of the cave rumble. The path is closing. The tomb's door has closed. This little punk. Juhian looked towards the crow. Around that same time professor, you're interested in our captain Nim, aren't you? Right? Ilya looked at Ujeha as if he was crazy after hearing his comments. What the fuck is this guy saying all of a sudden? Ilya thought Jeha had finally lost it. But what? What does that have to do with you? Ilya's jaw dropped after hearing Zhen Kai Yuan's response. She really is interested in him. Yu Jeha started to make a deal with Zhen Kai Yuan. I'll give you something extremely precious. Won't you work with us? Zhen Kai Yuan's subordinates and the top restorers became anxious. I was wondering what that bastard was suddenly going to say. What kind of bullshit is this? They then started to snort. It was obvious that he was trying to get Jin Kai Yuan, the strongest of them here, as an ally to get an heirloom. The professor won't work with you for something like that. Jin Kai Yuan seemed to know what Yu Jeha was thinking as well. Unfortunately, I will not give you the heirloom or even Da Vinci's artifact. China's future is on the line. She looked extremely elegant and beautiful as she smiled. Even Yu Jeha and Ilya couldn't help but gulp. They weren't falling for her because they knew of her witch-like personality and because of fear from her being one of the four emperors, but they would have easily fallen for her charm if they did not have their old memories. Ilya started to poke Jeha. He was asking what Jeha was planning. Hey, I don't know what you are thinking of giving her, but there's no way that this woman would agree to her. Ilya was shocked after seeing Yu Jeha pull out a picture. It was not an artifact. It was just a regular picture. Does he really think something like this would work? Yu Jeha shouted back with confidence. This is a secret picture of our Captain Nim, don't you need it? Let's work together. He did not show her the picture. He only showed her the back of the picture. The nearby excavation teams all started to laugh out loud after hearing Yu Jeha's comment. They had all been waiting to see what Jeha would say. Zhen Kai Yuan started to laugh as well. It is true that I am interested in Seo Juhian, but I don't need such a picture. That's right, the professor is only interested in Seo Juhian as an experimental subject. It was actually because she already had a ton of pictures of Seo Juhian. Zhen Kai Yuan then started to head toward the heirloom since she didn't have time to waste. She needed to quickly get that and then head toward the crow's aura. Now get lost. Otherwise, I will really kill you. Zhen Kai Yuan then activated Indra's artifact. Indra's artifact required a strong level of dominance and was extremely difficult to handle. However, Zhen Kai Yuan was using Indra's artifact extremely well even though she had never used it before. Crack, crackle. The other excavation teams started to cheer while Ilya was swearing internally. The four emperors are all motherfuckers. Ilya then urgently turned toward Ujeha. It was because Zhen Kai Yuan was confidently walking toward the tomb with the heirloom. All right, let's hurry. She called out to Julian. It was obvious that she was planning on giving the heirloom to him. But at that moment you'll regret it if you go. This is not a normal picture. This is a 19 restricted adult picture of our Captain Nim. Zhen Kai Yuan, who was about to walk into the tomb with Julian, instantly stopped moving. What? What kind of picture? Zhen Kai Yuan seemed extremely interested. Her expression was calm and she wasn't smiling, but Jeha was certain. Good, she bit the bait. Yu Jeha was chuckling internally. The people around them seemed anxious once Zhen Kai Yuan stopped moving again. Um, P, Professor. Yu Jeha slightly flashed the front of the picture he was holding. Zhen Kai Yuan saw a glimpse of flesh. Her eyes instantly started to follow the picture. However, Yu Jeha quickly flipped the picture back and started to smile. You saw it right? 
It really is a 19 restricted photo. It's a nude photo of the Captain Nim. He's in his birthday suit. Ilya seemed shocked after hearing that. Why the hell does this bastard have that? But Yu Jaha continued to triumphantly shout. I've been saving this to treat the Captain Nim's fans for a big occasion, but what should I do? Should I give it to you? Julian started to shout in anger. Hey, do you really think a deal like that would work? It was at that moment. Is that really Seo Juhian? Zhen Kai Yuan showed an unexpected reaction. They dropped their jaws in shock and turned toward Zhen Kai Yuan. P. Professor. Yes, I'll give this to you if you work with me. A thunderbolt struck down at that moment. Rumble. Yu Jeha was shocked. Zhen Kai Yuan was attacking Yu Jeha with Indra's artifact, probably thinking that she just needed to take it from him. Yu Jeha quickly held the picture above the lake. Stop it, the picture will fall into the lake if you attack me. You know that this is not a regular lake. Of course she did. This was a terrible lake that would melt anything that fell into it. The picture would not be safe either. By the way, this is the original. There are no copies. You understand. The captain there made me delete everything so this is a precious picture, the only one in the world. Zhen Kai Yuan turned around. She seemed to be thinking about something. The excavation teams became anxious after seeing her reaction. We won't be able to get an heirloom without this woman. They gulped and looked toward her. However, they started to smile. But there is no way this woman would betray us. There's no way she would fall for such a thing. However, she said something shocking. Fine. Monarch of pushoverness, you follow me instead of the official restorer. I'll help you get an heirloom. P. Professor. Yu Jeha started to smile. It was obvious that he was not thinking about the future. Chapter 262 The door is closing. You are stuck in the tomb. This little punk. Ju Hien looked toward the crow. The crow's eyes were glowing as it looked at Ju Hien. It seemed to be asking where he was going. The only difference from other artifacts was the type of reaction. Other artifacts were overbearing but looked down on humans. But this crow bastard was different. This tomb is the best compared to the other tombs. You will be able to get the most helpful artifact on this island right now. You will regret it if you leave what the fuck is this bastard saying after already blocking my exit? However, the crow was peeking at Ju Hien and saying things that were contrary to the messages he just received. Why are you not leaving? What the hell did it just say? Hey! You blocked the door. Open the damn door. The crow just ignored him and sat down. It seemed relaxed lying on its belly like a cat on top of a stone pillar. And then I never did such a thing. Figure out a way to leave this bastard. The crow seemed to be provoking him to try it if he can. This was it. The difference between this crow and the other artifacts was that it didn't seem to look down on humans. It was as overbearing as any other divine grade artifact but it didn't give off the special disgusting feeling that most artifacts gave off. That was interesting. However what are you doing? Hurry up and go find some other heirlooms it did seem to be the same as all other artifacts when it came to messing with humans. Juhian scoffed while looking at the crow that was feigning ignorance. Alright, that's how you want to play it. Okay, I'm going to go find a different one. Juhian headed toward the now blocked path. The crow didn't seem to care at all. It didn't think that Juhian would really leave this place. It was wrong. Rumble. He was actually trying to get out. The proof was that the blocked path was destroyed and reopened. The crow could soon see a despairing Bayan Kongso. S. Sire. Was I of assistance to you? Yes. I won't forget about your sacrifice. Bayan Kongso looked full of admiration even though it was a mess. S. Sire then. I will give you special treatment and restore you in fifty years. Ugh. Bayan Kongso who had instantly turned into a bomb fainted. Ju Hien nonchalantly left Bayan Kongso behind and left through the opening. The crow looked baffled at this development. 
The Juhian it had seen until now was definitely this kind of person but it never expected Juhian to actually blast his way out. Did he hate being in this tomb that much? Actually, forget baffled, it looked completely shocked. It wasn't hard for it to block the path again, but bang. Baba ba bang. Juhian calmly used his tomb destruction ability. He then started to mumble in confusion. Huh, what the hell? I can use my skills. All of his skills were given to him by the crow. He had expected it to not work in this tomb, however, that did not seem to be the case. Bang. Baba bang. Bang. He had no issues using the tomb destruction skill. Ju Hian mumbled about how he had blasted Bayan Kongso for no reason as he left. He then said something to the shocked crow. You should have sealed my skills first, you retard. Rumble. The crow seemed extremely anxious once Ju Hian destroyed the last remaining wall. Although there were no changes to its expression and it still seemed calm, it was definitely anxious. That was probably the reason. F fine. Human, wait. I will not give you a test. A test my ass. Rumble. I, I told you to wait. The crow jumped up. Fine. I will tell you everything I know about the other bastards and their attributes. This seemed to catch Juhian's attention. However I'm curious but it's fine. I have a good idea since I heard some things from the monarch of fate. The crow did not seem as if it would give up. Fine. I will give you a special skill. I will give it to you without asking for anything. Ho. You already gave me multiple skills for free. You are going to charge for the next one. You're a total thief aren't you? Ju Hian shamelessly clicked his tongue. I have a lot of heirlooms I desire. You are not even in consideration since I can't even decide among the few of them. This is just a cursed crow anyway. The crow was almost out of options as Ju Hian turned around to leave again. It had to resort to the only card it had left. You wish to have all fifteen heirlooms? Hmm. Ju Hian stopped after hearing the crow shout at him. The crow confirmed he stopped walking before continuing to speak. You can have all fifteen of them if you take me with you. Ju Hian turned around toward the crow as soon as it said that. Oh, is that for real? He was smiling as if he had been waiting for something like this. His gaze was completely different from before. At the same time the heirlooms that were being anxious about the crow's aura heard some shocking news. What did you say? You think Seo Juhian made contact with the crow? This was extremely shocking news for them. It was because they all knew about the crow's abilities. This isn't good. If that bastard contracts with a human again. There would be chaos once more. How the hell did that bastard appear here? The only thing they knew for sure was that the damn crow's tomb was not here. The heirlooms had no choice but to call forth the seven great artifacts they had imprisoned. Salieri and Daji were currently with Ilya and Irene. The only ones left here were Nero, the pharaoh's artifact, Napoleon, and Xiang Yu. Weren't you bastards responsible for the configuration of the crow's tomb? The 108 divine grade artifacts had sealed the crow artifact. However, the artifacts of the seven great tombs were responsible for the construction of the tomb. Why don't you explain yourselves? Did you guys let it free? It is not like that. Nero was the one to respond. Seo Juhian has gathered over half of the seven great artifacts. Are you saying the seal on the crow's tomb was released because of that? The artifacts captured by Seo Juhian aren't free to go about as they please. They don't have the strength to pay any attention to the crow's tomb. That was true. Any artifact that landed in Juhian's hand went through a sort of hazing process. The doggy artifacts started to shake after hearing that. The ones who had gone through that training knew how it was. They knew how evil Ju Hian was as he destroyed them to the brink of death and then restored them. Basically, the seal on the crow's tomb would have become weaker during the times when the artifacts from the seven great tombs would have been on the brink of destruction. That probably led to a hole in at least a portion of the tomb. It must have escaped through that hole. That was how the crow had snuck into this monarch's tomb. It probably did it so that it could pick a monarch as well. 
the artifacts became extremely angry. How dare that bastard try to pull this crap when it has lost the qualifications to be an heirloom. That bastard is not qualified to choose a monarch. The artifacts did need an all-powerful human ruler. They needed a special human who would prevent them from turning into regular antiques. They had pulled some strings to not be shamefully ruled over, but they still needed a ruler. These heirlooms were the ones selected to choose candidates for that position. These special artifacts were the only ones given that unique responsibility. The crow had been one of them at one point but that bastard betrayed its kind and tried to get rid of all artifacts. We must get rid of that traitor for good this time. However, Seo Juhian was in their way. No matter how they felt, the crow artifact was a heinous and violent artifact that even the other artifacts feared. Then there was Seo Juhian, a headache of a human who would not fall for their seduction. If the two of them were to come together the crow's former master was at least able to be seduced. They were able to turn the crow's master to their side in the past. Humans were all the same. All humans were greedy. That was why humans became so insignificant in front of the artifacts. They would do anything and everything to make sure that the artifacts did not break or disappear. But forget cherishing them Seo Juhian would respond like this. A damn item doesn't want to listen to me. Then get lost. He would then ruthlessly destroy them. However, that did not mean that he was not a greedy bastard. He was the worst Nalbu of all but his greed still made him treat the artifacts differently than all of the other greedy humans. One if they tried to seduce him, they would be lucky to get away without being captured or destroyed. That was why they could not let it happen. Seo Juhian was extremely difficult to handle unlike the other humans. Prevent Seo Juhian from contracting that crow. We can't let that crow bastard rampage again. But how do we stop them? The heirlooms made up their minds. We don't have time to sit here and wait for the candidates. We don't have time to leisurely give them tests. Then. The heirlooms quickly rushed out of the tomb. Boom. Boom. They turned into rays of light and shot up into the air. They had come out of the tomb on their own accord. Stop Seo Juhian and that crow bastard. Their eyes were burning with rage as they flew toward Juhian. On another part of the island professor, what did you just say? The official restorers gasped and looked toward Jin Kai Yuan. Did you just say you would work with that bastard? Really for that Seo Juhian for a 19 restricted photo? It was awkward to even talk about. Jin Kai Yuan just started to laugh. Why can't I do that? Why would you think that makes any sense? Did this woman go crazy? The restorers screeched while Jin Kai Yuan's subordinates gasped. On the other hand, Yu Jeha was chuckling. I knew that woman was stalking the Captain Nim for a reason. He knew that this woman would fall for this. It was rare enough to find a photo of the Captain Nim and this was a 19 restricted photo. How could she resist? Ilya made a comment to Yu Jeha who was chuckling now that things were going according to plan. Are you scamming her? Do you really have a photo like that? Yu Jeha showed Ilya the photo. Ilya was shocked after looking at it. Hey, are you crazy? How are you going to deal with the fallout? A man must live every day as if it is his last. Ha, Captain Nim, I'm sorry. It was at that moment. Zhen Kai Yuan's subordinates were anxious at her capricious decision making. Captain, what are you? Shu. I'm sure that the captain has a plan. Although Zhen Kai Yuan was extremely capricious, she would not throw away things that were beneficial to China for nothing. She must be scheming something. That was the truth. He's useless once I get the photo. She was a cruel woman. She would pretend to help the monarch of pushoverness get the heirloom before taking the photo away. And then she would kill him. She started to proceed with her plan. All right, come here. This is the heirloom you wanted, right? Zhen Kai Yuan had crossed the path by the lake already and was smiling. She destroyed all of the traps in the lake almost instantly and had quickly grabbed the heirloom. The heirloom that had been hidden inside the lake that was now in Jin Kai Yuan's hand was the proof. Yu Jeha got close and reached his hand out. This thing that was shining radiantly was definitely an heirloom. 
It's the same one from the past. All right, hurry up and contract with me. Professor. Zhen Kai Yuan had a devious smile as she held the heirloom out for Yu Jiehe. It takes a few minutes to contract with an heirloom. He would be completely defenseless during that time. She would use that opening and I'm going to kill him. Ilya urgently shouted after sensing her overwhelming murderous intent. Hey! Push over! Hold on! Yu Jiehe placed his hand on the heirloom at the same time. But the moment Shin Kai Yuan was about to use a thunderbolt to kill Yu Jiehe Rumble, the entire tomb started to violently shake. It was much stronger than before again. Ah! Ah! They all screamed in fear. It was because the ceiling suddenly crumbled and they could see outside. They saw the heirlooms that had been hiding inside the monarch's tomb all flying toward one location. All of the monarchs on the island were shocked at this development. Those heirlooms then started to attack a certain tomb. Boom! Once the radiant rays of light started to crumble that tomb Seo Juhian. They could see it. They could see Juhian surrounded by an extremely suspicious and chaotic black aura. The author originally added the artwork for the rope after this chapter. Not the girl version, the one of the rope with the hearts around it dart. Rope a sales price, 1-500-001 illustrated by Sanji Jigsong This is inspiration. This is art. This is perfection. The rope looks exactly as you've all imagined in your mind. Thank you very much. Chapter, 263. Seo Ju Hien. They could clearly see it. They could see Ju Hien surrounded by an extremely suspicious and chaotic black aura. The heirlooms that had launched the attack couldn't help but become anxious. It was to be expected. The way he looks right now. They could tell. This black and chaotic aura was definitely that crow bastard's aura. Shit, did they already finish the contract ritual? They seemed to be in shock. They had burst out of the tomb they had worked so hard to create for nothing. However, the heirlooms quickly started to shake their head. No, look at Seo Juhian's condition. The heirloom started to smile. It's still the middle of the contract ritual. He had to thank it. It took some time for an heirloom to complete a contract with a human. It usually took a few minutes. It was that way because heirlooms were different from normal artifacts. Most possession type artifacts didn't do much, but the heirlooms actually modified the human body. All heirlooms had different abilities, but they all modified the human body to turn them superhuman, requiring some time for that to happen. That also meant that it's proof that the contract ritual is not completed yet. They still had a chance. The contract ritual only ended once the body modification was finished. The contract would not be completed if they managed to kill Seo Juhian or disrupted the process. The heirlooms quickly started to attack. It's easy peasy killing a human in that unguarded state. They launched the strongest attacks they could muster. However, the heirlooms could not get past the crow's aura. The heirlooms' attacks are disappearing. Damn it! It seemed as if that crow bastard was trying to protect its contractor. But their attack was effective. Warning. The contract is about to be cancelled. It is dangerous to be attacked any more than this. Ju Hien, who had been standing still like a doll even with the chaos around him, started to bleed from the mouth. Drip. The heirlooms were happy to see that things were going as they expected. Good. Let's finish him off. Die, Seo Ju Hien. The heirlooms launched their attacks once more. Boom. However, the crow's aura was still present even after their attack. What the hell? What is going on? They found it very odd after realizing that it was an issue with their fire power. They had rushed out here and left their bodies in the tomb so their strength was weaker than normal, however hey, don't you think we are too wee huh? They were shocked after looking around. That was to be expected. What happened to the other bastards who were here? Ha, huh, ha. Huh. What was going on? Some of the fifteen heirlooms that should have gathered here were gone. They were some of the stronger ones as well. It was no wonder that their fire power had decreased. What the hell? What happened to the rest? 
Ah, those idiots. They must have screwed up because they were in a rush. It's fine. Just wait a little bit. They'll reappear if there are no issues with their main bod dash as it was about to say that they would reappear flash. They saw a bright pillar of light shooting up in a different direction. The heirlooms gasped after seeing that light. They couldn't help it because the light was coming from where the bodies of the heirlooms that had just disappeared were supposed to be. And based on that light no way, right? Unfortunately, they were wrong. Something bad has happened. The heirloom subordinates urgently sent a message. Some of the heirlooms already ended up in Seo Juhian's group's hands. What? Wait, stop. If you do that. They urgently turned back toward Juhian. At the same time W, what the hell? That bastard. Zhen Kai Yuan's excavation team and the top restorers were gasping with astonishment. They couldn't help it because something they had not expected had happened. H, how is that bastard still alive? They were all shocked. Zhen Kai Yuan was especially shocked as she looked down at her hand. Her hand that was covered in thunderbolt was touching Yu Jeha's heart but Yu Jeha seemed perfectly fine after being struck by it. He seemed fine even though he had major burns all over his body. This was unbelievable. What is going on? It had taken less than a few seconds. Zhen Kai Yuan and her subordinates already knew that it would take a few minutes for a person to contract with an heirloom. They also knew that the contractor would be completely defenseless during that time. The contract would be voided if the human died during the process. That was why the sharper members of the excavation teams had realized that Chen Kai Yuan would pretend to give the monarch of pushoverness the heirloom before killing him off. She was not the type to throw away benefits for all of China over a single photo. Even if she really wanted the photo, she just had to kill Yu Jeha and take it by force. Our professor isn't the type to negotiate anyway. She just had to take it by force if she wanted it. But what? You. It was rare to find an anxious expression like this on Zhen Kai Yuan's face. However, Yu Jeha's expression was not changing even though his body was disgustingly burning and his hair and all burnt away as well. Egu, Professor Nim. I guess you've never seen something like this before. Zhen Kai Yuan did not usually get scared like this. She was not afraid of him humans were afraid of the unknown. Yu Jeha then grabbed Zhen Kai Yuan's arm. Zhen Kai Yuan was shocked. Ah damn it, just hurry up and remove your hand. It fucking hurts. This crazy bastard. This made no sense. Zhen Kai Yuan had pierced through Jeha's left chest as soon as he had placed his hand on the heirloom. She had used Indra's thunderbolt artifact. But something was weird. For reference, thunderbolts move at, at least, 100, 0, 0 kms. They were slower than light but they were too fast for humans to react to them. Furthermore, Zhen Kai Yuan had released the thunderbolt with murder on her mind unlike Julian who never used it for that reason. But the fact that this bastard was still alive must mean it's proof he formed a contract with an heirloom. Heirlooms turn humans into superhumans. They would go from regular to extremely powerful. That was why monarchs ended up having such a difference in strength compared to the expert-grade artifact users. The fact that he could survive such an attack must mean that the contract was completed. But that made it even harder to understand. How the hell did he complete a contract ritual that should take a few minutes instantly? The fact the ritual was over the moment he touched it was weird, no, should have been impossible. All of them were in disbelief other than one person. Ilya was the only one who seemed to understand this. I guess that punk at least has what it takes to be a monarch. Even if he was rotten, Yu Jeha was the only one on the team who had experienced what it was like to be a monarch. He had experienced the contract ritual with an heirloom once already. Why would it take a few minutes when he had already done it before? And now professor, you look shocked. Why are you so shocked? It was obvious. Yu Jeha had expected it. He knew what Chen Kai Yuan would do. That was why he had gambled with it. Thankfully, that gamble had paid off. Yu Jeha started to smile. Here's the photo as promised. Yu Jeha placed the photo in Chen Kai Yuan's hand. Unfortunately, it's a picture of me. Kakaka. 
Yu Jiehua then started to run. Zhen Kai Yuan looked at the picture and became angry. It wasn't risque enough to be called 19, but it was definitely a man's naked body. It was a back view of a naked Yu Jiehua. He looked quite average compared to Zhu Hian. Kakaka, I took it to use as a reference for art but who knew it would be useful like this. Anyway, Captain Nim, I'm sorry. I promise to follow you forever but I almost died just now. Um, you'll probably really die now. A thunderbolt struck down as soon as Ilya had that thought. Boom, boom. An angry Zhen Kai Yuan was launching thunderbolts left and right. Zhen Kai Yuan seemed extremely angry, as if her eyes had been sullied by looking at that photo. Her eyes had been sullied, the heirloom was taken, and she had been tricked by the monarch of pushoverness. It would be weird if she was not angry. Come over here, you damn monarch of pushoverness. No thanks. Would you come if you were in my shoe, you damn C.O. Juhian stalker? Yu Jeha then shouted toward Ilya. Hey baby chick. We need to go get you an heirloom too. Ilya started to smile. What did you say, you retard? Don't think that I am the same as you. I already got one. What did you say? When? Oh, you didn't know. It was when I was being chased by the cannibals. I think the others probably got some as well. Yu Jeha was shocked. While that was going on f, fuck. The monarch of strategies took the heirloom. The monarch of destitution also got an airlo dash ug. There was bad news coming in from multiple locations. The heirlooms aiming for Ju Hian felt as if their asses were on fire. Fuck, CO Ju Hian is really going to finish the ritual at this rate. TSK, we don't have enough fire power right now. They only had one choice left now. Use the humans in this tomb. Something shocking started to happen. The artifacts the heirlooms had stolen from the artifact users were all released. Of course, Ju Hian's group's artifacts were still imprisoned. The released artifacts all returned to their respective masters. The heirlooms were planning on using Ju Hian's rivals for their benefit. We just need to make sure CO Ju Hian does not contract with the crow. The other humans were not very dangerous to them. Ju Hian's enemies who had received their artifacts back were confused. What the hell? My artifacts are back. Why are they suddenly back? They disappeared as soon as we got to the island. Hey, whatever. We'll have no issues finding the heirlooms with these. Their eyes then flashed while looking at the central region of the tomb. Why? That's definitely the heirloom the monarch of fate mentioned. Aim for that crow. They didn't know that Juhian was there as well, but the crow's chaotic aura was clearly visible in the central region of the tomb. It was an easy target. We must grab that artifact. The artifacts were satisfied after looking at these people. Good, very good. Ju Hian's rivals who had gotten their artifacts back were teleporting or warping to move far distances in a short period of time. They were all headed toward the crow. They were moving so quickly. It was at that moment. Boom! Ju Hian's enemies had arrived through the opening the heirlooms had created. It was easy to find the crow because it was so strong. And then we found you, CO Ju Hian. The first thing they saw in the tomb was Ju Hian's back. Ju Hian was standing still in the tomb with his eyes closed. He was glowing under the light flowing in from the ceiling. They started to smile after surrounding Ju Hian. All right, hurry up and attack. Take that heirloom away. He doesn't have his artifacts on him either. This is our chance to get rid of him. The aura is strong but don't be scared. They got closer to take the crow artifact away. But at that moment the chaotic black aura instantly disappeared. It was completely clear, as if they were looking at the calm before the storm. That's right. Welcome. Are you guys my first prey? Ju Hian opened his eyes. You better have brought some good artifacts. His eyes were extremely red. Chapter, 264 Ju Hian opened his eyes. You better have brought some good artifacts. His eyes were extremely red. Everybody else became anxious. Ju Hian seemed dangerous and abnormal. 
considering the fact that the chaotic black aura all around the cave had disappeared considering Juhian's abnormal appearance considering him saying weird things like, you better have brought some good artifacts had he gone crazy. Take it. We can't let this bastard take the heirloom. The heirloom here was the strongest one according to the monarch of fate. Attack. He's all by himself. He doesn't even have any artifacts on him. Heirlooms are artifacts with no attacking capabilities. According to the prophecy, heirlooms were buff type artifacts. Even if Ju Hian had an artifact, he was pretty much empty handed compared to them. In addition, all artifacts required time to get used to them. Even monarchs were unable to handle divine grade artifacts right away. There's no way he can handle the heirloom immediately. They started to smile after going crazy with that thought. Take him out. This is our chance. Fireball started to fly toward Juhian. Bo 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 boom. Juhian just laughed while looking at those fireballs. Oh, the first is a roast. They couldn't believe what happened once he said that. Boom. The chaotic aura that they had thought was gone suddenly seeped out again. Actually, it was more like an explosion. The black aura that looked as if it was spewing out poison gas brought forth a vicious natural disaster. Boom. Ah. An earthquake that made it difficult for them to stay standing and a powerful typhoon started to attack the enemies. There is an earthquake. The chaotic power of predation is being activated. The power of predation is sucking in the enemies. The black aura Juhian was releasing gobbled up the fireballs in an instant. That wasn't all. All of the attacks were absorbed by this mysterious aura. Ah. The black aura that was radiating out like the rays of the sun looked alive. They were as dangerous as the red flares around the sun. The fireballs that were gobbled up by the black aura only helped it to grow bigger. It was becoming bigger and more vicious, as if it was a black hole ready to suck everything in. Everybody became scared but continued to attack. Ah! Fuck, T, take it away. Take it. He'll be the strongest of the monarchs if he has that. The strongest. The enemies summoned ancient soldiers, tried to use exorcism artifacts, threw some holy water, read some sacred texts, and even summoned man-eating spiders and rats. But none of that mattered. These retards are just giving it to me on a platter. W, what did you just say? Ache. All of the enemy attacks had disappeared because of the black aura. They only made the black aura stronger. It was taking the form of a crow. The black aura turned into the shape of wings and made it look as if Juhian had heinous crow wings on his back. Juhian started to grumble and proceeded to walk toward them as he gobbled up the artifacts. He sounded as if his appetite had been ruined. Hey hey. Not shitty things like this. You guys should have better things on you. Don't you? Some of them were shaking while others were gasping. Red eyes. People in the distance could not tell but people up close could see that Juhian's eyes had changed color. His normally black eyes were as red as the devil's eyes. It was the same red color as the crow's eyes. His eyes did not seem human at all. In fact, the atmosphere around Seo Juhian was completely different from normal. He didn't seem human. They were certain of it. This is the power of the heirloom. How could an heirloom, a mere buff-type artifact, have such powers? What kind of attribute does this heirloom have? Furthermore, how could he use it like this right after getting it? They had heard that even the monarchs would need at least a couple weeks to use them properly. Fuck, how can there be someone like this? They were scared. They couldn't move because of the fear. We can't take this away. Since all artifacts are strongest when used by humans, that aura from earlier was much wilder and stronger now that Juhian was controlling it. Their veins were showing as they started to shout. Our retreat, run away. They started to use their teleportation artifacts to run away. A portion of Anton Zielinger's teleportation experiment thesis B-grade, rare-grade, consumable artifact but they could not escape. Where do you think you're going? Huh? Juhian seemed like a child who was happy to be at a buffet because they could choose what they wanted to eat. Juhian's black aura started to crawl up their bodies as if it was alive. 
it seemed to be inspecting anything shiny they had on them. They gasped at the aura that was coming at them like snakes. Ah! Go away! Go away! The aura ruthlessly attacked them. The attacked people had their artifacts taken and their body and mind assaulted. Once the aura was done with them, it ruthlessly flung them away. Eek, eek. The heirlooms fell into states of shock while watching the artifacts being eaten. The heirlooms could not say anything while watching this one-sided predation. This could only mean one thing. The contract ritual is finished. That crow got another contractor. The heirlooms all got the chills. This was a big deal. We might end up disappearing once again. This was the sixteenth monarch who should not exist. This was an emergency situation. They had to change everything they had planned until now. We have no other choice. We need to hurry up and contract with humans. We don't even have time to watch them suffer through our tests. Hurry up and contract with the human bastards Pandora selected. All artifacts could only use about 70% of their powers without relying on humans. They had no choice but to contract with humans in order to fight against and get rid of this damn crow. Disperse. However hey. Where do you think you're going? They heard a voice below them. They looked down to see Juhian smiling wickedly at them to the point it gave them chills. You know that all of you belong to me now. The heirlooms froze on the spot after seeing that chilling smile. The heirlooms started to shake. This crazy bastard. H, hurry up and retreat to the tomb. Defend the tomb. The heirlooms who had only come with their souls quickly disappeared to where their bodies were still located. They would have just sneered if any other human bastard had said that, but the heirlooms were scared after seeing Juhian smile. They truly felt as if this bastard might gobble all of them up. They returned to their bodies and sealed the door to the tomb shut. They wanted to make sure Juhian could not get inside. Juhian saw these messages once he got to the heirloom's tombs. The tomb is rejecting your entry. You are not qualified. This tomb already has a master. Only those selected masters can enter. Only a person with the artifact of conquest may enter. These annoying bastards. Juhian's red eyes flashed. There was a large explosion at the tomb. Baba bang. The tomb is being destroyed. The tomb is violently being rummaged through. You took the artifact's body. Juhian was occupying one heirloom's tomb after another. It didn't matter that they locked the door. First one. Juhian didn't even have to touch the heirloom. He just activated the crow's artifact and the chaotic aura would surround and then gobble up the artifact. The heirloom that was being sucked into this black hole-like aura started to scream. F, fuck. Everybody, are you? Sadly, that was not the end. The heirlooms happened to be gathered together to support each other. Juhian just barged into the next tomb. It's that bastard. That bastard appeared in my tomb now. Calm down. Calm down and kill him. Even if the crow bastard was strong, they were all heirlooms they also had the numbers advantage. Furthermore, Juhian was still a baby chick of a monarch who had not been contracted for a long time. They believed they could kill him but Juhian disappeared like a ghost each time. You have hidden yourself with the stealth skill. You are invading a different tomb. He would use the stealth skill to disappear before popping up in the east and then the west. And then you have raided the holy heirloom that is looking to select a benevolent ruler. You have raided the heirloom that brings good luck. You have raided a holy heirloom. You have raided an heirloom. The excavation teams that were searching the monarch's tomb fell into chaos. They innocently walked into the tomb without knowing what was going on inside, but it's not here. It's not here. There's no heirloom in this tomb. But the tomb is still up. Where the hell did it disappear? Where did they go? One bastard had gobbled them all up a long time ago. Around the same time Seo Lei, who had been waiting for Juhian on top of a tree by the beach, was shocked. It was because of the things she could see on the horizon. Vice Captain Nim. Over there. There were many ships coming closer. 
They detected the auras and were able to tell that the soldiers of different countries and famous top excavation teams were all aboard. TKBM and the other large excavation teams that had been searching the wrong places because of Juhian's scheme had finally arrived. This is bad. There are too many of them. It's fine, they don't know that we've gotten heirlooms yet. They would hide around until their captain arrived and stealthily escape from the island. It was at that moment. Hey. Kong Ming. Irene. Seal AAA. They turned their heads after hearing some familiar voices. They could see Ilya and Ujeha gasping for breath. They were happy to see the two of them. Good job. You guys got heirlooms too. Of course, Irene gasped after seeing Ujeha who was now bald and had burns all over his body. My goodness, Mr. Jeha. Why do you look like that? Are you okay? However, the conversation could not continue. Why? Oh my, there are four more heirlooms here. It was because they realized who Ilya and Ujeha had dragged over. No wonder. They were wondering why these two extremely unfit slouches had been running. Zhen Kai Yuan. Why did they have to bring one of the four emperors here? They foamed at the mouth after seeing that they had brought a crazy boss monster. Over. Of all people they could have brought over. Are you crazy? You brought that woman wait a minute, isn't that my artifact? Julian gasped after seeing Zhen Kai Yuan handling Indra's artifact. Zhen Kai Yuan was extremely scary while using both the Supreme Leader artifact and Indra's artifact together. She was just walking over but looked like a demon empress who had descended to earth. Ju Hian's team members became anxious. Fuck, we need to hurry up and meet up with the captain. On the other hand, Zhen Kai Yuan could not believe it. She had chased Yu Jeha because he had annoyed her, but every single person on Ju Hian's team had an heirloom. You guys truly are amazing. You only have C-grade artifacts but managed to get your hands on heirlooms. They were all top-notch when it came to their abilities. It was quite obvious that Seo Juhian had created a team of monsters. Unfortunately, they had not completed the contracts with the heirlooms well, that's normal. It would be suicide to contract with artifacts they didn't know about. Juhian and Ujeha who contracted with the heirlooms as soon as they saw them were the weird ones. We can't let her take the heirlooms the gazes of Juhian's team members changed. Zhen Kai Yuan sneered at their actions. Oh my, you're going to contract with them right now. Zhen Kai Yuan's eyes flashed as if to tell them it was too late. Indra's swift thunderbolts that were too quick for humans to dodge struck down from the sky. But at that moment the thunderbolt aiming for Juhian's group disappeared. Hey. Do you want to get fucked up? Who told you to touch my things? They all jumped in shock after hearing a familiar voice behind them. Zhen Kai Yuan was shocked as well. Even Zhu Hian's group felt their hearts sink after feeling an extremely strong murderous intent. None of them noticed what had happened. Zhen Kai Yuan's head had fallen to the ground. Chapter 265 Zhen Kai Yuan's head had fallen to the ground. Plop. It made a light and dull noise once it fell. It had happened in an instant. Ju Hian's team turned pale after seeing the thing on the ground. How could they not when they saw a round human head? They couldn't believe what they were seeing. It had happened extremely quickly, as if someone had dropped a piece of fruit or ripped off the rotten parts of a veggie. Zhen Kai Yuan's body soon fell as well. The entire team was in shock once her body fell onto the sand. Unbelievable. That which is really dead. Even Ujeha, who had ran for his life while bringing the boss mob with him, couldn't believe it. That woman who never died despite everything we tried died so easily. It must not be a fake body as even he, an expert when it came to making fake corpses, was shocked. Is it because she hasn't contracted an heirloom yet? Julian had that thought as he turned toward Juhian. It was shocking that one of the four emperors of the past was butchered in an instant, but Ju Hian's strength was even more shocking. He contracted with it in the end. Even they couldn't help but flinch in fear. He could feel it with his skin even without having Zhuge Kongming's artifact on him. The black aura surrounding Ju Hian was now so strong that even civilians could see it. 
it seemed to be threatening everything around it to not mess with Ju Hian. Julian realized something. This is dangerous. Looking at Yu Jeha who was calm even after being burnt to a crisp was enough to tell that he was now superhuman, but Ju Hian was at a different level. If Yu Jeha was a superhuman, Ju Hian could probably be categorized as a demon king. He did not seem human at all. But at that moment, the crow's powers subsided once Ju Hian's eyes turned black again. That chilling feeling had disappeared as well. The entire team ran over to Ju Hian after seeing him start to walk toward them. Captain Nim. They seemed relieved at the fact that their captain was safe and full of admiration at the fact that he saved them. He even told that witch not to touch his stuff. Wow. I never knew you would cherish us like that, Captain Nim. Do you want to die? Who told you to put your hands on my heirlooms? Who told you to contract with it? That's what he was talking about. A shocked Yu Jeha retorted back. Why is it yours, Captain Nim? We won these heirlooms ourselves. Did you forget already? You guys signed the contracts. What's yours is mine. H, how can you say that? I just did. Yu Jeha started to cry. Damn it. Anyway, thank you for killing Jin Kai Yuan. I really thought she would kill me but I survived. It was at that moment. No. It sounds like you're going to die again soon. Excuse me. What do I? Ju Hian's eyes turned red again. Zhen Kai Yuan's lifeless body was starting to change. Zhen Kai Yuan's body was turning transparent like a spider's molting exoskeleton. W, what the hell is that? They could finally understand what had happened. N, no way. Zhen Kai Yuan was the person who used the Supreme Leader Artifact after all. Wow, she's definitely living up to using a spider artifact by molting. She seemed to be capable of moving to a new body when something happened. That meant that is her real body hiding elsewhere. Ju Hian peeked toward the forest. He could tell she was over there. He kept feeling as if something was sparkling inside the forest once he activated the crow's artifact. Captain Nim. Ju Hian looked toward the exoskeleton Zhen Kai Yuan had left behind. That exoskeleton was oddly turning into an artifact. Memory Boost Potion B Grade, Rare Grade, Possession Artifact and Artifact. It was very odd that a human body had turned into an artifact. Ju Hian started to smile. Zhen Kai Yuan was the person with the artifact of gluttony after all. The Supreme Leader artifact must have gobbled up numerous people. Some of them must have been ability users. Their artifacts must have been absorbed into this woman's body and it must have fallen out as she died. Ju Hian had an entertaining hypothesis in his head. Does that mean that an artifact would come out every time I kill that woman? E, excuse me. She's a total monster. Ju Hian disappeared as soon as he said that. All of the members were shocked. See, Captain Nim. Only the chaotic aura remained where Ju Hian had been standing. Huff, huff. Zhen Kai Yuan was breathing heavily while touching her neck. She still could not forget the sensation of having her head cut off. Although she had not been cut with a weapon like a sword, it was terrible feeling her veins and arteries getting cut like a hose. Co Ju Hian, you motherfucker. How could he just cut her head off like that? Well, she wouldn't die easily as long as she used the Supreme Leader artifact. But still I lost an artifact. In addition it's very cold. Zhen Kai Yuan, who had ended up naked after molting, was shivering because it was cold. She needed to find something to wear. Oh, you lost some of your wrinkles once you molted. Did you do some peeling treatment or something? She heard a chilling voice right behind her. Plop. Zhen Kai Yuan's head instantly fell off again. She had been murdered once again. Zhen Kai Yuan's body turned into an exoskeleton again before turning into an artifact. It was an A-grade possession type artifact this time. Opium poppy oil that makes you smell desirable A-grade, treasure grade, possession artifact Ju Hian started to smile after seeing the artifact. Now that he thought about, Zhen Kai Yuan always had a sweet and seductive fragrance. He had always thought she smelled like a plant luring in bugs to eat or something. It must have been because of this A-grade artifact. 
Ju Hian's red eyes flashed with greed. Will a S-grade artifact come out if I kill her again? Seo Ju Hian, that crazy son of a bitch. Ju Hian chased after Zhen Kai Yuan as if he had gone crazy. Spit out an artifact, you bitch. He continued to kill Zhen Kai Yuan. It wasn't as if she was going to really die. You gained a B-grade consumable artifact. You gained a C-grade possession type artifact. You gained a B-grade possession type artifact. You've gained an A-grade consumable artifact. You gained a S-grade consumable artifact. He seemed to be quite intrigued by the fact that an artifact popped out every time he killed Jin Kai Yuan. As for the victim she was so angry that she couldn't help but swear. Seo Ju Hian. Stop. Jin Kai Yuan became younger every time she molted. She was only 29 years old after all. Continuing to molt would turn her into a child and then a baby soon enough. But besides that, Zhen Kai Yuan was extremely angry. Even if she wouldn't really die, he was completely messing with her. It's useless. I told you to sto ug. Zhen Kai Yuan, who died again, started to grind her teeth while looking at Zhu Hian. Co Zhu Hian. Zhu Hian started to frown at her. What's wrong? It's okay for you to kill my subordinates, but I can't kill you. That might be the reason he was killing Jin Kai Yuan like this. You got that? Don't touch my things. Otherwise, I'll really fuck you up. She scoffed in disbelief. He had already killed her numerous times. She was angry that she could not get herself to hate Seo Ju Hian even after this. Rationally speaking she should loathe Seo Ju Hian, but she felt oddly excited that he was showing her some interest. It was a love-hate relationship. She oddly felt a sense of deja vu. At that moment Zhen Kai Yuan started to smile. I have no choice. Zhen Kai Yuan finally activated the Supreme Leader artifact. She had struggled so hard suppressing it since earlier as it seemed to want to react to the crow. She knew that the Supreme Leader artifact would rip off Ju Hian's arm or leg if she used it. She didn't want to harm Ju Hian's body but she was now at her limit. I'll be in danger if this continues. She would just help put it back and nurse him back to health if he lost a limb. The Supreme Leader artifact was activated. There was a loud explosion in the forest. The team members dropped their jaws in shock. It was obvious that it was a clash between two extremely strong auras. They could tell who it was. It must be the Captain Nim and that crazy woman. The shock from their fight was intense. It seemed to rival a nuclear explosion. The explosion happened in an instant and looked as if it would burn up the oxygen all around them. There were strong gusts of wind blowing from the direction of the explosion. They were so strong that normal humans should not be able to survive. It had completely disintegrated the forest that was the size of the Amazon with its blast. They quickly rushed toward Juhian. However stop. Numerous excavation teams surrounded Ju Hian's group. They were in serious trouble as they didn't have their main artifacts on them. And at the same time Ju Hian was thankfully alive. Blood was spurting out of Ju Hian's arm. Surprisingly, it was just a cut and nothing major. The one to receive a major injury was Seo Ju Hian, Yu. Zhen Kai Yuan seemed to be in pain as she glared at Ju Hian. Ju Hian was holding Zhen Kai Yuan's ripped off left arm in his right hand. He nonchalantly made a comment. Eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Ju Hian started to smile viciously. That hurt, you little punk. Zhen Kai Yuan started to laugh out loud in disbelief. Who is the one that is actually hurting? This was the difference between a person with an heirloom and a person without one. In that short moment of impact, Ju Hian had used the crow's artifact to absorb the supreme leader's power and reduce the damage. It did not mean that he was not injured at all. Blood was dripping down from Ju Hian's mouth. Ugh. He seemed to have taken a lot of damage absorbing the supreme leader artifact's power. As Ju Hian walked over to Zhen Kai Yuan to finish her off I didn't want to do this. Zhen Kai Yuan did something quite shocking. She stabbed her own neck with a knife. Puk. Ju Hian flinched for a moment. It reminded him of when Zhen Kai Yuan had committed suicide in front of him in the past. 
It wasn't that his mind was shaken or that he felt pity for her. As someone with a great memory, it just reminded him of that disgusting feeling from that time. The fact that he was using an heirloom that would take everybody else weeks to get used to probably played a factor as well. Your dominance is temporarily falling. Your accumulated fatigue and shaken dominance is preventing you from temporarily using the artifact. You cannot use it for five minutes. Damn it. We got you now, CO Juhian. Numerous excavation teams surrounded Juhian's group. There were some familiar faces there as well. TKBM. Chairman Quan's son-in-law Yun Shir Wu was there and so was the trashy son. Hand over the heirlooms while we ask nicely. You damn thieving bastard. We know that you looted all of the tombs. They seemed quite angry. They had snuck onto the island and into the monarch's tombs to find that they were all empty. That heirloom you have belongs to our chairman Nim. Hand it over. These fools. The area was surrounded by the hunters they brought with them. Juhian started to frown. It won't be easy to escape. How could it be easy when there were numerous angry monarchs who were here surrounding him? You can't take the heirloom with you. We already captured your subordinates down by the beach. They were extremely angry at the thieving bastards who had taken their heirlooms Juhian didn't have any of his useful artifacts. His body was too injured from absorbing parts of the Supreme Leader artifact to use the Crow's artifact. He also could not temporarily use any artifacts. I heard that Seo Juhian can absorb artifacts. Don't use your artifacts. Take care of him before he leaves the island. The excavation team's hunters started to charge toward Juhian. Bang! They heard a scream in the distance. Some people were charging toward where Juhian was right now. Ugh. Ah. Uh. They were Juhian's team members. Captain Nim. This way. They had stolen TKBM's ship as the vehicle for escape as they approached Juhian. The enemies gasped. This is bad. All of them have contracted with heirlooms. What did you say? All of them. Juhian scoffed after hearing that. Those little punks. I told them not to touch my stuff. He was still proud of them. Why the hell are you laughing? Hundreds of hunters aimed to take Juhian down. They would use regular weapons to assassinate him if artifacts would not work. Juhian clicked his tongue. It was quite far to reach the ship. What do I do? The hundreds of enemies all charged toward Juhian. Juhian picked up a regular dagger instead of an artifact. Five minutes. It was a short amount of time but would he be able to last that long against hunters? Kill him. This is our only chance. My goodness, isn't this too one-sided? The hunters were instantly swept away as Juhian heard a familiar voice. Boom. It truly had only taken an instant. The person had only used a single weapon. Juhian was truly shocked after seeing the man standing in front of him. Chapter 266. Juhian was truly shocked after seeing the man standing in front of him. It was rare to see this kind of expression on his face. Other people might just think that he looked like a slightly shocked rabbit, however some of his team members might rush in trying to taxidermy him with that expression because of how cute it looked. But it made sense that Juhian was shocked. Dan. A tall and bulky man with muscles so firm that a knife would break if someone tried to stab him with it it was definitely Dan. This was his hunter who always took care of the tomb raiding team's unbreakable defense and attack. Juhian's great partner who worked with him on the close-range combat side. Why was he here? Juhian could not get rid of the shock on his face. Did you? Dan smiled extremely brightly toward Juhian. Yes, Captain Nim. He seemed extremely happy to find Juhian. However, the enemies would not leave them alone to chat. What the hell, are you on CO Juhian's side too? Get lost if you don't want to die. They were all just bullshit in Dan's ears. Captain Nim, there is something I need to tell you. We said get lost. You son of a bi ug. Captain Nim, to be honest with you, I. Do you know about the bounty on CO Juhian's head? Move. Ugh. Captain Nim, actually, I. 
Kill him. Kill this bastard too ugh. Like I was saying, I. Die. Dan turned around in anger. My goodness, can I man please get a sentence out? One of the enemies was sent flying as soon as he said that. He even lost all of his teeth from a single punch. Dan's smiling face turned vicious. It's rude to cut in when someone is speaking. Don't you think so? Every second he could talk to Ju Hian was important. Dan's eyes scrunched together as if he decided this wouldn't work. Captain Nim, please sit down and stop your bleeding for a moment. He pulled out the knife he had kept sheathed because he was in front of Ju Hian. It looked like a butcher's knife at first glance. He also didn't seem to have any artifacts on him. He didn't even have a defense-type artifact like the other hunters. All he was wearing was an extremely old pair of jeans and a shabby windbreaker. No wonder the other hunters were in disbelief. They were wondering who had shown up but what kind of lunatic is this? He looked like a civilian and they didn't want to use their artifacts because it seemed like a waste to use up some durability on this guy. Who the hell are you? Dan nonchalantly pointed his knife forward. Hmm. A hunter. Hunter. They chuckled. Does he think any dumbass becomes a hunter if they call themselves one? Look at this dumbass acting all tough because he has a knife and some muscles. He looks like a noob who just joined Seo Juhian's team. Don't say we didn't warn you, you son of a bitch. Kill him. The veteran hunters charged toward Dan with their fancy artifacts. Dan was just a noob. On the other hand, they were all specially trained by large excavation teams there's no way he's at our level was at that moment. Dan suddenly disappeared. They all questioned their eyes. Ah! They heard a scream not too far away. An area had been scorched already once they heard the scream. That wasn't all. Dan who seemed to have disappeared instantly appeared behind them and, the moment someone said, T, this bastard. Their point of view had changed. Ugh. There wasn't even a moment of hesitation. Dan used the knife in his hand to slash down at the person's head and shoulder. Pow. Pow. His hand was moving as if he was chopping up a piece of meat. His movements were powerful and sharp. His knife instantly cut through the person's muscles and pierced in as if to bleed them out. He was also so quick that it gave them the chills. His movements were extremely skilled as if he was getting rid of the useless parts while chopping up an animal. Wait, what the hell? The screams continued to come from all directions. If they looked back after hearing a scream now someone on the other side would be down. Stop him, Stupheim. The only thing that could be heard other than the urgent shouts were the sounds of artifacts breaking and people screaming. Multiple people charged together after realizing they couldn't let this continue. But none of that mattered. Dan leisurely twisted one of their necks and used that bastard as a shield and threw him to the others before cutting out the rest of their legs. The direction of his knife instantly changed left and right. Ah! Ah! It was terrible. They couldn't even land a finger on Dan. Dan was even killing them with his bare hand, as if he thought a single knife was not enough. Chomp! Chomp! There were some enemies who started to use their heads. All right, retard. Keep on taking them down. Their goal was Seo Juhian. This bastard must not know how much bounty there was on Juhian's head. The important thing was Juhian's head. They just needed to take care of Juhian while Dan's attention was on the others. Seo Juhian can't use artifacts right now. It was obvious based on his actions. They didn't know what was going on but this was the chance of a lifetime. Some of the smarter enemies started to move toward Juhian. They weren't going at him with regular attacks. They were going at him with a knife that was covered in poison that was strong enough to kill an elephant almost instantly. They snuck up using an artifact to turn themselves invisible before aiming for Juhian's vital points. However, there was no way Juhian wouldn't have noticed them. Juhian quickly tried to defend, however Puk. Dan was much faster. The dagger aiming for Juhian was stabbed into Dan's thick arm. He had been committing a massacre on the other side but had instantly appeared in front of Juhian and extended his arm. T, this bastard. The assassin who had aimed for Juhian became flustered. 
he could not pull the knife out of Dan's arm. Dan started to laugh viciously. How dare you try to attack the Captain Nim? The assassin died as soon as Dan said that. All he saw was a thick finger before his head was cracked. He was truly at a different level. The monster who showed up on the battlefield had killed off hundreds of enemies. Dan didn't even seem to be in pain after being hit by bullets. He had special dragon-like bones that were resistant to artifacts but this was truly unbelievable. The hunters and their excavation teams started to shiver in fear. This guy was not human. This crazy monster bastard. What kind of monster did Seo Juhian raise? At the same time the rest of the tomb raiding team could not close their jaws while watching from the ship. W, what kind of ultimate weapon is that? I never thought I'd see that monster again. Ujeha and Ilya were shaking but Seole and Irene knew that wasn't the important part right now. Why is Dan over here? Didn't Mr. Juhian say that he wasn't going to put Mr. Heijin in the tomb raiding team? Surprisingly, Chloe looked as if she had expected this to happen. Dan had continued to show his desire to join the team after all. She kept changing the subject since the captain Nim had given his orders, however I guess he followed us all the way here. What? But Dan shouldn't even have his memories. On the other hand, Julian scoffed while looking at Dan through the binoculars. His memory was one thing, however it looks like he got his hands on a heirloom as well. What? Julian, who was extremely observant, instantly recognized it. On the other hand, the rest of the team could not believe it. Even without his memories. I think he is doing whatever he can to join the team. That's unbelievable the Captain Nim told him to live a peaceful life with Su A. As he said that boom. Dan stopped his slashing once he took care of all of the hunters. He then walked over to Juhian thinking that they could peacefully have a conversation now. Juhian sighed and looked at Dan. First of all, thanks. Juhian was happy to see Dan. However, he had a complicated expression on his face. It was to be expected. He could see that Dan had gotten an heirloom. He also had a feeling he knew why Dan was here. Dan, you. Yes, Captain Nim. I. You don't need to pay me back for the shop like this. Dan gasped after Juhi and patted his shoulder with an expression that seemed to be saying that he understood. No, that's not. I got my memories back you damn person. Mr. Hey Jean. The rest of the team other than Ilya came to support Juhian and Dan. However, they scolded Dan as soon as they saw him. His monster-like speed and abilities were all explainable if they factored in the heirloom and the S-grade possession type Sorabi artifact. They did not think that he had gotten his memories back. Mr. Hey Jean, we told you that you can't get involved with tomb-related things. Ah, uh, that, you see. I mean I like it, but what about Sue? No, let me. Anyway, please don't do dangerous things like this again, okay? Got it? Dan exploded once everybody said something. Let me talk. I got my memories back already. Everybody looked completely baffled. W, wait what did he just say? How did he get his memories back when the Captain Nim didn't even use the Raven's Tears? Ujeha seemed to be feeling guilty about something as he slowly tried to escape but Juhian's eyes flashed. Ujeha, you son of a bitch. Juhian grabbed Ujeha by the collar as if he expected Jeha to be responsible for this. Did you make a fake without me knowing about it again? Did you use Dan as the guinea pig for it? Ah. No, I didn't, well, it's true that I made a copy but all of them are destroyed now. Who could have expected Dan to use one of Ugg? Ujeha saw the look in Juhian's eyes and started to scream for his life. He really might have died if Juhian could use artifacts right now. Well, it didn't matter. Captain. I'm going to leave you behind if you don't hurry. Everybody jumped after hearing Ilya's voice from the ship. There were enemies all around them. Get them. All of those bastards have heirlooms. Don't let them get off this island. Julian quickly shouted. Let's get out of here first. But our artifacts are still with other people. Juhian's group's artifacts fell around the enemies as if a god was helping them out. These are. 
the other excavation teams were extremely happy. Juhian's doggy artifacts, the artifacts from the Seven Great Tombs, Colas Ghost Artifact, Da Vinci's Artifact Solomon's Artifact, Nightingale's Artifact, etc. For some reason, all of their precious artifacts landed in the enemy's hands. This must be a last act of defiance from the heirlooms that were captured by Juhian. Juhian looked at the doggy artifacts captured by the enemies and started to scoff. Hey! You doggos over there! Are you thinking about betraying me? The Egyptian divine grade artifacts truly felt wronged. Master, that's not it ugh. The enemies grabbed the doggy artifacts and threatened Juhian. Hand over the heirlooms if you want your artifacts back. Oh. You asked me to do what? The enemies started to scoff after seeing Juhian viciously smile. We won't be fooled even if you act tough. We know you can't use artifacts right now. They could tell by looking at Juhian's movements. He was only holding a regular dagger even when he was surrounded by hunters. Even amazing bastards end up like that every so often. They usually end up as eunuchs for about a week. Anyway, we have no reason to fear someone who can't use an artifact. You're just a tiger without fan huh? They suddenly gulped. It was because they could see the chaotic crow's aura started to seep out of Juhian's body. T, this bastard can still use artifact. Juhian's eyes turned red. Who said that he couldn't use artifacts right now? It's already been five minutes, you retards. Bang! The crow, no, Juhian's wrath descended on the island. Hurry up and hand over my artifacts. An extremely scary risk. Activated, making him think that all of the artifacts were his. His strength was so strong that it split the island into two and it disappeared without leaving any traces behind. The small islands nearby all disappeared from the map as well. Later on, an article that would make everybody in the world faint would go out via newspapers. Monarch's heirlooms monopolized by Co Juhian. Most monarch positions vacant. Unprecedented situation. Co Juhian's entire excavation team have become monarchs. Chapter, 267 The entire world was facing a mental breakdown. Maybe it should have been expected. Artifacts were keys to control the world. The amount of attention on the Monarch Grade SS Grade Artifact users was beyond anything someone could imagine. They were so influential that they could impact the world economy. There was also the support from Pandora, global corporations and different countries all around the world. The heirlooms were supposed to be the things that finalized these monarchs. Although it had not been confirmed, Pandora had already selected the monarchs. That was why those monarchs had been secretly saying things like, please take good care of us. They had been making secret deals and preparing to benefit but what the hell happened? The entire world was in chaos. It was all because of Co Juhian's actions. The people who were certain that they would become monarchs and the corporations that had made the secret deals even the countries that had been prepared to recruit the monarchs overall heirlooms ended up with Co Juhian and his team. There are a total of eight newly cemented monarchs. The rest of the positions are vacant. All eight are part of Co Juhian's excavation team Co Juhian, no intentions of selling heirlooms. People were crazy. How could Co Juhian run off with all of the heirlooms? Those people all gathered at Pandora. We were trusting Pandora to take care of things. How did this happen? The results are completely different. Will you really not accept us as monarchs without heirlooms? Are we unable to use divine grade artifacts? Pandora was put in an extremely awkward position. They never imagined things to go like this. Pandora members were urgently summoned for an emergency meeting. They all glared at Rothschild, the only member of the executive board at this meeting. What happened? Weren't the heirlooms supposed to pick the people we chose? I thought that was the deal we made with the artifacts. We hoped it wouldn't be the case but the eight of them went up in the Pandora system artifact. How can the executive board approve of that update? Prometheus, say something. Rothschild sighed after being called out. He was the giant supreme leader. He was an artifact who had taken on the appearance of a human and created Pandora. His true identity was the Prometheus artifact. 
he acted differently from the supreme leader artifact in China that just shouted for the destruction of humans. He had snuck into human society to make contact with like-minded humans and created Pandora. He had been the one to first-hand artifacts to humans this time. It was similar to how Prometheus had delivered fire to humans. Fire had separated humans from the primates and allowed them to become the rulers of nature. Artifacts were doing the same thing now. A few humans having artifacts separated them from regular humans and gave them the desire to become rulers of humanity. Of course, Prometheus was an artifact as well. He did not give artifacts to humans for their benefit. Just look at the name Pandora, the box from which disaster was released into the world. That was enough to tell the meaning behind it. Everything is done to torment as many humans as possible. It was for the artifacts' benefits. The power players worked with the artifacts despite knowing their plan because they smelled money and power that was how the current Pandora came to be. However, the situation was a bit different now. Hey, Prometheus. I didn't cooperate with you to get the heirloom stolen by Seo Juhian. Pandora's supporters were people who greatly influenced the world economy. Do you know how much money I spent to raise the monarchs? I was starting a new business around my monarch's ability and it's about to fail. The people who were harmed by this development were extremely angry. It wasn't just the executive board that was angry. Looks like Seo Juhian will be immortalized by how much people are cursing him right now. It's quite amusing. Some of the people at the meeting snickered while looking at Rothschild. Anyway, the artifacts are unbelievable too. They were so arrogant but ended up losing to Seo Juhian. It was at that moment. Bang. 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 Kaya. Ah. They screamed after the lights and different items inside the meeting room suddenly exploded. That wasn't all. Screech. Clang. Clang. Even the fortified windows started to shatter. The items inside the meeting room started to chaotically fly around and rampage. Know your place, humans. The snickering artifacts I seem to loathe humans. The members who had been speaking gasped after seeing the strong aura looking ready to destroy the meeting room. Stop. Okay. We get that you're extremely angry too, so stop. The items fell back down. Co Juhian, that bastard is the problem. He keeps messing with Pandora's plans. That was the same right now. Zeus's eagle awkwardly whispered on Prometheus' shoulder. This is bad. All of Seo Juhian's excavation team members are monarchs. We have six more unintended monarchs. Seo Juhian, Yu Jeha, Julian, Lee Seo Lei, Chloe, Dan, Ilya, and Irene. The only ones out of the eight of them that Pandora was originally planning to have as monarchs were Irene and Yu Jeha. Why? Irene's existence as the monarch of destitution was focused on harming humans. Ujeha was because they were planning on using his copying abilities for their benefit. Both of them seemed as if they would be quite useful to Pandora if they could lure them in. As for the others what are you doing? Contact the executive board and have the system artifact remove their names. T. That they said they cannot do so because they properly contracted with their looms what the fuck do you mean by properly? Get rid of their names now. The giant supreme leader started to frown. Now our only option is to fight face to face with Seo Juhian or. The eagle who understood the meaning behind those words was placed in an awkward situation. Damn it. Do we really need to remove the seal on those bastards? At about the same time the world was extremely rowdy right now but there were some people who were grinding their teeth the most. Is Seo Juhian still not picking up? Um, that. Tell him that we will give him as much money as he wants. Tell him to sell us a heirloom. Fuck, it's not working. Even flattery is not working. They were the numerous monarch candidates who had wanted to become true monarchs. The monopolizers threw the newspapers after seeing the list of people who were now officially monarchs. Unbelievable. These chumps are monarchs. All power in the world will be gathered around these bastards at this rate. Basically, Juhian controlled who became monarchs since he monopolized all of the heirlooms as for Juhian, he was reading the article and laughing with joy. 
Edward, the monarch of wealth of the past, Juhian's current business lackey no, Juhian's company's CEO only in name, could only awkwardly laugh. Excuse me, Director Nim. How can you laugh right now? Huh? What's wrong? You guys have turned the entire world against you now. So what? I have all of the heirlooms. Ho. Edward, who was running Juhian's artifact business on his behalf, became angry. Ow, do you know how many complaint calls we are receiving at the company? Juhian just snorted. Pfft, that's none of my business. That's for you to deal with. Even still. What's wrong? I won't give you a heirloom if you don't like it. Edward lowered his head right away after seeing Juhian's gaze. And, no sir. I will do anything you ask, boss. Complaint calls are just like lullabies. As long as I can become a monarch, nothing is impossible. Even the monarch of wealth who had control of the world with Lu Bue's artifact and the East India Company artifact in the past could only submit to Juhian. Damn it, I'm so jealous, so jealous. However, not everybody seemed to be happy to have officially become monarchs. W. Y. Yu Jeha, monarch of pushoverness. Kept his position. Julian Miller, originally the monarch of strategies is now the monarch of pillage. Title change. Some of them were crying while looking at the newspaper in the news. Why am I still the monarch of pushoverness? WHYY. I played a pivotal role, so WHYY. Why am I the monarch of pillage? Why? They were pounding on the ground as they lamented. On the other hand, there was someone who was very satisfied. Monarch of Devils Ilya Volgov. Monarch of Devils sounds a bit 8th grade syndrome-ish but I do like it. Ujeha ripped the newspaper in jealousy. The Monarch of Devils my ass. Get lost. You should be the monarch of premature ejaculation. You're just a baby chick. What? You damn monarch of pushoverness. Why why am I the monarch of pillage? Julian was lamenting in despair in a corner of the room. Irene was patting his back while awkwardly smiling. I, I think that your name may have changed because of all the pillaging you did at the monarch's tomb. Julian felt wronged. Even Seo Juhian isn't a monarch of plunder anymore so why me? There had been some changes to their titles as they officially became monarchs. Monarch of Predation, Seo Juhian Monarch of Destitution, Irene Monarch of Pushoverness, Ujeha Monarch of Pillage, Julian Miller Monarch of Ghosts, Lee Seole One Monarch of Devils, Ilya Volgoff Monarch of Healing, Chloe Loran Monarch of Azura, Imhei Jean the other members seemed excited to see their monarch titles for the first time. Juhian peeked at all of them. The crow had not tried to speak to him after they completed their contract. He couldn't even see it. That was a bit weird. It's just a damn stalker. It wasn't enough as a replacement, but at least he saw some reward messages. You have earned a monarch's body after contracting a heirloom. You have a body that is superior to regular humans. You are able to maintain your superhuman body even without the help of an artifact. You are now qualified to handle divine grade artifacts and higher. You have earned the heirloom's attribute after the contract. Your contract with the heirloom has upgraded your basic traits. The basic traits of theft and plunder have upgraded. New monarch grade attribute, predation level 1 you are able to absorb artifacts. I can probably use other skills once the level goes up. Juhian had that thought before flicking his finger toward his team members. Now then, let's look at the heirlooms you guys contracted. The team members flinched. E, excuse me. Our heirlooms? The entire team was scared. It was because Juhian had changed after returning from their trip. This bastard even destroyed the island because of his greed for artifacts. They could not forget about how Juhian had destroyed the monarch's tomb and the nearby islands. T, there's no way that his obsession with artifacts has gotten even worse, is there? Yu Jeha gulped before starting to shake an artifact. He was shaking it as a person would shake a toy in front of a dog or cat. Ju Hien's gaze surprisingly followed the artifact around. The team started to shake in fear after seeing this happen. W, we were right. 
The artifact file has evolved into something even worse. And then what are you doing? I said, let me see your heirlooms take it out. Let me inspect your attributes and abilities. What heirlooms did you all get? They all started to run in fear. No. You're going to take it away. They were certain of it. Taking it out would only lead to Juhi and gobbling it up. At the same time huff, huff. A man appeared in the middle of New York City. People started to whisper while looking at the man who looked like a mess with his clothes all ripped up. However, the man did not care. I finally made it out. He stopped a cab and immediately headed for TKBM's New York branch. He knew that Chairman Kwan would be there. The staff at the info desk and the guards were shocked as soon as he went in. No outsiders are all eek. You are. The man quickly headed for the chairman's office. Chairman Kwan, a Pandora employee, and the former monarch of healing, and current monarch of drugs candidate. TKBM's excavation team captains were standing there as well. The atmosphere was grim. However bang. Why the hell are there so many people here today? They all gasped after seeing the person who barged into the chairman's room. That sir is. You. People all gasped while the man smiled brightly. Hyung Nim. That was right. This was none other than Kwon Hyuk Su, one of the four emperors who had been sent to hell. He had killed all the guards of hell and forced open a small gap between hell and earth to barely make it out. You were still alive. Yes. I'm back now Hyung Nim. C.O. Ju Hien, that motherfucking bastard. Let's get revenge together. He saw TKBM's twelve reliable captains and thought this was good. Ah, were you having a meeting to capture C.O. Ju Hien or something? What? I will help as well. We can't let C.O. Ju Hien get his hands on an heirloom. How much have you planned? Don't we need to go to the monarch's tomb to get heirlooms? Chairman Kwan's expression changed while TKBM's captains all turned extremely pale. You, I'm Kwan Hyuk Su Nim. What's wrong? Tell me the plan. The captains wanted to cry. Damn it. All of the heirlooms are gone, you dumbass. We can't even use divine grade artifacts now. Chapter, 268. Alright, let us all praise Mr. Seo Ju Hien. Go on, shout. Hurry. Seo Ju Hien, hooray. Hooray. You will have good luck if you follow the monarch of predation. Oh. Let's also sneer at the stupid monarchs who couldn't even get a heirloom. Go on. Louder. That crazy lunatic bastard. The monarchs were all swearing while watching the monarch of fate on TV. Maybe that was to be expected. Joshua Jackson 21, former monarch of fate, current follower of CO Joshua he had come on TV and said, I have always been CO Juhi and Nim's servant. He also said, CO Stratimus is proof of that. All of these statements were extremely angering for people to hear. Did something happen to that son of a bitch's mind? Why did he suddenly become the leader of a cult? The other monarchs could tell why the monarch of fate was doing this. Why else? It's obvious that he's doing all that to get an heirloom. That son of a bitch is trying to be the only one of us who gets a heirloom. That was right. The monarch of fate, who had his memories modified by Ilya quite a bit until now, was back to his senses. How do you feel? Do you remember who you are? The monarch of fate had started to shake in fear once he opened his eyes. He had been inside a dark warehouse. There were weird devil summoning circles and candles all around him. Ilya summoning real devils and threatening him was extremely scary. This shitty aftermath cleanup crew. This agent was someone who could easily make him disappear from the world if he wished. However, there was something even scarier than that. C.O. Ju Hien, grabbed all heirlooms the remaining monarch candidates are no longer monarchs was the monarch of fate C.O. Ju Hien's kingmaker. He must have been working with C.O. Ju Hien from the beginning and planned all of this. None of this would have happened if it wasn't for the monarch of fate. Fuck, what the hell happened? The current situation looked as if the monarchs had ended up as complete fools and C.O. Ju Hien ended up with all of the heirlooms thanks to him. 
Of course, he could easily say that he was abducted and controlled by Seo Juhian. But he knew he wouldn't get off that easy. I'm already dead. The other monarchs are going to kill me. The monarch of fate had rolled his eyes thinking about what he should do. But the decisive factor was Seo Juhian has all of the heirlooms. That meant that Seo Juhian was realistically the person in power right now. The rest of the monarchs were just dumbass without any heirlooms. He only had one way to survive. Let's praise the monarch of predation. He had become a devoted believer. Actually, it was a cruel statement from Julian that had sealed the deal. Wouldn't the captain throw you a heirloom if you suck up properly? That was the true reason the monarch of fate was shouting like this. Everyone. We must praise Seo Juhian Nayim. He was a smart bat ready to switch sides as it benefited him. Believe in Seo Juhian. You will have good luck. Let's plunder the luck of your neighbors. Oh praise him. Monarch of fate, there is only one savior. Seo Juhian Nim is our messiah. Seo Juhian is the messiah. Is this regarding Nostradamus's prophecy about the end of the world in 199? The monarch of fate was busy evangelizing after becoming a Seo Juhian fanatic. He looked ready to serve Seo Juhian as a god if it meant that he would live and get a heirloom. There were some weird statements mixed in as well, but it didn't matter. People started to talk once the monarch of fate sided with Seo Juhian. The other monarchs could clearly see that the monarch of fate had betrayed them, but who cared? Julian was very satisfied while looking at the nonsense of an article. Good. He's paying for his meals. Using the bait about giving heirlooms is truly the best against monopolizers. The monopolizers were the world's most selfish and greedy people. Ilya, the one in charge of torture, clicked his tongue at the desperate monarch of fate. Do you think that the captain would really give him a heirloom? Of course not. There's no way that our artifact file bastard of a captain would do that. The vice captain of the tomb raiding team smiled brightly. He was the strategist who would come up with all sorts of plans for the tomb raiding team, however just torture the monarch of fate a bit if it looks like he's going to run. Wait, did he just say torture? Aren't you a human rights lawyer? Did this guy just give up on life after becoming the monarch of pillage? However, Julian seemed to have a plan. I'm sure the monopolizers are all going to head our way to get a heirloom. Julian was not trying to rub it in their faces as Juhian would do. This was just setting the foundation for a future plan. Even the captain should help out with my plan this time. Unfortunately, forget helping him, Juhian had just been glaring at the team members for days. Why? Like I said, what are your heirlooms? Take them out. You need to take it out for me to take a look. No, we said no, Captain Nim. Hey. It's not like I'm going to eat you. Take it out. Liar. You're going to absorb it. I should just kill them all. The team members seemed to have realized his plan. TSK, I was going to switch them if they were good. You terrible bastards. Are you aware that you shared your true intentions out loud? Juhian looked around at his team. First was you Jeha this son of a bitch never mentioned anything about heirlooms in their previous life even while on the brink of death. Since there was no way he would say anything about it now pass. Next pass on the currently out of his mind Julian. After that Ilya was looking at him with sparkling eyes and his hand reached out, which meant he was saying, pay me and I'll tell you. He was clearly looking for a way to rip Juhian off. Dan was smiling in the way he usually smiled before he nagged Juhian like Juhian's father so that was annoying. Then CHL. Oh my. I'll happily let you know if you give me your artifacts, Captain Nim. How are there no normal people in this tomb raiding team? That means she has no intention of telling me. In the end, Juhian peeked toward Irene and Siole. He didn't know about those disrespectful traitors but these two should be willing to tell him about their heirlooms Irene and Seole flinched once Juhian looked at them. They really didn't know what to do after receiving Juhian's passionate gaze. Uh, uh, no, I can't. The risk of Juhian's heirloom was pretty much a given as greed for artifacts. However, Juhian couldn't take their heirlooms no matter how much information they gave him. 
he would need to kill them to take it. There was no way that Ju Hian would do that. Chloe had told them that since that was the case, it was probably best for Ju Hian's mindset to not know anything about their heirlooms at all. She said he might become even more possessive if he knew what they were that was probably the reason. Mr. Ju Hian, I'm sorry. Captain Nim. I'm sorry. I promise to tell you later once your risk dies down. However, Ju Hian started to make a move. Boom. Ju Hian had attempted the push against the wall move. He was doing it against two women at once. Well, all he did was put one hand against the wall and slightly lean. Irene. See Ole. The way he was speaking while right up against them made both of them turn extremely red. His voice quietly echoing in their ears was just too much for them. They started to stealthily push each other out of the way with their butts. However, they lost all rationality once his face became closer. Now then, please take out your heirlooms let me see what they look like. You, um, Captain Nim, that. What's wrong? You don't want to do it. Ugh. They would probably never see this kind of passion from Ju Hian if it wasn't for the crow's artifact. No, these eyes are a scam. As Irene and Ciole forgot about the promise they all made with each other and were about to take out their artifacts. Ah! Ujeha suddenly threw an artifact in the air. Here, an artifact. Oh, another artifact. Look, here's another artifact. He was throwing them around as if he was throwing snacks for a dog. Ju Hian's eyes sparkled and he immediately jumped to grab the artifacts. He still looked so stylish with his long legs and model pose that Jeha was envious and wanted to curse him, but anyway who else but a loyal subordinate like me could stop him, huh? Are you sure you didn't just interrupt him because you were jealous? Fuck, shut the hell up you monarch of premature ejaculation. Yu Jeha was crying as he looked toward Chloe. Chloe, what do you think? The Captain Nim's artifact risk seems to have become even more of a headache. I'm not sure. Isn't it kind of cute? Shit, how the hell is it cute? Yu Jeha grabbed the back of his neck. My goodness, at this rate he would be easily seduced if a beautiful woman showed up with artifacts all over her body. As he said that my goodness, at this rate he would be easily seduced if a beautiful woman showed up with artifacts all over her body. Oh ho, that would work on Seo Juhian. There were monarchs eavesdropping on their conversation. This is great. I was wondering how I could get an heirloom from Seo Juhian. He had unintentionally given away the most useful strategy. In a New York cafe at the same time. Damn it. Seo Juhian, that bastard, do we really? This man was Chairman Kwan's son in law and one of TKBM's excavation team captains. Yun Shi Wu was grinding his teeth while waiting for Ju Hian at a cafe. Fuck, when the hell is this son of a bitch going to show up? Today was an important day. I need to make a deal for a heirloom no matter what. They could not use divine grade artifacts without one. That was why they decided to suck up to Ju Hian this time. They even brought artifacts as gifts after hearing that he liked artifacts. However we've wasted three days already. Why the hell do we need to do all this for that bastard? Huh? The other TKBM captains who were here with him sighed as well. They were captains with Ju Hian in the past. They were jealous of Ju Hian and were the ones responsible for turning Yu Jeha and sending the tomb raiding team to the afterlife. They were grinding their teeth in anger while looking at their watches. It's been 14 hours today that son of a bitch. The chairman Nim is here too. Didn't the other team say that he met with them pretty quickly? They peeked toward Chairman Kwan who looked ready to explode at any moment. They originally tried to make a deal over the phone. However, this was what Ju Hian had said to them. Get lost. Tell that old bastard to personally come here. That was why Chairman Kwan had no choice but to drag his still injured body out. That son of a bitch. Does he think that the Chairman Nim is a joke? Does he think that the leader of TKBM is a joke? How many days has he left us hanging already? Does he think he's the shit because he has the heirlooms? It was at that moment. Egu, our dear Chairman Nim. Did you wait a long time? 
Their eyes opened wide after seeing an unexpected individual. Yu Jeha was here along with T, the monarch of destitution. They started to shake. They then looked at the two people who arrived with anxious eyes. W, what the? I thought Seo Juhian was going to come. W, why the hell are you guys here? What's wrong? Is there an issue with us being here? Yu Jeha smiled wickedly. We are members of the tomb raiding team sales department. S, sales department. The Monarch of Fraud and the Monarch of Destitution are the sales team. They might make the partner business go bankrupt during a deal. However, the two of them were smiling. Now then, shall we start our chat? Some headache-inducing bastards had appeared instead of Seo Juhian. Chapter, 269 Wait, why are you all so shocked? Why would they not be shocked to see the Monarch of Pushoverness? TKBM's team leaders and Chairman Quan were grinding their teeth while looking at Yu Jeha. Although it was not as much as Ju Hian had done, Yu Jeha had harmed them quite a bit as well. The biggest of them all was when Yu Jeha had pretended to be Chloe and came to Chairman Quan's hospital room. The others all just had to do with Yu Jeha's cloning abilities. Honestly speaking, they weren't that afraid of Yu Jeha. However, fuck, why the hell did he need to bring the monarch of destitution with him? Chairman Kwan's expression was quite the spectacle as he was the CEO of a global corporation and people who had more to lose would fear the monarch of destitution the most. They felt that way even though Irene was just standing there with a smile on her beautiful face. She was glowing even though she wore a simple formal outfit since this was a business meeting. It was to the point that Ujeha had said, Will you shake my hand? It'd be even better if you would give me a kiss. He was naturally beaten up by Ju Hian after that. Her usually down hair was in a low ponytail as well, but that looked good on her too. Her neckline that was visible now was killer. She was like a glowing goddess to all of the men there with her. Yu Jeha was snickering thinking that he got them right where he wanted them, but TKBM probably did not feel the same way. Shit, did he bring her to send us to hell? The way she is glowing so beautifully is like a goodbye present. That must be it. There was nothing scarier than a beautiful woman who could kill them. The monarch of destitution was already fearsome to start but she even had a heirloom now. We don't even know which heirloom she got. Yu Jeha also had an heirloom but they had long since forgotten about him. Irene had captivated them too much. Um, you spilled some coffee. Are you okay? They were so shocked while looking at Irene that they had accidentally poured the coffee on the table and their phones. TKBM's captains quickly responded after Irene tilted her head in confusion and asked about it. Hey, she asked if we were okay. Do you want to die? Hurry up and tell her that you're fine. Tell her that your phone is fine too. The person tried to quickly clean up and ended up knocking over a bottle of water this time. The water spilled and wet Chairman Kwan's pants. Funnily enough, TKBM's captains and Yun Shi Wu gasped and offered their handkerchiefs to Irene. We're so sorry. We accidentally spilled the water. Excuse me. Um, excuse me. The one who got wet was your chairman Nim. I've committed a grave sin, ma'am. I dared to spill water. Chairman Kwan, the one who was actually drenched by the water, glared at his subordinates. As that happened hey hey, you captains over there. Enough. Hurry up and order. I'm really hungry. The captains all glared at you Jeha. Order my ass. You guys stood us up for a couple days and made us wait in this restaurant for 14 hours. How dare you say that to us. Hurry up and call CO Juhian. Tell him to bring over a heirloom. Yu Jeha started to snicker in response. Why are you acting like that? Our Captain Nim doesn't like you guys but I came all the way here to help you out. What? How can you treat the person who showed up because he felt sorry for standing you guys up like this? Huh? Yu Jeha started to smile in an extremely annoying manner. Well, I might be able to put in a good word with the Captain Nim if you feed me something. The captains then peeked toward Chairman Kwan. Chairman Kwan started to frown. It was annoying to feed a bastard like this. However, he gave them a look that told them to just take care of it. 
but feed him the cheapest stuff. As they called over a waiter and were about to order something ah, hold on. Get me this one. Yu Jaha ordered the most expensive dish. Furthermore ah, I've been craving alcohol lately. Bring me this one and this one. Ah, this one too. Every drink he ordered were extremely expensive ones that would make people gasp. The captain's faces were twitching in anger. Hey. You Jaha. What is it? You guys can't even do this much when you're treating someone. Is TKBM really that cheap? They had no choice but to get Chairman Kwan's permission and order everything Yu Jaha requested. That wasn't all. Then let's talk about the heirloom now. Ah. The heirloom. This is the price we were thinking of. They gasped after reading the document Yu Jaha handed them. Holy shit, this is enough money to buy a country. Are you fucking crazy? What's wrong? You don't want to do it. It's not a matter of whether we want it or not. This is the price that my boss decided. But as you know, business is all about negotiations and making a deal. Yu Jaha then snickered while looking at Chairman Kwan's arm. Ah, uh, hey, Mr. Chairman over there. Isn't that watch an artifact? It looks nice. I think it would look better on my wrist though. What did you say? You damn. Yu Jaha calmly waved the document around as Yun Shi Wu and the captains glared at him. What's wrong? You guys don't want a discount. Chairman Quan was grinding his teeth as he took the precious watch off. But Yu Jaha's ripping off did not stop there. Wow, this would look good on my sister in law. Yu Jaha dragged them around to a second, third, and fourth location before continuing with his crap. His hands were already full of all sorts of brand name gifts and artifacts, but he wasn't done. Irene whispered to him. You, um, Mr. Jaha. Is it really okay to do this? Yu Jaha didn't care and pointed to a necklace as he smiled. It was the most expensive necklace in the store. Wow, the Captain Nim really likes this style. I know the Captain Nim style very well. He goes crazy for this kind of thing. Irene's eyes flashed after hearing that. Irene was about to take out her credit card without even looking at the price when Yujeha stopped her and looked toward Chairman Kwan. TSK TSK, look at this clueless old man. Why I ought to? Chairman Kwan was extremely angry. That wasn't all. Hey, you over there. Bring that over too. T, this one. Yes, that one. Ah, that one over there too. I should get this for COA. Ah. This is for our Captain Nim, this is for our Dan. This is for our Vice Captain Nim, this is for our Chloe. Ah this should be good enough for our baby chick. Yu Jaha looked at a piece of candy from a bag he had been eating from. The captains held back their tears and anger as they listened to everything Yu Jaha told them. They went through a couple days of stay at a luxurious hotel, massage, shopping, and eating. TKBM's employees glared at the eating Yu Jaha after being dragged around by him for a few days. Okay, we have fulfilled all of your requests, sir. Can we sign the contract for the heirloom now? Yu Jaha Nim. Chairman Kwan was looking at Yu Jaha with a grumbling expression as well. He had spent his own money to suck up to Yu Jaha and managed to lower the price of the heirloom to $500 million. How much did we spend the last few days? Chairman Kwan had to completely wipe out one of his international bank accounts. But it was all worth it. This was much better than the shitty original price for the heirloom. I'm willing to pay the price no matter what as long as I can get a heirloom. And now okay, now the heirloom. But at that moment thank you. It's been fun. Yu Jaha stood up and smiled at them. They became flustered and grabbed Yu Jaha. Wait. What about the heirloom contract? You said that you would give us a heirloom. Yu Jaha seemed to have realized his mistake as he pulled something out of his bag. And that was brown eared Bulbo Rare file, organized by serial number 22 terabytes when it was a hard drive with numerous videos. That's my treasure. Please cherish and love it. Yu Jaha then started to run. The captains and chairman Quan blankly stared for a moment before exploding. You son of a bitch, 
get your ass back here right now. You Jeha, you son of a bitch, how dare the monarch of pushoverness treat us like pushovers. They exploded in anger and tried to kill you Jeha with artifacts. They should have done this from the beginning. Kaya. Sister-in-law Irene. Please save me. I'm going to be murdered. Yu Jeha called for Irene and ran away. TKBM's people immediately turned pale once Irene appeared. Were you just trying to harm Mr. Jeha? TKBM's people all stopped moving after seeing Irene's gaze. W, wait. No. Wait a minute, what do you mean by harm? Of course not. We just want to have a peaceful conversation. Yes, we must love peace. W, why don't we treat you to a meal again? TKBM tried to get an heirloom and is now in a financial crisis. Chairman Quan Taejun is angry. Planning on suing Yu Jeha. Ju Hian's tyranny was continuing. Well, it seemed as if it was only directed at TKBM. TKBM's people became so angry that they even made a call like this to Pandora. Can I just not get a heirloom? Can I just say fuck it all? That call made Rothschild, no, Prometheus, grab his forehead as if it was tired. I've told you about this many times already, Chairman Kwan. This seemed to be the con for being the only artifact that could associate with humans like this. They all came to look for him whenever something happened. But it could not be helped. We need to cherish the candidates who would be able to handle the Majesty's treasure. That was probably why Prometheus was being extremely gentle with them. There is still a chance. Seo Juhian has proclaimed that he would sell the heirlooms so if you. Do you really think those conditions are from someone who actually wants to sell them? This was the truth. Ju Hian had announced that he would be willing to sell some heirlooms of course, they had to agree to obey all of his conditions. That bastard's conditions will only lead to our self-destruction. Then an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. We just have to take it from him like he took it from us. If all else fails, we. Try it if you think you can, you useless Pandora. The call ended with that angry comment. The eagle asked Prometheus a question at that moment. Do you really think they would be able to steal the heirlooms? Prometheus clicked his tongue. Bring that key just in case. The eagle gasped. A, hey, are you really thinking about calling those bastards back? We have no choice. We would only be doing that crow a favor if we release those bastards again. That's why hurry up and get those damn monarchs to steal the heirlooms. He prayed that he would not need to make that shitty decision. Something is weird. Julian was looking at Ju Hian as if something was weird. They were currently headed somewhere right now for a meeting. Although Julian didn't know who they were meeting, he was heading out because he had no choice but to do so. It didn't change the fact that something was weird. I don't see the crow. The heirlooms were always by their master's side. They were parasitic as well, so the heirloom's aura could always be felt by its master. But Ju Hian didn't have anything like that. It's such a strong heirloom so how come I can't feel the heirloom's aura? Julian could not hold it in any more and asked. Where the hell did you throw away the crow? Are you sure you really got it? Don't tell me you camouflaged it so that even I can't feel it. Ju Hian started to chuckle after seeing Julian's gaze. It was obvious what he wanted to know. My heirloom truly is different than all of yours. What? What does that mean? Who knows? I want to know why that stalker is not showing himself too. I have some questions for the bastard. What do you Maya? It was at that moment. The rope that was curled up and sleeping on Juhian's shoulder raised its head. It seemed to have detected something. Something fluttered in front of Juhian at that moment. It was a black feather. That bastard was standing there looking like a human. Chapter, 270 Ju Hian's gaze turned for a moment. It was just a brief second but he definitely felt it. Crow. Ju Hian looked behind him as he walked through the crosswalk. Numerous people were walking across during the green light. White people, black people, Asians, all sorts of people were walking by but they were all regular people. None of them were artifacts. But he definitely felt the bastard's presence. 
It probably had long black hair. It seemed to be in its twenties. It was at that moment. Seo Ju Hian. It's red. Danger. Danger. The rope urgently pulled Ju Hian forward. Ju Hian was almost hit by a car as he continued to look past the crosswalk. Are you okay? Are you okay? Ju Hian patted the rope who was making sure he was okay before running through the crowd and chasing after the bastard. Julian was saying something about being late to the appointment but that wasn't important. You go first, you son of a bitch. It's a very important appointment so don't make any mistakes. Wait, you should be there if it's so import. He left Julian behind and disappeared. That perverted bastard I knew you would be stalking me. The rope was just whimpering as it checked the time. Is it really okay for you to not go to the appointment? Is it? It lightly tapped on Ju Hian's cheek. But regardless of the appointment or whatever else he had to do I am sure Kong Ming will take care of it. The one who would be disappointed was the other side and not him anyway, so he didn't care. Ju Hian then started to speed up. Julian was swearing internally once he arrived at the appointment location. Fuck, CO Ju Hian this isn't right. Maybe that was to be expected. My goodness, you came on your own. Where is Mr. Seo Juhian? There were beautiful women in front of him. He was at a luxurious bar. That bastard, he said it was an appointment he couldn't miss. It was this kind of appointment. Elena Cotton, a famous Hollywood actress, was there as well. She was the monopolizer known as the monarch of seduction. One why was she here? She used Cleopatra's artifact in the past. She was an extremely beautiful woman. Although she was a different kind of beauty compared to Irene, they were both extremely beautiful. She walked over and sat down next to Julian as she started to speak. How come you are here instead of Seo Juhian? That son of a bitch will be here soon. Egu, my head. Julian started to frown as if he had a headache. He should have told me the monarch of seduction was coming. And what? A group date? Seo Juhian, you son of a bitch. You said that others were okay but that I must show up and what? Was Ju Hian making fun of him? That bastard stole my fiancé in the past life. Is Mr. Seo Ju Hian really going to come? Yes he mmph. Julian was shocked after feeling a soft sensation on his thigh. Julian screamed internally after thinking that he could also see between the woman's smooth thighs. Damn it, Seo Ju Hian, you cruel bastard. I'm out. He had only come because he was concerned that Ju Hian might be going to meet with a monopolizer. It was because the monarch of fate had prophesied for changes to the world. The first was the great tomb appearance. The second was the appearance of the heirlooms and then now the third and fourth ones are left. Although only Irene and Jeha would know about the fourth since it happened after they died, they all knew about the third. We called it the Four Emperors Round. He wondered how there would be monarchs and four emperors with them having all of the heirlooms, but Julian was still wary of it. The four prophecies were large incidents that were going to happen for sure. That meant that there would be the four emperors even if their team monopolized all of the heirlooms he came here thinking that something might happen to Ju Hian, but it was this kind of appointment. I'm never trusting that son of a bitch again. As an angry Julian was about to get up. I'm sorry. I'm a bit late. Oh my, you're here. Julian was shocked after seeing someone walk up to Elena. Wait, that person is? He was certain about it. This was the person he had been searching for for a very long time. Around the same time Ju Hian was grumbling at the park. He was far from the appointment location and had walked over to find that damn crow. Ah, we failed. We failed to grab that bastard. Retreat, retreat. Tell the Supreme Leader Nim that we failed. He had to deal with these other stupid crows instead. Ju Hian growled while glaring at the fluttering crows in his hand. These bastards seemed to have noticed that the crow was not in his body. It should be parasitic to my body like the other heirlooms well, he had a pretty good idea as to what was going on. The thing Ju Hian wanted to ask the crow was not about something like that. I definitely felt that bastard's aura. Ju Hian sat down on a bench and clicked his tongue after being unable to find the crow. 
TSK, where the hell are my artifacts running around? As Ju Hian got back up to head to the appointment location where else? We're right here with you. Ju Hian turned his head after hearing a familiar voice. Right here my A. Ju Hian was shocked once he turned his head. There was an extremely voluptuous babe standing in front of him. Not only that, she was completely naked. Ju Hian questioned his eyes. He was certain this was the crow bastard. However she's naked. There was a woman curled up and looking down at Ju Hian. Her long black hair surrounded her body. Her eyes were cold. A young woman was sitting on top of the tree. You. The beauty looked at him with a gaze that seemed to be waiting for something. However why the fuck do you look like that? Ju Hian didn't even blink. The crow's pride seemed to be hit as she started to speak. Is it not to your liking? I decided to be nice and came in the form that a human man would like. Ju Hian snorted. Idiots like Jeha might get super excited while seeing this form, but it's still just an artifact. Ju Hian waved his hand. Whatever, change to something else. Something else? Anything but that. The crow changed to a different appearance. Is it better now? Ju Hian almost swore after looking at this new appearance. The crow had turned into an extremely voluptuous male bodybuilder. No extremely buff is probably the term here. Damn it, do you want to die? The crow flexed his muscles and said something. What's wrong? You told me anything else was fine. I should just choke this bitch to death. You still shouldn't turn into a man. The crow then returned to its original crow form. It must have a lot of different appearances after gobbling up numerous artifacts. I will get right down to business. Ju Hian looked toward the crow. Where is your real body? The crow seemed a bit shocked. This is not your real body. The crow seemed to be smiling. Ju Hian and the crow really did sign a heirloom contract. However, it was a different sort of contract from the other heirlooms there was a simple reason for that. This bastard is imprisoned in that great prison thing. It was the same tomb where they had died. The monarch's tomb was a bit weak compared to the one where we died. That one had truly been hell. That meant that this bastard in front of him right now was a sort of clone that had used an opening to get out of there. Ju Hian had contracted with the crow even while knowing that was the case. Why? You were the strongest of the heirlooms at that tomb. Ju Hian's eyes flashed. Even this clone was stronger than the rest of the heirlooms although it didn't have its full strength. Then are you saying that you contracted with me while knowing that I was a clone? You told me everything before we sealed the deal. You said the stability might be less compared to the other heirlooms you said I wouldn't be as superhuman as other people and that there will be restrictions. It was easy to put two and two together after that. Ju Hian had still chosen the crow despite all of that. You told me that I would be able to get all fifteen other heirlooms if I took you. That really happened. As long as your skills are there I will just consider that stability issue as a risk. It was stronger than any artifact in this world. He was saying that was enough. This bastard was an artifact that made divine grade artifacts and even the supreme leaders shiver in fear after all. But I can't have a clone as my heirloom forever. That was the reason he was asking this question. Where the hell are you? The crow started to smile. Are you going to come find me? You're going to do that even though you can use my powers because of the contract. I don't care for some half-ass power. Most importantly, Ju Hian had experienced the crow's power in the monarch's tomb. It had been so strong even though it was only a clone. The real body's strength must be beyond my wildest imaginations. So tell me, where the fuck are you? You'll understand if you gather all seven artifacts from the great tombs. There will be a change in the world. In addition, it's fine that you monopolize the heirlooms but be wary of the spider supreme leader and the giant supreme leader. The giant supreme leader? Those bastards have no intentions of choosing a human ruler. Only the majesty, the emperor's treasure will be your strength. Majesty? Emperor? Ju Hian frowned after hearing the familiar terms the crow disappeared after saying that. Ju Hian started to scoff. 
That bastard says whatever it wants and then leaves. After that Juhian finally arrived at the appointment location. Hmm, I got here a bit early. Someone grabbed Juhian by the collar as soon as he entered. Co Juhian, do you know what time it is? How can you be so late? Hmm. I'm only late by like two hours. Julian grabbed the back of his neck. Do you want to die? And you were coming to meet the monarch of seduction of all people. Are you crazy? Why not? She's pretty. She asked about a group date so I thought we could get you a girlfriend. It was obvious Juhian's true intentions to make fun of him on the side. You stayed here all this time despite knowing who I was meeting with, didn't you? Julian's eyes flashed with anger. You dragged me here knowing it would be like this, didn't you? Juhian looked around at the women in the shop and smiled with satisfaction. I thought it might be the case and I was right. Juhian started to smile. There was a reason Julian originally ended up in TKBM and had to serve Chairman Kwan. Juhian had run into the monarch of seduction while looking for Julian's younger sister. That was why Juhian lured in the monarch of seduction who had been trying to get close to him. Is it actually her? That I can't be sure because she doesn't seem to recognize me, but. Julian had personally seen his sister die. However, he had not let go of hope because of something Juhian had told him in the past. Don't worry. I'm sure your sister is alive somewhere. He had heard some information that someone had seen his supposedly dead sister. And now for her to appear with the monarch of seduction that meant that she was an enemy. Julian's hand was shaking while looking at his sister. Juhian lightly sighed while looking at Julian. He understood what Julian must be going through right now. He finally saw his sister again but she was with the enemies. That was probably the reason. Juhian patted Julian's shoulder as if to calm him down. Don't worry. I'll seduce your sister away. Julian instantly grabbed Juhian by the collar. At the same time huh? The Captain Nim went somewhere. Yu Jeha flinched after hearing Colas question while in the middle of restoring artifacts. It was because he knew exactly who Juhian had gone out to meet. She would probably throw a fit if she knew he went to meet the monarch of seduction. He was probably right. He even said it was a group date. Ah, uh, ah uh, the Captain Nim went out for a walk. A walk. The Captain Nim went for a walk at this time of day. Yu Jeha feigned ignorance after Siole glared at him. The dumbass Ilya responded at that moment. Oh, the Captain Nim went on a date. Both Siole and Irene's eyes flashed after hearing that. What did he just say? Chapter 271 Oh, the Captain Nim went on a date. Yu Jeha was actually the one who gasped the most. What the fuck is that guy saying right now? Hey, you dimwit. How can you tell them that? What's wrong? He's allowed to go on dates. W, what? T, that, ah. Uh. Yu Jeha peeked behind him. And behind him was, as he had expected Mr. Yu Jeha, why did you lie? You said the Captain Nim went on a walk. Why did you only tell us about it now? Well, Mr. Jeha. Chaotic aura started to rise from the two women's bodies. Yu Jeha screamed after seeing the strong auras coming out. Both of you need to calm, calm down. The vicious aura coming out of Siole was in the shape of a horse. This was no ordinary horse. This winged horse was said to be a horse that connected this world with the afterlife. It was a sign of the appearance of emperors in the east and said to be a spiritual beast that helps a person ascend with their soul. The Heavenly Horse It was that holy divine horse that was often seen in tomb paintings and burial traditions. But Siole was not the only one giving off a chaotic aura. Ah! My artifact! Ujeha's artifact started to crumble because of the artifact of destitution. Ujeha foamed at the mouth and grabbed all of the artifacts. They surprisingly started to become restored. That was right. Ujeha's heirloom was actually the phoenix. Yes, it was the divine bird often compared with the Egyptian Benu, the Fong Huang, India's Garuda, and the Jujak Vermilion bird. It was the symbol of rebirth after death and endless restoration. 
That was why Yu Jeha had a body that couldn't be killed even if he was struck by lightning or fell out of a plane and gave him the scam-like restoration ability. He could restore artifacts similarly to how he could restore his own body. Yu Jeha restored all of the artifacts before looking at the two women. Egu, both of you can stop worrying. The Captain Nim will be back soon eek. He then threw Ilya toward them. Damn it, I leave it to you. Go little chick. Friends shield. W, what? Ilya started to scream as soon as he was pushed. Bong. Ilya fell to the ground after being struck by the two women's auras. You, you son of a bitch. I'm going to kill. Huff huff, I'm alive. Even though he had the phoenix heirloom, he could still feel pain. The pain was much less compared to other people but that didn't mean that it would not hurt. That was why he kept his heirloom a secret from Juhian in the past life. Why? I'm certain of it. I'm going to end up as a meat shield the moment the Captain Nim finds out. He was evil enough to do something like that. Yu Jeha urgently started to calm the two women down. Hold on, I'll explain everything to you so just W. Unfortunately, Irene and Ciole were already gone. Around the same time Julian's gaze did not move his eyes from the beautiful woman next to him at all. Is she really Nina? She had short dark blonde hair like Julian and brown eyes. He still had not forgotten about the moment his sister died. It was a few months ago. She had been stabbed by someone who was being controlled by an artifact during a tomb appearance that happened at her school. He was unable to retrieve her body. Ju Hian had said the following after hearing about that from Julian. Your sister might actually just have been in a state of thanatosis instead of being dead. He was saying that there could be an artifact that could make anybody it stabbed seem to be dead. Someone could have abducted Nina after that. They had received information after that saying someone saw Nina with other people in the US. And now that sister was in front of Julian. He was certain this was his younger sister Nina. However Kate Allen. She said she was an American and not German. How could Julian not be shocked at all? Damn it, what the hell is going on? Was she not Nina? Ju Hian was staring at Kate as well. I'm certain this is Kong Ming's sister. She didn't look like Kong Ming but it was obvious. He had been the one to find Kong Ming's sister for him in the past. She didn't tell us what she did during the time she was missing. Anyway, he would have already noticed if this girl was a fake created by artifacts. That meant that she is pretending to be someone else on purpose. But she didn't seem to recognize Julian either. Ju Hian peeked toward the monarch of seduction. Did this woman erase her memories? The chances of that being the case were high. She probably had Nina come out here on purpose as well. To steal a heirloom. Pretty much everybody knew that Kong Ming had lost his sister. And although they didn't know where the monarch of seduction would have found his sister was she planning on using the sister to steal a heirloom? If that was the case, why would the monarch of seduction say that she was someone else and throw Julian's mind into such a chaotic mess? It was sort of understandable. She must be doing this to shake his dominance. That would make it easier to steal the heirloom. Julian's ass was on fire because he had no real proof. And then oh my, why do you keep looking at Kate like that? Do you still think she looks like your sister? Are you sure you don't have a serious sister complex? She sounded shocked. Julian could not hold it in any longer and jumped up in anger. Hey! I've been telling you this since earlier but this girl is not Kate, she is N.I. Ugg. Julian was instantly being stepped on. It was Ju Hian. What the hell are you doing? Ju Hian had his arms crossed and quietly mumbled as his eyes flashed. Don't get overly excited and sit down. He was speaking in Korean. Your dominance is the only thing that will be shaken. Julian was grinding his teeth until he said something back and smiled. Ju Hian was speaking as if he was consoling him. I told you, don't worry. If all else fails, I will seduce her and get her out of them. Ju Hian was grabbed by the collar again. I really ought to. His fiance was enough girls he lost to Ju Hian. Elena despicably smiled and started to speak. It's rude to speak like that so other people can't understand. 
Not only me but Kate can also only speak English because we've lived in the U.S. our whole lives. Julian pounded his chest in frustration. I told you that she is not Kate, she is Nina. Do you have any proof? What? Juhian scoffed in annoyance. Whether I seduce her or not, I guess I have to take these despicable masks off first. First mask was pretending to be Americans. Juhian started to speak in German for that reason. Hey, Julian. Isn't it really annoying that she thinks she's super pretty? Elena tilted her head in confusion while Kate flinched. Julian answered back in his mother tongue as he was caught off guard. W, what the hell are you talking about? The tomb raiding team used English 70% of the time and Korean that they had learned while working in TKBM for the remaining 30%. So why would he suddenly change to German and openly mock someone Julian then realized it? Is this punk that was right as Juhian started to sneer? I hate these bitches who don't know their place. But her body is hot so she's good enough. What? You want to take her instead? Hey, C.O. Ju. What's wrong? She seems like the type who'll shake her ass and follow you if you pay her enough. Kate jumped up in anger as Julian was about to get angry. She looked extremely embarrassed. Hey, those words. Juhian then started to smirk. Those words. That's right, the things you just said. What the hell? I thought you only spoke English. Kate became anxious and started to think of an excuse. T, that, I didn't understand what you were saying but you're making me uncomfortable so stop it. Kate smiled brightly and Juhian said something in German. You should probably get rid of the pepper flake in your teeth first. Kate covered her mouth out of reflex. Juhian started to smirk. You understand German so well. Elena clicked her tongue as if her plan had been ruined. I thought you said you were born and raised in the US. Who the fuck do you think you're trying to lie to? Damn it. Elena started to frown while looking at Julian and Nina chatting at a different table. Why the hell did she slip up like that? We could have taken the monarch of Pillage's heirloom in just a little bit. She had no choice. No choice but to go to the next level of the plan. Elena sighed before smiling brightly and sitting next to Juhian. Her body that gave off a wonderful scent really was lovely. But Juhian just glared at her as if she was a piece of shit. There are plenty of seats. Sit somewhere else. Elena ignored him and slowly leaned her head against Juhian's chest. Ah, I just want to have a nice chat with you, Mr. Juhian. Elena almost blushed after feeling Juhian's firm muscles. Oh. He doesn't seem buff but it's completely different underneath his clothes. She felt as if she wanted to strip him down. I guess you don't like me very much, Mr. Juhian. Whatever. You told me you'll tell me about that girl once we were alone. Hurry up and tell me. Elena slowly placed her hand on Juhian's thigh and gently caressed it. I could tell you, but shouldn't we have a conversation of our own? Elena smelled really good. Is it an artifact? He could faintly feel the aura of artifacts all over her body. While that was going on Kaya. Is she crazy? How dare she put her head on the Captain Nim's chest? Does that bitch want to die? My goodness, palm reading. That's something even my parents wouldn't have used as a pickup line. There were two women cursing Elena while watching them from a distance. They were Irene and Ciole. Whether it was intentional or not, the two women who were wearing hats and masks as a disguise wanted to rip Elena up. Her hand, her hand. Move that shitty hand right now. Where the hell does she think she is touching? There was also someone who was awkwardly reaching his hand toward them. Um shouldn't we at least order some coffee? They had dragged you Jeha with them. Egu, my poor life. It was good that he followed them before Irene and Ciole caused any issues, but Ciole had grabbed him by the collar and turned him into a GPS. Yu Jeha sniffled while peeking at the employee. Hey, the employee is viciously glaring at us right now. We should order. Shut the hell up. Please order me anything. Uh. Okay. Then three cups of coffee but this place requires you to pay first. Kaya. 
That bitch is moving her damn duck-like beak toward the Captain Nim. Where does she live? Yu Jaha sniffled as he ordered three cups of coffee. Something like this wouldn't normally happen, but the two of them seem to have lost all rationality right now. Well, I guess it makes sense. The atmosphere between Juhian and Elena looked good. Elena was slowly sticking closer and closer to Juhian. As her hand caressed Juhian's face and the two of them were about to kiss grab. Someone tightly grabbed Elena's arm. Juhian then started to speak. Enough with your bullshit. Sadly, it just looked like Juhian was taking the initiative and grabbing Elena's arm from a distance. Stop wasting my time and tell me. Where the hell did you find that girl? Elena moved her face closer to Juhian's as she started to smile. Do you really think it's okay to do this to me? You're about to be hunted down. It was at that moment. All of the lights in the cafe suddenly turned off. A shocked Julian tried to calm his sister down. Nina, it's okay. The light will come back on soon. However, at that moment Yu Jeha was the only one who flinched in the power outage. This is the same thing that happened at the auction house, Nina's eyes flashed. This was the moment that Jack the Ripper appeared. Chapter 272 People became confused after the light suddenly went out. Huh? Is it a power outage? What's going on? They just thought it was a power outage and didn't think much about it. But Ju Hian's group was different. This isn't a regular power outage. Ju Hian scrunched his eyes. The monarch of seduction was smiling in the darkness. A power outage was a sign that Jack the Ripper was starting the hunt. All right, Jack the Ripper kill everyone. Elena, the monarch of seduction, had been aiming for this from the beginning. It had been her plan from the moment she met Julian's sister, Nina. I'll take Seo Juhian to be mine while Nina will take care of the monarch of Estino, the monarch of pillage. She was also a wild beast aiming for a heirloom to become a monarch. She had tried everything to take down Juhian's group members who had heirlooms, but Seo Juhian was one thing but somehow his team members were all weird as well. The CIA, MI6, and other spy organizations had tried their best but they couldn't find any weaknesses for Juhian or his team members. They were able to at least get some information before Ilya joined up with them, however, that was no longer the case. Even the spies can't do anything once that Ilya bastard joined their team. They were all anxious as well. Information regarding the tomb raiding team had suddenly disappeared from public records and the media. The easiest to handle had been that stupid monarch of pushoverness, but bad things kept happening whenever they tried to mess with Juhian or the monarch of pushoverness. Their stocks would fall, their businesses would suddenly be in trouble, it was quite weird. That was why Juhian and Julian's weaknesses that they found out this time were extremely precious. Seduce CO Juhian with artifacts. There had been rumors about Seo Juhian being an artifact file for a while. It seemed to have become a bit special after he got his heirloom. Take Seo Juhian to the hotel. She was confident that she could send Juhian to paradise if they spent a night together. Her sponsors were proof she could do that. But before that all right, hurry up and kill him. Go, Jack the Ripper. Even the mighty Juhian should temporarily blank out seeing his team member die. It was at that moment. Nina, it's okay. There's no need to be scared. A fuse probably blew out or something. Julian tightly clenched Nina's hand in the darkness. Nina pulled a knife out of her pocket as if this was perfect. I don't know who you are, but goodbye. But the moment she was about to swing the knife. Pot. The light suddenly came back on. Nina became flustered. Why did the light turn back on so quickly? Nina looked around as she had messed with the breaker herself. It was too soon for an employee to have made it to the box already. She had planned everything out knowing the location of the breaker box. What the? At least it's back. The other customers were relieved that it didn't seem to have been a serious issue. Of course, the monarch of seduction was glaring at Nina. What are you doing? Nina, who was looking for an opportunity, closed her eyes and used her psychic artifact again. The lights went back out. Kaya. What the hell? Another blackout? 
Nina aimed for Julian's neck this time. However pot. It turned back on again. Nina became anxious and quickly hid the knife again. What the hell is going on? The answer to her question was at the breaker box. Hey, you can't do that. You see ugh. That was right. The rope was at the circuit breaker. The rope was raising the switch whenever it fell. Click. Click. It was able to easily push it using its long body. That was why it didn't matter if Nina used a psychic artifact to control it. Pot. 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 The lights would go out and then come right back on. Off and on. The other artifacts that could sense that a person was going to die were scolding the rope. Hey, what the hell are you doing? It looks like we could see a person die. The rope wasn't listening to them. Pow. 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 In fact, it whipped the artifacts that were trying to scold it. The shop felt as if it had turned into a rave what the hell is going on. Hey, what's wrong with your lights? Nina started to grind her teeth in anger at this unexplainable situation. Damn it, it looks like I might have to go over my limits and cut the power line itself, Nina, what's wrong? Are you sick? Her actions made Julian focus on her. The monarch of seduction was feeling frustrated while looking at Nina. What the hell is she doing? The monarch of seduction couldn't hold back anymore and grabbed Juhian's arm. Oh my, this place is a bit weird. Shall we go outside and talk? But at that moment tap. Tap. Someone tapped the monarch of seduction's back. The moment she turned around to look pow. The monarch of seduction was slapped on the head. The rope was standing there and moving as if it was a cobra. It seemed to be glaring at her, asking what she was doing with Ju Hian. Ju Hian's eyes opened wide while the monarch of seduction was in disbelief. What the H Kaya? She was hit again. This time it was her cheek. The monarch of seduction foamed at the mouth after being struck by the rope. This crazy artifact. An angry monarch of seduction tried to grab the rope, but. Move your dirty hand. Move it. Move it. Pow 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 pow. Kaya. She ended up being attacked by a flurry of punches. It didn't seem to like the fact that the monarch of seduction was sticking so closely to Juhian. She had even turned the lights off. Her plan was too obvious to this amazing rope. Around the same time there must be some issues with this store's power line. Julian, who did not know that he was in danger of dying, tilted his head in confusion as Nina ground her teeth. It'll be complicated if the lights aren't out. But it might be okay. Let's go somewhere else. She would lure him to somewhere secluded. Nina pulled Julian by the arm after having that thought. Um, can we go talk outside? Huh? Are you uncomfortable here? Yes, there's a lot of people and we can't really chat in private. Julian nodded his head and got up from his seat. Hey, Vice Captain Nim. Someone grabbed Julian's shoulder. It was Ujeha. Julian became anxious once he saw Ujeha there. What the? Jeha, why are you here? There's no need to ask that question. Yu Jeha gently pulled Julian toward him. Anyway, we need to chat for a moment. Nina didn't know what to do after Julian was dragged away by the monarch of pushoverness. Huh? Wait, this thing can't leave unfortunately, Yu Jeha had dragged Julian away. Julian had told Jeha that he couldn't leave Nina behind, but Yu Jeha just smacked him. The monarch of seduction's jaw dropped after seeing what had happened. The monarch of pushoverness? Why is that bastard here? He wasn't the only one who was here. Oh my, look who it is. A person I've only seen through the screen is here in person. The monarch of seduction gasped after seeing two women standing behind her. Lee Siole and Irene Holton. Siole and Irene were glaring at the monarch of seduction with vicious gazes. They were smiling but they were full of murderous intent. They then took Juhian away from the monarch of seduction. Are you done discussing B? U. S. I. N. E. S. S. With our Captain Nim. 
Are you done chatting now? Done chatting my ass. These damn bitches are getting in my way. The monarch of seduction glared back at them. She seemed to despise them quite a bit. I never invited the two of you. Get out. The monarch of seduction quietly growled and C.O.L.A. just scoffed at her. Who cares about your invitation? Did you rent the entire place out? We just came here to drink coffee. Can we join you if it's okay? Irene looked quite scary even as she smiled. She looked like an angel who was channeling the fires of hell. They viciously glared at each other. What the? Why are you girls here? It was Ju Hian. Siole and Irene flinched after hearing Ju Hian's question. Didn't you both say that you needed to sleep early tonight? You mentioned having to wake up early tomorrow. The two of them looked toward Ju Hian with awkward expressions on their faces. Ah, uh, T, that. They were fidgeting and looked away as they started to laugh. Oh, and we just came out to get some fresh air. Fresh air. Ju Hian tilted his head in confusion. They awkwardly looked away before moving closer toward Ju Hian. Mr. Ju Hian, that's not the issue right now. Hmm. Mr. Jaha said that he thinks Jack the Ripper is going to show up here. Ju Hian tilted his head even more after hearing Irene whisper that to him. What? You Jaha? Why is that bastard here too? Well, that didn't matter. That loudmouth probably told them that he came here to meet the monarch of seduction. The important thing was did she say Jack the Ripper? Jack the Ripper was a serial killer in London who is still often talked about. There were many serial killers before him but his cruel killing methods, provocation, the Queen's wrath and the media all made him extremely famous. A Polish barber was revealed to be the culprit once science developed and DNA tracing became a thing, but there were a lot of disputes about it as with any historical incidents. The important thing was that as that artifact was famous for being a killer, it was one of the strongest assassination artifacts such as Odin's Gungnir. This bastard had been a thorn in Ju Hian and the monopolizer's sides in the past as well. His assassination skills were so great that multiple monarchs had died in his hands. I did hear that he appeared recently. It had been reported in the newspaper and Yu Jaha had said it himself that he saw Jack the Ripper. It had been at the auction house where he shut the official restorers up and met the British princess. That bastard had tried to kill the general, the British prince, and other artifact users at that time as well. That bastard is in the store. Who told you that again? Mr. Jaha did. Ju Hian accepted that response and pulled out a knife. Jaha shouldn't be wrong as he recently had a run-in with Jack the Ripper. That assassin was like a ghost when it came to hiding, but Yu Jaha was a monarch. Ju Hian urgently started to speak. Siole, track him. That bastard would show up, kill someone, and disappear. He had given Ju Hian and even Dan a lot of issues in the past. They would be killed if they put their guard down. The bastard's goal is obvious. He was probably aiming for their heirlooms it was possible that he just showed up after finding out Ju Hian was going to be here, but you did this, didn't you? Ju Hian started to smile while looking at the monarch of seduction. The monarch of seduction feigned ignorance. I have no idea what you are talking about. Ju Hian wasn't really worried. He had fought against that bastard in the past and survived. Well, he wasn't worried until he heard this next comment. According to Mr. Jaha, it's a woman. What the fuck? Jack the Ripper is a woman. That was crazy. There's no way. The Jack the Ripper he had fought against in the past had been a man. Ju Hian had not seen his face, but did the future change? It's also possible that Jaha is wrong. Jack the Ripper was a male artifact. But he couldn't just ignore you Jaha's comment. That bastard was like an animal with extremely strong survival instincts when it came to his life. He urgently turned toward where Julian had been. He's not there. Julian and Nina were both gone. Damn it. Juhian quickly started to speak to Siole and Irene. Both of you, come with me. He was going to go look for Jack the Ripper. However, at that moment where do you think you're going? Ju Hian was walking past the monarch of seduction when she put her arms around his neck and chew. She gave him a deep kiss. Chapter, 
273. Tisk, do they still not have Co Juhian's heirloom? Prometheus was feeling as if his ass was on fire. It had already been one week since Co Juhian's group had monopolized all of the heirlooms it was almost time for him to make a decision. I need to prevent a situation where the monarchs are unable to use divine-grade artifacts. He kept receiving these kinds of complaints. We were able to use divine-grade without heirlooms until now. They were asking if there was a way to use divine-grade artifacts without sucking up to that damn bastard. It was infuriating. They would receive benefits as well but they were going crazy being pushed around by Seo Juhian. They tried to force a different outcome. How? You are the leader of the artifacts. Can't you give the order so that we can just keep using divine grade artifacts? Damn it. It wasn't as if he had not done that when he could do so. Prometheus was, stop, stop. Ugh. The whining rope rushed back to Juhian and started to wipe Juhian's mouth. The rope's body was now as soft as silk so it didn't cause any harm, but hey MMPH. It was rubbing so hard as if something dirty was on his lips that everybody could only stand around in shock. Well, the sleeping lion's whispers had been touched long before this moment though. The ghosts are going berserk. The shop is starting to fill with grudge. The shop is about to turn into a cemetery. The monarch of destitution is about to go berserk. They looked as if some female ghosts with serious grudges had possessed their bodies. The inside of the shop turned into a mess. How dare you put your dirty lips on the captain name you bitch. The monarch of seduction started to laugh. It's useless. I did get Seo Juhian excited and he won't be able to live without me anymore. What did you say? Irene became angry but Seo Lei flinched. Why? Seo Lei knew about the monarch of seduction from the past. She also knew her methods to turn men into her slaves. There were no men who managed to get out of the Monarch of Seduction spell, her numerous sponsors were proof of her abilities. Fuck, I put my guard down. The Monarch of Seduction shamelessly laughed. Stop your artifacts while I'm asking nicely. What? I can control Co Juhian now. Stop them unless you want to see your captain getting hurt. And hand over your heirlooms as well. Ugh. She would usually never agree to such a thing but the hostage was Juhian right now. There was no way Siole or Irene could do anything. Captain Nim. Juhian got up at that moment. Siole and Irene flinched while the monarch of seduction seemed extremely happy. Seo Juhian is mine now. But at that moment. Something shocking happened. Juhian tightly hugged the rope instead of the monarch of seduction. You look really pretty today. He started to rub his face on the soft rope and started to show his affection. That wasn't all. Juhian walked behind Irene and Siole and put his face by their necks. He didn't even give a single glance to the monarch of seduction as if she was just a piece of shit. The monarch of seduction couldn't believe it. Is he crazy? My ability should have activated. He should be lusting after her, so why? The monarch of seduction realized something at that moment. Is it because he's an artifact file? Was that why he went after the rope, Siole and Irene instead? Something still seemed odd. I have more artifacts than they do. She had come with a ton of artifacts on her. Makeup, body oil, perfume, underwear, tattoo, accessories, clothes, and even nail art. There was no way this artifact file wouldn't fall for her. Why are you going after them when I have more artifact? Ju Hien, who had been leaving hickeys on the two women's necks snorted at her. Get lost. You don't even have an heirloom. The monarch of seduction fell into a state of shock. Is he discriminating between artifacts? Is it because of the quality of the artifacts? She grabbed the back of her neck in shock. Ju Hien then caressed the rope again. He bit down on it every so often as well making the rope flinch. Siole and Irene smiled at this point. Juhian being obsessed with the rope was an issue as well but it was a thousand times, no, a million times better than being obsessed with the monarch of seduction. She should have used his desire for knowledge over lust. Juhian, who had a risk of greed for knowledge in the past, might have fallen for it. 
Anyway, the important thing was that this woman had aimed for Ju Hian. That was probably the reason. Why don't we have a nice conversation, hmm? Jai Ha should be taking care of the Jack the Ripper side. The monarch of seduction started to shake in fear. Hey, wait a minute. Why don't we talk about it? Shut up. Follow me. She was ruthlessly dragged out. In a back alley outside the shop what? Jack the Ripper was inside the shop. Yes, and it is obvious that his target is us and our heirlooms. Yu Jaiha had explained the situation to Julian. I can't believe it is Razorblade Jack. That bastard is extremely dangerous. Even Dan and Ju Hian could not figure out a way to deal with that bastard in the past. One shot one kill. That bastard would instantly murder someone before they could do anything. The person would die from the first strike without being able to try anything at all. The reason Ju Hian and the rest of his team could stay alive was because they were Chairman Quan's subordinates. Jack the Ripper seemed to have some relationship with Chairman Quan. He only got in their way but did not kill them. Julian urgently turned around. Got it. Then let's take Nina and go elsewhere for now. He was about to return to Nina who was still in the shop. Yu Jaiha urgently grabbed his arm. Hey hey hey. Are you crazy? Who are you going to take? What's wrong? We need to suspect your sister. Julian's eyes opened wide. What? What the hell are you talking about? He shouted in disbelief. Why the hell is Nina Jack the Ripper? She can't even bear to kill an ant. Yu Jaiha waved his hand to calm down the angry Julian. Hey hey, calm down. Don't protect her because she's your sister. It's not a matter of whether she is my sister or not. That artifact is only for men. Have you ever seen those artifact bastards change their minds? They have no problem changing things left and right. A frustrated Julian started to argue back. Shut up, you damn scammer. Do you think I have the Kongming artifact just for show? He would have found out if she had something like that. Yu Jaiha sighed. Ah come on, I'm just saying there's no harm in being wary. It was at that moment. Puk. Someone had slashed Yu Jaiha's head off. Blood spurted up into the air like a fountain. Yu Jaiha's head had been cut with a single swift movement. Julian turned pale after seeing Jaiha's body fall down. Jaiha. Yu Jaiha was a bloody mess on the ground after his head was cut off. He was certain about it. Jack the Ripper. Julian's pupils started to shake. He was dead. This wasn't even a doppelganger. It was at that moment. Julian felt an unfamiliar presence. Jack the Ripper. He released his thunderbolts in all directions. The opponent was human. There was no way they would be faster than the thunderbolts. The knife-wielding murderer could not get close to Julian. Julian bit down on his lips and used a healing artifact on Yu Jaiha right away. But healing artifacts were rare. This was only a C-grade artifact and wouldn't work on such an injury. He quickly called Chloe. Chloe, hurry up and pick up. Hurry, gasp. I really thought I was going to die. Ah. Yu Jaiha suddenly sat up. He looked so much like a zombie that Julian gasped and fell on his ass. Ah, uh, fuck, really, holy shit. Yu Jaiha was almost gagging as he touched his neck. He looked completely fine. Julian's jaw dropped as if he had seen a ghost. W, what the? What the hell did you do? What? You want to know what I did? None of the team members knew about Yu Jaiha's heirloom. They thought that Jaiha who had died had lived because he had exchanged his real body with a doppelganger fake every time. But now the sharp Julian started to shout. You, you, is your heirloom a faux MMPH? Shut the hell up, you dumbass. Yu Jaiha looked around after covering Julian's mouth with his hands. Fuck, I'm destined to be a meat shield if the Captain Nim finds out. Shut up. You can't tell anyone. However, at that moment oh really? What did you say your heirloom is? Yu Jaiha instantly got the chills. Chapter, 274
the footsteps were getting closer. He heard the voice behind him. He didn't even need to turn around to see who it was. F. Fuck. He was certain. It was an extremely low voice for someone who still had some child-look aspects to his face. That familiar voice was say that again. What heirloom? Fuck, this shitty C.O. Juhian. Yu Jehawk gasped and kicked the ground. Even tigers don't appear like this. You damn retarded Captain Bastard. What kind of shitty timing is this? Yu Jeha was crying as he started running away. Julian shouted and tried to get him to stop but there was no need to listen. Fuck, he definitely heard it. He was certain. Ju Hian wouldn't have such an expression on his face if he didn't. Shit, I'm really dead now. This was the truth. Ju Hian was smiling extremely brightly. That was why it was even scarier. His face was saying that he heard something quite useful. He looked as if he had found an unbelievable toy. Was that the same one you had in the past? His voice seemed to carry some murderous intent. It was a gaze of loathing. Jeha. Yu Jeha clenched his eyes and started shouting. Ah what the hell. You shitty artifact file. Now you're even hearing things ah. He couldn't help but scream. A vicious knife came flying toward him. Swoosh. He even thought that it almost struck somewhere dangerous. Ju Hian, who had missed, became annoyed. Damn it, stand still. What do you mean stand still, you weirdo? Are you fucking crazy? I was only going to cut off one side but I'm going to cut both if you keep moving. The dagger made another arc. Yu Jeha started crying after feeling Ju Hian's vicious murderous intent. Jeha knew that this guy wouldn't really kill him, but... Ah, uh, come on, what the hell are you doing, you lunatic? Do you really need to ask? Experiment. You said it wasn't the Phoenix artifact. I need to test it out to see if it is real or not. You're going to trick me again if I don't do it properly. Ah. What are you going to do if you're wrong? Then I will be super nice and put a 100 carat diamond in your coffin. What the fuck? Fuck, do you want to die? Yu Jeha continued to run away from Ju Hian's continued attacks. Ju Hian was the person who hated his lies the most. That was probably the reason for this current predicament. He must have decided he would really die as he urgently blurted out the truth. Okay, okay. It is the Phoenix artifact. It is. Are you happy now? Stop this nonsense now that you know. Unfortunately, thinking that telling the truth would get Ju Hian to stop was just a delusion in Jeha's mind. Why would I stop? You need to hand it over if it really is the phoenix. The attacks became even more vicious than before. Hand over the heirloom, you little punk. Ah. Stop running. Wah. This shitty risk. Yu Jeha truly felt as if he would be murdered. He was more scared of Ju Hian than Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper was a murdering bastard to start with but this guy had gone crazy for artifacts to the point that he would kill his own team members. Wah, I'm going to sue you for workplace injuries. I'm going to quit if you keep this up. Ha. Huh. You got that? I will tell your family that you were a good employee. Wah. Julian couldn't listen anymore and shouted at them. Hey. This isn't the time. Ah. Uh. Put Xiang Yu's artifact away. Are you fucking crazy? Ah. Osiris is even worse. Bang. Bang. Julian who was watching and even Jack the Ripper, who was trying to kill them, were just standing there in disbelief. What the heck are they doing right now? The murderer who was quietly bidding for an opening didn't know what to do. This was not something they had ever experienced before. Fine, then switch with me. No oh. Why not? Crows and phoenixes are both birds. What the hell is your issue? I have many issues. I don't want to become an artifact file like you. I would rather die. Jack the Ripper sighed without being able to go out. What should I do now? Should I take care of all three of them? Should I wait for Co Juhian to take his heirloom away and then kill only him? 
While Jack the Ripper was not sure of what to do Ujeha, who felt as if he would really be murdered by Juhian, started shouting. I told you that this isn't the time for this. Do you not understand that Jack the Ripper is here, right now? Julian seemed to think it was the right time to butt in as well. That's right, Jack is somewhere nearby. Julian was sending thunderbolts all around them to create a sort of barrier. The other side seemed to have thought things out as they had an anti-thunderbolt artifact that nullified Julian's attacks but he would at least be able to tell when they got close. Razor Blade Jack is someone who caused even you and Dan issues. That was true. They needed time to counterattack but that bastard took care of his victims one shot one kill. That wasn't all. He hides like a damn ghost. He had fought against Jack the Ripper once before but that was because the bastard was trying to get in their way and not actually kill them. It's obvious that Chairman Quan gave the order not to, but he could have put Jack the Ripper to spy on them to make sure they didn't do anything to go against him. He had not cared much about Jack the Ripper because he didn't try to kill them, but it's a different story now. Juhian looked at Ujeha's neck. There was a scar to show how deep the knife had stabbed into his vital point. The cut area was now being restored but anybody other than Ujeha would have really died. That bastard is trying to kill us. His goal was probably the heirlooms they might be able to defend with a defense type artifact but they probably wouldn't be able to survive unless they had a divine grade defense type artifact like Aeculus artifact. Unfortunately, defense type artifacts were just as rare as healing artifacts. They had a few that they had gathered but their tomb raiding team did not have a single armor style defense type artifact. That was something that even the executives of the extremely large excavation teams would be lucky to have Juhian's fans had given him a high grade defense type artifact sweatsuit but he did not have that right now. Ujeha had run off with it claiming he needed to restore it. The Italian expert was still busy creating the defense type artifacts for the rest of the team. That meant that they were in an extremely difficult situation right now. Technically, Juhian would be able to kill Jack the Ripper with a single attack. But Jack the Ripper could also kill Juhian with a single attack. If both sides would die with a single hit, what if Jack the Ripper struck first? Call Ming, where is that bastard? In that direction. Since the Ripper was extremely skilled in stealth, even Julian could not tell the exact location. But that was enough. He's going to attack soon. Get ready to support me. Julian asked in confusion after seeing that Juhian did not look like he was going to run. You're not planning on capturing him, are you? Of course I am. And then I'll put the bastard to use. What? It's not like we can run away since that bastard has us in his sight. It's either die or capture him. But? He's planning on using Jack the Ripper. Juhian was smiling. It's best to take a headache of an enemy and turn them into an ally. This bastard was different from Dan but was an amazing assassin who was at Dan's level. There would be no better person to take care of the people in his way if Jack became his ally. Ujeha foamed at the mouth after hearing Juhian's plan. Are you crazy? How are you going to catch Jack the Ripper without Dan here? It would be difficult to suppress Jack the Ripper even with Dan. But most importantly, he didn't want to use Dan for something like this. Then what the hell are you planning on doing? It was at that moment. He's coming. Julian quickly shouted. 300 meters in that direction. It's probably in the four behind you. The bastard jumped out of the darkness. It was in the exact direction Julian had pointed toward. Juhian started to smile as if he had been waiting for him. They want to know how I'm going to capture Jack the Ripper. The raincoat wearing bastard slowly came closer. 200 meters, 100 meters, 50 meters. How else? Like this. Eek, wait. Juhian waited for the perfect timing before pulling Ujeha by the collar. He had instantly created a meat shield. Ujeha was ruthlessly stabbed. Jack the Ripper had attacked. Puk. Egu. Ujeha clutched his stomach as he fell to the ground. Jack the Ripper's movement slowed down for a moment. He must have been shocked. Juhian would not miss that opening. Now that Ujeha had done his job as a meat shield, Juhian used superhuman agility to aim for Jack the Ripper. 
Ju Hian's dagger stabbed into Jack the Ripper's shoulder. Jack the Ripper had such swift reactions that he had barely managed to stab the shoulder. He could not see the person's face because of the yellow raincoat. But what he knew for sure was I got him. Ju Hian grabbed the stumbling Jack the Ripper. The opponent is using a teleportation artifact. Jack the Ripper instantly disappeared. TSK. Ju Hian started to grind his teeth. He had almost caught the bastard. However, he wasn't too disappointed. He's coming back. The assassination artifact was unable to go far. The person with the assassination artifact is approaching again. The teleportation artifact the bastard used must not have been the long distance type. Ujeha was grumbling as he stood back up. Ow, I'm lucky I can't die and that I feel less pain than most people. He looked toward Juhian as if he had been wronged. Anyway, Captain Nim. Let's not do this ag ah. Uh. Ujeha was dragged by the collar again. And then ah. Uh. He ended up as a meat shield once again. Sorry, I was in a rush. He fell to the ground while bleeding out and started to cry. I knew it would be like this. This is why I didn't tell him. I knew this guy would use me like this. The pain and the injury would both disappear in a few seconds but this was still wrong. Yu Ha soon recovered as if he was a monster before protesting to Julian. Hey! Kong Ming! Isn't this something I can sue him for? I'm going to sue him. I'm going to throw him in jail. Please be my lawyer and represent me against him. But forget representing him oh, this is great. Julian, who had been focused on Jeha's condition for a moment, grabbed him by the collar as well. Ah! He ended up becoming Julian's shield as well. Julian had been about to stop Juhian because he was worried Jeha might be in danger but he had changed his mind after seeing that Jeha was fine. That was probably the reason. Good, Captain, I have a good idea. He even formed a strategy using Jeha. We will use Jeha to catch Jack the Ripper. Right? Doesn't it look like we want need to call Dan? Yes. He'll be the perfect shield. The yellow raincoat clad Jack the Ripper appeared once again. He was about 100 meters away. He was moving slower than before, probably because of Ju Hian's attacks that had landed a few times. Ju Hian, who was on the phone, said something to Jeha. I still thought about your health and called Chloe. You can get stabbed to your heart's content now, Jeha. W, what did you say? Julian became angry. Hey, CO Ju Hian. You're not qualified to be the captain. How many times do you plan on hurting your subordinate? K, Kong Ming. Here, let me give you my anesthesia artifact. Good luck. Hey. Yu Jeha cried as he was being thrown side to side. You're all going to hell. Ha. Huh. However, it didn't end there. Oh, I came because I was curious but it seems like we have a new shield. What was the saying? You reap what you sow. The original friend's shield appeared with a glow in his eyes.